Hello my dear students, this year I am Sony and I am here to go ahead and launch this complete marathon for your CA final IDT November 22 exam. Now we have already gone ahead and released chapter wise revision Baba long back since the last three months I am already re releasing chapter wise revisions for all the chapters of your CA final IDT syllabus but still students had a request that sir please go ahead and provide a long video please provide a complete marathon video so that we don't have that fear of missing out now what happens is students feel that when we go ahead and see chapter wise we will go ahead and miss out something baba trust me the how important this exam is for you more than that it is important for me that you go ahead and score good i have gone ahead and provided each and every chapter whether it is a small chapter whether it is a big chapter whether it is a c graded chapter all the chapters ka chapter wise revision in hindi as well as english i have gone ahead and provided on my english as well as hindi channel but still on the request of the student i am here today going ahead and launching this marathon baba in the marathon i have gone ahead and done is clubbed all the videos which were there so i've gone ahead and clubbed all the chapter wise revision videos which were there and i'm going to provide it to you now for gst there it, it is going to be one video and for customs it is going to be one video so for gst approximately 20 hours ka one video will come and for customs it is going to be six to seven hours ka one video which is going to come now for english i'm going ahead and releasing it Hindi wale student baba Hindi ka already channel mein chapter wise revision hai clubbing karne mein jada dikkate aa rahi hai isliye maine unko club nahi kiya hai chapter wise complete revision udhar hai aap please unko dekh lijiyega kahin kuch miss out nahi hoga tension mat lijiye ekdam fir bhi agar aapko lagta hai english ka video dekhna hai to english ka complete marathon hai aap isko dekh lijiyega Hindi mein alag se marathon nahi aayega theek hai Hindi mein chapter wise revision already hai, English mein bhi chapter wise revision already hai, bas English ke chapter wise mar, revis, uh, jo cha, revisions hai, unko mein club karke ek marathon video de raha hu, agar aapko dekhne ka man ho, aap ye video bhi dekh sakte ho, right everyone, done sir, point is clear, so here is the marathon, I have gone ahead and clubbed all the videos, we will be going ahead and enjoying it now, sir, revision is going, how are you going to revise, Baba, we are going to revise with the help of our chart book, version 8 chart book version 8 which is completely amended and updated for your number 22 exam we will be going ahead and revising from the chart book version 8 sir i have the chart book version 8 very good sir i don't have the chart book version 8 i have older version baba use your older version no problem just have a pen with you so that wherever i go ahead and wherever you see that during the revision any changes are there you can make a quick note sir i don't have the chart book new version i don't have the chart book old version then what to do baba from whichever teacher you have gone ahead and taken classes this uh, this marathon is going to be helpful for you don't worry at all just pick up the summary material which you have and start your revision sir i want the chart book baba see now your exams are already very near so purchasing the chart book will be little difficult for you because if you purchase now it might take some time for it to reach to you guys what you can do is you can download the ramesh sony classes mobile app in the mobile app you can go ahead and purchase the hard copy when the hard copy the hard copy will take some time to reach you by that time you will be given ebook access in the mobile app so you can use the ebook and then when the hard copy reaches you you can go ahead and use the hard copy right everyone done sir point is clear when i am going ahead and revising most of the important amendments which are there i have gone ahead and covered in the revision circulars notification amendments which are applicable all the things i have gone ahead and covered but still i will request all the students to go to my Go to rameshsone.com, free resources, rameshsone.com, free resources, number 22 folder. In that, you have the amendment booklet which is there. Please download the amendment booklet. In that, whatever the amendments are there, whenever you finish one revision of one chapter with me, please see that amendment quickly. If that amendment is already covered in the video, very good. If the amendment is not important, what? But if it is still there in the amendment booklet, just see it once. Don't leave it and go. Right, everyone? So let's go ahead and get it started. All the best, guys. Enjoy the revision. And if you love the revision, do leave me a comment. Right, everyone? And also, if when you are going ahead and watching the revisionary video, if you guys have any query, Baba, don't worry at all. I am there with you. I'm 
going to be there with you on the day of the exam night day i am always there you can leave me a message 7259276368 and i will get back to you sir a message it might take time to, tomorrow is my exam then what will happen baba don't worry about it you call me if i am in class after the class i'll get back to you right everyone chalo now let's go ahead and get it started enjoy the marathon everyone all the best guys love you let's get it started now all right people let's go ahead and revise the first first chart which is gst in india and introduction overview and administration i told you it's a c graded chapter which you are going to have how much marks in the exam 3 to 4 marks maximum in the exam is expected c graded topic it is let's go ahead and cover it quickly number 1 what did we go ahead and learn the first thing article number 360 is clause 12a it goes ahead and talks about gst ka definition gst means GST means any tax on supply of goods, services or both except alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Alcoholic for liquor for human consumption has been kept out of GST. Other than that, any goods and service, whenever it is supplied, GST shall be levied. The next one over here is, what do you mean by tax everyone? Tax means a compulsory payment under an act and it is to the government you do to provide various public services what are the various public service government is going to provide you health infrastructure education etc right everyone then we learn the difference between direct tax and indirect tax what is direct tax and indirect tax direct tax is baba on a taxpayer indirect tax is on goods and service yes everyone if i am supplying these goods and service indirect tax is on these goods and service direct tax imposed on me burden also from my pocket indirect tax everyone imposed on me i will pass on the burden to the ultimate consumer the person who is going to consume will bear the burden direct tax income tax indirect tax gst and custom direct tax progressive in nature you progress tax also progresses indirect tax regressive same for all income levels sir then we learned about the deficiencies in the existing tax system what are the deficiencies everyone cascading effect tax on tax was happening then, sir, whenever a manufacturer is going ahead and selling the goods to the trader, trader can't take excise duty ka credit. When you can't take excise duty ka credit, again, tax on tax was happening. So, no send credit to trader or dealer. The third is double taxation. There was no integration between VAT and service tax and hence, there was, it was causing what? Double taxation. Next, several taxes like luxury tax, entertainment tax, etc. were not being subsumed in the VAT regime. VAT was also there. CST was there. Luxury tax, entertainment tax, so many taxes were there. What is the various features of GST, everyone? GST is a tax. It's a tax on supply. It's a consumption tax. Means the ultimate consumer bears the burden of the tax. Sir, it's a destination-based tax. Means tax goes to be state where the goods are finally destined or consumed. And the last one, GST is a value-added tax. What do you mean by value-added tax? Whenever you buy something, you will pay some tax. Whenever you sell something, you will have output tax liability. This input tax credit, you will set against the output tax and you will pay the balance. It means only on the value addition, which you do from your end, you have to collect the tax and give it to the government. Is my point clear to all? Actually, you collect on the whole amount, you set off your input tax credit and the balance you pay to the government. So, balance is basically on the value addition you pay the tax. Is my point clear to all? Benefits of GST. C graded topic C minus graded question it is. Sir, what are the benefits everyone? Benefits is creation of unified national market. One nation, one market, one tax. Boost to make an in Indian initiative. Baba, whenever, wherever you are buying from, you will get the credit. If you get the credit, your cost will come down. If your cost comes down, India may make in India initiative will be boosted because the cost of make in India will become less. Then because of only GST there in the picture, people will invest in the country. If people are investing, investments will go out, go up and employment will also go up. Ill effects of cascading, cascading effect is gone. Ease of doing business has happened. Baba, less compliances, ease of business has is there now. Automated process. With the greater use of information, technology, technology ka use more is there in the GST. Next, reduction in compliance cost because now no more VAT, no more other taxes which are there, only GST ka compliance. So, compliance cost will also 
come down benefits to small trader and entrepreneur small traders who are there small entrepreneurs who are there because the registration limit is 20 lakh 40 lakh they are also benefited the last is elimination of multiple tax gone double taxation gone baba no more problem because of VAT and service tax not being integrated. It is only GST when you buy something, when you sell also or you provide a service also it is GST. GST can be set off against GST. So no problem at all. Now the next one, Baba C graded topic, C graded kind of question. What are the taxes which are subsumed into GST? Central excise duty is subsumed. Sir, service tax is subsumed. Countervailing duty and special countervailing duty which is under custom, gone. Central sales tax, gone. Surcharges and sales, service tax gone. For an example, service tax may Krishi Kalyan says was there, gone. Swaj Bharat says was there, gone. Are we clear everyone? State taxes which are then, which are the state taxes which are subsumed? State surcharges and cesses are gone. Entertainment tax is gone. The next one, taxes on lottery betting gambling is gone. Entry tax, purchase tax is gone. VAT, sales tax, luxury tax, all these taxes are gone because of coming off. GST. What are the taxes which are not gone? Please remember this. Don't forget it. Sir, what are the taxes which are not gone? Number one, basic custom duty. It has not gone. Entertainment tax which is levied by local body. Not gone. Then, property tax is still there. Stamp duty is still there. Electricity duty is still there. State excise duty on alcoholic liquor is still there. And central excise duty on HP man, HP man, high speed diesel, petroleum crude, motor spirit, aviation turbine fuel and Natural gas. What is it everyone? Again with me, high speed diesel, petroleum crude, motor spirit, aviation turbine fuel and natural gas is still there. Right everyone. Now, the next one is dual model of GST. What is dual model of GST everyone? In dual model, both central government and state government will go ahead and collect GST together on a transaction. Central government will collect CGST, state government will collect SGST or UT then UT GST shall be collected. What is a GSP? GSP means it, they are IT, ITS company or financial technology company. Who is appointing them? They are appointed by the goods and service tax network. So GSP will go ahead and help a taxpayer in going, going ahead and filing their return on the gst.gov.in. So they will develop some application which will pull the data from your system and push it to the gst.gov.in. So they, they, are, they are basically going ahead and acting as a link between taxpayer and the GSTN. Now, they can't develop a software. They take the help of ASPs. ASPs are acting as a link between them and taxpayers. Taxpayers and the GSPs. Who is acting as a link? ASPs, application service provider. Are we clear, everyone? IT, ITS companies who are appointed by GSTN to develop application for taxpayer to interact with GSTN. Whenever a taxpayer wants to interact with GSTN, they will go ahead and develop. GSPs will develop the application then they facilitate taxpayer in uploading invoice and filing of return and customized product according to the need of the user. Then they are telling GSPs take the help of whom? ASPs and GSPs act as a link between taxpayer and GSTN. ASPs act as a link between taxpayer and GSTN. I had gone ahead and told you over here that whenever it's an ASP, AS, GSPs act as a link between taxpayer and GSTN and ASPs act as a link between taxpayer and GSTN. Can I go ahead everyone? Yes sir, point is clear. The next one over here is cross empowerment. What do you mean by cross empowerment everyone? Proper officer who is there under the CGST Act is cross empowered to act as an SGST officer also or vice versa. SGST officer can also act as an officer under CGST. So it says a proper officer under CGST is issuing an order. He will go ahead and issue an order with respect to SGST amount also. Or if an SGST officer is issuing an order, then he will go ahead and issue an order with respect to CGST amount also. But always remember one thing, if an order to you is issued by a CGST officer, against that order, appeal, review, revision, etc. or rectification will also lie with a CGST officer only. If an officer under SGST has issued you an order, against that order, if you want to go for an appeal, appeal also will lie with the SGST officer only. Is my point clear to all? Yes, sir. Point is clear. Baba, come to the right hand side. Trade and commerce. Baba, if I go in and talk about the trade and commerce, interstate trade, intrastate trade, and interstate trade. Intrastate means within the same state, within the same UT, always which are CGST, SGST, or CGST, UT, GST. Whenever it is interstate, different state, different UT, one state, one UT, and different country people you have to talk with me only then you will remember otherwise it is me talking i will remember not you can i go ahead everyone now so sir whenever it is different state different duty one state one duty and different country what will come 
IGST. Whom does IGST go to? Central government. Central government keeps half, keeps half to the gives half to the destination state government. Right, everyone. The next one over here is India. How many states, everyone? 28 states, 8 union territories. Out of that, 3 union territories are considered as state because their UT is with legislature. Hence, in GST, how many states? 31 states and 31 states always have CGST and SGST on intrastate supply. How many UTs are there? 5 union territories. What are the union territories, everyone? Andaman and Nicobar, Lakshadweep, Dadra and Nagar Haveli, and Daman and Dio, and Ladakh and Chandigarh. Whenever union territory transaction is happening, CGST plus UTGST, various goods and service pay. What are the various taxes which are there? Alcoholic liquor for human consumption, state excise duty on sale, sale, VAT, and CST. Sir, HP man, high speed diesel, petrol and crude, motor spirit, aviation turbine fuel, and natural gas. What is the tax, everyone? Sir, it is central excise duty and VAT or CST. Sir, tobacco pay, always central excise duty and GST, OPM, narcotics, Indian hemp, central, state excise duty and GST. Any other goods, GST, GST and GST. Then we went ahead and learned about the constitutional provision. Article number 265, no tax should be levied or collected except by the authority of law. Article number 245, parliament will make law for which is applicable to the whole of India or any part of India. State legislature for the state or part of the state. Then we have article number 245 done. 246 went ahead and divided the power between the state legislature, with between the central government, state government and the both the government together. Union list is the list number one where who will make the law? Parliament gets through the law will be made. Central government will make the law. Are we clear? Then list number two, state legislature gets through the law will be made. State government will make the law. And list number three, both the government together will make the law. Are we clear till here everyone? Now, both the government together making the law. Always remember when we learned article number 246, it is told over there that there is one more article, article number 254 which went ahead and told that parliament ka law will be supreme. And hence, state government told no, parliament ka law will not be supreme. And hence, they went ahead and introduced article number 246 which went ahead and told. Forget what is told in 246 and what 246A they introduced which where they told. Forget what is told in list number 1, list number 2, list number 3. Forget that parliament is, parliament ka law is supreme. Now, GST ka law will be made by both the government together. They went ahead and told 246A provided power to parliament and state legislature to levy GST together. Whenever it is interstate trade or commerce, always the parliament will have the exclusive law to make the GST. Basically, parliament will have exclusive power to make GST law, basically IGST ka law shall be made by parliament. Means the central government will introduce the bill and it will be passed by Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So, it will be applicable to the whole of India. Next, article number 269A, IGST, who will collect, levied and collected by central government. They will go ahead and then apportion it between the center and the state. Which state? Destination state. Yes, sir. Then we have the very important point over here. C graded chapter ka A graded question it is. Article number 279A. It talks about the GST council. GST council was constituted on 15 September 2016. How many members are there? 33 member, 2 union member, 31 state finance minister or taxation minister or minister nominated by the state. Then quorum is how much everyone? Half of the number of member. Majority for decision is three-fourth of the weighted votes of member present and voting and the weights of the center is one-third and votes of the weights of the state is two-third. Are we clear everyone? What are the functions of the GST council? GST council will go ahead and make recommendation to the state and the union regarding the taxes which are to be subsumed, the taxes which are not to be subsumed. Then rates of GST, goods and services which are subject to GST, goods and services which are not subject to GST. Special provision with respect to special category state. What is special category state, everyone? We went ahead and learned about special category state, which is humans, humans of Tripura and Jammu and Kashmir. H for Himachal Pradesh, U for Uttarakhand, M for Meghalaya, Mizoram, Manipur, A for Arunachal, Assam, N for Nagaland, T for Tripura, J for Jammu and Kashmir. Are we clear? Humans of Tripura and Jammu and Kashmir are the special category state. Then we have the common portal. Okay. Then we have 
डेट ऑन विच जीएसटी टू बी लेविड ऑन एचपी मैन हाईस्पीड डीजल पेट्रोलियम क्रूड मोटर स्पीड एफिशियंट टर्बाइन फ्यूल एंड नेचुरल गैस ऑन दिस वेन जीएसटी विल कम दैट ऑल्सो काउंसिल विल डिसाइड एंड अलाउ टेल द गवर्नमेंट एंड गवर्नमेंट विल इश्यू ए नोटिफिकेशन आर वी क्लियर एवरी वन देन द थ्रेश होल्ड लिमिट फॉर रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑल्सो विल बी डिसाइडेड ऑफ थ्रेश होल्ड लिमिट ऑफ टर्न ओवर हाउ मच इज द टर्न ओवर when you cross you are required registration who will decide the council will go ahead and decide then we have the common portal gst.gov.in e way bill gst.gov.in e invoicing 1 to 10 gst.gov.in sir who is managing that gst.gov.in gstn who is managing e way bill nic national informatics center e invoicing portal national informatics center c graded topic of b graded question this is functions of gstn what are the functions which are there they facilitate registration goods and service tax network the company what do they do they function they facilitate registration competition and settlement of igst between the center and the state they will go ahead and do the matching of tax payment detail with banking network you made the payment whether received by the government they will do it they will do the matching providing of monthly information system report mis reports will be provided by whom gstn providing forwarding return to center and state when you file your return return will be forwarded to the officer who will go ahead and forward gstn and they provide analysis of tax payers profile who will provide gstn right everyone now here one more point which i feel you should remember france was the first country to implement gst till now 160 countries have gone ahead and implemented gst this also you can remember here i will go ahead and close my revision on our first chapter which is gst in india and introduction overview and administration all you have to do now is solve question answers and you are done right everyone i'll close my chapter of gst in india and introduction overview and administration over here chalo baba let's go ahead and revise the next chart the next chart is on goods or services sir what is why what is the importance of learning goods and service because only if something is falling in goods and service gst can be levied on it because first for, for gst to be charged it has to be goods or service goods ka definition is given in section number 252 services ka definition is given in 2102 goods means what everyone goods means every kind of movable property whatever is movable sir this is movable this is goods it means what is not im what is not movable is not goods and if you go ahead and read the movable property ka definition it says movable property means what is not immovable and immovable ka definition as per the general process act is land baba any kind of land which is there is immovable whether it is agricultural land rural land urban land farm land whatever any kind of land is immovable land on the land if there is any benefit arising out of the land for an example you have gone ahead and given someone the development right on the land you have gone ahead and given him immovable property things attached to the land might be there is a building on the land that is also immovable might be there is a tree which is there that is also immovable then or anything permanently fast end to anything attached might be the building pay one telecommunication tower is attached that is also immovable whatever is immovable it is not movable if it is not movable it is not good so what is immovable land benefit out of land things attached to the land things attached to what is attached to the land is immovable whatever is immovable is not movable if it is not movable it is not good so whatever is movable it is always goods goods means every kind of movable property other than money money is not goods are we clear everyone what do you mean by money money means indian legal tender foreign currency check promise in note bill of exchange any instrument which is recognized by the rbi which is used to settle an obligation is always money but money held for numismatic value like those old coins etc are not money and if they are not money they are always goods then i told you money also includes commercial paper and certificate of deposits which are being issued by banks and other financial institu institutions those are also known as what money can i go ahead everyone so goods means every kind of movable property uh, but includes but includes no baba but it is any kind goods means every kind of movable property other than money money is not included money is not included other than money and securities sir what do you mean by securities securities means stock shares bond debentures right in securities mutual fund any interest in securities is always securities and securities are not goods but what is included in goods is actionable claim any claim for which you can take an action in the court of law basically it means an unsecured debt 
or any beneficial interest in a movable property which is not in the position of the claimant and any actionable claim baba actionable claim is what it's a right and if you are transferring the right to someone you are giving him goods you are going ahead and giving him goods because actionable claims are goods now i went ahead and gave you example betting gambling lottery insurance claim and right to recover arrears of rent etc are all your right to receive and this right to receive if you are transferring to someone you are giving goods and hence actionable claims are included in goods ka definition then they went ahead and told growing crops grass and things attached to the earth basically are are immovable property but if you agree to cut them and supply before or under a contract of supply it will be it will fall in the definition of goods so goods ka definition includes growing crops grass things attached to or forming part of the land which are agreed to be severed severed means separated before supply or under a contract of supply everyone what did we learn till now we learned goods means every kind of movable property immovable property is not goods goods means every kind of movable property other than money and securities but includes actionable claim growing crops grass and things attached to the land which are agreed to be severed before supply or under a contract of supply then we went ahead and learned priority sector lending certificate pslcs are always what goods although they are traded on the ecoware website online but still they are not securities they are goods and they are taxable who will go ahead and pay the gst baba always whatever what will the gst come on this the gst will be always i gst it will always be treated as interstate transaction are we clear everyone just for your knowledge you know what on pslc is also reverse charge may recipient bank pays gst under rcm this is just for your knowledge are we clear everyone because pslc is are goods and goods ka reverse charge is not applicable for your ca final exam are we clear so whenever one bank sells pslc to another bank the other bank pays i gst under rcm can i go ahead everyone but for your knowledge only you should know pslc is are goods and gst will come can we go ahead everyone now the next one over here is services services means anything sir anything anything other than goods means immovable property is a service anything other than goods money and securities it means if i say money and securities are neither goods nor service so anything other than goods money and securities are so services means anything other than goods money and securities but includes activity relating to use of money if i am giving someone money to use it's an activity relating to use of money and if he is giving me interest i have given him a service are we clear activity relating to use of money is a service it conversion from one form of money to another form of money one currency to another currency one denomination to another denomination for which separate consideration is charged i gave the bank did money cash bank gave me a dd i gave the bank inr bank gave me dollar i gave the bank 2000 rupees ka note bank gave me 100 100 rupees ka 20 notes bank went ahead and charged me an amount why because bank has gone ahead and given me a service baba money is neither goods nor money or securities are neither goods nor service but money or securities ka related activities are a service they went ahead and inserted one explanation where they told baba all the sher khan motilal oswal etc which is there they are going ahead and giving facilitating or arranging transaction in securities for you they are giving you a service and gst will come on their service gst will come or not we'll talk later but when they are going ahead and charging you portfolio charge maintenance charges all these brokerage etc they are giving you a service always remember money and securities are not service not goods but related activities are goods are always service can i go ahead everyone yes sir here i went ahead and gave you one derivative ka example always remember derivatives are what securities and baba neither goods nor service but if derivatives contract is there where actual goods are going from one person to another then baba if those goods are going from one person to another then baba goods are always taxable gst baba then in that scenario goods pay gst will come it will not be out of gst they are telling where settlement takes place by way of actual delivery of the underlying commodity then such contract would be a normal supply of goods and liable to gst i have gone ahead and given some example over here debenture debentures are neither goods nor service no gst sale of plot of land it's a 
सर्विस बिकॉज इमोबल प्रॉपर्टीज है सर्विस एंड इन सप्लाई का चैप्टर यूल बी लर्निंग दैट सर सेल ऑफ प्लॉट ऑफ लैंड ऑल दो सर्विस बट सेक्शन नंबर सेवन टू में इट हैज बीन टोल्ड दैट वेन यू सेल लैंड लैंड पे बिकॉज टाइम ड्यूटी कम जीएसटी विल नॉट कम Are we clear, everyone? But no GST as per section number seven two, rate with schedule three. It is neither supply of goods nor supply of service. Sir, cash deposited into bank, it is money, and money is neither goods nor service. Bank charges, cash handling charges. Will GST come on cash handling charges? Yes, because bank has given you a service. Housing loan, loan is transaction in money, neither goods nor service. But sir, they went ahead and charged you interest. Baba, bank has gone ahead and given you money to use. Giving money to use is an activity for which you are giving interest, and it is service. Are we clear, everyone? Here we are done with a quick recap or of your goods or service. Goods means every kind of movable property other than money and securities, but includes actionable claim, growing crops, grass, things attached to the land which are agreed to be severed before supply or under a contract of supply. Services means. Anything other than goods, money, and securities, but includes activities relating to use of money. Its conversion from one form to another, one currency to another, one denomination to another, for which separate consideration is charged. Are we clear, everyone? Explanation was there. Facilitating or arranging transaction in securities is a service. Are we clear, everyone? Priority sector lending certificates are goods, and they are. taxable here we are done with a quick recap of your chapter number 2 ka supply ka only goods and services right everyone done all right students the next chapter which we are going to revise is the chapter of supply everyone let's take a quick linking we started learning gst with goods or service whenever goods and service is being supplied gst shall be levied yes sir Now supply का चैप्टर है सेक्शन नंबर सेवन एंड सेक्शन नंबर एट सेक्शन नंबर सेवन टॉक्स अबाउट द स्कोप ऑफ सप्लाई सेक्शन नंबर एट गोज एड एंड टॉक्स अबाउट मिक्स सप्लाई एंड कॉम्पोजिट सप्लाई बेसिकली कॉम्पोजिट एंड मिक्स सप्लाई नाउ सेक्शन नंबर सेवन विच इज देयर सेक्शन नंबर सेवन है सेक्शन नंबर सेवन वन सेक्शन नंबर सेवन वन ए एंड सेक्शन नंबर सेवन टू एंड सेक्शन नंबर सेवन थ्री इफ समथिंग फॉल्स इन सेक्शन नंबर सेवन वन ए ए बी And see, then it's a supply. Once it is a supply, we will go ahead and further read section number seven one capital A to see whether it is supply of goods or supply of service. Even if something is a supply, if it is told in section number seven two, then it is neither supply of goods nor supply of service. Let's go ahead and start with section number seven one. Section number seven one A goes ahead and talks about all forms of supply. of good services or both first of all what do you mean by supply supply means that taxable event the event which happens because of which gst gets imposed done everyone section number 71 says all form of supply of good services or both it can be any form all forms are included now they have gone ahead and given some example of such fo some form which is such as stb elr ld sir what do you mean by stb elr ld s means sale if you are going ahead and doing a sale you are going ahead and making a transfer or you are going ahead and making a barter what do you mean by barter giving something taking something giving goods taking service giving service taking service giving service taking goods are we clear everyone exchange means when you are going ahead and giving something might be an old car plus money and taking a new car that's an exchange where some amount of money is also involved lease rental rental is generally for a period lesser than 12 months lease is something which is for a period of more than 12 months then we have license or disposal it can be any form only some forms ka name they have gone ahead and told you call that activity anything all activities are included but it should be for a made or agreed to be made for a consideration in the course or furtherance of business sir what do you mean by consideration consideration can be in cash consideration can be in kind consideration can be an act done by you consideration can be something which you don't do refraining is also a consideration are we clear everyone yes sir so all forms of supply are included made or agreed to be made for a consideration in the course or furtherance of business are we clear everyone so section number 71a says all forms for a consideration in the course of business 
Section number 71AA has been included wherein they have gone ahead and deleted paragraph number 7 of schedule 2 and they have gone ahead and included this time commandment for your number 22 exam is what? Sir, they have gone ahead and included in the supply chapter section number 71AA where they are going ahead and telling if there is any person who is there other than individual, any person other than individual and they are going ahead and doing an activity or a transaction for with their members yes everyone so the person is going ahead and doing an activity or transaction for the members and members are going ahead and paying cash or deferred payment or any other valuable consideration or might be the members are going ahead and doing an activity or transaction activity for the person or the in, other than the individual then all that, that is also being covered this person and this member shall be treated as distinct person what are they going ahead and basically trying to say for an example there is a club club which is going ahead and providing services to their members or members are going ahead and providing services to the club members and the club are separate and it will be chargeable to gst basically it will be a supply between two different person club is separate and this person other than individual is separate and these members are separate are we clear everyone so person doing any service or any goods supplying any goods to the member or member going ahead and supplying any goods or service to the club both are separate person and it will be supply are we clear everyone next sir the th second one over here is section number 71b importation of service sir what is importation of service supply is outside india recipient is in india place of supply is in india then it is importation what is importation everyone Supplier is outside India, recipient is in India, place of supply is in India, then it is importation. If it is importation for a consideration, for the business or not in the course of business, both will be supply. In the course of business, business entity will pay the GST under RCM, but not in the course of business, it is taxable, but then it was exempted. But this exemption is not applicable if there is a OIDAR service. Sir, what do you mean by OIDAR, everyone? OIDR means over here, what is OIDR, OI, online information database access and retrieval service provider, online information database access and retrieval service provider, for an example Netflix, if they are going ahead and giving services to whom, they are going ahead and giving services to an NTOR, non-taxable online recipient, who is an NTOR, it can be any government, yes everyone, or local authority or any uh, un, it can be any governmental authority or it can be unregistered person or it can be individual also yes everyone and they are basically going ahead and receiving what oidr service for non-business purpose everyone what is an ntor ntor means any government local authority governmental authority or an individual or any unregistered person and they are going ahead and receiving what OIDR services for non-business, non-commercial purpose. In that scenario, government went ahead and told, Sir, this OIDR who is there, who has gone ahead and provided the services to this, NTOR will go ahead and charge the GST and the forward charge and pay it to the government. Are we clear everyone? Yes, sir. Let's go ahead. Then, section number 71C went ahead and told, there are four activities which are told in Schedule 1. Those four activities without consideration also will be considered as supply. Activities specified in Schedule 1 made or agreed to be made without a consideration. Number 1, sir, what is PTDOBA? Permanent transfer or disposal of business asset. Permanent transfer or disposal of business asset. Where? ITC has been availed on such asset. I bought a shirt, gave the shirt for free. It is permanent transfer of business asset where ITC was availed on the shirt and hence it will be a supply. If supply, then ITC shall be available. I went ahead and bought supposingly clothes, made shirt out of it and gave the shirt for free. It is permanent transfer of business asset, but it is not permanent transfer of that business asset on which ITC was taken. ITC was taken on clothes, given free shirt and hence it is not a supply when it, when it is not a supply itc also will not be available yes sir everyone yes people let's go ahead next that there is one notification which is there which goes ahead and talks about marginal scheme is applicable in case of sale of motor vehicle which are held as capital asset always remember one thing you bought a car 
you went ahead and sold the car if you sell the car if you sell the car always remember you have to pay gst only on the margin sir sale value is 10 lakh return down value is 8 lakh only on the 2 lakh you have to go ahead and pay the gst sir i bought a car car ka credit you don't get i gave the car for free is it supplied it is not a supply because permanent transfer of business asset where itc has been availed only is a supply but if i buy a car i did not get the itc but if i sell the car whatever is the return down value whatever is the difference between the sale value and the return down value that is the margin and on that i have to pay the gst this this notification is applicable only for motor vehicle so for an example i bought a television now i went ahead and sold the television in that sale the sale value pay gst will come only for motor vehicle it is told that on the margin gst will come are we clear everyone please remember for motor vehicle, the GST will come only on the margin. Other items, sale value. Can we go ahead everyone? Yes sir, we got it. The next one over here is supply between related person or distinct person in the course or furtherance of business. Related person means scope plus family plus sole agent. Now, people will tell me, sir, where is this mnemonic seat? You can go ahead, rameshsone.com, rameshsone.com, free resources. I'll put one folder, mnemonics ka folder. You can download from there this sheet. And, Baba, all the mnemonics are written. Done, everyone. Now, what do you mean by related person? Related person means scope plus family plus sole agent. Scope means what, sir? S means shares greater than or equal to 25% in both of them. So, if I am going in and holding in two companies, shares equal to or greater than 25%, then both of them become related. C means control. So, supposingly, there is B controlling C or C controlling B. Then B and C are related. A is controlling B and A is controlling C. Again, B and C are related. B is controlling D and C is also controlling D. Then who is related? B and C are related. Anyways, because of the control, these people also will be related. Can I go ahead, everyone? Yes, sir. We got it. So, control. The next one is officer or directors of each other's business. I am a director in Ram's business. Ram is a director in my business. We both are related person. P means partners in business. Partnership form means the partners who are there are always related person. E means employer and employee. Employer and employee are always related person. Family means family is always Supreme Court and PGBS. Supreme Court means your spouse and children. PGBS means parents, grandparents, brother and sister. Only if they are dependent on you. My spouse and my children, basically I call them the Supreme Court. They are always my related person, whether independent or dependent. But PGBS, only if they are dependent on me, they are my related person. Then we have SA. SA means sole agent or sole distributor or Sole concessioner means the sole trading right holders will always be your related person. So, whenever there is a transaction between related person or distinct person. Sir, what do you mean by distinct person? Same state, separate registration, distinct person. One state registered, another state registered, again distinct person. One state registered and you have an establishment that is registered. Another state you have an establishment that is not registered. Because of different establishment, you become distinct person so if i tell you same state separate registration distinct person one state registered another state registered distinct person one state one establishment is registered another state another establishment is not registered still they both are distinct person are we clear everyone they both will be treated as establishment of distinct person and whenever there is a supply between related person or distinct person in the course or furtherance of business that will always be a supply there is an exception over here. If you go ahead and give gift to anyone who is a related person, one rupee also it is a supply and ITC shall be available. But if you go ahead and give gift to your employee up to 50,000 per annum per employee per annum per employee, then it shall not be a supply. If it is not a supply, ITC also will not be available. But if you go ahead and gift, gift to your employee, which is more than 50,000, might be I gave a gift of 60,000 rupees, it will be a supply and ITC also will be available. Then we had a circular over here, which went ahead and told about interstate movement of buses, conveyances, trucks, cranes, etc. between distinct person whenever they are going from one state to another to their distinct person for an example srs travel karnataka srs travel tamil nadu srs travel karnataka bus went from here to here bus was not supplied however passenger transportation by gst will come so they went ahead and told if there is an interstate movement of conveyance cranes etc then on conveyance rig 
cranes, etc. There will be no GST. It is not told that conveyance only is supplied. No. For an example, now Karnataka branch ka one truck is there, truck has all the tools, etc. From here it went to the Tamil Nadu branch for repairing something. Then Baba, it will be so told that repair and maintenance services are provided to distinct person. On that, GST will come. So on repair and maintenance work, GST will be levyable. For an example, I have one factory in Tamil Nadu and my showroom is in Delhi. Now from the factory, some truck, buses, etc. which I manufactured are sent to my Delhi showroom. Then Baba, it is goods which are being transferred and goods transfer pay anyways GST will come. So if it is a movement for further supply, then GST shall be levyable. The next one over here is supply between principal and agent. Who is this agent? Baba, this agent is not a broker. He is which agent? He is a consignment agent or a procuring agent. So if I go ahead and send the goods to my agent, agent sells, agent sells in his name. Then Baba, me sending the goods to the agent is a supply even without consideration. I told this agent to go ahead and buy the goods from outsider. He bought the goods in his name and then sending it to me. Sending to me will be a supply because the invoice was in his name. Always remember which agent is covered in section number 71C. Consignment agent, basically selling or procuring agent. Invoice is in his name. When he is selling further, invoice is in, in his name. When he is buying, also invoice is in his name. Then you sending the goods to him or he sending the goods to you without consideration also will be a supply. Done, sir. Point is clear. Section number. Done. Sir, section number 71C, paragraph number 4. Basically, schedule 1, paragraph number 4 goes ahead and says, importation of service. What is importation? Supply is outside India. Recipient is in India. Place of supply is in India. And... Baba, that is importation of service. If you have got it from related person or your head office, branch office, own establishment which is outside India, in the course of your business, without consideration also, it will be a supply. Then everyone, in your exam, always write section number 71C, read with schedule 1, paragraph number 1, 2, 3, 4. It's a good way of writing. Then we have section number 71A, which goes ahead and talks about, sir, if your activity is a supply in section number 71A, AA, B or C, then we have to go ahead and see whether it is supply of goods or supply of service. For supply of goods or supply of service, we have to refer to schedule 2. Section number 71A says, if your activity is a supply in section number 71, then you please come to schedule 2 and see whether your activity is a supply of goods or supply of service. Sir, here we went ahead and learned about transfer. If it is a transfer of title in goods, supply of goods. Ownership is transferred, then it is supply of goods. When you have given your right or undivided share in the goods, it is supply of service. Sir, if it is a transfer of title in future, basically higher purchase, it is always a supply of goods. Lease tenancy easement to occupy land is always supply of service. Lease letting out of building is always supply of service. Then we had a circular over here, transfer of tenancy right. Baba, tenancy right against tenancy premium, which is public system, is always supply of service. I went ahead and told you like this. I went ahead and told there is an owner, there is a tenant and there is a tenant who will come newly. Correct everyone? When owner goes ahead and gives him the right, which is tenancy right, he will go ahead and give tenancy premium. Sir, if it is a residential property, residential property, then Baba, also it is a supply of service, but GST will not come. Are we clear? When this outgoing tenant is going in and selling the tenancy right, on that GST will come as normal. Correct everyone? Now if I go ahead and tell you, he is giving monthly rent and he is also giving monthly rent, what will happen over here? Monthly rent will be exempted. But always remember one thing, when this outgoing tenant, his tenant, he surrenders the tenancy right or he sells it further, he is doing business in the tenancy right and on that GST will come normal. Can I go ahead everyone? Sir, what if it was a commercial property? Commercial property means everything will become taxable. All the things per GST will come. Is my point clear to all? Only for residential property you have to remember the first time when the person is going ahead and transferring the tenancy right, that has been exempted plus the monthly rent because it is residential property has been exempted. Everyone over here, if you see, 
Exempt if granted for residential house. Surrendering by the outgoing tenant against consideration is always taxable. Third one, treatment of process. If I am doing treatment of process on your goods, I am giving you always a supply of service. There were two circular re-threading of tire. If I am going ahead and doing re-threading on your tire, I am doing supply of service. If I am doing bus bodybuilding activity fabrication, I am doing supply of service. Then we had section number uh, 71. Capital A, scheduled to paragraph number 4. See, Baba, teaching, at least I can do it that way. If you remember, very good. Paragraph number 4 went ahead and told, transfer of business asset. If it is a permanent transfer, supply of goods. Sir, if you are going ahead and putting your business asset to private use or making it available basically for private use, then it is going ahead and telling it's supply of service. At the time of closure, if you are taking all your assets home, it is supply of goods then they went ahead and told exception if you go it will not be a supply of goods if at the time of closure you did not close your business you transferred it to another person as going concern because government will ultimately recover the gst from him sir or it will not be a supply of goods if business is carried on by a personal representative who is deemed as a taxable person we told schedule 2 paragraph number 5 goes ahead and talks about supply of services number one renting of immobile property is always a supply of service construction of immobile prop construction construction of complex or building is always a supply of service provided any amount of consideration is received before completion certificate or first occupancy whichever is earlier so one rupee also received before completion certificate or first occupancy whichever is earlier it will be a construction and baba gst will come then we had temporary transfer or use of intellectual property right is always a supply of service development upgradation of information technology software is always a supply of service refrain tolerate or to do an act rta is always a supply of service transfer of right to use the goods is always a supply of service right to use this is and this is right in goods both are supply of service but both are different one is your right one is you are giving the right to use both are supply of service then following composite supply what do you mean by composite supply two or more taxable supplies they are naturally mandated supplied together in the ordinary course of business and one is principal supply are we clear now they are going ahead and telling in these two scenes always take it as supply of service it says works contract which is in relation to immoral property works contract is always in relation to immoral property works contract means construction erection commissioning fabrication of an immobile property is always works contract service and always it will be a supply of service restaurant or catering will always be a supply of service yes sir point is clear paragraph number seven in schedule two has been deleted which was basically going ahead and talking about club going ahead and giving services to their member was always a supply of goods sorry club giving goods to their member was a supply of goods so they went ahead and inserted it over here telling instead of association of person body of person or unincorporated body they are telling any person other than individual giving goods or services to their member doing an activity for the member is always supply when it is supply it includes both supply of goods as well as supply of service so if there is a club doing an activity for the member or doing a transaction with the member or member going in and doing a transaction or activity for the club then always it is a supply are we clear everyone both are deemed to be a distinct person yes sir we all got it then we have section number 72 section number 72a goes ahead and tells what are the activities or transaction section number 72a says activities or transaction which are told in schedule 3 will be neither supply of goods nor supply of service here we have to remember bench flag sir what is a bench flag over here if you see bench flag b means bond to bond Transfer E means employer to employ services and fees entity to another entity without the goods entering into India. C means court or tribunal ka services which are provide which are established under the law. Sir, here one C D R C was there. Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission. C D R C is are like tribunal and their services also are neither supply of goods nor supply of service. H for high C sale. Yes, everyone. High C sale means basically when the goods are dispatched from the country of origin and they have reached India or they are in the high seas, but you have not got it cleared from the custom and you sold it to another person by transferring your document of title, then it's known as a high seas sale and high seas sale in GST is neither supply of goods nor supply of service. However, when we learn customs, you will see over there when the person goes to clear the goods, that time he pays custom duty as well as the GST on the transaction value. 
can we go ahead everyone yes sir we got it f for funeral burial mortuary service including transportation of the deceased then we had l for land and completed building ka sale everyone listen to me very carefully there is completion certificate of first occupancy whichever is earlier whichever is earlier may if one rupee also received before then the entire contract becomes what construction and it is supply of service but if entire consideration is received after completion certificate or first occupancy whichever is earlier then it is sale of completed building and only on that gst will not come on stamp duty will come gst will not come because it is neither supply of goods nor supply of service the next one over here is actionable claim other than Lottery, betting and gambling. G for government official. G for government official means MP, MLA, MLC ka services. Correct? Constitutional post holder like president, prime minister, etc. Ka service. Or Baba, if there is a chairman, CMD, chairperson, member or director of a body which is established by the government where this guy is not an employee, then also his services will be neither supply of goods nor supply of service. What is Ben's flag everyone? One to one transfer which is basically sale of the warehouse goods. E for employer to employ in the course of employment. N for entity to entity. C for court or tribunal. H for high seas sale. F for full funeral burial ka service. L land and completed building ka sale. A for auctionable claim other than betting, gambling and lottery. G for government official ka services. Done sir, we have gone ahead and covered all of them over here. B for section number 7 to B says activities done by central government, state government, local authority as public authority. That activity will be neither supply of goods nor supply of service provided it is notified activity. So central government, state government, local authority doing an activity or transaction as public authority will be neither supply of goods nor supply of service provided it is notified and there are two activities which have been notified activities undertaken by panchayat under 243g or municipality under 243w m ka reverse is w so we say 243w m is municipality ka m m reverse is w you have to remember always so activities which are done by panchayat or municipality which are told under 243g or w because they are carrying out these activities as public authority it will be neither supply of goods nor supply of service the next one over here is supply of alcoholic liquor license when this is given by the state government against a consideration it will be neither supply of goods nor supply of service then people went ahead and told alcoholic liquor license given by the government there is no gst it means government giving any license is no gst government clarified saying sir only alcoholic liquor license is neither supply of goods nor supply of service any other privileges licenses given by by the government is taxable under GST. Section number 73 is total bakwas. It goes ahead and gives the government the power to go ahead and say this is supply of goods and not supply of service or supply of service and not supply of goods. That power is there with the government. Okay, let it be there. Next. So, what did we go ahead and do? Section number 71A, A, B, C. When it is supply, section number 71A told supply of goods or supply of service. Section number 2A told neither supply of goods nor supply of service section number 2 b told central government state government section number 7 to b told central government state government local authority activities will be neither supply of goods nor supply of service if it is notified section number 73 was just a power with the government then we have section number 8 before we learn section number 8 we have to learn composite supply and mixed supply composite supply is defined in section number 2 clause 30 2 clause 30 you don't have to remember it for the exam but if you remember please write okay section number 2 clause 30 goes ahead and says composite supply means two or more taxable supply naturally bundled supply together in the ordinary course and one is principal always remember if it is composite supply section number 8a says composite supply please treat as supply of the principal supply then we have section number 2 clause 74 which says mixed supply means two or more individual supply supply together for a single price individual supply supply together for a single price and it is not composite and it is always mixed then baba they told section number 8 b may then mixed supply always treat as supply of that supply which attracts highest rate composite supply two or more taxable supply naturally bundled supplied together one is principal if it is composite principal supply kare sir mix supply two or more individual supply supplied together for a single price it is not composite and it is mixed mixed means highest rate 
composite then composite mix then mix if it is not composite not mix then it is always individual supplies individual rates can we go ahead everyone we had some circulars over here number one servicing of car where supply servicing of car where involving supply of goods and supply of service basically parts and labor is given where value of goods and services are shown separately in the invoice they are liable to gst at the rate as applicable to such services or goods separately parts ka rate is separate labor ka rate is separate 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 rate of gst will apply sir printing or if it's a printing contract where what is happening content is supplied by the person who owns the intellectual property right while physical input including paper belongs to the printer i told one printer can you print and give he told okay i'll give a printing service i will use paper and ink also paper ink etc is supply of goods but here the principal supply is the printing service and hence the whole contract becomes service ka contract supply of service can i go ahead everyone the next one over here i went ahead and told you give me printed envelope printed carton boxes but just do one thing on that put my logo and give it to me you are primarily giving me principally you are going ahead and giving me supply of goods logo printing is just ancillary and hence the whole contract becomes supply of goods ka contract are we clear till here then the next one over here is production sharing contract what happens in a production sharing contract government gives you the license and tells you go and explore oil what you do is you go and explore oil and produce petroleum out of it 1000 crore ka petroleum is produced you first go ahead and deduct your cost for an example you have 400 crore ka cost which was there 1000 crore ka petroleum say 400 crore ka cost petroleum you kept it you are telling sir out of the 1000 crore how much was my cost that much value of petroleum i will retain the remaining petroleum which is there supposing is 600 crore you will go ahead and share with the government because you and the government will have production sharing contract are we clear everyone always remember one thing when you are going ahead and keeping that cost petroleum you have not provided any service to the government for which government is going ahead and giving you any consideration it's a simple contract where government gave you the license and in return of the license you are giving cost petroleum to the government the value of cost petroleum which you go ahead and give it to the government on that the gst has also been sorry what you go ahead and give it to the government is profit petroleum the value of the petroleum which you go ahead and give it to the government is basically a consideration because the government gave you the license are we clear and whatever is the gst on that profit petroleum has been exempted are we clear everyone what did i tell you you entered and extracted 1000 liters 1000 crore ka petrol 400 crore cost petroleum whatever was your cost you recovered remaining 600 crore ka petroleum say 50 50 you did with the government that is the production sharing contract now why did you go ahead and share with the government because government gave you a license giving a license by the government is a supply of service against which you are going ahead and paying a consideration now if the consideration is profit petroleum then baba that is exempted from gst they are going ahead and telling central government grants license to explore or mine petroleum crude or natural gas in consideration for profit petroleum which is exempted from gst cost petroleum is not a consideration received by the contractor for the service provided to the government i am not provided any service to the government for which government told take 400 crore ka cost petroleum hence it is not taxable are we clear everyone yes sir the next one over here is services of display of name of the donor in the premises of charitable organization receiving donation or gift i am a charitable organization you entered and gave me 10 lakh rupees i went ahead and put your name played on the temple premises saying sir received as a gratitude i went ahead and put your name saying sir received uh, with thanks from this person baba i have not gone ahead and given you any advertisement service whatever i have received you for that i have not given you any quid pro quo also and hence means there is nothing in return there is no service given by me and hence it will not be a supply of service however if you go ahead and give me 10 lakh rupees and i went ahead and put one name plate in the temple premises saying received from radha and co chartered accountants bangalore then i have gone ahead and advertised your business i have given you advertisement service and you have given you 10 lakh rupees that 10 lakh rupees is the consideration for the advertisement service and that will be taxable can i go ahead everyone it says if you are receiving gift or donation the purpose if it is philanthropic and not advertisement advertisement it is not a supply and no gst but if i have gone ahead and advertise your business then baba gst will come next one over here is if i go ahead and give free of cost goods or service supplied free of cost or as gift if i go ahead and give something free of cost bought a shirt gave the shirt for free it's a permanent transfer of business asset where itc has been availed section number 71c it's a supply itc 
will be available. But if I go ahead and buy clothes, made the shirt and give the shirt for free, as per section number 71C, it is not a supply and hence ITC will be blocked. That is what is being told. If it falls in section number 71C, giving of gift falls in section number 71C, then it's a supply, ITC will be available, otherwise it is blocked. Always remember one thing, whenever you go ahead and give, buy one, get one free, buy one, get one free, it is nothing to supply at the cost of what? Whatever input, input services and capital goods you buy, whatever GST is paid, the total credit shall be available. Buy one, get one is nothing other than two supplied at the price of one and all the input shall always be available. The last one over here is, if there is an association of person or body of individual supplying services to the members, it is always a supply of service. Now, what happened over here? There is an operating member. Operating member went ahead and told all the members, please go ahead and give 100, 100 crore rupees. They went ahead and put all the 100 crore, 400 crore in the bank account. They bought a machine. From the machine, they did oil exploration and the, whatever the profit was done because of oil exploration was divided among the members. Here, the operating member is not going ahead and providing any services to the member and there will be no GST which will come. However, operating member went ahead and used his own machine and did oil exploration and everyone said he took money. Told, if you want the profit, I will go ahead and give you the profit, but you have to go ahead and give me money. So, if he is going ahead and using his own machine, it means he is going ahead and providing them service for which he is going ahead and taking from them a consideration which will be a supply of service. It says, when the cash calls raised by the operating member, generally it is a transaction in money. All of them contributed, they bought a machine and they did oil exploration. It is a contribution which is capital contribution, transaction in money, GST will not come. However, it is not a supply, no GST. But if cash calls received as a consideration for a service, I went ahead and told, I will use my machine, do oil exploration, you do one thing. Whatever is my cost apportionment, you go ahead and pay it to me. I will give you the profit. It means you are going ahead and giving them service for which they are going ahead and giving you consideration and it will always be a supply of service taxable under GST. Sir, A graded chapter it is. I am telling you section number 71A. A, A is very important, section number 71, C is important, section number 72, A becomes very important, mixed supply and composite supply, you should know the definition, you must remember the definition and that's it, that's it, what we have gone and learned, amendment in this chapter everyone, any person other than individual going ahead and giving any, if there is any transaction happening with their members or constituents, Right, everyone? And they, members or constituents are going ahead and paying what? Cash, deferred payment or any valuable consideration. Both members and the person who is the individual, basically the club, are separate person and GST will come. It's a supply. Or if members go ahead and give services to the club, that is the person. Who is the club over here? I am telling person other than individual, you think it is a club. So, if members go ahead and give the services to the club, then also that activity is a supply and GST will come. Both are deemed as a dif different person. Are we clear everyone? Yes sir, we got it. I will go ahead and close my discussion. I will go ahead and close my revision on the chapter of supply over here. Congratulations people. All right, students, let's go ahead and revise the next chapter. The next chapter is nature of supply. Everyone over here, before we go ahead and learn nature of supply, we have to go ahead and learn, first of all, India. When we go ahead and learn India, India means, number one, territory of India, which comprises of all the states and the union territories. Now, India includes territorial waters of India, which is from here up to 12 nautical miles, which is approximately how much? which is not approximately, which is 22 kilometers. And from here up to 100, up to 188 nautical mile, basically up to 200 nautical miles from the baseline. Till here, 12 nautical mile is what? Territorial waters of India. This is what? Exclusive economic zone, which is how much? 100, 188 nautical miles. Done, sir. So, sir, India means the territory of India, territorial waters of India, under the territorial waters, whatever the seabed and subsoil is there, that is also India. After that, whatever is the exclusive economic zone, that is also India. Below that, we have the continental shelf, continental shelf is also India and above India and the territorial waters of India, whatever the airspace is also there, that is also 
इंडिया जीएसटी इज एप्लीकेबल इन इंडिया एंड इंडिया मीन्स वॉट टेरिटरी ऑफ इंडिया टेरिटरियल वॉटर्स ऑफ इंडिया अंडर दैट सीबेड एंड सब सॉइल आफ्टर दैट एक्सक्लूसिव इकोनॉमिक जोन बिलो दैट कॉन्टिनेंटल शेल एंड द एयर स्पेस अब द टेरिटरी एंड द टेरिटरियल वॉटर्स ऑफ इंडिया इज इंडिया देन एवरी वन नाउ वेन वी आर गोइंग एड एंड लर्निंग द फर्स्ट थिंग वी हैव टू गो एड एंड लर्न इज अबाउट इंटर स्टेट सप्लाई सेक्शन नंबर सेवन गोज एड एंड टॉक्स अबाउट इंटर स्टेट सप्लाई सर वट डू मीन बाई इंटर स्टेट सप्लाई सेक्शन नंबर सेवन सब सेक्शन वन एंड सेक्शन नंबर सेवन सब सेक्शन थ्री गोज एड एंड सेस सेवन वन एंड सेवन थ्री सब सब्जेक्ट टू प्रोविजन ऑफ सेक्शन नंबर टेन सप्लाई ऑफ गुड्स वेद द लोकेशन ऑफ सप्लायर एंड प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई आर इन टू डिफरेंट स्टेट टू डिफरेंट यूटी वन स्टेट एंड वन यूटी और सेक्शन नंबर सेवन थ्री गोज एड एंड सेस सब्जेक्ट टू प्रोविजन ऑफ सेक्शन नंबर ट्वेल्व फर्स्ट यू गो एड फर्स्ट यू गो एड एंड डिटरमाइन वट प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई एस पर सेक्शन नंबर ट्वेल्व then if supply of service where location of supplier and place of supply are in two different state two different ut one state and one ut it is always interstate supply so section number 71 and section number 73 went ahead and told what whenever location of supplier and place of supply are in two different state two different ut one state one ut then it is always interstate supply section number 72 and 4 section number 72 went ahead and told whenever you import goods into the india till they cross the custom frontiers it is always interstate supply sir importation of service is always interstate supply section number 7 sub section 5 whenever supply of goods supply of service or both there is a supply of goods or supply of service or both where location of supply is in india and place of supply is outside india it is always interstate supply supply to or supply by an scz unit or developer is always interstate supply and whenever something is not intra and the transaction is happening in the taxable territory it will be always interstate supply so sir whenever supply of goods services or both is happening in the taxable territory it is not intra state supply and not covered anywhere else it will be always interstate supply sir what is intra state supply section number 8 goes ahead and says what is intra state intra state section number 81 talks about supply of goods 82 goes ahead and talks about supply of service section number 81 says subject to the provision of section number 10 means first determine the place of supply as per section number 10 section number 10 of the igst act now if you could determine the place of supply as per section number 10 then supply of goods where location of supplier and place of supply in the same state or ut it is always intra state supply section number 81 proviso is there which goes ahead and says following shall not be intra so sir supply of goods to or by an scz unit or developer will not be intra because it is always inter sir importation of goods till they cross the custom frontier will never be intra because it is always inter and whenever you are going ahead and supplying goods to a tourist then always it is never intra it will always be inter state then section number 82 goes ahead and says subject to the provision of section number 12 first you go ahead and apply section number 12 of the igst act determine the place of supply now whenever location of supplier and the place of supply in the same state or ut then it's always a inter intra state supply of service intra state supply of service there is a proviso in 82 which goes ahead and says sir if you are going ahead and supplying services to or services are being supplied by an scz unit or developer it will always be in interstate never intra are we clear everyone yes sir we all got it now everyone over here if i go ahead and tell you sir over here i went ahead and told whenever location of supplier is in india and place of supply is outside india it is always what interstate and igst will come but it is not export unless it falls within the definition of export if you go ahead and see export the definition export of goods means taking of goods from india outside india so if you are taking from india to a place outside india that is export export of service ka definition says means the supply of any service where the location of supply is in india lo location of recipient is outside india place of supply is outside india what you are receiving is foreign convertible currency or where inr whenever permitted by rbi and you both are not mere establishments of distinct person sir what do you mean by establishment of a distinct person that is explanation number 1 and explanation number 
explanation number one went ahead and told a person has one establishment in india one establishment outside india then it will be deemed as establishment of distinct person i have one establishment in india one branch of is outside india both are what distinct person then they are telling i have one establishment in a state or ut another establishment outside the state or ut then always they are establishment of distinct person i have one establishment in a state another establishment also in the state and both are registered within that state then also they are establishment of distinct person sir whenever you are going ahead and telling sir establishment then they are going ahead and telling person carrying on business through a branch office or an agency office or a representational office in any territory will be treated as having an establishment in that territory when will it be told that you have an establishment in the other territory when you have a branch office over there or you have a representational office over there or an agency office over there then it will be told that you have an establishment in that territory and always remember if you have one establishment in india one establishment outside india both because are under you only they will always be treated as establishment of distinct person even though under you they will be always treated as establishment of distinct person can we go ahead everyone yes sir we got it till here then we then come section number 16 but this amendment which is there authorized operation is not applicable for your may 22 exam okay everyone now section number 16 zero rated supply zero rated supply means exports are always zero rated export means sir in case of goods when goods go outside india that is export services supplies in india recipient is outside india place of supply is outside india what you are receiving is foreign convertible currency or in case of whenever permitted by rbi inr is also okay and you both are not mere establishment of distinct person then it is export whenever it is export you get the benefit of zero rating sir what are the benefits of zero rating how do you get the benefit of zero rating basically you are buying to selling a chain is made zero rated there is no tax ka implication at all sir what is zero rated exports are zero rated and supply of goods services or both to a scz unit or developer so if i am supplying to an scz unit or developer that is also zero rated if i am exporting that is also zero rated are we clear everyone then they are going ahead and telling subject to section number 175 means section number 175 may if something is told block then it is always block other than that if you are going ahead and using something which is exempted in india for an example i am going ahead and manufacturing something i bought plastic manufactured plastic bangle plastic bangles might be exempted in india but if i am going ahead and exporting the itc which is there will be available to me and i can claim a refund of that they are telling itc shall be available for making zero rated supply even if such supply is exempt supply in india when you are going ahead and exporting it it will be zero rated and itc refund will itc will be available and you can also claim a refund then they went ahead and told sir to make buying to selling a chain when you go ahead and make zero rated supply tax free so for an example i am making export or i am supplying to a scz unit or developer how is the government going ahead and making sure that my buying to selling a chain is tax free government goes ahead and says you have two options person making zero rated supply eligible to go ahead and claim refund under two option number one is he can go ahead and give an lut or bond letter of undertaking or a bond now he can export without paying any igst he can export or supply to an scz without paying any igst and whatever whatever itc is there will be given as refund sir the second option is when he is going ahead and exporting or is supplying to an scz he will not go ahead and give an lut or bond he will pay igst whatever itc is there he will use to pay his igst and balance he will pay in cash and he will claim a refund of the total igst amount yes sir everyone yes sir we are all clear section number 9 went ahead and told if a person is going ahead and supplying so supposing one person is going ahead and supplying to an ez always remember ez is a separate is the name is other territory and it's a union territory so if a person is going ahead and supplying in a union territory from supposingly delhi delhi is a state and you are supplying in union territory it will always be a inter state supply and igst will come now tell me one thing supposingly one person is supplying within the ez only to someone sir ez me someone is there then baba it will always be intra state supply cgst and utgst because ez is a 
other territory. Are we clear, everyone? Baba, is that me? You will not have home. Might be there is an oil field which is there. This oil field supply to another oil field. It is always interstate supply and CGST and UTGST. Yes, everyone. Yes, sir. We are clear. That is what I. Okay. Now the next section over here. This is supply to or fro. EZ. EZ is another territory which is a Indian territory. Supply to or from an EZ is always intra interstate supply, but within the EZ. Intrastate CGST and UTGST. Now, section number 9 goes ahead and says, if you are going in and supplying in the territorial waters of India, I am supplier, supplying in the territorial waters of India, place of supply deemed to be the nearest coastal state. If, sup if supply is in the territorial water of India, supplier ka location deemed to be the nearest coastal state. In the restatement chapter, we will also go ahead and see that, sir, whoever is in need, Whoever is near the coastal state, that person who is in the territorial water of India, he takes registration also in the nearest coastal state. So, section number 9 went ahead and told one simple thing. If you are supplying the territorial waters of India, place of supply nearest coastal state. If supply is in the territorial waters of India, supply is location in the nearest coastal state. Now, over here, one small circular is there that, sir, if one person is going ahead and providing short-term accommodation, banqueting, conferencing or services provided to a... SEZ supplies in Karnataka, accommodation service also provided in Karnataka as per section number 123C, where the immovable property is there, that is the place of supply. Supplies in Karnataka, hotel is located in Karnataka, place of supply is Karnataka, intrastate he will charge CGST and HGST. But supposingly short term accommodation banqueting services are provided to an SEZ. Baba, section number 7, 5B specifically goes ahead and says whenever you are supplying services to an SEZ, it is interstate supply and IGST should come. So, that person should charge CGST, SGST or IGST. So, Baba, section number 12.3, section number 12.3, C is a general provision and section number 75B is a specific provision for SEZ and always we know that a specific provision prevails over general provision and whenever short term accommodation, banqueting, conferencing ka services are provided to home, SEZ, it is always interstate supply and IGST will come. Also, the person can go ahead and take the benefit of zero rated supply. Right everyone, Baba, this chapter which is there is a C graded chapter, but my thought over here is that you should know this chapter because the definition of export of service is important. Zero rated supply is very important. Right, everyone? I'll go ahead and close my chapter of nature of supply over here. Congratulations, people. All right, people, let's go ahead and revise the chapter of charge of GST over here. People, this is a very important chapter. Section number 93 and section number 95 are the most important part of this. What are we going to learn in this chapter? We are going to learn section number 9 and we are going to learn section number 5. Sir, can you give us a quick linking? Yes, Baba, take a linking to the chapter. We started learning GST with goods and service. Whenever goods or services is being supplied, supply can be either interstate or intrastate. Interstate supply IGST will be levied, intrastate supply, CGST and SGST will be levied. Once GST is levied, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. Today, we are going to learn the GST ka levy section, which is section number 5 and section number 9. Section number 9 has section number 9, 1, 9, 2, 9, 3, 9, 4 and section number 9, 5. Section number 91 goes ahead and says, when will GST be levied? CGST will be levied when on intrastate, what? Supply of good services or both except alcoholic liquor for human consumption on the value which is determined under section number 15. Maximum rate will be 20%. This rate will be notified by the government on recommendation of council. You will have to collect and pay if you are a taxable person. A taxable person is a person who is liable under section number 22 or 24 in the registration chapter. Can I go ahead everyone? Then section number 92 talks about HP man, HP man, high speed diesel, petroleum crude, motor spirit, aviation turbine fuel and natural gas. This five item pay GST will be levied from a date which is notified by the government on recommendation of 
council as of now no gst but gst will come from a date notified by the government on the recommendation of council then we have section number 93 and section number 94 which talks about rcm section number 93 goes ahead and says government will go ahead and notify goods and government will notify services on which gst has to be paid under rcm always by the recipient done everyone now here goods are also notified services are also notified but for ca final exam goods exam may they will not go ahead and ask relating to goods are we clear everyone for ca final exam they will not go ahead and ask you which are the notified goods on which reverse charge will come for cs and cma student please refer to your textbook you will be able to find the goods on which reverse charge is applicable now let's go ahead and talk about the notified service on which reverse charge mechanism is applicable the first first service is goods transport agency ka service always remember one thing if there is a goods transport agency goods transport agency can provide services to a unregistered person also and to a registered person also unregistered person may you have to remember if it's a factory which is registered under factories act body corporate which is registered basically under the companies act or under their act if it is a society which is registered under the societies act basically established under their law or cooperative society which is established under their law basically and then it is partnership firm if it is a partnership firm whether registered under the partnership act or unregistered includes an aop also plus an llp also always remember if unregistered person under gst is a factory f b s c o o and p factory body corporate society cooperative society or partnership firm not registered under the gst act but their respective under their respective law can that they are registered or incorporated but partnership firm ke liye registered or unregistered then they have gone ahead and told you will have to take compulsory registration under gst and pay gst under rcm at the rate of 5% right everyone because only when the gta opts for the option of 5% reverse charge mechanism will come now if gta is going ahead and giving services to an unregistered person under gst and he is a casual taxable person which is basically that handicraft supplier who was exempted from registration up to 20 lakh 10 lakh then that casual taxable person ka case mein rcm will not come if rcm doesn't come forward charge will come but government has gone ahead and told forward charge also will not come it is exempted if gta goes ahead and provide services to other register unregistered persons then always remember it is always exempted if gta goes ahead and provide services to a registered person and registered person can be of two type one is tds deductor and all other types of registered person correct everyone if he is a tds deductor and he is a department of central government state government local authority or governmental agency then he will have to pay gst under rcm no 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 it is exempted but if he is a tds deductor which is a notified category then he will have to go ahead and pay gst under rcm and all other registered person whoever it is if it is a registered person then always gst has to be paid under rcm always remember this is applicable in a case where gt has opted for 5% reverse charge mechanism are we clear everyone then always the recipient will pay the gst under rcm but if the gt has gone ahead and opted for 12% then gt will charge under forward charge and gt gets itc also done sir so i have gone ahead and told if there is a gta which is going ahead and providing services to factory body corporate society cooperative society partnership firm which is basically partnership firm registered and registered including an aop plus an llp plus it is providing to a registered person or a registered ctp then they will have to pay gst under rcm but if registered person is a tds deductor which is basically department of central government state government local authority or governmental agency then they will not have to go ahead and pay gst under rcm i hope you guys are clear you just have to remember this chart next sir if there is an advocate going ahead and providing service always remember one thing advocate going ahead and providing services to a business entity which is a business entity whose last check at turnover is greater than the registration limit only then reverse charge mechanism will come so if advocate or firm of advocate or senior advocate is going ahead and providing services to a business entity whose last check at turnover is greater than registration limit only then reverse charge mechanism will be applicable 
then sir if there is an arbitral tribunal arbitral tribunal going ahead and providing services to a business entity again the business entity is in the taxable territory and last check at number is less than is exceeding the registration limit is exceeding the registration limit only then rcm shall be applicable remember advocate senior advocate firm of advocate or arbitral tribunal ka case may don't see current year turnover see last year turnover if last year turnover had crossed the aggregate registration limit then you will rcm will be applicable the next one over here is sponsorship services sponsorship services provided to a body corporate or a partnership firm baba remember partnership firm includes a llp also partnership firm in reverse charge you have to remember includes an llp so this this body corporate or partnership firm has to pay the gst under rcm on the sponsorship services next if central government state government union trade government or local authority is going ahead and providing services to a business entity in the taxable territory other than which services post p a i t other than post airport immovable property and transportation ka service always remember government going ahead and providing post airport immovable property and transportation ka services please go ahead everyone over here now if central government state government is going ahead and providing post related service post may always remember if post related service are provided to government then it is always exempted if government ka department which is post office department going ahead and providing services to others then others may you have to see speed post agency service life insurance and express parcel then it is forward. then it is always forward charge mechanism if it is to other services which are the other services other than speed post agency service life insurance and express parcel any other service, services provided by department of post is always exempted then everyone so postal department ka service pay never reverse charge will come then sir airport or port related services when they are provided to a ship or a vessel in that case also forward charge mechanism is there reverse charge will not come so if government is going ahead and providing services in relation to immovable property then remember if it is provided to registered person then rcm unregistered person then forward charge mechanism so in the chart if you see it is written government ka services of renting of immovable property always registered business entity registered business entity has to pay gst under rcm then baba p a i t t means transportation services transportation of goods or passenger ka services when they are provided by the government always gst comes under forward charge mechanism here only one scenario may reverse charge was there which has already been told when central government state government gives renting of immobile property to registered business entity registered business entity pays gst under rcm other than post airport immobile property and transportation ka service if government is providing any services to a business entity whose aggregate turnover in the last year was greater than registration limit and if the consideration is charged is greater than 5000 only then reverse charge mechanism will come So, if central government, state government, union territory, or local authority government is providing services to a business entity whose last year's turnover is greater than registration limit and the amount which is charged is more than five thousand, then only reverse charge mechanism will come. Then, Baba, the next one over here is central government, state government, local authority, or governmental. Uh, no, central government, state government, union territory, or local authority giving renting of immovable property to whom registered business entity. Then also reverse charge mechanism will come on the registered business entity. The next one over here is any person giving development right, transfer of development right, or floor space index to a promoter. Promoter will pay the GST under RCM. Any person going ahead and giving long term lease of land 30 years or more to whom to a promoter and promoter is paying upfront amount or promoter is paying monthly rent whatever it is promoter have to go ahead and pay on the total amount gst under rcm the next one over here is director director going ahead and giving services to a body corporate or a company in the taxable territory always the company will go ahead and pay the gst under rcm or the body corporate will pay the gst under rcm here there is a circular which goes ahead and says independent directors are never employ and gst will always be payable by the company under rcm however if it's a whole time director you will have to go ahead and see if whole time director is an employee in the company he is paid salary and the company has deducted tds under section number 192 of the income tax act then it is neither supply of goods nor supply of service no gst but if the whole time director has gone ahead and given services to the company not in the capacity of employee not in the capacity of 
employ company paid him professional fees tds under 194 j of the income tax act is done then baba it is a supply and reverse charge will come company has to pay gst under rcm so always remember one thing independent director ka services to the company company pays gst under rcm whole time director giving services to the company you have to see if it is salary then no gst under rcm but if it is not salary professional fees the company has to pay gst under rcm the next is insurance agent giving services to an insurance company which is in india taxable territory then reverse charge mechanism will be applicable on insurance company there is a recovery agent recovery agent giving services to a bank and financial institution or nbfc in the taxable territory bank financial institution or the nbfc has to pay gst under rcm then there is a music composer giving up services to music company photographer or artist he is going ahead and giving his services to a producer or like always remember all these music composer photographer artist they go ahead and give the intellectual property right ka usage right to this music composer they allow them to use their intellectual property right against a consideration when they are going ahead and giving music composer is give, allowing someone to allow allowing someone to use his ipr basically is giving intellectual property right to use it's a supply of service and on that gst has to be paid by music company under reverse charge if there is a photographer going ahead and allowing someone to use his ipr the person who is using his ipr has to pay gst under art cm artist has made some artwork and he has gone ahead and given his artwork to someone to use then that whatever is the consideration on that gst has to be paid by that person under rcm are we clear everyone the next one over here is author i have gone ahead and written a book if i go ahead and give the books ka publishing right to whom to a publisher means i am allowing him to use my ipr publisher has to pay gst under rcm provided the publisher is in the taxable territory always remember if by chance you go ahead and provide any service outside india all the services which you are discussing if you provide outside india then you are in india location of supply is in india location of recipient is outside india for an example i wrote a book i gave it to a publisher outside india location of supply is in india recipient is outside india place of supply is outside india if he gives you foreign convertible currency and you both are not mere establishment of distinct person your act becomes export of service which is zero rated supply are we clear everyone this is just the additional thought which i told you can i go ahead everyone now if i am an author and i am going ahead and giving to a publisher my publishing right then always the publisher in india that is the taxable territory has to pay the gst under rcm just tell me one thing if i give it to a publisher outside india then then it is an export of service sir now authors went ahead and told the government government we want to pay gst under forward charge mechanism we want to take itc so government went ahead and told author if you want to go ahead and collect gst and pay to the government under forward charge mechanism you can go online no you can not go online you can go tell your jurisdictional officer give a declaration that sir i want to take registration i will go ahead and pay you the gst under forward charge also you give a declaration to whom to the publisher that you don't pay the gst under rcm i will collect and i will pay then everyone forward charge mechanism is applicable on authors if author has taken registration declaration given to jo means jurisdictional officer on the invoice to the and also on the invoice to the publisher then members of overseeing committee when they are giving services to the rbi rbi will pay gst under rcm direct selling agent who is an individual remember direct selling agent who is an individual giving services to whom bank or nbfc nbfc or bank pays gst under rcm remember one thing everyone if direct selling agent is not an individual then in that scenario reverse charge is not there next business facilitator or business correspondent i went ahead and told you if there is an agent of a business facilitator he gives services to business facilitator business facilitator will give it to the bank if there is an agent of a business correspondent he will give to whom business correspondent and business correspondent will give it to the bank always remember business facilitator is always free 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 when business facilitator gives services to the bank bank pays gst under rcm and when agent gives to the business facilitator agent will come co collect under forward charge and he will pay gst under forward charge mechanism right done everyone now agent of a business correspondent business correspondent is always stuck whenever he will give services to the business correspondent means agent will give services to the business correspondent business correspondent pays under rcm when business correspondent gives the services to the bank he will come collect under forward charge and pay the gst under forward charge mechanism so reverse charge is when reverse charge is only when business facilitator gives to the bank 
Reverse charge mechanism is there. Bank will pay. And when agent of a business correspondent gives to whom? Business correspondent. Then reverse charge mechanism is there. Otherwise, always forward charge mechanism is there. Always remember one thing. There is an exemption which has been given. If services of business facilitator, business correspondent or their intermediary are provided with respect to accounts in rural area branch. Baba, with respect to accounts in rural area branch, then these all pay, these all services pay, GST will be exempted, but provided the services with respect to accounts in rural area branch. The next one over here is security service. Security service means providing bodyguard. If someone is going ahead and providing bodyguard, who is this someone? Any person other than body corporate, if he is giving bodyguard to whom? Registered person. Registered person will pay GST under RCM. So, there is any person other than a body corporate who is going ahead and giving what? Security personnel to a registered person. You will have to go ahead and see if registered person is a TDS director or if registered person is a composition dealer or registered person is other registered person. If he is going ahead and giving to a TDS director, if he is going to ahead and giving to a TDS deductor who is Department of Central Government, State Government, Local Authority or Governmental Agency, then Baba RCM will not come. Okay, everyone. If RCM is not there, forward charge mechanism will come. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next, if he is going ahead and giving to composition dealer, okay. If TDS deductor notified category, then, then RCM will come. Sir, if uh, any person going ahead and giving to a registered person who is a composition dealer, composition dealer ka case mein RCM is not there, RCM is not there, then forward charge mechanism will come. If any person giving security personnel ka service to any other registered person, then always RCM. Remember one thing, whenever security personnel ka services are provided by any person other than body corporate to whom registered person who is a TDS deductor under A, B, C category, then forward charge mechanism is there and registered person is a composition dealer, then also forward charge mechanism is there. Otherwise, always reverse charge mechanism. Can I go ahead everyone? Yes, sir. Let's go ahead. Everyone over here now. The next one over here is renting a motor vehicle by any person. Remember one thing, if I am a person Renting a motor vehicle, I am doing renting a motor vehicle by any person who is not a body corporate. Number two, renting a motor vehicle where fuel cost is included. Number three, I did not give invoice charging 12% and I am giving the services to a body corporate only then RCM. Four things you have to remember. Number one, rent, number one, any person other than body corporate giving renting a motor vehicle where fuel cost is included. Number three, I am not issuing invoice charging 12% means I might be I am charging 5%. Or might be I am not charging anything, might be I am giving bill of supply and recipient is a body corporate, then recipient will pay GST under RCM. All the four things has to be there. Next, sir, there is a services of lending of securities. One person has lent his securities to a borrower. In that scenario, always the lending fees pay, borrower will go ahead and pay the GST under RCM. Circular was there that it will always be treated as interstate supply and IGST has to be paid under reverse charge mechanism by whom? By the borrower. Are we clear everyone? Yes sir, we all got it. Everyone tell me one thing. Section number 9, I told you section number 9, one normal levy. Section number 9, two, HP man. Section number 9, three, I went ahead and told you the RCM. RCM on what? RCM on diagrams. You have to remember diagrams to remember all the services. D for, if I go ahead and tell you, the first one was GTA ka service. Correct everyone? GTA opting for 5%. Number two was advocate or senior advocate or arbitral tribunal ka services done everyone or form of advocate ka service then the next one over here was sponsorship service as for sponsorship services given to firm or partnership firm or body corporate then the next one over here was government ka services g for government ka services right everyone then the next one was immovable property related services if given by the government to a registered person, registered person will pay the GST under RCM. Correct everyone. The next one over here. Sir, the next one was director ka services when they are given to a body corporate, body corporate or company pays GST under RCM. What is the next service over here? Insurance agent. I for insurance agent. Baba, immovable property when I say immovable property only when government is giving immovable property on rent to a registered person, registered person pays under RCM. Not always. Then Baba, I for insurance agent ka service, always insurance company will pay GST under RCM. R for recovery agent, recovery agent ka service, always 
रिकवरी एजेंट बैंक फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन और एनबीएफसी विल पे जीएसटी अंडर आरसीएम देन बाबा देन नेक्स्ट वाज व्हाट म्यूजिक कंपोजर का सर्विसेज म्यूजिक कंपोजर और फोटोग्राफर और आर्टिस्ट फोटो बाबा फोटोग्राफर और आर्टिस्ट का सर्विस ऑलवेज आरसीएम विल कम नेक्स्ट सर वाज ऑथर ऑलवेज रिमेंबर ऑथर गिविंग सर्विसेज टू ए पब्लिशर पब्लिशर टू पे जीएसटी अंडर RCM, however, author has an option to go ahead and pay GST under forward charge mechanism also. What is the next one, everyone? The next one is M for again one members of overseeing committee. Then over here, this is done. Members of overseeing committee giving services to RBI. What is the next one over here? The next one is direct selling agent D for. Direct selling agent who is an individual giving services to bank on that scenario also RCM will come. The next one is business facilitator. You have to remember always agent of a business correspondent giving to business correspondent RCM will come and only on business facilitator ka service to the bank RCM will come. Done everyone. What is the next one over here? The next is security services RCM will come. Then Baba R for renting of motor vehicle where fuel cost is included in that scenario also rcm will come and one is securities lending securities lending ka case may also rcm will come d for direct selling agent always remember di diagrams everyone now over here one more thing is there if you have gone ahead and given development right d for development right baba development right or floor space index or long term lease pay if you have given land then also rcm will come on the promoter so i went ahead and told you diagrams for reverse charge mechanism is applicable what is diagram d for director d for direct selling agent who is an individual d for development right or floor space index or long term lease pay when you are giving land to a promoter then everyone i for insurance agent i for immovable property given on rent by the government to a registered person a for advocate, A for arbitral tribunal, A for advocate, senior advocate or form of advocate and A for arbitral tribunal ka service pay, always business entity whose turnover in the last year is greater than registration limit has to pay GST under RCM, G for GTA who is opting for 5%, G for government ka services other than PAIT. For PAIT, post, airport, immobile property and transportation, I have already told you. The next one is over here, recovery agent ka service. R for recovery agent and R for renting of motor vehicle where the fuel cost is included. A for author, A for agent of business correspondent and only business facilitator ka service pay. RCM will come. M for music composer, photographer or like artist. Music composer, photographer, artist or like. And Baba, M for members of overseeing committee, as for sponsorship service, as for security service, as for securities lending scheme of SEBI. Are we clear everyone? Then we have section number 9.4. Section number 9.4 goes ahead and says, if any unregistered person gives specified category of goods or service to specified registered person, then the specified registered person has to pay GST under RCM. Now, they have gone ahead and told input and input services, if they are being supplied to a promoter by an unregistered person and the promoter has bought 80% from registered person, then no RCM, but 80% is less if you have gone ahead and bought from registered person. For an example, promoter bought 10 lakh rupees ka input and input service, 8 lakhs would be GST paid. He bought only 7 lakh ka GST paid ka item, then Baba 1, 1 lakh rupees pay, he will have to pay GST under at the rate of 18% under RCM. The second one is cement. Cement ka case may also promoter will always pay GST under RCM if he has bought from unregistered person. The la last one over here is capital goods. Capital goods being bought by a promoter. Also GST has to be paid under RCM if bought from a unregistered person. The next one over here is section number 95. Section number 95 goes ahead and says they will go ahead and notify category of services where interest rate supply who will be liable to pay e-commerce and all the provision of the law will be applicable to the e-commerce operator as if he is the person liable to pay tax right everyone here there were notified category of service earlier it was housekeeping accommodation transportation now they have gone ahead and made some improvement and it is thar what is thar transportation of goods transportation of sorry not goods passenger so if there is transportation of passenger which is happening by Radio taxi, motor cab, maxi cab or 
motorcycle. Now the new addition over here for your number 22 fresh amendment is there along with motorcycle they have gone ahead and told if transportation is happening by omnibus or any other motor vehicle. So what I am telling if there is an e-commerce operator through him transportation of passenger ka service is given which is given in might be radio taxi, motor cab, maxi cab, motorcycle, any omnibus or baba any motor vehicle always the e-commerce operator will be liable. You will not see supplier ka status always e-commerce operator will be liable. H for housekeeping services. Always remember housekeeping services ka case mein if the supplier is liable, if the supplier is liable under section number 21 to register, then supplier will be liable to pay the GST. Otherwise, e-commerce operator basically housekeeping mein urban club etc. They will be liable to pay the GST to the government under section number 95. The next one over here is accommodation service like OYO rooms etc. ka case mein. Always remember if the supplier is liable under liable to register under section number 21 then supplier will have to pay but if supplier is not liable e-commerce operator will go ahead and pay the GST to the government under RCM. Now, here there is a new introduction, restaurant services, right everyone? What government went ahead and saw is, government went ahead and saw that Swiggy, Zomato, etc. Swiggy, Baba, Swiggy and Zomato, etc. Ke through, people are going ahead and ordering food. Order goes to a restaurant and restaurant goes ahead and supplies the food. Now, in this scenario, government went ahead and, went ahead and saw in India, Restaurants are going in and providing. There are a lot of small, small restaurants which are unregistered. And hence, government went in and caught the neck of the e-commerce operator, which is Swiggy, Zomato, etc. And told them, you are the person who is liable to pay the tax. And Baba e-commerce operator is now going to pay the GST, not under, uh, under section number 95. On all the restaurant services which are provided through whom? E-commerce operator, e-commerce operator will go ahead and collect the GST. Basically, e-commerce operator only will raise the invoice. They will only collect the GST and they will pay the GST under section number 95. Now, Swiggy, Zomato, etc. bought under what? GST ka radar and they are the people who are liable to pay the tax under section number 95 on the restaurant services which are supplied through them. Whether the restaurant is registered or unregistered, always Swiggy Zomato will be liable. See over here everyone, restaurant services always will be liable. Swiggy Zomato, all these e-commerce operator will be liable. But now there is one exception. They are telling supply of restaurant service in specified premise. Exception is supply of restaurant service in specified premises. Specified premises means premises, double time premises have come. Premises providing hotel accommodation service having declared tariff greater than what? 7,500, make it 7,500 per unit. I will go ahead and tell you, for an example, there is what? Taj Hotel over here. In Taj, there is a restaurant. Okay, everyone. Now, supposingly, you feel like eating from Taj, you went online. Taj ka declared tariff per room is greater than 7,500. Any room ka rent, if it is greater than 7,500. So, Taj ka room ka declared tariff is greater than 7,500. Now, everyone over here. If there is a restaurant in Taj, you went to Swiggy, Zomato, etc. And the order got direct, diverted over here. And they went ahead and supplied to you the food. In this scenario, because the restaurant is located in a specified premise, where the declared tariff of the room is more than 7,500, government is telling in this scenario, e-commerce operator under section number 95 will not be liable. The service provider, basically the restaurant all will, only will be liable to pay the GST under no, under forward charge, they will only go ahead and collect the GST and pay to the government. Are we clear everyone? Remember one thing, restaurant services are now under 95 and 95 means only always the e-commerce operator will be liable even if the restaurant is registered, unregistered. But over here, one thing government went ahead and told that if the restaurant service is provided by that restaurant which is located in specified premise, specified premise means supposingly Taj Hotel. Taj Hotel is a specified premise because declared tariff per room, any room is greater than 7500, then that becomes a specified premise. And there if a hotel is located and they are going in and supplying food through Swiggy Zomato, then Swiggy Zomato etc. e-commerce operator will not be liable. Who will be liable? Supplier only will be liable. Right, everyone? Yes, sir. Point is clear. There is a proviso over here which goes ahead and says, sir, if the e-commerce operator in all these cases, you have to remember, 
if e-commerce operator is having not having is having physical presence in india e-commerce operator will be liable if e-commerce operator does not have a physical presence in india representative will be liable no representative in india they have to appoint a representative for tax purposes and that representative will be liable to pay the tax section number 9495 may i told you t h a r services are notified transportation of passenger housekeeping accommodation and now restaurant services we are done with section number 91 normal levy 92 hp man 93 diagrams pay rcm 94 promoter has to pay on input input service which is shortfall cement and capital goods 95 THAR service pay e-commerce operator will be liable. Then section number 5 has section number 51 normal levy. 91 to 51 what is the difference? 91 may it was interstate. 51 is under the IGST act. So it says IGST will be levied on interstate supply of goods services or both except alcoholic liquor on the value under section number 15 maximum rate under IGST will be 40% and it says to be collected and paid by a taxable person here under section number 51 there is a proviso which goes ahead and says that sir section number 51 ka proviso says whenever you import goods that shall always be interested igst will come igst will be, shall be levied and collected as per the custom tariff act when on the value determined under the custom act and at the point when custom duties are levied whenever you import goods from outside india on that igst will come it's an interstate supply but it will be levied collected under the custom act levied and collected as per the custom tariff act on the value determined under custom act and when custom duties are collected under the custom act only they will collect the igst done everyone section number five two just like section number nine two also talks about hp man pay IGST will come from a rate to be notified by government on recommendation of council. Section number 53 may whatever services are notified under 93, same services are notified under section number 53 also. But the only difference over here is, sir, one minute. Section number 93 may what services are notified are notified under 53 also. Intra becomes inter. That's all. All those services, when it is interstate, IGST will be paid under RCM. Now, under section number 53, there are two additional services notified that if any person is supplying any service from non taxable territory to a person in the taxable territory, person in the taxable territory will pay the GST under RCM. But this is not applicable in case of NTOR because I told you OIDR services provided to an NTOR, OIDR collects the GST under forward charge and pays it to the government there is no reverse charge applicable the second reverse charge in section number 53 is sir if you are going ahead and doing transportation of vessel transportation of goods by a vessel from outside india to indian custom station and you are a foreign shipping company then foreign shipping company gave transportation service to you you are in india as an importer you will be liable to pay gst under rcm so if there is transportation of goods services given by whom foreign shipping company buy a vessel to a importer importer will be liable to pay gst under rcm then section number 54 and section number 55 are same as 94 and 95 only intra becomes interstate now over here one small point i have gone ahead and told over here what do you mean by body corporate because if you go ahead and see over here everywhere it is body corporate which is written right everyone always remember body corporate meaning which is given in the companies act is an inclusive meaning so you just have to first understand it's an inclusive definition it is not the meaning so you have to first understand the meaning of body corporate body corporate means what body corporate means it's a it's an entity which is established under incorporated under law it is separate legal entity it has a perpetual succession and it has capacity of to sue and be sued are we clear everyone so that is the meaning of a body corporate body corporate means it's an entity which is incorporated under any law secondly it has separate legal entity perpetual succession it can sue and be sued then it's a body corporate are we clear everyone and they went ahead and told over here body corporate general meanings will be there plus also include a company incorporated outside india so indian company or foreign company both are body corporate or you call it corporation are we clear but it does not include a cooperative society or any other body corporate not being a company which the government has gone ahead and notified so if i go ahead and tell you body corporate indian company body corporate sir if it's a 
पब्लिक कंपनी बॉडी कॉर्पोरेट प्राइवेट कंपनी बॉडी कॉर्पोरेट सर गवर्नमेंट कंपनी बॉडी कॉर्पोरेट प्राइवेट कंपनी बॉडी कॉर्पोरेट सर माइक्रोसॉफ्ट आईएनसी इन इंडिया बॉडी कॉर्पोरेट आर वी क्लियर एवरीवन सर आईसीआई इनकॉर्पोरेटेड अंडर ए लॉ यस बाबा बॉडी कॉर्पोरेट आर वी क्लियर एवरीवन बट बॉडी कॉर्पोरेट विल नॉट गो अहेड एंड इंक्लूड ए कॉपरेटिव सोसाइटी ए सोसाइटी और baba any person who has been notified by the government as not a body corporate that will not be a body corporate right everyone here we are done with section number 9 ka revision everyone listen to me very carefully section number 9 when you go ahead and read section number 93 is the most important part for your exam and section number 95 which is going ahead and talking about e commerce operator also becomes very important for your exam because there are two amendment one is transportation of passenger now by radio taxi motor cab maxi cab or omnibus or any other motor vehicle is covered and e-commerce is liable secondly restaurant services which are provided through zomato swiggy and all zomato swiggy is now made liable but restaurant service may always remember if it's a restaurant which is located in specified premise where the accommodation is provided by that specified premise is the charges are more than 7500 for any unit then in that scenario e-commerce operator will not be liable the restaurant in the specified premise will be liable to pay the gst everyone over here now listen to me very carefully under section number 95 when the restaurant services are now brought under what notified services there is a circular also which has come let's go ahead and quickly read the circular what is the circular going ahead and telling would e-commerce still have to go ahead and collect tcs in compliance under section number 52 baba when restaurant services are provided through e-commerce e-commerce is going to pay the whole gst and hence there is no tcs ka provision which will be applicable would e-commerce have to mandatorily take a registration separate registration with respect to supply of restaurant service because now e-commerce is going to go ahead and pay the gst on the restaurant service e-commerce will raise the invoice collect the gst and pay now for the restaurant service the e-commerce operator does it have to go ahead and take separate registration they went ahead and clarified e-commerce need not go ahead and take separate registration for the restaurant service they are showing their outward supply in that only they can go ahead and show the restaurant ka service would the e-commerce be liable to pay tax on supply of restaurant service made by unregistered business yes baba whether the restaurant is registered or unregistered if supply of service is done through the e-commerce e-commerce will be liable to pay the gst under gst under section number 95 whether restaurant is registered or unregistered what would be the aggregate turnover of the person supplying restaurant service through e-commerce baba in his turnover so if there is a restaurant he supplying through e-commerce and he supplying directly also to his customer who are working customer both will be forming part of his aggregate turnover when you are calculating aggregate turnover of a restaurant his turnover will include his normal supplies also and his supplies through e-commerce also can the supplies of restaurant services made through e-commerce operator be recorded as inward supplies of e-commerce baba restaurant services are supplied by this guy restaurant service provider to the customer directly right everyone just because e-commerce is going ahead and paying taxes it does not become the inward supply of the e-commerce e-commerce has not gone ahead and taken restaurant service and e-commerce will not pay any gst under rcm the next one would e-commerce be liable to reverse the itc baba when e-commerce is going ahead and raising the bill for the restaurant service they are going ahead and telling because restaurant service what happens so if a person is going ahead and providing restaurant service he doesn't get itc now here people went ahead and told when e-commerce is going ahead and raising the bill for the restaurant service will e-commerce have to go ahead and reverse any itc because it is providing restaurant service also government went ahead and clarified no baba e-commerce does not have to go ahead and reverse any input tax credit sir can e-commerce utilize the itc to pay tax with respect to restaurant service baba always remember one thing restaurant service ka tax e-commerce has to pay always in cash so e-commerce operator will raise the invoice for the restaurant service basically swiggy zomato will go ahead and raise the invoice they will collect the gst and this gst which is collected has to be always paid in cash e-commerce can't use its input tax credit would supply of goods or services other than restaurant service through e-commerce be taxed at 5% without itc always remember only with respect to restaurant service 5% will come other services pay whatever gst rate is there that will be applicable would restaurant service 
and goods and services other than restaurant sold by a restaurant to a customer be billed under the same or billed differently baba always remember one thing if i am a service if i am a restaurant one person went ahead and placed an order he went ahead and placed an order for food also he went ahead and placed an order for goods also from me now for the restaurant for the food anyways the e-commerce will raise the invoice so what i am advised i am advised that for food i will go ahead and do billing separately basically billing will be done by whom e-commerce and for the goods i should go ahead and provide separate bill to the customer can i go ahead everyone who will issue invoice in respect of restaurant service supplied through e-commerce whether by the restaurant or e-commerce baba e-commerce operator is liable to pay the tax e-commerce will go ahead and raise the invoice the last one over here is clarification is required in respect of in regards to reporting of restaurant service value and tax liability in gst return always remember one thing e-commerce operator will go ahead and show the supplies in its gstr1 also correct and in gstr 3b the e-commerce operator will go ahead and pay the tax by showing as his outward supply baba but you have to go ahead and remember in this scenario what about the supplier who is the restaurant baba restaurant also will go ahead and show in his gstr1 and gstr 3b he will not pay the tax he will just go ahead and report however the e-commerce operator will report in his gstr1 and pay the tax through his gstr 3b here we are done with a complete revision of your chapter number four which is charge of gst remember one thing everyone what is the amendment over here section number 93 becomes very important section number 95 becomes very important and the circular which i told you please remember that i will go ahead and close my revision on the chapter of charge of gst over here everyone bye guys take care all right people let's go ahead and revise our next chart today the next chart is on composition everyone let's take a quick linking we started learning gst with goods or service goods or service has to be supplied supply can be either interstate supply or intrastate supply interstate supply i gst will be levied intrastate supply c gst will be levied once gst is levied gst has to be collected and paid by a taxable person right everyone now people went ahead and told sir this normal levy may we have to take input we have to charge output input output set off paying balance to the government sir too much of headache is there can you go ahead and give us a simpler scheme and government went ahead and told okay normal scheme if you don't want under section number 10 we will give you composition levy right everyone and here comes composition levy under section number 10 of the cgst act everyone under composition what will happen government will go ahead and tell you sir people went ahead and told the government government you see our condition because of coming of gst government went ahead and told okay we will go ahead and give you a simpler scheme which is composition scheme but to go ahead and take composition scheme your preceding financial air turnover has to be up to 1.5 crore or 75 lakhs so government will first go ahead and see if your turnover in the preceding financial year is up to 1.5 crore or 75 lakh this 50 lakh don't cut anything unless i tell you so last year turnover is up to 1.5 crore or 75 lakh excluding interest or discount ka income then government is going ahead and telling if your turnover is up to 1.5 crore or 75 lakh then you are a person who is eligible in the current financial year for composition levy sir for whom it is 1.5 crore and for whom it is 75 lakh sir 75 lakh is for people who are in the state of mantas and 1.5 crore is for people who are in the state of Oja, sir, if you are a person who is in the state of mantas m cube m means meghalaya mizoram manipur a for arunachal n for Nagaland, Tripura, Uttarakhand and Sikkim then for you the limit applicable is 75 lakh but if you are in the state of Hoja sir Himachal Pradesh any other state Jammu and Kashmir and Assam then for you the limit applicable is 1.5 crore then government went ahead and told if your turnover in the last year as per your applicability if it is 1.5 crore or 75 lakh excluding interest or discount then in the current financial year up to a turnover of 1.5 crore or 75 lakh you are a person who will be eligible up to a turnover of 1.5 crore or 75 lakh you can go for composition scheme 
if you are going for composition scheme always remember one thing you have to go for pan wise all india basis has to opt together if you have three registration under your pan all have to come under composition together or all have to get out together so they are telling pan wise all india basis to opt together done everyone now when you are going for composition scheme composition scheme there are people who are eligible eligible people are told under section number 10 1 and there are people who are ineligible ineligible people are told under section number 10 2 eligible people who are told under section number 10 1 are mtr m for manufacturer t for trader r for restaurant m for manufacturer t for trader r for restaurant m t r are we clear everyone sir a manufacturer will go ahead and pay 0.5 percent cgst and 0.5 percent sgst of his turnover a trader will go ahead and pay 0.5 percent cgst and 0.5 percent sgst of his turnover which is taxable turnover are we clear 0.5 percent of his taxable turnover and 0.5 percent of his taxable turnover restaurant or caterer will always pay 2.5 and 2.5 percent of their turnover in state and always remember this one percent one percent and five percent which is being paid it is to be paid out of your own pocket you can't go ahead and collect it from your customer right everyone i went ahead and told you if a person cut turnover in the last year is up to 1.5 crore 75 lakh in the current financial year he is eligible for an option option is to go for composition scheme and it is to be taken pan wise all india basis pa person eligible is mtr now if you are a person who is eligible you will not go ahead and if you have gone ahead and taken composition scheme if you are buying from a registered person don't take any itc if you are buying from those supplier those supplies on which rcm is applicable you will have to pay tax at the rate of normal rates which is basically applicable to those supplies under rcm and you will not get any credit also are we clear everyone whenever you are an eligible person and you have taken composition scheme and you are going ahead and supplying you will not go ahead and charge any tax to your customer you will not give them any tax invoice you will only give them bill of supply and on the basis of bill of supply they will not get any itc are we clear everyone yes sir we got it now a person who is under composition scheme who are the people who are ineligible so if you are a manufacturer trader or restaurant you are ineligible if who are the people who are ineligible for composition scheme if you are a person who is falling under m i n e s if you are a person who is falling under m i n e s then you are a person who will be ineligible person who are ineligible number one is manufacturer if you are a manufacturer of pan masala aerated water ice cream tobacco now for number 22 the new amendment which is there fly as brake wala person is also added so if you are a person who is going ahead and making fly as brake or fly as block or fly as aggregate with 90 percent or more fly as content then you are a person who is ineligible for composition scheme if you are a person who is going ahead and making bricks of fossil meal or similar silicious earth then also you are a person who is ineligible for composition scheme if you are a person who is going ahead and making building bricks those brown color of bricks then also you are a person ineligible for composition scheme or if you are a person who is making earthen or roofing tiles then also you are ineligible so a person who is a manufacturer of pait pan masala aerated water ice cream and tobacco or you are a person who is going ahead and making what bricks or tiles roofing tiles etc then you are a person who is ineligible i for interstate if you are an interstate outward supplier then you are ineligible buyer is okay then n for nrtp or ctp is ineligible if you are a person who is supplying non-taxable supplies whether goods or services then also you are ineligible e for e-commerce operator if you are for supplying through e-commerce who is going to deduct tcs then in that scenario you are ineligible for composition scheme and as for service providers are ineligible other than restaurant or catering other than restaurant or catering or if you are a person who is providing little little service then also it is okay little little service means 10 percent of the turnover in the state or union territory in the preceding financial year that cut 10 percent or 5 lakh whichever is higher then you are eligible for composition scheme all other service providers are ineligible so ineligible people are m m for manufacturer of 
पी ए आई टी ब्रिक्स एंड रूफिंग टाइल्स एन बाबा आई फॉर इंटरस्टेट आउटवर्ड सप्लायर एन फॉर एनआर टी पी सी टी पी और नॉन टेक्सेबल गुड्स का सप्लायर ई फॉर पर्सन सप्लाइंग थ्रू ई कॉमर्स हु इज गोइंग टू डिडक्ट टी सी एस एस फॉर सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स आर ऑल्सो इन एलिजिबल अदर देन रेस्टोरेंट और केटरिंग और इफ यू आर ए सर्विस प्रोवाइडर हु इज सप्लाइंग मार्जिनल सर्विसेज विच इज लास्ट ईयर का टेन परसेंट और लास्ट ईयर का टर्न ओवर का फाइव टेन परसेंट और फाइव लैक विच एवर इज Higher. Are we clear, everyone? So, what did I tell you till now? I went ahead and told you, if you are a person whose last year's turnover is up to 1.5 crore or 75 lakh, 1.5 crore in Hoja, 75 lakh in Manter, then in the current financial year you get an option. Option is that you can go for composition scheme. Composition scheme. They have gone ahead and told. Pan wise, all India basis will be given together. MTR is eligible. Ineligible is mine. Now, if you are a person who is eligible under MTR, then they went ahead and told MTR is allowed to supply services up to 10% of the turnover in state or UN territory, excluding interest or discount or 5 lakh, whichever is higher. So, if you are a person who is MTR and you are going to provide services, little little services is allowed. How much? Last year's turnover was 10% or 5 lakh, whichever is higher. Then they went ahead and told. Now, if you have gone ahead and supposedly your last year's turnover was 1 crore rupees, then 1 crore rupees ka 10% is 10 lakh or 5 lakh, which is higher, 10 lakh rupees. So, 10 lakh ka services you can go ahead and provide. in the current year but 10 10 lakhs may you don't have to go ahead and include interest or discount means after you have gone ahead and calculated the 10% of 5 lakh whichever is higher exclude interest or discount in current year also always remember a person who is under composition scheme will have to go ahead and make quarterly payment quarterly payment by what date 18th and he has to file cmp 08 annually he has to go ahead and file one return which is gstr 4 by 30th of april and annual return he will go ahead and file by 31st of december which is gstr 9a he has to go ahead and mention in his bill which is issuing that he is a composition taxable person not eligible to collect tax on supply he has to, he has to also go ahead and mention in the notice board which is there that he is a composition taxable person basically the notice board which is at his additional place of business and principal place of business he has to say that he is a composition taxable person he has to also go ahead and file an intimation see baba tell me one thing if you are a person who is going for composition scheme always remember one thing if you are obtaining a new registration first time registration ka case mein when you are filling part b of gst reg 02 you just have to tick that you want composition and your registration comes as composition but if you are switching from normal person to composition scheme then you have to go online and file one intimation which is known as cmp 02 Three state may if you want. Three state may you have three different registration and you want them under composition scheme. Always remember three state may you don't have to file three separate intimation. One intimation in one state means all registration will come under composition. I have told you registered person switching to composition, normal person switching to composition will file an intimation prior to the commencement of year in CMP 02. One intimation pan wise and not. Every state wise, one pan wise intimation is enough. From any login, you can go ahead and file that intimation. And once you file that intimation, every year you are not required to file that intimation. Once you have filed, you are under composition. You will continue to be under composition unless you do any violation, violation, or you are doing any self withdrawal. Can I go ahead, everyone? Yes, sir. Whenever you are checking applicability, that sir, can I take composition scheme? You will have to see last year's aggregate turnover. Whenever you are making payment, you will have to see state wise turnover. On the basis of the turnover, you have to make the payment. And always remember one thing: state wise turnover, when you make the payment, state wise you maintain the record. State wise you go ahead and file all the return. But when you are checking eligibility, you have to take last year's aggregate turnover. Right, everyone. Now they have gone ahead and told applicability is always pan wise aggregate turnover. Payment is always state wise turnover. Compliances and records are always. state wise always remember one thing when you are going ahead and determining supposingly in one year you are going ahead and determining in the year 1920 that m how much do i have to pay tax and this is your first year which is there or might be in this year you are not registered so till that time you don't become registered for an example your turnover is only 40 lakh rupees then you will not take registration after that your turnover is 60 lakh rupees and you have interest income of 30 lakh rupees always remember when you are determining on what amount you have to pay the tax from 1st of april up to the date of becoming liable that amount has to be excluded and also interest has to be excluded and only on the remaining amount you have to go ahead and pay tax now supposingly 2021 is the next year and you are going ahead and trying to find out what is your aggregate turnover of the last year 
for going ahead and checking whether you are eligible for composition scheme in the current year or not, then last year turnover will include 1st April up to the date of becoming liable and after that while a turnover only also it means your last year turnover has to be taken as 1 crore if you are trying to see whether you are eligible for composition or not then last year turnover is how much 1 crore rupees because from 1st April up to the date of becoming liable will be taken in aggregate turnover but for payment purpose that will not be taken. It says over here that for determining tax payable, turnover in state or union treaty always exclude from 1st April up to the date of becoming liable. But for determining eligibility when you are checking aggregate turnover, please include the supplies from 1st April up to the date of becoming liable. Always remember whether it is aggregate turnover or it is turnover in state for the purpose of making payment, you always have to go ahead and exclude exempt supply of service which is interest or discount are we clear everyone yes sir we are all clear till here now listen to me very carefully if you are a person who is ineligible under section number 10 1 as a mtr manufacturer trader or restaurant or you are a person who is ineligible under section number 10 2 mines then what you can do you can come to section number 10 2 a which goes ahead and says if you are a person whose turnover now you have to go ahead and see if you are a person whose turnover in the last year was up to 50 lakh rupees then in the current financial year up to a turnover of 50 lakh you will be eligible for composition scheme which is a special composition scheme under section number 10 to a section number 10 to a was introduced for those people who are ineligible under 10 1 or 10 2 they can come to section number 10 to a but section number 10 to a will be available to you only if your aggregate turnover is less than equal to 50 lakh in the preceding financial year excluding interest or discount plus you are a person who is an ineligible under section number 10 1 and 10 2 only then you can come to section number 10 2 a but always remember if you are a person who is coming under section number 10 2 a you will be liable to pay tax at the rate of 3 percent cgst and 3 percent hgst in the state or unit rate on the turnover of that state or unit rate excluding interest or discount condition is your last year turnover should be up to 50 lakh rupees and you should be ineligible under section number 10 1 and 10 2 always remember who are the people who are ineligible under 10 2 a 10 2 a may people who are ineligible are m i n e what do you mean by m i n e m means manufacturer of pan masala aerated water ice cream tobacco sir all this fly as bricks etc and roofing tiles etc all these people are ineligible i for interstate outward suppliers are ineligible and for non-taxable goods or nrtpctp is ineligible e for person supplying goods or service through e-commerce are also ineligible here they have told mine only because s is service provider they have not told s over here because section number 10 to a is a scheme which is basically for service provider or goods plus service both the provider who is basically ineligible under section number 10 1 or 10 2 right everyone yes sir point is clear everyone over here now remember one thing section number 10 5 goes ahead and says if the registered if the proper officer has a doubt on you that registered person is not eligible for composition scheme or he has gone ahead and done any contravention then first he will go ahead and issue a show cause notice in gst cmp 05 you have to go ahead and reply within 15 days in cmp 06 and once you go ahead and reply he will go ahead and give you a reply once you go ahead and reply then proper officer will go ahead and give you a order whether he will go ahead and allow you under composition if he allows you no tension continue under composition if it denies then he will issue a denial order saying i am denying you composition from this 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 date and from that date till date till today's date whatever you have paid only one percent tax he will tell whatever is the differential tax you have not paid that differential tax you will be liable to pay along with penalty and for that he will apply provisions of section number 73 and 74 basically he will go ahead and give you a demand order if you don't pay demand order come out you they will hang you upside down and recover the amount remember on one thing everyone whenever you are coming from a normal scheme to composition scheme you have to go online and file one form which is known as cmp02 along with that because it is always at the beginning of the year you can come under composition scheme once the year starts when you are under composition scheme you have to go online and you also have to file one gst itc03 within how many days 60 days saying sir how much is the credit i have to go ahead and reverse with respect to input in stock input in semi-finished goods input in finished goods and capital goods that calculation is done in section number 18 4 read with rule number 
44. Now you are going ahead and carrying out composition scheme. Always remember one thing if you are going ahead and carrying out composition scheme and by chance you cross the threshold limit or you violate one condition, then you have to go online. Baba, from the very day you have gone ahead and done a violation or you have gone ahead and crossed the threshold limit, you are, you are now a normal person, you can take ITC and charge GST. Government went ahead and told also within the next 7 working days, sorry 7 days, within the next 7 days you have to go online and file one form which is GST CMP 04, how many days may? 7 days may. So, if you have gone ahead and done any violation, you were under composition, carrying out composition, you did any violation or you crossed the threshold limit, immediately you become a normal person, right everyone and you have to charge GST, take ITC but you also have to inform the officer in CMP 04, Suomoto, Suomoto you have to go ahead and inform, on your own you have to go ahead and inform and that is for informing you have to file CMP 04. But sir, if I want to go ahead and voluntarily withdraw, if you want to go ahead and voluntarily withdraw, then before you are going, from the, the date you are going to withdraw, before that date, only you have to go ahead and file CMP 04. In case of self-withdrawal, CMP 04 before the date of such withdrawal. Always remember one thing, you were under composition. Now you are going to come under normal scheme. You were under composition, so you did not take the ITC. Some stock must be lying with you. If inputs are lying in stock, input are lying in semi-finished goods, input are lying in finished goods or capital goods which are there because you are not taken the ITC. Now when you come under normal scheme, you can take all the ITC relating to input in stock, input in semi-finished goods, input in finished goods and also with respect to capital goods. For that, you have to read section number 181C along with rule number 40. So, they are telling you can go ahead and file GST ITC 01 telling what is the input pay, input in stock on it with respect to which how much credit you want, input in your semi-finished goods with respect to that how much credit you want, input in your Finish good with respect to that how much credit you want and capital goods ka how much credit you want. Total amount you have to put in ITC 01 and you have to file within 30 days from the date when option is withdrawn or when the officer went ahead and gave you a denial order saying I am denying you composition from that day within how many days? 30 days you have to file ITC 01. Are we clear till here? Always remember one thing. If you are a normal person coming into composition scheme, you have to file GST ITC GST CMP 02 and GST ITC 03 for going ahead and reversing the credit GST ITC 03 within 60 days. Now, if you are a composition person switching to normal scheme now, then GST CMP 04 and GST ITC 01 within 30 days telling how much credit I am eligible for. Are we clear everyone? What is the difference between a normal scheme and a composition scheme? Normal scheme levy is under section number 9. Composition scheme levy is under section number 10. Normal scheme the rate is 5%, 12%, 18%, 28%. Composition scheme the rate is 1%, 1%, 5% and 6%. Normal scheme the payment is done monthly. Composition scheme the payment is done quarterly. Once the quarter ends by 18th of the next month. Normal scheme may return is GSTR 3B and GSTR 9 which is their composition scheme may return is GSTR 4 and annual return is GSTR 9A. Normal scheme may you issue tax invoice, composition scheme may you issue bill of supply, normal scheme may you can take ITC, composition may you can't take ITC. So, whatever tax is payable, it is always payable in cash. Right everyone, I will go ahead and stop my discussion on composition over here. A graded topic I believe. A graded or B graded whatever you call it 4 to 6 marks they go ahead and ask in the exam because this time there is an amendment they might go ahead and ask you please be very careful about it everyone you have to see always a person whose turnover is below 1.5 crore or 75 lakh in the current year he will be eligible once he is eligible MTR has to pay 1, 1 and 5 ineligible is mine if 1 and 2 may you are ineligible you can go for 10 to A also and remember one thing mines may manufacturer of pan masala aerated water, ice cream, tobacco were already ineligible. Number 22 amendment is person who is making flyers, bricks, bricks of fossil meal or siliceous earth or building bricks or roofing or earthen tiles. They are also manufacturer, manufacturer, manufacturers are ineligible. Right everyone, I will go ahead and stop my discussion or revision on the chapter of composition over here. Have a great day everyone. Bye guys. Take care. Hello students, let's go ahead and start a revision with the chapter of registration today. Registration section number 22 till section number 
30. Everyone over here, goods or service, whenever it is being supplied, supply can be either interstate or intrastate. Whenever supply is inter or intra, it has to be, GST will be levied. Once GST is levied, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. So, we are going to revise section number 22, 23 and 24, who is required registration and who is not required registration. Let's go ahead and start with section number 22. Section number 22 says, people who are liable for registration. So, it says, who are the people who are liable? When are they liable? Number 1, section number 22, subsection 1 says, supplier is liable. Supplier is liable in the state or UT from where he makes taxable supply when his aggregate turnover crosses 20 lakh rupees. Sir, what do you mean by aggregate turnover? Aggregate and turnover. Aggregate and turnover. Turnover means tie to. Tie, T-I-E, square. T means taxable supplies. I mean interstate supplies, exam supplies and exports. Sir, tie to. And what are you going to exclude? Inward supplies under RCM. Whatever is your inward supplies on which you have paid the tax under RCM. That is not your turnover and that GST is not your turnover, whether it is CGST, SGST, IGST, UTGST or CES. Can we go ahead everyone and turnover should be aggregated, means under your plan, whatever registrations are there, all the turnover has to be aggregated, means all India, whatever is the turnover under your plan has to be put together, then you will get the aggregate turnover. Always remember, aggregate turnover may. If I am an agent who is going ahead and supplying on behalf of principal in my own invoice, basically I am supplying on behalf of principal, that is my turnover. Right, everyone? Secondly, if I am a registered job worker, principal told me to go ahead and make the goods ready. From my premises, the goods were delivered, but principal gave the invoice that will be a turnover of the principal. The third one over here, if I have gone ahead and done any outward supply on which the recipient is going to pay the tax under reverse charge, that will not be his turnover, that will be my turnover. Outward supply means your sales. Can I go ahead, everyone? Now, so, they have gone ahead and told who is liable. Section number 22, subsection 1 says, supplier is liable when his aggregate turnover process 20 lakh rupees. However, there is a proviso which goes ahead and says that if you are doing taxable supply from special category state, which is M square NT, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura and Nagaland, M square, Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland and Tripura, then for you the limit will be 10 lakh rupees. But we have to go ahead and read section number 22, subsection 1, along with section number 23, subsection 2, ka, one notification which goes ahead and says, government have gone ahead and exempted exclusive supplier of goods from registration up to a limit of 40 lakh rupees. And hence, for some people, the turnover limit is 40 lakh. For some states, the turnover is 20 lakh. For some places, it is 10 lakh. Sir, how do we remember that? I have gone ahead and told you that registration limit, section number 22, read with the notification under section number 23, 2. Sir, if you are from the state of M square NT, Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland and Tripura, supplier of goods also 10 lakh limit, exclusive supplier of service also 10 lakh limit, goods plus service car supplier also 10 lakh. Sir, if you are in Pumas of Telangana, Puducherry, Uttarakhand, Meghalaya, Assam, Arunachal, very good, Baba, remember, Pumas of Telangana is never Assam, never, never, never Assam, it is Arunachal and Sikkim and Telangana, exclusive supplier of goods also 20, supplier of service also 20, supplier of goods plus service also 20 lakh. Now, if you are in any other state, Oak of Himachal Pradesh, any other state, A for Assam, J for, K for Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh, supplier of goods, the limit is 40 lakh, supplier of service, the limit is 20 lakh, supplier of goods and service, the limit is 20 lakh. Basically, Oak of Himachal Pradesh may, they went ahead and told by issuing the notification under section number 22, that Oak of Himachal Pradesh may exclusive supplier of goods exempted from registration up to a limit of 40 lakh rupees. But then they went ahead and put a star over here and told for whom 40 lakh is not allowed. 
they told if you are a person who is required compulsory registration under section number 24 beta if you are required compulsory registration under section number 24 baba what 20 lakh what 10 lakh what 40 lakh compulsorily you have to take registration then they went ahead and told if you are a supplier of pan masala ice cream tobacco baba earlier it was pan masala ice cream aerated water cut it cut it aerated water cut it if you are a supplier of pan masala ice cream and tobacco then for you the limit will be 20 lakh and not 40 lakh the limit will be pan masala ice cream and tobacco supplier ke liye 20 lakh and not 40 lakh baba the aerated water is cut over here means aerated water supplier ke liye it is 40 lakh only the pan masala ice cream and tobacco suppliers will not go ahead and get the limit of 40 lakh for them the limit is 20 now november 22 ke liye the amendment which they have gone ahead and done they have gone ahead and told if you are a manufacturer of fly as bricks or fly as block or fly as aggregate with 90 percent or more fly as content then baba for you also they will not go ahead and give 40 lakh a limit limit will be 20 lakh or you are a person who is making bricks of fossil meal or similar silicious earth 40 lakh a limit is not there for you the limit is 20 lakh or if you are a supplier of building building bricks then also 40 lakh is not there 20 lakh or if you are supplying earthen or roofing tiles then also 40 lakh limit is not there 20 lakh limit i am going ahead and telling you 40 lakh a limit is for people who are in oak of himachal pradesh supplier of goods but this is not applicable if you are required compulsory registration secondly if you are a supplier of pan masala ice cream tobacco bricks bricks which can be fossil milk a brick or similar siliceous earth or fly as brick or building bricks and tiles which are there are earthen or roofing tile any other tiles baba this exemption will not this, sorry this any other tiles they will get 40 lakh a limit others these people are always 20 lakh rupees ka limit these people will always get 20 lakh they will not get 40 lakh ka limit done sir then baba if you are a person who is a bakra telling voluntarily i want to take registration government is telling who is stopping you what 40 what 20 what 10 you are voluntarily going to take take it or you are a person who intend to continue with registration government is telling you don't want to cancel you are telling no sir i i will still keep registration you have increased from 20 to 40 but i don't want 40 i will still keep my registration government is telling who is stopping you or if you want to continue then please continue and 40 lakh a limit is not there if you are in m square nt if you are a supplier within m square nt or you are a supplier within pumas of telangana done everyone yes sir we all got the point let's go ahead so i told section number 22 subsection 1 goes ahead and says sir supplier will be liable in the state from where he makes taxable supply if his turnover process 20 lakh or 40 lakh however sir then they went ahead and told oak of himachal pradesh may 40 lakh a limit is given for supplier of goods are we clear everyone then everyone over here taxable supplies from special category state limit is how much 10 lakh sir government can on the request of a special category state and recommendation of council enhance the limit from 10 to 20 and one more power is there government can on the request of a state and recommendation of council also enhance the limit from 20 lakhs to 40 lakh rupees are we clear everyone only for exclusive supplier of goods then we have an explanation over here sir i am a supplier of goods also i am an exclusive supplier of goods from oak of himachal pradesh but i have a bank account if i have a bank account i put money in the bank and i am receiving interest it means i become an exclusive i am no more an exclusive supplier of goods because i am supplying goods also and when you give money in the bank and you are receiving interest you become supplier of service then government went ahead and told even if you have gone ahead and given someone deposit loans and advance and you are receiving interest or discount but still we will assume that you are exclusive supplier of goods and we will give you a higher limit of 40 lakh rupees remember always interest will come in your aggregate turnover but the, because of interest it will not be that you will get a lower limit of 20 you will still be an exclusive supplier of goods and you will be given a higher limit of 40 lakh rupees person shall be deemed to be exclusive supplier of goods even if he is engaged in the exact supply of service by way of exchanging loans and advances deposit so far as the consideration is represented by way of interest or discount section number 22 subsection 2 went ahead and told if you are an existing registered person you are registered under VAT, service tax etc with the point from the appointment date you will be liable to register under 
GST also. Right, everyone? Appointment date in case of GST for the registration provisions were 22nd of June 2017. Third is transferee. So, if somebody has gone ahead and transferred me the business as going concern, the front party was registered and he has transferred me the business as going concern, me being the transferee or the successor, I have to go ahead and take registration within not within, I have to take registration, I will become liable on the date of transfer or succession. Section number 24, 22, subsection 4 went ahead and told, if you are a transferee as a result of court or court ka order, court or tribunal ka order, you have to go ahead and take registration from the day ROC issue certificate of incorporation. I went ahead and taught you, what are the things I went ahead and taught you till now everyone? I went ahead and taught you, section number Section number 22. Correct everyone. I went ahead and taught you section number 22. Section number 22. One went ahead and told supplier will be liable when aggregate turnover process 40 lakhs, 20 lakhs or 10 lakhs. Correct everyone. 40 lakh exclusive supplier of goods from Oak of Himachal Pradesh. Sir, second one. Section number 22. Existing registered person is liable from the appointment date. Correct everyone. Section number 23. Transferee is liable from the date of transfer or Succession. Section number 24. Again, transfer is liable. Sir, from the day, ROC issue certificate of incorporation. Sir, who is liable? When is he liable? When is he liable becomes very important because from the day you become liable, you should take registration within the next 30 days. That is told by section number 25. Right, everyone? Now, come to section number 22, 23 now. Section number 23 goes ahead and tells about people who are not liable for registration. Section number 23, 1. A goes ahead and says, if you are a person exclusively supplying those goods that are not liable, goods, those goods, services or both that are not liable to tax or only exempted from tax, don't go ahead and take any registration. So, any person exclusively engaged in supplying of that good service, exclusively engaged in supplying of good services or both that are not liable to tax or wholly exempt, Baba, you don't have to collect and pay anything, don't take registration. Section number 21, B says, agriculturist is not required registration to the extent of supply out of cultivation of land. Sir, who is an agriculturist? An agriculturist is an individual or an HUF who is going ahead and doing cultivation of land either through own labor or family labor or he and his family is watching people are working on wages or hired laborers. Right, everyone? Under their supervision. Then we had, sir, see, uh, agriculturist ka definition is here. Correct, everyone? Next. Individual or HUF doing cultivation of land by own labor, family labor or servants on wages or hired laborers under personal or family supervision. Now we have section number 23.2. Section number 23.2 goes ahead and gives the power to the government to go ahead and notify people who are exempted from registration. Section number 23.2 is to be read with section number 22 or section number 24. Let's read section number 23.2 now with section number 24. Section number 24 went ahead and told people who are required compulsory registration. I went ahead and told people who are required compulsory registration are known as creations. Creations. C for casual taxable person. If you are a casual taxable person, you are going to other state, occasionally undertaking transaction from there and there you don't have any fixed place of business, then you are a CTB over there. You have to go ahead and take compulsory registration in that state. Now, when you are going to other state, occasionally, then you are a casual taxable person and you have to take CTP ka registration. In this scenario, one exemption is given to handicraft supplier or craftsman goods supplier. Sir, they are exempted up to 20 lakh or 10 lakh. Who are these handicraft or craftsman goods supplier who are going in and making handicraft goods predominantly by hand? R for person who is required to pay tax under RCM. So, if director is providing me the services, I am a company, I am required to pay tax under RCM, I will take compulsory registration. And this director, even his turnover exceeds 20 lakh or 10 lakh, he is exempted under section number 23. Two, because he is going ahead and supplying those supply on which the recipient will always pay the tax. So, this guy doesn't have to take registration. Is my point clear? Baba, in case of reverse charge, recipient takes compulsory registration, supplier exempted from registration. E for person supplying through e-commerce operator. If I am a supplier of goods through e-commerce, compulsory registration, supplier of services through e-commerce, 20 lakh or 10 lakh exemption has been given. A for agent of a taxable person. If my boss 
my principal is a taxable person he is a registered person if i am supplying on his behalf i will have to go ahead and take compulsory registration then baba a for aggregator aggregator matlab aggregator under section number 95 i hope you guys remember transportation of passenger who is sir housekeeping services accommodation service and restaurant service i went ahead and told you always remember t h a r sir under 95 four services are notified now what is the one t for transportation of passenger by radio taxi maxi cab motor cab motorcycle omnibus and any other type of motor vehicle omnibus and any other type of motor vehicle is the amendment for number 22 h for housekeeping services a for accommodation service and r for restaurant service restaurant services when they are su supplied through uh, swiggy zomato and all swiggy zomato will now become liable for compulsory registration are we clear everyone one thing you have to remember accommodation and housekeeping service may if the supplier is liable under section number 221 then baba they will not e-commerce operator will not be liable done sir point is clear sir yes baba over here now t t for tds deductor and t for tcs collector are also required compulsory registration who are this tcs collector basically the e-commerce operators right everyone next i for interstate supplier interstate supplier is required compulsory registration but if interstate supplier is of handicraft goods or craftsman goods exempted up to 20 lakh or 10 lakh and also interstate supplier of service is exempted up to 20 lakhs or 10 lakhs i for isd input service distributor who wants to distribute the credit they will have to go ahead and take registration it's a separate registration to be taken o for oidr who is supplying from outside india to an unregistered person oidr should collect gst and pay to the government oidr will take compulsory registration n for nrtp non resident taxable person is also required compulsory registration s for such other person notified by government on recommendation of council is also required compulsory registration all of them have been covered over here whatever is blue are the ones which are basically required compulsory registration c for sir casual taxable person r for person required to pay tax under reverse charge r e for e commerce operator basically person supplying goods through e commerce person supplying through e commerce right everyone a for agent of a taxable person a for aggregator t for tds deductor baba tds deductor and also tcs collector which is basically the e commerce i for interstate supplier i for isd isd and input service distributor and oidr o for oidr n for nrtp and s for such other person notified by government on recommendation of council baba section number 22 section number 23 and section number 24 are a graded for your exam four marks ka question they will go ahead and ask on this section number 22 four cases who are liable supplier existing registered person transferee and transferee in case of court order or tribunal ka order section number 23 two cases one may a the person who are not liable to pay any tax or supplying wholly exam not required agriculture is not required 22 notified category 24 creations is required compulsory registration i'll go ahead and stop my revision on section number 22 23 and 24 over here have a great day people take care bye guys are baba wait 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 one small thing which we missed out over here the circular circular went ahead and told there is an apmc ka agent apmc agricultural produce marketing committee ka agent and he is going ahead and supplying on behalf of agriculturist now because the agriculturist is not a registered person this apmc ka agent will also not go ahead and take any compulsory registration he is not required compulsory registration secondly this apmc ka agent is going ahead and buying and selling agricultural produce his commission which is going ahead and charging that is exempted from the basically apmc agents when they are going ahead and buying and selling agricultural produce their service their service for which they are going ahead and charging their service pay there is no gst it is exempted from 
registration. Now, if you are a person who is going ahead and supplying exam supply, section number 23, 1A goes ahead and says, if you are not required to go ahead and collect any tax and pay to the government, don't go ahead and take registration. Hence, an APMC agent, commission agent under APMC, making supplies on behalf of agriculture, who is not a taxable person, is not liable for compulsory registration. Also, because their services are exempted from GST, hence they are not liable under section number 23, 1A also. Here we are done with 22, 23 and 24. Bye guys. Take care. Chalo Baba, in the previous class, we were done with registration ka section number 22, 23 and 24. 22 told people who are liable, 24 told who are people who are liable for compulsory registration. Now, if you are a person who is liable under section number 22 or 24, you have to go ahead and take registration within the next 30 days. Who told you have to take registration? Section number 25, subsection 1. Section number 25, subsection 1 goes ahead and says, if you are a person, section number 25, which talks about the procedure for registration, it says, if you are a person, you are liable, you should apply for registration within the next 30 days. So, for an example, there is any person who started the business and one day he became liable for registration, he should submit the application within the next 30 days. Then, section number 25, one told, you should submit the application within 30 days. If you are a proviso of section number 25, subsection 1, the proviso goes ahead and says, if you are a CTP or an NRTP, you should apply 5 days prior to commencement of your business. If you are a SCZ unit or an SCZ developer, separate registration has to be taken for your SCZ unit. Correct everyone? Or if you are a SCZ developer, you should take a separate registration. Sir, one explanation was there over here in section number 25, subsection 1, which went ahead and told, if you are there in the Tatel Waters of India, you should take registration in the nearest coastal state or union territory. Now, sir, how do I take registration? That is told by rule number 8. Rule number 8 goes ahead and says, application will go. Rule number 9 says, verification will happen. Rule number 10 says, registration certificate will be issued. So, rule number 8 goes ahead and says, every person who is going in and applying for registration, uh, basically who is liable under section number 25 to take registration. Baba, section number 25 told you should take registration within 30 days. So, if you are a person who has to take registration within 30 days, what will you do? You have to go ahead and apply. Every registered person has to go ahead and file GST REG 01 ka part A. Basically, he has to go ahead and declare PAN number, mobile number, email ID and state or Union territory. Always remember one thing, whenever a person is going in and applying, application GST REC 01 is applicable to all registered person other than NTO, N for NRTP, T for TDS deductor, O for TDS deductor or TCS collector, O for OIDAR. NRTP, TDS deductor, TCS collector, ke liye, there are separate rules. NRTP, ke liye, it is told, rule number 13, REC 09 is the application form, TDS deductor, TCS collector, rule number 12 and form is REC 0. 7, OIDR rule number 14 and form is REG, REG 10. Now, we will not talk about them because for them separate rules are there. What they are going in and telling rule number 8 may, rule number 8 is applicable other than to people who are NTO, NRTP, TDS deductor, TCS collector or OIDR. Other than these people, if any other person is going in and applying for registration, he will go ahead and fill part A of GST REG 01. When he is filling part A of GST REG 01, he should go ahead and declare PMS, PAN number, which will be validated through the CBDT data, database, mobile number, email ID, where OTP will be sent and it will be validated. And as for state or union territory, once he goes ahead and fills PMS detail, post verification, temporary reference number will be generated. Now you can use the temporary reference number, go to the login, go to the gst.gov.in, put over their temporary reference number, one part B of GST REG01 will be generated. In that part B of GST REG01, you have to, you have to go ahead and, you have to go ahead and fill all the details. Now, there you will find one, Aadhaar authentication tab is there. Yes or no, everyone? If you go ahead and tell, yes, I want to go ahead and do the Aadhaar authentication, then they will go ahead and say, sir, if applicant opt for Aadhaar authentication, yes, then the date of submission of the application will be the date you do the Aadhaar authentication. For an example, you filled the application on first part B, you submitted the application on 1st of January, but you did the Aadhaar authentication on 8th of January, 8th of January will be deemed as your date of submission. 
But sir, if you don't go ahead and do the other authentication, you opted, but you did not do, then once the 15 days gets over, then it will be deemed as the form is submitted. 15 days from the date of submission means supposingly first you filled the form, then 15 days from means the next day onwards. So, 16th of January will be deemed as the date of submission and one acknowledgement will be given in GST REG 02. Sir, if I have gone ahead and told no, I don't want to do other authentication, then they are telling actual date of submission of part B of GST REG 01 will be deemed as your date of submission and that day one acknowledgement shall be given. Always remember a casual taxable person has to go ahead and deposit tax in advance. Once he goes ahead and deposits the tax in advance, only then an acknowledgement will be given. Done, sir. Point is clear. But, sir, who are the people who are required other authentication? Section number 256A goes ahead and talks about that if you are a person who is already registered before 1 4 2020, you will be required other authentication, but from a date to be notified. See, 256B goes ahead and says if you are an individual, you should undergo other authentication from 1st of April 2000. 26 c goes ahead and says all other type of people have to undergo other authentication who are notified and notified people are a and k authorized and managing authorized signatory managing and authorized partner and karta you have to undergo other authentication so who are the people who have to undergo other authentication individual a m k a for authorized signatory managing and authorized partner and karta these are the people who have to undergo other authentication from which date from 1st of april 2000 20 if you are applying for a fresh registration. 6D goes ahead and says 6A, 6B, 6C is not applicable means these people or class of people are not required to other authenticate who are basically notified. So basically a such person or class of person or any state or union territory those people are not required to do other authentication if they are notified. Who are the people who are not required to do other authentication? Person notified under 6D, basically who are not required other authentication are New Delhi, PSU, N for non-Indian citizen, D for Department of Central Government, State Government, L for local authority, P for public sector undertaking, S for, S for statutory body and U for UIN holder. Always remember one thing, other authentication has four parts, correct everyone? 6A, already registered person who are registered before 1st of April 2020 has to undergo other authentication from a date to be notified. It is not notified yet, so they are not required to do other authentication. 6B, told individual has to undergo from 1st of April 2020. 6C, went in and told AMK, I, AMK, A means authorized signatory, M for managing an authorized partner and Karta has to undergo other authentication. So, if you are IAMK, I am the Karta, you have to undergo other authentication from 1st of April 2020. 6D told New Delhi, PSU does not have to undergo other authentication. Done, sir. Point is clear. Everyone over here, once you fill the uh, application, application will be sent to whom? The officer for verification. I will go ahead and do the verification. Basically, I will examine whether the application is complete and all the other documents are there or not. Yes or no, everyone? Now, when the officer is going ahead and checking, if you are a person whose application is fine, application is in order, plus you are a person who is notified under 256D, means New Delhi, PSU, means you are not required any other authentication. So, if your application is fine, plus you are not required other authentication, application is fine, very good, they will go ahead within 7 days from submission, within 7 days from submission, they will approve the grant of registration and issue you a Registration certificate in GST REG 06. Always remember REG 06 is the registration uh, certificate and when they are issuing you the registration certificate, they will show you in the registration certificate principal place of business and additional place of business and it will be made available to you on the common portal. Along with that, they will go ahead and give you a GSTIN number which is basically a 15 digit ka number which will be assigned to you. Done sir, point is clear. Now, Second case, sir, if I go ahead and apply, an application is being verified by the officer. Now, there are two things which are there. One, the application should be fine. Secondly, you are a person who is required Aadhaar authentication. Individual, authorized signatory, managing and authorized partner and karta. They are required to do Aadhaar authentication. Number one, your application is fine. Application is in order. You are required Aadhaar authentication. Who is required? IAMK is required. Number two, you opted also. Means when you are filing the application, here you told a yes also. Then they are going ahead and telling. Number three, your Aadhaar authentication was successful. It means OTP came in your mobile phone. 
you went ahead and put the hyperlink which came in your mail for other authentication. Baba, when you submit part B, one hyperlink comes in your mail. Part B may you told, I want to do other authentication. They will send a mail to your email. You click on the mail, hyperlink, OTP will come in. Then you, they will be taking you to a uh, separate website where you have to put your Aadhaar number, put the OTP and Aadhaar authentication is done. Now, if they are telling you are required Aadhaar authentication, you opted also and Aadhaar authentication was successful also, then within the next 7 days, they will approve the registration and issue you a registration certificate. Always remember two things, there is number one, application should be fine, number two, Aadhaar authentication must be done. Okay, sir. Now, let's go ahead and learn the third case. You went ahead and submitted the application, officer is verifying your application. Application is in order, there is no problem in application, but sir, Aadhaar authentication is required, you opted also, but you failed to do the Aadhaar authentication. Your application, applicant is required, opted, but failed. Or, sir, applicant is required, did not opt only. Then they are going ahead and telling, first we will go ahead and do physical uh, verification of the place of business and other document verification as the proper officer deems fit. Once that is done, only after that, they are going ahead and telling, we will go ahead and grant you the registration, but this time, registration will be granted within 30 days of your submission of application once your application is submitted from that day how many days 30 days are we clear everyone because your other authentication was failed or you did not opt for other authentication hence they have taken 30 days from the submission they will go ahead and approve and recent certificate will be given are we clear everyone listen to me very carefully now sir i went ahead and did other authentication application is in order I went ahead and I am required other authentication, opted also and other authentication was successful also, but still officer PO deems it fit to carry out physical verification of place of business, then proper officer will go ahead and take assistant commissioner or above ka permission, basically the per officer who is, who is authorized by the commissioner. So, there is an officer who will be authorized by the commissioner whose permission has to be taken and this officer is assistant commissioner or above. Are we clear? If you take his permission, then you can do now physical verification in spite of other authentication being done. So, they are telling application is in order, other authentication required, opted and done also. But still, if officer deems it fit to carry out physical verification, he will take assistant commissioner or above ka permission and then he will do physical premises ka verification and other document ka verification as the proper officer deems fit. And then within 30 days of submission of application, he will go ahead and approve the registration and registration certificate shall be granted. Now again, 30 days ka time shall be taken. Done everyone. Done sir. Point is clear. Everyone over here now. Then they are going ahead and telling, you entered an application failed. Application ka verification was done. When the verification was going on, application may there is a problem, but other authentication required, opted also and successful. Where is the problem everyone? Application may there is a problem. It means the officer needs some clarification, information or document. So, he will go ahead and issue your notice within how many days? 7 days. See, application is fine. Other authentication is fine. 7 days may approval. Or 7 days may they will issue you REC 03. Within how many days? 7 working days. They will ask you clarification information document. CID. So, you have to go ahead and submit the clarification information or document in GST REC 04. Within how many days? 7 working days. Now, if the officer is satisfied within the next 7 working days, he will approve the registration and grant you the registration certificate. But if the officer is not satisfied or you did not reply, then officer will go ahead and record the reason and reject the application and inform you in GST REG 0. Why? Is my point clear till here? Done, sir. Sir, only application my problem was there, then REG 03 within 7 working days. Now, the next case over here is Sir, your application may also problem is there, means verification was being done by the officer. Officer saw application is also problematic. Plus, you applicant is required other authentication, he did not opt or he failed to do other authentication or after even successful other authentication, proper officer deems it necessary to go ahead and carry out your physical premises ka verification. He will go ahead and take assistant commissioner or above ka permission and then he will go ahead and first because 
you did not go ahead and do other authentication or other authentication failed or even our, after other authentication he wants to do physical premises ka verification then first they will go ahead and do physical premises ka verification or any other document verification then they will go ahead and issue you this notice why because application is not in order but this notice ka now issuing ka time limit will be 30 days from the submission of GST REG 03 now what you go ahead and once he goes ahead and gives you the notice, you will have to go ahead and reply in GST REC 04 within 7 working days. Proper officer is satisfied within the next 7 working days. He will go ahead and approve the registration and give you the registration certificate. But if the officer is not satisfied, he will go ahead or you did not reply. Then he will go ahead and record the reason and reject the application and inform you in GST REC 04. Five. Are we clear everyone? Yes sir, we got it. Always remember there are two things. One is the application, one is the Aadhaar authentication. Application problem, REG03. Sir, Aadhaar authentication not done, then physical premises ka verification is done. Okay sir, point is clear. Sir, if proper officer does not take action, for an example, I had gone ahead and submitted the application, everything is fine in the application, within 7 working days he should approve. He did not go ahead and approve. Sir, then they are going ahead and telling deemed approval will be given. Sir, for an example, I went ahead and did not do other authentication. He should take action within 30 days. He did not take action within 30 days. He did not grant me my registration. Then, deemed approval. Sir, I replied to the officer. He gave me REG03. I replied within 7 working days. Now, he should reply me back within 7 working days of my submission of clarification information document. He did not reply. Then, they are telling portal will automatically approve. See, it says over here, 7 working days from the submission in case of successful other authentication 30 days from the submission in case of failure or not opting or where officer deems that physical verification is required in spite of other authentication or seven working days from receipt of clarification information document if officer fails to take action then application will be deemed to be approved and gstn number and registration certificate duly signed or e-verified should be made, made available within the next three days after the expiry of that seven days 30 days or seven working days are we clear seven working days 30 work 30 days sorry 30 days it is and seven working days once they expire after that within three days they should go ahead and give you the registration certificate always remember one thing rule number 18 cup once your registration certificate is in your hand do one thing display the registration certificate in the prominent location at your principal place or additional place of business also display your gstn number on the name board oh, this is something wrong over here on the name board exhibited at the entry of the principal place or additional place of business done sir point is clear till here can we go ahead everyone yes sir everyone over here now next sir if you go ahead and see over here once you go ahead and take registration then rule number 10 a will also come what is rule number 10 a going ahead and telling rule number 10 a goes ahead and says once you go ahead and get your registration certificate after that within 45 days or first monthly return within 45 days or due date of first monthly return you should go online and furnish your bank account details whichever is furnish bank account detail within due date of monthly return or 45 days whichever is earlier are we clear and this is not applicable that is furnishing of bank account detail post registration is not applicable in whose case tds deductor tcs collector or people who are suomoto registered always remember one thing if you have gone ahead you became liable you submitted the application within 30 days registration certificate granted registration certificate will be valid from the date of you becoming liable always remember one thing if you go ahead and submit the application within 30 days of becoming liable yes sir then registration certificate effective from the date of becoming liable but i became liable i did not submit the application within 30 days i submitted after and registration certificate is granted then the registration certificate is valid from the date of grant are we clear till here always remember one thing one new rule is inserted rule number 10b rule number 10b goes ahead and says if you are a person who is registered, registered person, other than a person notified under 2560, who is a person notified under 2560? New Delhi PSU, New Delhi PSU, New Delhi PSU are not required other authentication. But if you are a person who is required other authentication, might be you took registration without giving your Aadhaar card. They gave you registration by doing physical premises ka verification. But Registered person, Baba, there is an amendment for your number 22 exam. If there is a registered person who is issued a registration certificate, shall undergo other authentication of whom? 
प्रोपराइटर और एनी पार्टनर और करता और मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर और होल टाइम डायरेक्टर इन केस ऑफ कंपनी मेंबर ऑफ द मैनेजिंग कमिटी ऑफ एसोसिएशन ऑफ पर्सन और बॉडी ऑफ इंडिविजुअल और सोसाइटी और ट्रस्टी ऑफ बोर्ड ऑफ ट्रस्टीज इन केस ऑफ ट्रस्ट एंड 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 बाबा प्रोपराइटर एंड ऑथराइज सिग्नेटरी एनी पार्टनर एंड ऑथराइज सिग्नेटरी फॉर वॉट फॉर फाइलिंग योर रिवोकेशन एप्लीकेशन जीएसटी आर जी ट्वेंटी वन वेन यू अप्लाई फॉर रिवोकेशन एप्लीकेशन अंडर सेक्शन नंबर थर्टी रेड विथ रूल नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग रूल नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री वेंट एड एंड टोल्ड अबाउट Yes, sir. Rule number twenty-three goes ahead and talks about revocation. When you are applying for a revocation application, always remember your Aadhaar authentication must be done. Otherwise, you will not be able to apply for your revocation application. Or for filing refund and application RFD zero one under rule number eighty-nine. Or for going ahead and claiming your refund under rule number. 96 always remember one thing if you are a person who has been granted registration always remember a person who has been granted registration also has to undergo aadhar authentication if baba might be you are granted registration without any aadhar authentication or all but if you want to do this three thing what is the three thing you have to apply for revocation application or refund application if you have to file under rule number 89 or you have to go ahead and claim a refund under rule number 96 these three things ke liye aur aadhar authentication is mandatory so proprietor and authorized signatory any partner and authorized signatory are we clear everyone so i have gone ahead and told you have to undergo aadhar authentication of proprietor any partner karta managing director or whole time director in case of company member of the managing committee of association of person or board of body of individual or society or trustee of a board of trust trustee of a board of trustees in case of trust and of the authorized signatory and authorized signatory means authorized signatory ka aadhar authentication also has to be done for what for filing revocation application for filing refund application and for claiming refund under rule number 96 sir i don't have aadhar number if you if no aadhar then you can furnish your aadhar enrollment id slip that aadhar enrollment ka id slip along with that please give your bank passbook with photograph or Voter ID or passport or driving license, but make sure that once you get your Aadhaar number, such person shall undergo Aadhaar authentication within a period of 30 days from the allotment of Aadhaar number. Am I clear to all? Rule number 10B inserted as a new rule for your number 22 exam. The next rule over here is rule number 25, which goes ahead and says PO may get physical verification done of the place of business before. or after grant of registration and once he comes to a place he will take photographs and go so he will go and upload verification report within with along other document including photographs in gst rg 30 within how many days 15 working days verification can be done before grant of registration also why because you have not gone ahead and done your other authentication or not opting either not opting or failed other authentication ka case mein they can go ahead and do physical premises ka verification after granting your registration also they can go ahead and do physical premises ka verification due to any other reason done sir are we all clear till here i went ahead and told you section number 25 read with rule section number 25 sub section 1 once a person becomes liable he should go ahead and apply for registration within how many days 30 days ctp nrtb 5 days prior SCZ separate registration TWI nearest coastal state rule number eight application rule number nine verification rule number ten registration certificate shall be issued rule number ten a bank account detail has to be furnished rule number eighteen once you have got registration please put your registration certificate and GSTN number on the registration certificate on the prominent location at your place of business or additional place of business and GSTN number on the name board or sign board rule number twenty five goes ahead and says proper officer can do physical premises ka verification rule number 10b a new introduction which says other authentication is required if you want to go ahead and apply for revocation application refund application under section number under a rule number 89 and if you are going ahead and claiming refund under rule number 96 done sir now section number 25 sub section 2 goes ahead and says if you have multiple place of business sir you can go ahead you may be granted separate registration separate application has to be given 
separate verification and rule number 10 says separate registration certificate shall be issued section number 25 3 says if you are a person who is not liable i am not liable but i want to take registration then section number 25 3 says you can get voluntary registration done if i take voluntary registration all the provision of the act shall be applicable to the registered person shall apply means i will become a registered person i can take itc i can charge gst i have to file return and there is no lock in period it means it means whenever i become the bakra and i took the registration voluntarily i can cancel it anytime if i feel that i have gone ahead and taken it unnecessarily i don't require it section number 25 4 goes ahead and says a person has gone ahead and obtained separate registration in a state then both of them become distinct person i have one registration in one state another registration in another state both are distinct person same state one state may one establishment registered another state may one establishment not registered still both are establishment of distinct person that is told by section number 25 4 and section number 25 5 section number 25 6 goes ahead and says pan number is mandatory for registration tds deductor can go ahead and take on the basis of tan number also rule number 12 goes ahead and talks about tds deductor and tcs collector ka registration they go ahead and say if a TDS collector or TCS collector is going ahead and applying for registration, they will apply in GST REG 07. Then they will fill part A and part B. Part A may they will go ahead and put that state ka name where they want registration. Part B may they will go ahead and give basically head office ka state. Are we clear? So part A may they will go ahead and put that state or union entity where registration is required. Part B may they will go ahead and put that state in which principal place of business is located now once they go ahead and apply within the next three days registration certificate shall be granted after verification section number 6a 6b 6c and 6d went ahead and spoke about other authentication section number 25 7 goes ahead and says if there's an nrtp and he is going ahead and applying then he will apply in gstr 9 along with self attested copy of passport and they should apply five days prior to commencement of business now when they go ahead and apply for registration always remember they have to pay advance tax on the basis of temporary reference number rule number 9 and 10 apply mutatis mutandis means verification will happen only then registration certificate will be granted always remember when the nrtp is going ahead and applying that application should be signed or e-verified by a person who is an authorized signatory they are having a valid pan and he is a resident of india then we have section number 25 subsection 8 which goes ahead and says if you fail to take registration and proper officer catches you, he will go ahead and do suo motor registration. Rule number 16 applies. It says if a person becomes liable but he did not go ahead and take registration and pursuant to a survey, inquiry, investigation or search, proper officer finds that the person is liable but he has failed to obtain registration, then proper officer may register, register the person on temporary basis and the proper officer will give him a GST RG 12 that you are registered on temporary basis now you get how many days ka time 90 days ka time within 90 days either you go for an appeal or you go ahead and submit your registration application verification will happen and registration certificate will be granted if the registration certificate is granted over here valid the day reg 12 was given to you but sir i am a person i don't accept what the officer says i'll go for an appeal appellate authority a means appellate authority went ahead and set aside the order of the officer telling this reg 12 is useless then baba i don't have to take registration but if they upheld the order saying what reg 12 was issued is correct then i will have to go ahead and take registration within the next 30 days means i will go ahead and submit the application verification will happen and registration certificate will be granted here registration certificate will be made effective the day reg 12 was issued this is about suomoto registration the next one over here is section number 25 9 which goes ahead and talks about uin holder sir who is a uin holder basically specialized agency of united nation any mfio organization notified under the un act okay everyone any consulate embassy of a foreign country and any other class of notified person they will be always granted uin number so i am a consulate or embassy if i have granted one uin number what will happen whatever i buy from people those people who i will give my uin number they will give the tax to the government government who i will ask a refund and government will give it to me but for that i should have a uin number done everyone okay there there was some issue we are restarting again everyone over here so specialized agency of united nation mfio consulate etc are given what 
UN number. Why are they given UN? So that whenever they are buying anything from people, they will go ahead and pay them the tax. These people will go ahead and pay to the government and these people who are UN holder will go ahead and apply to the government and take the refund of their taxes. So they are given UN, UN number for the purpose including the refund of taxes on notified supply of goods, services or both. Application goes in GST REG. What is the application? Application goes in GST REG. 13. Post verification proper officer may assign what? UN within 3 working days. UN is applicable to the territory of India. Are we clear till here? Now, everyone over here. We are done with section number 25. Section number 25, what did I tell you? Section number 25, 1. 30 days may you should take registration. CTP and RTP, 5 days prior. Then, I told you SCZ, separate registration. TWI, nearest coastal state. Section number 25, 2. Multiple place of business. You should take, you can take multiple registration, multiple application, multiple verification, multiple registration certificate. 25, 3. Voluntary registration. 25, 4 and 25, 5. Distinct person. Sir, separate registration make you distinct person. One establishment in one state registered. One establishment in other state not registered also. Distinct person. 25, 6. Pan is mandatory. TDS deductor and TCS collector. No. Only TDS deductor can take on the basis of time. Sir, 25, 7. And R, 6. Okay, okay. 6A, 6B, 6C and 6D went ahead and spoke about. Aadhaar authentication, IAMK is required, New Delhi PSU is not required. 7th went ahead and told about NRTP, 8th went ahead and told about Suomoto registration by the proper officer, Ninth one went ahead and told about unique identification, number 10, 11 and 12 is total bakwas, read from your textbook at home. Done. Then we have section number 26 over here, deemed registration. Sir, registration certificate or UN granted under HGST Act, deemed registration certificate or UN granted under CGST Act. Sir, registration certificate rejected under HGST Act, deemed rejected under CGST Act also. Here we are done with your quick revision for section number 25 and section number 26. The amendment in this chapter, in this section, basically rule number 10B has been introduced if you want your revocation application to be filed and refund under rule number 89 or under 96, you have to go ahead and do your Aadhaar authentication. Done, sir. I will go ahead and close my revision on section number 25 and section number 26 over here. Section number 25 is a A graded chapter registration ka A graded topic. Done, everyone. Chalo, Baba. I will close my discussion here. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Alright people, let's go ahead and continue our revision on the chapter of registration. Previously, we were done till section number 26. So, section number 22 went ahead and told people who are liable. 23 told people who are not liable. 24 told about compulsory registration. 25, sir, procedure for registration. 26, team registration. Today, we are going to continue our revision with section number 27, which talks about special provision for CTP and RTP. 28, amendment. 29, cancellation. 30, revocation of cancellation. 27 goes ahead and talks about special provision for CTP and an RTP, a CTP or an RTP who is going to other state. So, for an example, a CTP or an RTP is coming to our state and he is going to commence his business. He should apply for registration five days prior. So, sir, whenever they are going to commence their business five days prior, they should go ahead and apply for registration. When they are going ahead and applying for registration, CTP applies in GST REC 01 and RTP applies in REC 0. 9. Along with that, NRTP should give self-attested copy of passport and Baba, his application, basically the authorized signatory who is there should be a person who is resident of India having a valid PAN. Done, sir. Plus, a CTP and NRTP, whenever they are going ahead and filing their application, they should go ahead and pay net estimated tax liability in advance. Estimated net tax liability in advance, not gross. They have to pay net tax liability in advance and the amount gets credited to their e-cash ledger. Once they file their application, verification happens and registration certificate is granted in REC 06. Sir, once they go ahead and get the registration certificate, only then they should go ahead and start making 
taxable supply. Always remember they are given registration for a period which they have asked for. For, for an example, if they ask for 15 days, then 15 days or 90 days, whichever is earlier. So, means when you are applying for CTP and NRTP, the maximum period for which you are given registration is how many days? 90 days. Now, sir, I want to go ahead and extend my registration. Then, for an example, the exhibition got extended and a CTP or NRTP says, I want to extend my registration. Then, before the original expires, you have to go ahead and apply for extension rule number 15 goes ahead and talks about extension which goes ahead and says you have to go ahead and apply in rg 11 plus you have to give net estimated additional net estimated tax liability for the additional period you have to go ahead and give additional period can be maximum 90 days so you apply for 90 days and maximum 90 days means total you can be a ctp or an rtp in a state for 180 days okay sir i got it Sir, after 180 days gets over, can I go ahead and ask for more extension? Baba, always remember, you can't be casual in a state for more than 180 days. If it's a long-running exhibition, go to the government, take a normal registration, go online, take a normal registration. You don't have to pay anything in advance now. When the exhibition gets over, surrender the registration and get lost. So, the circular came, we told, further extension beyond 180 days is not possible. Take normal registration, don't pay any advance tax, surrender the registration while the exhibition gets over. Done, sir. Then we have section number 28 over here. Section number 28 goes ahead and talks about amendment of registration. What is it telling over here? Amendment can be of three types. One is core field amendment. One is non-core field amendment. One is pan change always remember whenever there is a change in constitution partnership became llp llp became company pan change pan change means you have to apply for fresh registration baba always remember there can't be any amendment that can be done you have to apply for fresh registration sir non core field amendment ka case may just go online apply and the registration certificate will stand amended sir core field commandment what are the three things which are core field legal name of your business is changing address of principal place of business or additional place of business you are changing or there is a change in the addition basically there is a addition deletion retirement of partner director karta managing committee board of trustee or ceo who is responsible for day-to-day -day affairs of the company and amendment would suffice there is no requirement for cancellation of registration then whenever there is a change in the particular that has happened just do one, one thing go online within 15 days apply in gstreg 14 along with the supporting document the officer will go ahead and start the verification officer does the verification officer is of the opinion that amendment is warranted documents are complete and correct then he will approve the amendment within 15 days and give you an order in gstreg 05 15 rg 0 5 nahi baba rg 15 sir if proper officer is of the opinion that amendment is not warranted documents are incomplete or incorrect then he will go ahead and give you a show cause notice in the show cause notice he will ask you clarification information document basically the show cause notice is given within 15 days you are given 7 working days so show cause notice comes to you within 15 working days you have to reply within 7 working days why application should not be rejected once you go ahead and reply and your reply is satisfactory po will go ahead and approve the amendment within seven working days and grant you and issue you a gst reg 15 if po is of the opinion that i mean that reply is not satisfactory or you did not go ahead and reply then he will go ahead and reject your application within seven working days and pass an order in reg 0 5. 27 done, 28 done. 27 went in and told about special provision with respect to CTP and RTP. 28 went in and told about amendment. Now, sir, I don't want amendment and all. I want cancellation. So, if a person wants cancellation, he can go ahead and apply for cancellation, which is told in section number 29. Section number 29 has section number 29.1, which goes ahead and says, when proper officer can Suomoto cancel your registration or when you can apply or when one person is gone, legal hires can apply. Section number 29.2 goes ahead and tells you those scenarios when proper officer will go ahead and cancel your registration. Section number 29.3 says, sir, though when your registration is cancelled, that doesn't mean your liability you do will not pay. You are still liable to pay. Section number 
4 goes ahead and says cancellation under SGST means cancellation under CGST and 29.5 goes ahead and says when your registration is cancelled, how much are you liable to pay on your stock and basically capital goods, inputs and capital goods. So, section number 29.1 goes ahead and says proper officer may sue a motto or on an application by the registered person or the legal hire. Papa, section number 29, cancellation or suspension of registration read with rule number 20, 21, 21A, which is suspension and 22 and 24 we are going to do now. Section number 29.1 says proper officer may sue motto cancel or on an application by the registered person or when the registered person is gone, his legal hire can go ahead and apply and he will cancel. When? Registration will be cancelled. Where? Business is discontinued or transferred due to death, dispose of or demerger or amalgamation. In this scenario, registration can be cancelled. The second one is change in constitution of business has happened. Then the old registration has to be cancelled. New person will take new registration. Next, sir, you are no longer liable under 22 or 24 or you had gone ahead and taken not valid return, voluntary return. You had gone ahead and taken, sorry, voluntary registration under section number 25.3 and you think you are no more required. You are no more required to, re means you are telling I have taken voluntary registration. I don't want to continue with it. Then they can go ahead and you can go ahead and apply for cancellation. So, this three scenario may either proper officer can cancel or registered person can go ahead and apply or legal hire can go ahead and apply. Section number 29.2 says PO may go ahead and cancel your registration where number one if a registered person has gone ahead and contravened such provision of the act or rules in that scenario proper officer can go ahead and cancel his registration such provision of the act or rules means those provisions which are told in rule number 21. Rule number 21 goes ahead and says, if you go ahead and contravene this provision of the act or rules, your registration will be cancelled. What is the provision of the act or rules? Sir, no business from declared place of business, your registration will be cancelled. You issue an invoice or bill without supply of good services in or both in violation of the provision of the act or rules. Basically, you are giving bogus invoice, then also your registration will be cancelled will be ne prio may cancel then if you violate the provision of section number 171 of the act or rules made there under means if you are going ahead and doing profit ring then also your registration can be cancelled if you violate the provision of rule number 10a basically you have to furnish your bank account detail as per rule number 10a you have to furnish your bank account detail within 45 days or first due date of first monthly return whichever is earlier if you don't furnish your registration can be cancelled sir you avail itc in violation of section number 16 of the act or rules made there and under then also a registration can be cancelled if you furnish the detail of outward supply in gstr1 more than the details of the outward supply which you have declared in valid return under section number 39 then they are going ahead and telling when you are to pay the tax under gstr 3b under se section number 39 monthly return when you are filing you have to pay the tax there you showed your outward supply less in gstr1 when you are to pass on the credit you pass you showed your sales more, then we will go ahead and cancel your registration. Sir, if you violate the provision of sex rule number 86B, when we are reading payment of taxes chapter, you will see rule number 86B goes ahead and says, a person has to pay at least 1% liability. 1% liability has to be paid through e-cash ledger. That is told by rule number 86B. If you violate that condition, then they are going ahead and telling, we will cancel your registration. Okay, sir. Done. These are the scenario when registration will be cancelled by the proper officer. Now, proper officer can also go ahead and cancel your registration if you are a composition taxable person and you are not filing a return for three consecutive tax period. If you are a normal registered person other than composition and no return for how much? Continuous six months. If you are a voluntary registered person and you have not come in business for how many months? Six months. I mean, you are finding you are filing online nil return. Then our officer will say, you have not commenced your business. Why did you voluntarily take registration? We will cancel your registration. And registration was obtained by fraud. Will pull misstatement or suppression of fact. Then also registration can be cancelled. Always remember in the exam, section number 292 goes ahead and says, five scenario when officer can go ahead and cancel your registration. Number one, if you violate the provision of the act or rules, which are told in rule number 21. Secondly, composition taxable person, no return for Three consecutive tax period. Normal person no return for six months. Sir, reg voluntary registered person has not commenced business for six months. And Baba, if registration was obtained by fraud, willful misstatement or 
suppression of fat, your registration will be cancelled. Sir, my registration is cancelled. I have gone ahead and collected 5 crore rupees. I will put in the pocket and go home. No, Baba, no. Section number 29.3 goes ahead and says, cancellation not to affect the liability to pay tax and dues, that is interest, penalty and late fee, etc. You will have to go ahead and pay all the tax, interest, penalty and late fee, whether or not determined before or after cancellation. The next one over here is 29.4. Cancellation under the SGST Act, team cancellation under the CGST Act also. 29.5 read with rule number 44 goes ahead and says, what is the tax payable by a person? First of all, whatever is the tax, interest, penalty, etc. that you have to pay. Plus, because you are going to take your stock and your capital goods home, on that inputs and capital goods also you are liable to pay tax. On your input which is in stock, input which is in semi-finished goods, input which is in finished goods, whatever the ITC you have taken or the output tax payable, calculated by applying valuation rule, whichever is higher has to be paid. In case of capital goods and flat rate machinery, you will have to go ahead and pay the ITC divided by 60 multiplied by remaining months. Whatever was the ITC taken divided by 60 multiplied by the remaining months, that will give you reduced amount of ITC. That reduced amount of ITC or the tax on transaction value, basically the output tax payable, whichever is higher has to be paid. So, inputs pay, ITC or output tax payable, whichever is higher, capital goods and plant and machinery also, whatever is the reduced amount of ITC or output tax payable, whichever is higher has to be paid. Then, sir, point is clear. Now, sir, what is the procedure for cancellation? Always remember one thing, once one person has expired, for an example, you have to go ahead and apply within how many days? 30 days. So, once one event happens, you should apply within 30 days in GST REG 16, including. So, basically, GST REG 16 is what? Application for cancellation. In that, you have to include the details of input in stock, semi finished goods, finished goods, and capital goods on the day on which cancellation is sought. On the day from which cancellation is sought. Along with that, you have to tell the liability. And how did you pay the liability? You used your credit or you used your cash. That is also to be told in. GST is 16 plus the supporting document has to be given. Now, if you have gone ahead and applied for cancellation, cancellation proceedings will start and within 30 days, the officer will go ahead and give you a cancellation order after providing you opportunity of being heard. Cancellation order will come in GST RG 19. In the cancellation order, officer will go ahead and tell you tax, interest, penalty, late fee you have to pay. Plus, as per section number 295, whatever inputs and capital goods pay liability is there, that also has to be paid. Now, you being a taxable person, what will you have to go ahead and do? He has gone ahead and given you a cancellation order. You have to go ahead, within three months, you have to go ahead and file your GSTR 10, which is bye-bye return, final return, after making payment of all the dues and the amount told in section number 29. Five. Done everyone. Yes, sir. Point is clear, sir. If the cancellation is done by proper officer on his own, then then proper officer will go ahead and issue you a show cause notice. You have to go ahead and reply within seven working days. Once you go ahead and reply, then proper officer will determine a date from which your cancellation proceedings will start. Basically, once you go ahead and reply, you will reply in GSTRG 18. If you go ahead and reply and the reply is satisfactory, then proper officer will drop the proceedings and issue a order in GSTRG 20. But if the officer is not satisfied, then he will start the cancellation proceeding. And once the cancellation proceeding gets over, he will give you a cancellation order and tell you what is the amount of tax interest penalty payable. And he will also direct you saying, sir, please go ahead and pay the amount as per section number 29.5. And then within three months, you should go ahead and make the payment of the amount and file your bye-bye return. Always remember one thing, when you apply for registration, if while filing your GST RG 16, you have gone ahead and made the payment of all the 29.5 wall amount, then again you don't have to pay. But if you have not paid at the time of filing GST RG 16, then you have to pay and file your bye-bye return, which is the final return. Are we clear everyone? Sir, officer gave me a show cause notice saying I will cancel your registration because you are a composition taxable person, not filed your return for three consecutive tax period or a normal person has not filed his return for six months, then officer will go ahead and give you a notice. Baba, once you receive the notice, don't reply anything. Just go online and furnish all the return and pay the tax, interest, late fee, etc. Then also the proceedings will be dropped. Are we clear, everyone? Always remember one thing. During the cancellation proceeding, there is one concept which is known as suspension. During the cancellation proceedings are going on, your registration will be suspended. That is told in section number 
रूल नंबर ट्वेंटी वन ए गोज एड एंड टॉक्स अबाउट सस्पेंशन ऑफ रजिस्ट्रेशन रूल नंबर ट्वेंटी वन ए में फर्स्ट पॉइंट विच इज देयर रूल नंबर ट्वेंटी वन ए the first sub rule which is there goes ahead and says if a registered person is going ahead and applying for cancellation if i have gone ahead and applied supposingly on 15 but i am asking cancellation from 1st of april then from 1st of april they will start my suspension it says pending the cancellation registration pending cancellation of registration pending cancellation registration will be suspended from the date of submission of application or from the date when cancellation is sought whichever is later whichever is later i asked for cancellation from i applied over here i am asking cancellation from here so from here my registration will be suspended sir if the proper officer wants to go ahead and cancel your registration then when will the registration be suspended if proper officer has reason to believe that registration is liable to be cancelled he may suspend the registration with effect from a date to be determined by him he will give you a show cause notice you will reply to him then he will determine the date from when registration will be suspended pending the completion of cancellation proceedings the next one over here is section rule number 21a sub rule 2a which goes ahead and says supposingly it says where a comparison of the return furnished by the registered person under section number 39 you have to write over here with with the details of the outward supply with with the details of the outward supply furnished in gstr 1 basically officer is comparing your gstr 3b and gstr 1 or officer is comparing your gstr 3b with details of inward supplies derived on suppliers gstr 1 basically your gstr 3b is comparing with your gstr 2a and he is going at 2a or 2b basically on the supplier gstr 1 your gstr 2a or 2b will be derived so your gstr 3b will be compared with your gstr 2a or 2b and they are going ahead and telling or such other analysis carried on out on the recommendation of carried out on the recommendation of council shows that there are discrete significant differences or anomalies indicating contravention of act or rules leading to cancellation of registration in your 3b you are showing 10 lakh ka sale in your gstr 1 you are going ahead and showing 1 crore ka sale they are going ahead and selling this discrepancy if it is there we will go ahead and immediately issue a gstr is 31 they will suspend your registration and issue a gst rg 31 highlighting the difference and tell you please reply to us within how many days 30 days as to why your registration should not be cancelled can you tell me three cases when registration will be suspended number 1 when you apply number 2 when proper officer gives you a show cause notice you applied over here from here you are asking cancellation so from here your registration will be suspended if proper officer goes ahead and gives you a show cause notice you will reply and then officer will determine a date from where your registration will be suspended third case you officer went ahead and compared your gstr 3b with gstr 1 or your gstr 3b compared with the details of inward supplies derived on the basis of gstr one of the supplier basically in your gstr 2a to b whatever amount is appearing he compared with your gstr 3b and baba any other analysis they did and they found that there are differences anomalies mistake means anomalies means uh, something wrong is there then he will go ahead and do what he will go ahead and issue a gstr 31 and immediately suspend your registration always remember one thing whenever your registration has been suspended under 1 2 or 2a any case may then they are going ahead and telling you shall not file any monthly return also and you shall not make any taxable supply also sir in this period when my registration is suspended i shall not go ahead and make taxable supply means what it means you can make supply you can go ahead and issue invoice but you can't go ahead and collect tax from your buyers basically you can't go ahead and collect tax sir tell me one thing what if after later okay it means he shall not issue tax invoice and not to charge tax on supplies made by him are we clear everyone yes sir point is clear now tell me one thing sir if supposingly now i am not going ahead and collecting any tax later you went ahead and told that suspension is revoked and registration is revived then sir during this period whatever supplies i made for that i did not give a tax invoice so for all the supplies you can now go ahead and give within the next one month revised tax invoice collect gst paid to the government and all this revised tax invoice you have to go ahead and show in the first first return which is to be furnished by you it goes ahead and says suspension is revoked and registration is revived then you can issue revised tax invoice as per section number 313a 
okay and you have to file first return as per section number 40 40 wherein you will go ahead and show all the supplies which were made during your suspension one more point over here is sir a registered person whose registration has been suspended by the officer basically under two sub rule two or two a shall not be granted any refund under section number 54 during the period of suspension when your registration is suspended you will not be given any refund also Sir, one more point over here is the registration, the suspension under 1, 2 or 2A shall be deemed to be revoked upon the completion of cancellation proceeding. For an example, your cancellation proceedings are done. Now, once the cancellation proceedings are done, suspension is revoked and the revocation will happen from the day suspension had come into effect. It says that revocation of will be effective from the date on which suspension had come into effect also the proper officer has power that proper officer can go ahead and suspend your revoke then so proper officer can revoke the suspension any time he feels appropriate can i go ahead everyone done sir point is clear now listen to me very carefully your registration is cancelled under section number 29 section number 30 goes ahead and says if your registration is cancelled go to the officer tell him a sorry and he will go ahead and revoke the cancellation sir my registration is cancelled please go ahead and revoke don't cancel sir, you have already up, uh, given me a cancellation order how will i do business please revoke the suspension ka order Please revoke the cancellation ka order. Now, if you go to the officer, you have to go to the officer. Section number 30, read with rule number 23 says you should go within 30 days. This 30 days can be extended by additional commissioner, joint commissioner. By further 30 days, if you can't go within 30 plus 30 also, then additional 30 days can be given by the commissioner. So, you should go ahead and apply for revocation in GST RG 21 using which form GSTRG 21 within 30 days or 30 days or 30 days. Can I go ahead everyone? One rule number 10B has come. Amendment is there over here. Rule number 10B has come wherein rule number 10B goes ahead and says whenever you are going ahead and applying for revocation, your Aadhaar authentication has to be done. So, they have now gone ahead and inserted in rule number 23, section number 30 read with rule number 23, they have gone and inserted one small line saying, sir, whenever you are going ahead and applying for revocation, by revocation application is going, please make sure your Aadhaar authentication is done. So, sir, once Aadhaar authentication is done, you can go ahead and apply for revocation. Proper officer is satisfied, he will revoke the cancellation and give you an order in GST RG 22. Sir, proper officer is not satisfied, he will go ahead and give you, if he is not satisfied, he will give you a show cause. Notice, you reply to him within 7 working days. Reply is satisfactory means you have gone ahead and given, if you have gone ahead and given him reply, giving clarification information document, he will take another 30 days ka time. If he is satisfied, he will revoke the cancellation and give you an order in RG 22. However, if officer is not satisfied, always remember, he will reject the application and pass an order in RG 05. Always remember one thing, before you go ahead and apply for revocation, basically you go ahead and file your revocation application. Please make sure if registration was cancelled due to not filing of return, please file all your return, pay all your tax, interest penalty and late fee. Only then you have to go ahead and apply for revocation. So, before you go ahead and apply for revocation, make sure first other authentication is done. Secondly, if any return etc. is pending, which because of which only your registration was cancelled. So, file the return, pay tax, interest, penalty and late fee. Only then apply for revocation. Now, always remember cancellation is sometimes prospective cancellation. Sometimes it is retrospective cancellation. For an example, you did not go ahead and file your return for April, May, June, July, August, September. Six months ka return you did not go ahead and file. Proper officer will give you a show cause notice. You will go ahead and reply to him. Then he will go ahead and carry out the cancellation proceeding and he gave you the cancellation order. Once he gives, gives you the cancellation order, you should apply within revocation ke liye within 30 days or extended time. Once you go ahead and apply for revocation, remember before applying for revocation, till the cancellation order, whatever returns were due, whatever returns were due till the cancellation order that is from April till October for an example, whatever returns were due, you have to go ahead and file pay all the tax interest penalty late fee and only then you have to apply for revocation. Now the revocation ka proceedings will be going on. They will give you the revocation order. Once the revocation order comes from the cancellation order till the revocation order, whatever returns were due has to be filed within the next 
30 days, you have to file all the returns which were due from cancellation order till the revocation order. Done everyone. Now, sir, if it was a retrospective cancellation, means I did not go ahead and file the return for six months. Officer gave me a show cause notice. I replied. He gave me a cancellation order, which was effective retrospectively from the time I had not filed my return. Are we clear everyone? Then for this period, now I will not be able to file the return. So first I will go ahead and apply for <coughs> revocation application within how many days? 30 days. I will file a revocation application without going ahead and filing any return. Officer will go ahead and give me a revocation order saying, sir, okay, we are giving you a revocation order. But once the revocation order is given, all the returns which were due retrospectively basically from the day you had not filed the return, all the returns from that day till the revocation order has to be filed now. Are we clear everyone? Yes, sir. We all got it basically from here till here. All the re returns which were due has to be filed. All the returns which were due till your revocation order has to be filed. Done everyone. Here we are done with your chapter of registration. One quick thing everyone. Listen to me very carefully. Registration we went ahead and learned section number 22. Section number 22 told about people who are liable. Section number 23 told about people who are not liable. Section number 24 told about compulsory registration. Section number 25 told about procedures. Section number 26 told about deemed registration. Section number 27, CTP and RTP. 28, amendment. 29, cancellation. 30, revocation of cancellation. Right, everyone? I have gone ahead and told you section number 22, section number 23 and section number 23, 24 are A-graded topic in your A-graded chapter. 25 is also, you can say, A-graded or B-graded. Then, section number 29 can be told as A-graded. All other sections which are there, Baba, I don't find them very important. All others, you can do it as B-graded or C-graded topic in this A-graded chapter. But this, this and this, along with section number 25, must be asked in the exam for at least 4 to 6 marks. Right, everyone? I have gone ahead and told you, where are the amendments, everyone? Section number 30 may. I have already gone ahead and told you what are the amendments in this chapter. One amendment is over here wherein basically now they have gone ahead and included along with pan masala, ice cream and tobacco ka supplier. They have included person who is making pliers bricks. Correct everyone. Building bricks. Then bricks of fossil meal and similar silicious earth and also earthen or roofing tile. Those people are also not eligible for a higher limit of 40 lakh that is included. Secondly, I have gone ahead and told you, sir, rule number 10B, Aadhaar authentication is required if you are going ahead and applying for refund. refund and revocation. Correct, sir. And then I have gone ahead and told you, in section number 30, they have gone ahead and made an amendment where they have gone ahead and told revocation application when you are filing. Before that, please go ahead and do what? Aadhaar authentication. Done, everyone. I will close my chapter over here. I hope you guys enjoyed the revision. Done, everyone. We will close the revision of registration over here. Bye, guys. Take care. People, the next chapter which we are going to revise now is the chapter of exemption. Everyone, let us go ahead and take a quick linking. First of all, we started learning GST with goods or service. Goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be either interstate supply or intrastate supply. Interstate supply, IGST will be levied. Intrastate, CGST will be levied. Once GST is levied, GST has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. Now, before a taxable person collects and pays, he will have to see what he has gone ahead and done. If it is falling in an exemption, then GST need not be collected and paid. Exemption is given by the government by using the power under section number 11 of the CGST Act and section number 6 of the IGST Act. Everyone over here, exemption is with respect to goods also. Goods ka exemption is not applicable for your CA final exam. Services ka exemptions are applicable for you. Exemption is given by the government by using section number 11 ka power and section number 6 ka power under the IGST Act. Section number 11 has section number 11 1, which goes ahead and gives the government the general power basically. Sir, general exemption can be issued by the government by using the power under section number 11 1. It says, government in public interest on the recommendation of council can go ahead and exempt something generally from the 
absolutely either absolutely means completely without any condition uh, or conditionally government can go ahead and exempt something from the whole of gst or part of gst and it will be with effect from a date which will be specified in the notification and for services government have gone ahead and issued notification number 12 bar 2017 central tax rate and for igst services exemption has been issued by notification number 9 bar 2017 igst rate ka notification are we clear everyone section number 11 sub section 2 goes ahead and gives special power to the government basically in special exemption can be issued special exemption can be issued by using power under section number 11 to government on the recommendation of council can go ahead and issue a notification in by special order in each case government under exceptional circumstances can exempt something from gst section number 113 goes ahead and gives the power to the government that government can go ahead government can go ahead and issue an explanation in the notification which is issued or notification or order which is issued by the government if government insert one explanation within one year that explanation will have retrospective effect but if explanation is inserted after one year it will have prospective effect it will not have retrospective effect now there was a circular which went ahead and told supposingly one notification was issued but later one entry was inserted and for that entry any explanation is inserted that explanation will be valid from the date of the entry ka insertion and not from the original notification ka date are we clear everyone yes sir we got it then we have the first was exemption which we are going to start off with is charitable and religious activities charitable and religious activities may baba for your number 22 there is no amendment which is there right everyone now charitable and re religious activity first of all we'll go ahead and talk about an entity which is registered under section number 12 aa or 12 ab of the income tax act so for an example there is an entity which is registered under 12 aa or 12 ab of the income tax act with respect to income ka exemption when they are going ahead and doing any charitable activity that charitable activity pe gst will not come but that charitable activity has to be that, that activity which is already defined in the notification they have gone ahead and told if there is an entity which is registered under 12 aa and doing charitable activity which is relating to papi activities yes everyone sir number 1 is public health a for advancement of religion spirituality and yoga p for preservation of environment watershed forest and wildlife e for educational program and skill development program sir if there is a charitable institution providing charitable activity which is relating to public health by way of care or counseling if you are going ahead and doing care or counseling of terminally ill person severely physically severely physical or mentally disabled this a bird this a bird person or if you are going ahead and doing care and counseling of hiv or aids infected person or drug or alcoholic alcohol addict person government is going ahead and telling all these terminally ill people drug addicts alcohol addicts all these are people who are about to go so government is going baba drug addict alcohol addict if you do all this thing correct no so government is going ahead and telling terminally ill people all these people ka case mein government went ahead and told we will not go ahead and charge any gst mean charitable organization doing a charitable activity by taking care and by doing care and counseling of terminally ill people severely physical or mentally disabled people or hiv aids infected or drug addicts government is going ahead and telling there will be no gst on that care and counseling ka service if there is a charitable activity which is done by charitable institution which is registered under 12 aa or ab of the income tax act by going ahead and doing public awareness about preventive health family planning prevention of hiv infection then then their their activity by gst will not come again there is a charitable institution doing charitable activity by going, going ahead and doing advancement of religion spirituality and yoga so there is a charitable institution going ahead and doing charitable activity they are going ahead and organizing yoga programs baba that's a charitable activity and government is going ahead and telling whatever amount you go ahead and charge don't charge any gst then baba there is a charitable institution doing charitable activity which is advancement of educational program or skill development program and it is relating to what abandoned orphan homeless children 
फिजिकली मेंटली अब्यूज और ट्रोमाटाइज पर्सन और प्रिजनर्स और पर्सन ग्रेटर देन सिक्सटी फाइव रिसाइड इन रूरल 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 एरिया then government is selling that educational program or skill development program which is done by the charitable institution is a charitable activity and gst will not come then sir if there is a charitable institution doing charitable activity which is sir preservation of environment watershed forest or wildlife then gst will not come on that activity also you have to go ahead and remember pp activities p for public health by way of care or counseling or public awareness sir a for advancement of religion spirituality and yoga p for preservation of wildlife forest environment etc e for educational program and skill development program done everyone then if there is a charitable institution doing charitable activity which is basically running an old age home and uh, running a old age home first of all the old age home has to be for resident greater than equal to 60 years secondly the consideration should be up to 25000 per month per member so supposingly one person has gone ahead and put his uh, parents in a orphanage or not an orphanage an old age home and old age home is charging up to 25000 then no gst more than 25000 complete amount pay gst will come sir for father and mother it is then 50000 is the exemption because 25000 plus 25000 because 25000 is per person done everyone and why is the uh, old age home charging it is charging for boarding lodging and maintenance of the person note one note is also given if the old age home is run by a charitable institution which is registered under 12 aa or ab then to exemption is there but if it is run by the central government or state government run by the central government or state government and they are also charging up to 25000 per month per member then the exemption will apply to the government run old age home also done everyone the next one over here is if there is a entity which is registered under 12 aa or ab of the income tax act or there is a trust or institution under 1023 c5 of the income tax act or there is a body or authority under 1023 bba of the income tax act and they are going ahead and doing what renting of precincts of a religious place meant for general public basically temple gurudwara etc may whatever premises are there in that premises room rent is being given then up to 999 it is exempt 999 per day if it is charged it will be exempt temple me this uh, you went to the temple they told 1000 rupees remember hundi is there put 1 rupee in the hundi give them 999 it shall be exempted sir you went to the temple you told i want to get married they told you 10000 rupees you put 1 rupee in the hundi 999 per day baba marriage is not for month it is per day if they are going ahead and charging you per day ke liye 9999 then it will be exempted you went to the temple and you told i want to put one shop for sweets and garland etc they are going ahead and telling okay we'll charge you 10000 you tell them 1 rupee i'll put in the hundi 9999 will be exempted right everyone so room rent up to 9999 999 per day premises or km km no is not kilometer kilometer nahi baba kalyan mandapam up to 9999 per day is exempt shop rent up to 9999 per month is exempted note always 999 and 9999 is exempted in case of religious premises ka precincts when they are renting out right everyone now always remember one thing conduct of religious ceremony is also exempted so if there is a temple trust which is there and they are going ahead and conducting any religious ceremony pandit ji will come pandit ji ka services are there all this services pay gst will not come clear everyone remember one thing in case of temple it is 999 which is exempt but in case of hotel renting of hotel in etc may value of supply up to 1000 is exempted because in case of hotel etc hundi is not there so government told okay full 1000 rupees only we are going ahead and exempting if there is a hostel which is there hotel or hostel both ka case mein it is how much 1000 rupees per day which has been exempted Are we clear, everyone? I have gone ahead and told you hotel over here just for a linking. Now, if there is an entity which is registered under 12 AA or AB of the Income Tax Act, and they are going ahead and providing what training or coaching in recreational activity relating to sports, then Baba, there will be an exemption which is given. Also, remember, if there is training or coaching in recreational activity relating to art or culture. given by an entity registered under 12 aa 
or by any other person, then also it will be exempted. But recreational activity, ka coaching, if given by, if given in respect of sports, then by any other person, it is not exempt. It is taxable only by an entity which is registered under 12 AA or AB. If they are giving recreational activity relating to art or culture related training, then it is exempted. Right, everyone? But recreational activity relating to, sorry, relating to sports only by entity registered under 12 AA or AB is exempt. Relating to art and culture by anyone, it will be under exemption. Now, if there is an entity registered under 12 AA or AB of the Income Tax Act and there one rehabilitation professional is providing the service, his services also will be exempted. What does a rehabilitation professional do? Rehabilitation professional, one person has become drug addict, alcohol addict, they will be taken to rehabilitation center where rehabilitation professionals are there who will go ahead and give him rehabilitation ka uh, therapy, counseling, etc. He will do. He will go ahead and do rehabilitation, therapy, counseling. Baba, they are not doctors, but they are like doctors only. And hence, government went ahead and told rehabilitation professional going ahead and providing services by way of rehabilitation, therapy, counseling at medical establishment, educational institution, or at rehabilitation center set up by the central government, state government, union territory. Baba, local authority is not written. Be very careful. Or at an entity registered under 12 AA or AB of the Income Tax Act, then this rehabilitation professional ka services at such medical establishment, at such educational institution, or at such rehabilitation center, which is set up by the central government, state government, union territory, or at an entity which is registered under 12 AA, their services will be exempted. Done, everyone. Now, government went ahead and told some religious. Pilgrimages also will go ahead and exempt. Government went ahead and told if there is K M B N L Kumau Mandal Kumau Mandal Vikas Nigam Limited. H is not there. Vikas Nigam Limited. They are going ahead and organizing Kailas Mansuro Yatra. Baba, Kailas Mansuro Yatra is a Yatra, which is done by the Hindus, government went ahead and told when KMVNL is organizing Kailash Mansur Yatra, there will be no GST. Now, for the Muslims, government went ahead and told Hajj committee is organizing Hajj. Then, Baba, on that also, whatever charges are taken, there will be no GST. If I was an examiner, I would have gone ahead and told you KMVNL is organizing Uttarakhand ka trip. Baba, be very careful about it. It is taxable. I will go ahead and say Ramesh Soni classes organized Kailas Mansur Yatra. Baba, it will be taxable. Only KMVN, KMVNL doing Kailas Mansur Yatra is exempt. Hajj committee doing Hajj is exempt. Right, everyone? Yes, sir. Point is clear. Now, on the left hand side, we have over here that GST on residential program or camp. Now, there is a yoga camp which is there. You went to the yoga camp. They gave you yoga was principal. They gave you food and uh, staying Kelly accommodation also. Now, food and accommodation is taxable, but yoga is exempted. And hence, because the principal supply over here was yoga, the entire supply will become exempted. So, they are telling if primary and predominant objective and purpose is advancement of religion, spirituality and yoga, then it shall be exempted. Are we clear everyone? What shall be exempted? The entire supply shall be exempted. Secondly, if Supposingly, there is one charitable institution or religious trust and they are going ahead and merely providing accommodation to people or they are providing food and drinks against consideration. They are telling, come, 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 eat and go, give 100 rupees ka donation and go. Government told, sir, selling food against donation also is taxable. Are we clear, everyone? The next one over here is, sir, activities such as holding fitness camp, classes, aerobics, dance, music, government is selling. All this way, I never went ahead and gave any exemption. Aerobics class, dance class, all these are always taxable. Right, everyone? I went ahead and told you about charitable institution. Number one, charitable institution which is registered under 12 AA or AB of the Income Tax Act. Going ahead and doing charitable activity, PAPI activity shall be exempted. They are running an old age home up to 25,000 per month per member. Resident greater than equal to 60 years ke liye. Then it will be exempted if they are going ahead and doing charitable institution is there and they are renting the precincts 999, 9999 per month or per day shall be exempted and then Baba they are going ahead and doing recreational activity relating to sports may training then it shall be exempted 
एंटिटी रजिस्टर्ड अंडर ट्वेल्व ए ए और ए बी में रिहेबिलिटेशन प्रोफेशनल इज प्रोवाइडिंग सर्विस हिज सर्विसेज आर ऑल्सो एक्सेप्टेड के एम बी एन एल गोइंग एंड एंड डूइंग कैलाश मानसो यात्रा हज कमिटी डूइंग हज यात्रा इज ऑल्सो एक्सेप्टेड आई विल क्लोज माई डिस्कशन ऑन द चैरिटेबल एक्टिविटी का एग्जाम्शन ओवर हियर एवरी वन All right, people. Let's go ahead and now revise the chart. Chart relating to government exemptions. May we are now going to revise in the exemptions all the government related exemptions. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. Central government, state government, union entity, or local authority, basically related to them, whatever exemptions is there. One thing you have to remember in section number seven, section number seven to B, central government, state government. Central government, state government, or local authority, when they are going ahead and acting as public authority, if they are doing an activity that is that neither supply of goods nor supply of service, if it is notified, there we had already learned Article number two forty three G and W of the Constitution related activities when they are done by panchayat and municipality, it is neither supply of goods nor supply of service, and alcoholic liquor license when it is given by the government, that is also neither supply of goods nor supply of service. Leave that now. We are talking about now the exemptions which are given to the government ka services, right, everyone? Now here, government ka first department is the department of post. If the department of post is going ahead and post office, Baba post office is going ahead and giving any services to the government, means post office is going ahead and giving any services to the government, which is basically central government ka any department, state government ka any department, basically government to government service. It will be like. it will be like a government to government service but what they are telling is if department of post is going ahead and giving services to the government it will always be exempt if department of post is giving services to others supposingly i went to the postal department then they are going ahead and telling non governmental ka case mein you will have to see if it is sales services what do you mean by sales services speed post agency service life insurance express parcel then gst will always come under forward charge mechanism but If it is any other services which are other than sales services like postal card, money order, etc., का services which are given by the post office, then Baba, it will always be exempted. So in your exam, always remember Department of Post going ahead and giving to government any service will be exempted. But if it is giving to others, you will always have to see speed post, agency service, life insurance, and express parcel is taxable under. forward charge mechanism they will tell you in the exam government ko postal department has gone ahead and given supposingly fire department which is government ka department speed post ka service it will be exempted because government to government services are exempted don't forget always remember this even if it is speed post agency service life insurance and express parcel given to government is always exempted now government if they are going ahead and managing any airport or port and they are giving the services to aircraft or vessel then always gst will come under forward charge mechanism if government is going ahead and renting immobile property always remember if government is giving to a registered person reverse charge mein registered person will pay but if the person is not registered government will go ahead and charge under forward charge mechanism right everyone but here also up to 5000 rupees is exempted now transportation services can be of goods also and passenger if transportation services are given for goods or they are given for passenger gst will always come under forward charge mechanism but you have to careful you have to be careful over here for transportation some places may exemptions are also given clear till here everyone the next one is all other services before this i want to go ahead and read out this services with you so if government ka services which is post ka service airport ka service immovable property ka service and transportation related service other than this also these services are there which are exempted if Services are given by the government by way of guaranteeing loans of their undertaking, government undertaking, or public sector undertaking from bank or financial institution. Government is guaranteeing the loan of PSUs or government undertaking. Then there will be no GST on that guaranteeing service which is given by the government. Right, everyone. But remember, these guaranteeing services are applicable only for. Central government, state government, union territory only. Not applicable in case of local authority. Then, 
if government is allowing business entities to operate as telecom operator or use radio frequency for license fees prior to 1-4-2016. Baba, these are for prior agreements which are there one before 1-4-2016 and on that allowing business entities to operate as telecom operators or use radio frequency whatever amount is being charged by the government GST will not come but these are for old agreements which are prior to 1-4-2016 then if government is going ahead and providing registration required under the law like testing calibration safety checks certification which are required for protection of workers or consumers at large or public at large including fire license or any registration required under law always remember whatever registrations are required under law like fire licenses or any registration for that matter if it is required under the law government is going ahead and telling whatever fees will go ahead and charge on that will not go ahead and charge any gst the next is fsasai fssi fees food and safety standard authority of india whatever they are going ahead and charging fssi they will come to your restaurant they will check the food testing fees which is there they will come to your uh, office they will come to your restaurant they will go ahead and give you fssi ka registration for that there will be application fees etc on that there will be no gst passport visa driving license birth certificate death certificate issuance service pay also there will be no gst merchant overtime fees whenever you want your goods to be cleared on a holiday or you want to clear it clear it after working hours from the custom port you have to go ahead and pay merchant overtime fees merchant overtime fees which is being charged by the government there is no GST, tolerating non-performance of contract against fine or liquidated damage, government went ahead and told you to make a building, you went ahead and made the building but you did not make it on time, government will go ahead and charge fines from you or liquidated damage because government is tolerating your act of non-performance of the contract, on that non-performance of contract ka service there will be no GST. If government is going ahead and assigning the right to use natural resources to individual farmers for cultivation of plant and rearing of all life form of animal except horses, whenever government is allocating the right to use natural resources to whom? To individual farmer, then in that scenario government is going ahead and telling if he is going to use it for cultivation of plant or rearing of life form of animal rearing of life form of animal means might be he's going to do physiculture or might be he's going to grow silkworm cocoons etc in that scenario there will be no gst but he should not go ahead and use it for what horses are we clear yes sir got it let's go ahead now the last line over here is i've just given this point that sir services by coal mine provident fund employee state insurance rbi epfo employee provident fund organization sebi insurance development regulatory authority of india to insurers are also exempt so sir i told you always sincere services s i n c e r e sincere services are exempted s for sebi ka services i for irda ka services n for national pension system ke under if insurance scheme is given right everyone insurance is done under the national pension scheme, national pension system done and nps is there in your in your where where have i given nps in the insurance ka chart done then c for coal mine provident fund then e for epfo employee provident fund organization r for rbi ka service and e for esi employee state insurance ka services are always exempted remember always these services to are exempted other than this p a i t post airport immovable property and transportation services i have told you leaving this if any other services are given other than post airport immovable property transportation service and the services which i told you if other than this any services are provided to a business entity or non-business entity non-business entity exempt but business entity has to pay gst under rcm however government went ahead and told if the business entity is that business entity whose last year turnover last year turnover is less than registration. registration limit then it is exempted but if the last year turnover is less than equal to registration limit then exempted but if last year turnover was more than equal to more than equal to me more than registration limit then current year may current year may you have to see whatever services are given is the consideration greater than 
5000 only than rcm otherwise it will always be exempted so other than post airport immobile property and transportation service and the services which i have told you over here if any service is given you have to remember any other service given to business entity which is that business entity which is known as big business entity whose last year ka aggregate turnover is greater than registration limit then in the current financial year if it has received government ka service it has to pay gst under rcm provided the turnover the consideration is greater than 5000 are we clear everyone yes sir we got it everyone listen to me very carefully now if you go down there is entry number 65b which goes ahead and talks about assigning the right to you collect royalty to excess royalty collection contractor on behalf of state government on mineral dispatch by mining lease holder here i will go ahead and tell you one example you can write this as 1 crore over here okay everyone you can write this as 1 crore for an example the state government state government is going ahead and giving mining lease to whom miner and miner will go ahead and give a lump sum amount of 1 crore rupees over here in that scenario always remember this miner will have to go ahead and pay gst under reverse charge mechanism on that 1 crore rupees whatever 18% gst is there he will have to pay gst under rcm now government went ahead and told in 1 crore you can do only 1 lakh ton ka mining he went ahead and did 2 lakh ton ka mining it means 1 lakh ton extra on 1 lakh ton government told 100 rupees per ton you will have to go ahead and pay it means he will have to go ahead and pay 1 crore rupees more to the government and that is the excess royalty which has to be paid for the excess mining how much is the excess mining everyone 1 lakh ton government had given him 1 lakh ton ka permission on 1 crore rupees government told i will give you the license on this license you have to pay me 1 crore rupees and you can mine how much 1 lakh tons you went ahead and did the mining of 2 lakh tons of minerals now in that scenario on 1 lakh rupees 1 crore rupees which was given as a fixed amount you anyways paid gst under rcm on the extra extra 1 lakh ton which you have done on that you have to pay 100 rupees supposedly per ton 1 crore rupees more to the government right but government is going ahead and telling i will appoint one person who is known as a excess royalty collection contractor who will collect this 1 crore rupees extra mining ke liye extra royalty from you so this guy is known as excess royalty collection contractor he is going to collect that 1 crore from you but on this 1 crore also you will have to go ahead and pay gst under rcm now listen to me very carefully for an example this excess royalty collection contractor who is going to collect the royalty what he has to go ahead and do is he has to go ahead and pay a fixed amount to the government per annum so government goes ahead and gives him the right to collect which is again a supply of service for which he will go ahead and pay fixed amount to the government for an example he had to go ahead and pay a fixed amount of 1 crore rupees on this 1 crore excess royalty collection contractor being a business entity has to pay gst under rcm how much 18 lakh but he will not pay this 18 lakh because 1 crore was collected and 1 crore only went to the government so on this 1 crore already the miner has gone ahead and paid how much 18 lakh gst and hence when miner has already paid this guy need not pay gst to the government are we clear till here everyone is the point clear to all so this 18 lakh rupees ka gst which is there because the miner has paid he will not have to pay to the government are we clear till here for an example now miner has paid only 18 lakh rupees but this guy had gone ahead and won the bid amount at 2 crore rupees 2 crore pe how much is the gst amount everyone 2 crore pe the gst amount is 36 lakh right everyone which this guy has to pay under reverse charge but then government went ahead and told the exemption will be limited only to 18 lakh which has been paid on the excess royalty by the miner and hence only 30 only 18 lakh will be exempted under entry number 65b and government will say you have to pay 18 lakh rupees more to the government excess royalty collection contractor will pay gst amount of 18 lakh rupees are we clear everyone same example i have written over here supposingly the miner has paid 36 lakh but excess royalty collection contractor has to pay 1 crore to the government means he has to pay only 18 lakh but the miner has already gone ahead and paid 36 lakh on the excess royalty might be the miner did 2 lakh extra mining on 2 lakh ton extra mining pay he has to pay 2 crore 18% means 36 lakh but the excess royalty collection contractor has taken the bid for 
1 crore on that GST is 18 lakh, so he will be exempted from the entire GST. However, supposingly the extra mining is only 1 lakh ton, 1 lakh ton into 18 percent is 18 lakh rupees, right everyone? But the bid amount for which the excess royalty collection contractor took the contract was 2 crore, on 2 crore the GST is 36 lakh, but the miner has paid only 18 lakh, then the exemption will be limited to 18 lakh, remaining 18 lakh will be paid by the miner under RCM. Are we clear everyone? Yes sir, always remember one thing, whatever, whatever is the excess mining on that whatever is the GST, if that is paid by the miner which is more than or equal to the GST amount payable by the excess royalty collection contractor then it will be exempted. But excess royalty collection contractor has to pay supposedly 50 lakh reverse charge and this guy has paid only 30 lakh then 20 lakh this excess royalty collection contractor has to pay GST under RCM. Are we clear everyone? Can we go ahead? The next one over here is if government co-services are given, these are the services which are given by the government. These are the services which are given by the government. Now if government co-services are given, then what is the exemption? If pure services or composite supply where value of goods is 25 percent in relation to 243G or W, then Baba, if those services are given to the government, then it is exempt. Earlier what was happening was for your number 22, this is then amendment. Remember always, if pure service or composite value, where composite supply where value of goods is 25 percent and it is given in relation to 243 G and W all activities of the government, then if it is given to the government also it was exempt. If it was given to governmental authority also it was exempt. If it was given to governmental entity, then also it was exempt. But now, but now for your number 22, the exam the exemption has been withdrawn. And, alright, there was some issue, we will continue again. So, if pure services or composite supply where value of goods is how much? 25% is given in relation to whom? 243G or W of the constitution to the government, it was exempted. To the governmental authority was also exempted. If it is given to governmental entity also it was exempted. But now, they have gone ahead and told whenever pure service or composite supply where value of goods is 25%, for your number 22 remember, if it is given, to the governmental authority, the exemption has been withdrawn. If it is given to governmental entity, also exemption is withdrawn. Only if it is given to government, the exemption will still continue. Then, sir, services given by fair trade shop to central government, state government, union territory under public distribution system. Basically, the ration wala shop, the ration wala person who is operating the ration shop, his commission which is there will be exempted. Then, services given by GST and goods and service tax network to the central government, state government, union territory for GST implementation. Baba, for the implementation of GST, GST and networks companies helping the government. So, it is providing service to the government which is exempted. Then, training program for which 75 percent or more of the expenditure is borne by the government. So, there is a training program. Government went ahead and told me to teach some people GST and government is going to pay 75 percent or more of the expenditure then the, my service will be exempted. But remember 75 percent or more. If it is less than 75 percent then GST will come. But if I am going ahead and giving training services where basically government is going ahead and bearing the entire expenditure or 75 percent at least then Baba, my training my training services where GST will not come. Then basically on that training program GST will not come. If there is an insurance scheme where the premium is paid by the government, always remember insurance scheme may they will confuse you by saying that 75 percent of the premium is paid by the government. No, 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 no. Then it is taxable because insurance scheme where entire premium is paid by the government only then it is exempted. Insurance scheme where the entire premium is paid by the government only then it is exempted. Government share of profit petroleum is also exempted from GST. Government gives you the license to explore mineral oil, sorry, government gives you the license to go ahead and explore crude petroleum, etc. You extracted crude petroleum, after that whatever is the profit petroleum, whatever share of the profit petroleum you give it to the government, that share of profit petroleum paid GST will not come. Basically, government had given you the license against which you are giving profit petroleum. That giving of license by the government for which you are giving profit petroleum is exempted from GST. Now, everyone listen to me very carefully. If government is going ahead and giving, central government, state government, union territory or local authority is going ahead and giving services to central government, state government, local authority or union territory, a government to government services are exempt. 
Now, sir, if governmental authority or governmental entity, what is the difference? Baba, governmental authority is entity which is set up by the government, which is going to do those functions which are entrusted to a to the uh, government. Basically, it is going to do those functions which are told under 243G or W. Entity is going to do any function which is told by the government. That's all is the difference between both of them. Now, if governmental authority is going ahead and giving services to the government by way of an activity under 243 GNW, that is always exempted. But governmental entity is going ahead and giving services to the government for which any services it is giving to the government for which government is giving grants, then also it is exempted. Are we clear till here, everyone? In this chapter, the most important part is the amendment which is there this time. Pure services or composite supply where value of goods is 25% given to the government is a only exam. Governmental authority go if you are giving or governmental entity go if you are giving, then it shall be taxable. Exemption has been withdrawn. Right, everyone? I will go ahead and stop my revision on the chapter of exemption may government related services over here. Congratulations, people. Done? All right, students, let's go ahead and now revise the chart of transportation services. Transportation services ka exemption, we are going to understand now. Everyone over here. We started learning GST with goods and service. Goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be interstate or intrastate. Inter or intra, GST will be levied. Once GST was levied, GST has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. In between, government goes ahead and gives exemption by notification. And today, we are going to read all the exemptions which are relating to transportation. Everyone, transportation related, government have gone ahead and given exemption for passenger transportation also. And government have given exemption with respect to goods transportation also. Everyone over here. Now, whenever it is transportation services which are given for passenger, transportation services with respect to passenger, passenger transportation can be done by air, road, rail or water. Goods transportation also can be done by road, rail, water or air. Now, let's go ahead and understand the first one which is relating to passenger transportation. Now, passenger transportation, a person can go ahead and do when the passenger might have some baggage or passenger might not have some baggage. Now, passenger transportation with or without accompanied belonging, whenever passenger transportation is done by air, you always have to remember that air transportation, air transportation means supposingly Indigo Airlines, SpiceJet, they are going ahead and doing transportation of passenger. Always remember one thing, if the flight is basically embarking from, if the Flight is going to or flight is coming from means air transportation is happening from that place which is basically Bagdogra, Arunachal, Tripura, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Assam, Nagaland and Sikkim. You have to remember if you are going to all these places or you are coming from these places, GST will not be charged on the transportation service which is provided to you. How do we remember it everyone? We have to remember that man sir batman's yes baba batman's always fly free you have to remember batman's means b for bagdogra a for arunachal pradesh n for p a t t for tripura m for meghalaya manipur mizoram a for assam n for nagaland s for sikkim batman's always fly free going to batman's coming from batman's will be exempted from gst then we have transportation of people Passenger by road. When passenger transportation is done by stage carriers, stage carriers means your buses which are there, which are going from one stop to another stop. Basically, those are stage carriages. If stage carriages get through transportation is happening, which is non AC, non AC is always exempted. Government says if you can afford AC, then you can afford GST also. But non AC is always exempted. Now, if transportation is happening through contract carriage, contract carriage means which is going from one point to another point under a contract basically. So, if I have gone ahead and booked a cab from my home to the airport, it is from my home to the airport, which is one point to another point and hence it is a contract carriage. Government is telling if a contract carriage is non-AC, it is always exempted. If it is AC, AC is always taxable. Radio taxis are those taxis which are connected through a central GPS system, in that scenario, government is selling radio, taxi, AC, non-AC, always 
टैक्सेबल टूरिज्म के लिए इफ यू टेकन ए कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कैरियर टैक्सेबल कंडक्ट टूर के लिए देन ऑल्सो इट इज टैक्सेबल चार्टर और हायर पे इफ यू कैन टेक ए कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कैरियर देन ऑल्सो इट इज टैक्सेबल देन गवर्नमेंट वेंट एड एंड टोल्ड मीटर्ड कैब ऑटो रिक्शा ई रिक्शा गवर्नमेंट टोल्ड क्रिप्स आर सार वी कैन गो एड एंड टेक जीएसटी फ्रॉम देम सो लेट लेट्स गो एड एंड एग्जेप्टेड एंड गवर्नमेंट टोल्ड मीटर्ड कैब ऑटो रिक्शा ई रिक्शा का केस में जीएसटी विल नॉट कम so always you have to remember stage carrier is non ac was exam contract carrier is non ac is exam and sir others like metered cab auto rickshaw e rickshaw is also exempted but you have to remember one thing for your number 22 the amendment over here is stage carrier is non ac was exempted contract carrier is non ac was exempted metered cab auto rickshaw e rickshaw was exempted but this exemption will not apply now if this services are provided through e commerce operator For an example, supposingly Ola is there. One auto has been booked by one person through Ola, and Ola will go ahead. Government is selling in this scenario. Might be the auto pay GST was exempted, but because these services are provided through e-commerce operator under section number nine five, it is now being notified that transportation of passenger through motor motor cab, radio taxi, maxi cab, omnibus. motorcycle or any other motor vehicle also the e-commerce operator will collect the gst and pay to the government hence stage carrier is non ac contract carrier is non ac metered cab auto rickshaw e rickshaw all these services if by chance are provided through e-commerce operator e-commerce operator will collect the gst and pay to the government it will no more be under exemption so you remember exemption is not applicable if services are supplied through e-commerce operator under section number 95 then we have railway ke through transportation if it is happening through metro monorail tramway then always government told exemption railway may indian railway ke through if transportation is happening and it is non ac then always exempted first class ac non ac doesn't matter first class and ac is always taxable then we have what the, the waterways in india in india one is the river route which is the inland waterways government says rivers use how much ever you want because rivers may there is no traffic you will avoid traffic also you will not create congestion in the road government is selling very good use waterways will not charge any gst gst will be exempted but if it is vessel that is sea route supposingly this is the sea and sea ka case mein coastal transportation is happening of passenger basically public transportation by sea then it is exempted tourism is always taxable and sir transportation outside india is always taxable what did i go ahead and tell you i went ahead and told you transportation of passenger if it is happening by air going to bagdogra coming from bagdogra sorry not going to batman coming from batman is always exempted road transportation stage carriers non ac exempt contract carriers non ac exempt sir metered cab auto rickshaw e rickshaw is exempted but this exemptions in all the three stage carriers contract carriers or metered cab maxi metered cab uh, auto rickshaw e rickshaw will not apply if the service are supplied through e commerce operator this is the amendment for your number 22 then sir then if it is rail transportation mono rail metro rail and tramway is always exempt if it is indian railway non ac is exempt ac or first class is always taxable waterways inland waterways inland waterways anything you do whatever it is exempt but c if you are using vessel transportation public transportation is exempt tourism going outside india public transportation outside india always remember transportation will be taxable now we have to come to goods ka transportation goods ka transportation if you go ahead and see by air always remember goods transportation by air domestic is always taxable so domestic is always taxable even if you go ahead and say relief material agricultural produce still taxable always remember air transportation domestic is always taxable then air transportation international going from outside india to india from outside india if you are coming into india if goods are so not you if goods are coming from outside india into india air transportation is always exempt from india if air transportation is happening of goods to outside india then it is exempted up to 30th of september 2022 then sir if water transportation of goods is happening inland waterways government is selling use the rivers as much as you want 
it will always be exempted but vessel transportation you always have to remember vessel transportation of goods so if one coast to another coast within india baba coastal transportation is always within india you have to remember coastal transportation is always within india because it is one coast in india to another coast always remember if coastal transportation is happening it is always taxable it is always taxable of goods if anyone is doing coastal transportation it is always taxable but it is exempted if it is random item sir what do you mean by random item relief material agricultural produce newspapers and magazines which are registered remember newspapers and magazines which are registered and then defense or military equipment organic manure milk salt food grains flour pulses and rice what did i tell you relief material random item relief material agricultural produce newspaper and magazine which are registered defense and military equipment organic manure milk salt food grains flour pulses and rice in the exam they will tell you newspaper and magazine not registered they will tell you then it is not exempted it is taxable in the exam they will tell you out of the flour biscuits are made and biscuits are transported baba that is taxable can i go ahead everyone so remember one thing coastal transportation that is within india if it is happening from one coast to another coast then it is taxable but exempted in case of random item plus remember railway material or railway equipment are also exempted if they are transported coastal transportation of railway material or railway equipment is done can i go ahead everyone railway material or railway equipment coastal transportation is also exempted then baba always remember vessel transportation international international from india if it is going outside india goods being transported by a vessel ship from india outside india it is exempt up to 30th september 2022 but if international transport that is goods are being transported from outside india into india if it's a foreign shipping company then it's always taxable remember okay foreign shipping company in the case may importer will pay the gst under rcm if it is indian shipping company i will go ahead and have to pay means indian shipping company will collect the gst under forward charge mechanism always remember one thing international transportation from india outside india is exempt from outside india into india if foreign shipping company is doing the transportation they will not go ahead and charge gst so you as an importer will have to pay gst under rcm but if indian shipping company is there they will charge you the gst under forward charge mechanism the next one over here is rail ka case mein if goods transportation is happening always remember it is always taxable but it will be exempted in case of random item plus railway equipment and railway material sir rail ka case mein taxable in case of random item what is random item everyone relief material agricultural produce newspaper and magazine which are registered defense defense and military equipment organ manure milk salt food grain pulses rice right everyone and anything else was there ha ah, done flour and railway equipment and material transported through rail will also be exempted now road transportation which is there road transportation can happen of courier also courier is being transported door to door services always taxable sir if any other person is there individual truck wala tempo operator cart bullock cart then it is exempted but road transportation done by a gta is always taxable always remember one thing if gta is going ahead and giving service gta is going ahead and giving services to fb scoop always remember sir unregistered person under gst i am talking about unregistered person under gst factory which is registered under factories act body corporate which is incorporated under their act society which is registered cooperative society which is incorporated or registered under a law or a partnership form registered or unregistered including an aop plus llp then always remember in this scenario g it is always taxable under reverse charge or forward charge correct everyone gta is re opting for reverse 5% then reverse charge gta is opting for 12% then forward charge sir here also it is taxable 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 and taxable if unregistered person is an unregistered person who is ctp then it is exempted if it is unregistered person who is other unregistered person then also it is exempted now you have to remember if gta is providing to a registered person under gst if that registered person is a tds deductor who is a sir 
डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट लोकल अथॉरिटी और गवर्नमेंटल एजेंसी देन सर इट विल बी एक्सेप्टेड बट टीडीएस डिडक्टर इफ इज नोटिफाइड कैटेगरी ऑफ टीडीएस डिडक्टर देन इट विल ऑलवेज बी टैक्सेबल then if gt is providing to a registered person who is other registered person then also it will be taxable so always remember gta services are always taxable taxable if provided to an unregistered person who is fb scope plus registered person but registered person who is a department of central government state government local authority exemption will apply exemption will also apply if it's an unregistered person or unregistered c unregistered person or unregistered ctp then the exemption will apply also the exemption to the gta will apply if it is random item relief material agricultural produce newspapers and magazine defense and military equipment organic manure milk salt food grains pulses flour and rice you will have to talk with me only then you will remember next sir now here relief mat uh, railway material and railway equipment is not there then gta ka case mein it will be exempted if gta has gone ahead and charged for a single carriage 1500 so full truck ke liye if gta has gone ahead and charged 1500 or might be if one truck mein two three people ko i am sending the goods and per person they have charged up to 750 then also it will be exempted right everyone now they have gone ahead and told sir here entry number 61 is also there which goes ahead and says so goods transportation i am done everyone goods transportation i went ahead and told you by air always remember domestic taxable international exempted theek hai then water transportation inland waterways exempted then internet see if you are using in case of sea coastal transportation is taxable random item ra railway equipment and material exempted sir if it is sea transportation which is international transportation from outside india into india taxable under reverse charge indian shipping company forward charge from india outside india is always exempted then everyone then if it is rail transportation taxable rail transportation of goods which are random item plus railway material and equipment exempted road transportation sir individual truck wala cart bullock cart exempted gta i have told you always taxable but gta ka case mein you have to remember if the unregistered person is fb scoop plus registered person then it is always taxable registered person if he is tds deductor baba tds director department of central government state government local authority or governmental agency exempted if it is sir unregistered person or unregistered ctp then also exempted random item then also exempted sir if they are going ahead and charging for a single carriers 1500 then exempted single consignee 750 then also exempted right everyone got it till here courier is always taxable courier is always taxable then entry number 61 a comes over here which says this truck operators who are there basically goods carriages they are given national permit or permit to operate in contiguous state contiguous state means when one state around states are there which are sharing the common border with this state this state when it is issuing the permit it will give the permit for contiguous states also that is known as permit to operate in contiguous state so it is telling when granting of national permit to goods carriers to operate throughout india or contiguous state may government is granting the permit and it will be exempted always remember the exemption is given with respect to goods carriers if the transportation if supposingly one passenger transportation vehicle is given national permit that will always be taxable baba goods carriers is exempt can we go ahead everyone now on the left hand side if you see airlines airlines are told by the central government that you transport people to the regional connectivity airport if you go to the regional connectivity airport government told will give you funding so basically all these airlines are going to regional connectivity airport they are giving services to the government by going to those areas they told sir it is not viable to go to this, those areas government told you go to those areas i will give you funding and when government gives the funding there will be no gst but it is only for the first 3 years sir it says transportation services are given to the government under regional connectivity scheme and government is going ahead and giving what viability gap funding it is exempt for the first 3 years then sir services associated with transit cargo relating to nepal and bhutan so supposingly cargo has come to india in a ship cargo has come to india and this will be sent by one person 
to Nepal and Bhutan. This person is giving transit cargo related service. Now, the Nepalese person who is there, he will not be able to take ITC of the GST charge. Hence, government went ahead and told there will be no GST. Now, if you come down, I have gone ahead and written entry number 22. Entry number 22 goes ahead and says, giving on hire to a state transport undertaking. So, if one person is going ahead and giving one motor vehicle to state transport undertaking where passenger can be transported greater than 12, then giving on motor vehicle to a state transport undertaking will be exempted from GST. If I go ahead and give to local authority an electric vehicle to carry passenger greater than 12, then that will also be exempted. If I am going ahead and giving on hire or I am renting out motor vehicle for transportation of goods to a GTA, if you are giving to a GTA, a motor vehicle, basically a truck, etc., then also it will be so, if you are giving a motor vehicle to a GTA, then also exempted. Electric vehicle for passenger greater than 12 to a local authority, then also exempted. Sir, motor vehicle for passenger greater than 12 to a state transport undertaking, then also it is exempted. Right, everyone? Baba, when you are going ahead and reading entry number 22 in your book, there is one more point over there which is told that, sir, if you are going ahead and giving motor vehicle for transportation of student, faculty and staff to one person, who is going ahead and giving transportation of student, faculty and staff ka services to a school up to 12th. Then Baba, because his services are exempted, when you are going ahead and giving him motor vehicle for carrying the student, faculty and staff, your service will also be <coughs> exempted. Are we clear everyone? Yes, sir. Let's go ahead. Everyone over here now. Entry number 19C. What is entry number 19C telling? Satellite launch services which are given by whom? Antrix Corporation, ISRO or New Space India Limited, NSIL is also exempted from GST. Right everyone, I, am go I have gone ahead and explained you all the transportation related service. One point which I want to tell you again, amendment is there, stage carriers non-AC, contract carriers non-AC, metered cap, auto rickshaw, e rickshaw were exempted from GST, but now all these people, if they are going ahead and supplying their services through e-commerce, e-commerce has been made liable under section number 95, e-commerce will collect the GST and pay it to the government. I will go ahead and close my revision on the transportation services over here everyone. Bye guys, take care. Alright people, let's go ahead and start with our revision for the exemption ka chart which is admission services. Sir, services by way of admission, basically whenever somebody is selling entry ticket, you will have to go ahead and see if it is entry ticket for museum, national park, wildlife sanctuary, tiger reserve, zoo, then government have gone ahead and told in the chapter of exemption that sir, there will be no GST, no value limit, no GST shall be applicable. Sir, if it is a protected monument basically which is declared under the archaeological site and remains act example Taj Mahal then also entry ticket there will be no GST complete amount shall be exempted however if entry ticket is relating to circus dance theatrical program drama award function concert pageant musical performance uh, any sporting event other than recognized sporting event or a recognized sporting event or a planetarium kind entry ticket then always remember one thing it will be exempt only if consideration is up to rupees 500 up to 500 is exempt however if the amount exceeds 500 rupees then the entire amount shall be taxable always remember one thing if entry tickets were sold for fifa under 17 world cup which was held in 2017 then also there was no gst sir fifa under 17 women world cup 2020 which is not yet done in India because of COVID, whenever rescheduled, the entry tickets pay, there will be no GST. Asian Football Confederation, Confederation basically, a Women Asia Cup 2022 ka tickets, when they are sold, on that also GST will not come. Then they went ahead and told, sir, FIFA and AFC and its subsidiaries which are there, if anyone is providing them service or they are going ahead and providing any service, then also there will be no GST. However, this services has to be notified by the director of sports as services which are received in relation to FIFA or AFC. Right, everyone? Then, sir, one note I have gone ahead and given. Any water park, amusement park, fully taxable. Flim city, snow city, theme park, always 
taxable cinema hall fully taxable then there is one entry saying services by an artist by way of performance in folk or classical art form government says folk and classical art form we have to go ahead and preserve and folk or classical art form if anyone is going ahead and doing performance whether it is folk folk or classical art form of music dance theater then always it will be exempt if the consideration charged by this artist is up to 1.5 lakh however if the performance in bollywood song it will always be taxable if these people who are doing folk and classical art form they are serving as brand ambassador for someone then brand ambassador ka services are always fully taxable right everyone a short and sweet chapter exemption ka admission related services i will go ahead and close over here sir how important this is this is not important from exam point of view but you can have one mark a small question on what two mark a small mcq i will go ahead and close my discussion on admission related services over here congratulations people all right people let's go ahead and now revise the chart of agriculture everyone over here let's first go ahead and take a quick linking people in the chart of agriculture we will be going ahead and covering all the entries which are relating to agriculture sir agriculture ka exemption yes baba whenever goods and services are being supplied by a person supply can be interstate or interstate inter or intra sir gst will be levied once gst is levied it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person but it is subject to a exemption and government has gone ahead and given lot of exemption for agriculture sir why agriculture ke liye exemption is given because first of all agriculture is the backbone of the country secondly on agricultural item most of the item which are being sold there is no gst so if agriculture related services pay we are learning agriculture related services which are exempted if agriculture related services pay gst is being charged by the government then baba anyways output tax is not there for the agriculturist he will not get the itc if it doesn't get the itc it will become part of his cost if it becomes part of his cost agricultural produce will become expensive and hence government have made all its effort efforts to go ahead and make sure that whatever an agriculturist takes the services those are mostly exempted everyone over here now so an agriculturist who is there he will go ahead and take lot of services to do agriculture till the stage of going ahead and selling it off so first agriculturist will go ahead and take land he will take one agricultural ka land he will go ahead and take tractor laborers all these are exempted he will go ahead and do processes at the agricultural farm he will go ahead and store in the warehouse that is also exempted sir then agricultural produce marketing committee will buy and sell his product on that the commission will be exempted from gst then loading and unloading will happen transportation will happen government has gone ahead and given end to end support to agriculture let's go ahead and start with entry number 54 which goes ahead and says if there are services which are given in relation to what cultivation of plant so if anyone is going ahead and cultivating plants and there are services which he has gone ahead and taken those services pay gst will not come they are telling cultivation of plant and rearing of all life form of animal basically what happens rearing of all life form of animal means you are growing animal cultivation of plant is done plants are being grown animals are also grown but we don't go ahead and say cultivation of animal we go ahead and give it a better name saying rearing of life form of animal now why does a person go ahead and do cultivation of plant and rearing of life form of animal it can be for food plants are grown for food animals are also grown for food sir fiber what do you mean by fiber everyone for an example ship ka this textile fiber is there this fiber which is there wool it's a fiber then sir fuel is there or it can be raw material or any other similar product or agricultural produce so anyone who is going ahead and taking so anyone who is giving services in relation to cultivation of plant or rearing of life form of animal so if i am a person i am doing cultivation of plant or rearing of life form of animal and somebody is going ahead and giving me services which are by way of what agricultural operation directly or indirectly in relation to what directly sorry directly in relation to production of agricultural produce so if somebody has gone ahead and given me services which are in directly in relation to production of agricultural produce 
including cultivation, harvesting, threshing, plant protection and testing, then that services will be exempted. So, if somebody has gone ahead and helped me in doing testing of the soil, that services, there will be no GST. Somebody has gone ahead and helped me with cultivation of plant, there will be no GST. Somebody has come and done fumigation, which is plant protection, then also there will be no GST because he is helping me in cultivation. Now, to do cultivation, you will go ahead and need laborers. So, if you go ahead and take laborers, number one, agricultural operation related services, no GST. Secondly, if you go ahead and hire laborers, then also the labor contractor will not charge you any GST. Sir, to do the agriculture, I went ahead and took the land. So, if anybody is going ahead and giving you land or giving you agricultural machine, renting of agro machine or vacant land with or without incidental structure also, there will be no GST. First of all, somebody went ahead and gave you this land with or without incidental structure, no GST. You bought this tractor, tractor pay no GST. Sir, you went ahead and not bought, you took it on rent, etc. Then there is no GST. Then you went ahead and told some laborers I want, somebody supplied you farm laborer, he will not charge you GST. Then you did cultivation of plant. Now, cultivation of plant related, if anybody gives you services, there will be no GST. Now, everyone listen to me very carefully. Once the agriculture is done, then there will be processes which are done at agriculture farm like husking, dehusking, trending, pruning, cutting, drying, cleaning, fumigating, curing, sorting, grading, A graded item, B graded item, C graded item, all these services which you are going ahead and taking, cooling, bulk packing, etc. All these services which you go ahead and take, because of which the essential characteristic of the agricultural produce doesn't change, but it is just to make it marketable in the primary market so that an agriculturist can go ahead and take it in the primary market. He is getting sorting done. He is getting grading done so that he can take it to the primary market. Those services if provided by someone, there will be no GST. Always remember the services which you go ahead and take, services which you go ahead and take, which are going ahead and making agricultural produce, remain agricultural produce, there will be no GST. But if you go ahead and take some services because of which agricultural produce becomes non-agricultural produce, then that services where GST will come. Are we clear everyone? Now, if I go ahead and tell you agricultural produce, apple is an agricultural produce. If you go ahead and take any services with respect to cooling, bulk packing of apples, etc., there will be no GST. But if you go ahead and take services which is basically converting apple into api, apple should remain apple, that service where GST will not come. Because agricultural produce remains agricultural produce. But if apple becomes api, gone Baba GST will come. Tomato remains tomato. Then Baba, that services which a person has given you, cooling, bulk packing, etc., GST will not come. But if a person has gone ahead and converted apple into api. api or tomato into ketchup, chips, potato into chips, all these processes which are there, these services are taxable. Always remember. If agricultural produce remains agricultural produce, then that process for GST will not come. But if a process results in agricultural produce becoming non-agricultural, then GST will come. For an example, apple remains apple, no GST. Apple becomes api juice, then it is a non-agricultural produce. The process will be taxable. Are we clear, everyone? Potato is an agricultural produce. Chips are not agricultural produce. Tomato is agricultural produce. Ketchup is not agricultural produce. Coffee beans are Agricultural produce, processed coffee beans or powder is not agricultural produce. Paddy is what? Agricultural produce. Converting into rice is not agricultural produce. There was one circular also. Milling of paddy into rice is not a intermediate process because intermediate process should result in agricultural produce remaining agricultural produce. Whenever milling of paddy is done into rice, that is always taxable because it is not a intermediate process. Tea leaves are agricultural produce. Tea, which is that small, small powder or ball of tea, that is always that process of making tea to uh, tea leaves to tea is not an agricultural process. Then sugar cane is agricultural produce. Jaggery is not an agricultural produce. Whole pulses are not, are agricultural produce. Dehas pulses, processed spices, processed dry fruit, biscuits are not agricultural produce. Always remember everyone, Processes which are at agricultural farm is, is an agricultural operation and GST will not come. 
it's an agricultural process however it should remain agricultural produce should remain agricultural produce it should not be that agricultural produce became non agricultural produce because of the process then it will be taxable now once you go ahead and do supposingly you grew the crop now you have gone ahead and done the intermediate process will you go ahead and keep the goods just like that no you will go ahead and store it in a warehouse now people who are going ahead and providing warehousing services warehousing of agricultural produce or rice rice is not an agricultural produce but if somebody is giving agricultural produce ka storage facility or rice ke liye storage facility he will not go ahead and charge any gst warehousing of minor forest produce like tamarind curry leaf tendu patta bamboo honey also people will not go ahead and charge any gst minor forest produce pay storage services pay gst will not come but major forest produce like sandalwood gst will come then warehousing of cereal pulses fruits nuts vegetable spices copra sugarcane jaggery is not an agricultural produce but they are telling here that it warehousing will be not taxable indigo indigo basically baba indigo is used in making jeans pant etc that indigo is the color color of the jeans which you see you know the indigo color dark uh, bluish color that is basically made by that indigo indigo is a color which is used okay everyone nowadays jeans pant which are made are made by synthetic color which is there but in japan and all people still go ahead and make jeans pant with the help of that indigo which is taken out from the plant and per jeans pant cost you around 2 lakh rupees 2 and a half lakh rupees which is there okay everyone 2000 dollars 3000 dollars etc can we go ahead everyone but that is the real indigo which is being used can we go ahead everyone now sir unmanufactured tobacco if somebody is going ahead and storing what unmanufactured tobacco beetle leaf coffee tea etc that person also will not go ahead and charge any gst always remember warehousing of agricultural produce or rice or minor forest produce or cereal pulses spices copra sugarcane jaggery indigo unmanufactured tobacco also there will be no gst now if somebody came and did fumigation in the warehouse where agricultural produce is being stored that person who is doing the fumigation also will not go ahead and charge any gst now agricultural produce is lying in the warehouse you will not let it rot in the warehouse you will have to go ahead and sell it for selling will come the agricultural produce marketing committee or board they will go ahead and sell your agricultural produce and charge you some commission on their commission also they will not go ahead and charge any gst services by agricultural produce marketing board or commission agent under the agricultural produce marketing committee agent who are there their services of selling or buying of agricultural produce also there will be no gst once they have gone ahead and sold your agricultural produce it will be loaded in a truck and it will be sent always remember loading unloading packing storage of agricultural produce or rice is also exempted now you will go ahead and load it in a truck and it will be transported transportation of agricultural produce or rice by goods transport agency rail or vessel is also exempted from gst right everyone always remember one thing if agricultural extension services are given basically providing training or new knowledge to agriculturists about agriculture how to do agricultural practices then that services which are provided of giving training to the agriculturists also gst will not come because it is known as agricultural extension services now services by way of artificial insemination of livestock except horses will also be taxable no it will be exempted livestock ka artificial insemination basically going ahead and breeding livestock so supposingly one cow is there going ahead and breeding the cow to go ahead and get uh, more babies they are going ahead and telling artificial insemination is exempted of livestock only horses is always taxable then sir sir entry number 57 services by way of pre cooling ripening waxing retail packing labeling of fruits and vegetable which basically do not alter the essential character fruits and vegetable remains fruits and vegetable apple ka waxing is done apple remains apple only then sir it is always exempted can i go ahead everyone services by nccd which is under the ministry of agriculture national cold chain development authority which is there where they are going ahead and doing what sir they are going ahead and giving about the cold chain which is basically how to take your apples from kashmir to kanyakumari if they are going ahead and giving all this knowledge is they will not go ahead and charge any gst now entry number 10 is a services by way of electricity distribution utility by way of 
construction, erection, commissioning, installation of infrastructure for extending electricity distribution network up to the tubewell of the farmer or agriculture for agricultural use. Agriculture went and told supposingly your best com that sir, can you go ahead and construct one pillar and provide me electricity till my tubewell. Now, if they go ahead and provide electricity, they will go ahead and charge some amount for construction of the pole, wire, etc. Now, for that amount, whatever they are going ahead and charging on that, there will be no GST because they are going ahead and distributing the electricity distribution network up to the tubewell of the farmer for farmer ka agricultural use. Then, sir, there I have gone ahead and given some cultivation on rearing of all life form of animal kind. Example, sir, breeding of fish is rearing of life form of animal. They are growing fish for food. Sir, rearing of silkworm, baba silkworm cocoons when they are grown, they are grown for what? Silk. Then, sir, we have horticulture, horticulture, etc. That is also cultivation of plant and rearing of life form of animal only. Can I go ahead, everyone? Now, if you go ahead and see over here, on the left hand side, we have small entry, which is entry number 55. If you go ahead and carry out any intermediate process, whatever intermediate processes are there, for an example, if any intermediate processes are being undertaken at an agricultural farm, there is no GST. I went ahead and told some job worker to come and do it for me. That job worker also will not go ahead and charge any GST. Intermediate process as job work in relation to cultivation of plant and rearing of all life form of animal except horses will also be exempted always remember one thing everyone always remember one thing if if it is horses horses are always commercial in nature and it will always be taxable i hope everyone got it yes sir we are all clear here i will go ahead and close my sweet and short chart relating to agriculture always remember one thing agriculture is pay there is no agricultural goods pay there is no gst and hence government provides all the support to an agriculturist so that he can go ahead and get the cost down because he will not get the itc government says whenever services are provided to an agriculturist for cultivation of plant and rearing of life form of animal most of the services government have gone ahead and exempted here i will go ahead and close my chart on agriculture related services right everyone yes sir we all got it congratulations people bye guys all right people let's go ahead and now do the chapter of healthcare everyone over here healthcare services we started learning gst with goods and service goods and service has to be supplied supply can be interstate supply or intrastate intrastate I GST, intrastate, C GST, once GST is levied, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. Listen, on all goods and services other than alcoholic liquor for human consumption and HP man, GST is levied. But GST need not be collected if it is falling in an exemption and in public interest, government have given exemption with respect to healthcare let's go ahead and understand all the circulars and all the entries relating to healthcare now healthcare services baba what do you mean by healthcare first of all right everyone when you read the meaning of healthcare healthcare means sir any services by way of diagnosis treatment or care first diagnosis has to be done then treatment will be done then care will be taken for an example one person was detected that he has some kidney stone over there diagnosis done then baba treatment was done kidney stone was removed then he was not thrown on the road he was taken care by putting in a room where the nurse will come and do the checking so baba that is care so all dtc is covered diagnose treatment and care for any pregnancy abnormality illness injury or deformity so diagnose treatment and care for pregnancy abnormality injury illness and deformity in ayushan ayushan means only in recognized system of medicine in recognized system of medicine which is basically ayushan so diagnose treatment and care has to be done with respect to pregnancy abnormality illness injury and deformity and it has to be done in recognized system of medicine which is ayushan a for ayurveda y for yoga u for unani s for siddha h for homeopathy a for allopathy and n for naturopathy so always when it is diagnosed treatment and care 
in PAIID, sir, for PAIID and in recognized system of medicine, which is Ayushan, only then it is healthcare. Sir, if it is acupuncture, Chinese medicine, Reiki treatment, all these are unrecognized and if these treatments are done, then it is not healthcare and GST will come. For an example, you went to one Baba, Baba went ahead and told, Baba, you know that, Baba big, Baba, correct, Baba went ahead and told that, sir, you have some problem, he told, then he went ahead and gave you jhada with the broom, correct, all those are not recognized system and if it is not recognized, it is always taxable. Do you think Baba will go ahead and pay GST? Sir, his turnover has to cross 20 lakh. Can I go ahead, everyone? Yes, sir. Got it. Always remember one thing. Healthcare service also includes transportation services by way of transportation of patient to and fro clinical establishment. Always remember one thing. One person is transported to the hospital, back to home. Then it is transportation of patient to and fro hospital is exempted. If, sir, one person is transported to the hospital, that is exempt, that is healthcare. But transportation of patient from Supposing the patient died and he is transported to the graveyard, then, then it is neither supply of goods nor supply of service, schedule three item. Right, everyone? Sir, healthcare services does not include hair transplant or cosmetic surgery. Always remember, cosmetic plastic surgery is not included in healthcare. If it is done for beautification, then it is not healthcare, it is taxable. But if it is done to restore or restructure a defect or injury, then it is healthcare which shall be exempted. Are we clear, everyone? Now, healthcare services means what? Diagnose, treatment, and care for pregnancy, abnormality, injury, illness, and deformity. deformity and it is, should be in the recognized system of medicine, Ayushan. And, sir, also healthcare means transportation of patient to or pro clinical establishment healthcare also includes beauty treatment no sir hair transplant and cosmetic or plastic surgery if it is done to restore or restructure then it is healthcare now imagine one thing healthcare services which are done diagnose treatment and care in pregnancy abnormality illness for one example one person was not keeping well he came to me i am a chartered accountant he told i am not keeping well i took 100 rupees told him take dolo Baba, in that case, is my healthcare service exempted? No, Baba, no. Healthcare service is exempted only if healthcare services are given by clinical establishment and authorized medical practitioner or a paramedics. Healthcare services by given by a person, MBBS fail. Baba, it is not exempted. Healthcare services should be given by clinical establishment or authorized medical practitioner or paramedics. Always remember, clinical establishment means hospital, nursing home or an establishment to carry out diagnosis or investigation. Healthcare services, if they are given by authorized medical practitioner, then also it is exempt. Authorized medical practitioner means individual doctors who are registered with the council. Paramedics are those trained healthcare professionals, basically who are not doctors, but they are also, if they are giving healthcare service, then also it is exempted. For an example, nursing staff, physiotherapists, technicians, etc now if sir services are by, given by way of healthcare service then also it is exam if services are given by way of transportation of patient in ambulance see all these people who are there all these clinical establishment medical practitioner all these people if they are doing transportation then also it is exam for an example because that is included in healthcare now i went ahead and told covid times may i will run an ambulance that is also exempted government went ahead and told over here See, one is healthcare services given by A, which is clinical establishment, authorized medical practitioner and paramedics. Here to healthcare service already includes transportation of patient. Now, if anyone is going ahead and giving services by way of B point, which is here over here, the transportation of patient in ambulance other than A, A means other than clinical establishment or authorized medical practitioner or paramedics. If anyone is going ahead and doing what? Transportation of Patient in ambulance, I started running an ambulance, then also my services will be exempted. Now, sir, government is telling if person kill a doctor's car services are exempted, services by veterinary clinic who is going ahead and doing health care of animal or birds is also exempted. Then government went ahead and told services by operator of 
biomedical waste treatment facility biomedical waste treatment facility if they are going ahead and treating the waste of clinical establishment only then it is exempted if biomedical waste treatment facility is doing the treatment of waste of any other person it shall be taxable only for clinical establishment exemption has been given then sir services by code blood bank code blood bank basically go ahead and do the collection of umbilical cord and preservation of umbilical cord now when they are going ahead and doing preservation of stem cell or any ancillary services like application fees collection fees they are taking then that services will be exempted code blood banks are going ahead and preserving what stem cell with respect to umbilical cord collection of umbilical cord sir application fees preservation fees whatever is there will be exempted now there are some service there are some circular with respect to healthcare number one room rent which is charged to inpatient baba room rent which is charged is care and hence it will also be exempted sir doctors and consultants are hired by the hospital and hospital pays them in that scenario also their services to the hospital is exempted from gst sir retention money one person was admitted in the hospital hospital went ahead and charged 10000 rupees 8000 was towards his treatment 2000 they went ahead and charged because nurse came did the checkup bp checkup all those checkups were done by the nurse 2000 rupees was charged by the hospital that 2000 retention money which is there is also for health care and it shall be exempted one person was admitted in the hospital person was admitted in the hospital did you go to the hospital to eat food and get admit get admitted and eat food no baba principal supply was health care along with the health care you were given food and juices baba because health care is exempt food also will be exempted however when a person is admitted all the relatives come all those people also come meet you 2 minutes 20 minutes they will eat in the canteen baba that time it is always taxable right remember always if food is given to inpatient it's a composite supply bundled with health care it is exempted but food given to outpatient attendant visitor is always paid gst is table sir what if doctors went to the canteen and ate yes baba doctors are not taking any health care service doctors going to the canteen and eating is always taxable now ambulance services are provided by private health sir private service provider under national health mission if you are going ahead and providing ambulance services under the national health mission then baba your services are also exempted under entry number 3 or 3a which says entry number 3 and 3a says pure services or composite supply where value of goods is 25% if you are giving it to the government then your services are exempted in that because you are providing in relation to 243 gnw pure service or composite supply where value of goods is 25% your services are exempted and under entry number 3 and entry number 3a so sir when you are going ahead and providing ambulance services to the government it is exempted under entry number 3 and 3a because it is it is in relation to those services which are to be provided by the government under entry number 2 article number 243g and 243w of the constitution then sir one clinical establishment hospital may you will see ads are running they will give their auditorium on rent shop on rent all those are taxable services people healthcare service might be you can go ahead and say b graded topic in your exemption ka chapter can there there can be a 3 to 4 mark a small question always remember one thing healthcare means dtc in p a i i d in case of for ayushan plus it includes ambulance also and always remember given by clinical establishment authorized medical practitioner or paramedic shall be exempted right everyone i'll go ahead and close my quick revision on the chapter of healthcare over here congratulations people all right students let's go ahead and now do the chapter of exemption in exemption we are going to revise legal services basically services given by arbitral tribunal advocate and senior advocate sir can you give us a quick linking of the chapter yes baba we started learning gst with goods and service goods and service has to be supplied supply can be either interstate or intrastate inter or intra gst will be levied then gst has to be collected and paid by a tax or person but in between comes exemption and government has gone ahead and given exemption to whom arbitral tribunal 
सर फॉर्म ऑफ एडवोकेट और इंडिविजुअल एज एडवोकेट और सर्विसेज गिवन बाय सीनियर एडवोकेट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू ऑलवेज हैव टू रिमेंबर लीगल सर्विसेज व्हिच आर गिवन बाय एडवोकेट सीनियर एडवोकेट एक्सेट्रा इज एग्जाम एंड व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय लीगल सर्विसेज लीगल सर्विसेज मींस सर एनी सर्विस प्रोवाइडेड बाय इन रिलेशन टू इन रिलेशन टू एडवाइस कंसल्टेंसी असिस्टेंस इन एनी ब्रांच ऑफ लॉ इंक्लूडिंग representational service before court tribunal or authority now a chartered accountant also gives advice in law but in gst chartered accountant also gives advice but he is not a advocate advocate ka services are told that it is exempted plus also advocate ka service pay reverse charge mechanism is also there so we will be learning about advocate services arbitral tribunal services mixed with exemption and reverse charge are we clear everyone basically exemption as well as reverse charge will be reading it to, together now if there is an arbitral tribunal and he is giving services to a person other than business entity first of all you should know a business entity means a entity which is doing business in the taxable territory if any other person who is not doing business is a person other than business entity so arbitral tribunal service giving services to a person for non business purpose is always exempted giving services to a person who is who is a business entity whose last year you have to say last year ka turnover is less than equal to registration limit last year he was not liable for registration this year it will be exempted if he takes arbitral tribunal ka service never see current year ka turnover if arbitral tribunal gives services to a business entity whose last year ka turnover is greater than registration limit then this year rcm will come always remember you have to see preceding financial year ka turnover and then decide whether rcm will come or not then arbitral tribunal giving to central government state government union territory local authority governmental authority or governmental entity then also it is exempt governmental authority is an authority which is set up by the government to perform those functions which are told under 243 g and w sir to a governmental entity is made to do any function which is entitled by which is given to them by the government but authority does only 243 g and w wala functions can i go ahead everyone then form of advocate or individual as advocate giving to their brother services advocate to another advocate form of advocate to another form of advocate always remember all these are exam but advocate or form of advocate basically a junior advocate going ahead and giving services or a form of advocate giving services to a person other than business entity might be for family dispute might be for divorce cases etc then it shall always be exam but giving to business entity whose last year turnover is less than equal to less than equal to registration limit means last year you were not liable for registration and hence it will be current year may exempted but if a business entity ka last year turnover is greater than registration limit then rcm will come sir advocate or form as advocate given to government central government state government unit entity local authority governmental authority and governmental entity shall always be exempted then we have senior advocate senior advocate going ahead and giving services to person other than business entity is exam given to business entity whose aggregate turnover in the last year is less than equal to registration limit then exam given to other than business entity that is uh, sorry given to other business entities whose basically turnover in the last year was greater than registration limit rcm and sir giving to central government state government unit entity local authority governmental authority or governmental entity then also it shall be exam always remember one thing first of all arbitral tribunal or advocate or form of advocate or senior advocate giving to a business entity whose last year ka aggregate turnover preceding financial year ka aggregate turnover is greater than registration limit only then rcm otherwise it is always exempted now one thing i want to go ahead and tell you senior advocate if senior advocate is going ahead supposingly there is a senior advocate and senior advocate gives services to advocate and advocate gives it to a business entity can it happen everyone yes and there is a senior advocate giving to an advocate and advocate giving to a business entity always see this business entity ka status because they are deemed as the recipient of legal service might be senior advocate se services are taken by an advocate and ultimately provided to this guy only senior advocate ka services are taken by an advocate ultimately provided to this guy only always remember the litigant petitioner is deemed as the recipient and if he is a business entity whose aggregate turnover in the last year is greater than registration limit then sir on this services both the services pay rcm will come who will pay the rcm the business entity will pay but 
if sir business entity is that business entity whose aggregate turnover in the preceding financial year is less than equal to registration limit then this will also be exempted and this will also be exempted i hope you guys got it ultimate litigant petitioner is the business entity if business entity got turnover was last year may greater than registration limit then both the reverse charge has to be paid by the business entity otherwise both the reverse charge will be not there both the services will be exempted i hope everyone is clear we will go ahead legal services for your exam can be one mark small question which is there in your big 14 mark question one mark or small two mark question can come right everyone i will go ahead and close my discussion on legal services over here congratulations people all right students let's go ahead and now revise the chart of education education being very important for the economy anyways government have gone ahead and given lot of exemption for the education sector right everyone now education sector may education and skill may many exemptions have been given now first of all you have to understand who is an educational institution an educational institution means an institution providing services by way of preschool up to 12 okay everyone educational institution also includes whenever education is provided as a part of a curriculum which is recognized by the law basically degree etc is provided right everyone an educational institution also includes iim over here then sir education as a part of approved vocational education course if someone is providing that is also an educational institution so three types of educational institution i told you number 1 pre school up to 12 then it is college and then it's it is vocational educational course who are going ahead and providing right everyone now if services are provided to educational institution that is also exempted in some cases services provided by educational institution is also exempted now you have to remember services are provided by educational institution to its student faculty and staff any all the three of them all the three of them whenever they are providing services to whom student faculty and staff it is exempted now if they are going ahead and providing services to those students who are not student but might be the student by way of what conduct of entrance examination against entrance fees that is also exempted now whenever services are provided to an educational institution you have to remember always services provided to pre school up to 12 if it is transportation catering security cleaning house housekeeping services admission or conduct of examination related service that is also exempt online educational journal and periodicals are not exempted if it is provided to pre school up to 12 then if it is a college if it is a college basically after 12th wala wherein basically a recognized degree is being provided they are going ahead and telling transportation service not exempt catering service not exempt security cleaning housekeeping not exempt only admission or conduct of examination related service online educational journal or periodical ka services are exempted now if transport is if there is an educational institution which is going ahead and providing what approved vocational educational course then only admission or conduct of examination related services exempted be very careful over here everyone pre school up to 12th ke liye transportation catering security cleaning housekeeping services including admission or conduct of examination is exam for college etc admission or conduct of examination related services or online educational journal is exempted and for a educational institution providing what approved vocational education course what is exempted admission or conduct of examination examination related services now over here if you go ahead and see this security services please be very careful in the exam the security services are exempted when they are provided inside the campus only they will go ahead and tell you security services provided to an educational institution but not within the campus if it is not within the campus it is not exempted are we clear everyone all the five services ka full form i have gone ahead and written on the right hand side now if you go ahead and see over here number there is one more entry which goes ahead and says supposingly you go ahead and provide motor vehicle to a person and he is providing transportation of student faculty and staff to an educational institution up to 12 his services are exempt so you going ahead and giving your motor vehicle to a person who is doing transportation of student faculty and staff he is basically giving 
द मोटर व्हीकल टू होम एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन अप टू ट्वेल्व बिकॉज हिज सर्विस एग्जाम यू गिविंग मोटर व्हीकल टू हेम इज ऑल्सो एग्जामेड राइट एवरी वन ना ऑल्सो रिमेंबर वन पॉइंट ओवर हियर दैट एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन यू नो स्टेट बोर्ड एंड सेंटर बोर्ड विच आर देयर सेंटर बोर्ड एंड सेंटर स्टेट बोर्ड are considered as educational institution only for the limited purpose of conduct of examination everyone always remember only for the purpose of conduct of examination state board or center board had been considered as what educational institution and hence whenever a state board or center board is going ahead and conducting examination for the student it shall be always exempted now when they are conducting examination they will go ahead and take conduct of examination related input services those input services which are relating to conduct of examination also will be exempted in their scenario one thing also you should remember the state board center board etc they go ahead and charge accreditation fees accreditation fees etc that is always taxable because state board and center board are only considered as educational institution for the limited purpose of conduct of examination so if they are doing conduct of examination for their student then it shall be exam input services for conduct of examination like basically printing of paper etc will be exam but if they are providing accreditation services to various institution to go ahead so basically if somebody wants to be an educational institution they will go ahead and provide them accreditation accreditation fees etc will always be taxable if you come on the right hand side there are other circulars which are there one is maritime institution or educational institution always remember one thing all these maritime institutions which are going ahead and providing this maritime ship related courses are always educational institution because they are also providing a degree which has been recognized and hence they are educational institution and their services will be exempted now listen to me very carefully one more circular which i want to go ahead and tell catering services when they are provided to home preschool up to 12 it is exempted right everyone and catering services including mid day meal is also exempted now always remember one thing if catering services including mid day meal is provided to a preschool up to 12 preschool up to 12 also includes an anganwadi so if catering services including mid day meals are provided to a preschool up to 12 and to anganwadis that will also be exempted now might be the mid day meal which is provided to anganwadi is sponsored by the government or it is sponsored by the corporate people doesn't matter it will be always exempted right everyone always remember one more thing if an educational institution is going ahead and providing to its student faculty and staff any service it is exempted now if an educational institution goes ahead and provides to its student faculty and staff catering services might be food is provided food and beverages is being supplied always remember food and beverage and catering services provided by home educational institution to home student faculty and staff will be always exempted but remember one thing might be the students want food and there is an outsider a third party who is going ahead and providing the catering services in the educational institution only the third party has come and is providing food and beverages or catering services to the students then it shall be always taxable right everyone now now one thing which you can remember over here i am which are there are educational institution so same thing over here i am ko whenever admission or conduct of examination related service are provided it is exempt online educational journal will be exempt when i am is going ahead and providing services to its student faculty and staff or it is going ahead and providing services by way of conduct of entrance exam it shall be exempted right everyone but remember one thing in case of i am the short short term diploma courses which are there short term diploma courses which are there basically executive program and all those are always taxable i hope you are clear till here yes sir here we are done with education what did i tell you in education educational institution includes pre school up to 12 then basically an educational institution providing degree recognized by law which includes an iim also and the third is an institution which is providing approved vocational education course right everyone now if it is a pre school pre school up to 12 transportation catering security housekeeping services and cleaning services exam plus conduct of an examination admission related service also exam online educational journal school ka students up to 12 don't read online so baba it is not exempt over there you have to remember online educational journal periodicals are not 
exempted now the second one over here is if it is provided transportation catering housekeeping services cleaning services to home security service to college then it is always taxable but online educational journal and conduct of examination related service and it will be always exempted now if it's a approved vocational vocational education course you always have to remember only admission related or conduct of examination related services exempt all these educational institution providing to the student faculty and staff all the services are exempted providing to those who are going to be student conduct of examination might be entrance test etc entrance test ke liye whatever is charged will be always exempted and i told you center board and state boards are educational institution and they are conducting examination for the student will be exempt they are taking input services for conduct of examination exempt they are going ahead and charging accreditation charges always taxable then i went ahead and told you there is a circular maritime educational institution providing maritime courses are recognized uh, under the law basically and hence their services are also exempted i went ahead and told you about catering services yes everyone catering services includes mid day meal provided to educational institution up to 12 is exempt it includes anganwadis educational institution preschool up to 12 includes anganwadis and catering services including mid day meal provided to home anganwadis is also exempted whether sponsored by government or by corporate food and beverages when they are provided by educational institution any one of them to their student faculty and staff it is exempt catering services provided by an educational institution to student faculty and staff is exempt but if a third party is providing catering service food and beverage service it will always be taxable done everyone then i if you see over here one thing you have to remember is somebody is providing transportation of student faculty and staff to a educational institution up to 12 is exempt so if this guy has been has gone ahead and taken from someone else motor vehicle then that other person who has given him the motor vehicle that service will also be exempted because this service has been exempted i hope everyone is clear now always remember one more thing security services provided within the campus is only exempted in case of pre school up to 12 outside is always taxable then sir now skill related some exemptions are there what are the skill related exemption services provided by way of national skill development council sectoral skill council or an assessment agency approved by nsdc ssc or a training partner training partner it should be training partner approved by nsdc or ssc their services will be exam entry number 70 goes ahead and says services by assessing bodies 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 word is missing bodies employed under the director general of training will also be exempted as sing bodies ka services will be exempt and entry number 71 comes over here we say services by training providers under deen dayal upadhyay gramin kushal yojana shall also be exempted clear everyone remember one thing sir what do you mean by what do you mean by approved vocational education course you have to remember i'll go ahead and tell you just for you to remember approved vocational education course means a course which is run by the industrial training institute or an industrial training center which is affiliated to national council for skill development or it is a modular employable skill course approved by ncbt what is ncbt everyone national council for vocational training run by a person with registered with the director general of training you just have to remember if you want to remember for the approved vocational education course what is an approved vocational education course it means a course which is run by whom industrial training institute or industrial training center which is basically affiliated to the national council for vocational for skill development and it is a modular employable skill course approved by the ncbt which is run by a person who is registered with the director general of training this point also i have gone ahead and told you i will go ahead and quickly close my education related exemption over here we have gone ahead and covered all the circulars also congratulations people all right students let's go ahead and revise one quick small chart on exemptions now i have gone ahead and made exemption related one small chart relating to insurance services entry number 35 entry number 36 36a 40 28 all these small small entries which are relating to insurance i have gone ahead and placed over here right everyone everyone over here entry number 35 goes ahead and talks about 
general insurance business when they are given under the following scheme government is going ahead and basically targeting that if there is a small small insurance scheme relating to heart cattle etc if you go ahead and charge gst on that the insurance will become expensive and hence government have gone ahead and made small small insurance schemes exempt from gst now everyone over here government have gone ahead and told if there is a general insurance business any person is doing under the following scheme if it is relating to heart insurance then there will be no gst besides the heart you might have some coconut or palm coconut and palm insurance there is no gst if the self employed woman is there self employed women ka accident policy which is given there is no gst now in the village you will also be able to see cattle now cattle insurance scheme which is provided under the or it is a central sector scheme central sector scheme on cattle insurance there will be no gst now for this cattle this tribal people are also there tribal insurance also there is no gst now in the village if you go ahead and see over here one person was going and he met with an accident janta personal accident gramin accident policy also there is no gst now the village may people who are there if by chance they fall sick so government says jan arogya bima rashtriya swasthya bima nirmaya health insurance any health insurance is all this by all this name please remember in the exam there will be no gst in village and all you will see people will be going ahead and doing crops so government says bangla sasya bima which is basically crops insurance also no gst modified national agricultural scheme this scheme which is a general insurance scheme again no gst pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana rashtriya krishi bima yojana or pilot scheme on seed seed crop insurance also no gst once you have done the agriculture you would want to go ahead and export export credit insurance also there is no gst are we clear so to to go ahead and do the crops etc agriculture you need what pump etc so agricultural pump set and failed well insurance also there is no gst now this whole village if you go ahead and see is a universe in itself this universe ka universal health insurance or pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana there will be no gst on this insurances now government went ahead and told other than this that entry number 29 29a and 29b the life insurance services which are provided under the group insurance fund basically what happens whenever an army ka member is there navy ka member who joins the navy etc they are insured by the government under uh, group insurance and they will be paying a small premium on that also there is no gst life insurance services to whom army navy air force coastal guard CAPF centrally armed police force under the group insurance scheme also there will be no GST a life insurance business provided by way of annuity under national pension system also there is no GST also remember sir this entry number 35 i went ahead and told you general insurance businesses which are basically heart cattle etc again if there is a life insurance business which is provided under janashree bima yojana aam aadmi bima yojana life micro insurance product or max where the maximum cover is how much 2 lakh so if there is an insurance product where the maximum coverage is 2 lakh government is selling the premium will be very less don't charge any gst varishta pension bima pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana pradhan mantri jan dhan yojana aur pradhan mantri vyaya vandana yojana there will be no gst now entry number 35 mein whatever insurance we learned and entry number 36 mein whatever insurance we learned if i do the reinsurance then reinsurance service also there is no gst reinsurance of insurance schemes under 35 36 and 40 40 is below over here what is 40 talking services provided to the central government state government where under the insurance scheme where the total premium is paid by the government whenever government is paying the total premium then also you should not go ahead and charge any gst this was a small and sweet chart relating to insurance related services i hope you guys will remember baba please see this picture one or two times i think you will be able to remember i'll go ahead and close insurance related services ka exemption over here done all right students the next chart in your exemption actually it's not a chart whatever exemptions were remaining which were small small exemption for which i have not gone ahead and drawn a chart i have gone ahead and put it over here let's go ahead and quickly revise the last chart in your exemption which is miscellaneous other exemptions which are there number 1 if you are going ahead and transferring your business 
uh, as a whole or independent part thereof means you are doing demerger of an independent unit might be when the other person is going to carry forward the business as going concern your transfer of business will be exempted from gst the next one over here is renting of residential house when you are giving your residential house renting of residential house for residential purpose is always exempted remember renting of residential house for residential purpose is exempted for commercial purpose is always taxable services by way of access to road on payment of toll or annuity always remember toll charges etc is always exempted transmission distribution of electricity always it is exempted remember one thing but if it but if a electricity distribution utility is there and they are going ahead and charging of meter rental charges duplicate bill charges all those are charge taxable transmission and distribution of electricity is exempted not other services so if there is any application fees meter rental charges shifting charges testing fees which is taken then it is always taxable sir if you are going ahead and taking loans and advances it says interest on loans and advances you have given loans and advances to someone and you are receiving interest you have given him money to use money to use is a service but receiving that interest and uh, interest or discount etc on that there is no gst and forex conversion by bank to bank dealer to bank etc other always remember if one bank is converting for another bank foreign currency dealer is converting for bank etc on that foreign currency charge conversion charges there will be no gst but remember one thing interest involved in credit card services is always taxable then sir if Sir, services are given to saving bank account holder under Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana, then also it is exempted. Next, bank charges on credit card and debit card is exempted up to 2000 per transaction. Services by way of collection of contribution under the Atal Pension Yojana, whatever service charges are taken for collection will be exempted. Services by business facilitator or business correspondent to banking company or insurance company with respect to rural area branch or an intermediary to be business facilitator or business correspondent their services are always exempted sir inter I, intermediary services of financial services provided by whom by a person that intermediary services are provided intermediary services of financial services located in what multi services scz with ifsc status international financial service status status and it is providing to whom customer outside india when you are going ahead and providing this financial services and you are located in a multi finance multi services scz and you are providing the services to customers outside india your service will be exempted the next is upfront amount payable upfront amount payable for granting of long term lease of greater than 30 years of industrial plot or plot for development of infrastructure for financial business so whenever long term lease per land is given to a person so if government has gone ahead and given long term lease to a person of land for what for him to go ahead and develop industrial plot is given so that he can go ahead and develop what infrastructure for financial business provided by sidc state industrial development corporation or undertaking or by any other entity having 20 percent or more ownership of central government state government to an industrial unit so that he can develop industry or to a person who can develop what any industry or financial area business in that scenario giving of long term lease against upfront amount that upfront amount pay there will be no gst but one thing i would like to say monthly rental pay gst will come only on the upfront amount gst is exempted services by way of transfer of tdr fsi upfront amount payable in respect of services by way of granting of long term lease of 30 years or more on or after 1 4 2019 so whenever somebody is giving long term lease of land to a promoter promoter is liable to pay gst under rcm but the same will be exempted if if the residential apartment is intended for sale before completion certificate or first occupancy whichever is earlier because if the apartment is sold before completion certificate or first occupancy whichever is earlier on that gst will come and hence giving of long term lease pay that uh, giving of granting of long term lease of land whatever charges are there which are required to be paid under rcm will be exempted because on the residential apartment gst has come is my point clear to all the next one over here is services provided by incubate and incubator i hope you guys remember who is an incubate everyone one minute 
sir over here everyone i hope you guys remember now this thing if you go ahead and remember sir who is an incubator so if i go ahead and draw like this sir the hen which is sitting is the incubator right everyone and this is the incubati they are going ahead and telling whenever incubator is providing the services to incubati basically the startups and incubator is providing marketing financial lot of service lot of help incubator is providing to the incubati incubator ka services to the incubati is also exam and incubati ka services to the outside world is also exam but let's understand this services by incubator taxable services provided by technology business incubator or recognized recognized science and technology enterprise park or a bio incubator their services are always exempted but sir incubati always remember these people providing the services if these people are technology business incubator or they are science and technology enterprise park or bio incubator their services are exempted taxable service which they are providing to incubators will be exempted incubati if they are going ahead and providing services to outsiders basically always remember if incubati is within the premises of tbi or science and technology enterprise par their services up to a turnover of 50 lakh in a financial year is exempted if supposing they have come on 17 18 18 19 19 20 always remember their turnover up to 50 lakh will always be exempted clear everyone but for the first year it will be exempted but supposingly i go ahead and tell you that in 17 18 their turnover was 50 lakh up to 50 lakh exempted might be their turnover supposingly in the first year was 30 lakh any gst will come no supposingly next year it came to 55 lakh is it exempted yes yes second year also it will be exempted see everyone sir provided that preceding financial year turnover was less than equal to 50 lakh it means if this year it has crossed this year it will be exempted but next year it will become taxable are we clear everyone i hope everyone is clear till here the next one over here is services by way of collection or providing news by independent journalists or press trust of india or united news of india will also be exempted news and views are always exempted the next one services by organizer to any person if i am going ahead and organize business exhibition outside india and i have given you any service that will also be exempted services by an organizer to any person for business exhibition held outside india is also exempted services by way of sponsorship sponsoring what sponsorship of sporting event organized by national sport federation indian university or inter university state board is also exempted services by way of slaughtering of animal is also exempted services provided by 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 remember services provided to is taxable services provided to to a foreign diplomat mission is taxable services provided by a foreign diplomat mission is always exempt services provided by a foreign diplomat mission is exempted services of providing information under right to information act is also exempted the next one is services provided by recognized sports body sir services provided by nay services provided to a recognized sports body by whom by player umpire referee coach or team manager is exempted and services provided by one recognized sports body to another recognized sports body is also exempted sir if supposingly they have gone ahead and told when services are provided to a recognized sports body by player referee umpire coach or team manager is exempted what if any selectator is providing the service commentator is providing the service to a recognized sports body that is always taxable now they are going ahead and telling if there is a service which is provided by non profit entity which is registered and it is providing to its own member by way of what reimbursement of charges or share of contribution they are going ahead and providing the services to the member and member say they are going ahead and taking some share of contribution if you are a trade union then there will be no gst on the share of contribution for carrying out an activity which is exempt we are doing activities which are exempted and we are taking some money from our members then baba because your service is only exempt whatever share of contribution you are taking from the member also will be exempted and then they are going ahead and telling if you are taking up to 7500 sir up to 7500 per member for sourcing goods or service from third person for common use of its member in a housing society so i have gone ahead and told over here supposingly you are a residents welfare association and you are taking up to 7500 
from each member in an apartment supposing this apartment is there from each member you are taking up to 7500 per month per member then also it shall be exempted as a trade union any amount you take exempted if you are doing an activity which is exempt and you are taking money from your uh, members then also it is exempted but resident welfare association ke liye, when they are going ahead and sourcing some goods from third party and they are going ahead and providing it to the members of the resident welfare association up to 7500 per month per member is always exempted remember there is a small circular which has come which goes ahead and says supply of service by the resident welfare association to the members up to 7500 per month per member are exempt resident welfare association is required to pay GST only when supposingly first of all they have to be registered and then means if they have gone ahead and crossed their turnover of 20 lakh so supposingly tell me if they are not required to take registration their turnover has not crossed 20 lakh even if they are collecting 8000 do they have to collect GST no only when their turnover have crossed 20 lakh they are registered and first of all they have to be registered and they are going ahead and charging more than 7500 then it will be taxable are we clear everyone that is what is being told rwa is required to pay gst only if the subscription charges are more than 7500 per month per member and aggregate turnover or the of the rwa by way of supply of service and goods have exceeded 20 lakh only then they are take, required to take registration once they take registration only then if they are charging more than 7500 they are required to charge gst if they are registered but charging less than or up to 7500 it will always be exempted tell me one thing if rwa is going ahead and charging gst to its member whatever goods or services it is purchasing can it take itc yes baba rwa are entitled to take itc of the gst paid on the capital goods goods and service tell me one thing sir supposingly one person has two apartments which are there two apartments belong to the same person over here and he is going ahead and paying 7500 into 2 means 15000 will gst be applicable no sir per member means per apartment has to be seen they have gone ahead and clarified ceiling limit of 7500 pm square per month per member shall be applied separately for each residential apartment if amount exceeds 7500 gst shall be payable on the entire amount for an example rwa went ahead and charged 8000 to the member then is it that only on 500 gst will come no on the entire amount gst will come the next over here is if there is a non-profit entity and the non-profit entity is going in and providing services and the non-profit entity is basically engaged in activities for welfare of in industry or agricultural labor, farmers, promotion of trade, commerce, industry, agriculture, art, science, literature, culture, sports, education, social welfare, charitable activity, protection of environment to its own member against a membership fees up to 1000 per month per member then also their services will be exempted services by way of pure labor contract if you are a labor contractor and you are providing pure labor services of construction erection commissioning installation completion fitting out repair maintenance renovation alteration of civil structure means original work or might be it is repair cover or any other original work pertaining to what beneficiary led housing construction or enhancement under the housing for all mission or Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana mein one person is getting his house built and you have provided him pure labor contract, don't charge him GST. Might be he is getting his house repaired, renovated, altered, then also don't go ahead and charge him GST because he is under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. Can I go ahead everyone? The next two over here is, supposingly I am going ahead and making my own home and one person is providing pure labor contract. If it's a home which is for a single family, single residential unit I am making, then the labor contractor will not go ahead and charge me any GST. But remember, it is not true in case of residential complex. Residential complex, if I am going ahead and making, which is not meant for single family, in that scenario, GST will come on the pure labor contract. Remember one thing, pure labor contract for construction erection commissioning or installation of original work only relating to single residential when you unit unit shall be exempted so if somebody provides me pure labor contract for repairing my home that will be always taxable because only original work has been exempted if it is provided for single residential unit now over here is the igst ka exemptions which are there services rendered for 
services received from a service provider from the non taxable territory the person in the taxable territory has to pay gst under rcm it's a business entity non business entities are exempted where is it told here services received from a service provider from the non taxable territory by the central government state government union territory local authority governmental authority or individual for non business purpose is exempted importation of service for business and purpose is taxable under rcm non business purpose is exempted or if it is received by an entity under 12 aa or it can be 12 ab ka entity also right everyone then it shall be exempted or a person in the non taxable territory non taxable territory is a non taxable territory may service has been provided it is exempted exemption is not applicable in case of oids services to whom a and b means if it is provided to central government state government local authority governmental authority individual or an entity registered under 12 aa oidr ka services to them netflix ka services for an example to them will be taxable under forward charge mechanism oidr will take registration in india collect the gst and pay to the government i hope you guys remember oidr providing services to an ntor oidr will collect and pay the gst to the government transportation services by a vessel from outside india up to the custom station in india always remember transportation of goods by a vessel from outside india up to the custom station in india also has been gst is applicable everyone over here remember one thing exception is not applicable if it is oidr service which is provided by an oidr to an ntor forward charge mechanism is applicable plus if it is transportation services by a vessel from outside india up to the custom station in india if it's a foreign shipping company then the importer is liable to pay on the transportation service under gst under rcm if it's a indian shipping company indian shipping company will be liable to pay the gst under forward charge mechanism and transportation of goods from outside india up to the custom station in india is not exempted are we clear everyone the next one over here is public conveniences like 1 rupee 2 rupee wala toilet and public libraries which are there are always exempted the next one over here is services supplied baba tell me one thing what is exportation of service supplies in india recipient is outside india place of supplies outside india you have received foreign convertible currency then it is export of service but you both should not be mere establishment of distinct person now tell me one thing what if you both are mere establishment of distinct person in that case it is not export of service but government is selling state bank of india providing to state bank of india dubai branch it is mere establishment of distinct person even though we will not give zero rating a benefit but we will give exemption if you are given exemption itc refund is not given if you are given export ka benefit then itc refund is given are you guys able to understand so over here services supplied by a department by an establishment of a person in india to any establishment of that person outside india which is deemed as an establishment of distinct person and place of supply is outside india in that scenario it shall be exempted importation of service by united nation importation of service by united nation or a specified international organization for official use or foreign diplomat mission if they are importing service importation of service by a foreign diplomat mission consular post in india diplomatic agent or co carrier consular officer shall also be exempted services provided by an intermediary when location of supplier and location of recipient is outside india i am an intermediary in india supplier and recipient both are in outside india what they are telling over here sir services provided in intermediary where okay one minute everyone supplier i am an intermediary i am also outside india recipient is also outside india in that scenario they are going ahead and telling the services of the intermediary shall be exempted then services received by rbi received by rbi from abroad is exempted sir services provided by a tour operator to a foreign tourist for the tour wholly outside india is also exempt services provided by a unit or developer of scz developer in scz for authorized operation is also exempted sir services imported sorry services imported by an unit in scz or is also exempted so a scz unit has imported some services it will also be exempted importation of service in relation to temporary transfer or permitting use or enjoyment of ipr that importation of service has also been exempted under gst right everyone these are your 
miscellaneous exemptions which were remaining which I have gone ahead and told over here. In this chart, please read the chart on the day of the exam. It is very, very important. I will close my discussion on exemption relating to on exemptions under your GST. Right, everyone? I have taught you all the IGST ka exemptions also and CGST Act ka exemptions also. Right, everyone? We will close our discussion on exemptions over here. Congratulations, people. All right, students, let's go ahead and now revise the chapter of value of supply. Everyone over here now, value of supply. Let's take a quick linking and then we'll go ahead. We started learning GST with goods and service. Goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be interstate supply or supply can be intrastate supply. Interstate supply, what will happen? I GST will be levied. Intrastate supply, CGST will be levied. Once GST is levied, GST has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. How will he go ahead and collect and pay? He will have to go ahead and calculate GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax. Right, everyone? Now, value of supply you have to determine as per section number 15. Everyone over here, GST is calculated as value of supply into rate of tax is the value ascertainable yes sir if the value is ascertainable always remember value of supply will always be the transaction value sir what do you mean by transaction value transaction value means the price paid or payable when the parties are unrelated can you tell me when are the parties related scope plus family plus sole agent yes everyone scope plus family plus so, legend, I hope you guys remember, shares greater than or equal to 25% in both of them. Control, officer or directors of each other's business, partner, E for employer, employee plus, family plus, sole agent are always related person. Always remember, transaction value will be taken. When, what is the transaction value? Transaction value means the price paid or payable when the parties are unrelated and the price is the sole consideration then they went ahead and told section number 15 2 what are the things which are to be included in the value value of supply may the things to be included i went ahead and told you always remember t o p i i c s is to be included t for any taxes says fees other than gst tcs not to be included o for obligation of the supplier made by the recipient if supplier had to pay someone and i paid on his behalf that will be included in the value of supply p for packing charges special packing this packing that packing everything has to be included i for incidental charges which are charged by the supplier for anything done with respect to the supply has to be included baba anything done with respect to the supply at the time of or before the delivery of goods or supply of service has to be included then we have i for ipl interest penalty and late fee also has to be included c for commission always remember Selling commission has to be included. Selling commission means seller ka agent ko whatever commission is paid by the buyer that is to be included. S is subsidy. Always remember one thing. Subsidy given by the government never include but subsidy given by other than government. Always remember if it is linked to price, directly linked to price only then to be included otherwise do not include. Right, everyone? Things to be included are topics, taxes, obligation of the supplier made by recipient, packing charges, incidental charges, interest penalty, late fee, commission, and subsidies. Right, everyone? Next, over here is section number 15.3, which goes ahead and says, discount is to be excluded if it is given at the time or before, then always go ahead and excluded whether the name is cash discount or trade discount whatever name it has to be excluded but discount if it is given after the supply that is year end or periodic discount then always remember early condition has to be satisfied only then it will be excluded what is the early condition everyone there has to be a prior agreement for the prior agreement for such discount agreement has to be there number two it has to be linked to the disc Discount has to be linked to the invoice and I for ITC has to be reversed by the recipient on the basis of 
credit note. Early condition means agreement linking to invoice and credit has ITC has to be reversed by the recipient. Only then discount will be excluded. Otherwise, if discount is given after an early condition is not satisfied, discount shall not be excluded. One point I always told you, interest penalty and late fee. Whenever you receive, always assume it to be inclusive of GST divided by 100 plus the rate multiplied 100 plus the rate which is applicable on your principal supply multiplied by 100 only then that amount will be added to your value interest penalty late fee always assume it to be inclusive of gst right and please write your assumption correctly and come in the exam the next one over here is if value is not uh, if you can't go ahead and determine the value under section number 15 one basically if transaction value is not acceptable might be the parties are related or price is not the sole consideration 15.4 goes ahead and says valuation cannot be done under subsection 1 then apply valuation rule which is 27 to 31. 27 goes ahead and says that money is not the whole consideration then please go ahead and take open market value of your supply which supply you are going ahead and doing open market value of such supply has to be open market value of such supply has to be taken that will become the value of supply sir if that is not there then you can go ahead and take money plus fair market value of the additional consideration sir if that is not there then what i have gone ahead and supplied similar like kind and quality ka value will be taken as the value of supply if that is also not there then whatever you have given the money plus the additional consideration ka mark value will be found out by applying what Rule 30, which talks about 110% of your cost of acquisition, 110% of your cost of production, or 110% of your cost of supplying the service. If this is also not possible, government told, please apply your brain, residual method, best judgment. They are going ahead and telling, apply reasonable means, apply section number 15, apply earlier rules, and find out the value. There is one proviso in rule number 31, which goes ahead and says, in case of supply of service, rule number 31 can be applied before rule number 30 then we have valuation rule number 28 which goes ahead and says whenever the supply is between distinct person or related person the value the value will always be taken as the open market value if open market value is available that will become the value of supply if that is not there then directly come to like kind and quality if that is not there apply rule number 30 and then apply rule number 31 sir rule number 28 made two provisos are there Two provisos are there which goes ahead and says if you went ahead and supplied to someone and then he is going to supply, he is your related person or distinct person, he is going to supply the thing as such. Then when you have gone ahead and supplied to him, that value will be 90% of the price charge by that guy. Baba, your recipient when he supplied like kind and quality, whatever charges he has taken from the customer of that 90% will be taken as your value of supply. Are we clear everyone? So, if goods are supplied further by the recipient as such, the way you gave it, he supplied it, then value at the option of the supplier can be 90% of the price charged by him to his customer who are not related person of like kind and quality item, whatever amount was charged of that 90% can be taken. Sir, if I have gone ahead and supplied to my recipient and he is eligible for full ITC, for an example, I went ahead and supplied to my branch office and branch office has separate registration, then we both are distinct person and I can go ahead and show whatever amount I show, want to show in the invoice and that will become the open market value that will be deemed as the open market value and that will become the value of supply. Always remember is recipient is eligible for full ITC value declared in the invoice is deemed as the open market value. Then we have uh, rule number 29 value of supply of goods made or received through agent in case of agent always remember open market value or 90 percent of the price charge for like kind and quality by the recipient to his customer who are not related person whatever agent has charged for like kind and quality of that 90 percent will become value of supply between you and your agent or open market value whichever is higher if that is not possible apply rule number 30 and then apply rule number 31 then we have section number 15 5 which goes ahead and says for for some notified supplies we will go ahead and say what will be the valuation method and government have gone ahead and told rule number 31 which is for lottery betting and gambling and horses what will be the value of supply for lottery government went ahead and told 
हंड्रेड मल्टीप्लाइड बाय हंड्रेड डिवाइडेड बाय वन ट्वेंटी एट मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द फेस वैल्यू ऑफ द टिकट और द प्राइस नोटिफाइड इन द ऑफिशियल गैजेट विच एवर इज हायर विल बी टेकन एज द वैल्यू ऑफ सप्लाई बट इफ इट इज बेटिंग गैमलिंग हॉर्सेज देन हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ द फेस वैल्यू ऑफ द बेट और हंड्रेड परसेंट द अमाउंट विच यू पे इन द टोटल इजेटर मशीन विल बी टेकन एज द वैल्यू ऑफ सप्लाई ऑफ द बेटिंग का सप्लाई और लॉटरी और हॉर्स रेस राइट एवरी वन नाउ देन वी हैव रूल नंबर थर्टी टू रूल नंबर थर्टी टू गोज एड एंड सेज रूल नंबर थर्टी टू वन गोज एड एंड सेज दीज आर ऑप्शनल वैल्यूएशन मेथड विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू सर्टेन सप्लाई देन वी हैव रूल नंबर थर्टी टू सब रूल टू विच गोज एड एंड टॉक्स अबाउट परचेज और सेल ऑफ फॉरेन करेंसी सो इफ देर इज ए मनी चेंजर हु इज गोइंग एंड एंड बाइंग एंड सेलिंग फॉरन करेंसी वॉट विल बी द वैल्यू ऑफ सप्लाई दर इज ऑप्शन नंबर वन which is first method where they have gone ahead and told is the currency involved inr yes sir our currency involved inr is there is the rbi reference rate available yes sir it is there then whatever is your selling rate minus rbi reference rate or rbi reference rate minus your buying rate multiplied by the currency exchange will become your value of supply if rbi reference rate is not available whatever inr you receive or inr you paid that will become your value of supply sir if the currency involved is not inr for an example i received dollar and i went ahead and gave pounds then government went ahead and told how much dollars you gave how much pounds you gave convert it into inr take the lower one multiplied by 1% will give you the value of supply so currency one currency two multiplied by rbi reference rate whatever is the lower amount multiplied by 1% will go ahead and give you the value of supply then government went ahead and told if a money changer wants he can go ahead and opt for the second option also which goes ahead and says sir if the currency exchange is up to 1 lakh rupees the value of supply can be deemed 250 rupees or 1% of the value 1% of the 1 lakh rupees whatever the amount which is there whatever is the currency exchange basically whatever is the inr amount 250 or 1% of that inr amount whichever is higher if it is up to 1 lakh it is greater than 1 lakh up to 10 lakh first 1000 rupees up to 1 lakh will come then 0.5% then sir greater than 10 lakh then 5500 which is 1000 plus 4500 plus 0.1% but always remember the value of supply under the second method cannot exceed 60000 rupees then we have rule number 32 sub rule 3 which goes ahead and talks about a air travel agent and air travel agent can go ahead and pay can go ahead and show his value of supply as how much sir value of supply can be in case of domestic booking he can show 5% of the basic fare international booking he can go ahead and show 10% of the basic fare what do you mean by basic fare basic fare means the amount on which the airline company goes ahead and pays you commission done everyone then we have rule number 32 sub rule 4 which goes ahead and talks about a company who is engaged basically if a person is engaged in life insurance business he can opt for this option which goes ahead and says sir if he is going ahead and selling only risk a policy entire premium will become the value of supply but if it's a saving policy we will life plus investment both are covered whatever is the gross premium minus the amount which is invested will become your value of supply for an example i charge 10000 out of 10000 premium 4000 is being invested then the value of my insurance policy life insurance cover which i have given it will be only 6000 that will be my value of supply then we have single annuity policy 10% of the premium will become your value of supply if any other case it is there then always go ahead and take 25% of the premium in the first year as your value of supply 12.5% as value of supply in case of subsequent premium or renewal premiums right everyone yes sir we got it then they have gone ahead and told if there is a person who is engaged in buying and selling of second hand goods might be after minor repair he is going ahead and selling them you have to go ahead and remember is the itc taken if the itc is taken then the value of supply will be transaction value but if the itc is not taken then margin basically your selling price minus your purchase price will be your value of supply if the margin is negative then it is to be ignored for an example bank went ahead and sold or if any person is going ahead and repossessing the goods and selling it selling price will be there but what will be the purchase price the purchase price of the original buyer has to be taken minus 5% per quarter or part thereof the amount which will come that will become the purchase price of the bank 
Is it clear everyone? So if a person is going ahead and selling second hand goods which is repossessed, selling price will be there whatever you sell it minus the purchase price. Purchase price will be what? The purchase price of the original buyer minus 5% per quarter or part thereof will be taken as the purchase price. Can I go ahead everyone? Yes sir. Then we have see repossessed goods the purchase price will be purchase price of the defaulting borrower who is basically the unregistered person minus 5% per quarter or part thereof from the date of purchase till the date of disposal that is till the date of selling the by the bank. We have rule number 32 sub rule 6 which goes ahead and talks about value of token, voucher, coupon or a stamp. You have to remember in case of token, voucher, coupon or stamp the value of supply is the amount of goods or services basically the value of goods and services which you are able to redeem by using that voucher. So if I went ahead and gave you a voucher what is the value of supply? The value of supply will be the amount of goods or services you are able to redeem against that voucher. Then we have over here rule number 32 sub rule 7 which goes ahead and says if there is a supply of service which is happening between distinct person if it is notified then the value of supply will be nil if the ITC is available. Are we clear till here everyone? Yes sir. Then the next one over here is rule number 33. Government goes ahead and says Ramesh if your heart is pure and you have gone ahead and collected anything as a pure agent then the amount which you have collected as pure agent will not be included in your value of supply. You don't have to go ahead and charge any GST. Sir rule number 33 talks about deduction of expenditure incurred by pure agent. If there is an expenditure or cost incurred by a supplier as pure agent it will always be excluded from the value of supply. Then we have condition over here is supplier should act as a pure agent, payment should be separately indicated in the invoice, supplies procured from the third party are in addition to the services supplied on his own account. For an example, I am a person, I went ahead and told you I will do your company guy incorporation, you went ahead and I went ahead and told I will charge you 25,000 rupees but all the out of pocket expenses might be the ROC fees, you will only have to bear. You went ahead and told me sir I am authorizing you, you make the payment of the ROC fees, later I will go ahead and give it to you. That amount which I collect from you will not be included in my value of supply because that was not my job to go ahead and make the payment of the ROC fees. It was your job but I went ahead and collected the actuals and I made the payment or my made the payment later I collected the actuals from you. Done everyone. Let us go ahead. The next one over here is circular with respect to PSF and UDF. PSF passenger service fees and user development fees which are levied by whom? Airport authorities. Everyone over here. I went ahead and told you about PSF and UDF. What did I go ahead and tell you about PSF and UDF? I went ahead and told you first of all there is airline operators who are there and there is airport operators who are there. Airport operators are people who are going ahead and managing the airport. So if there is this person who is going ahead and flying through an aeroplane, what will happen is they will go to the airport and airport they will go ahead and take various services. Now for the services these airport operators will go ahead and charge you passenger service fees and user development fees but that will be charged through the airline company. So airline company when they are selling you the ticket they will go ahead and charge you for the ticket plus they will go ahead and charge you GST plus they will charge you user development fees or passenger service fees and they will go ahead and charge you the GST amount on the passenger service fees or user development fees. Now when you go ahead and make a payment of the amount to the airline operator they will go ahead and give and give the amount to the airport operator. Now these airline operators who are there they are just acting as pure agent and that will not be included in their value of supply. Their value of supply is only the supply of the ticket which they have gone ahead and done. Now what will happen the airport operators who has gone ahead and received this PSF in UDF will be required to pay GST to the government. Now this airline operator will also go ahead and raise an invoice to the airport operator saying that sir we are acting as pure agent so we want some commission when they go ahead and give an invoice they will go ahead and charge a GST to the airport operator which airport operator will be able to take the ITC. Also I went ahead and told you this customer if he wants to take the input tax credit on the basis of the airline cut ticket where they have gone ahead and mentioned the amount of GST on the ticket and they have also mentioned the amount on the PSF and UDF. This person who is going ahead and bought the ticket will be able to take the ITC. I have gone ahead and told the same thing over here. Passenger service fees and user development fees are levied by airport authorities. They are levied by airport of authorities but they are levied by the airport of authorities through the airline operator. So they are through the airline acting as 
pure agent psf and udf are consideration for the services provided by airport authority and leviable to gst whatever amount is collected they have to pay gst on that amount airline is acting as a pure agent should separately indicate psf and udf and applicable gst in the invoice when airline is going ahead and giving the invoice to the customer in the invoice they should go ahead and show the psf and whatever is the gst applicable on the psf and udf and the customer will be able to take the input tax credit on the basis of the invoice it is told over here that based on the invoice the passenger or recipient may be avail able to avail the itc of the gst paid on the psf and udf are we clear till here everyone the next one over here is rule number 34 which goes ahead and talks about rate of exchange for determination of value sir if it is taxable goods or taxable service and you want the rate of tax in case of goods you have to go ahead and take the rate notified by the cbic under the custom act on the date of time of supply of such goods in case of service you will go ahead and take gap ka rate generally accepted accounting principle ka rate and sir it will be on the date of time of supply of such service sir Rule number 35 goes ahead and says if the value is inclusive, how to go ahead and make it exclusive? You will go ahead and take the value divided by 100 plus rate multiplied by 100. That will give you the value. If the total amount divided by 100 plus rate multiplied by 100 will give you the value and if multiplied by rate then it will give you the rate. Are we clear till here everyone? The next one over here is staggered discount. What do you mean by staggered discount everyone? Staggered discount means buy more, give get more discount sir if you buy 10000 10% discount buy 20000 get 20% discount buy 30000 get 30% discount if this is the policy i am going ahead and running for an example i am big bazaar i go ahead and offer to people buy 10000 get 10% buy 20000 get 20% buy 30000 get 30% then that discount i will show in the invoice and hence it is always to be reduced from the value it is always to be excluded from the value the next one over here is period eek periodic discount or year end discount always remember periodic or year end discount if the condition under section number 15 3b which is ali condition agreement was there link to discount is linked to invoice and i itc has been reversed by the recipient if ali condition is satisfied discount has to be excluded otherwise discount will not be excluded from the value second discount sir secondary discount which is given it is always given it is never known at the time of supplying it is not known at the time of supplying and hence secondary discount is given which is given later because it is not known at the time of supplying it will never be excluded from the value the next is business facilitator and business correspondent always remember one thing if bank is providing some service through the business correspondent or through the business facilitator and collecting an amount from you in that scenario always remember bank is the service provider whatever amount bank is collecting from you because of the services provided through the business correspondent or through the business facilitator the bank will be collecting an amount on that amount gst has to be collected by the bank and paid to the government is the point clear in case of business facilitator and business correspondent model never the business correspondent or business facilitator is the service provider service provider is always the bank and whatever amount the bank is collecting from you on that bank will always go ahead and collect gst can i go ahead everyone yes sir point is clear the next one over here is gst on delayed payment on delayed payment in case of late fees of late fees of emi late payment of emi i went ahead and told you over here that supposingly supposingly you went to an uncle and you told uncle uncle i want one mobile phone uncle went ahead and told okay you told sir i will go ahead and pay on emi and you went ahead and paid uncle 10000 rupees plus 1000 every month for the next four months can you tell me what will be the value of supply over here the value of supply of the mobile phone will be 44000 rupees why sir 44000 rupees why 44000 rupees over here because here the supplier went ahead and gave you the emi when the supplier gives you the emi always remember always remember the value of supply will be what the value of supply will always be included including the interest penalty and late fee so if you supposingly one uncle went ahead and sold you the mobile phone he went ahead and charged you 10000 plus 1000 10000 plus 1000 interest 10000 plus 1000 interest 10000 plus 1000 interest might be he went ahead and charged you 500 rupees penal interest also then always remember his value of supply will be 45500 which is basically including this interest 
and on the interest and penal interest gst will come are we clear till here everyone but supposingly uncle did not go ahead and give you the EMI, he went ahead and told, I will not give you the EMI, but you went ahead and took finance from somewhere, you took a loan from somewhere, now when you are giving this loan company go the amount back, in that scenario, the interest which is there will be exempted from GST. Uncle went ahead and gave you the mobile phone, you gave uncle 40,000, the value of supply will be only 40,000, this company gave you a loan and you went ahead and paid what? Interest, that interest will be exempted from GST. Always remember one thing, government went ahead and told, if supplier gives the EMI, additional or penal interest will form part of the value under section number 15 to D and on that interest also GST will come. However, if third party finance company gives the loan, that is the EMI, in that scenario, interest or penal interest will be exempted under entry number 27 of your exemption chapter. Now, we have valuation of works contract service, where basically, Construction of building intended for sale, part or whole, consideration is received before completion certificate or first occupancy, whichever is earlier. So, if supposedly completion certificate is here, first occupancy is here, whichever is earlier, say before any amount is received and I went ahead and basically sold a flat, I will have to go ahead and charge GST on the one third, one third amount will be taken as the land ka value and two third pay only I will go ahead and charge GST. So, for an example, I went ahead and sold a flat which includes land also and building also. Then I will go ahead and charge what? 3 crore if I went ahead and charge. Then government went ahead and told one third of the total, con total consideration will be deemed as the value of land. So, one crore deemed as the value of land. Then value of construction service that is value of building on which GST will be charged will be only 2 crore rupees. That is, always remember one thing, whenever one flat is being sold before completion certificate or first occupancy, whichever is earlier, it's a works contract service, which is a supply of service, GST will always come on two-third value. For an example, one builder sold me a flat for 3 crore rupees, he will go ahead and charge me GST only on 2 crore, which is two-third, which is the value of the building. One-third is assumed as the value of the land and land pay, there is no GST. I hope you guys are clear till here. We went ahead and learned section number 15. 1, transaction value. 15. 2, topics to be included. 15. 3, discount given before or at the time, exclude. Given after, early condition met, exclude. Otherwise, don't exclude. Section number 15. 4, valuation rule. 27, 28, 29, 30 and 31. Section number 15. 5, government went ahead and told, for some supplies, we will go ahead and notify the valuation method. Government went ahead and notified rule number 31A for lottery betting and gambling. Lottery, always remember, it is inclusive of 28% of the face value or price notified in the official gadget, whichever is higher. Sir, in case of betting, gambling, horses, it is always whatever amount you put in the bet, that is the value of the supply. Right, everyone? Rule number 32 went ahead and learned optional valuation method. Rule number 33, it is... Rule number 33, we went ahead and learned pure agent. Whatever amount I am charging you as pure agent will be excluded from the value. Rule number 34, we went ahead and learned CBIC rate in case of goods and gap rate in case of services. Rule number 35, we went ahead and learned, sir, if the amount is inclusive, how to make it exclusive? Amount divided by 100 plus rate multiplied by 100 will give you the value. Right, everyone? Then we went ahead and learned some circulars about discount business facilitator, then we learned about EMI transaction and value of works contract service. Here we are done with your chapter of value of supply. Congratulations people. Just a second people, I have a small circular which I have to go ahead and tell over here. It is regenerating to Del Credre agent. Del Credre agent ka circular which is there is also very important. Sir, what happens in case of Del Credre agent? Everyone over here. There will be a principal, there will be an agent and there will be a customer. This person is known as a Del Credri agent. A Del Credri agent is a person who goes ahead and says, I will bear the loss of bad debt. He says the principal, sir, sir, if the customer doesn't pay you, I will go ahead and pay the amount to you. But for those transactions or basically if I, I have to be the Del Credri agent, I will take extra Commission. Are we clear, everyone? Now let's understand in case of Dell Credit Agent, what will be the value of supply? Everyone, interest related one clarification has come. 
least let's go ahead and understand for an example principal went ahead and issued an invoice directly to the customer customer was not going ahead and making the payment to the principal so the dell credit agent went ahead and told okay sir i will go ahead and make the payment to you okay so the dell credit agent made the payment to the principal in this scenario in this scenario the dell credit agent will tell the customer hey because of you i made the payment to the principal it is like i have gone ahead and given you a loan and you have to now give me interest in this scenario always remember one thing there was no earlier transaction between agent and the customer he has just given the loan and he is re receiving interest in this scenario the interest which is there will not be forming part of the principal ka supply the main supply ka part it will not be forming and this interest may whatever this loan pay whatever interest is being received that will be exempt from gst are we clear everyone but now sir supposingly principal went ahead and sent the goods to the agent agent went ahead and supplied to the customer in the name of the invoice was given in the name of the agent now this person was not going ahead and making the payment so i made the payment agent made the payment to the principal agent will go ahead and tell the customer hey because of you i had to make the payment so it is like i have gone ahead and given you a loan so now you have to pay me this invoice ka amount also plus you have to go ahead and pay me interest also in this scenario if you go ahead and see there was originally a supply between the prince agent and the customer and then the loan was given for which in basically loan was not given actually the payment was done to the principal that is like a loan which is given to you correct everyone so when you are receiving the amount from him which is the invoice wala amount plus this interest ka amount sir this interest will go ahead and form a part of the value of supply the value of supply over here will be whatever is the invoice amount plus the interest because here interest has to be included as per section number 15 2d i hope everyone is clear always remember one thing if the principal had gone ahead and given the invoice directly to the customer in that scenario if the agent tell credit agent make the payment to the principal in this scenario the loan transaction is an independent transaction between agent and the customer where where the interest will not form part of the value of supply of the basically the supply but sir in the second case where you go ahead and see where agent is giving the invoice in his name and sir this and then the agent went ahead and made the payment of amount to the principal agent will tell you that i have given you a loan to you and you have now to you now have to give me a interest in this scenario already one principal supply was there and interest will just form part of the principal supply and it will be taxable at the rate of that original supply are we clear everyone section number 15 2d says you have to go ahead and include it in the value here we are done with your complete revision for the chapter of value of supply congratulations people done all right students let's go ahead and now revise the chapter of tax invoice credit note and debit note everyone over here we started learning gst with goods and service goods and service has to be supplied supply can be interstate or intrastate intrastate i gst will be levied intrastate c gst will be levied once gst is levied it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person how will he collect he will have to go ahead and calculate gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax once you know the value you know the rate of tax you will go ahead and raise the tax invoice credit note debit note and delivery chalan tax invoice section number 31 32 prohibition 33 The amount should be shown in the tax invoice and other documents amount of tax should be shown separately debit note and credit note is section number 34 delivery chalan is rule number 55 now section number 31 has section number 31 1 which goes ahead and says tax invoice in case of goods should be raised if the supply involves movement before or at the time of removal sir if goods don't involve movement or any other case may always remember before or at the time of delivery or making it available sir when you are going ahead and supplying the goods 
always show description, quantity, value, tax, and such other particulars as told in rule number. 46 invoice should always be in triplicate original for the king that is the recipient duplicate for the tra transporter and the triplicate copy which is there is for yourself that is the supplier sir whenever you are going in and supplying services tax invoice in case of services should be issued before or after the provisioning of service but within 30 days or 45 days in case of service you should go ahead and show description value tax such other particulars quantity is not required and sir you should go ahead and issue two copies sir one for the original for the recipient and duplicate for the supplier sir this 45 days is applicable in whose case in case of services 45 days is applicable in case of nbfi sir nbfi means nbfc banking company financial institution and insurance company in rule number 47 it is also told that if there is NBFIT, now NBFC, banking company, financial institution, insurance company and telecom company and they are going ahead and doing supply of service to their distinct person under section number 25, then they should go ahead and raise the invoice when the supplier is going before or at the time the supplier records it, records in the books of accounts or basically when the supplier is going ahead and recording the transaction in his book of, books of account or the before the expiry of the quarter in which the supply is made whichever is earlier basically so if you have gone ahead and done the entry today you will go ahead and do it today sir if you have not done, done the entry today but the month is going to quarter is going to expire by the end of the quarter before or at the end of the quarter you should go ahead and before you, the quarter ends, you should go ahead and raise the invoice. Right, everyone? Section number 31, 1 done. Section number 31, 2 done. Section number 31, 3. Section number 31, 3. Section number 31, 3. Goes ahead and talks about R and bar SP. Right, everyone? R for revised tax invoice. N for no tax invoice. B for bill of supply in case of exempt supply. A for Advance ka case mein receipt voucher, R for refund voucher, L for S for self invoice, P for payment voucher. Right everyone, let's go ahead and understand section number 31.3A, revised tax invoice should be issued within one month. Remember always, revised tax invoice should be issued within one, one, one month. It is not 30 days, it is one month. And sir, sir, I became liable over here. I went ahead and got registration certificate over here. Now, if I had gone ahead and applied within 30 days and I got the registration certificate, registration certificate will be valid from the day I become liable. So, from the day you become liable till the date of grant of a registration certificate, whatever supplies you have done, for that you would have issued an invoice, but not a tax invoice. So, you have to now issue revised tax invoice, collect the GST and give it to the government. Now, revised tax invoice which you are going ahead and issuing, people went ahead and asked, sir, so many revised tax invoice, why to issue? So, government went ahead and told, you can go ahead and issue consolidated revised tax invoice. If you had gone ahead and supplied to registered person, whether intra or inter, sir, consolidated revised tax invoice is not possible. But if you had gone ahead and supplied during the period, during that period, if you had gone ahead and supplied to whom? Unregistered person. So, unregistered person ka case may intra state may you can give consolidated revised tax invoice. You can issue one consolidated revised tax invoice for all your supplies. But interstate ka case may you can issue consolidated revised tax invoice. But for that value of supply where the amount is greater than 2.5 lakh, for that you can't go ahead and issue what? Consolidated revised tax invoice. So, it says over here for invoices, revised tax invoice for invoices issued between effective date and the date of grant of issuance of registration certificate for intrastate issue consolidated revised tax invoice for all taxable supplies to unregistered person for interstate no consolidated revised tax invoice if value is greater than 2.5 lakh those are known as b2c large invoices sir no consolidated revised tax invoice to if supplies to a registered person whether intra or inter then we have Section number 31.3b which goes ahead and says no tax invoice if the value of supply is less than, less than, less than 200 rupees and sir but this 200 rupees wala clause is not applicable in case of multiplex because multiplex ke government has gone ahead and told they will have to compulsorily do e-ticket and e-ticket will only be deemed as the tax invoice yes and e-ticket is required even if the value is less than. 
200. But sir, other than that, if a person is going ahead and supplying where the value of supply is less than 200 plus recipient is unregistered and recipient is not demanding that sir, for those invoices and invoices are not required, but for all those supplies at the end of the day, you have to go ahead and raise consolidated tax invoice done everyone then we have 31.3 c which goes ahead and says if you are going ahead and supplying exempted goods or service or both or you are a composition dealer you can go ahead and give what bill of supply no bill of supply if value is less than 200 then we have section number 31.3 d which goes ahead and talks about receipt of advance if you have gone ahead and received an advance then you have to go ahead and issue what Ad receipt voucher received an advance you have to give a advance receipt sorry receipt voucher right everyone when if you don't know what is the supply car nature going to be or if you don't know the rate of tax you have to show it as interstate and you have to charge 18 percent gst sir section number 31.3 e goes ahead and says sir registered person if he has gone ahead and received an advance but he did not go ahead and supply and he did not issue the tax invoice but he is going to cancel the contract or goods are being returned not goods are being returned sorry if he has gone ahead and not made any supply or he has not gone ahead and provided any service government is going ahead and telling if you have received the advance no supply no tax invoice you can go ahead and issue a refund, refund voucher then 313f goes ahead and says sir if one person has gone ahead and supplied you some supply on which you are liable to pay the tax under rcm if the person is registered person he will give you a tax invoice in the tax invoice he will go ahead and write tax payable under rcm you just have to pay the tax under rcm but if you have received those supplies on which tax is payable under rcm and the supplier is unregistered he will not go ahead and give you a tax invoice in that scenario 313 f clause f says you should go ahead and raise a tax invoice yourself so sir when you are liable to pay under 93 and 94 you have to issue an invoice with respect to good services or both received from unregistered person on the date of receipt sir now if i am going ahead and making a payment to that supplier who has gone ahead and supplied me and i am pay, liable to pay the tax under rcm then that supplier whether registered unregistered when i am making the payment to them i should go ahead and issue a payment voucher right everyone now i went ahead and taught you section number 31 section number 31 1 in case of goods or removal making av available or delivery i should raise the invoice services ka case mein 30 days or 45 days 45 days in case of nba fi 31 3 went ahead and told revised tax invoice no tax invoice bill of supply sir a for advance ka case mein receipt voucher refund voucher self invoice and payment voucher then 31 4 goes ahead and talks about whenever it's a continuous supply of goods which is basically supply done on a continuous or recurrent basis then in that scenario you are required to raise the invoice whenever successive statement or successive payments are involved in that scenario you are required to issue the invoice before or at the time when such successive statement are issued so if i am going ahead and issuing the statement i should raise the invoice or whenever payments are being issued received issue invoice at the time of such statement or payment done everyone then we have continuous supply of service always remember continuous supply of service is a service whenever a service is provided on continuous or recurrent basis and the period is greater than baba remember greater than three months where the contract due date is ascertainable invoice should be honored before the due date due date is not ascertainable from the contract due date of payment is not ascertainable then honor before you receive the payment if payment is linked to completion honor before completion of the event you should raise the invoice 31 6 goes ahead and says supply of service ceases before completion then at the time of cessation how much ever service you have provided that much kind invoice should be given invoice at the time of cessation to the extent of supply before cessation 31.7 goods are on approval or return basis when i am sending it is not a supply but sir when he gives the approval that is the time of supply approval or once 180 days gets over then you should go ahead and raise the invoice everyone remember removal is the date six months they give you time including the date of removal then after the date of removal you have to see six months it means once 180 days get, six months gets over immediately you have to go ahead and raise the invoice so before at the time of supply or six months from removal whichever is earlier i went ahead and told you about section number 31 1 which told about goods section number 31 2 which told about service 31 3 which told about r and bar 
SP 31.4 went ahead and told about container supply of goods. 31.5, 31.5, container supply of service, 31.6, supply of service, ceases before completion and 31.7, goods sent on approval. Now we have section number 32, which goes in and says, prohibition on unauthorized collection. If you are an unregistered person, don't collect any tax. Registered person, collect as per the provision of the act or rules. 33 went ahead and told, Sir, whenever you are going ahead and whenever you are going ahead and issuing any tax invoice or other document, please go ahead and show the amount of tax which is being collected, right? Amount of tax to be indicated in the tax invoice and other documents which are being issued. There is one rule number 46 over here which goes ahead and says, if you are registered person supplying to unregistered person, taxable and exempt supply both, you can go ahead and issue one document, the name can be invoice come bill of supply right everyone but remember rule number 46a is not applicable when you are making supplies to a registered person it is only applicable when you are supplying to an unregistered person compose when you are supplying taxable supply and exempt supply both i went ahead and told you about section number 31 over here 32 which told prohibition 33 which went ahead and told amount of tax to be shown separately we have 34 which went goes ahead and talks about credit note and David note. Section number 31, 1 goes ahead and says, what are the scenarios? Section number 34, 1 goes ahead and says, what are the scenarios in which credit note can be issued? Sir, when one or more tax invoice is already issued for the supply and taxable value or tax charge is more. Sir, good services are returned, goods, or goods are being returned, not services. Services can't be returned. I'm teaching you. Can you return? No. Goods are being returned or good services or both supplied. They appreciate in that scenario, whoever is the registered supplier, he can go ahead and issue what? Credit note and one or more credit note can be issued. So, one invoice, can, there can be multiple credit note. For multiple invoices, there can be one credit note. Always remember, whenever you issue the credit note, in that month's return, you have to go ahead and disclose that credit note and government will give you an adjustment in your liability. Are we clear everyone? So you went ahead and returned me the goods. I went ahead and gave you your 50,000 rupees back. Plus I gave you your GST back. So government will also go ahead and give my adjustment of liability. Government will go ahead and reduce my liability. For an example, I did not return your GST. Then government also will not go ahead and give me any adjustment of liability. Always remember, if you have not gone ahead and given the benefit to the customer, means if the burden you have passed on to the customer, then government will never give an adjustment of the liability. But otherwise, whenever you are going ahead and issuing a credit note, you have to go ahead and show it in the return and that month liability will be adjusted. The maximum time limit for you to go ahead and issue a credit note with respect to year is September month of the next financial year and then you have to disclose it in that month return. So September you should issue it and then disclose it in the return which you are going ahead and filing for the month of September or actual date of annual return whichever is earlier and the tax liability shall be adjustment. Remember always tax liability adjustment is not given if you have gone ahead and passed on the burden. Are we clear? Then we have section number 31.3 which goes ahead and says debit note when it will be issued. Sir, when one or more tax invoice is issued for the supply, taxable value or tax charge is less. Sir, if I have gone ahead and charged you taxable value or tax less, then I will go ahead and say you are my debtor. I will give you a debit note, collect more tax from you and give it to the government. Collect my amount also or collect more tax from you and give it to the government. For that, I will give you a debit note registered person shall it is mandatory to issue debit note right everyone for multiple invoices there can be one debit note for one invoice there can be multiple debit notes what is the time limit to go ahead and issue sir whenever you are going ahead and issuing there is no time limit government is telling baba collect 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 there is no time limit whenever you issue just go ahead and show it in the month return when you are going ahead and issuing the debit note here we are done with section number 31 32 33 and 34 section number 31 went ahead and told about the tax invoice related details. Yes, everyone. 32 went ahead and told about what? Section number 31 done. 32 went ahead and told about prohibition. Un unregistered person should not collect. Registered person should collect as per the provision of the act or rules. 33 went ahead and told amount of tax to be shown separately. 34, credit note and debit note related 
discussion. Then everyone, we have rule number 55 which goes ahead and says that sir, delivery chalan, three copies of delivery chalan should always be issued, one for the consignee, one for the transporter, one for the consigner. What are the situations when you need to issue delivery chalan? Sir, whenever you are going ahead and supplying liquefied gas or transportation of goods you are doing to the job worker or transportation of goods for reason other than supply when it is not supply might be I'm sending some goods for testing then in that scenario I will go ahead and issue what delivery, delivery chalan and send the goods sir when goods transported for supply but invoice could not be issued at that time then you can send along with a delivery chalan sir when the goods are transported in complete knockdown semi knockdown or batches or lots then in that scenario also delivery chalan can be used now we have e invoicing provision number 22 ke liye the amendment over here is e invoicing ka provision first of all it became effective from 1st of october 2020 theek hai after that various amendments came sir what is applicable for your number 22 remember effective from 1st of october 2020 the provisions have come but effective from 1st of april 1st of october 2020 the provision relating to e invoicing and come into picture but effective from 1st of april 2022 that means for your number 22 what is applicable you have to remember e invoicing means first of all what sir you have to generate an invoice you have to go to e invoice1gst.gov.in you have to put those details which are required over there and you have to get invoice reference number getting of invoice reference number means basically you are following the e invoicing provision now once you get the invoice reference number you can go ahead you can go ahead and use the invoice reference number basically you can go online and generate your e invoice ka soft copy are we clear whenever e invoicing provisions are applicable remember you don't have to generate three copies or two copies of your invoice one e invoice which you have generated you can send to transporter you can keep with yourself and you can give it to transport you can give it to the recipient also sir for whom is e invoicing provision applicable always remember e invoicing provisions are applicable if you are registered person who's aggregate turnover in any preceding financial year any preceding financial year from 1718 exceeds 20 crore baba earlier it was 50 for your number 22 for your number 22 exam it will be how much number 22 and onwards it will be 20 crore rupees so e invoicing provision first of all from 1st of april 2022 if you are registered person who's in any preceding financial year from 1718 1819 1920 2021 20, 20, or 21 22 has gone ahead and exceeded how much 20 crore rupees then on you e invoicing provisions are applicable always remember you have to go ahead and do e invoicing with respect to your b to b supplies and for your export so when you are supplying to registered person or for your export you have to do e invoicing e invoicing not applicable to government department local authority scz unit or those referred to in 54 54 rule number 54 2 rule number 54 3 rule number 54 4 and rule number 54 4 a rule number 54 talks about tax invoice in special circumstances and rule number 54 2 goes ahead and talks about insurance company banking company financial institution and nbfc rule number 54 3 talks about gta rule number 54 4 talks about passenger transportation service and rule number 54 4 a goes ahead and talks about multiplex rule number 54 says what is rule number 54 telling everyone rule number 54 goes ahead and says rule number 54 1 is talking about isd ISD ka invoice related detail rule number 54 2 says if you are n b f i n b f c banking company financial institution or insurance company you can issue consolidated tax invoice or any other document might be a bank is going ahead and giving a, a statement at the month end that is only the tax invoice gta going ahead and giving tax invoice or consignment note will also be deemed as a tax invoice passenger transportation service mein ticket is deemed as the tax invoice multiplex ka case mein e ticket is deemed as the tax invoice done everyone now e invoicing provisions are not applicable first of all e invoicing provisions are applicable if you are registered person whose aggregate turnover is greater than 20 crore in any preceding financial year from 1718 1718 1819 1920 2021 2122 any year may if your turnover was exceeding 20 crore right everyone with respect to your b2b supplies and baba exports are actually supplied to unregistered person but 
still for export they are going ahead and telling invoicing provisions are applicable now invoicing provisions are not applicable if you are sir b g p m g l s you have to remember what is b sir b for banking company banking company means n b f c n b f i sir n b f c banking company financial institution and insurance company g for g t a p for passenger transportation service wala m for multiplex ka case mein also it is not applicable g l s baba r b g p m right say g l s mercedes GLS, sir G for sir government department, L for local authority, and S for SEZ unit. Remember, it is SEZ unit and not developer. They have told SEZ unit. Can I go ahead, everyone? Yes, sir, we got it. Now, everyone, listen to me very carefully. Government went ahead and told. Government went ahead and told dynamic QR code. Sir, what is a dynamic QR code? Dynamic QR code means, supposing you went to go ahead and buy some goods from a shop, the shopkeeper should go ahead and give you a dynamic QR code. Basically, whatever is your billing, that billing ke liye one QR code should be given so that you can scan, pay and go. Government wants to promote digital payment and government went ahead and made some shopkeepers, means so for some supplier, dynamic QR code mandatory. Always remember one thing, e-invoicing ka case mein, also, when you go online and you do invoice, when you generate an invoice reference number, the portal gives you a QR code. But that's a QR code, not for payment. That's a QR code having embedded invoice reference number. But here, in dynamic QR code, what happens? A code will be given by the shopkeeper to you so that you can scan, pay and go. Right, everyone? Now, dynamic QR code with effect from 1st of December 2020, if registered person whose aggregate turnover in any preceding financial year exceeded how much? 500 crores. So, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21, 21, 22. If your turnover exceeded how much? Any year may, any year may your turnover exceeded 500 crore, then on you dynamic QR code ka provisions are applicable with respect to your B2C supply, that is when you are supplying to unregistered person, you have to go ahead and give dynamic QR code so that you can scan and pay. What is the purpose of dynamic QR code? It is to enable UPI payment and dynamic QR code is not applicable. Dynamic QR code is not applicable if you are BGPMO. Sir, if you are NBFI, that is NBFC, banking company, financial institution and insurance company, G for GTA, P for passenger transportation service provider, M for multiplex and O for OIDR under section number 14 basically who is supplying his services from outside India, that OIDR who is there, government is selling on this people, not applicable to those referred in BGPM plus O. Are we clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Got it. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. Now, if you go ahead and see dynamic QR code, which is there for that, government have gone ahead and given some circular, right? What I have gone ahead and done, I have gone ahead and created the summary of the circular so that we can go ahead and understand this. Sir, I want this sir, summary. You can go to rameshsonia.com. In rameshsonia.com, free resources, November 22 folder, I will put this. Are we clear? Rameshwari.com, free resources, number 22 folder, I'll put this, you can download this. Everyone over here, clarification relating to applicability of dynamic QR code, sir, DQR code I'll be writing, so it means dynamic QR code. Is dynamic QR code required for export? Baba, export ka case may always remember, exports are considered as B to B supplies only, yes or no? Actually, export is B2C, but for e-invoicing provision, they have gone ahead and told, consider export as what? B2B and you have to do e-invoicing. Hence, because e-invoicing provisions are already applicable, they are going ahead and telling, because in the e-invoicing provisions, we are going ahead and treating it as B2B, dynamic QR code is not applicable. Are we clear? Sir, however, tell me one thing. Sir, for export, it is not applicable. What if, sir, supplier is in India, recipient is outside India, place of supply should also be outside India, only then it is export of service. But place of supply is in India, then it is not falling in export card definition. If it is not falling in export card definition, then sir, it is a B2C supply because it is not export. But then government went ahead and further clarified that dynamic QR code is still not required. Even if place of supply is in India, it means it is does not fall within export of service card definition. That is place of supply is in India, then it is not export of service. In that case also, 
QR code is not required because the person outside India, he will not be able to use for the payment. Are we clear everyone? Because if you give dynamic QR code to a person outside India, he will not be able to use. Then people went ahead and asked, sir, when you are giving the QR code along with the QR code, what are the other parameters we not need to go ahead and provide? Government went ahead and told parameters required to be captured. What are the parameters? What are the details which are required to be captured in a dynamic QR code? When I give you the dynamic QR code, what are the details that should be there? It should have Gundi, G U N D I. Sir, what is Gundi? Baba Gundi in uh, Hindi means Lady Dawn. Okay, everyone. Okay, now everyone over here. G for supplier GSTN number, U for UPI ID, I for invoice n for invoice number d for date of the invoice t i for invoice value and g will be square it is gst amount are we clear everyone now listen they had also gone ahead and told you required to put pays bank account number and ifsc later they went ahead and clarified that bank account details of the pay is not required because upi is already linked to a bank account are we clear everyone now first one clear export ka case mein B, it is b2b and hence you will not go ahead and provide dynamic qr code parameters which are required gundi parameters right gstn number sir supplier gstn number gst amount c gst s gst whatever is there u for upi id i for n for n for number and date of the invoice d for date of the invoice and i for invoice value are we clear everyone sir you told that you told that invoice number and date is required, right? But sir, for an example, one customer came to my shop. I went ahead and showed him the dynamic QR code. He scanned and paid. I received the payment and later I am going to generate the invoice. Then when I am showing him the QR code in the digital display, how should I go ahead and capture my invoice detail over here? Because the invoice is not generated yet. So government goes ahead and says, see over here, in case of retail sale over the counter, the payment is received by digital displaying the QR code, but invoice is generated after payment, has invoice gen has, hence, Invoice details are not captured in the dynamic QR code, but you told invoice related details are required. But government went ahead and then told, in such a case, unique order ID will be generated. Means for every order, you will generate one order ID and then show him the QR code. No, in the QR code, show that order ID or sales reference number. Instead of invoice number, you can go ahead and show that order ID. So, sir, in such a case, the unique order ID or sales reference number sales reference number which is linked to invoice may be provided in the QR code for digital display as long as the details of such order ID, sales reference number, linkage with the invoice are available in the processing system of the supplier and cross reference of such payment along with unique order ID or sales reference number is provided in the invoice. So sir, in the QR code invoice details are required. But instead of that, you can give the order ID or sales reference number in your system. Please store a link between the order ID and invoice number. And sir, in the invoice, provide the order ID details also. Can I go ahead, everyone? Yes, sir. Clear over here. Then, sir, supplier dis shows the dynamic QR code in the display. But customer pays through other modes. Sir, full insert. I showed that dynamic QR code, but he's not, he did not use only. He made through other UPI payment. He used it card or cash. Baba, nothing. Just go ahead and put in the invoice how he made the payment. You showed your work is done. You are compliant. Now, however he has made the payment, cross-reference of such payment on the invoice will be deemed as compliance. Then, sir, they went ahead and asked, sir, supplier provides. I am providing, sir, I don't provide QR code, but I go ahead and you send a UPI request and I am going ahead and receiving the payment. So, supplier provide customer other modes of payment like UPI collect, UPI indent through mobile or computer app and QR code is not displayed. Government is selling that is also an electronic online payment only. However, you are taking the payment that you have to go ahead and give a cross reference in the invoice. Cross reference of such payment on the invoice will be deemed as the compliance. How you receive the amount that you have to put in the invoice. Then, each generation and printing of dynamic QR code mandatory for prepaid invoice. Sir, customer has already made the payment to me. Later, should I print the dynamic QR code in the invoice? 
government is selling how he made the payment that details you print in the invoice and up no cross reference on the invoice is deemed as the compliance means first government told no you are not required to go ahead and print the qr code just cross reference on the invoice will be deemed as the compliance sir once e-commerce on the online app has complied with the dynamic qr code will supplier using the e-commerce be required to comply with dynamic qr code requirement government is telling flipkart which is the e-commerce operator and you the supplier you both are different person every supplier has to comply with the dynamic qr code ka requirement separately qr code provisions are applicable to each suppliers separately Flipkart will do his own compliance, so he has to go ahead and comply with the dynamic QR code ka requirement. You are going ahead and issuing invoice, so you have to go ahead and comply with the dynamic QR code, er code ka requirement separately. Sir, is dynamic QR code to be provided on invoice issued to UIN holder? But by UIN holder is not a registered person. Hence, it is considered that, that, that an invoice which is issued is a B2C invoice because they are not registered person. Hence, whenever you are issuing an invoice to a UIN holder, it is a B2C invoice, hence dynamic QR code will be required. Sir, if payment is collected by e-commerce or other person authorized on behalf of the supplier, when Flipkart is going ahead and collecting supposedly payment on my behalf, Flipkart will show the QR code which will have UPI ID of the Flipkart. So, if I go ahead and authorize someone or an e-commerce operator is going ahead and collecting payment on my behalf, in the QR code, the UPI ID will not be of the supplier, but it will be of the e-commerce operator or it will be of the person who is authorized by me because that is the person collecting the amount it says in such case upi id of such authorized person may be provided in the dynamic qr code instead of suppliers upi id sir if i have gone ahead and received part payment in advance or through adjustment might be the person has given me some voucher or coupon before generation of dynamic QR code. 10,000 rupees ka jeans spend I've sold. That person has gone ahead and given me 5,000 rupees ka coupon. So I should go ahead and give dynamic QR code for 5,000 rupees or 10,000. Government told dynamic QR code is for collecting the amount and hence you should give dynamic QR code only for the balance amount. But on your invoice, please go ahead. The details of the total value along with the details of cross reference of part payment, advance, what is the coupon discount, coupon or voucher you receive and the remaining amount to be paid should be provided in the invoice. Right everyone, here we are done with your QR code related clarification. Please come in your book. They have gone ahead and given clarification with respect to person who are going ahead and taking jewelry. So, if I am going ahead and taking jewelry from one state to another for approval, they are going ahead and telling when you take the jewelry on approval, on the way when you are going, you should have a delivery chalan. EV bill is not required. When you reach over there, you are showing the jewelry. If the person says, I like it, raise the invoice there and then. But to move the goods, you should use a delivery chalan. When the sale materializes, then you have to issue an invoice. If you are going from one state to another state, you should always charge. IGST. Same way government went ahead and told artworks sent to art galleries. When you are sending the artwork to art galleries, that time it is not a supply. When the person, that time it is not a supply. So when you are taking, you should take along with delivery chalan and e-way bill is required. Right everyone? When you go over there and the person says, I like the painting, somebody bought the painting in the exhibition, that time you should go ahead and issue an invoice. If you both are in different state, means the supply is in different state, place of supply is in different state, then you should charge IGST, otherwise CGST and SGST. Sir, how many digits of the HSN code is required in an invoice? Always remember, if you are a person whose aggregate turnover is up to 5 crore, in case of B2B supplies, 4 digits, B2C it is optional. But if your turnover is greater than 5 crore, Six digits are mandatory whether you are doing B2B supplies or B2C supplies. Then government went ahead and gave one more circular with respect to what? With respect to expired drugs. Sir, I went ahead and supplied some drugs to one person. Drugs means medicine. I went ahead and supplied some medicine to one person and that medicines have expired. Now he will go ahead and return it to me. He will return to me. I will go ahead and issue him a credit note. When I issue him a credit note within the time limit, then my liability will be adjusted. Yes, everyone. But if I don't issue him a time uh, credit note within time limit, then I will not get an adjustment in my liability. So generally what happened in case of drug industry, what was happening was 
पीपल वेर गोइंग हेड एंड रिटर्निंग द ड्रग्स जनरली आफ्टर द टाइम लिमिट फॉर इश्यूइंग द क्रेट नोट इज गॉन हेन्स गवर्नमेंट वेंट एड एंड टोल्ड रमेश लिसन टू मी वेरी केयरफुली यू बाय द ड्रग्स मेक द मेडिसिन सप्लाय द मेडिसिन लेट हिम टेक द आई टी सी दैट ट्रांजेक्शन इज ओवर now when he is going ahead and returning you the drugs tell him to go ahead and show it as fresh supply you take the itc of that fresh supply when you destroy the drug destroy the itc simple government went ahead and told first option return by the registered person treat it as fresh supply you just he will go ahead and issue you a tax invoice if that person who is returning is a composition dealer he will issue a bill of supply if he is unregistered person he will give a commercial invoice on the basis of the invoice if any gst is charged because he is a registered person if he is a registered person he will charge you a gst take the itc of the expired drugs when you destroy the drugs itc also will get destroyed manufacturer destroys the return drugs then reverses the itc availed on such return supply but sir i went ahead and bought powder i made medicine gave the medicines to him now medicine expired and it came back within time so sir when it comes back within time i will go ahead and give a credit note and government will give an adjustment in my liability now in this scenario when i destroy the drugs the original itc which i had gone ahead and taken on the powder will also be destroyed so sir if supplier can issue a credit note and retail retailer returns by issuing a delivery chalan if credit note is issued within time liability may be adjusted by the supplier or else liability cannot be adjusted when you go ahead and destroy the drugs the itc which you had availed on the powder will also get destroyed now the next one over here is goods sent or taken out of india for exhibition or export promotion government goes ahead and says since you are taking it outside india that time it is not a supply you are taking for export promotion or for approval that time it is not supply no tax invoice goods can be moved on delivery chalan so when you are taking it outside india for approval or return basis pe basically might be for an exhibition government is telling when you are taking it that time the sale is not materialized so it is not a supply take it on the basis of a delivery chalan done everyone when sale takes place then you can go ahead and raise the invoice invoice when the sales takes place sir if sale doesn't takes place do one thing if nobody goes ahead and buys it if the buyer does not accept it you took it for showing it to someone he did not accept it please bring it back within 6 months it is not a supply and no tax invoice required but if buyer does not accept and goods don't come back it will be deemed as supply and you have to raise a tax invoice always remember whenever it is a supply because at the time of going it was not a supply so it was not zero weighted supply you were not required to pay any igst but supposingly now the supply materialized you went ahead and took it outside india and the supply has materialized then in that scenario you will be eligible for zero rated supply ka benefit you can go ahead and take itc ka refund so you can get you can get itc ka refund in that scenario right everyone here we are done with a quick revision of your chapter of tax invoice credit note debit note the only amendment in the chapter is e invoicing provisions from 1st of april 2022 the e invoicing provision may change is that registered person who's aggregate turnover in any preceding financial year any from 1718 1819 1920 2021 20, 20, 20, 21 22 20 has exceeded 20 crore will be liable for e invoicing ka provision ka compliance is yes everyone and that's it he will have to do e invoicing provision ka compliance is right everyone i will go ahead and stop all my discussion on the chapter of tax invoice credit note debit note over here congratulations people this one will be available on rameshsoni.com free resources number 22 folder this chart you can download it from there with chart baba clarification related chart right everyone bye guys have a great day take care all right people let's go ahead and now revise accounts and records sir can you give us a quick linking yes baba let's go ahead and take a quick linking we started learning gst with goods and service goods and service has to be supplied supply can be either interstate or intrastate interstate or intrastate cgst will be levied i gst will be levied in case of interstate intrast cgst will be levied once gst is levied gst has to be collected and paid by a taxable person he will go ahead and calculate gst gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax once you know the value and the rate of tax you will go ahead and raise the tax invoice credit note and debit note 
and then you will go ahead and maintain your accounts and records with say section number 35 and 36 let's go ahead and start reading accounts and records sir a c graded chapter the maximum expected marks can be three marks in the exam three to four i will say because one mark mcq also by chance they added so three to four mark is the maximum expected in the exam section number 35 let's go ahead and start with section number 35 one goes ahead and says every registered person shall mandatorily keep and maintain at the principal place of business as per the registration certificate true and correct it is not true and fair it is true and correct accounts of pcos pcos means sir what p means production and manufacture of goods car related accounts i for inward and outward supply of goods and services or both S for stock of goods, I for ITC availed, O for output tax payable and paid, such other particulars as may be prescribed in rule number 56. Proviso to section number 35 subsection 1 goes ahead and says, if more than one place of business you have, then accounts relating to each such place of business at such a place of business so if i have additional place of business accounts relating to additional place of business should be maintained at such additional place of business now here there is a circular which went ahead and told requirement of maintaining books or in case of tea coffee rubber etc so supposingly there is a tea board over here in the tea board suppliers are going ahead and keeping their tea and the auctioneer is also coming and doing the auction from here because the auctioneer is coming and doing the auction from here or the suppliers are going ahead and storing the tea over there they have to go ahead and declare that tea board or the coffee board as additional place of business but maintaining the accounts relating to relating to additional place of business at additional place of business that is the tea board is not possible and hence government went ahead and issued one circular and told all these people like who are basically the supplier and auctioneer for them government told principal and auctioneer will declare warehouse that is the tea board or the coffee board ka warehouse as additional place of business but books relating to additional place of business can be mentioned at principal place of business you shall also intimate the jurisdictional officer in writing yes everyone now if you go ahead and read section number 35 in section number 35 it is again told that you can go ahead and maintain your books of account manually or in electronic form when you are going ahead and maintaining in electronic form rule number 57 is applicable which goes ahead and says you should take backup of the records produce it on demand if you should share the file and also the password when it is requested by the officer section number 35 2 goes ahead and says that if you are a owner operator of go down or warehouse or you are a transporter registered unregistered you shall also go ahead and maintain your books of accounts you shall maintain records of consigner consignee and other relevant detail as per rule number 54 rule number 58 rule number 58 goes ahead and says owner operator of warehouse or transporter if they are registered then they will have gstn number if they are not registered they should go ahead and take enrollment by using gst enr01 and they should obtain unique enrollment number right everyone so the unique enrollment number when they take they will not become registered but just they have to go ahead and be enrolled under gst now only for transporter government went ahead and told if you are a transporter and you have multiple gst number then for your eBay bill purpose eBay bill generation purpose or updation purpose government went ahead and told transporters if they are registered in multiple state they can go ahead and take one unique common enrollment number but that is only for the purpose of generation of eBay bill yes everyone next now if you are a transporter what are the accounts you have to go ahead and maintain government went ahead and told record of goods which you have transported delivered stored in transit and also gstn number of the consigner and consignee right everyone you have to also go ahead and maintain gstn number of the consigner and consignee with respect to each branches next then if you are a owner operator of warehouse then you have to go ahead and maintain books of accounts basically you are maintaining a go down then government went ahead and told whose goods came whose goods went how many came how many days they were there all those details are required 
books of accounts with respect to period for which goods remain in the warehouse including particulars of dispatch movement receipt disposal of such goods you have to go ahead and store them in such a way that they can be identified item wise and owner wise and it firstly takes physical verification and inspection by the proper officer yes sir section number 35 one went in and told registered person registered person should maintain books of account at principal place of business additional place of business ka books at such additional place of business and he should maintain pcos electronic form or manual form section number 35 two went in and spoke about owner operator warehouse or transporter section number 35 3 goes ahead and says notified class of people who are notified by the commissioner might have to go ahead and maintain additional books of accounts for specified purpose means commissioner will go ahead and specify the purpose why he wants you to go ahead and maintain additional books of accounts or additional books or uh, accounts or document section number 35 4 goes ahead and gives the power again to the commissioner to go ahead and notify class of people who might not be required to maintain accounts correct everyone section number 35 5 goes ahead and says if you are registered person whose aggregate turnover is greater than 2 crore you are required to get your accounts audited by charter accountant or cost accountant however this provision relating to audit has been deleted by the finance act 2021 with effect from 1st of august 2021 and hence a person is no more required to go ahead and get his accounts audited by a chartered accountant or cost accountant section number 35 5 has been deleted section number 35 6 goes ahead and says if you go ahead supposingly if you go ahead and don't maintain the stock relating to some goods in your go down actually thousand goods should you have, should have been there but there is only 800 goods which are there officer will go ahead and say where are the remaining 200 goods you are going ahead and telling sir eaten by rats he will go ahead and say i will go ahead and assume that those goods are being supplied by you you have to now go ahead and pay the tax he will go ahead and give you what Provision relating to 73 and 74 shall apply. Mutatis mutandis. It means he will go ahead and give you a demand order. Then we have section number 35, subsection 6, which goes ahead and says period of retention of accounts and records. Basically, if you have gone ahead and supposingly you are talking about 1718, for the year 1718, the annual return shall be filed by what date 31st of december 2018 from here you will have to go ahead and maintain how many years one two three four five and six which is 19 20 21 22 23 and 24 so till 31st of december 2024 till that time you have to go ahead and maintain your accounts and records are we clear till here always remember you have to maintain for 72 months from the due date of furnishing annual return this due date if it is extended then from the extended due date you have to maintain for 72 months always remember always remember one thing if you are a party to appeal revision etc in that scenario once your appeal has been dispatched if you are a party to appeal revision proceeding before the appellate authority appellate uh, appellate tribunal appellate authority or court court then you have to maintain books of account for a period which is 72 months or one year from the final disposal of the appeal whichever is later are we clear everyone yes sir we went ahead and understood section number 35 one accounts and records to be maintained at principal place and additional place of business 35 2 owner operator of warehouse related 35 3 notified class of person notified by the commissioner has to go ahead and maintain additional account 35 4 sir people might not have to go ahead and maintain accounts if they are being notified by the some people might be not relaxed from maintaining accounts right everyone I means they will go ahead and say okay this accounts is not required and 35 5 goes ahead and says audit audit has been deleted now audit related provision 35 6 if you have not gone ahead and accounted for some goods then they are going ahead and telling we will assume that those goods are being supplied by you are we clear for an example you went ahead and told 1000 goods say 100 i have gifted you have already told i have gifted that means you have done the accounting but remaining 100 for which you have not told anything means you have not maintained the account those will be assumed as supplied are we clear everyone can we go ahead next we have retention of account for 72 months or in case of appeal one year from the disposal of will or 72 months whichever is later now we have rule number 56 which goes ahead and says every registered person what are the various accounts they have to go ahead and maintain section number 35 one went ahead and told a person has to maintain pcos in pcos as was 
such other particular as told in rule number 56. Rule number 56 goes ahead and says every registered person shall maintain true and correct accounts of goods imported, exported, supplies attracting RCM, invoices, bill of supply, delivery challenge, debit note, credit note, receipt voucher, payment voucher, refund voucher, all you have to go ahead and maintain. Then, sir, if I am a person who is other than composition, means composition dealer need not go ahead and maintain stock related details. Basically, if you are a person other than composition, then you will go ahead and maintain stock details of opening balance, whatever you have received, whatever you have supplied, lost, stolen, destroyed, gifted, free sample, etc. All you have to go ahead and maintain. If by chance you don't maintain lost, stolen details, then they will go ahead and assume as if those goods are being supplied by you are you able to understand this yes sir got it then section number 35 rule number 56 3 goes ahead and says registered person shall also maintain accounts relating to advance which is received paid adjusted all the detail then we have section number 30 rule number 30 rule number 56 4 which goes ahead and says every registered person other than composition person shall maintain accounts relating to tax payable including RCM collected paid ITC claim with tax invoice, debit note, credit note, and delivery chalan. Always remember that, sir, what are the accounts need not be maintained by composition dealer? A composition dealer need not maintain stock related detail and also tax payable, including RCM, then tax collected paid ITC claim with tax invoice, debit note, credit note, and delivery chalan. These details are not required to be maintained by whom? composition dealer then baba section number th rule number 56 5 goes ahead and says every registered person shall maintain details of who are his supplier who are his recipient and what are his storehouses where he is going ahead and storing the goods rule number 56 6 goes ahead and says if goods are stored at a place other than which is declared place without the cover of a valid document then po shall determine tax as if such goods have been supplied by such person sir what to do about wrong entries they went ahead and told wrong entries should not be erased effaced or overwritten incorrect entries except clerical errors shall be scored out at under attestation and thereafter correct entry shall be recorded sir if e records are maintained you just have to go ahead and do maintain a log of every entry edited or deleted sir if i am an agent of some other person what are the accounts i need to go ahead and maintain accounts and records you have to maintain particulars of authorized and received for from principal to receive and supply goods on his behalf particulars of description quantity value of goods received supplied on behalf of every principal and also details of accounts which you have gone ahead and furnished to the principal and tax paid on the receipt of goods or service then if I am a manufacturer, what are the accounts I need to go ahead and maintain? Accounts need to be maintained are monthly production accounts showing quantitative details of raw material which you have received, services which you have received, goods which you have manufactured, scrap and byproduct related details are also required to be maintained. I am a service provider. What are the details I require to I need to maintain? They went ahead and told supplier of service meet, needs to maintain accounts showing quantitative details of goods used in the provisioning of service, input services used, utilized and services which have been supplied. Then, sir, books of account need to be maintained by a works contractor. They have to go ahead and maintain name and person, name and address of the person on whose behalf works contract is executed, description quantity value of goods or service received, utilized in execution of the works contract. Then, details of payment which are received with respect to each works contract. And also, sir, name and address of the supplier from where he has received the goods or service. These details are required to be maintained by works contractor. Sir, if I am a person having the custody of the goods as a carrier, means basically you are a custodian, correct? Or you are a CNF agent, then they are going ahead and telling you should maintain true and correct records. So basically, a person who is having the custody as a custod as who is having a custody of the goods as a carrier or a CNF agent, they should maintain true and correct records with respect to goods handled by him, sure. then shall produce details as and when required by the proper officer. Done everyone. 
I will go ahead and close my revision on the chapter of accounts and records over here. What I think you guys can take care is, sir, what are the period of period account should be maintained? Owner, operator, warehouse and transporter, what are the accounts they have to maintain? Sir, PCOs are required to be maintained by a person. Right, everyone. Other than this, rule number 56 may, what are the details not required to be maintained by composition dealer? Two and four. Right, everyone. Rule number 56, two and rule number 56, four wrong entries how they should be dealt with sir what are the accounts need to be maintained by agent then what are the accounts a works contractor needs to go ahead and maintain what are the accounts a manufacturer can go ahead and maintain these details i think if you read should be more than enough i will go ahead and close my division on the chapter of accounts and records over here everyone congratulations people all right, people, let's go ahead and now we'll be revising e-way bill, electronic way bill. Everyone, can we go ahead and take a quick linking? First of all, we started learning GST with goods and service. Goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be either interstate or intrastate. Interstate supply, I GST will be levied. Intrastate, C GST will be levied. Once GST is levied, GST has to be collected and paid by A taxable person how will he collect and pay everyone he will go ahead and calculate gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax once you know the value you will go ahead and prepare tax invoice credit note and debit note and delivery chalan all this you will go ahead and maintain your accounts and records now government says ramesh you can go ahead and maintain your accounts and records and you should send the goods to the other person with the help of a e way bill so along with your tax invoice Along with your whatever bill of supply you are going ahead and raising, you should always, when you are going ahead and causing the movement, you should raise a e way bill. Everyone in your e way bill ka chart, e way bill is section number 68, read with rule number 138, 138 A, B, C, D, and E. Now, sir, first of all, who is the person who has to go ahead and raise the e way bill? Always remember one thing. Who will generate the e -way bill will depend on the person who is causing the movement. If I am telling I am going to send the goods supplier, then he will go ahead and generate the e -way bill. If recipient care comes and collects and goes, he will generate the e -way bill. Basically, in case of supply, supplier on recipient, whoever causes the movement will generate the e -way bill. In any other case, consigner or consignee, whoever causes the movement will generate the e -way bill. Always remember one thing, if supply is unregistered, recipient is registered, and there is a movement which is happening, then it will be deemed that the movement is caused by the recipient and he will generate the eBay bill. Sir, how will I go ahead and generate the eBay bill? You have to go to, sir, where will I go? You will go to eBay bill, gst.gov.in and you will generate the eBay bill. How will I generate, sir? You will have to upload the details in part A of GST EWV01 and part B may you have to upload the detail. Part A may you have to provide transaction detail and part B may you will provide transportation detail once you go ahead and fill part a part b ka details can be filled only in 15 days 15 days ka time is there and once you go ahead and fill part b one unique e way bill number is given to you then now over here is why will you go ahead and generate an e way bill always remember you will go ahead and generate an e way bill because you are going ahead and causing the movement of consignment value greater than 50,000. Always remember how to calculate the consignment value. Take the invoice value or the bill of supply or the delivery chalan ka value. Whatever is the GST, add that amount of GST and the total value which comes is a consignment value. Remember one thing, in case of invoice only there will be GST. In case of bill of supply and delivery chalan, it will be only the amount which you have mentioned in the bill of supply or delivery chalan. But tax invoice may amount value of supply plus the GST will give you the consignment value. Always remember one thing, if you have gone ahead and raised one invoice come bill of supply, there will be taxable supply, there will be GST plus exam supply ka value, remove exam supply ka value, whatever amount is remaining, that will go ahead and give you the consignment value and the consignment value if it is greater than 50,000, only then you are required to generate a way bill mandatorily otherwise there are two more scenario when mandatorily you have to generate e -way bill even if the value is not crossing 50,000 number one interstate if you are moving goods for job work interstate movement for job work compulsory e -way bill is required number two if you are a person who is exempted from registration under section number 24 one 
and 24 2 basically you are an interstate supplier of handicraft goods or you are a person who is a casual taxable person going ahead and supplying handicraft goods in that scenario because you are exempted from registration up to 20 lakh or 10 lakh government says because you are exempted from registration you should generate a e-way bill basically by using your pan number can i go ahead everyone so if you are an interstate movement if you are a person causing interstate movement of to a job worker then you are required to generate e-way bill the next one over here is what? The next one over here is if you are if you are going ahead and doing interstate movement of handicraft goods by a person who is exempted from compulsory registration under section number 24.1 or 24.2, basically you are exempted from compulsory registration, then also you are required to generate e-way bill. Then, sir, sir, when do I go ahead and generate e-way bill? You should generate e-way bill prior to movement in case of in case of rail, air or vessel, it can be generated after movement also. Sir, what about the e-way bill ka validity? Always remember one thing, if it's a normal cargo, if it's a normal cargo which is other than overdimensional cargo or a multimodal transportation where ship is not involved, you have to say where ship is not involved and then less than equal to 200 kilometers, one day ka validity, but overdimensional cargo or multimodal transportation where ship is involved, then less than equal to 20 kilometers, one day. You have to write it like this, overdimensional cargo or multimodal transportation where ship is involved, then it is less than equal to 20 kilometers, one day. Other than overdimensional cargo means normal truck or a multimodal transportation where ship is not involved, then it is always less than equal to 200 kilometers, one day. Right, everyone? Now, when you are going ahead and taking the goods and going, basically the person in charge when he is taking the goods and going, rule number 138A comes which goes ahead and says, you should take along with you documents and devices to be carried by person in charge. If you are going and taking the goods and going, if you are taking the goods and going, you should have bill of supply, invoice or delivery chalan plus you should have the eBay bill plus bill of entry in case of imports. eBay bill is not required to be carried by the person in charge in case of rail, air or Vessel, if the goods are going by rail, air or vessel, then in that scenario, do you think the train ka conductor who is there will carry the EV bill? Do you think plane ka pilot will carry the EV bill? In that scenario, EV bill is not required to be carried by the person in charge. Sir, in case of, if in case a person is required to do e-invoicing and he has a QR code which is embedded with IRN, then Baba, you can go ahead, instead of giving physical invoice to the person who is transporting, you can tell him to carry the QR code along with him so that when the officer is checking, he can show the QR code and the verification can be done. In lieu of physical tax invoice, QR code having embedded invoice reference number can be taken along. Now, when you are going on the way, everyone, what did I tell you till now? I went ahead and told you who has to generate e bill, supplier, recipient, transporter, uh, consigner or consignee, whoever is causing the movement. Sir, how will you go ahead and generate, where will you go ahead and generate e bill, gst.gov.in? How will you generate part A and part B? He will go ahead and fill and he will get one unique enro uh, e way bill number sir then why will you generate because consignment value is greater than 50,000 or is sending interstate movement to a job worker or but handicraft goods are moved by a person who is exempted from registration under section number 24 1 and 24 2 24 2 consignment value always tax amount has to be included but exempt supply ka value has to be excluded sir e bill ka validity is always 200 kilometers ke liye one day ka validity but if it is over dimensional cargo or a multimodal transportation where ship is involved in that scenario it will be 20 kilometers up to 20 kilometers one day ka validity when you are going on the way you should carry documents and devices along with you documents mean bill of supply invoice or delivery chalan plus E way bill has to be taken along. In case of imports, bill of entry also has to be taken along. However, if the goods are being transported by rail, air, or ship, rail, air, or ship, then in that scenario, E way bill is not required to be carried by person in charge. If you have gone ahead and generated an invoice, the person in charge can go ahead and carry instead of physical tax invoice, he can go ahead and carry the QR code having invoice reference number. When you are going on the way, verification will happen. Rule number 138. B says verification of document and conveyance. The authorized proper officer who is inspector who is being authorized by the commissioner. Basically, inspectors are being authorized by the commissioner. They will go ahead and stop you and they will check all the document. They will check the eBay bill and they will check the conveyance. Now, if there is no discrepancy, he will let you go. If there is any discrepancy, he will go ahead and apply section number 129 where detention and seizure will be done. Right, everyone? 
sir, supposingly on the way you are going and there is no inspector who is there on the way, then any other officer can also go ahead and do the checking. Basically, it says if there is any specific intelligence information, then any other officer may do the physical verification with the prior permission of commissioner. Rule number 138C e, goes ahead and says once the inspection and verification of goods in transit is done by the proper officer, he will go online and upload some report in EV Bill 03 Part A within how much time? 24 hours and he will go ahead and upload final report in GST EWB 03 Part B within how much time everyone? So within 3 days plus 3 days ka extension can be given by the commissioner. Once the checking is done, no physical verification will happen. Again, unless there is any specific intelligence information which has been received. Rule 38, rule number 138D goes ahead and says, if your detention is more than 30 minutes, then you can go online and you can inform the office, you can inform basically the government about your detention that, sir, I am being detained for more than 30 minutes. Transporter can go ahead and inform the government by filing EWB 0. Four. Now, when you are going on the way, they have gone ahead and told a person should carry devices. However, as of now, devices are not required to be carried. However, if the commissioner wants, commissioner can go ahead and tell that you have to carry along with you RFID device where you can put your invoice reference number and when you are going on the way, there will be RFID readers which will be installed where your invoice reference number will be transmitted to the RFID device and verification will happen and the gate will open and you can go. But as of now, it is a dream which is not happening. Can I go ahead everyone? Now, but actually as of now, fast tags are little bit used in case of checking. For checking, fast tag which is that uh, fast tag on the toll, those are being used by people, basically the officers. Can I go ahead everyone? But now as of now, RFID device are not yet installed for e bill purpose. Next, sir, now you are going on the way, supposing the truck has started crying, then if there is an issue, issue what you can go ahead and do, if there is a breakdown which is repairable, always remember, you can go ahead and ask for extension. Always remember one thing, if you have generated any way bill today, today midnight onwards the time limit will start till tomorrow midnight if it is one day. Always remember it is starting from always midnight to the next day. So tomorrow supposingly evening you met with an accident and now you want to extend your EV bill validity, then 12 o'clock at night it is going to expire. So before that, 8 hours before or 8 hours after you can ask for extension. Sir, so, supposingly any other issue is there wherein truck is only changing, then in that scenario you should always remember if transshipment or breakdown has happened, transshipment means you are changing the truck or any breakdown because of which you are changing the truck, your own conveyance is there or same transporter is there, you will just go ahead and upload, update the part B, take the goods and go. However, if the transporter is changing, then the transporter will go ahead and assign the EV bill to another transporter. Now, another transporter will update part B and take the goods and go. Always remember one thing, once you have gone ahead and assigned the EV bill to a transporter and he has put the motor vehicle car detail, now you can't go ahead and assign that EV bill to another transporter. This transporter only, he can go ahead and assign the EV bill to another transporter. He can only fill the details and take and go. Can I go ahead everyone? Now, everyone over here, what are the cases when EV bill is? not required. When the goods which are being transported are LPG, kerosene for public distribution system, postal baggages, pearl, precious stone, metal, jewelry, currency, personal or household effect and coral, in that scenario government has told that e bill is not required. If you are taking the goods through non-motorized cargo, might be donkey, uh, bullock cart, etc. In that scenario also e bill is not required because donkey will not have a number. Government went ahead and told donkey, horses, etc. Ka case may e bill is not required to be generated. Then when you are going ahead and transporting transportation to or fro custom port, airport or station, ICD to CFS. Basically they are going ahead and telling it might be from the main port you are telling, taking to inland container depot or you are taking the goods to container freight station. In that scenario e bill is not required to be generated. When the movement is within notified area which has been notified by the government by a notification, in that scenario e bill will not be required. If transportation of exempted goods is happening, alcoholic liquor is happening or HP man, high speed diesel, petroleum crude, motor spirit, aviation turbine fuel or natural gas is happening, in that scenario e bill is not required. If transportation is happening of exempted goods which is the old cake, the oil cake may always remember EV bill will be required. If where good supply of goods being transported is not a supply, if it is not a supply under Schedule 3, in that scenario also EV bill is not required. When supply of goods by canteen stores department 
true to or pro unit run canteen or authorized customer basically the csd canteens when they are going ahead and transporting the goods eva bill is not required supply of heavy waters a nuclear fuel by the department of atomic energy government is selling all these things are not to be informed eva bill not required movement of goods by defense formation ak47 is being transported they will never go ahead and inform about it then movement of empty cargo container empty cylinders in this scenario what is there empty then not required eva bill when consigner of is the central government state government local authority for transportation by rail always remember when government is transporting by rail eva bill is not required but only in case of rail if government is transporting eva bill is not required if government is going ahead and transporting by any other mode then eva bill eva bill will be required then sir transportation from one custom port station to another also eva bill is not required transportation under custom supervision or seal then also eva bill is not required if it is a transit cargo to or from nepal and bhutan then also eva bill is not required now always remember one thing if goods transit to another state while moving from one area in one state to another state then it is always interstate one another one area to another within the same state for an example goods are moving this is the state of karnataka from this area it is going to this area but it is an intra state movement but intra state supply but the movement is what inter state movement if it is an inter state movement because it went to other state it will be called as an inter state movement in case of inter state movement central gst laws will apply now you tell me one thing supposingly domestic tariff area say goods are going to the scz sir it's an inter state supply but the movement is within the same state and we call this movement as intra state movement always remember one thing eva bill is required for movement whether it is supply of goods supply of service or not a supply also but if there is a movement of goods eva bill will be required are we clear everyone next sir who will go ahead and generate eva bill always remember if the goods are being transported by road then consigner or recipient as consignee if you are going ahead and transporting on conveyance hired one or a public conveyance you will go ahead and fill what part a also part b also you will go ahead and fill before movement sir if you have gone ahead and handed it to a transporter part a you will go ahead and fill part b you will not go ahead and fill you will go ahead and assign the eva bill to the transporter he will update the part b details and generate the eva bill take the goods and go if you are going ahead and transporting by rail in that scenario part a also will update part b also will go ahead and update however in case of rail air and ship bill of lading number railway receipt number airway bill number or will or bill of lading number will always be given after the transportation starts generally so you can go ahead and generate eva bill before or after the movement also sir government went ahead and told in rule number 138e that eva bill portal basically they will not go ahead and allow you to generate eva bill with respect to your outward supply if you have gone ahead and done some contraventions which are told in rule number 138e rule number 138e says restriction on person furnishing information in part a of ewb 01 no person shall be allowed to furnish information in part a in respect of outward supply of a registered person who when will my eva bill not be generated if i want to generate i can also not generate somebody else want to generate might be i have authorized transporter might be i have authorized e courier i have authorized courier agency might be have authorized e commerce operator to generate eva bill on my behalf they will not be able to generate if i am a composition dealer and i have not furnished cmp08 for two consecutive quarter sir if i am a person other than composition dealer i have not furnished a return for two consecutive tax period if i am filing monthly return that for two months i have not furnished my monthly return if i am furnishing return quarterly i have not furnished my two quarterly return then they are going ahead and telling your eva bill portal will be not allowing you to go ahead and generate eva bill with respect to outward supply with respect to your sale can i go ahead and purchase yes baba for your purchase eva bill will be allowed but for your sales you will not be able to generate eva bill being a person number 1 composition dealer two consecutive quarter ka cmp08 not filed normal person two monthly returns or two quarterly returns not filed then in that scenario eva bill portal will be blocked if you are a person other than a means normal person has not furnished gstr1 which is details of its outward supply for any two months or any two quarter then also eva will will be blocked you will not be able to generate eva bill or if you are a person whose registration has been suspended under rule number 21a 
2 or 2A, if your registration is under suspension, then also you will not be able to generate E way bill. Always remember four cases when E way bill will not be generated with respect to outward supply. Number one, composition person CMP08 for two quarters not filed. Sir, normal person monthly return for two months not filed or two quarters not filed. GSTR1 for two months or two quarters not filed. Sir, if you are a person whose registration has been suspended, then also E way bill with respect to your outward supply cannot be generated by you or any other person if you have authorized he will also not be able to generate with respect to your outward supply then one proviso is there if you want you can go to speak to the commissioner commissioner on receipt of an application from registered person in ewb05 and on sufficient cause being shown can give an order in gst ewb06 and he will allow you to furnish the party of gst ewb01 or he can also go ahead and give also, you can go ahead and reject your application after giving you an opportunity of being heard. Now, there are some important points, sir. A transporter has many uh, EV bills which are there. Can you consolidate and generate one EV bill? Yes, Baba, consolidated EV bill in GST WB02 can be generated, indicating serial numbers of all the individual EV bills. Can I go ahead and cancel EV bill? Yes, Baba, it can be cancelled within 24 hours, but before verification in transit. Sir, EV bill generated in one state, is it valid across India? Yes, Baba, it is generated for your whole journey, so it is valid in all other states all, all, also. Sir, always remember, railway ka case mein, railway ka case mein, one special point is told that railway ka case mein, EV bill is not required to be generated before, but railway will not give you the delivery unless you go ahead and show him the EV bill, unless you go ahead and show them the EV bill at the time of collecting. Basically, when you are going ahead and taking the delivery, you have to show the EV bill. EV bill generation is optional even if the consignment value is less than equal to less than equal to rupees 50,000. Sir, for me, can my courier agency, can my transporter or can my uh, e-commerce operator generate EV bill on my behalf? Yes, Baba, transporter, e-commerce operator or courier agency on an authorization receipt may furnish details in part A of EW01 and generate the e way bill. Always remember, supposingly one consigner, I am cutting something, you don't cut. If consigner has to send the goods to the consignee, might be the consigner will first send the goods to the GTA. GTA will go ahead and load it in that truck and then they will go ahead and send it supposingly to Delhi and then they will unload in different truck and take the goods and go. Always remember, one exception is there, if you are sending the goods to your transporter's place of business, which is intrastate movement up to 50 km, then EV bill may, part A is only required, you can cause the movement and then part B is not required. If the distance is up to 50 km, number one, sending it to transporter, intrastate and distance is up to 50 km, then part A is required, part B updation is not required, you can move the goods. But sir, once the goods reach over here, then they will update part B and take the goods and go. Sir, tell me one thing, if I am sending it to transporter interstate and amount, uh, distance is more than 50 km, then part A and part B both are required. Okay, sir, once the goods reach over here, they will go ahead and load it in a different truck, they will update the truck car detail, take the goods and go. Now, when the goods reach, supposedly from Bangalore, there is Delhi, now you will unload in a different truck and take the goods to what? Consignee's place of business, always remember from transporter's place of business, if you are going to take the goods to the consignee place of business, distance is up to 50 km, part A only is required, part B updation is not required. However, if the distance is greater than 50 km, part A and part B updation both will be, part A is required anyways, part B updation also will be required. Also, one additional point is there which I have gone ahead and written down over here. If a consignee is sending his goods, for the weighing bridge, if a consignor is sending the goods for weighing to the weighing bridge, where the weighing of the goods will be done, if the distance is up to 20 km, then document only delivery chalan is required because for weighment purpose, e -way bill is not required. But if the distance is greater than 20 km, then always remember delivery chalan plus e -way bill also will be required. Right everyone, this chapter which is there is a B graded chapter, 3 to 4 marks they go ahead and ask in the exam, in my opinion, if you go ahead and take care of why is the EV bill required, what are the scenarios when EV bill is required, then and what, how do you go ahead and calculate the consignment value, if you go ahead and take care of what is the validity of the EV bill, take care. sir when is EV bill not required to be generated, then who will go ahead and generate EV bill, take care. 
and then sir then what are the cases when e wave will, will be blocked right everyone these are the some of the a graded points in this b graded chapter right everyone i will go ahead and close my revision on the chapter of e wave bill over here everyone congratulations people clear all right people let's go ahead and start revising the next chapter the next chapter is time of supply everyone over here we started learning gst with goods and service goods and service has to be supplied supply can be interstate or intra inter means i gst will be levied intra means c gst will be levied once gst is levied gst has to be collected and paid by a taxable person he will go ahead and calculate gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax once you know the value you will go ahead and prepare the tax invoice credit note debit note and delivery chalan then you will go ahead and maintain your accounts and records and you will send the goods to the other person with the help of e way bill now government will go ahead and tell ramesh you have gone ahead and supplied the goods you have gone ahead and raised the invoice you have gone ahead and maintain your accounts you have sent the goods also what are you waiting for your bad time has come and that is known as time of supply that is your liability to pay gst has come and liability to pay comes at the time of supply when we are learning time of supply we will learn section number 12 which will go ahead and say time of supply in case of goods 13 which will go ahead and tell time of supply in case of service and 14 rate change right everyone now this chapter in my opinion is a big graded chapter again 3 to 4 marks is the maximum which you can go ahead and expect good luck then 6 marks also can go ahead and come now everyone over here time of supply in case of goods section number 12 section number 12 has section number 12 1 to section number 12 6 section number 12 1 goes ahead and says liability to pay tax on the goods shall arise at the time of supply section number 12 2 goes ahead and says forward charge mechanism may you are liable to pay the tax on the date of invoice or last date to issue invoice sir what do you mean by last date to issue invoice on the date of removal or sir making available or delivery continuous supply of goods ka case mein successive statement or when payment is received in case of goods sent on approval the last date to issue invoice is once six month gets over the very next day is the last date to issue invoice always remember date of invoice or last date to issue invoice whichever is earlier as per section number 12 a it is date of invoice or last date to issue invoice and then 12 b goes ahead and says that the date of receipt of payment date of receipt of payment means book entry or credit in the bank account whichever is earlier however then government went ahead and told that sir generally you will always go ahead and see section number 12 to a or 12 to b may whichever is earlier but then government went ahead and told supplier of goods government issued notification number 66 bar 2017 central tax where government went ahead and told government notified the supplier of goods need not pay the tax on advance hence supplier of goods need not go ahead and determine their time of apply their time of supply by going ahead and applying section number 12 to b they will go ahead and determine their time of supply as per section number 12 to a which says date of invoice or last date to issue invoice whichever is earlier then we have section number 12 3 which goes ahead and says recipient's point of view say reverse charge me if he has to pay tax on supply of goods date of then he will have to go ahead and see date of receipt of goods first event is date of receipt of goods second event is date of payment date of payment is always your book entry or debit in the bank account whichever is earlier because when you make the payment amount will be debited in your bank account so sir date of receipt of goods or date of payment or the supplier will go ahead and give you an invoice from the invoice you have to see the day following date following 30 days day date following 30 days from the date of invoice or other document by the supplier which is basically the 31st day date of receipt of goods date of payment or 31st day whichever is earlier yes everyone date immediately following 30 days from date of invoice or other document by the supplier whichever is earlier now always remember one thing if the supplier is a registered person in that scenario he will give you a tax invoice 
Yes, sir. But if supply is an unregistered person and you are required to pay tax under RCM, in that scenario, supplier, if he doesn't give you an invoice, he will give you a commercial invoice or a bill from that day. From that date, you will have to go ahead and take 31st today. I hope everyone is clear over here. Sir, everyone over here, date of receipt of goods is not there. Date of payment is also not there. And the 31st date, 31st date, is all 31st day is also not there that is the day following 30 days is also not there why sir because the supplier did not give any invoice only then they are going ahead and telling one proviso is there in section number 12 3 which goes ahead and says if clause a b and c is not available then take time of supply as the book entry in the books of accounts of the recipient that is i am the recipient i will go ahead and make an entry you no know, purchase account debit to cash that will only be the time of supply when my time will come bad always remember section number 12 2 section number 12 1 went ahead and told liability to pay will come at the time of supply 12 2 went ahead and told forward charge mechanism date of invoice or last day to issue invoice whichever is earlier section number 12 3 reverse charge date of receipt of goods or date of payment or 31st day from date day for date following 30 days from the date of invoice or other document by the supplier which is basically the 31st day whichever is earlier then we have vouchers ka case section number 12 4 goes ahead and says in case of voucher if the supply is identifiable or supply is not identifiable at the time of issue of voucher that is very important if supply is identifiable at the time of issue of voucher then go ahead then the date of issue of voucher will become your time of supply the day, day you are going in and issuing the voucher that is only your time of supply reliance footprint ka example it is there then sir if Sir, supply is not identifiable, then always redemption date will become the time of supply. Shopper stop ka one example is there. Then section number 12, 5 goes ahead and talks about residuary case. Sir, residuary case may government went ahead and told, say if, sex, if section number 12, 2, 3 and 4 are not applicable, always remember the time of supply. If you are a registered person, the due date of going ahead and filing your return is the time of supply. If you are an unregistered person, the day you pay it, the day you pay it, that will only become the time of supply. For an example, you are caught in an investigation. You went ahead and told, okay, sir, I was a taxable person. I did not take registration. I want to pay and close the case. He will go ahead and pay. Then you will ask him, what is my, when will my liability come? He will tell the day you pay it, that is only the date of, that is, that is only the date, that is only the date when your liability has. Can I go ahead everyone? The next one over here is section number 126 which goes ahead and says interest, penalty and late fee. IPL ka case may always the date of receipt of IPL is the time of supply. Did not receive, no liability. But the day you receive it, that day your liability will come. Yes everyone. Then we have section number 13 which talks about time of supply in case of service. Section number 13, one goes ahead and says section number 13, one says liability to pay tax in case of services shall arise at the time of supply section number 13 2 goes ahead and says if you are a supplier then the time of supply if you have gone ahead and raised the invoice on time the date of invoice or date of payment whichever is earlier if you have not gone ahead and raised the invoice on time date of provisioning of service or date of receipt of payment whichever is earlier always remember supplier of service is required to pay gst on advance also so but if there is a small advance which is up to rupees thousand which is being received by a which is being received by a supplier then it is his option he can go ahead and pay now also or he can go ahead and pay on the date of invoice also always remember one thing supplier of service has to go ahead and raise an invoice within 30 days if he is nbfi nbfc banking company financial institution and insurance company then the time limit is 45 days if i am a supplier of service and i am going ahead and providing continuous supplier service which is greater than three months then the time limit to raise the invoice is if due date is ascertainable on or before due date due date of payment is not ascertainable from the contract then on or before receiving the payment sir if payment is linked to completion on or before completion of the event i should go ahead and raise the invoice always remember one thing 30 days 45 days or due date or when you are receiving the payment or on completion of the event you have to raise the invoice on or before if you have raised the invoice on time date of invoice or date of pay receipt of payment whichever is earlier if you have not raised the invoice on time date of provisioning of service or date of receipt of payment whichever is 
earlier. Always remember if section number 13 to A or 13 to B is not applicable to you, basically you don't have date of invoice, date of receipt of payment or sorry date of receipt of payment or you don't have date of provisioning of service they are going ahead and telling if 13 to a and b is not applicable 13 to c goes ahead and says that sir your time of supply will be based on recipients books of account supposingly i went ahead and provided someone service i did not go ahead and raise the invoice i took the money in cash and i'm enjoying later one investigation happened in his books of account and the officer went ahead and saw there is no gst being charged he will go ahead and tell me ramesh you went ahead and supplied him and you did not go ahead and charge the GST. My time of supply will be based on recipient's books of account. And the day he has done the book entry, that will become my time of supply. Then we have section number 13.3. You always have to remember that when we went ahead and learned section number 12.3, we went ahead and learned date of receipt of goods or date of receipt of date of payment, not receipt of payment, date of payment or 31st day from the date of invoice. But then in case of 13.3, when it comes to reverse charge in case of service, date of receipt of service is not there. Date of receipt of service is not there. Date of payment is there or 31st day becomes 61st day from the date of invoice. That is day following 60 days from the date of invoice by the supplier of service. Are we clear everyone? If supplier is registered, he will give you a tax invoice. If supplier is unregistered, he will give you a commercial invoice or bill. Yes, everyone, let's go ahead. Now, always remember, in case of reverse charge, in case of service, always date of payment or 61st day from the date of invoice by the supplier. If importation of service is also happening, that is also date of payment or 61st day from the date of invoice by the supplier. But if importation of service happens from associate enterprises, then always it will be date of payment or instead of 61st day, they have gone ahead and told it is the book, date of book entry in the books of accounts of the recipient. Yes, everyone. Now, always remember, if section number 13.3a, that is date of payment or 61st day is not available, means basically the supplier did not go ahead and give you the invoice, then how to calculate 61st day from the date of invoice of the supplier? Then in that scenario, you can go ahead and take book entry date of the recipient as the time of supply. So I have gone ahead and received the goods under reverse charge. In that scenario, my book entry date will be taken as my date of sub time of sorry time of supply. Then always remember 13.4 voucher, 13.5 registry case, and 13.6, which is interest penalty and late fee, same as goods ka case. Voucher ka case means supply identifiable date of issue, supply not identifiable date of redemption. Residuary case, registered person, due date of filing of return. Sir, unregistered person, date of payment will become the time of supply. Interest penalty and late fee may the date of receipt of such interest penalty and late fee. The next one over here is time of supply in case of rate change. Always remember one thing, rate change ka case may there are two scenarios which are there. One is, is the goods and service supplied before the rate change? Always remember one thing, if you are falling in before ka case, you have to go ahead and see if invoice is before or payment is before. For an example, goods and service, this is rate change, goods and service supplied here, invoice is before, payment is after. What is before? Invoice is before, so invoice will be the date of time of supply and old rate will apply. Sir, rate change happened here, goods and service supplied. Here, payment is before, invoice is after. What is before? Because we are dealing with before ka case, payment is before, date of payment will become the time of supply and old rate will come. Sir, here the rate change, supply happened over here before wala case, but invoice is also after, payment is also after, you have to take whichever is earlier and because both of them are after, the new rate will apply. Then sir, if supposingly goods and services are supplied here, Sir, here, supposingly, goods and services are supplied after. So, sir, invoice is after, payment is before. What is after? Invoice. So, date of invoice will become the time of supply and after current new rate will apply. Sir, if goods and services are supplied after, payment is after, invoice is before. What is after? Payment and hence, you are dealing with after ka case. What is after? Date of payment and after well, a rate, new rate will apply. Sir, goods and service supplied after, invoice is also before, payment is also before. Always remember, whichever is earlier and old rate will apply. Then they have gone ahead and told special provisions are also applicable. If supposingly you are going ahead and seeing that when you are going ahead and determining the time of supply over here and you go ahead and see that the time of supply comes in case of goods date of payment, 
then always do one thing the time of supply will be deferred to the date of invoice and baba the rate will be applicable as of the date of payment yes everyone G supplier of goods need not pay the gst on receipt of advance so supp supposingly in special circumstances you went ahead and saw that the time of supply is coming as date of payment and it's an advance then in that scenario you can go ahead and shift the time of supply to the date of invoice and but in that scenario invoice ka date ka rate will not apply rate will be applicable as on the date of payment only payment of gst is being deferred but the rate will be applicable as on the date of time of supply which was basically the date of payment i hope everyone is clear let's go ahead always remember one thing generally the date of receipt of payment is always the book entry or credit whichever is earlier however in special circumstances government went ahead and told if supposingly this is the date of rate change and you have gone ahead and received one check over here once the rate change happened make sure your bank account may check is created within four working days if the check is created within four working days then it is date of book entry or credit in the bank account whichever is earlier so date of book entry will become your date of payment but but sir if rate change happened over here book entry means your account may check was you have received check on this date but the check did not get created in the bank account within four working days the day the check gets created in the bank account that will be the date of payment i hope everyone is clear date of receipt of payment is generally what date of receipt of payment is book entry or credit whichever is earlier if rate change ka case is there then date of receipt of payment will be if amount is created within four working days then book entry or credit whichever is earlier but if it is not created within four working days then they are going ahead and telling we will go ahead and take not book entry and credit whichever is earlier we will go ahead and take the actual date of credit in the bank account as the time of date of payment as the date of payment we went ahead and learned section number 12 section number 12 went ahead and told about time of supply of goods 13 told about time of supply in case of service 14 went ahead and told about rate change right everyone i will go ahead and close my revision on the chapter of time of supply over here i told you already it's a b graded chapter three to four marks is something which is expected in the exam have a great day everyone take care bye guys love you all All right, students, let's go ahead and revise our next chart. The next chart is on the chapter of input tax credit. Everyone, let's take a quick linking and then we'll go ahead. We started learning GST with goods or service. Goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be interstate or intrastate. Interstate supply, I GST will be levied. Intrastate, C GST. Once GST is levied, GST has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. How will he collect and pay? He will calculate GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax. Once you know the value, you will prepare tax invoice, credit note, debit note and delivery chalan. And then your liability to pay will come. Ah, okay, Baba. You will go ahead and maintain your accounts and records and you will send the goods to the other person with the help of e-way bill. Now your liability to pay will come. Liability to pay comes at the time of supply for an example you are liable to pay 1000 rupees you will go ahead and see how do i go ahead and pay this you will go ahead and use your input tax credit right everyone now input tax credit chapter we have section number 16 we have section number 17 and we have section number 18 section number 16 goes ahead and says who are the people who are eligible eligibility and condition is told by section number 16 section number 17 talks about apportionment and block credit section number 18 says special circumstances when you will get the credit today we are going to revise section number 16 very very important for your exam it also has a small amendment let's go ahead and get it started first of all what do you mean by input tax credit whatever inwards you buy basically might be might be it is input or it is input services or it is capital goods which are basically used or intention is to use for your business input input services or capital goods Inputs mean those goods which are inputs mean those goods goods which are used in your business other than capital goods which are used or intention is to use in your business. Then input services are those services which are used or intention is to use in your business. And capital goods mean those goods which are capitalized, used in your business, or intention is to use in your business. You will get all the inputs card, tax ka credit, tax means what everyone 
GST paid under forward charge or reverse charge and whatever GST you have paid basically under forward charge or reverse charge, you will get the credit. Whether it is CGST, HGST, IGST or UTGST or might be this compensation says also. Remember always whenever you go ahead and import, on importation you pay IGST and that credit also you will get on the basis of bill of entry and sir. But it does not include composition tax, means in, input pay tax ka credit you will get, but composition tax ka credit you will not get. So, whatever input pay, whatever tax you pay under forward charge or reverse charge, you will get the credit and credit will be given in the e credit ledger. Always remember one thing you have to go ahead and avail the credit, right, everyone, and the credit will be given in your e credit ledger. Later, you will go ahead and utilize it, right, everyone. Let's go ahead and understand the first first section, section number. 16, section number 16 and 16, 1, 16, 2, section number 16, 3 and section number 16, 4, section number 16, 1 goes ahead, 16 goes ahead and says eligibility and condition subject to which credit will be given, eligible is a registered person of the good services or both which he is using in his business and the credit will be given in the e-credit ledger, but the credit is given subject to condition fulfilled under section number 16 to section number 16 to condition which are there section number 16 to has a b c and d t r t r condition sir number one tax paying document receipt of good services or both tax paid to the government and return file only then you can go ahead and take the credit but here one more condition a a has been inserted which says that you can take the credit only when the supplier has gone ahead and uploaded the invoices or debit note in the prescribed manner basically he has gone ahead and uploaded in gstr1 and the amount is appearing in your gstr 2 b only then you can go ahead and basically go ahead and take the credit that is one new insertion section number 16 to a a let's understand section number 16 to a section number 16 to a says you should have possession of tax invoice revised tax invoice debit note or such other tax paying document as told in rule number 36 rule number 36 one goes ahead and says you should have boards bill of entry isd invoice rcma uh, you should have self invoice which is basically invoice under section number 313 f d for debit note and rs for suppliers invoice only then you can go ahead and take the credit you, rule number 36 sub rule 2 says description value tax gstr number and place of supply should be there in case of interstate supply place of supply should be there in your invoice or document only then you can go ahead and take the credit section rule number 36 sub rule 3 says you will not get the credit of those tax which is paid in case of demand order which is confirmed on occasion of on occasion of fraud, willful misstatement or suppression of fact. Rule number 36 sub rule 4 has been newly inserted. Everyone, what does it say? It says, no ITC shall be available to you with respect to invoice or debit note. The details of which are required to be furnished by the supplier in GSTR 1. And it has not been furnished. Means, he has to go ahead and furnish details in GSTR 1. It should be appearing in your GSTR 2B. Only then you will take the credit. That is now told by rule number 36. Rule number 36 sub rule 4 has been amended and they are telling you will get credit only when no ITC shall be available by registered person with respect to invoice or debit note. The details of which are required to be uploaded, which are required to be furnished in section number 31, 37, 1 unless the details of invoice or debit note have been furnished in GSTR 1 or he has used, supplier has used invoice furnishing facility and furnished the detail and the details of such invoices have been communicated in GSTR to be right everyone only if the details are communicated in to be only then you will be able to take the credit the same thing which is told in the law act rules have been told in the act under section number 16 to a a means law may law may one thing is there always remember one thing if they have gone ahead and told something in the rule the rule ke liye act ka backing has to be there now act may it is again inserted now in the act the same thing that the details of such invoices or debit note referred to in clause a should be have been furnished by the supplier and such details have been communicated to the recipient of such invoice in the manner prescribed under section number 37. Only then the condition to take the ITC is fulfilled. Are you guys able to understand? Next. Section number 16 to B says you should have received the good services or both. However, 
डीम रिसीव का कॉन्सेप्ट इज ऑल्सो फाइन बिल्ड टू शिफ्ट टू कम मॉडल में वेन द अल्टीमेट रिसिपियंट रिसीव इट यू विल बी डीम टू हैव रिसीव इट एंड यू कैन टेक द क्रेडिट ऑफ द इन वॉइस और डेबिट नोट देन सर यू शुड ऑलवेज हैव whatever the supplier has gone ahead and supplied you supply should have gone ahead and paid the tax to the government only then you can take the credit and the last one is you should have filed the return under section number 39 you should have asked for it only then the credit will be given everyone over here what did i teach you till now i told section number 16 one you you are registered person only then you can take the credit registered person can take the credit of the good services or both which is using in his business provided the condition under section number 16 2 is fulfilled section number 16 2 has five condition now a is tax paying document should be there a a is there which is telling that sir supplier should go ahead and show the invoices in the invoices and debit note in gstr 1 and it should be communicated to you only then you can take the credit and the same thing has also been told in rule number 36 sub rule Four, right, everyone. Then, sir, T R R for receipt of goods, services, or both tax paid to the government by the supplier using G S T R one. Using G S T R one, name of a tax should be paid by the supplier using his credit or cash, and you should have filed your return under section number thirty nine. Only then you will get the credit. Correct, everyone. Then we have proviso to section number sixteen two, which goes ahead and says sixteen two related proviso it is. Goods received in lots or installment. ITC on the receipt of the last lot or installment. Section number sixteen two का second proviso says you should make the payment to the supplier within one eighty days from the date of the invoice. If you don't make the payment to the supplier within one eighty days of invoice, whatever credit you have availed, the same amount has to be reversed along with interest at the rate of eighteen percent from the date of availing to the date the amount is reversed, added to your output tax liability and paid. No reversal with respect to those supplies which are made under supplies under RCM supplies without consideration and on that part of value of supply which is made by the recipient in that scenario there is no reversal, sir. Tell me one thing. After one eighty days you entered and reverse the credit. Later when I make the payment to the supplier will you give the credit again? Yes, Baba. There is no time limit. No time limit. You can take the credit again. Regain करने के लिए for regaining the credit there is no Time limit. Section number sixteen three says, if you take depreciation of the tax component, don't take ITC. If you take ITC, don't take depreciation. Section number sixteen four goes ahead and says, maximum time limit to go ahead and take the credit with respect to an invoice or debit note is, sir, due date of monthly return of September of the next financial year. Due date can be twenty eighth, twenty second, twenty fourth also. Right, everyone. September month ka. Due date September month ka monthly return ka due date which is basically generally 20th of September or actual date of annual return whichever is earlier. Here we are done with section number 16. A graded topic for your exam. Two amendments I told you. Rule number 36 sub rule 4 has been amended which says you can take the ITC only when supplier shows the invoices and debit note in the GSTR one and it comes in your GSTR two B. Same thing given law ka backing also by writing in section number 16 2. A A saying that supplier uploads the detail in GSTR one, communicated to you. Only then you can go ahead and take the credit. Here we are done with section number sixteen. Congratulations, people. All right, students. Let's go ahead and now do section number seventeen relating to chapter of input tax credit. Everyone, we were done with input tax credit section number. 16 right everyone input tax credit you have section number 16 section number 17 and section number 18 section number 16 one told registered person is eligible to take the credit provided he goes ahead and fulfills the condition under section number 16 to 16 to told tr tr condition tax paying document then one more is inserted a a that Supplier should have gone ahead and uploaded the details in GSTR one or invoice furnishing facility, and then it is coming to you in your GSTR two B. Only then you can go ahead and take the credit. Then, Baba, receipt of goods tax paid to the government and return is filed. Then, everyone, section number uh, sec sixteen three. If you have taken depreciation, ITC cannot be taken on the tax component. If you have taken ITC, depreciation cannot be taken. Section number sixteen four. maximum time limit will be september month ka monthly return ka due date 
or actual date of annual return, whichever is earlier. Done, everyone. The next one over here is 17. Section number 17 has section number 17. One, which says if you are going in and using something for business purpose or you are using something for non-business purpose, you will get the credit relating to business purpose. Section number 17, two, if you are using something for taxable supply, including zero-rated supply and exempt supply, you will get the credit relating to taxable supply, including zero-rated supply. How much you will get? How much you will not get? Government told section number 176 may rule number 40. Government told we will prescribe and government prescribed rule number 42 and 43. 42 is for input and input services. 43 is for capital goods. Right, everyone? If you see over here, apportionment of credit and block credit, good services or both used partly for business purpose, non-business purpose, you will get the credit relating to business purpose. If section number 72 used for taxable supply and exempt supply, you will get the credit relating to taxable supply, including zero rated supply. How much you will get? How much you will not get? Government told we will go ahead and prescribe the method and government prescribed rule number 42 and 43. Rule number 42 for input and input services. 43 for capital goods. Rule number 42, if you go ahead and understand it, you will go ahead and understand like this, right everyone? You will go ahead and get all the invoices. All these invoices are known as P, if your client has given you all these invoices for a month, input and input services kind invoice, you will have to go ahead and see, sir, out of all the T, T means total credit which is there, you have to go ahead and remove thief number 1. Thief number 1 is non-business purpose, remove it. Then you have to remove thief number 2, personal purpose, exempt purpose. Number 1, non-business purpose, remove, exempt supply related removed it then block credit you removed it now what you get is the credit credit ka credit will go to your e credit ledger out of this you have to remove ta exclusively taxable supply related and what you get is your common credit so common credit means the ones which are used for business purpose non business taxable and exempt whatever is your common credit which is there out of that you have to remove d1 which is D1 is what? Common credit multiplied by exempt supply divided by total turnover and D2 which is common credit multiplied by 5%. These two you have to go ahead and reverse it. These two you have to go ahead and reverse in your GSTR 3B or you have to go ahead and use your DRC03 and you have to pay it back to the government or this you have to reverse it in your GSTR 3B. Right everyone? So basically your eligible credit is common credit say D1 and D2 gone. C3 is your eligible credit and T4 is your eligible credit but you don't go ahead and do it like this. What you go ahead and do? T minus T1, T2, T3 and C1 ka credit you go ahead and take in the E credit ledger and D1 and D2 you go ahead and reverse it. Are we clear everyone? So always remember T is the total credit minus T1 non-business purpose T2 exam supply related, T3 block credit, you will get C1. C1 ka credit you take in the e-credit ledger. Out of this, you will have to go ahead and do what? T4 is gone, then you will go ahead and get C2. Right, everyone? C2 say you have to remove D1 and D2. D1 is what? C2 multiplied by E by F and D2 is 5% of C2. And basically, always remember E is your exam supply, F is your total turnover. And always remember in E by F, you have to remove central excise duty, state excise duty, VAT and CST. Right everyone, if E by F of current month is not there, take last month ka and do the reversal. Now C3 which is there, out of the common credit, D1 and D2 gone, eligible common credit is your C3. Right everyone, now always remember C3, D1 and D2, you have to compute separately for CGST, SGST, IGST and UTGST and you have to declare in your GSTR 3B and D1 and D2 has, shall be reversed. You have to put in your GSTR 3B eligible credit, ineligible and basically you will get the net credit and this will all or you can pay through DRC 03. Always remember one thing, D1 and D2 calculated every month versus the D1 and D2 calculated at the end of the year for the complete year. You will have to compare if D1 and D2 computed at the end of the year is more at the end of the year is more than the one which you have reversed every month then you have to ex do extra reversal and extra reversal when you are doing from the first of april till the date of reversal you have to go ahead and pay interest always remember the reversal should be done 
by 20th of October of the next financial year. I hope everyone is clear and it will be April to the date of payment you will have to pay interest. Sir, I have gone ahead and monthly reversal, I have reversed more. But annually, per annum, what I had to go ahead and reverse was less. Whatever extra reversal is there, take it back along with interest. No, Baba. Government will just go ahead and give it back. You can take the credit in your e-credit ledger. I'll tell you once again, always remember, first you will have a T. Out of the T, you have to go ahead and remove T. Personal purpose ka credit. Then, sir, exam supply related credit. And then, block credit. What is remaining with you is C1. Take the credit of C1. Then, you have to remove Keep on the side, taxable supply related. What will remain with you is the Khichdi, common credit. Out of the common credit, basically, this is used for business, non-business, taxable and exam. Out of the common credit, remove D1 and D2. This will be reversed in your... Basically, this will be reversed through your GSTR-3B or DRC-03. So, you are basically eligible for common credit, say... Eligible credit plus T4. I hope everyone is clear. Yes, sir, we got it. Now, if you come on the right hand side, the next one over here is common credit with respect to capital goods. How to go ahead and do it? Always remember one thing. For an example, if I go ahead and tell for the month of January, you bought something for taxable supply, please take the ITC in your e credit ledger. If you buy something for exam supply, don't take the ITC. If you are going ahead and buying something, which you are going with the credit is blocked, then don't take the ITC. If you are using something for non business purpose, don't take the ITC. If you are using something for taxable and exam supply, then please go ahead and mark it as apportionment and whatever is the amount, go ahead and take in the e credit ledger. I hope everyone is clear. Then, if you had gone ahead and earlier purchased an asset which you are using for exam supply, now you are going to use it commonly, then it should be also taken for apportionment and the amount which is there supposingly it is 1,20,000 it will also be created to your e-credit ledger because earlier you had not taken the ITC. Now earlier if you had purchased an asset which you are using for taxable supply but now earlier you had taken the already ITC now you are going to use it supposingly commonly so it is taxable supply plus exam supply so it will go for apportionment 1,80,000 for an example, the GST credit, you will not go ahead and take in the e credit ledger because you had already taken the credit. Now, whatever is the total of A will go ahead and give you TC. TC will be over here, supposingly 3,60,000, right everyone? Now, what will you go ahead and take is TM, monthly portion will be 3,60,000 divided by 60. Monthly portion is how much everyone? 60,000 into 6, 6,000 rupees, I hope. This is the monthly portion. In the monthly portion, TM into exempt supply divided by total turnover will give you TE, which is tax relating to exempt supply. Whatever the amount is there will be added to your output tax liability. Always remember one thing, whenever exempt supply is converted into taxable supply plus exempt supply, you have started using it. The asset which was used earlier for exempt supply now started using for taxable and exempt supply. Here, you have to calculate tax relating to interim period when it was used for exam supply which is basically the credit the gst which was there 1 lakh 20 thousand basically multiplied by 5 percent into per quarter or part thereof i hope everyone is clear and this will also be added to your output tax liability this will go to your output tax liability this will go to your output tax liability this this and this will go to your e credit ledger always remember one thing everyone this month you bought an asset so what are they going ahead and telling if you bought an asset which you are using for non-business purpose and exempt supply don't take the credit sir use for taxable supply take the credit sir if you are going ahead and using the asset commonly then you have to define it as a earlier an asset was used for Exam supply, now you are going to use for exempt and taxable supply. Again, take it as A, but calculate TIE. Are we clear, everyone? If you are going ahead and earlier using an asset for taxable supply, now using it commonly, then also it has to be A. A, A, A will give you TC. TC multiplied, TC divided by 60 will give you monthly portion. Monthly portion into E by F will give you TE. TE shall be added to your output tax liability. This was rule number 43. Please come back, everyone. I went ahead and told you section number 17, section number 17, one went ahead and told, if you are using something for business purpose and non-business purpose, you will get credit relating to business purpose. If you are going ahead and using section number 17 to taxable supply, including zero rated supply and exam supply, you will get the credit relating to taxable supply, including zero rated supply. How much you will get, how much you will not get, government told, we will go ahead and prescribe in section number 17, six, they told, roll number 42 and 43, may government went ahead and prescribe. 
government told in section number 76 we will go ahead and prescribe and government prescribed rule number 42 and 43 for input input services and 43 for capital goods section number 173 went ahead and told what do you mean by exam supply when you have to go ahead and do apportionment exam supply means sir nil rated supply transaction value basically section number 15 ka value wholly exam supply nil rated supply addition you have to go ahead and do rcm wala supply if i am going ahead and doing any rcm supply because i don't charge any tax i will not get the itc also so supply under rcm transaction in securities you have to take one percent of sale value sale of land and completed building takes stamp duty value sale of land and completed building is the only schedule 3 item which is included in exam supply for the purpose of apportionment any other schedule 3 item don't go ahead and include in your exam supply for the purpose of apportionment i hope everyone is clear always remember exam supply generally includes interest or discount but interest or discount is not to be considered as exam supply for the purpose of apportionment except in banking companies for banking companies interest income or discount will be considered as their exam supply now transportation of goods by a vessel from india outside india is an exam supply but for apportionment don't consider it as exam supply i will tell you exam supply always means nil rated wholly exam non taxable supply rcm ka supplies sir 1% of sale value in case of transaction in securities and sale of land and completed building total amount plus here you have to take stamp duty value interest income don't consider trans transportation of goods by a vessel from india outside india exam supply don't consider as your exam supply right everyone then we have section number 174 red with rule number 38 which goes ahead and talks about a banking company a nbfc financial institution or a banking company who is going ahead and basically giving what loans and advances and accepting deposit they have been given one option to either go for what apportionment apply rule number 42 and 43 or they have been given one more option banking companies have been told under section number 17 4 read with rule number 38 rule number 38 kisa, they have been told that if you are a banking company nbfc or financial institution whatever in a month you are buying input take 50 percent credit input services take 50 percent credit capital goods take 50 percent credit whatever you are using for non-business purpose don't take the itc whatever is your block credit ineligible credit don't take the itc if you are taking services input services from distinct person take 100 percent of the credit whatever you are eligible you have to basically go ahead and disclose in your gstr2 now gstr2 is not going so basically you will go ahead and disclose in your gstr3b and the amount will be given in your e-credit ledger always remember one thing whatever you are using, using for your non-business purpose don't take the credit block credit don't take it option exercise once you have, you can't withdraw it for the whole year and 50 percent restriction is not applicable in case of supplies from distinct person so banking company input input services and capital goods 50 percent of the credit distinct person say whatever input services have taken 100 percent of the credit non-business purpose whatever they have bought don't take the credit block credit they will not go ahead and take it so i went ahead and taught you section number 17 one when i told you something is used for business purpose and non-business purpose you will take the credit relating to business if you have gone ahead and used something for taxable supply including zero rated supply and exam supply you will take the credit relating to taxable supply including zero rated supply how much to take how much not to take government will prescribe and government told in rule number 42 and 43 42 and 43 then section number 173 exam supply ka definition section number 174 banking company go for rule number 42 and 43 or take 50 percent credit forget 50 percent credit right everyone distinct person say whatever service are taken 100 percent credit should be taken and section number 175 is your block credit those assets on which government have gone ahead and told that we are not going to give you the credit is known as block credit even if you are going ahead and using it for your business motor vehicle food beverages etc is there we will be going ahead and discussing about 17.5 in the next revision i will go ahead and close all my discussion on section number 17 over here congratulations people Alright people, let's go ahead and revise the next section, section number 17, subsection 5, which goes ahead and talks about block credit. Everyone over here, when we read section number 17, okay, when we read the chapter of ITC, first we have section number 16, section number 16 goes ahead and talks about who is eligible, registered person, 16 to condition, 3, depreciation taken, don't take ITC, sir, maximum time limit to go ahead and take the credit 
Then, sir, section number 17 has section number 17 one, which says if you are using something for business purpose and non business purpose, you can take ITC only for business purpose. Section number 17 two, if you are going ahead and using something for taxable supply and exam supply, you should only for taxable supply, including zero rated supply. Section number 17 three told about exam supply ka definition. 74 banking companies and section number 17 5 which goes ahead and talks about block credit even if you are buying something for your business if government have gone ahead and told that thing in the block credit you will not go ahead and get the credit let's go ahead and now revise the chapter of block credit not the chapter of block credit the section number 17 subsection 5 which goes ahead and talks about block credit everyone over here First, first one, section number 17.5A goes ahead and says, motor vehicle, motor vehicle for transportation of person with approved seating capacity less than equal to 13, including the driver is blocked. Always remember, motor vehicle for transportation of goods is not blocked. Always remember one thing, whatever is not blocked, whatever is not blocked is always allowed. Whatever is not blocked, it is always allowed. Unless blocked, everything is always allowed can i go ahead everyone what they have blocked over here is motor vehicle for transportation of person having sitting capacity less than equal to 13 including the driver only then it is blocked now in the exam they will tell you motor vehicle for transportation of goods it is allowed motor vehicle for transportation of person sitting capacity is 13 excluding the driver then allowed because 13 excluding the driver means including driver it is 14 and 14 is allowed less than equal to 13 is Block if it is including the driver. But if you are going in and using it for making taxable supply, which is further supply, transportation of passenger and training, then the credit shall be allowed. Remember always, if you buy a car to sell a car, buy a car to supply, supply means lease a car, supply can be sale, transfer, barter, exchange, lease, rental, license, disposal. Buying a car to sell a car, credit allowed. Buying a car to rent a car, credit allowed. Buying a car to lease a car, credit will be allowed. Buying a car to provide transportation of passenger also credit will be allowed. Buying a car to give training. Basically, buying a motor vehicle means two-wheeler, four-wheeler. Okay, everyone. Now, all this to give training also credit will be allowed. Then they went ahead and told vessel and aircraft credit will be blocked. Credit will be blocked, but it will be allowed if you are going ahead and doing for the supply, transportation and training. That is training on navigating in vessel and training on flying aircraft then the credit will be allowed then they also went ahead and told vessel and aircraft car we block the complete credit so now we are going ahead and allowing transportation of goods are we clear everyone it means motor vehicle they had gone ahead and blocked only for person and hence they did not have to go ahead and allow for transportation of goods because transportation of goods was never blocked but here they went ahead and blocked what vessel and aircraft completely and hence they went ahead and told vessel and aircraft for transportation of person is blocked our uh, goods also is blocked but then later they went ahead and allowed for goods and person also they went ahead and told if you are using for further supply transportation of passenger and training then baba training means you will not say driving aircraft or you will not say driving ship you will say navigating ship or flying of aircraft ka case me if you are teaching flying aircraft etc credit shall be allowed now, sir, always remember one thing, wherever the credit is allowed on the main vehicle, servicing, insurance, repair and maintenance ka credit also shall be allowed. Always remember, services of general insurance, servicing, repair and maintenance ka credit is blocked, but it shall be allowed when it is used for specified purpose. Specified purpose in case of motor vehicle means for the supply, transportation and training vessel and aircraft ka case mein they have told for the supply transportation training and also transportation of goods ka case mein always remember one thing wherever main vehicle pe credit is allowed their servicing repair and maintenance pe also credit is allowed sir whenever main aircraft main vessel motor vehicle vessel and aircraft pe credit is blocked their servicing insurance and repair and maintenance ka credit is also blocked tell me one thing transportation of goods ke liye if a motor vehicle is bought is the credit allowed Yes. Is the servicing, insurance, repair and maintenance ka credit allowed? Yes. Can I go ahead everyone? Nick. Now, servicing, insurance and repair and maintenance ka credit is blocked. But then they went ahead and told if servicing, insurance, repair and maintenance is taken by a person who is into manufacturing a motor vehicle or who is into general insurance business relating to that motor vehicle, vessel or aircraft in that scenario. 
to the manufacturer of motor vehicle vessel and aircraft and to the person providing insurance of that motor vehicle vessel and aircraft credit shall be allowed of the services insurance and repair and maintenance are we clear everyone then section number 17 5b went in and told food and beverages credit is blocked outdoor catering credit is blocked Beauty treatment credit is blocked. Everyone listen to me very carefully. Leasing, renting, hiring of motor vehicle, vessel and aircraft also credit is blocked. Wherever buying of motor vehicle, vessel and aircraft ka credit is blocked. There, if you go ahead and take it on lease, rent, etc. also credit shall be blocked. Leasing, renting, hiring of motor vehicle, vessel and aircraft also credit is blocked. Health, health services credit is blocked. Cosmetic and plastic surgery credit is blocked. Life insurance and health insurance also credit is blocked. block but always remember one thing if food and beverages wala is providing to another food and beverages wala because i am going to further supply i will be able to take the credit food and beverages wala to another food and beverages wala outdoor catering wala to another outdoor catering wala beauty treatment wala to another beauty treatment wala if a person is into leasing or renting or hiring of motor vehicle he takes leasing and renting of hire hiring of motor vehicle then he credit will be allowed health services wala to another health services wala cosmetic plastic surgeon to another cosmetic plastic surgery wala life insurance health insurance to another person who is providing life insurance health insurance credit shall be allowed because it is sub contracting and sub contracting pe credit shall be allowed but sir always remember one thing if all these things are provided as an element of taxable composite supply and mixed supply credit shall be allowed i have entered and told you for an example airline company goes ahead and provides you airline airline company provides you travel or basically transportation service along with that food is given so it's a composite supply wherein food and beverages or outdoor catering is taken by the airline company they will be allowed the credit of the food and beverage and outdoor catering because they are providing food and beverage or the outdoor catering ka services as a element of their composite supply or mixed supply right everyone whatever you want to call it it's a composite supply but even if it is a mixed supply and your item all these items are a element of that composite supply or mixed supply credit shall be allowed the next one over here is club membership and health and fitness center ka membership ka credit is not allowed travel benefits which are given to employee on vacation home travel allowance etc in that scenario whatever travel benefits you are going ahead and giving to your employee who are on vacation they will come and give you the bill you will not get the credit always remember one thing this are things food and beverage outdoor catering uh, beauty treatment leasing renting hiring of motor vehicle health service cosmetic surgery life insurance health insurance club membership health and fitness center ka membership travel benefit given to employee all these thing ka credit is blocked but it shall be allowed if either of them are provided as an obligation under the law for an employer to provide to the employee for an of example if it is an obligation under the law to go ahead and provide cab services to an women employee who is living after 10 o'clock and you have gone ahead and taken motor vehicle on rent to go ahead and fulfill your obligation under the law you will get the credit might be it is told in the law that uh, coal mines etc has to go ahead and take life insurance of their employee now if you have gone ahead and taken the life insurance of your employee employees because of a statutory obligation you will get the credit always remember if you are going ahead and doing if you are taking food and beverage ka service outdoor catering ka service beauty treatment ka service leasing renting hiring of motor vehicle ka services or you are taking health services cosmetic surgery plastic surgery or life insurance health insurance fitness center ka membership club membership travel benefit given to your employee on vacation all these things if they are done because of a statutory obligation under any law you will be given the credit if you take this services because you have to fulfill as an employer all this obligation for the employee you are going ahead and doing then you will be given the credit always remember one thing works contract when it is provided with respect to an immovable property which is basically being capitalized then there will be no itc remember if works contract services for immovable property which is planted machinery itc shall be allowed further works contract service ke liye if you have taken works contract service itc shall be allowed always remember one thing works contract service for immovable property itc is not allowed but works contract service to go ahead and provide further works contract or works contract service for a planted machinery itc shall be allowed remember one thing this credit is blocked only when the works contract service is capitalized if you have gone ahead and taken a works contract service and the amount is put in the pnl account in that scenario you will be able to take the credit of the works contract service ka gst now i went ahead and told who will take works contract service i will go ahead and buy material and i will go ahead and do my own construction if you go ahead and buy 
goods or services you take and you do the own construction also then will be great will be blocked always remember then also the crate shall be blocked but if you go ahead and do own construction of your plant and machinery crate shall be allowed might be if you are going ahead and taking all these goods and services and you are not doing own construction but doing construction for someone else then credit shall be allowed. Always remember one thing, either it is worst contract service or for immoral property or good services or both received by a taxable person for an immoral property, credit is blocked only if it is capitalized. If it is put in the p &L account, credit shall be allowed. Remember one thing, construction will always include reconstruction, renovation, addition, alteration, repair to the extent capitalized to the immoral property, only then it is blocked, not capital, not uh, if it is not capitalized, you will, it will always be allowed. Remember one thing, plant and machinery ka crate is allowed. Plant and machinery includes apparatus, equipment, e machinery, which is fixed to the earth by foundation or structural support and you are using it to make what? Outward supply and you should always remember your plant and machinery will include foundation and structural support. Might be I went ahead and got one plant and machinery installed. Might be this is a boiler. Baba, this is a boiler. Okay, this is not a cup. Okay. Now, boiler which is there, you went, went ahead and got the structural support, you got the foundation done, foundation and structural support ka works contract services ka also, you will get the credit because this will also be considered as plant and machinery. Always remember one thing, these things are not considered as plant and machinery, land and building, civil structure, telecommunication tower, pipeline laid outside the factory, you will not get ITC because these are never considered as plant and machinery. In the exam, they will tell you. Telecommunication equipment, Baba equipments ka credit is allowed. What is blocked is telecommunication tower, civil structure, or pipeline laid outside the factory. Credit shall be blocked. Can I go ahead, everyone? The next one over here is if you go ahead and pay any tax under composition, the front party will never get the credit because, anyways, you are issuing him bill of supply. Bill of supply ka basis pay, he can never get the credit. And composition dealer, whatever 1%, 1%, 5%, 6% he pays, the front party will never get the credit then sir the next one over here is if i have gone and imported some goods importation of goods by an nrt sorry if i am an nrtb whatever goods or service i am receiving in india there will be no credit at all but if i am going in and importing some goods at the time of importation i will pay igst igst which i pay at the time of importation i will be able to take the credit then sir if i have gone in and bought something for my personal purpose there will be always no credit at all goods lost baba thief cases thief Goods lost, ITC lost. Goods stolen, ITC stolen. Goods destroyed, ITC destroyed. Goods eaten by rat, ITC eaten by rat. Goods given as free sample, ITC given as free sample. Goods gifted, ITC gifted. Section number 17.5H. In the exam, write subsection also. 17.5H. Remember, this is only one thing which I am telling you to remember. 17.5 is block credit. 17.5H. Goods lost. ITC lost, goods stolen, ITC stolen, goods destroyed, ITC destroyed. Can I go ahead everyone? But remember one thing, whenever you go ahead and give free sample, if it is supply, then ITC is allowed. If it is not supply, then ITC is blocked. Can I go ahead everyone? The next one over here is, sir, total thief case, total thief. Sir, what do you mean by total thief? You are trying to evade, going on the way, detained under section number 129, confiscation happens so always remember one thing if you pay tax under section number 74 129 130 basically you are trying to do some evasion detention or confiscation can i pay if you have paid any tax take tax paid in accordance with provision of section number 74 that is demand order in case of fraud sir 129 when your goods were being detained at the time of detention and seizure you paid some tax or at the time of confiscation if you paid some tax that tax credit will never be allowed right everyone here we are done with your block credit ka quick discussion always remember one thing motor vehicle vessel and aircraft what did i go ahead and tell you if you remember over here this person needs health service this person needs beauty treatment and plastic surgery he will go ahead and take a motor vehicle vessel or aircraft always remember credit is blocked he will go to fitness center fitness center ka credit is blocked he went to a club and then club ka credit is blocked and he became a bodybuilder started doing Conflicts, conflicts ka credit is blocked. C for construction. Whether it is works contract, credit is blocked, or it is good services or both received for own construction, then also credit is blocked. Right, everyone, to the extent capitalized only. Right, everyone. Then O for outdoor catering, credit is blocked. And for NRTP ka credit is blocked. Other than goods, imported, food and beverages pay. Always remember credit is blocked. LI means life insurance and 
हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस का ग्रेटेस्ट ब्लॉक सी फॉर कंपोजिशन टैक्स का ग्रेटेस्ट ब्लॉक टी फॉर ट्रैवल बेनिफिट्स गिवन टू एम्प्लॉयज ऑन वेकेशन 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 बी वेरी केयरफुल नेक्स्ट देन थीप 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 केसेस में ग्रेटेस्ट ब्लॉक गुड्स लॉस आईटीसी लॉस गुड्स स्टोलन आईटीसी स्टोलन दीज आर ऑल थीप केसेस एंड टी फॉर टोटल थीप टोटल थीप मींस यू आर ट्राइंग टू डू एन इवेजन यू आर कॉट एंड यू हैव टू पे सम टैक्स that tax credit rate will never be allowed to you also if you want to pass on the credit to the front party by going ahead and issuing a debit note or invoice in that invoice or debit note you should specifically write itc not admissible and the front party will not get the credit very important topic for your exam a graded topic you will have a 3 to 5 mark question from this i will stop my discussion on section number 17 block credit over here congratulations people All right, students. Let's go ahead and now revise the next chart. The next chart is relating to section number eighteen of your chapter of ITC. Everyone over here in your chapter of input tax credit. In the previous videos, input tax credit. May we have revised section number sixteen? We have revised section number seventeen. Section number sixteen. One went ahead and told who is eligible. Registered person is eligible. Section number sixteen. Two told what are the conditions subject to which you are. Eligible, right, everyone. Section number sixteen three. Depreciation taken on the tax component. Don't take ITC. ITC taken. Don't take depreciation. Section number sixteen four. Maximum time limit to go ahead and take the credit is September month ka monthly return or annual return ka actual date, whichever is earlier. Section number seventeen one. Using something for business purpose, non business purpose. Take the credit relating to business purpose. Two went ahead and told if you are using something for taxable supply and exempt supply, take the credit for taxable supply. Section number seventeen three, exempt supply ka definition for the purpose of apportionment. Section number seventeen four, banking company take fifty percent credit, forget fifty percent, distinct percent take hundred percent or go for apportionment. Seventeen five. Block credit seventeen six. Government will tell the apportionment method, and government has prescribed rule number forty two and forty three. Now we are going to sec do section number eighteen. Section number eighteen one says, what are the special circumstances when the credit will be allowed? Section number eighteen one told about special circumstances. Eighteen two told special circumstances may credit will be allowed only of those invoices which are up to one year old. Invoices older than one year credit will not be. Allowed section number eighteen three told when you transfer the business transfer the credit also section number eighteen four reversal of credit when normal person becomes composition taxable supplies of a registered person becomes exempt supply section number eighteen five gives gain total bequest and eighteen six is when you are going in and supplying plant and machinery on which you are taking the ITC you pay the tax on transaction value or reduced amount of ITC whichever is. Hi, yar. Let's do section number eighteen one. Section number eighteen one A goes ahead and says, if you are going ahead and taking new registration, basically once you become liable, you should apply within thirty days. If you have gone ahead and applied within thirty days and registration is granted, it is affecting from the date of effective from the date of you becoming liable. So once you become liable, one day prior, whatever input is in your stock. Input is then your semi-finished goods. Input is then your finished goods. One day prior to the date of becoming liable, you will you will be eligible to take the credit, sir. If I don't go ahead and apply within thirty days, always remember credit will not be allowed of your stock if you have not gone ahead and applied for registration within thirty days. Basically, the person will not be allowed to file ITC zero one and take the credit. Section number eighteen one B goes ahead and says if you have gone ahead and taken voluntary registration under section number twenty five subsection. Three. Then, in that scenario, always remember the day registration is granted. From that date is valid. So, one day prior, whatever input is in your stock, semi-finished goods and finished goods, you will be able to take the credit. Right, everyone. From one day prior to the date of grant, always remember. Composition person becomes a normal person. He starts paying tax under section number nine. From the day he starts paying taxes under section number nine, one day prior, whatever input is in stock, input is in. There is semi-finished goods. Input is in finished goods. He will be able to take the credit plus capital goods. Ka credit also allowed five percent reduced per quarter or part thereof. Right, everyone. Then section number eighteen one D says if you are supplying exempt supply, basically you are a registered person and your exempt supplies have become 
taxable supply you are a registered person remember 181 d is applicable only if you are registered person even you are supplying exam supply also and that exam supply have now become taxable supply then the date with this the exam supplies have become taxable supply one day prior whatever input is there in your stock input is there in your semi finished goods input is there in your finished goods which is which is with respect to that exam supply of that you can take the itc plus capital goods which were used for that exam supply that ka credit also you can take 5% reduce per quarter or part thereof then section number 18 2 is applicable only in special circumstances which are told under section number 18 1 a b c d and it says you will not get the credit of imports or capital goods for which invoices are older than 1 year right everyone please be very careful no itc of goods basically input or capital goods for which uh invoices are older than one year rule number 42 goes ahead and says manner of claiming the credit under section number 181 a b c d how will you do it they are going ahead and telling under section number 181 a b c d anyways input is allowed c and d may capital goods ka credit also will be allowed from the date of invoice you have to reduce 5% per quarter or part thereof you have to go ahead and file within 30 days plus 30 days ka extension can be given you have to go ahead and file form gst itc 01 along with the form gst itc 01 if the amount of claim is greater than 2 lakh you will have to go ahead and put one ca certificate right everyone and in the itc 01 when you are going ahead and filing you have to go ahead and tell what is your input in stock what is your capital goods ka detail all those details have to be given also remember 181 c and d may whenever you are going ahead and claiming the credit that will be verified with the supplier ka gstr 1 or gstr 4 then sir section number 18 3 goes ahead and says if you have gone ahead and transferred your business to someone might be there is a sale which has happened merger demerger amalgamation lease transfer of business including that then you are allowed to go ahead and transfer your credit to the Other person का e credit ledger always remember transfer is going ahead and transferring the business as going concern is exempted transfer if he is a registered person and transfer who is there has to take registration under section number twenty two sub section three now transfer her in his e credit ledger whatever credit is there he can transfer it to the transfer he just have to file gst itc zero two transfer will accept and the credit will be transferred to his e credit ledger always remember registered person is allowed to transfer the credit. to the e credit ledger of the transferee he will have to go ahead and follow rule number 41 which says you have to file a declaration itc 02 buyer will accept and the credit will be transferred in case of demerger always remember if you are a big unit you have demerger demerge a small unit then in case of demerger you will go ahead and transfer how much in the asset ka ratio you have to go ahead and transfer the credit 800 crore ka asset you kept it 200 crore ka asset you demerge you give it to the demerged unit in that scenario 8 is to 2 ka ratio may your credit should be a portion then no time limit to file the declaration which is itc 0 2 but ca square chartered accountant or cost accountant certificate mandatory irrespective of the amount now always remember one thing one more thing they have gone ahead and told if in one state same state may you have gone ahead and taken one separate registration for a separate unit then in that scenario from here to here you can go ahead and transfer the credit how will you go ahead and transfer you have to file itc 02a within how many days 30 days but always remember only if you have taken separate registration within the same state you can transfer the credit by filing itc 02a and there is a time limit to file itc 02a which is 30 days itc 02 there is no time limit but itc 02a there is a time limit of 30 days now everyone over here if you were a composition person you became normal person government gave you the credit what if normal person becomes composition whatever credit is given you have to reverse it sir if i was doing exam supply and now i became raised uh, tax uh, my supply is became taxable supply then i will get the credit correct if taxable supply of a person becomes exam supply he will have to go ahead and reverse the credit are we clear here you are given the itc here you are given the itc but if you become normal person to composition itc has to be reverse taxable supply is becoming exam supply itc has to be reverse reversal always remember one thing whatever stock is remaining stock ka reversal has to be done full capital goods ka reversal the itc taken divided by 60 months into the remaining months right everyone always remember payment of itc on switching to composition means normal person becoming composition or supplies becoming exam supply means your taxable supplies of a registered person might become 
exempt supply then rule number 44 talks about the manner of reversal which says credit of input with respect to input in stock semi finished goods and finished goods itc calculated proportionately basically you have to pick up the invoices where you have gone in and taken the credit of those invoices then that much amount has to be reversed right everyone might be you have taken the credit for 100 goods only remaining is 50 then reversal will be done only of 50 then capital goods ka reversal always remember whatever the itc you have taken divided by 60 month multiplied by the balance month monthly reversal monthly calculation ka basis pe reversal has to be not monthly reversal monthly calculation ka basis pe reversal has to be done amount of reversal calculate separately for cgst sgst igst or duty gst always remember if you go ahead and tell sir more than one year old i don't have invoice government is selling baba when i am giving you i will not give you if invoice if invoices are older than one year but when you are giving you have to go ahead and give even if the amount or even if the invoices are older than one year sir i lost the invoice baba in that scenario please go ahead and take the fair market value and on the basis of that you have to pay the tax are we clear everyone you have to go ahead and calculate your reversal sir how will i go ahead and do amount of uh, amount which is determined above basically how much ever is the amount of reversal that will be added to your output tax liability you have to file, file one form gst itc03 there is no time limit to file itc03 but and no csi certificate is required except when fair market value is used it will be certified by a practicing chartered accountant or cost accountant right everyone always remember section number 18.5 is total bakwas 18.5 goes ahead and says please follow rule number 40 and for reversal follow rule number 44 okay we will do section number 18.6 goes ahead and says if you are going ahead if you are going ahead and supplying your plant and machinery and capital goods you will have to pay tax on transaction value or the itc minus five percent per quarter or part thereof that is the reduced amount of itc whichever is higher be very careful in your exam only if they have told you plant and machinery pay itc was taken and now that is sold then tax on transaction value or itc availed whichever is higher if you are not taking the itc at the time of buying those goods then only tax on transaction value be very careful about it but if tax was taken itc was taken at the time of purchasing means then whatever is the reduced amount of itc or tax on transaction value whichever is higher always remember one thing is scrap if mold dyes fixtures zigs etc is sold as crap you just have to pay tax on transaction value and chapter is over right everyone now everyone over here there are three circulars which are given can you guys see over here circular with respect to itc apportionment in case of business reorganization section number 18.3 read with rule number 41 in case of demerger people went ahead and asked some question and government went ahead and replied people went ahead and asked sir when i have to go ahead and see when i have to go ahead and see asset ka ratio will i see all india asset ka ratio or i'll see state wise asset ka ratio government went ahead and told for itc apportionment value of the assets of the new unit to be taken at state level that is at distinct person level and not at all india level you will not see all india level ka asset ratio you will see state wise asset ka ratio and on that basis you will go ahead and transfer the credit then people went ahead and asked do i have to file itc02 in every state government went ahead and told you have to file itc02 in case of demerger basically in those states only where both transfer and transfer are there if one state may transfer is not there then why will you file itc02 you have to file itc02 only in those states where both transfer and transfer are registered then people went ahead and asked sir you went ahead and told the apportionment formula basically on the asset ratio you have to go ahead and transfer the credit only in case of demerger then government went ahead and clarified it will be applicable asset ratio ka basis pe you can transfer the credit from your e-credit ledger to the transferee this is applicable in any form of business reorganization wherein basically you have gone ahead and cut a part of your business and transfer to someone else then that much part how much you have transferred to someone else that much ka assets ratio may basically you can transfer the credit also it is telling it is not asset ratio ka basis pe apportionment formula of apportionment on the basis of itc is not basically formula of itc apportionment which is basically asset ka ratio may apportionment it is not applicable only for demerger it is applicable for all business reorganization wherein, wherein basically one part of the business is hived off and transfer to someone else can i go ahead everyone then apportionment ratio shall be applied to the total itc government people went ahead and asked cgst i have 5 lakh sgst i have 5 lakh igst i have 
10 lakh means I have 20 lakh. Supposingly I have to transfer 50 percent. Will I transfer? Will I apply that apportionment uh, asset ka ratio on the total amount or each head? Government went ahead and told apply on the total amount. If you go ahead and transfer 50 percent, then apply on the total amount 50 percent asset. If you are transferring 50 percent asset, you will transfer 50 percent credit. So apply on this total amount. So you have to transfer 10 lakh. Now people went ahead and asked this 10 lakh should be from which head? Government told your wish you want to transfer from whichever head you want. They are telling transferers shall be at the liberty to determine the amount to be transferred from each head. If you want from IGST, give IGST only total 10 lakh, no problem at all. Whichever head you want, you can go ahead and transfer from that head. Then people went ahead and asked, sir, we have to go ahead and transfer the credit. We will need what? How much is the ITC to be transferred? For that, we will need, we will go ahead and need e-credit ledger ka balance. Correct everyone, multiplied by ratio of asset, yes or no? So, people went ahead and asked, sir, which day ka e-credit ledger ka balance? So, government told the day you are filing ITC 02, that day ka e-credit ledger ka balance, you take it. People asked, which day ka asset ka ratio? Government went ahead and told, whatever is the apportionment, sorry, appointment date of day merger, that day ka asset ka ratio can be taken. Asset ka ratio multiplied by the ITC ka balance, you will know how much the amount is to be transferred. Remember always, ITC apportionment, when you are going ahead and apportioning the ITC, you will apportion on the basis of asset ka ratio, asset ka ratio to be taken at state level, that is distinct person level, ITC 02 to be filed only in those states where transfer and transfer both are registered, then apportionment ratio, please apply to the total balance of the accurate ledger balance and then and then you have to go ahead and uh, transfer that amount, but transferring the amount you can transfer from any head which you want, then then got people went ahead and asked what, uh, ha, is the apportionment formula which is told basically asset ka ratio may have to apportion is applicable only on demerger, government went ahead and told it is applicable on all forms of business reorganization where basically one part of the business is hyped off means cut off. Then, sir, then people went ahead and asked which day ka ITC ka balance and which day ka asset ratio has to be taken, government went ahead and told ITC ka balance on the day of filing ITC 02 and asset ka ratio appointment date of demerger. In my opinion, they should ask a small question from this. I like this circular. Next, sir, circular on free gift and sample. Everyone, free samples and gift related one circular was there. Government went ahead and clarified simply. Government went ahead and told if you bought glass and you gave glass as free, it is schedule one permanent transfer of business asset where ITC has been availed on glass. Hence, it is a supply and ITC will be available. Are we clear everyone? I went ahead and bought some plastic, made a glass out of it and then gave the glass free that is not a supply and ITC will be blocked. Right everyone? Then people went ahead and asked, sir buy one get one free what will happen? Government told the second one is not actually free, it is two supplied at the price of one and you will be getting the ITC of input, input services and capital goods. Government went ahead and told the second one is not free. You will get the ITC of both because it is two individual supplies supplied at the price of one. ITC with respect to input, input service and capital goods shall be allowed. People went ahead and asked, sir, if I am going ahead and giving offers like buy 10,000 get 10% 10 discount, buy 20,000 get 20% discount, buy 30,000 get 30% discount, buy more, get more. Then government went in and clarified these discounts which are there are shown in the invoices and there will be no impact on your input, input services and capital goods ka credit. All the credit shall be allowed to you. Right everyone. The next one over here is circular with respect to original equipment manufacturer and component manufacturer. Everyone over here, one is a component manufacturer, one is the original equipment manufacturer. Original equipment manufacturer told the component manufacturer, you buy the mold, you make the item and give it to me. Right everyone? But he could not go ahead, component manufacturer could not go ahead and find out the, find the mold and hence, original equipment manufacturer bought the mold and gave it to the component manufacturer free of cost. In this scenario, always remember, it was his obligation to buy the mold which is fulfilled by the supplier Sub supplier ka obligation fulfilled by the recipient, supplier ka obligation fulfilled by the recipient. In this scenario, this mold ka ITC, I will not get it. If I have taken, I have to reverse it. Now, when I go ahead and give the mold free of cost to him and he goes ahead and makes the component and gives it to me, whatever is the value of supply in that mold ka amortized amount also has to be added. Are we clear everyone? However, if the contract was there, Component manufacturer told original equipment manufacturer, you buy the mold and you give it to me. I will give you the component. In that scenario, 
it was my obligation to buy the mold i bought the mold gave it to him in this scenario when i buy the mold i will get itc also and when he gives me the component in that component ka value of supply amortized amount of mold also will not be added always remember one thing if contract was for supply of component using the mold and die of component manufacturer but supplied by original equipment manufacturer amortized cost of mold and die also will be added and you as a original equipment manufacturer your itc also will be reversed because buying of mold was not your business can i go ahead everyone then if comp contract was that the contract was for supply of component using mold and die of original equipment manufacturer i bought and gave it to you you made the component and gave it to me it was my business to buy the mold i can take the credit and also when you give me the component in that there will be no addition also in the value of supply i hope you guys are clear everyone over here section number 18 is also important for exam section number 18 one becomes important 18 3 which is important the circulars which are which i feel are important section number 18 6 is also a good question to be asked in the exam right everyone now listen to me very carefully we have gone ahead and concluded our discussion on itc ka chapter itc chapter section number 16 section number 16 one registered person is eligible section number 16 2 condition in the condition in the condition section number 16 a a is inserted and rule number 36 sub rule 4 has been amended basically what they are trying to tell is you can take the itc only if the amount is appearing in your gstr 2b basically the supplier has filed a gstr 1 or he has disclosed those detail in invoice furnishing facility and it is appearing in your gstr 2b only then you can take the credit section number 163 taken depreciation on the tax component don't take itc section number 164 maximum time limit to take the credit section number 17 one business purpose non business purpose if you are using something you can take the credit only relating to business purpose section number 17 two taxable supply and exempt supply you can take the credit only respect to taxable supply including zeroated supply how much to take how much not to take government told in rule number 42 and 43 section number 73 exempt supply ka definition nil rated only exempt not taxable supply rcm ka supply 1% of sale value of transaction in securities and land and building ka land and completed building ka stamp duty value interest income don't consider transportation of goods by a vessel from india outside india don't consider as exempt supply but interest income in case of banking company is exempt supply done banking companies can go ahead with rule number 42 and 43 or they can apply rule number 38 50% credit distinct person 100% credit block credit don't take non business purpose don't take section number 75 block credit right everyone then section number 18 went ahead and told about 18 one special circumstance 18 two invoices older than one year no credit 18 three transfer of business in case of transfer of transfer of credit in case of transfer of business sir section number 18 one special circumstance special circumstance mein no credit if invoices are older than one year 18 3 transfer of business ka case mein transfer the credit 18 4 sir reversal of credit 18 5 total bakwas 18 6 sir capital goods and plant and machinery ka case mein tax on on which itc was taken tax on transaction value or, or, uh, tax on transaction value or itc reduce whichever is Higher. Always remember, I told you three circulars also over here. One is demerger wala, one is free gift wala, and one is original equipment manufacturer. Congratulations, people! We are done with your chapter of input tax credit ka complete revision. All right, people. Let's go ahead and now revise the chart of job work, sir. Job work, as the name says, is a treatment or process on. another person's good if i am doing i am doing job work and job work as per section number 71a schedule 2 sir it is told that treatment of process on another person's good is always a supply of service right everyone sir job work what are we going to learn when we are going to learn job work we will learn section number 19 which says sir that you can go ahead and take the itc when you are sending the goods for job work section number 143 which will talk about the procedures for sending to job work section number nahi baba rule number 45 which will talk about job work chalan everyone over here we went ahead and started learning gst with goods and service goods and service has to be supplied supply can be interstate or supply can be intrastate intrastate supply what will happen 
IGST will be levied, intrastate CGST will be levied. Once GST is levied, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. He will have to go ahead and calculate GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax. Once you know the value, you will prepare tax invoice, credit note, debit note and delivery chalan and you will send the goods to the other person with the help of e-way bill but before that you will maintain your accounts and record and then you will send the goods to the other person with the help of e-way bill. Government will tell you sir, your liability to pay GST has come, your liability comes at the time of supply. For an example, you have to pay 1000 rupees. First, you will go ahead and use your input tax credit and then you will go ahead and make the payment. Attached with the chapter of input tax credit is the chapter of job work, which is basically section number 19. Right, everyone? Section number 19 is simple. It says that when you are sending the goods for job work, you can take the ITC. But sir, you should receive it back within one year. Capital goods within three years. Section number 143, job work procedure. And rule number 45, conditions and restrictions for sending the goods for job work. Everyone over here, to your job work chart. Job work means treatment or process on another person's goods. Now, to start with job work, there will be always a principal. Principal will go ahead and buy some input and capital goods. For an example, principal is going to get jeans pant made. To make the jeans pant, he went ahead and bought clothes and might be a machine. First of all, section number 19 says, if you are going to send these capital goods and inputs for job work, you can go ahead and take the ITC. Then when you are sending the goods for job work, sending is never a supply. When you are sending it for job work, just follow the procedures told in section number 143, which talks about such job work a procedure. When you are sending for job work, you can send without payment of tax, but the condition is you should have a delivery chalan. As per rule number 45, it is known as a job work chalan. Along with that, you should also go online and give an intimation, which is GST ITC 04, GST ITC 04, always remember, is to be filed, sir, for all the goods we have, you have sent to job work, received from the job work, sir, sent by one job worker to another job worker and then received it back, all those details has to be given in ITC 04 and it is to be filed for all the details regarding a specified period. Always remember, if your turnover is greater than 5 crore, all your turnover is up to 5 crore, up to 5 crore means you are a small person. Government is telling you will file annually the intimation which is by 25th of April. But if your turnover is greater than 5 crore, you will file the intimation half yearly. April to September ke liye by 25th October and October to March ke liye by 25th of April. Right everyone? So sir, whenever I am going ahead and buying some input and capital goods to send it for job work, I can take the ITC. But sir, when I am sending it, I have to go ahead and follow the procedures under section number 143, which says I have to raise a job work challenge plus half yearly or annually intimation has to be given and also e-way bill, electronic way bill because on the way, department officer will stop you. E-way bill ka requirement, always remember, if you are sending the goods for job work intrastate, then it is always when consignment value is greater than 50,000. But if you are sending it intrastate, then E-way bill ka requirement is mandatory. Now, the job worker who has gone ahead and received it, he will go ahead and do the job work. Now, job worker can be a registered person if his turnover has exceeded 20 lakh or 10 lakh. But job worker can be unregistered if his turnover is less than 20 lakhs or 10 lakh. Right, everyone? Now, job worker who is there, for him, the registration requirement is, section number 22 says 20 lakh or 10 lakh. Section number 24 went ahead and told, interstate supplier of service has to take compulsory registration, but section number 24, read with section number 22, told that job worker is exempted up to 20 lakh, 10 lakh, and hence, whether intra or inter, job worker has to take registration only when he crosses 20 lakh or 10 lakh. If he is a job worker who is registered, he will go ahead and give me an invoice where he will go ahead and charge me GST on the supply of service. If he is an unregistered person, he will not go ahead and charge me any GST. He will just give a commercial bill. If he is a registered job worker, whatever inputs he is going ahead and buying, all the input, input services and capital goods, he can go ahead and take the ITC and then he will go ahead and give me an invoice charging GST. Sir, can the goods directly go to the job worker? Yes, Baba, it can be billed to you 
and ship directly to the job worker whenever it is shipped directly to the job worker it is going directly to the job worker then the job goods will move along with a copy of the invoice plus job worker name should be mentioned at the consignee job worker name and address in the consignee and sir you should make one delivery chalan and send it to the job worker directly right everyone job worker chalan has to be sent by you directly to the job worker then sir can i import the goods and directly send it for job work yes baba you can import the goods and directly send it for job work in this scenario goods can move along with copy of the bill of entry plus eway bill also you will go ahead and raise and delivery chalan you will go ahead and send it directly to the job worker once the job worker receives the goods he should do the job work and return it to back you return it back to you within one year or three years in case of capital goods inputs within one year capital goods within three years if it can't return within one year three year extension can be given by the commissioner you can grant take an extension of one year or two years in case of capital goods if sir supposingly there is no extension and goods are not received back within one year or three year one year from that same date of dispatch and three years one year from the date of dispatch or one year or three year from the date of dispatch or one year or three year from the date of direct receipt it should be received back within one year or three year if not received back from one year or three year from the date of dispatch or direct receipt by the job worker then it will be deemed a supply once that one year or three years gets over it will be deemed a supply it means you have to go ahead and raise a tax invoice principal has to go ahead and raise a tax invoice principal has to go ahead and pay the tax as if the goods were not sent for job work before one year as if it was supplied before one year and i am paying the tax now so you have to pay along with interest at the rate of 18 percent capital goods if they are not received back within one year or three if they are not received back within three year it will be deemed that once three year gets over next day it will be deemed that it is supplied you have to raise tax invoice as if the goods were capital goods were not sent it was supplied before three years and you will have to pay tax along with interest at the rate of 18 percent right everyone always remember if it is not received back within three years or one year in case of input in one year capital goods three years from the date it was sent out principal to go ahead and raise the invoice it has to declare in gstr1 and pay the tax along with interest at the rate of 18 percent always remember one thing there is an exception capital goods which are mold dye zigs fixtures etc need not be received back within three years there is no problem at all there is no time limit to go ahead and receive it back within three years right sir point is clear now once the goods have gone for job work sir can i go ahead and directly supply from the job worker premises yes it will be a supply of the principal sir principal to make the invoice always included in the turnover of the principal you can directly supply inputs within three years and capital goods within inputs within one year and capital goods within three years but condition is that the job worker has to be registered or job worker ka premise has to be declared as additional place of business however declaring job workers premises as additional place of business is not required if the goods are notified by the commissioner sir always remember when the goods are supplied from the job worker premises directly principal to raise the invoice time of supply value of supply place of supply to be determined in the hands of the principal sir if the job worker is unregistered can principal go ahead and declare his place of additional place of business yes if it is within the same state he can declare additional place of business and supply from his premises but if job worker is not within the same state then it is not possible to go ahead and declare additional place of business hence tell the job worker to take registration only then you can supply from its premises if job worker doesn't take registration bring the back the goods after job work and then only you can go ahead and supply always remember once the principal receives the goods back and then also supplies it is always a supply of goods can i go ahead everyone yes sir sir can the goods go from one job worker to another job worker job worker number one to job worker number two yes baba goods can go from one job worker to another job worker to another job worker no problem always remember when the goods are going from one job worker to another job worker principal will make the delivery chalan or job worker will go ahead and make the delivery chalan sir alternatively the old delivery chalan which was given by the principal to the job worker then can also be endorsed but endorsement is not possible if it goods are sent in piecemeal then in that scenario new delivery chalan is required that is the job work chalan is required either principal will make or the job worker will make are we clear everyone now when the job worker receives it over here he will go ahead and supply it now in this scenario he will go ahead and do the job work and principal can directly supply from this job worker ka premise also but again 
it will be a supply of the principal, principal to go ahead and raise the invoice, principal to go ahead and pay the tax, time of supply, value of supply, place of supply, all the provision applicable in the hands of the principal. Sir, can the goods directly go from his premises also? Yes, Baba. In that scenario also, this he should be registered or his place has to be declared as additional place of business. Only then you can directly go ahead and supply from here. Are we clear everyone? Yes sir, principal to make the invoice and pay tax. Sir, aggregate turnover of the principal made this supply will be included and job worker should be registered or his place has to be declared as additional place of business. Sir, can I go ahead and export from here? Yes Baba, you can go ahead and export from here or you can go ahead and export from the first job worker ka premise also. Always remember exporting ka case may also. Principal has to go ahead, principal has to go ahead and raise the invoice. Yes, everyone, either it is an export from job worker number one ka premise or job worker number two ka premise, always it will be an export of the principal, principal to go ahead and give LUT or bond, principal to pay IGST if required, principal to raise the invoice, but condition is job worker has to be registered or job worker place has to be declared as the additional place of business. Sir, export within one year or three years should happen. Sir, LUT or bond will be given by the principal or IGST payment also by the principal. Job worker has to be registered or his place has to be declared as additional place of business and this export will be a supply of the principal. One point you have to always remember is keeping of books of account relating to job work is the duty of the principal. It is always the duty of the principal. Sir, job worker case may either job worker number one or job worker number two if there is any waste it which is generated during the job work, what will happen to the waste? Waste ka case may, always remember, waste ka case which is there, if job worker is registered on the waste, job worker will pay the GST. If job worker is unregistered, principal has to pay the GST. The only benefit, only benefit in case of waste is, you don't have to go ahead and get the waste back to your premises. Even if job worker is unregistered, you don't have to go ahead and declare his place as additional place of business. Principal can directly sell the waste from job worker premises and pay the GST. In case of waste or scrap, no need to declare job worker premises as additional place of business. This chapter is a B graded chapter. 3 to 4 mark, they can go ahead and ask in the exam. Sir, what can they go ahead and ask? Number one thing they can go ahead and ask with input and capital goods when they are sent, within how much time it has to come back? One year or three years? Can there be an extension? Yes, commissioner can give one year or two years. Sir, can it be directly supplied? Yes, one year or three years may it can be directly supplied or exported provided the job worker is registered or place has been declared as the additional place of business and it will be a turnover of the principal. Time of supply, value of supply, place of supply in the hands of the principal. Sir, what is the treatment of waste or scrap? Waste or scrap ka case may always remember job worker is registered, job worker pays the GST, job worker is unregistered, principal pays the GST. They can also go ahead and ask you about the intimation, quarterly intimation, earlier it was there but, but for your May and November now. November exam ke liye, always remember one thing, sir, what is the limit now? If your turnover is up to 5 crore, you are a small person, small person ka case may annually by 25th of April, sir, otherwise it is half yearly, April to September ke liye 25th October or October to March, it is 25th of April, right everyone? I think that should be more than enough, I will go ahead. I will go ahead and close my quick revision on the chapter of job worker over here. Congratulations, people. All right, students, let's go ahead and today discuss the chapter of IST, Input Service Distributor. Everyone over here, let's go ahead and take a quick linking. First of all, we started learning GST with goods and service. Goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be either interstate or Intrastate, inter or intra, GST will be levied. Once GST is levied, GST has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. He will go ahead and calculate GST. GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax. Once you know the value, you will prepare tax invoice, credit note, debit note. Then you will maintain your accounts and send the goods to the other person with the help of e way bill. Once you go ahead and send the goods to the other person, your liability to pay comes and liability to pay comes at the time of supply when you will go ahead and use your ITC. Everyone attached to the chapter of ITC is the chapter of job work and also ISD. ISD is section number 20 and section number 21. Let's go ahead and now learn the chapter of ISD, Input Service 
distributor. First of all, always remember in your exam, the name suggests input service distributor, means input services which are being received by the head office for the branches which are under the same pan, those services ka tax, GST will be distributed by the input service distributor. They will never distribute input ka credit and capital goods ka credit. So, for an example, we have the Reliance ka head office which is in Mumbai and they have gone ahead and taken the services from Pogo which is an advertisement company. Pogo will go ahead and give a bill to the head office which is a tax invoice under section number 31 read with rule number 46. If it is intrastate supply, they will go ahead and charge CGST, SGST, interstate, they will go ahead and charge IGST. The head office when they are going ahead and receiving the invoice, they can go ahead and distribute the credit to the branches under the same Fine. Now, for distribution, the head office has to go ahead and take a separate registration under section number 24 as an input service distributor. They can go ahead and distribute the credit by going ahead and issuing an ISD invoice. Always remember one thing, whenever ISD is going ahead and issuing the invoice, it is section number 20 read with rule number 54. Rule number 54 sub rule 1 goes ahead and tells you what are the contents of an ISD ga invoice. Yes, sir. Always remember one thing, if the Supplier has given an invoice charging CGST and HGST to the ISD. ISD, if it is distributing CGST and HGST in the same state, it will distribute CGST and HGST as CGST and HGST. But if it is distributing CGST and HGST in other state, it will distribute as IGST. Always remember if the head office has received an invoice wherein IGST is charged, if it is distributing to same state or different state, IGST is always distributed as IGST. Always remember one thing, distribution, distribution will be done in the ratio of the turnover. Distribution ratio is the turnover of the turnover in state in the preceding financial year. If preceding financial year when all the units to whom you are doing the distribution is not available, then take preceding quarter ka turnover for which details of all the recipients are available. Always remember in the turnover you should exclude central excise duty, state excise duty, VAT and CST. Then, sir, always remember when you are distributing, you distribute to those branches which are under your same pan only. Sir, if the head office has received an invoice which is with respect to only one person, means supposing the service which is taken by the head office is with respect to the exclusive service which is availed by only one branch, then the distribution should be only to that recipient. Sir, if it is a common credit which is for more than one branches, then distribute among such recipient. If it is for all the branches, then distribute to all the branches. Clear everyone? Sir, if ISD has gone ahead and received an invoice, when ISD will distribute, it will receive an ISD invoice. If ISD got a debit note, then also it will give an ISD invoice. Supplier gave a credit note, then ISD will distribute by using an ISD credit note. Right everyone, always remember one thing, whenever the ISD is distributing, it will go ahead and file one return which is GSTR 6 by next month ka 13 and the amount gets reflected in the GSTR 2A of the recipient. Theek hai sir, point is clear. Always remember, ISD distributes credit with respect to services, inputs and capital goods ka credit is not distributed by the ISD. In the exam, be very careful about it. Then, ITC available shall be distributed in the same month. This month ka ITC should, should be distributed in this month only. There is no time limit to go ahead and distribute it later. If you have not distributed, gone baba gone, you can't distribute the credit. Then, separate distribution for eligible and ineligible ITC, that is block credit, if you are going ahead and distributing, distribute block credit separately, distribute eligible credit separately, let the branch go ahead and decide whether it wants to take the credit, doesn't want to take the credit, but as an ISD, you will distribute eligible credit and ineligible credit both. Then, sir, ISD will distribute CGST, SGST, UTGST and IGST separately. Sir, supposingly, ISD wants to distribute you the credit, they will give you ISD invoice. What if the distribution is more? They want to reduce your credit, then they will go ahead and give you an ISD credit note. And to the wrong, to the correct unit whom they have to distribute more, they will go ahead and give ISD invoice. So, for an example, A co distribution has been done more, then to reduce A ka credit, they will give A co ISD credit note. And B ka credit has been less, so they will go ahead and give B co ISD invoice, so that B ka credit will go up. This ISD credit note and ISD invoice will be declared in the GSTR 6, and they will go ahead, and then accordingly your credit will be distributed. So, it says ISD credit note to the wrong unit, ISD 
invoice to the correct unit and that will be reported in the GSTR 6. For an example, in one month, I went ahead and distributed to one IS to one branch. One branch co I went ahead and distributed. ISD went ahead and distributed 1 lakh rupees. But credit note is 2 lakh rupees. Then the differential 1 lakh rupees. Because what I am giving you is only 1 lakh. But what I am reducing for you is 2 lakh. Credit note is more than debit. Credit note is more than invoice. Then the differential will be added to your output tax li liability. Negative amount apportioned to a unit shall be added to its output tax liability. That is where credit amount is. Credit note amount is greater than itc distributed always remember what is the distribution formula everyone whatever is the credit to be distributed amount of credit to be distributed multiplied by turnover of the recipient during the relevant period divided by t which is aggregate of you have to write over here it is the aggregate of turnover it is not aggregate turnover it is aggregate of the turnover of all the recipient means aggregate of all the recipient ka turnover to whom you are going ahead and distributing right everyone so it is always the total amount of credit to be distributed multiplied by the turnover of one branch divided by all the branches ka turnover ka aggregate to basically whom you are distributing if you are distributing only to two branches then two branches ka aggregate ka turn turnover ka aggregate three branches ko distribution then turnover ka aggregate of all the three branches can i go ahead everyone now if you come on the right hand side for an example one isd has gone ahead and distributed extra then always remember they should go ahead and issue credit note and rectify it if they have not gone ahead and rectified it the branch which has gone ahead and received the extra credit extra distributed amount branch should go ahead and pay the amount voluntarily by using form gst drc03 along with interest they should go ahead and paid back to the government but if branch has received extra and voluntarily they are not going ahead and paying the department will initiate proceedings under section number 73 and 74 they will give you a demand order along with interest penalty everything and if you don't pay they will hang you upside down and recover the amount right everyone then we have one note sir if distribution has been done extra they have taken the extra but distribution extra was done by whom by the head office always remember head office should not distribute more than what is the credit if they have done it then they will have to they will also be penalized with general penalty under section number 122 which goes ahead and says sir section number 122 1 clause 9 goes ahead and says they will have to pay higher of 10,000 or extra amount distributed right everyone I will go ahead and close my discussion on ISD over here. B graded topic. You can call job work and ISD as B graded topic. Where either of them say one, three to four mark a question will be asked. If not three to four marks, at least one, two marks MCQ must be asked in the exam. I will go ahead and close my quick revision on the chapter of input service distributor. Over here, everyone. Congratulations, people. All right, students, let's go ahead and now revise the next chapter. The next chapter is payment of taxes. Everyone, let's take a quick linking. We started learning GST with goods and service. Goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be either interstate or intrastate. Interstate or intrastate, GST will be levied. One GST is levied, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. How will he collect and pay? He will calculate GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax once you know the value you'll prepare the tax invoice credit note debit note and delivery chalan then they will maintain their accounts and records and send the goods to the other person with the help of e-way bill then the liability will come liability comes at the time of supply then they will go ahead and use their input tax credit and then they will go ahead and make the remaining amount ka payment so here comes the next chapter the next chapter is payment of taxes section number 49 and section number 50 read with rule number 85 86 87 which is e liability e credit and e cash ledger right everyone now everyone over here a graded topic for your exam you have to know this chapter or else you will not be able to do big big questions which are there in the exam everyone over here section number 49 read with rule number 85 86 and 87 so if there is a taxable person who is liable so if you are a taxable person you are liable to go ahead and take registration under section number 22 or 24 section number 22 may four people are liable section number 24 may creations are liable to go ahead and take registration then they will go online and take registration on the common portal that is the gst.gov.in 
Then portal will open three account for him. What are the three account? E cash, E credit, E liability. Every account will have one debit and one credit. Every account will have one credit and one debit. Right, everyone. Now, if you go ahead and talk about E liability ledger, in the E liability ledger, what will be debited, everyone? All the liabilities will be debited. That is as per your returns, which you have gone ahead and furnished. Whatever is your self-assessed liability, that will be debited as determined by the proper officer in the proceeding. Basically, demand order liability also will be debited. Any interest that may accrue from time to time might be you have gone ahead and filed your return late, etc. Whatever interest is accruing, that will also be debited. How will you go ahead and pay off your liability? You will go ahead and pay off by first using your e-credit ledger and then e-cash ledger. So here, always... First, e credit ledger may amount will come from the e credit le e liability ledger may amount will come from e credit ledger and then e cash ledger. Also, we have gone ahead and learned TTRC IPLO always has to be paid in e through e cash. If you have a liability of TDS TCS. Uh, reverse charge ka liability, composition tax ka liability, TDS, TCS, reverse charge, composition tax, interest, penalty, late fee or any other amount that always has to be paid through e-cash, you can't go ahead and use your credit. Always remember what is the manner of discharge, sir, first of all, you have to discharge your self-assessed tax and dues relating to returns of previous tax period, then current tax period, ka self-assessed tax and any other dues, then any other amount which has been payable under this act including demand order. Can we go ahead everyone? The next one over here is rule number 86. Rule number 86 talks about e-credit ledger. In e-credit ledger also you have one credit and you have one debit. In e-credit ledger whatever is the ITC self-assessed by you that will be given to you provisionally. Right everyone? Section number 41 talks about provisional ITC. Basically if the supplier goes ahead and files his GSTR 1 or in his GSTR 1 he includes the invoice or debit note the amount will come in your GSTR to be you can go ahead and take the credit but that is subject to the payment by the supplier to the government you will take it provisionally but that is subject to you take it provisionally later the supplier should pay to the government only then the itc is being confirmed can i go ahead everyone now how will you go ahead and use it you will go ahead and use it to make payment towards your output tax liability always remember input tax credit you can pay only use to pay your output tax liability you can't go ahead and use it for ttrc iplo ttrc iplo clearly always cash has to be used sir if i have credit how go I, how do i go ahead and use my credit always remember one thing credit can be cross utilized also and credit cross utilization they have defined it saying sir e credit ledger ka balance if you have igst you can for use for igst igst can be then used for cgst then it can be used for sgst basically it can be used igst can be used for igst then cgst or sgst you can use for payment of cgst sgst in any order any proportion IGST should be exhausted, then you will use CGST for CGST, CGST for IGST, HGST for HGST, HGST for IGST, CGST to HGST or HGST to CGST is never possible. Are we clear everyone? Always remember when you are paying your IGST, first pay only, always from CGST and IGST should be then paid from SGST. Yes or no everyone? Correct? No. Sir, as CGST I use for CGST, then CGST you use for IGST, SGST you picked up at the last, so SGST should be used for SGST and SGST should, for, should be used for IGST. So if I ask you IGST ka liability first through IGST, then through CGST and then through SGST. I hope everyone is clear, let's go ahead. Then everyone over here, e-cash ledger, e-cash ledger may basically you have to, whenever you are a taxable person and you have to pay the tax, you will generate online GST PMT 06 in which you will go ahead and pay whatever your liability is there, that only you will go ahead and deposit. Yes, everyone, always deposit whatever you have to pay as your liability. If you have to pay CGST tax, deposit CGST tax only. If you have to pay SGST tax, deposit SGST tax only. You will have to go online, generate a Chalan PMT 06 on the common portal. It is valid for how many days? 15 days. Once you generate a Chalan common portal, identification number will be generated, which is 14 digit. Then you will go and pay, make the payment. Payment can be done by internet banking, debit card, credit card, NFT, RTGS and over the counter 10,000. Always remember over the counter 10,000 is per chalan per tax period and sir it can be either in cash check or dd oidr may also go ahead and use international money transfer when you are making the payment of the tax commission is always to be borne by you now if you have gone ahead and made the payment and the amount is created to the government account in that scenario always remember that day when the amount is created to the government account that is deemed as the deposit of tax
Sir, when the amount goes to the government account, SIN is generated. SIN is nothing other than common portal identification number, which is 14 digit plus 4 digit bank code will be added. So, it is 18 digit over here and the amount gets created to your e cash ledger. Always remember, if somebody has deducted your TDS and TCS, that amount is also put in the e cash ledger. Sir, what do I do with e cash? Whatever you deposit in the e cash, you can use it to make the payment of tax, interest, penalty fees, or any other amount, sir. Uh, what will it be debited for? The amount can be used for making payment of interest, tax, interest. Every deposit will be done over here of tax, interest, penalty, late fee or any other amount. And that amount will be used to pay tax, interest, penalty, late fee or any other amount. Sir, by if unregistered person has to make the payment, he will make on the basis of temporary identification number. Sir, if I by chance have gone ahead and deposited in any other head by mistake, says tax may I deposit it, but I wanted it in CGST interest. You can transfer from anywhere to anywhere. Always remember e-cash ledger, always remember e-cash ledger balances cannot be cross-utilized, but it can be transferred cross. Cross transfer is possible and then utilization can be done. So, if I have to pay CGST tax, but the amount is in CGST, says ka interest, you can transfer it to CGST tax and accordingly go ahead and use. Means any head... Any major head to any minor head is possible to be transferred using PMT09. So, sir, any amount of tax interest penalty amount from e cash ledger can be transferred to another e cash ledger of integrated tax, central tax, state tax, unitary tax using form PMT09. I am transferring from one head to another. Government is selling from the head you are transferring, it will be deemed that you have been given a refund. And to the head you are transferring, it will be deemed that it's a deposit. Sir, if I have extra balance in my e cash ledger, you can also go ahead and claim a refund. Always remember, major head is tax is only 5 CGST, SGST, IGST, CG, CGST, SGST, IGST, UTGST and CES. CGST or SGST anything will be there. If you have taken registration in, uh, sorry, SGST or UTGST anyone will be there. If you have taken registration in a state, then you will get SGST. If you have taken registration in a UT, you, are, you will have union territory GST. Can I go ahead everyone? Minor head, every major head has one minor head, uh, five minor head, tax, interest, penalty, late fee and any other amount. Tax, interest, penalty, late fee and any other amount. So, every major will have five minor heads. Next, sir, this 10,000 car restriction over the counter, is it not applicable in some cases? Yes, Baba, it is not applicable on deposit made by government department, on deposit made by the commissioner, person notified by the commissioner, on deposit made by the government department, on deposit made by the person notified by the commissioner. If proper officer or any other officer authorized to recover outstanding dues from a person including recovery through attachment, sale of mobile, immobile property, whatever amount has been recovered, if that is more than 10,000 also, it can be deposited in cash. Sir, proper officer has gone or officer authorized for amount collected during investigation, enforcement activity or any other ad hoc amount, those amount also can be deposited more than 10,000 in cash. Electronic focal point branch, what is an electronic focal point branch? EFPB is all the authorized bank will go ahead and appoint one branch as the electronic focal point branch where the government accounts will be maintained. Any payment through that bank from anywhere in India will always come to the electronic focal point branch. EFPBs are basically branches, branch of the authorized bank, right everyone? And every bank will appoint one branch as the EFPB branch. Branches of authorized bank authorized to collect GST. Each authorized bank to nominate one branch as the electronic focal point branch. Now, we have section number 50 over here. Section number 50 says interest has to be paid if you go ahead and make the delayed payment of tax. Every person who fails to pay the tax will have to pay along with interest at the rate of 18%. For an example, your liability was paid to be paid by 20th of next month. You paid by 30th, 10 days ka delay. Always remember 20th you will not include. You will have to take from the next day up to the date of payment. Date of payment has to be also included for the calculation of interest. Sir, every proviso interest shall be payable on tax paid by debiting e-cash ledger only. Whatever you are paying through your e-cash ledger. Sir, even if you have an e-cash ledger balance, doesn't matter. Whatever you are paying through your e-cash ledger on that interest will come. Interest will be from the date succeeding the due date. And always remember, if you have gone ahead and taken extra ITC or you have unduly reduced your output tax liability and you are caught, you will have to go ahead and pay interest at the rate of 24%. Now, rule number 86A comes if the commissioner has any doubt on you that whatever credit you have taken, you are ineligible, then he will go ahead and block your credit. It says rule number 86A, commissioner or officer authorized has reason to believe that ITC is in e-credit ledger has been availed 
fraudulently or you are ineligible, he may not allow debit of such amount equal to the credit for discharge of liability also or you can't go ahead and claim a refund of that amount also. Reason for blocking ITC on the basis of non-existent supplier or not conducting business from declared place of business. Sir, you have gone ahead and taken the ITC on the basis of a supplier who is not doing business from his declared place of business or who is not existing only. Who is not existing. You have taken the ITC without receiving the good services or both or ITC on the basis of document with respect to which the supplier has not paid the tax to the government. If the tax is not paid to the government, whatever credit you have taken, you are ineligible. Recipient is non existing or not conducting business from declared place of business. You are only not existing. Officer is telling he is not existing. In that scenario, he will go ahead and block your credit. ITC without document, you don't have the tax invoice or revised tax invoice, debit note, or any other document prescribed under rule number 36. Rule number 36 says birds are prescribed. Right, right everyone? B for bill of entry, I for ISD invoice, R for RCM, D for debit note, and S for such other documents. Uh, suppliers invoice commissioner or now these are the reason why they can go ahead and block your credit but if the commissioner if the commissioner is satisfied that the condition is no longer existing then he will go ahead and allow the debit he will allow you to use the credit basically he will allow you to debit the amounts in the e-credit ledger sir restriction is maximum applicable for one year within one year the commissioner has to go ahead and do the adjudication basically Next, rule number 86B goes ahead and says restriction on use of amount in the e-credit ledger. Government went ahead and told some people are having excessively excess credit, might be there going ahead and buying bogus invoices and all those things. So, government wanted to go ahead and say that you cannot go ahead and use your credit more than how much? 99%. Now, sir, if you are a registered person and value of taxable supply excluding, excluding, excluding zero rated supply and exam supply in a month is greater than greater than greater than 50 lakh he shall not use e credit ledger to discharge output tax in excess of 99 percent means one percent at least cash has to be used first condition registered person second condition value of taxable supply excluding exam supply and zero rated supply should be greater than 50 lakh only then 99 percent can be used 1% has to be, credit can be used, 1% has to be paid in cash. This 1% payment in cash also restriction is not applicable. If you are a registered person, proprietor, karta, managing director or managing director or any two partner or whole time director or member of managing committee of association or board of trustee have paid how much? What, greater than 1 lakh income tax in each of the last two financial year for which the date for filing the return is already over. Yes, everyone. Next. Registered person has received a refund in preceding financial year on account of unutilized ITC under section number 5431, basically your zero rated supply ka refund or inverted duty structure ka case mein refund in the preceding financial year was greater than one year. See, one lakh, either in each of the last two financial year, you have paid what? More than one lakh in income tax. It is not clubbingly one lakh. It is each of the financial year, last two preceding financial year for which the due date to file income tax return is gone and you have gone ahead and paid more than 1 lakh rupees income tax in the, both both year may 1 lakh, 1 lakh and or or last year you had last year, not last two year, last year you had gone ahead and received a refund of ITC, input tax credit card refund is given only in two scenarios, one is zero rated supply, ka ITC refund is given and secondly, inverted sir, if you are inverted duty, if you are a case of inverted duty structure where output ka rate is less than input ka rate, then, the rate then only refund is given. So, in this scenario, if you are given a refund of more than 1 lakh rupees or registered person has discharged through eCash greater than 1% of the output tax liability cumulatively up to the said month. So, for, so for an example, from April till date, from April till date, you have done a 1 crore rupees ka supply, 1 crore may, how much is to be paid in cash? April, May, June, July. For an example, four months. One crore ka, one black is to be paid in. Cash. Might be you have already. Hey, one crore me. One crore me. How much is the GST? One crore me. 18 lakh is the GST. Correct everyone. 18 lakh me. At least one percent is to be paid in ka. 18,000. Might be you have already paid 18,000 in this last two months only. So then they are going ahead and telling if you have paid more than 18,000 in the last two months only, now this month's may compliance is not required because cumulatively you will have to see that you have paid more than 1% in cash. Are we clear everyone? Or you are a registered person who is government department, public sector undertaking, local authority or a statutory body. In that scenario also this 1% criteria is 
not applicable sir what kind of a chapter it is i go ahead and consider it as a graded chapter because if you don't know this chapter you will not be able to solve big questions in the exam you have to know this chapter now 86 b which is there is very important 86 a which is there is very important interest calculation becomes important cross utilization how to go ahead and cross utilize is also very important you also should remember ttrc iplo cannot be paid in uh, credit sir also if you want to transfer from your cash ledger you can go ahead and use gst pmt09 when can 10,000 rupees uh, provision not applicable when 10,000 wala provision is not applicable means you can deposit more than 10,000 in cash this is also important i will go ahead and stop my discussion over here two to five marks is something which you can expect out of this chapter right everyone have a great day everyone i hope you guys enjoyed the revision take care bye all all right people let's go ahead and now revise the chart of tds everyone tds as a chapter is tds and tcs are b graded chapter three to four marks is maximum which you can go ahead and expect in the exam let's take a quick linking we started learning gst with goods and service goods and service has to be supplied supply can be either interstate or intrastate inter or intra gst will be debit once gst is debit it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person he will go ahead and calculate gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax once you know the value you will prepare the tax invoice credit note and debit note now what will you do you will go ahead and maintain your accounts and you will send the goods to the other person with the help of a e way bill now sir the liability to pay will come it comes at the time of supply you will go ahead and use your input tax credit remaining amount you will go ahead and make the payment everyone listen to me very carefully when you learn the chapter of payment of taxes in payment of taxes you have e cash ledger e credit ledger e liability ledger in the payment of taxes e cash ledger may only tds and tcs is being credited so here comes the linking we are going to learn about tds and tcs remember one thing tds tds which is there is under section number 51 and tcs which is there is under section number 52 51 may always it is 2 percent which is 1 percent cgst 1 percent hgst here 2 may it is always 1 percent that is 0 0.5 percent and 0 0.5 percent now everyone over here whenever there is a supplier who is going in and supplying to the government department if number one the value of supply is greater than 2.5 lakh excluding the gst amount and relating to taxable supply of goods and service taxable supply of goods and service then you will have to go ahead and who oh, the recipient that is the deductor deductor has to go ahead and deduct tds everyone for an example 3 lakh rupees plus 18 percent gst so you will go ahead and see the invoice as 3 lakh plus 27 000, 27 000, 3 lakh 54 000. always remember the department, government department being the recipient of goods and service, government has gone ahead and told government department, I want to go ahead and trace these people who are supplying to the government department, hence government department has to go ahead and deduct TES and give it to the government. So what will the government department do? First of all, they will take compulsory registration either TAN based or PAN based and it's a separate registration which is to be taken. If they are normally registered, normally registered, okay, but they will have to take separate registration as a TDS deductor they will have to deduct only on the value always remember they will deduct tds only on the value which is value total invoice value minus gst one percent cgst if in the invoice cgst and hgst is charged on the value also one percent cgst one percent hgst will be charged if uh, on the invoice igst is charged then three lakh pay two percent igst will be deducted sir that is six thousand will be deducted and remaining amount will be paid to the supplier that is over here 2 lakh 94 per 54,000 3 lakh 48,000 now this supplier will go ahead and tell where is my remaining 6,000 so government will do what the government department will go ahead and pay this 6,000 to the government by chalan government department co when government department when it makes the payment it has to also go ahead and file a return which is gstr 7 by what date by 10th of the next month and one TDS certificate will be made available to the deductee. Now, this 6,000 rupees will come to the deductee. Deductee will have to go ahead and validate and the amount will be credited to his e-cash ledger and he can also go ahead and claim a refund of the amount under section number 54. 
Are we clear everyone? Now TDS certificate also will be made available to the, to the deductive by the government on his common portal. Sir, always remember in GSTR 7, the certificate will be made available. Means the certificate is GSTR 7A. Sir, if I don't go ahead and deposit the TDS on time, always remember late deposit means interest. And if you file the return late, late return means late fee of rupees 25 per day under CGST, 25 under SGST, up to a maximum of 1000 under CGST, 1000 under SGST. Now, sir, if I don't go ahead and deduct or pay, Baba, default in deduction or payment means you have gone ahead and defaulted and they will go ahead. In case of default, they will give you a demand order under section number 73 or 74. Basically, they will de de demand the tax, interest, penalty. Penalty can be 10,000 or TDS amount, whichever is higher under CGST, TDS amount or 10,000, whichever is higher under SGST also. Deduction, sir, when do I have to deduct? A government department has to deduct on payment or credit, whichever is earlier. It means if they are paying an advance, they will have to go ahead and deduct TDS on advance also. Sir, who are these people who have to go ahead and deduct? Always remember, TDS deductors are of four category. Number one is Department of Central Government, State Government or local authority or governmental agency or person who is notified by the government on the recommendation of Council and this is the D category which is the notified category. Notified category is notification has been issued. Notification number 50 bar 2018 and notification number 57 bar 2017. If you are an authority board or any other body which is set up under an act of the parliament or state legislature or you are established by the government and in any one of them equity or control greater than 51% is with the government then Baba you are also being an authority board or any other body you will have to go ahead and deduct. TDS or if your society established by the government, central government, state government, local authority under the society's registration act or you are a public sector undertaking then also you are required to deduct TDS. Always remember TDS has to be deducted by whom? Department of central government, state government, local authority, governmental agency or notified category. Notified category is authority board or any other body established by the act of parliament or state legislature or established by the government with any one of them may equity or control greater than 51 percent is with the government or your society registered under the society registration act which is basically society formed by the government baba central government state government local authority or it's a public sector undertaking then also your notified category liable to deduct tds right everyone always remember one thing if a b c d category are supplying among each other then baba tds provisions are not applicable. Ministry of Defense is a government, central government department, but they will also not go ahead and deduct TDS. Local authority always means panchayat, municipality, Zilla Parishad, uh, all these people are known as local authorities. Sir, always remember one thing, no TDS. Where are, what is the scenario when TDS will not be there? Sir, if supplier and place of supply are in the same state and recipient is in other state, in that scenario TDS is not required. If supply is in one state, place of supply and recipient is in other state, then in that scenario, TDS will be deducted, IGST will be charged, and TDS will be deducted. Same state, CGST, SGST will be charged. Recipient also in same state, place of supply in same state, CGST, SGST, he will deduct to 1% CGST, 1% SGST. Supplier and place of supply in one state, recipient is in other state, no TDS. Supplier in one state, place of supply and recipient, both are in other state. In that scenario, IGST will charge 2%, IGST will be deducted. Always remember, no TDS, if supplier and place of supply are in one state, it is different, different. It is in different state from that of the recipient. Are we clear? Transaction is out of scope, sale of land and building pay, there will be no TDS. Basically, any schedule 3 item, where it, basically any section number 7 to 7, section number 7 to A or B ka item which is neither supply of goods nor supply of service, there will be no TDS. Sir, transaction nil related, wholly exempt, non tax supply, no TDS. Transaction where total amount is payable under RCM, government is selling, in that scenario also, no TDS. Transaction is made, payment is made to unregistered supplier. Government department is paying to an unregistered supplier. If they deduct TDS, I am unregistered, how will I get the credit? So hence, Baba, in that scenario, TDS is not required. TDS is not required when payment relates to a tax invoice which was issued before 1-10-2018 because the provisions of TDS only were effective from 1-10-2018. Then no TDS on advance before 1-10-2018 but invoice might be issued after but to the extent the advance was given before 1-10-2018 because TDS had to be deducted on advance but that time provisions were not effective so on that advance also TDS is not required to be deducted. I hope everyone is clear. Always remember one thing. If 
इन केस ऑफ सप्लाई अंडर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इफ गवर्नमेंट डिपार्टमेंट के साथ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वैल्यू इज ग्रेटर देन टू पॉइंट फाइव लैक इन दैट सीनारियो टीडीएस विल कम ऑन एवरी इन वॉइस इवन इफ द वैल्यू पर इन वॉइस माइट बी वैल्यू ऑफ सप्लाई माइट बी लेस देन टू पॉइंट फाइव लैक देन टीडीएस नाउ ऑन एवरी सिंगल इन वॉइस सिंगल इन वॉइस देन नाउ टीडीएस विल बी डन नाउ सिंगल इन वॉइस वैल्यू शेल नॉट matter so if government department ke sath you have a contract where the amount is greater than contract value is greater than 2.5 lakh then in that scenario government department now will go ahead and deduct tds on every advance payment on every payment or credit whichever is earlier basically right everyone is now always see contract value for determining tds or no tds but you always have to go ahead and deduct on baba you can go ahead and say simply payment or credit whichever is earlier i hope everyone is clear can we go ahead everyone yes sir we are all clear listen to me very carefully for your exam one question can be they will go ahead and tell you contract values they will tell you payment amounts so you will always have to deduct on the payment or credit amounts which are there secondly who are the people who are liable to deduct tds that is also very important thirdly who are the people who are not liable to deduct the, what are the cases when tds is not to be deducted that is also very important right everyone one thing which i want to go ahead and tell you always remember one thing if gta is there goods transport agency gta is going ahead and giving services to a tds deductor who is department of central government state government local authority right everyone in that scenario rcm is not applicable because they are registered as tds deductor rcm is not applicable but if gta is giving services to department of central government state government local authority and they are registered normal registration not tds deductor in that scenario rcm is there you just have to remember this point i thought i'll tell it to you i hope you guys remember if they are giving to these people and they are registered as tds deductor then rcm is not there but if they are normally registered then tds then sorry baba if they are uh, gta is giving services to department of central government state government local authority who are registered as tds deductor then rcm is not there it is exempted but otherwise rcm is there if they have taken normal registration i will go ahead and close my revision on the chapter of tds over here congratulations people done everyone let's go ahead and now do the next chart the next chart is on tcs everyone let's take a quick clicking we started learning gst with goods and service goods and service has been supplied supply can be interstate or intrastate then what will happen gst will be levied once gst is levied gst has to be collected and paid by a taxable person how will he collect and pay he will calculate gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax once you know the value you will prepare the tax invoice credit note debit note you will maintain your accounts and you will send the goods to the other person with the help of eway bill now your liability will come you will use your input tax credit remaining amount you will pay when you are making the payment you have one e cash ledger in e cash ledger tds is also created and tcs is also created always remember tds is section number 51 and it is always 2% TCS is always 52 and 52 main is always 1% 0.5% CGST 0.5% SGST or 1% IGST. The provision relating to TCS were also effective from 1st of October 2018. Everyone over here. For an example, there is a person who goes online buyer who goes online and places an order on Flipkart. Now he will go ahead and make the payment. Flipkart has to go ahead. Flipkart will first direct the first direct the order to the supplier. Supplier will pack the goods and send it to the buyer. Now supplier will also go ahead and send the invoice to the buyer. In the invoice, if he has gone ahead and charged CGST as GST, then TDS will be deducted 0.5% CGST and 0.5% as GST on the sale price value. Sir, if he has gone ahead and charged IGST in the invoice because both of them are in different state, then in that scenario, what will happen? TDS will be deducted 1%. i g s t everyone are we clear till here sir when is tds deducted listen to me very carefully this guy will go ahead and make payment to the flipkart flipkart will go ahead and deduct tcs government has gone ahead and told flipkart that you have to go ahead and deduct tcs because government want to trace those people who are supplying through the e-commerce operator and hence flipkart or e-commerce operator has to go online and take registration as a tcs collector tcs collector registration is a separate registration it is pan based registration and 
no TCS if amount is received directly by the supplier. He supplied, he received the amount. In that scenario, TCS will not be there. TCS provisions are applicable on the e-commerce only when payment flows through the e-commerce operator. So, e-commerce operator will have to take TCS collector registration. He will have to pay TCS. File one monthly statement which is GSTR 8 by 10th of the next month and the amount will be made available to the supplier on the dashboard. Supplier will go ahead and do validation and the amount will be created to his e-cash ledger. Remember one thing, TCS amount will go like this, but the remaining amount, this flip card will go ahead and pay it to him. Basically, 50,000 was the sale value. On that, 1% TCS was deducted. The remaining amount of the invoice, basically, basically 50,000 plus the GST amount minus the TCS amount will be paid to whom? To the supplier. Are we clear, everyone? Always remember, TCS collector has to take compulsory registration because e-commerce has to take compulsory registration when it has to deduct TCS. And also, the supplier through e-commerce will have to take compulsory registration if it is a supplier of goods. If it is a supplier of goods, compulsory registration, supplier of services, sir, 20 lakh or 10 lakh a limit is applicable. But it is not applicable in case of section number 95 wala supplier. Section number 95 may we have transportation of passenger, accommodation, housekeeping and restaurant wala services. For them, you always have to remember that TCS provisions are not applicable. Can I go ahead everyone now? Everyone over here. E-commerce operator, when they have to go ahead and deduct TCS, they will always deduct TCS on the net value of supplies made by a supplier. If a supplier has supplied 10 lakh rupees ka supplies, returns have come 5 lakh during a period. For an example, one month may 10 lakh ka supplies done, 5 lakh ka returns have come. Remaining 5 lakh pay only TCS will be deducted by the by the e-commerce operator. And always remember, always exclude section number 95 wala supplies when TCS has to be deducted because section number 95 wala supplies ka case may in case of Ola, Uber, transportation of passengers, etc. Ka case may always e-commerce is liable. Housekeeping ka case may, sir, housekeeping ka case may, supplier is registered. Supplier is liable for registration. Supplier is liable. Otherwise, e-commerce only collects and pay. So, no TCS provision. Sir, accommodation service also. Supplier liable for registration. Supplier will go ahead and collect and pay. If supplier is not liable for registration under 22 subsection 1, then e-commerce only will collect and pay. Restaurant service also. Remember always, always restaurant service ka case may e-commerce operator is only liable to collect the GST and pay and hence TCS is not there in third scenario. Sir, transportation of passengers by road, accommodation services, housekeeping services and restaurant service transportation housekeeping accommodation and restaurant service can i go ahead everyone next now they are going ahead and asking sir the supplier and uh, buyer who are there for them uh, this flip card will go ahead and deduct tcs now flip card went ahead and told sir do we have to take registration in every state government told yes baba because if you have suppliers in every state you will have to deduct tcs in every state so the requirement or obligation for collecting tcs would be there in every intra or interstate supply and hence you are going to require registration in every state or UT basically where you are, your uh, suppliers are present. Next, sir, uh, this always remember one thing, supplier can go ahead and maintain his stock in the godown of the flip card. If he maintains the stock in the godown of the flip card or e-commerce operator, then you will have to declare his place as your additional place of business. Now, your stock is being maintained over here. If GST authority greater than equal to deputy commissioner wants these details, then they can go ahead and tell e-commerce operator, hey, e-commerce operator, you provide me details of supplies of goods affected through you. What are the, who are the people who have sold the goods through you? And also the details of the stock which is maintained by you. If they go ahead and provide within 15 working days, very good. Otherwise, penalty up to 25,000 can be levied. Can I go ahead, everyone? Now, sir, if e-commerce operator has made any mistake, any mistake, always remember, rectification of error or mistake has to be done in the statement in which the error or mistake is. Notice, if you notice an error or mistake, please go ahead and rectify in the month you notice it, subject to interest at the rate of 18%. Sir, can I go ahead and make rectify any mistake? What is the time limit to rectify? In the month you notice, if you don't go ahead and notice, the maximum time limit to basically, to basically go ahead and rectify is what? Next year ka September month ka monthly return ka due date or actual date of annual return, whichever is earlier. Sir, if I don't go ahead and collect the amount, always remember non-collection, non-collection or omission will attract how much penalty? 10,000 or TCS amount, whichever is higher under CGST, 10,000 or TCS amount under SGST. Right, everyone? Always remember one thing, annual return which is to be furnished by a TCS collector GSTR, annual statement GSTR 9B by 31st December of the next financial year. Always remember, a e-commerce operator will file GSTR 8. His GSTR 8 will be compared with supplier GSTR 1. 
to see whether supply is telling I have sold through e-commerce 10 lakh and e-commerce is telling he has sold only 20 lakh, then why is the difference? E-commerce is telling 20 lakh, you are telling 10 lakh, the matching and mismatching will be done. See over here, they are telling supplier GSTR 1 to be matched with e-commerce GSTR 8. Any discrepancy shall be communicated to both of you in the same month. Right everyone? Any discrepancy will be communicated to you and you both, whoever has to rectify, has to rectify in the same month. If you don't rectify, the amount will be added to your output tax liability along with interest from the date it was due till the date of payment. Now, Sir, what are the cases when e-commerce operator is not required to deduct TCS? Number one, when the transaction is out of scope of supply. For an example, the online e-commerce operator is 99acres.com. Now, 99acres.com went ahead and sold a flat or it went ahead and sold a land. Land ka payment received, payment will go to the supplier in this scenario. In this scenario, because there is no GST only on sale of land and building, TCS also will not come. The next one over here is, sir, transaction on which whole amount is to be paid under RCM, TCS provision will not come. Transaction is nil rated, wholly exempt, non-taxable supply. Again, TCS provision not applicable. TCS provisions are not applicable when supply is done by an unregistered supplier. I hope you guys remember, supplier of service up to 20 lakh or 10 lakh are not required registration. In that scenario, TCS will not be deducted by the e-commerce operator. And fifth one over here is, no TCS in case of services covered under section number 95 which is transportation of passengers basically by that radio taxi maxi cab omni baba omnibus or any other kind of motor vehicle amendment right housekeeping services accommodation service and restaurant services right everyone now one more thing over here is sir one t board ka circular is there sir what happens in the t board auctioneer will go ahead and do the auction and suppliers will also go ahead and store the goods over here right everyone now, buyers will go ahead and make the payment to the T-board. Buyers will make the payment to the T-board and T-board will make the payment to them. T-board nowadays is online. T-board makes the payment to whom? To the supplier and T-board only makes the payment to the auctioneer by collecting the amount from the buyer. When the payment goes from the e-commerce operator, which is the T-board, TCS will be collected by the T-board whenever the payment is either made to the auctioneer or the payment is made to the supplier. Supplier ko payment will be made for the goods, auctioneer ko brokerage will be paid for doing the auction. Are we clear everyone? So always remember TCS shall be collected by the T-board from supplier that is the T-producer on net value of supply of goods and from the auctioneer on the net value of supply of service that is brokerage. I hope everyone is clear. Now, what is the difference between TDS and TCS? TDS, always remember, section number 51 may, it is 2%. TCS, 52 may, it is always 1%. Recipient will deduct and pay. TDS may, who will pay? Recipient. Four people, Department of Central Government, State Government, Local Authority, Governmental Agency or Notified Category. Here, e-commerce operator will deduct and pay. Here, it is obligation is only on notified recipient which is only four categories right everyone and here it is on e-commerce who receives the payment always if the payment is flowing through the e-commerce tcs provisions are applicable tds is only when value is greater than 2.5 lakh value 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 tds and tcs is always on the value not on the gst if e-commerce is collecting then tcs will be applicable there is no value limit one rupee also collected by e-commerce tcs provision will be applicable here return is gstr 7 here the return is gstr 8 it is not called a return it is called a monthly statement i hope you guys enjoyed the chapter we will go ahead and close our discussion over here again remember tds provisions and tcs provisions are big graded three to four mark they can go ahead and ask in the exam two mark might be a big mcq they can go ahead and ask in the exam I hope I have gone ahead and covered everything. Yes, sir. I will go ahead and close all my discussion on TCS over here. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Done. All right, students. Let's go ahead and now revise the next chapter. The next chapter is returns. Everyone, let's take a quick linking and then we'll go ahead and continue. We started learning GST with goods or service. Goods or service has to be supplied. Supply can be either interstate or supply can be either intrastate. Interstate supply, IGST will be levied. Intrastate, CGST will be levied. Once GST is levied, GST has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. He will calculate GST. GST is equal to value into rate of tax. Once you know the value, you will prepare the tax invoice, credit note, debit note and delivery. Chalan. Once you go ahead and prepare the tax invoice, you will maintain your accounts and you will send the goods to the other person with the help of a ebay bill now your liability to pay will come liability to pay comes at the time of 
supply you will use your input tax credit remaining amount you will make the payment now all this information that sir this was my liability this was the amount i use at itt this is the payment amount you will have to go ahead and inform all these things to the government with the help of a return right everyone return chapter may will be going ahead and learning section number 37 which will be going ahead and telling about outward supplies ka detail 38 is inward supplies ka detail 39 is your monthly return 40 is your first first return which is there then section number 41 is provisional itc 42 and 43 is not applicable 44 is annual return 45 final return and 46 which is there 46 is what sir 46 is non filer score notice is given in gstr 3a to file the returns within 15 days and 47 is your late fee and 48 is your gst practitioner let's go ahead and start understanding everyone over here whenever a person becomes liable he will have to go ahead and file he, whenever a person becomes liable it means he is a taxable person he should go ahead and apply within 30 days if he goes in and applies within 30 days and the registration is granted registration will become effective from the date you become liable between here to here whatever supplies you have done you have to go ahead and issue a revised tax invoice and all the details have to be disclosed in the first first return which is 40. For, which is filed under section number 40 your first return however practically first return ka concept is not there theoretically it is there which says that the very first return which you go ahead and file in that from the taxable person to the registered person whatever supplies you have done that should also be included now what will you start you will go ahead and start filing your regular returns which are gstr 1 and gstr 2 doesn't go and there is gstr 3b 4 and 5 all these are your monthly returns under section number 39 you will keep filing your monthly return monthly return monthly return one day you got tired and you told okay sir okay no for one year, whatever monthly returns uh, and uh, GSTR 1, GSTR 3B, etc. you have filed, all the details you will have to go ahead and give for a year in the annual return which is to be filed by 31st of December. Right everyone, annual return is GSTR 9 and 9A. Along with that, you have to give self-certified copy reconciliation statement if the turnover is greater than 5 crore rupees. Are we clear everyone? Earlier, earlier, what was, they had gone ahead and told, everyone listen. For the year 1718, 1819, 1920, annual return was made optional if your turnover is less than equal to 2 crore. And for 2021, registered person with aggregate turnover up to 2 crore was exempted from filing annual return. It means for 1718, 1819, 1920, and 2021, they have gone ahead and told if your turnover is up to 2 crore rupees, annual return is not required. Yes, sir. Sir, for 21-22, have they gone ahead and told anything? No, sir. It means every registered person is required to go ahead and file their annual return without any limit. Every registered person is required because this exemption was only given for 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, and 20, 21. Then, sir, annual return, ke, along with the annual return, you have to give self-certified reconciliation statement because audit requirement from a chartered accountant has been deleted under section number 35.5 where it was told that you have to get your audit done if your turnover exceeds 2 crore that audit requirement is done away with and hence now you have to set furnish one self-certified reconciliation statement only if your turnover is greater than 5 crore rupees right everyone and this section of uh, annual return is not applicable to the department of central government state government where books or local authority where books of accounts are audited by c and or auditor appointed under their law now you kept on filing monthly return monthly return annual return monthly return annual return you got tired and you told sir i want to discontinue my business and cancel my registration then your cancellation proceedings will start and registration will be suspended then once the date of cancel it when the, once the order has come or from the date of cancellation whichever is later within three months you will have to go ahead and punish your section number 45 may final return which is gstr 10 within how many days three months after making all the tax payment now sir what is the return everyone always remember one thing supplier will go ahead and file his gstr1 where he will go ahead and disclose all the details and it will come in your gstr 2a gstr 2a which is there gstr 2a which is there from the gstr 2a 2b is created and 2b may whatever details are there you will have to go ahead and take the input tax credit are we clear everyone but 
Now government have gone ahead and introduced QRMP scheme where government have gone ahead and told that under QRMP scheme the person will not go ahead and file GSTR1 he will go ahead for the first two months of the quarter he will do IFF and for the last quarter he will do GSTR1. So let's go ahead and first understand what is QRMP scheme right everyone quarterly return but monthly payment means you can file your returns quarterly but payment has to be done monthly it means gstr1 and gstr3 b you can file quarterly but monthly payment has to be done everyone over here government went ahead and introduced qrmp scheme on 1st january 2021 and government went ahead and told if your turnover in 1920 if you are a registered if you are a registered person other than oidr and your turnover which is calculated by the portal automatically is less than equal to 5 crore then you are eligible for quarterly return monthly payment scheme from the first of July, 1st of January 2021. Government told who is eligible everyone. If you are a person whose aggregate turnover in 1920 is less than or equal to 5 crore. And you have furnished your October 2020 return by November 2020. Means 1st January say, the scheme was introduced. So October month ka return if you have furnished by November 30th of November, then they are telling you will be migrated to QRMP scheme automatically. Otherwise, you will not be migrated. You will have to go ahead and opt for QRMP scheme yourself. Sir, auto migration was done. Sir, auto migration, always remember, for the first quarter only auto migration was done. So, they are going ahead and telling if your turnover is up to 1.5 crore, then GSTR 1 was already quarterly. QRMP scheme mein GSTR 1 as well as GSTR 3B also was made quarterly but GSTR 3B will be given to you quarterly basically quarterly scheme will be given to you based on they will go ahead and auto migrate to you based on your GSTR 1 ka status so they are going ahead and telling if you are opted for GSTR 1 quarterly QRMP scheme will be given to you. Sir, if your turnover is up to 1.5 crore and you did not opt for GSTR 1 quarterly means monthly GSTR 1 then monthly GSTR 3B also. If your turnover is greater than 1.5 crore, up to 5 crore rupees, and you are going ahead and filing GSTR1 monthly, QRMP scheme was given to you. This was auto migration option which was available. Are we clear, everyone? Then, sir, for the first quarter, January, February, March, if you are under QRMP scheme, always remember one thing QRMP scheme is available. GSTI and wise and option, option exercise one shall continue unless it is revised. Now this quarter you are under QRMP, next quarter you will be under QRMP, again next quarter you are under QRMP but supposingly one fine day you cross 5 crore rupees, in that quarter in which you cross 5 crore you will be eligible but the next quarter onwards or the next year onwards you are ineligible. Are we clear everyone? Sir, if I am not given an auto, auto QRMP option, how do I go ahead and take QRMP scheme, they went ahead and told rule number 61A goes ahead and tells you that how to go ahead and opt for QRMP scheme, if you want QRMP for a quarter, two months prior or one month after the starting of the quarter, you can opt online for QRMP scheme, so April, May, June ke liye if you are, want QRMP scheme, you can apply two months prior, that is 1st of February, till the last date of April, that is till 30th of April, you will have the option open online. You can go and opt for the quarter April, May, June ke liye QRMP scheme. Two months prior for every quarter whenever you want to opt. Once opted, it will continue unless you become ineligible. But if you want to opt for a quarter, how to opt everyone? Two months prior, you have to go online and opt or one month later after the starting of the quarter. Means till the first month of the quarter, you can go ahead and of for QRMP scheme. Always remember everyone, whenever it is QRMP scheme, you are going to make the tax ka payment quarterly. Sorry, sir, return you are going to file quarterly, but payment has to be done monthly. Everyone over here, for an example, April, May, June ke liye, you have gone ahead and opted for QRMP scheme, where you will be going ahead and filing your GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B quarterly. GSTR 1 ka discussion I will do later, but GSTR 3B, if you are going to file quarterly then always remember one thing you will have to go ahead and may file the return on 22nd or 24th that is on quarterly basis but you will have to make payment monthly which is for the month of april you will make by 25th of next month which is 25th of may and for the month of may you will make by 25th of june and for the whole quarter if any other amount is pending you will have to go ahead and pay by what date 
22nd is for southern part of India, lower part of India, and 22nd is for the upper part of India. They have gone ahead and given the due date. Are we clear, everyone? Sir, how do I make the payment? Because when I am going to file my return quarterly, I will do calculation also quarterly. So, government went ahead and told, for an example, April, May, June ka quarter ka you are talking about. Then before this quarter, if you are going ahead and opting for quarterly scheme, if you had opted for what? Quarterly payment, but monthly payment. Quarterly return, but monthly payment. If you have opted for the previous quarter, then whatever you had paid in the previous quarter using your cash of that 35% has to be paid in the first month. Second month ke liye 35% and the balance has to be paid later. Right, everyone? So they have gone ahead and given you two options. They are telling you pay by 25th, 25th and the differential pay when you are filing your GSTR 3B. When you are going ahead and paying on 25th, you have to make monthly payment, right everyone? Please consider your e-cash ledger, e-credit ledger before going ahead and making the payment. Payment can be done on fixed sum basis. That is, if the last quarter you had gone ahead and opted for QRMP scheme, made the payment QRMP basis pay, then whatever you had paid of that, 35% of the GST paid in the previous quarter using cash, 35% of the GST paid using cash, and the differential amount has to be paid when you are filing your GSTR, 3B, actual calculation to be done, 35%, 35%, whatever you have paid, deducted, remaining amount you have to go ahead and make the payment. Always remember when you are going ahead and following this 35% scheme, you don't have to go ahead and pay any interest at the time of filing your GSTR 3B except if you have not made the payments on the due dates. Right everyone? If you don't make the payment on due date, then you will have to pay interest. Otherwise, even if there is any shortfall, no interest shall be payable. Any tax unpaid or short paid interest at the rate 18% if differential is not paid within the due date. Sir, for an example, last quarter, I was under monthly scheme. I am new to QRMP scheme. In that scenario, last month, whatever you had gone ahead and paid of that, 100% to be paid, 100% to be paid. Right, everyone? Then, if you are basically new to QRMP and the differential amount can be paid at the time of filing GSTR 3B, remember always, no interest is to be paid if you have gone ahead and paid the amounts on due dates. However, if you have not paid the amounts on due date, then you will have to go ahead and pay interest for the delay in payment. Everyone over here, I have given one example. If supposing the tax paid in the previous quarter was 100, 100, 550 of the 35%, 35%, 35% and 35% has to be paid. Right everyone, if previous quarter you had gone ahead and opted for monthly, you are going ahead and paying taxes monthly. So previous quarter month you have to see of this quarter previous month has to be seen because previous month you are paying monthly return month you are filing monthly return only so whatever tax was paid in cash of that hundred percent hundred percent hundred percent has to be paid right everyone now sir i will not go ahead and opt for this 35 percent or 100 percent i will actually calculate the liability and pay then that is self-assessment method pay the actual tax liability actual tax liability actual tax liability but remember always any differential amount will be recovered along with interest right everyone so this was quarterly return quarterly gstr 3b and quarterly no payment monthly right everyone 25th 25th and 22nd or 24th now listen to me very carefully gstr 3b you understood now what about gstr 1 sir you can go ahead everyone over here listen to me very carefully if you are a person who is not under qrmp you will go ahead and file your gstr 1 monthly by 11 the front party will go ahead and get all the details of the de uh, debit note and invoices which you have gone ahead and disclosed. The front party will get GSTR 2A and it will go to his GSTR 2B on 14th and he will be able to take the credit on the basis of GSTR 2B. Remember one thing always, only what is appearing in your GSTR 2B, you will be able to take the credit as per rule number 36 sub rule 4 which is amended now. Only if something has been told in the GSTR 1 by a person and it is appearing in your GSTR 2B, you will be able to take the credit. Now, these people who are going for monthly GSTR 3B, their due date is next month ka 20th. Now, sir, people can also work, go for quarterly GSTR 3B. What is quarterly GSTR 3B? If a person is going for quarterly GSTR 3B, which is QRMP scheme, he can file GSTR 1 also quarterly. Now, if he is filing GSTR 1 quarterly, how will the front party get the credit? So, government told, supposingly for April, May and June, April and May, 
he can go ahead and disclose the info in invoices for which the front party wants the credit and he will go ahead and do invoice furnishing facility one facility made available for the people who are going for quarterly return so april month ke liye i will do invoice furnishing facility may month ke liye i'll do invoice furnishing facility june month mein whatever in details i have not furnished in the invoice furnishing facility i can go ahead and show in gstr 1 Always remember whatever you show in invoice furnishing facility or GSTR one goes to the front party का GSTR two B two A and then GSTR two B is created. Always remember GSTR two A is updated on a constant basis. However, GSTR two B is your actual eligible credit which you are eligible to take. GSTR two B is created as on fourteen and whatever is appearing in GSTR two B is your eligible credit. Everyone, April month के लिए IFF you will do, May month के लिए IFF you will do, June month के लिए you will go ahead and do gstr1 for on 13th 13th and 13th now here always remember one thing invoice quarterly return is allowed if your turnover is less than 5 crore less than equal to 5 crore and you will have to file your gstr 3b 22nd or 24th after the quarter ends sir in april you will disclose b2b invoices may month you will disclose b2b invoices but maximum how much can be disclosed up to 50 lakh rupees invoice value up to 50 lakh and june month may june month ka return when you are filing gstr1 you can disclose june month ka b2b and april and may ka b2c which you have not disclosed plus june month ka b2c also you can go ahead and disclose basically whatever invoices for that quarter you have not shown in iff all the other invoices you can show in the gstr1 it will go to the front party ka gstr2a and gstr2a is automatically updating always but on the next day of the iff facility basically see people will disclose gstr1 on 11 people will do iff on 13 14th co gstr 2b is created and a person will take the credit on the basis of always gstr 2b i hope everyone is clear till here now always remember this iff facility is an optional facility to you if your sub buyers want the credit can we go ahead everyone now listen to me very carefully sir gstr1 how does it happen people will go ahead and show in gstr1 or they will use invoice furnishing facility it will come in your gstr 2a people will go ahead and file their gstr5 that will also come in your gstr 2a people will go ahead and file gstr6 isd that will also come in your gstr 2a tds tcs return they will file then it will come in your gstr 2a If you import goods from outside India or STZ, say some goods are supplied to the domestic tariff area. In that scenario also, whatever IGST is paid, that will come in your GSTR 2A. Always remember one thing: whatever appears in your GSTR 2A, you are not eligible to take. You have to go ahead and check your GSTR 2B, which is auto drafted basically on 14th. Every month when it gets over, next month 14th May, GSTR 2B is auto drafted. In GSTR 2B, all your ITC details will be there. Basically, all the details of outward supply which are furnished by the supplier in GSTR 1, or using invoice furnishing facility, or GSTR 5 or GSTR 6, all the invoice details will be there. Plus, whatever IGST you have paid on importation of goods or taking the goods out of the SCZ, you have paid IGST. All those details will be there in your GSTR 2B, and you will be eligible to take the credit. Are we clear, everyone? Listen to me very carefully. People file GSTR one. People go ahead and do invoice financing facility. It comes in your GSTR two B. GSTR two B is your eligible credit. Now GSTR three B is your monthly return where you will go ahead and show what is our put tax liability. Use your GSTR two B ka credit and remaining amount you will make the payment and you will file your GSTR. 3b i hope everyone is clear other than gstr 3b also other people ke liye other returns are there which are given below nrtp goes ahead and file gstr 5 and the gstr 5 ka due date is within 20 days after the end of the month or if they have taken registration only for 15 days once 15 days gets over within the next 7 days after the last date of the validity whichever is earlier nrtp does not have to go ahead and file any annual return oidr ke liye gstr 5a is there and oidr will go ahead and file by next month ka 20th right everyone an annual return is not required they have been exempted isd will go ahead and file gstr 6 and gstr 6 is to be filed between 10th to 13th between 10th to 13th and they also are not required to file any annual return tds deducted gstr 7 by the next month ka 10 and they are also not required to file any annual return tcs collected gstr 8 monthly statement to be filed by 10th of the next month and sir their annual return is not there annual statement is there which is gstr 9b are we clear till here everyone always remember one thing if you don't go ahead and file your return on time section number 46 
Section number 46 says non submission of return on time. Notice will be issued in GSTR 3A and you will be required to file the return within 15 days. Non filing of return within 15 days of the notice under GST in GSTR 3A best judgment assessment under section number 62 will be done. 62 will be done. Can we go ahead, everyone? Next, sir, everyone over here. Can I go ahead and file one nil return? Yes, Baba, nil return is required to be filed even if you have not done any supply. Always remember, registered person allowed to fund his monthly return for current tax period unless he will not be allowed to fund his monthly return for the current tax period unless previous tax period ka return has been furnished. This is just for your information I have written. Sir, can I go ahead and file nil return using SMS? Yes, Baba, rule number 67A says if you want to furnish your nil return, you can go ahead and use SMS facility. Just send one SMS. It will verify through OTP and your return will be filed. But always remember, NIL GSTR 3B, NIL GSTR 1 and CMT 08 only can be filed through SMS. Now, people were going ahead and filing their GSTR 1, but they were not filing their GSTR 3B. People were going ahead and disclosing in invoice furnishing facility so that the front party gets the credit. You will show in IFM front party will get the credit. You will show in GSTR 1, front party will get the credit. Why do you have to file GSTR 3B? Government went ahead and told, if you don't go ahead and file your GSTR 3B, I will go ahead and block your GSTR 1 and I will not allow you to do GSTR 1 also and invoice furnishing facility also. So remember for your exam, number 22 exam, very important. What are the cases when registered person will be debarred from furnishing GSTR 1 or doing invoice furnishing facility earlier there were three clauses which were there clause number c now has been deleted and hence only two clauses are remaining and that is only the amendment over here earlier there were three clauses now clause number c has been deleted so you have to remember only two scenario may your dstr1 or invoice furnishing facility will be blocked number one if registered person not to allowed to furnish not allowed to furnish GSTR 1 if GSTR 3B not furnished for the preceding month. If I am going ahead and filing my returns monthly, last month ka GSTR 3B not filed, this month in I will not be allowed to file GSTR 1, means I will not be able to pass on the credit. Government is selling, you think you are smart, we are very smart. Now, then government went ahead and told, if you are a person under QRMP scheme, if you are a person whose turnover is up to 5 crore in the preceding financial year and you have opted for quarterly return, you will not be allowed to furnish GSTR 1 or use invoice furnishing facility if you have not furnished GSTR 3B for preceding tax period, means pre preceding quarter ke liye, if you have not filed your GSTR 3B, then now invoice furnishing facility also not allowed and GSTR 1 also not allowed. So, what are the cases when a person will be blocked or debarred from filing GSTR 1 or invoice furnishing facility? If you have opted for monthly return, last month ka GSTR 3B not filed, this month no GSTR 1. Sir, if you have opted for QRMP scheme, last quarter ka GSTR 3B not filed, then this quarter IFF also not allowed and GSTR 1 also not allowed. Right, everyone? This is the only amendment for your number 22 for your returns ka chapter. Next, sir, if I don't go ahead and file the return on time, first of all, tell me, section number 37, outward supplies ka detail, GSTR 1 or invoice furnishing facility now. Sir, 38, invoice supplies ka detail, which is now coming in GSTR 2 or GSTR 2A or 2B. GSTR 2B, GSTR 2, you are not filing. It is just coming in your GSTR 2 or GSTR 2 to A or to B. Then 39 is your monthly return. Monthly return, I have already gone ahead and told you all this. And GSTR 3B is also your monthly return. First, first return is section number 40. 41 is provisional ITC. Provisional ITC means whatever is appearing in a GSTR 2B, you can go ahead and take it. But that is subject to the front party going ahead and paying the taxes to the government. If he doesn't pay, the provisional ITC which you have taken will not be confirmed. Are we clear everyone? Means you can take your ITC provisionally when the front party files is GSTR 1 and it is coming in your GSTR 2B. That is provisional ITC as per section number 41. 42 is not there, 43 is not there, 44 is your annual return. Right everyone, annual return, every registered person is required to file annual return. Along with that self-reconciliation statement, if your turnover is greater than, aggregate turnover is greater than 5 crore. Yes everyone, aggregate turnover exceeds 5 crore. Can we go ahead everyone? And then we have section number 45 which is your bye-bye return from the date of order of cancellation or from the date of cancellation, actual date of cancellation, whichever is later within 3 months you have to go ahead and pay your taxes and file your 
bye bye return in case of cancellation of registration 46 which is there went ahead and told you about sir within 15 days you if you have not filed your return notice will be given and you have to file your return within 15 days now 47 which is there is talking about late fee everyone over here late fee under cgst act i am telling you late fee originally it was told monthly return ke liye rupees 100 per day maximum 5000 similar amount under cgst act sgst act also annual return rupees 100 per day maximum is 0.25 percent of the turnover in state or union territory however later a waiver was given for gstr 3b gstr 1 gstr 4 and gstr 5 where they told if you are filing a nil return it will be 10 rupees per day up to a maximum of 5000 under cgst and 10 rupees per day under sgst act maximum 5000 rupees are we clear but if your return is not a nil return then it is 25 25 5000 5000 other than nil return 25 rupees right everyone but this waiver was given only for gstr 1 gstr 3b 4 and 5 10 rupees 25 but the maximum amount was not reduced and hence late fee rationalization was done wherein they went ahead and reduced the maximum amount also they went ahead and told if you are a normal person who is going ahead and basically filing gstr 1 and 3b if it is a nil return 10 rupees per day right everyone but the maximum will be 250 only 250 under cgst 250 under sgst i am telling only cgst then normal person other than nil return 25 rupees per day but maximum will be 1000 if your aggregate turnover is up to 1.5 crore in the preceding financial year if your turnover is greater than 1.5 crore up to 5 crore then sir, 25 rupees per day, but maximum will be 2500 under CGST and 2500 under SGST. Sir, if your turnover is greater than 5 crore, then 25 rupees up to a maximum of 5000 under CGST and 5000 under SGST. Sir, composition dealer, whether nil return or any other return, nil return ka case mein 10 rupees, other returns ka case mein 25, nil return ka case mein maximum will be 250, other cases mein 1000 rupees. NRTP ke liye 10 rupees. And 25 rupees, same thing, nil 10, others kill 25, but maximum will be 5000, maximum fee is not reduced. ISD kill nil return or other return, GSTR 6, 25 rupees, nil or any other, both kill 25 rupees, maximum will be 5000, TDS deductor, GSTR 7, 25 rupees, maximum will be 1000, TCS collector, GSTR 8 is rupees 100 per day, up to a maximum of 5000. Whenever I am telling you like this, Always remember, this is told under CGST Act, this is told under CGST Act, same to same amount is also payable under SGST Act. I hope you guys are clear till here. We are done with your chapter of return, still section number 47 over here everyone. Done people. Now, one total bakwa section which is GST practitioner. Everyone over here, let's go ahead and quickly revise section number 48 which is your gst practitioner if you can't file your return you can go ahead and take the help of gst practitioner sir who is the gst practitioner a person who is practicing in gst no one no a gst practitioner is a person who has been approved under section number 48 to be a gst practitioner first of all who is eligible to be a gst practitioner he should be an indian citizen sound mind not adjudged as insol insolvent and he should not be convicted by a competent court only then he will be a, he can be a gst practitioner plus these are the basic qualification which is indian citizen sound mind not adjunct insolvent and not convicted by a competent court these are the basic qualification then it is educational or experience which is required sir if he satisfies any one of the following a b or c a says if he is a retired commercial tax department officer under any state government or cbic where he was working as a gadgeted b officer for greater than equal to two years because of his experience he can be a gst practitioner or he has enrolled as a sales tax practitioner or tax return preparer under any existing law means the earlier law may he was a tax return preparer for greater than equal to five years because of his qualification he will be given a gst practitioner ka he will be allowed to practice as a GST practitioner or now qualification you are a graduate postgraduate degree or equivalent in law banking business administration business management for, from any Indian university or you have a foreign university ka degree which is degree equivalent in India or you have passed any examination which is notified by the government on recommendation of council or you have passed the final examination of ICI, ICWAI which is also instead of, of cost accountants of India or ICSI then Baba your qualification is enough for you to be a for you to be a practicing GST practitioner 
basically you will have to go ahead and apply application goes in gst pct01 it will go over the account portal officer will go ahead and verify once he goes ahead and verifies everything is fine he'll give you enrollment otherwise he'll go ahead and reject if he gives you the enrollment enrollment comes in pct02 it is valid lifetime unless cancelled if he rejects he will go ahead and reject if you are not qualified basically now once he goes ahead and allows you to be a gst practitioner your name We'll start, we'll start appearing on the GST portal and people can go ahead and choose you as their GST practitioner. Now, if somebody goes ahead and chooses you to be a GST practitioner, he will authorize you in GST PCD 05. Once a person authorizes you, what are the functions you can go ahead and do for him? Always remember, a GST practitioner rejects. Okay, everyone, you have to remember rejects. What is R, everyone? He can go ahead and file a Refund, refund claim he can go ahead and file, he can go ahead and file returns which are there monthly, annual or final return, he can go ahead and file an application for cancellation or amendment of registration, R for refund, return and registration, E for EVA bill ka details he can go ahead and furnish, J for job work ka chalan which is ITC 04 may details he can go ahead and furnish, E for sir, Enrollment ka details which are there, any amendment or cancellation to be done, he can go ahead and do that. Enrollment which was given under rule number 58 to basically transport or owner operator of warehouse may. In that scenario, if any amendment or cancellation to be done, he can go ahead and do that. Then sir, C for composition. To go into composition and to come out of composition, you have to file CMP02 and CMP04. Those can, those filing of intimation can also be done by GST. Practitioner T for the tax depositing, tax depositing in the e-cash ledger also can be done. Tax deposit in the e-cash ledger also can be done by GST practitioner. And as for supplies ka detail, outward supplies and inward supplies ka detail can be furnished by GST practitioner. However, inward supplies ka details are GSTR 2 which is currently not going and hence outward supplies ka detail can be furnished by GST practitioner. Right everyone? The next one over here is, sir, if somebody wants to withdraw his authorization, then also he'll have to go ahead and file GST PCT 05. Sir, one more thing is there that GST practitioner ka exam will be held. It will be conducted by NASIN. What is NASIN everyone? NASIN is National Academy of Custom, Indirect Tax and Narcotics. NASIN will go ahead and conduct an examination. The examination is to be given by sales tax preparer and tax return preparer who has enrolled as a GST practitioner, if this exam has to be passed by them within 30 months of the appointment date of GST exam ke liye MCQ based exam it is and pass percentage is 50%. So supposingly a GST practitioner has done some misconduct then but by in case of misconduct, one show cause notice will be issued in PCT03, opportunity of being heard will be given, representation will be taken and an order will be given in PCT04 telling him you are disqualified for a GST practitioner. Sir, or can a GST practitioner also go ahead and surrender his enrollment? Okay, you can go ahead and file an application PCT06 and an order will be given in PCT07. The most important part in this chapter I would like to go ahead and say, although a C graded type of a chapter, but Please go ahead and take care of the amendment that when are you go debarred from filing your GSTR 1. Basically, whenever you don't go ahead and file your GSTR 3B of the last month or last quarter, your IFF and GSTR 1 is blocked. Then, sir, what are the various returns which are there? Please be careful. Late fee ke liye, please be little careful. Then, QRMP scheme, I have anyways gone ahead and explained it to you. Also, this DST practitioner is a C graded topic, but still be careful about the eligibility and functions of a GST practitioner. Right, everyone, I will go ahead and close my revision, complete revision on the chapter of returns over here. Congratulations, people, a C graded topic, but a 3 to 4 marker question can be asked. We will close all our revision for the chapter of returns over here. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye, guys. Alright students, let's go ahead and now revise the next chapter. The next chapter is advanced ruling. Everyone over here, we started learning GST with goods and service. Goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be either interstate or intrastate. Interstate what will happen? IGST. Interstate what will happen? TGST. Once GST is levied, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. How will you collect everyone? He will have to go ahead and calculate GST. GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax. Once you know the value, you will prepare the tax invoice, credit note, debit note and delivery. Chalan. 
Now, once you go ahead and prepare tax invoice, debit note, credit note, and delivery chalan, your you will have to maintain your accounts and records, and you will send the goods to the other person with the help of e-way bill. Now, what will happen? Your liability will come. Liability comes at the time of supply. You will use your input tax credit. Remaining amount, you will make the payment, and you will file your return. Listen to me very carefully. At any stage, if you have any confusion, government went ahead and told not any confusion. Government went ahead and told some questions. Those questions, you can go ahead and ask to an authority, which is known as an advance ruling authority. Everyone over here now, what do you mean by an advance ruling? An advance ruling means a ruling taken in advance. Basically, for your query, you can go ahead and ask for a answer and that is only known as an advance ruling. So, a ruling taken in advance, which is basically a decision by the AAR, which is authority for advance ruling or appellate authority for advance ruling. Whenever they give a decision, that is known as a advance ruling. Right, everyone? So, advance ruling starts with a applicant. Who is an applicant? An applicant can be a person who is registered or an unregistered person who is desirous of obtaining registration. So, if you are registered or unregistered, you can go for advance ruling. Remember for your exam. Now, sir, whenever you want to go for advance ruling, you can go only for certain questions, which is see the advance ruling ka list. C means if you have any classification related issue, you can go for advance ruling. Then, applicability of a notification R for, sir, registration is required or not, L for liability determination, I for ITC, S for whether what you are doing is supply or not, and T for time of supply and value of supply. Always remember, an applicant can be a registered person or unregistered person. And if he has those questions, which are basically, sir, C, A, R, car list. C, C, advanced ruling list. C means classification. A means applicability of notification. R means registration requirement. L for liability de determination i for itc s for supply t for time of supply and value of supply right everyone then the next one he will go for a application application goes in gst ra01 along with the fees of rupees 5000 under cgst similar amount is there under sgst he will file the application on the common portal now the advance ruling authority which is there always remember it's a state wise authority or union territory wise means every state and union territory has one advance ruling authority advance ruling authority may those people who are there are two people one person is a state CGST ka member, one is an SGST ka member and these people are joint commissioner or above. Once they receive the application, they will forward it to the concerned officer. Concerned officer is a person who is concerned with respect to all the advance ruling ka application. He will gather all the application regarding you and basically all the records rela relating to you, basically all the relevant records relating to you will be gathered by him and he will go ahead and send it to the advance ruling authority. So, when they send the application, he will go ahead and forward all the relevant records. Now, they will examine the application plus the record and they will give an opportunity of being heard to me or my authorized representative or to the concerned officer and his authorized representative. Now, after giving an opportunity of being heard, they will have two options. The advance ruling authority has two options. Either they will go ahead and reject the application or they will admit the application. If they reject the application, there will be no fees ka refund which will be given. Always remember that and they will reject for a reason. For your exam, please remember the reason for rejection will be if the question asked in the application is already pending or decided in any proceeding in case of the applicant. In my case, if that question is, uh, if a question which I have wanted and raised is already pending or it is already decided in any proceeding against me, then that question will not be entertained. Basically, they will not go ahead and entertain my advance ruling. They will give me an opportunity of being heard and pass an order rejecting the application specifying why they are going ahead and rejecting the application. Now, a copy will be given to me and the concern officer. However, if the question is not already pending or not decided in any other proceeding, then what will happen? Then in that scenario, application shall be admitted. They will go ahead and examine for the material which is placed by me or they have gone ahead and obtained it and they will give an opportunity of being heard to me or my authorized authorized representative or the concerned officer and his authorized representative and if there is a difference in opinion between both the members they will go ahead and refer the case stating the difference they will refer the case to appellate authority for advance ruling however however if they don't have any difference then they will go ahead and pronounce the advance ruling within 90 days and a copy will be given to the applicant and the concerned 
officer. If the applicant is aggrieved, he will go ahead and for, sign, file one application for an appeal. An appeal goes to appellate authority for advance ruling. In that, it is ARA 02 along with that fees is how much? 10,000 rupees. Are we clear? Fees is how much? 10,000 and application will go in 30 days plus further extension can be given. Given how many days? 30 days. If officer is aggrieved, then he will go with an application in GST ARA 03 within 30 days plus 30 days. But there is no fees which is to be paid by the officer all basically the concerned officer always remember one thing whenever the application goes to the appellate authority for advance ruling they will also give opportunity of being heard to both the parties might be they will go ahead and take additional document and then they will go ahead and either confirm or modify the ruling which was given by the double a r either they will confirm it or they will go ahead and modify and they will pass an order within how many days 90 days of the reference when there was a difference in opinion between the members of the double a r or once you have filed the application within 90 days they will pronounce the advance ruling now copy will be given to you the concerned officer your jurisdictional officer and the double ar authority for advance ruling always remember one thing if double ar if triple ar ka members if double ar ka members have a difference in opinion the appeal goes to the appellate authority for uh, advance ruling but appellate authority for advance ruling ka members if they have a difference in opinion then baba always remember the uh, advance ruling cannot be given in that case and you can't go for a appeal also means supposingly double a triple a r members went ahead and triple a r triple a r went ahead and passed an order against that there is no further appeal which you can do double a r ka you can go for triple a r triple a r ka advance ruling given you can't go for any appeal further now sir this person will go ahead and do what once this person goes ahead and uh Ask the question, what are the questions which can't be asked with the appeal, uh, up authority for advance ruling? Always remember, question relating to place of supply cannot be asked with the double AR. And also, can a person go ahead and directly apply to the triple AR? No, Baba, you first have to go to double AR. Only then you can go to triple AR. Then there is one section number 102 which goes ahead and says, Sir, if the order has been passed the by the double AR or triple AR and there is an apparent mistake which is there, then it can be rectified within a period of six months. However, if rectification results in results in increase of liability or decrease in ITC, then opportunity of being heard has to be given. Sir, section number 103, applicas, applicability of advance ruling. Advance ruling is binding on me and my jurisdictional officer in respect of me only. If my friend wants to go ahead and take the benefit of advance ruling, he can't go ahead and take because advance ruling is not binding on him or his, his jurisdictional officer. An application for advance ruling, always remember, adv advance ruling is binding. Once the advance ruling is given, it is binding on applicant and his concerned or jurisdictional officer in respect of the applicant only. Unless there is a change in law, fact and circumstances supporting the original advance ruling. Sir, if you have gone ahead and taken the advance ruling by fraud, will pull me statement or suppression of fact, then the advance ruling is void ab initio. Sir, what are the powers of double AR and triple AR? Always remember, the power are discovery and inspection, enforcing attendance of any person and examining him on oath. Sir, issuing commission and compelling production of books and other records, they have all the powers of a civil court under the code of civil procedure. Now, here we are done with your chapter, a C-graded chapter in the exam, but in my opinion, you should remember some things. Who are the people who can go for advanced ruling? Right, everyone? Registered or unregistered person. What are the questions that can be asked? See advanced ruling list. Sir, when is the advanced ruling rejected? When the question is already pending or decided in any other proceedings in respect of the applicant? Right, everyone? Then they can also go ahead and ask you about this application where to the Triple AR, when you are going for an appeal, who can go for an appeal? Applicant can go, concerned officer can go, and also when there is a difference in opinion between the member of double AR, then the appeal can go to triple AR. Sir, within how much time rectification of error can be done? Six months. Also, they can go ahead and ask you a case study based on this, wherein they will go ahead and ask you about the applicability of advance ruling. Advance ruling is always applicable, applicable only to the applicant or it's binding only on the applicant or his jurisdictional or concerned officer with respect to him only. His friend trying to take the benefit cannot go ahead and take it. Please be very careful about it. Right, everyone? An advance ruling given once, it need not be taken every year. It is valid for lifetime unless there is a change in law, fact and circumstances supporting the original advance ruling. Please remember this line. Advance ruling is valid 
एडवांस रूलिंग इज वैलिड अनलेस दे इज इन लॉ फैक्ट सर्कमस्टेंसेज सपोर्टिंग द ओरिजिनल एडवांस रूलिंग राइट एवरी वन दिस पावर्स विच आर देयर आर सी ग्रेडेड क्वेश्चन आई विल गो हेड एंड कंक्लूड ऑल माई डिस्कशन ऑन द चैप्टर ऑफ एडवांस रूलिंग ओवर हियर कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन पीपल Then everyone, all right, students. Let's go ahead and do the next chapter ka revision. The next chapter is assessments. Everyone, let's take a quick linking. We started learning GST with goods or service. Goods or service has to be supplied. Supply can be either interstate or intra. Interstate. What will happen, everyone? I GST, intrastate, C GST. Once GST is levied, GST has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. He will calculate GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax. Once you know the value, you will prepare tax invoice, credit note, debit note, and delivery chalan, and then you will maintain your accounts and send the goods with the help of e-way bill. Now you are. Liability to pay will come. That comes at the time of supply. You will use your input tax credit, and remaining amount you will make the payment, and then you will file your returns. Everyone, in each stage you have a doubt, you can go ahead and ask a advance ruling. Now start the department ka work where assessments will start. Everyone, assessment. Section number fifty-nine, self-assessment sixty, provisional assessment sixty-one, scrutiny sixty-two, base judgment of non-filer, base judgment of unregistered person is sixty-three, sixty-four is summary assessment. Everyone over here, what do you mean by assessment? Assessment means determination of tax liability. So whenever you are going ahead and determining your tax liability, that is the meaning of. Assessment. You determine. Officer determines. Everything is assessment. Section number fifty-nine. Self-assessment. Every registered person shall self-assess the tax payable. Go ahead and pay the tax and file a return under section number thirty-nine. Then we have provisional attachment. Provisional assessment. Section number sixty. What happened? 59 done everyone self assessment 60 60 is provisional assessment provisional assessment suo moto by the proper officer can't be done always a taxable person only can go ahead and apply for provisional assessment provisional assessment whenever taxable person is unable to determine value of supply or rate of tax remember always taxable person taxable person can be a person who is registered also or liable to register also so a taxable person unable to determine value or rate of tax then he can request the proper officer in gst asmt 01 for provisional payment of tax now po will go ahead and issue provisional assessment ka order in asmt 04 within 90 days allowing you to make provisional basis Pay tax ka payment at such rate and such value as may be specified in the assessment order. Now you he will also go ahead and tell you while issuing ASMT zero four that sir you have to go ahead and make this much amount ka bond along with that this much amount ka bank guarantee has to be given on execution execution of bond in ASMT zero five. Along with that he will go ahead and tell you to give bank guarantee. Always remember if the bond is for one lakh, bank guarantee will be twenty five percent of the amount of bond, which is twenty five thousand rupees. Then final assessment will be done in ASMT zero seven. Within how much time, everyone? Six months of the communication of provisional provisional assessment order. The day you receive the provisional assessment order, within how much time? Six months they will go ahead and give final assessment order. If six months me they can't do it, then the additional commissioner or joint commissioner can further extend the time limit by 6 months and commissioner can further extend the time by 4 years right everyone then final assessment if it is greater than provisional assessment you will have to pay the tax along with interest at the rate of 50% sorry interest under section number 50 at the rate of 18% from the due date till the date of payment and always remember this interest calculation is a Day wise calculation, which is their due date from the very next day of the due date till the date of payment, you will have to go ahead and make the payment along with interest at the rate of eighteen percent. 
you can now file the application for release of security which is basically asmt08 proper officer will release the security after he goes ahead and ensures that you have gone ahead and made the payment and he will issue a asmt09 within how many days seven days of the application saying i am releasing your security always remember one thing a provisional attachment provisional assessment provisional assessment amount is less more than final assessment might be final assessed amount is 4 lakh provisionally you paid 5 lakh then they will give you a refund along with interest at the rate of 6% under section number 56 basically you will have to file a refund application within 60 days if they give you a refund very good otherwise they will give you after 60 days they will start giving you interest at the rate of 6% that is after the 60 days ka period they will give you interest at the rate of 6% right everyone the one benefit of provisional assessment is penalties are not required to be paid then we have section number 61 scrutiny of return officer went ahead and started scrutinizing your return so proper officer may scrutinize your return and if he scrutinizes and he finds out any discrepancy then he will go ahead and issue you a notice in asmt 10 telling you what is the discrepancy and you have to go ahead within how many days 30 days either accept the discrepancy or give an explanation if you accept the discrepancy pay the tax interest whatever amount is told in the smt 10 whatever amount is there make the payment inform him using gst drc 03 now if you inform him chapter is anyways closed but sir if you go ahead and give him an explanation in the smt 11 now if he likes your explanation very good he will go ahead and issue an asmt 12 and no further action but if it doesn't like your explanation or even after going ahead and accepting the discrepancy if you don't take corrective action to has the following recourses available with him what can he do he can initiate an audit and special audit inspection search seizure and he can also go ahead now using all the audit special audit ka uh, uh, details which he has gathered inspection search is a documents book things which he has gone ahead and gathered he will go ahead and raise a demand order make the payment of the demand order within three months very good or within three months go for an appeal or greater than three months they will start recovery remember in the exam they will go ahead and ask you what are the recourses available with the officer if explanation furnished is not accurate or he doesn't like your explanation PO can initiate actions including audit, special audit, inspection, search, seizure, all the details which are being gathered, he will go ahead and raise against you a demand order under section number 73 or 74. Right, everyone? The next one over here is base judgment assessment. Everyone, what did we learn till now? We learned 59. 59 is self-assessment. You will self-assess your liability, make the payment and file the return under section number 39. That's your monthly return. 60 provisional assessment you will have to go ahead and apply to the officer if you are not able to determine value or rate of tax officer will go ahead and give you an assessment order then within how many days 90 days then from the provisional assessment order the communication date within six months plus or six months by the acjc or four years by the commissioner can be taken and final assessment order will be passed right everyone final assessment more than provisional assessment they, you will have to go ahead and pay the amount with interest otherwise it will be refund scrutiny of return you go ahead and file your return officer will go ahead and check may go ahead and check and if he finds a discrepancy he'll inform you you make the payment chapter closed or you give an explanation he likes your explanation chapter closed otherwise officer will go ahead and do audit special audit inspection search seizure demand and recovery can happen then best judgment best judgment is section number 62 non-filer of return they are going ahead and telling if you have not gone ahead and filed your monthly return or bye bye return which is final return they will give you a notice under section number 46 which is gstr 3a and tell you to file the return under within how many days 15 days if you file the return very good but if you don't file the return within 15 days then officer will go ahead and do best judgment and issue an assessment order within how much time from the due date five within five years from the due date in asmt 13 so the best judgment assessment order is given in asmt 13 now after you receive the return run baba run if you file the return after you receive the assessment order within how many days 30 days if you go ahead and file your return then assessment order shall be deemed to be withdrawn 
it says deemed withdrawal if registered person furnishes a valid return valid return means you pay your taxes and you file the return and the assessment order shall be deemed to be withdrawn means once you receive the assessment order within 30 days go ahead and file your return but once you file the return with the tax interest and penalty interest and liability ka interest and late fee ka liability shall continue what did i tell you everyone Best judgment assessment under section number 62, you have not filed your monthly return or your bye bye return, which is their final return under section number 45. He will go ahead and give you a notice to file the return within 15 days. If you file the return within 15 days, very good. If you don't file the return within 15 days, then he will go ahead and give you what? Sir, then proper officer will go ahead and issue a best judgment assessment order. Once the best, best judgment assessment is done, you can go ahead within 30 days of the service of the order. You can file your return. If you file your return, Best judgment assessment order deemed to be withdrawn. But when you are filing your return, please pay the tax and file your return. Liability and interest. Liability for interest, etc. will still continue. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Sir, there is a standard operating procedure which has been prescribed by the government under section number 62. For whom? For the non-filer of returns. Basically, they are going ahead and telling three days before the due date, we will go ahead and send one system generated SMS should be sent to all the registered person. Once the due date is over, to all the people who have not gone ahead and file the return, system generated SMS or email to be sent to all the non-filer. Now, once the due date is over, post five days, Notice under section number 46 has to be given in GSTR 3A saying please file your return within 15 days. If within 15 days they don't go ahead and file their return, proper officer can now go ahead with best judgment if return is not filed and he will go ahead and issue the best judgment assessment within. No, Baba, best judgment assessment order ka time limit is how much best judgment assessment ka time limit is 5 years from the due date of annual return. Right everyone? And he will issue one best judgment assessment order. Now, if you go ahead, when he is going ahead and doing the best judgment, he will use your GSTR 1, GSTR 2A, 2B, etc. Ka detail, EV ka detail, and any other information which is there, he will go ahead and use. Now, he can use 2B ka details also, right everyone? Then, sir, best judgment will be withdrawn if valid return is punished within 30 days. Always remember, when he is going ahead and doing best judgment, commissioner can also go ahead and resort to provisional attachment. Basically, they can attach your bank accounts etc and also they can go for cancellation of registration under section number 29.2 are we clear everyone because you are not filing your return etc they can cancel your registration sir best judgment of unregistered person under section number 63 if you are a person who is liable to be registered but you have failed to take re take a registration or your registration was cancelled by the proper officer under section number 29.2 do you remember section number 29.2 went ahead and told if you go ahead and contravent such provision of the act or rules basically the rule number 21 what rule number 21 may it is told what are the provision you go ahead and contravent then your registration will be cancelled composition person no return for Three consecutive tax period, normal person no return for six months or voluntary registered person not commence business within six months or registration was obtained by fraud, willful misstatement or suppression of fact. In this scenario, registered person ka registration will be cancelled by the proper officer. So, if you are a taxable person who has failed to take registration or registration was cancelled by the proper officer but you are still liable to pay, then he will issue you a notice and he will state the ground for assessment and allow you how many days everyone? 15 days to reply. Now, if you want, you can go ahead. Now, reply within 15 days. If he finds your reply valuable, then okay. If he doesn't find it valuable, then PO will proceed to assess the tax liability of the person to the best of his judgment. After giving you an opportunity of being heard, he will go ahead and pass an assessment order. Always remember one thing. Here, show cause notice was given. Opportunity of being heard was given. And then the assessment order was passed. So, no withdrawal. Right, everyone? Then, the next one is section number 64. I told you 59, self-assess your liability, make the payment, file your return. 60, provisional asset, at assessment, taxable person unable to determine value or rate of tax can apply for provisional assessment. Scrutiny is basically checking your return. 60, 59, 60, 61 is scrutiny. 62 is best judgment of non-filer, best judgment of unregistered person. 63, 64 is summary assessment, means like a quick kind of an assessment. If supposingly transporter is going ahead and taking the goods and going and officer catches him. Now transporter says, I don't know whose goods are this. Then officer will tell, I will assume it's your goods and he will pass the assessment order. Everyone over here, proper officer on evidence that there is a tax liability, but plus 
prior permission of the additional commissioner or joint commissioner, he can go ahead and assess the tax liability of such person. Such person means might be the transporter, owner, operator of warehouse, etc. He can go ahead and assess the liability of those people to protect the interest of the revenue and issue an assessment order in ASMT 16. If he has sufficient ground to believe that any delay in doing so may adversely affect the revenue, withdrawal can happen if on an application by the taxable person within 30 days of receipt of order or own motion if ACDC considers the order to be erroneous. One minute thing, one thing you have to understand everyone. Now listen, there can be, there can be withdrawal of the assessment order if application is given by the taxable person within how many days? 30 days or own motion. When? If either of the situation may ACDC considers the order to be erroneous, means taxable person went ahead and told the officer that sir, order which you have passed is erroneous and he considers it to be erroneous or own motion may if he considers it to be erroneous. See Baba, right order, he will never go ahead and withdraw. On application by the taxable person, on own motion, if ACDC considers that the order is wrong, then only assessment order shall be withdrawn. Are we clear everyone? Next. Always remember, what are, who are the other people whose assessment can be done basically? Such person means transporter, owner, operator of warehouse, person in charge when the taxable person cannot be traced. I hope everyone is clear. In both these situations, remember, assessment order will be withdrawn only if AC or DC, additional commissioner or joint commissioner, considers that the order is erroneous. I hope everyone is clear. In the exam, remember one thing. Section number 62, 63 and 64 ka assessment orders which are passed, their copy also has to be uploaded online using GST DRC 07. That's a summary of the demand order. Basically, summary of the orders. Next. What are the orders that can be withdrawn by under... Uh, one is base judgment under section number 62. One is summary assessment order under 64. If the additional commissioner or joint commissioner considers the order passed is erroneous. Assessment over here. Assessment over here is a B graded topic. But I believe you should not leave because 3 to 4 mark can be easily asked in the exam. First thing which I consider provisional assessment to be very important. Okay. Provisional assessment may this interest calculation at the time of refund and at the time of paying the differential is very important. What are the recourses available to the officer is very important. They can ask you write a short note on scrutiny of return. They can tell you write a short note on non-filer. They can go ahead and tell you about the standard operating procedure. You should know them. And also they can tell you write a short note on summary assessment. They can ask you what are the orders that may be withdrawn. Best judgment assessment order can be withdrawn and summary assessment order under section number 64 also can be ordered, can be withdrawn. Best judgment under 62 can be withdrawn if you file the return within 30 days and summary assessment order can be withdrawn if the AC or DC considers the order as erroneous. Right everyone, I will go ahead and conclude, conclude my revision on assessments over here. Congratulations people. All right, students, let's go ahead and now revise the next chapter. The next chapter is audit. Everyone over here, we'll be starting the next linking, which is basically from assessment. When you go ahead and department goes ahead and does, does the assessment under section number 61, there is scrutiny of return, right, everyone? When the scrutiny of return is going on, if the officer finds a discrepancy, he will tell you about the discrepancy. You accept it, make the tax payment very good. If you don't accept, you give an explanation. He likes your explanation, chapter close. But if he doesn't like your explanation or after accepting the discrepancy, if you have not made the tax payment, he will get angry and he can do audit, special audit. Right, everyone? Here, the two types of audit. Audit is by section number 65, which is department ka audit, section number 66, special audit everyone over here now audit section number 65 goes ahead and talks about audit by tax authorities section number 66 special audit everyone over here audit by depart tax authorities what will happen commissioner or any other person who is authorized by the commissioner either by a general order or a specific order will go ahead and undertake the audit of the registered person might be it is it can be for a period of one year or multiple of years or part of a year also right everyone always remember whenever they want to start an audit they will go ahead and give you first of all a prior notice of 15 working days in gst adt01 now once the audit will 
when audit can be done at your principal place of business at your place of business not principal at your place of business it can be any place of business or at their office means the department ka officer ka office mein sir tell me one thing when is the audit deemed to be concluded because audit has to come com complete within 3 months audit will be deemed to be concluded deemed to commence sorry audit will be deemed to commence when audit will be deemed to commence on the later of when the books are made available or actual institution of the audit at the place of business right everyone so first of all they will give you a 15 working days ka prior notice then audit will happen at your place or at their place now when is the audit deemed to start the deem the commencement of audit is when books are made available or when they actually come and start the audit that is meant by commencement of audit always remember commencement of audit 3 months may audit should get over if 3 months may audit could not get over then commissioner can extend the time limit by further 6 months but whenever he goes ahead and extends he will go ahead and record the reason in writing once the audit is concluded within 3 within 30 days they will go ahead and inform the registered person basically audit findings along with audit ka findings will be informed to him basically audit observation audit observation with the audit report will be given so it says audit report along with the audit observation shall be provided and they will tell sir these are your rights and obligation these are our findings and that these are the reason for our finding and basically these all things are informed to you in ADT 02 and now if tax is not paid short paid and honestly refunded ITC wrongly availed or utilized he will go ahead and initiate action under section number 73 or 74 basically if you don't go ahead and make the tax ka payment after ADT 2 is being received by you if you make the tax ka payment chapter close but if you don't make the tax ka payment etc then he will go ahead and initiate show cause notice and then demand order 73 and 74 ka proceeding sir what are the rights of an officer during an audit officer came to a premises they are going ahead and telling please give him necessary facility to verify don't make him sit in the go down correct give him necessary facility to verify the books and document and also give him information don't gossip with him give him information and assistance for timely con con completion of the audit right everyone sir what do you mean by special audit special audit means supposingly during a scrutiny inquiry investigation or any other proceeding officer greater than assistant commissioner he is of a doubt that what value you have gone ahead and declared the value is lower you are declaring low values value is not correct or might be the credit availed is not within normal limits you are taking more credit then they are going ahead and telling assistant commissioner will first take proper officer ka commissioner sorry he will take first commissioner ka permission and then he will direct the registered person in ADT 03 get his records including books or examined by whom chartered accountant or cost accountant who is nominated by the commissioner now everyone they will go ahead and tell you please go ahead who will assistant commissioner will go ahead and tell you send you what ADT 03 saying sir please get your accounts audited right everyone by the charter accountant or cost accountant nominated by the commissioner now chartered accountant or cost accountant will go ahead and start the audit within how many days he will complete 90 days if he could not complete within 90 days then chartered accountant or the registered person will have to go ahead and write to the assistant commissioner and assistant commissioner for material or sufficient reason can extend the time limit by further 90 days once the audit is concluded chartered accountant will give his audit report to the assistant commissioner now assistant commissioner based on the audit observation and the audit report which is given by whom the chartered accountant he will go ahead and prepare ADT 04 and send it to you saying sir these are the findings these are the taxes to be paid please go ahead and make the tax the payment now yes everyone now audit findings will be communicated to the registered person he will be given an opportunity of being heard and he has to go ahead basically findings and discrepancies with audit observation will be provided to you and you have to discharge the liability if you discharge the liability very good otherwise whatever tax is not paid short paid and honestly refunded itc wrongly availed or utilized and you have not made the tax payment he will go ahead and give you a show cause notice and then a demand order always remember the chartered accountant or cost accountant is nominated by whom commissioner and paid by the department what are the different types of audit who can conduct the audit always remember the audit under section number 35 5 which was required to be done by a chartered accountant or cost accountant that has been deleted by the finance act 2021 and hence there are only two types of audit audit by department and special audit audit by department under section number 65 special audit under section number 66 although a c graded type of chapter but i think 
you can go ahead and get a question might be they tell you write a note on audit or write a note on uh, say audit under section number 65 write a note on special audit they can go ahead and ask you what are the rights of the officer during an audit because two marks ka question nowadays they ask you right everyone they can go ahead and say what are the cases when officer greater than equal to joint commissioner uh, officer greater than equal to assistant commissioner can go for a special audit when he think that a value is not correct value declared is not correct or itc availed is not within normal limit right right everyone they also can go ahead and ask you a small question telling what are the different types of audit one is audit by department one is special audit audit by ca or ca has been deleted by the finance act 2021 and hence there are only two types of audit here i will go ahead and conclude my c graded chapter for two marks or three marks which can be asked maximum in the exam congratulations people All right, students, let's go ahead and now do the next chapter. The next chapter is inspection, search, seizure, and arrest. Everyone over here, we started learning GST with assessment. Assessment may you have scrutiny of return. In scrutiny of return, if the officer has scrutinized and he found some discrepancy, he will tell you, you accept pay, chapter close. You don't go ahead and pay it. You explain, you explain, he likes it, chapter close. He doesn't like it. He will go ahead and do audit, special audit, or he can do inspection. See, sir, Caesar, and also he can go ahead and arrest you. If at the time of seizure, etc., arrest, uh, inspection, search, seizure, etc., he has gone ahead and seen that the evasion, etc., is more than 2 crore rupees, you can also be arrested. This we are not talking now. We are talking, this we are going to talk now. Inspection, search, seizure, and arrest. Everyone, inspection, search, seizure, we will be learning section number 67. Six, in, inspection, search, and seizure, 68. Inspection of goods in transit, 69. Arrest 70 is summon, 71 is sir, access to premises, and 72 is other officers to assist the proper officer in implementation of the GST car law. Basically, everyone, section number 67, subsection 1 goes ahead and says inspection if proper officer greater than equal to joint commissioner has reason to believe what are the reason he can have a taxable person has suppressed transaction relating to supply or stock you have suppressed your transaction relating to supply or tax or stock you claimed itc in excess of his entitlement you have indulged in contravention of the act or rules in order to evade tax then or if a transporter, owner, operator of warehouse or a go-down or any other place is keeping tax and paid goods or kept wrong accounts to evade tax, then proper officer greater than equal to joint commissioner will authorize, may authorize in GST INS01 whom any officer might be subordinate to go and inspect the place of business of taxable person, transporter, owner, operator of warehouse, go down or any other place right everyone so first of all who can go ahead and direct an inspection proper officer greater than equal to joint commissioner what are the reason everyone reason is when taxable person has suppressed the tra transaction relating to stock or sales basically supply claims itc in excess of his entitlement indulge in contravention of actor rules in order to evade tax then the taxable person ka inspection can be done or any other play uh, transporter owner operator of warehouse or any other place basically they are going ahead and keeping tax and paid goods or kept wrong accounts and they are also doing it to evade tax then proper officer greater than equal to joint commissioner can go ahead and order for inspection now after the inspection is done if pursuant to inspection or might be any other intelligence information is received and the officer greater than equal to joint commissioner has reason to believe that there are goods in your premises basically which are liable to be confiscated or documents books things are relevant for proceeding and they are being hidden then he will go ahead prepare one search team send it to your place search and seizure will be done where they will go ahead and conduct the search and seizure find out documents books things goods goods which are liable for confiscation documents books and things which can be used against you for a proceeding they will take it along with them basically proper officer or officer authorized shall make an order of seizure in gst ina 02 take the goods along with them document books and things also along with them they will use it and pass a showcase notice against you and then a 
demand order proviso says if it is not practicable for them to take all the goods and go they will go ahead put one seal around and say this is your order of prohibition you can't go ahead and deal with these goods are we clear order not to remove or deal with the goods except with the permission gst and 01 order of prohibition will be given then section number 63 67 subsection 3 says sir if they have gone ahead and taken some documents along with them documents books things shall be returned after examination or inquiry if documents books things are relied upon they will use it for issuing a notice if it is not relied upon they will return within 30 days section number 67 4 talks about the powers of the officer during a search and season activity proper officer has the power to seal the premises seal anything or break open the door all armina or almira or electronic device or boxes or receptacle in which books accounts documents are suspected to be concealed and access is denied if you deny the access they will go ahead and break open everything and take out those goods document things which they think are hidden inside section number 67 5 goes ahead and talks about if you want photocopies or extract they will go ahead and allow it to you officer will go ahead and allow but officer may allow if you feel that it is prejudicial to the revenue interest then he will not go ahead and allow you then section number 67 7, 67 subsection 6 says that provisional release of seized goods upon execution of bond in gst ins01 plus a security which is bank guarantee bank guarantee should cover tax interest and penalty sir i don't want to give a bond and bank guarantee then make the payment of the tax interest penalty we will release the goods section number 67 subsection 6 goes ahead and says confiscation proceeding that is show cause notice for confiscation see caesar is taking possession now they want to take over ownership also for taking over the ownership they will release the confiscation ka notice within how much time six months plus six months of the or date of seizure otherwise goods shall be returned to you section number 67 8 says perishable or hazardous goods or goods which are basically depreciating or storage constraint is there then department ka officer will say perishable goods hazardous, hazardous goods all these depreciating goods ka case may we will go ahead and sell it off if you want you can pay us the market price of the goods or things or the tax interest penalty whichever is lower and will release the goods to you if you don't go ahead if the taxable person does not go ahead and pay the tax interest penalty etc they will go ahead and dispose the goods or things and the amount realized shall be adjusted towards tax interest penalty or any other amount might be any transportation charges storage charges etc is there they will deduct that also from that amount section number 67 9 goes ahead and says whoever is the officer who is seizing the goods and taking along with them documents books etc seizing the goods document books things etc they will prepare one inventory of the seized goods comma document books and things and get it signed by that person it's called a pansnama or a mahazar basically they will tell you sir see these are the document books doc, uh, goods uh, things we are taking along please sign it they will get it signed from you right everyone then we have section number 67 67 is done section number 67 inspection section number 67 1 inspection section number 67 2 search and seizure section number 67 3 document books thing not relied should be re returned within 30 30 days section number 67 4 break open if you don't go ahead and allow them permission is not if you don't give the keys etc they will break open section number 67 5 photocopies section number 67 6 provisional release section number 67 7 confiscation notice section number 67 8 sir perishable hazardous goods lower of the market price or tax interest penalty you pay and it will be released section number 67 9 sir inventory will be prepared section number 67 9 inventory will be prepared by the seizing officer section number 67 done section number 67 has some other subsections also please read from the textbook section number 68 goods in transit when the goods you are taking the goods basically it's talking about the ebay bilwala chapter section number 68 inspection of conveyance or car conveyance carrying goods greater than 50000 person in charge shall produce documents and devices at the time of ins introspection basically when they will go ahead and stop you you will have to go ahead and show them the documents if any mismatch is there detention and seizure under section number 129 confiscation under section number 130 if all documents are found in order no issues at all you can go right everyone section number 69 goes ahead and talks about arrest 
commissioner has reason to believe that person has gone ahead and committed those offenses which are told under section number 132 1 a b c d 1 a says supply without invoice b talks about bogus invoice invoice without supply basically is a bogus invoice or itc availed using such bogus invoice or bill or itc without having any invoice or bill or amount collected as tax has not been deposited greater than 3 months from the due date basically what are the four offenses section number 132 one says supply without invoice invoice without supply uh, then itc availed on the basis of bogus invoice or bill or itc without invoice or bill or amount collected as tax has not been paid to the government greater than 3 months and the amount involved is 2 2 crores or if you have gone ahead and done these offenses repeatedly repeated offense any amount then commissioner may authorize any officer of the central tax to arrest the person so if you have gone ahead and done these four offenses plus the amount is 2 crore amount is 2 crore or greater than 2 crore sorry amount is greater than 2 crore then you will be arrested or four offenses subsequently any amount you will be arrested right everyone always remember one thing whenever you are arrested arrest are of two type one is cognizable and non bailable cognizable and non bailable is only when the amount of the offense these four offenses plus the amount is greater than 5 crore then it is cognizable and non bailable cognizable means severe offense non bailable means the arresting officer will not go ahead and tell you the bail, bail amount you will be pre presented before the magistrate and ma within how much time 24 and 24 hours and magistrate will decide whether to give you bail or send you to jail then we have non cognizable and bailable what is non cognizable non severe offense are bailable offenses wherein basically the ac or dc the assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner will go ahead and decide the bail amount basically presenting before the magistrate is not re not required here the assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner shall have the same power as that of a officer in charge of a police station right everyone all the arrest which are made are to be made as per the code of criminal procedure section number 70 goes ahead and says proper officer can call anyone hey come i need evidences so evidence ke liye he can go ahead and summon any person to give evidence documents things in an inquiry then we have section number 71 basically section number 71 goes ahead and tells all this audit parties department ka audit ka person will come inspection ke liye people will come they can come inside your premises and they will have access to your business premises without any search warrant they can come to your premises basically for inspection checks etc right everyone now whenever section number 71 says access to business premises so whenever officer will come to your premises please allow him inside the premises don't leave your dog Uh, dog over here saying please run behind him no 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 always he will have access to your business premises officer authorized by the proper officer greater than equal to joint commissioner shall have access to inspect so supposingly one officer has come to a premises with an ins01 he will have the authority to check what inspect accounts documents computer computer program computer software and, and such other things as he may require and available at such place for the purpose of audit scrutiny verification and check so whenever an officer is coming to a premises don't tell him get lost get a search warrant without a search warrant also he has the authority to go ahead and do all the checks scrutiny uh, verification etc right everyone and if person in charge on demand by the proper officer or audit party or the chartered accountant cost accountant you have to make available record as prepared and maintain trial balance annual audited financial cost audit report income tax audit report if any and any other relevant record within how many days 15 days of demand are we clear if any other records are being demanded by him you have to go ahead and give it to him within 15 working days now section number 72 officers to assist the proper officer whenever one proper officer will come to a premises might be for an inspection he is little scared so he can get the police department ka officer all other department ka officers have to help the proper officer in carrying out the provisions of the law basically in proper implementation of the law all other officers like sir officers of police railway officer custom officer land revenue collection officer village officer sgst officer or notified class of officer officers shall assist the proper officer in implementation of this act all other officers will have to go ahead and help the officer whenever he wants to implement the provisions basically whenever he wants to implement the act or rules one question which can come in the exam is what are the principles or requirement during the search operation whenever they come for a search what are the principles or uh basically 
requirements number one they should come with a valid search warrant there should be a lady officer accompanying whenever they come for a search they should get the search warrant signed by you then search should be in the presence of two independent witnesses before search they should disclose their identity card valid search warrant should be there search warrant should be executed lady officer should be there search should be in the presence of two independent witness before starting they should disclose the id card when they are going ahead and doing the search they should take care that religious sentiments are being taken care when they are doing the search they should take care that kids who are there are going to school bags you check it and send them to school are we clear when you are doing the search covid is going on little bit sanitize etc you should do all these things were general protocols which are there right everyone and also after the search gets over a mahazar or a panchnama should be prepared which is signed by whom independent witnesses and also by the person in charge or the owner right everyone inspection search and seizure is a c graded topic but still i feel they can ask you who can go ahead and order inspection proper officer greater than equal to joint commissioner they can ask you what are the reason inspection can happen they can go ahead and tell you what are the powers of the officer during a inspection a search and seizure activity what how can provisional release of goods be done sir they can also go and ask you about the treatment of perishable and hazardous goods they can ask you a short note on access to business premises they can ask you a principal or requirement during search operation and also they can ask you about the officer's power to arrest right everyone here i will go ahead and close my c graded topic which is basically inspection search and seizure congratulations people all right students let's go ahead and revise the chapter of demand and recovery let's take a quick linking and then we'll go ahead we started learning assessment not gst we'll continue with assessment when we were going ahead and doing assessment we did self assessment then provisional assessment then scrutiny of return came yes everyone when the scrutiny of return happened officer went in and told you there is a discrepancy if you go ahead and correct the discrepancy make the payment of the tax inform the officer chapter close if you don't go ahead and accept the discrepancy give an explanation he likes the explanation chapter close he doesn't like the explanation he will go ahead and tell you i did not like the explanation or after accepting the discrepancy you did not make the tax ka payment etc officer will get angry over here he will do audit he will do special audit right everyone or he will go ahead and do inspection search seizure and arrest also can happen so inspection search seizure he will do baba arrest okay leave it he will go ahead and do audit special audit he will do inspection search seizure after doing audit or after doing inspection search seizure he will gather documents books things against you and out of that whatever is the evidence he will go ahead and say say you that i will use the evidence and now give you a show cause notice and then a demand order right everyone here comes the chapter of demand order once demand now once the demand comes if you make the payment within 3 months very good if you don't make the payment within 3 months you can go for an appeal if you don't go for an appeal also after 3 month department will hang you upside down and they will start recovery so we are going to learn the chapter of demand and recovery everyone over here section number 74 and section number 73 over here section number 73 talks about demand order in case of bona fide case 74 fraud case section number 75 goes ahead and talks about general provision relating to determination of demand section number 76 if you have collected something representing as tax you should pay immediately to the government if you don't pay show cause notice and then demand order section number 77 wrongly paid tax refund should be taken and correct tax should be paid no interest is required then we have 78 recovery proceeding initiated after 3 month 79 modes of recovery 80 told installment you can ask 81 went ahead and told sir transfer of property shall be void then we had section number 82 sir whenever there is a company basically might be closing gst dues will have the uh, first firstly basically government will go ahead and recover their dues over here then we had 83 provisional attachment and 84 continuation of recovery proceedings everyone over here section number 
73 now. People listen to me very carefully. Officer went ahead and did audit, special audit, inspection, sir, seizure. And now he went ahead and found that, sir, you have not gone ahead and paid some tax. Tax is not paid. Might be 18% was required. You paid 12. Tax is short paid. Or any erroneous refund you have taken. Or might be ITC was wrongly availed by you or wrongly utilized by you. Then officer can go ahead and say that, sir, you have tried to do fraud. Then you will come under section number 74. Before starting the proceedings, also you have an option to make the payment. That also will go ahead and talk. Sir, you will come under section number 74. 74 ka proceedings will be done against you only if the officer has reason that you have gone ahead and done fraud, will pull misstatement or suppression of fact. Suppression of fact ka meaning means what? Suppression means you don't declare some fact or information which you are required to declare or failure to punish information which is asked by the officer. It is always this means what? Suppression. Suppression always comes under section number 74. Sir, if there is any other demand order which is going to be raised, which is for reason other than fraud, willful misstatement or suppression of fact, then proceedings under section number 73 will be initiated. Always remember one thing, officer before going ahead and raising a show cause notice, you can go ahead and pay before issuance of the show cause notice also. Always remember, if you are paying before show cause notice or officer in some cases can, if he wants, may, he can go ahead and give you one GST DRC 01 AMA, part AMA saying, sir, this is the amount which you are liable to pay. Estimation can be given to you. Means intimation will be given to you that this is your tax, this is your interest, this is the penalty to be paid by you. Not estimation. Intimation is given. But this is up to the officer to give you. I, either the officer has given you the intimation where he has intimated you the tax interest penalty or on your own if you go ahead and pay before issuance of SOCOS notice, then they are going ahead and telling please pay the tax, please pay the interest. If you make the full payment and you go ahead and inform the officer using GST DRC 03, officer will go ahead and issue you an acknowledgement in GST DRC 04 that sir, we are going ahead and not going to raise any show cause notice on you, chapter will be closed. But sir, even before issuance of show cause notice or on receipt of DRC 01A ka part A may estimation, basically intimation where officer has gone ahead and told me to pay. If I go ahead and make the full payment, then chapter close. If I don't make the full payment, I made a part payment and for the part payment, remaining part, I want to give a submission or for the full amount which he has gone ahead and told me, I want to go ahead and make a submission, then I will make a submission in part B of GST DRC 01A. Now what will happen for the remaining amount basically or if you have not made any payment, then they will first of all go ahead and give you a show cause notice. Section number 73 I am teaching you now, later we will learn about 74. Now he will go ahead and give you a show cause notice, detailed show cause notice will be sent to you and summary will be uploaded in GST DRC 01A. 01, sorry, GST DRC 01. In the show cause notice, he will tell you the tax amount. Interest, he will tell you at the rate of 18% is payable. And he will also state the ground that, sir, tax was not paid by you. Tax was short paid by you. Erroneous refund was taken by you. All this ground, he will go ahead and tell. Now, and he will also ask you why this amount which I am demanding from you, why this amount should not be demanded that he will go ahead and tell in the show cause notice. Now, after the show cause notice comes, you are given even 30 days ka time limit. You can go ahead and pay the tax and you can pay the interest and you can inform the officer in GST DRC 03 and he will not go ahead and charge any penalty. Demand order will also not come because show cause notice was given. Proceedings initiated. They will have to conclude the proceeding by giving you a GST DRC 05. Remember always, show cause notice has come. 30 days ka time is given for voluntary payment. If you don't make the payment within 30 days, after 30 days, there is no way to go ahead and make voluntary payment of a show cause notice. Now, what will you do? If you did not go ahead and make the payment within 30 days, then within 30 days, either you make the payment or after 30 days or within 30 days, you can go ahead and give reply to the show cause notice in GST DRC 06. Now, after you go ahead and talk to him, discussions will happen and then a demand order will be given. Demand order detail will be given to you and a summary will be uploaded online in GST DRC 07. Once the demand order comes, you will be further given how many days ka time? 
actually three months ka time before they go ahead and start recovery but if you go ahead and make the payment sir there is no more option now before they start the recovery if you go ahead and make the payment then you have to pay tax interest penalty 10 percent of the tax or 10 thousand whichever is higher once you make the payment inform him in drc03 and he will conclude the proceedings issuing you gst drc05 are we clear everyone once the demand order comes either ssc can make the payment he has three months or ssc can go for an appeal within three months because after the three months department will go ahead and start the recovery as per section number 78 it is told that recovery will start and always remember after three months there is recovery which will start they will not give you any notice for recovery and all demand order which was given is only your notice for recovery can i go ahead everyone now listen to me very carefully always remember one thing if it is sir if it is bona fide case it is before show cause notice you can go ahead and make the payment when drc01 a is issued part a may they have told you or your, on your own you can go ahead and make the payment if it, are, if it is a bona fide case you will pay tax and interest only right once show cause notice has come if you pay within 30 days you will pay tax and interest only then once the demand order has come if you make the payment you pay tax interest penalty how much 10 percent or 10 thousand whichever is higher but sir if it is 74 ka case always remember before issuance of show cause notice if you are paying that is on your own estimation or on receipt of drc 01a they will have you will have to go ahead and pay tax interest penalty 15 percent of the tax amount sir if show cause notice has come after that you want to pay in the, within 30 days tax interest penalty 25 percent has to be paid of the tax amount sir demand order came frauds are given one more chance that sir if you make the payment within 30 days then you can pay tax interest penalty 50 percent of the tax amount but after 30 days greater than 30 days you will have to go ahead and pay tax interest penalty 100 percent of the tax amount sir you are still given three months ka time if you make the payment very good either go for an appeal or after three months recovery will start is the point clear to all always remember one thing when they are going ahead and giving show cause notice in the show cause notice they will take tell you tax interest penalty and they will state the grounds also always remember whatever tax interest penalty is told in the show cause notice the same amount of tax interest penalty they can go ahead and demand and the ground also has to be same in the demand order it can't exceed demand order can't exceed the show cause notice demand order and show cause notice always has to be in conformity now listen to me very carefully if the officer is going ahead and doing supposingly one proceedings for 17 18 and he wants to go ahead and raise a demand order now whatever the show cause notice issued for which year that year clearly only he can go ahead and raise the demand order but supposingly he identified during the proceeding that for 18 19 uh 17 18 19 19 20 also you have done the same kind of thing tax is not paid or short paid means whatever this show cause notice was issued the grounds supposingly tax was not paid by you that same issue relates to 18 19 and 19 20 also for those here the, he doesn't have to give a show cause notice he can go ahead and give a statement and now he can go ahead and join this show cause notice and statement and then go ahead and raise the demand order are we clear everyone always remember one thing show cause notice has to be there for demand order now show cause notice issued for one year for remaining years also if he identified that the same mistake you have gone ahead and done the grounds for which he can go ahead and demand is same then he has to go ahead and raise show cause notice for the additional year he will not raise show cause notice he will give a statement in drc02 for additional period not covered in the show cause notice and service of statement shall be deemed to be a service of show cause notice however the grounds has to be the same i hope you guys are able to connect to this always remember one thing fraud case may tax interest penalty 15 percent tax interest penalty 25 percent tax interest penalty after demand order 50 percent if within 30 days after 30 days it is always 100 percent right everyone everything in section number 73 and 74 are almost same up other than what sir penalties which are being told now one thing which is very important over here is what is the time limit for show cause notice and demand order section number 73 may always remember one thing the time limit to go ahead and raise the demand order for one year supposingly 1718 if i go ahead and tell you the due date of return is 31st december 2018 extended due date then extended due date say you will see sir otherwise always take 31st december from that year in case of section number 73 the demand order ka time limit is 
three years. Right, everyone? And demand order to show cause notice, the minimum distance should be three months. And hence, that show cause notice should come within two years, nine months. I hope everyone is clear. So, if so, 17, 18 related, if I am talking, then 31st December 2018 is the due date for annual return. Sir, 19. 2021 31st december 2021 is the maximum time limit to raise demand order if not raised within th three years then all the proceedings deemed to be concluded with the respect to that year are we clear sir time limit to raise the show cause notice is three months prior means at least distance between show cause notice and demand order has to be three months and hence show cause notice ka time limit will be 30th of september 2000 and 21. I hope this point is clear. Now, this is section number 73. May time limit to go ahead and raise the show cause notice. Show cause notice should be three months prior. And demand order is always, sir, demand order is three years and show cause notice is two years, nine months in section number 73. Right, everyone? Now, we'll talk about section number 74. Section number 74, always remember, if 17, 18 related one show cause notice has to be given in section number 74 and demand order has to be given you have to see 31st december 2018 from there you'll have to see one two three four five years so 19 20 21 22 and 23 fraud always takes time to detect so they have gone ahead and told we'll give how many years five years and hence it should be 31st december 2023 till what time demand order can be given and demand order to show cause notice the distance should be at least minimum six months and hence so cause notice should be given by maximum date 30th of june 2023 right everyone always remember one thing so cause notice should be given prior to the six months prior to the order and sir sir what is the time limit in case of bona fide case three years fraud case demand order is five years so cause notice is two years nine months and sir fraud case it is four years six months sir if it is not given demand order and show cause notice is not given within time limit always remember one thing sir if three years may they have not gone ahead and passed the demand order or five years may they have not passed the demand order that demand that year related show cause notice and demand order basically can't be given now all the proceedings deemed to be concluded always remember these time limits for your exam are very very important if show cause notice and demand order is not given within time and it is still given to you you can challenge the show cause notice and the demand order right everyone always remember one thing if there is supposingly 17 18 and 1718 related one refund was given one refund was given so the date of erroneous refund say you will have to see in bona fide case three years from the date of erroneous refund the day erroneous refund was given from that you have to see three years and in case of fraud case from the date of erroneous refund you will see five years from the due date it is generally for other than erroneous refund ka case but erroneous refund may five years or three years or two years nine months and four years six months has to be seen from the date of erroneous refund i hope everyone is clear till here always remember one thing sir i have gone ahead and given gst drc 01 a meaning over here part a may intimation is given to you part b may you go ahead and pay partial amount ka payment ka details you gave or if you want to go ahead and tell something submission is given over here right everyone now sir time limit i have gone ahead and told you penalty i have gone ahead and told you what is the penalty everyone before show cause notice there is no penalty in 73 74 may it is 15 percent sir after show cause notice 73 may there is no penalty demand order for 74 may there is 25 percent after demand order bona fide case 10 percent of tax or 10,000, whichever is higher has to be given fraud case 50 percent or 100 percent after 30 days has to be given right everyone now always remember one thing one explanation is given that sir if you go ahead and pay all the amount which is told in 73 and 74 whatever is applicable to you all proceedings shall be deemed to be concluded other than section number 132 means if against me supposingly 73 and 74 ka demand order is given if i go ahead and make demand order ka payment all proceedings against me will be concluded other i other than section number 132 section number 132 talks about imprisonment if i have gone ahead and done a fraud which is of a higher amount they are going ahead and telling we will send you to jail also right everyone so section number 132 also referred over here section number 132 i hope you guys remember more than one crore more than 
5 crore, more than 2 crore, etc. amounts are there that you dis, uh, study under section number 132. Now, here one more amendment is there. One amendment which goes ahead and says over here is, sir, notice is issued to the main person. Supposingly, notice was issued to me and to pay the tax, demand order was given, show cause notice and demand order and some other persons also and such proceedings against the main person has been concluded. I have gone ahead and made all the payments and against me proceedings are concluded. Might be to transport my goods, I had gone ahead and taken the help of a transporter. So, I am the main notice to whom the notice was given and I made all the tax payment and chapter was closed against me. Now, so supposingly, I was given a show cause notice. I made all the tax payment and what happened? All the proceedings were concluded against me but other than 132. Now, listen to me very carefully. Proceedings concluded against me. Earlier, what used to happen? All the proceedings against, all the proceedings against, against all other persons who are liable to pay penalty under section number 122, 125, 129, 130 are also concluded. Earlier, what used to happen? If main notice, pay one showcase notice is given and I go ahead and make all the tax payment, etc., then against me, the notice used to be, all the proceedings used to be concluded and against, along with me, if any other notices who are there, any other notices who are there, whom also notice has been given, my proceeding concluded, all these people ka proceedings also used to get concluded. But now what they have gone ahead and told, if on main person the proceedings are concluded, then on the additional people to whom notice has been given there section number 122 and 125 ka proceedings might be included that is general penalty ka proceeding but 129 and 130 ka proceeding basically 129 is talking about detention and seizure of goods and conveyance and 130 talks about confiscation 129 and 130 ka proceedings against the additional people who are there will not be concluded so supposingly i have gone ahead and done some wrong thing and along with me there was a transporter who was there so on the transporter if notice is served my proceeding concluded doesn't mean his proceedings will be concluded against him 129 or 130 ka proceedings against my additional notices who are there will be going on i hope everyone is clear now what is the amendment everyone if main notice ka 73 and 74 ka proceeding concluded doesn't mean additional notices who are there along with me their proceedings also concluded baba 125 and 122 ka proceedings against them concluded but 129 and 130 ka proceedings earlier used to get concluded but now they have deleted 129 and 130 ka reference and they have told 129 and 130 ka proceedings will not be concluded done everyone next so here you have to write proceedings against all other person liable to pay penalty under 122 and 125 are concluded but against People who are liable to pay penalties, etc., under 129 and 130, that is not concluded. Now, section number 7311, one small paragraph is there over here. Section number 7311 may they have gone ahead and told if you don't go ahead and pay self assessment tax within 30 days, then you will be liable to a penalty of 10% or 10,000, whichever is higher. People went ahead and asked the government, What do you mean by this? Government went ahead and told if you go ahead and file your return, and in the return, you have not gone ahead and paid the self assessed tax, and you file the return. You have gone ahead and self-assessed an amount, you went ahead and filed the return, but you did not make the tax ka payment, then they are going ahead and telling, if you go ahead and filed a return without paying, without making tax ka payment, and then within 30 days you make the payment, very good. If you don't make the payment within 30 days, we will go ahead and issue you a show cause notice, and then you will be liable to pay tax, interest, penalty also, which is 10% of the tax or 10,000, whichever is higher. Always remember, self as tax or amount collected as tax, if unpaid greater than 30 days from the due date, penalty of 10% or 10,000, whichever is higher will be charged. So, if you filed a return, self assessed your tax, did not make the payment and filed your return, then only this penalty is told, wherein they are going ahead and telling, sir, how much? Sir, 10% of the tax or 10,000, whichever is higher. But that also, but for that also, officer will have to give you a show cause notice and then demand and then take the penalty ka amount. It says over here, circular came, whether penalty under 7311, which is 10% or 10,000 has to be paid. Even if I have gone ahead and filed a late return, Baba, if you have gone ahead and filed a return late, that is not a problem. Late return means you will go ahead and pay tax, interest and late fee. There, general penalty can be imposed, but supposingly you went ahead and filed your return, did not make the tax payment, filed your return, that's a self-assist tax, not paid within 30 days, then penalty, 
can be charged on you but following the due process of law which is show cause notice demand order and basically penalty order will be given sir whether penalty under 7311 can be levied with gstr 3b is filed after due date sir provision of 7311 can be invoked only when provision of 73 and invoked provision of section number 73 are generally not invoked in case of delay in filing of gstr 3b because tax along with applicable interest has already been paid but after the due date it is accordingly clarified that penalty under section number 73 11 is not payable in such case however a general penalty may be imposed under section number 125 i hope you guys are clear with section number 73 and 74 over here now everyone over here let's go ahead and do section number 75 76 and 77 we learned section number 73 and 74 where they went ahead and told you about demand order and show cause notice when demand order and show cause notice is given there are some general provisions which are applicable to going ahead and giving a show cause notice and a demand order let's go in and understand about the general provision relating to determination of tax everyone listen to me very carefully sir first of all the period of stay if court has put a stay if court has put a stay and the show cause notice and demand order cannot be raised that time then baba the period of stay by the court has to be ex excluded while going ahead and calculating the period for calculation of while calculating the period for raising the show cause notice and demand order sir supposingly you uh, one show cause notice was given under section number 74 subsection 1 and later you went for an appeal and in the appeal it was decided that sir the show cause notice which was given and accordingly the demand order which was raised under section number 74 it is not sustainable the person is not a fraud now the officer has to go ahead and raise one again show cause notice under section number 73 one no baba no the section number 74 one ka show cause notice only will be deemed as a show cause notice under section number 73 subsection one and accordingly proceedings will be concluded sir demand order raised if as per the direction of the court or tribunal always remember if appellate tribunal high court etc went ahead and gave the case back to the rcc to the adjudicating authority and told him that sir follow these directions and go ahead and raise the demand order then sir now demand order shall be raised within how many years two years from the receipt of such direction always remember one thing then of whenever section number 73 and 74 may they are going ahead and giving you a demand order if you are requesting they have to give you an opportunity of being heard and also remember one thing if they are going to pass an adverse decision against you adverse decision ka case may always opportunity of being heard has to be given sir if you want adjournment maximum three time adjournment can be given provided sufficient cause is shown whenever they are going ahead and giving you a demand order section number 75 subsection 6 goes ahead and says it always has to be a speaking order means the demand order should set out all the fact all the basically fact and basis on which the decision is taken under which section we are going ahead and penalizing you all the fact has to be given tax interest and penalty in the demand order cannot exceed the show cause notice always remember to recover there has to be a demand order and demand order should always be on the basis of show cause notice whatever tax interest penalty is told in the show cause notice more than that you can't go ahead and demand in the demand order it has to be either in conformity or it can be little less whatever ground is told in the show notice same ground has to be there in the demand order in show notice they told tax not paid demand order is also it should be raised on the basis of tax not paid remember always demand order should always be in conformity with the grounds in show cause notice where appellate authority appellate tribunal court modifies tax then always remember you went to the appellate authority appellate tribunal high court they went ahead and modified the tax they increase the tax then interest and penalty also gets increased they reduce the tax then sir interest and penalty also will get reduced so they are going ahead and telling wherever appellate authority appellate tribunal high court and uh basically the court high court supreme court modified the tax always remember interest penalty shall stand modified interest always payable even if it is not specified in the demand order but remember interest can't exceed what is told in the show cause notice penalty need not penalty always has to be demanded interest not demanded also has to be paid but penalty only if demanded has to be paid sir demand order is not given within three years or four five years then it will be deemed that the proceedings for that year has been concluded right everyone erroneous refund given to you three years and five years may they did not give the demand order then it will be deemed that 
that that case related proceedings have been deemed to be concluded right everyone wait time spent officer is going ahead and go officer has gone ahead and given you a demand order now your case is going on before the appellate authority appellate tribunal officer in similar case wants to raise a demand order he has raised a show cause notice but he is waiting for your case ka result to come so that in other case he can go ahead and raise demand order then whatever is the wait time he is waiting for the decision of the appellate authority appellate tribunal high court etc to come that wait time will be excluded from the time limit to go ahead and raise a demand order in similar situation basically right everyone then sir supposingly in my return in my gstr1 always remember one amendment has come over here sir in your gstr1 you went ahead and disclosed that you are liable to pay 10 lakh but you did not go ahead and show the same amount in your gstr 3b that is meant by self assessed tax self assessed tax means what self assessed tax include the tax payable in respect of details of outward supplies furnished in under section number 37 in your section number 37 iff you did or gstr 1 may you went ahead and showed that you have done a sale of 1 crore and the tax liability is 18 lakh but when you are filing but not included in the gstr 3b under section number 39 return furnished under section number 39 means in your gstr 3b you did not go ahead and show that 18 lakh rupees then they are telling that was your self assessed tax in your gstr 1 in your iff you went ahead and told you are liable to pay 18 lakh but in your gstr 3b you did not go ahead and show that amount then it is meant that that was your self assessed tax and self assessed tax if you have not gone ahead and made the payment then they are telling we'll do direct recovery direct recovery means there is no requirement to go ahead and give you a show cause notice or a demand order direct recovery can happen because i am only telling i have gone ahead and collected 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 they will not give you any show cause notice and demand order direct recovery in case of self assessed tax liability in accordance with section number 39 in accordance with return under section number 39 and self assessed tax liability ka amendment is they have gone ahead and told what do you mean by self assessed liability self assessed liability means basically the tax payable in respect of supplies which you have mentioned in your gstr1 or iff but not included in the return under section number 39 right everyone so whatever you have shown in your gstr1 has to be paid when you are filing your gstr 3b otherwise they will go ahead and say self assessed tax not paid and direct recovery can be done right everyone the next one over here is section number 75 goes ahead and says sir no penalty for same act or omission under any other section if you are already penalized under section number 73 or 74 73 or 74 may if they have penalized you section number 122 125 etc may they will not go ahead and penalize you again section number 76 over here people tell me one thing we learned section number 73 bona fide case mein bona fide case mein demand order section number 74 fraud case mein demand order 75 general discipline very very important for exam 76 goes ahead and says if you have gone ahead and collected an amount representing as tax your goods were supposedly exempted goods but you went ahead and collected tax on those goods you should immediately deposit it to the government it should be amount collected representing as tax should be immediately paid to the government if you have not paid they will give you a show cause notice and then ask you why if why the amount along with a penalty equal to the amount why they are telling amount because it is not tax you have collected it as representing as tax immediately paid to the government otherwise show cause notice will come there is no time limit to give you a show cause notice and demand order will be passed after giving you after going ahead and taking your representation interest also has to be paid by you from the date of collection the day you collected from the very next day till the date of payment you will have to go ahead and pay the interest at the rate of 18% also after show cause notice opportunity of being heard will be given and then a demand order demand order should always be within one year from the show cause notice always remember section number 60 76 show cause notice no time limit demand order one year from the show cause notice always remember period of stay has to be excluded order which is given demand order will always be speaking order now suppose you have gone ahead and collected amount from this person and now you have gone ahead and paid it to the government or government has recovered the amount from you you collected some amount from a person and now government have recovered the amount from you government will give it to this person back from whom you had collected provided this person is traceable for an example this person says some amount had to be paid to the government government will first recover that amount and remaining amount will be paid to the basically i am the supplier this is the recipient so the, from the recipient 
whatever amount I collected, government recovered it from me, government will go ahead and give it back to this person, provided this person doesn't have any due to be given to the government. Adjust of amount towards tax payable by such person, any surplus will be refunded. If you government can't trace the ultimate consumer or the ultimate bearer of the tax, then government will put bearer of the amount it will be put to the consumer welfare fund person who has born the incident may apply for a refund if you don't apply for refund consumer welfare fund section number 77 goes ahead and says remember section number 77 is to be read with section number 19 of the igst act it goes ahead and says supposingly you went ahead and treated you went ahead and treated one transaction as intrastate pay collected cgst as gst paid to the government now you realize, oh no, I should have gone ahead and collected IGST and paid. Your customer will not pay you again. But what you can do now, you can take CGST, IGST, wrong tax ka refund and pay the correct IGST. When you are paying IGST, you don't have to pay any pen. Uh, interest is not, not penalty. Interest need not be paid. Now listen to me very carefully. In section number 19, if you go ahead and read of the IGST, same thing is written, which goes ahead and says basically, if you go ahead and pay IGST by mistake, take refund of IGST, pay the correct CGST and SGST, interest need not be paid and adjustment is not possible. So, wrong tax, refund to be taken, correct tax to be paid. Always remember there is a monetary limit which is given for issuance of SOCOS notice and then the demand order. Sir, supposingly in my, in my SOCOS notice only interest rate ka some mistake i have done cgst is 10, uh, 10 lakh and sgst is 10 lakh then always remember whatever is the cgst amount will be seen and sir if cgst amount over here is less than equal to 10 lakh then who will go ahead and give me shokos notice superintendent and accordingly demand order shall be given sir i have gone ahead and done a mistake where i have not gone ahead and paid igst interstate ka supply may some mistake has been done igst not paid supposingly 5 crore rupees amount is greater than 2 crore so who will go ahead and give you the demand order and shokos notice additional commissioner or joint commissioner you have gone ahead and done a mistake where you have not gone ahead and paid cgst sgst and CGST, SGST and IGST, sir here the CG, uh, CGST amount is supposedly 20 lakh, SGST amount is 20 lakh or 30 lakh and 30 lakh, don't see and SGST is also 30 lakh, don't see the SGST amount, see the CGST plus IGST 60 lakh rupees, sir where will it fall, greater than 2, 20 lakh up to 2 crore, who will give the order, show cause notice and the demand order by deputy commissioner or assistant commissioner. I went ahead and taught you, what did I teach you till now? I went ahead and taught section number 73, demand order in bona fide case, section number 74, fraud case, sir, section number 75, general provision, 76, sir, amount collected representing as tax, immediately pay to the government, otherwise show cause notice, no time limit, demand order, one year. Then section number 77, I taught you, wrong tax paid, take a refund, correct tax you pay, no interest. Section number 78 goes ahead and says, initiation of recovery proceeding. If amount payable in the demand order, you did not go ahead and pay within 3 months, they will go ahead and start recovery. Recovery will be initiated. Always remember one thing, if it is expedient, proper officer finds it expedient to go ahead and reduce the recovery time by from less than 3 months to any other time, then he can go ahead and do that. If proper officer considered is expedient, he may require the taxable person to make the payment within a period less than 3 months also, which will be specified in the, by the proper officer basically. Then, sir, recovery ka modes which are there, always remember recovery can be done, recovery ka modes are important for exam, M square, R square, T, D, S. Always remember M square, M means what? M square, M means magistrate ke through recovery can be done. Sir, your officer will go ahead and tell the magistrate and magistrate ke through recovery can be done. Your sale of movable, immovable, F for movable and immovable property ka sale can also happen. R for realization of bond and R for refund or any other amount may also be adjusted. T for third party ke through recovery can be done. D for, sir, district collector ke through recovery can happen and S for Selling of goods can also be done and recovery can be done. Always remember M square, R square, T, D, S. Sir, always remember refund or any other amount if you have to receive from the department, they will go ahead and adjust that amount and remaining, they will go ahead and recover the amount from that refund or they will ask specified, your officer will ask specified officer to go ahead and deduct. So, proper officer may deduct from any other refund or any other amount which was payable to you from the department or any other specified officer to pay you, proper officer will deduct or ask the specified officer to deduct. Or sir, detention of selling of goods, 
they will go ahead and detain the goods and sell the goods or they will ask specified officer to go ahead and do the selling of goods basically sir recovery can happen from third party anyone had to tell you officer will go ahead and tell him don't pay this guy pay it to us and recovery can happen from third party this is also known as garnish proceedings okay everyone just for your knowledge these are also known as garnish proceeding from anyone i have a amount receivable or amount that might become due in future to me from that amount recovery will happen then sir sale of mobile immobile property they can also do that recovery from district collector district collector co one certificate will be given by your officer now district collector will come and recover the amount from you as if they are land revenue ka arrears now officer can also go ahead and make an application to the magistrate magistrate will go ahead and collect the amount from you as if they were court ka fine and court ka fine not paying they will send you to jail beta then recovery through realization of bond always remember one thing if sgst officer is coming to recover from you cgst officer will not come so if sgst officer collects the dues they will go ahead and collect the amount from you and later whatever is the central government ka portion they will refer, uh, give the portion to the central government right everyone if partial recovery is done it is not that state government ka officers came they recovered partially and kept to themselves only no they will do pro rata distribution between center and state always remember recovery is also possible from distinct person the next one over here is section number 80 sir section number 80 goes ahead and says if amount became due from you and you are telling sir i don't have money go to the officer tell him sir sorry please give me installment taxable person can file an application drc 20 and commissioner can go ahead and extend the time limit for payment deferred payment they can give you give me give you one or two months extra time or they can allow 24 months ka installment self assessed tax sir you went ahead and self assessed your tax for that direct recovery is there for that installment and all will not be allowed an installment facility is always subject to interest under section number 50 which is 18% interest also will be taken always remember if you have gone and defaulted in installment also then sir withdrawal of installment facility and total amount will become recoverable immediately installment is not allowed if the amount is less than 25000 remember always no installment for self assessed tax no installment if amount is less than 25000 less than less than less than Section number eighty one goes ahead and says transfer of property shall be void. Always remember one thing: if amount became due from you and you are going ahead and creating a charge, basically you went ahead and mortgaged it. They are going ahead and telling creating a charge or you part with the property with intention to defraud the government revenue. I will go ahead and sell my property if you go ahead and do all those things. Always remember such transfer or creating of charge etc. is void. And sir, but there is an exception. If you are done with what a bona fide intention plus for adequate consideration in good faith without notice of pendency of such proceedings or without notice of such tax or other sum payable by the said person or with prior permission of the proper officer, then in that scenario only transfer of property shall not be void. Then we have section number eighty two tax to be first charged on the. property always remember one thing taxable person or representative whenever the amount is payable which is gst dues government shall have first charge on the property basically who will have gst department will have first charge on your property and they will recover their dues which are there government will have first charge gst department will stand first and recover that due but that is subject to ibc always remember insolvency and bankruptcy code is applicable on a company section number 82 will not be applicable otherwise If insolvency and bankruptcy code is not applicable, then please apply section number eighty two. And section number eighty two says government dues will stand first and recover their dues. We went ahead and learned section number seventy three, bona fide case, demand order. Section number seventy four, demand order in case of fraud case. Section number seventy five, general principle. Section number seventy six. Sir, tax amount collected representing as tax should be paid immediately to the government. Otherwise, so called notice and demand order. Section number seventy four, wrong tax paid, you should take a refund. Correct tax should be paid. Then we have section number seventy eight, which went ahead and told about greater than three months recovery will start. Section number seventy nine, modes of recovery. Section number eighty, installment can be asked. Section number eighty one, transfer of property shall be void, but not void if done with bona fide intention, adequate consideration, in good faith. Plus. any one of them right everyone without notice of pendency of such proceeding or without notice notice of such amount being due from such person or with the prior permission of proper officer or 82 went ahead and told if ibc is applicable on your company section number 82 is not applicable but otherwise section number 82 goes ahead and says government will go ahead and recover it due first or from your property 
Then we have section number 83 over here, provisional attachment of property. Section number 83, there has been amendment section number 83 along with the respective rule. There has been a small amendment. So I've gone ahead and drawn a chart. We will understand it from here. So if there's a pendency of proceeding which is going on against you under section number 62, 62 is what? Best judgment of uh, non-filer, best judgment of unregistered person, 64. Sir, summary assessment has happened. 67, inspection, sir, seizure has happened. 73, demand order is bona fide case. And section number 74, fraud case. So, cause notice. Basically, what happened? Pendency of proceeding. Proceedings have been initiated and it is going on against you. Commissioner is of the opinion that attachment is necessary. Then first, he will go ahead and record the reason why he has such an opinion against you then he will go ahead and pass an order in gst drc 22 and details of the property will also be stat stated which is the property going to be attached now what will happen the officer will go ahead and send a copy of the order to the concerned revenue authority transport authority and the bank right everyone and also it will be sent to you whose property has been attached always remember one thing once your property has been attached you can go and request the officer saying sir sorry in drc 22 person can file an objection if property is not liable to be attached now officer will go ahead if objection filed proper officer will give you opportunity of being heard after hearing to you if commissioner is satisfied then he will release the property and issue drc 23 but if officer is not satisfied attachment will continue remember always provisional attachment can be done only for a maximum period of one year within one year Whatever is the pro proceedings against you, section number 62, best judgment assessment order, he will pass it off. Section number 63, section number 63, whatever is the best judgment again, unregistered person, he should clear it off. Basically, he should complete the investigation and adjudication within one year because after one year, the pro provisional attachment will stop, will basically, uh, will stop being effective. It will be ceased to be attached. Basically, attachment shall cease after one year. Always remember one thing, if perishable or hazardous nature, nature ka goods, property has been attached. If they have gone ahead and attached something which is perishable or hazardous goods, they will go ahead and say, we will sell it off. But if you go ahead and pay, be released after the person pays lower of the market price or the amount that is or may become due. Why, why is he going ahead and attaching your property? Because some amount can become due from you. So he will go ahead and tell you, if you go ahead and pay market price of the property or amount that may become due from such person, then property shall be released immediately by issuing DRC 23 on payment of, on proof of payment that you have gone ahead and made the payment. But if you don't go ahead and make the payment, that property will be disposed of and amount shall be recovered, will be adjusted towards tax, interest, penalty, late fee or any other amount. Right, everyone. Always remember section number 83 ka proceedings can also be done. Provisional attachment can be also done of the person under section number 122 1A. Basically, those people who are going ahead and deriving. But what do you guys remember? If one person is issuing bogus invoice, his name per registration is taken, but the actual person who is deriving the benefit might be an accountant or might be any other person who is behind him, who is going ahead and deriving the benefit of this transaction. Provisional attachment can happen of those persons who are mentioned under section number 122-1A at whose instance the transaction was carried out or who is the actual beneficiary of a transaction. Remember always. Now section number 84 over here, continuation and validation of recovery proceeding. Recovery started against you and then you went to the appeal. Recovery after three months started and you went for the appeal. Appellate authority went ahead and condoned the delay and accepted the appeal. Now in that scenario what will happen? They will stop the recovery proceeding and wait for the appeal ka order to come. Once the appellate authority went ahead and passed the order, so demand order was served, taxable person went for an appeal, appeal application filed, officer will stop the proceeding, appeal will be disposed of, now appeal disposed of, when the demand order is cancelled, then recovery will not be done. If it is confirmed, appellate authority confirmed the demand order, recovery will continue, that is told by section number 84, continuation and validation of recovery proceeding. Supposingly, say, now, Appellate authority went ahead and enhanced the amount. Now what will happen? If the amount is enhanced, whatever was told in the demand order, that so will be recovered. For the enhanced amount, they are going ahead and telling, Commissioner will serve another notice of demand for the enhanced amount. Now recovery proceedings shall continue with respect to old notice of demand and new notice of demand for the enhanced amount also. Sir, but if appeal disposed of, wherein? They went ahead and reduced the amount, then fresh demand order is not necessary. Supposingly, the demand order was already given for 10 lakh rupees, but they went ahead and reduced. Appellate, appellate authority, appellate tribunal went ahead and reduced the amount to only 5 lakh. Recovery will happen only for the remaining amount, which is the reduced amount. Right, everyone? Now, I went ahead and told you section number 
right everyone so if i go in and tell you you can't leave 73 74 75 76 77 and 83 other than that also sections are important you can read question answers from them but these sections are very very important listen to me very carefully everyone now here one small provision is also there regarding ibc insolvency and bankruptcy code i will go ahead and tell you special procedure when a company is going through insolvency and bankruptcy what is what is it Insolvency Resolution Professional. But what is it? IRPC. Insolvency and Resolution. Insolvency Resolution Process is going on. Basically, Insolvency Resolution Process is going on. It is CIRP. Corporate Insolvency Resolution Process. So I'll go ahead and tell you that also quickly. Everyone listen to me very carefully. Supposing there is a company. There is a company, Ram Limited, which is there, and Ram Limited is undergoing insolvency corporate insolvency resolution uh, process what will happen in this scenario there will be supposingly they are going there they were not able to go ahead and pay their creditors they were not able to pay their creditors and hence the creditors went to nclt and told sir please close this company so the nclt went ahead and appointed one resolution professional that sir please go ahead Please go ahead and see how we can revive the company. And one resolution professional was appointed. Now, resolution professional, always remember one thing. When he is appointed, Ram Limited, Ram Limited, board of directors will be, they will say, you go. All of them will be suspended. And now, resolution professional will take over the board. So, now, he is trying to revive the company. And GST department is telling, we will go ahead and cancel your registration. Since six months, you have not gone ahead and filed your returns. We will go ahead and block your review bill and hence government went ahead and told one side we are trying to revive the company, other side GST department is telling we will go ahead and close the GST registration, we will go ahead and block the review bill because return etc is not filed, what to do? So one special procedure was given for a company which is undergoing corporate insolvency resolution process and it was told that old registration which is there, let it be, for the old registration might be you have not paid the dues. Right, everyone, that will be taken care by the resolution professional when he is going ahead and drafting a resolution plan. But now, so that now compliances can be done, resolution professional was asked that Ram Limited, company ka name pay, you take one more registration where you make yourself as the authorized signatory and one more registration you can take. So the old registration and the new registration, old registration with the old details which were there, basically that was in. Uh, distinct person now the new registration becomes the distinct person so what this person will do resolution professional he will take a new registration which is a distinct person from the old registration of ram limited and they will go ahead and do the compliances file all the returns make all the tax payment eway bill generation and all no problem absolutely so this was the thing which was told by the government sir Resolution professional can go ahead and take a new registration and do the compliances. What about the old dues? Old dues will be taken care in the resolution plan which is there. Now what people went ahead and told this resolution professional was the interim resolution professional. New resolution professional will come. Then again one registration. No Baba, this registration only which is already taken. The new registration which is taken, only the authorized signatory can be changed as the new resolution professional now. Are we clear everyone? Old resolution professional was retired, new resolution professional came, new resolution professional ka, interim resolution professional gone, final resolution professional came, he will become the authorized signatory and he will carry on the compliances. One more question people ask, sir if the company had not defaulted anything, 
GST dues were all paid, etc. Then is there a requirement to take new registration? Then there is no requirement. This special procedure is told because the company would have not gone ahead and complied with the GST requirement and GST department was telling we will go ahead and cancel the registration, we will go ahead and block the EVA bill. Then we went ahead and told let them do whatever they want for the old registration. New registration we took and we carried out the process. But if there was no old dues, etc., then new registration is not required. So, you have to remember always, new registration not required. If old, all the compliances were done by the company, then new registration by the resolution professional is not required. If the resolution professional goes ahead and takes a new registration, interim resolution professional gone, new resolution professional came, then new registration again is not required. Just authorized signatory can be changed. I hope you guys got it. Everyone over here, we are done with your chapter. Remember one thing, in this chapter, the first amendment which has come is in the explanation number 2 of your section number 73 and 74 which goes ahead and says against the main notice e, if 73 and 74 ka proceeding concluded against the other co-notices who are there the proceedings under 122 and 125 will be concluded but 129 and 130 ka proceeding shall not be concluded. Again they went ahead and told section number 75 may self-assessed tax direct direct recovery will be done self-assessed tax may direct recovery will be done what do you mean by self-assessed tax if you have gone ahead and shown something in your gstr1 or iff but not shown that amount in your gstr 3b then that's your self-assessed tax and for that direct recovery will be done and one more amendment which they have gone ahead and done is provisional attachment which i have gone ahead and given you the whole flow over here also remember provisional attachment provisional attachment can also be done against the, those people who have gone ahead and derived the benefit of a transaction basically those people who are told under section number 122 1a at whose instance the transaction was conducted or who have gone ahead and derived the benefit of a transaction right everyone i'll go ahead and close all my discussion on demand and recovery over here have a great day everyone take care bye guys all right students let's go ahead and now start the revision of the chapter appeals and revision everyone over here let's take a quick linking we started learning with assessments i hope you guys remember in assessment officer went ahead and did scrutiny of return when the officer does scrutiny of return, officer went ahead and told you about a discrepancy. You accept the discrepancy, make the payment of the tax, chapter closed. If you don't accept the discrepancy, you give an explanation. He likes the explanation, chapter closed. He doesn't like the explanation, officer will go ahead and tell you, Sir, I will go ahead and do audit. He will get angry and he will do audit, special audit. He will do inspection, search and seizure. He will gather documents. He will go ahead and collect documents against you evidences against you will gather and using those evidences he will go ahead and give you a show cause notice and then a demand order once the demand order comes make the payment within three months or after three months greater than three months department starts recovery or within three months you can go for a appeal and here comes the linking of the chapter appeal listen to me very carefully how does appeal happen first of all there will be an adjudicating authority who will pass an adjudication order against an adjudication order first appeal goes to the appellate authority then to the appellate tribunal then to the high court and then to the supreme court everyone over here now adjudicating authority in gst has been defined adjudicating authority in gst has been defined it goes ahead and says over here section number two clause four that any authority appointed or authorized to pass an order or decision under this act means any authority which is appointed under the GST act to pass a order or to give a decision is an adjudicating authority other than NAARC. Always remember NAARC is not an adjudicating authority. N means National anti profiteering Authority. AA means Authority for Advanced Ruling or Appellate Authority for Advanced Ruling. A means Appellate, Tribun Appellate Authority or Appellate Tribunal. Sir, R means Revisionary Authority and C means CBIC. Their orders are not adjudication order. Always remember that. So, who, what do you mean by an adjudicating authority? Adjudicating authority means any authority appointed or authorized to pass an order under this uh, order or decision under GST, whichever authority is giving, that is an adjudicating authority, but not an NAARC. 
Are we clear everyone? Remember one thing, any order which is passed by the adjudicating authority, you can go for an appeal. But section number 121 goes ahead and says, what are the orders against which you can't go for an appeal? Against this order, you just have to SSIT, sit. Sir, S means if there is an order sanctioning prosecution, order sanctioning prosecution, you can't go for an appeal. Then sir, S means seizure or detention of books, documents or register ka order, I for installment facility rejection ka order under section number 80 or T for case transfer order from one officer to another, all these orders ke against you can't go for an appeal. Other than this, if you are going, if there is any decision or an order which is passed by whom? The adjudicating authority, you can go for an appeal. So, adjudicating authority means any authority passing an order or decision other than NARC and their orders are known as adjudication orders. Adjudication orders are also known as order in original and you can go for an appeal. Whoever is aggrieved will go for an appeal. Remember one thing, against an order, aggrieved can be taxpayer, basically taxpayer or any person can be aggrieved or department itself can be agreed by its adjudicating authority going ahead and passing an order. Whenever you are going for an appeal, if any other person, any person is going for an appeal or department is going for an appeal, always remember if you are going for an appeal, you have to go within three months plus one month of from the date of communication of the order. Always remember the day the order was communicated to you, from that day you have to go within three months plus one month. One month ka delay can be condoned by the appellate authority sir you have to go in form apl01 you have to file your appeal now when the appeal is going you have to give specified amount number one whatever tax you are admitting along with the tax interest penalty you have to give right everyone so sir whatever is the admitted amount supposingly they have gone ahead and passed an order adjudicating authority went ahead and passed an order cgst amount was 1000 crore and sgst amount was 1000 crore you went ahead and told out of the 1000 crore i admit that i should be paying 300 crore and 300 crore then baba this 300 crore cgst and 300 crore sgst you have to pay along with interest penalty whatever fine is applicable sir whatever you are not going ahead and admitting of that you have to pay pre-deposit pre-deposit is always paid which is 10% of the tax in dispute. Always remember 10% means how much? 70 crore CGST, 70 crore SGST, but maximum is how much? 25 crore under CGST and 25 crore under SGST. Everyone over here, tax in dispute. What is the tax in dispute? This is the tax in dispute. Of that, you have to go ahead and pay 10% under CGST, 10% under SGST, which is maximum how much? Maximum will be 25 crore. Sir, once I go ahead and pay the pre deposit amount, which is over here, what will happen? The remaining amount will be stayed. They will not recover the remaining amount till the order comes. Till the appellate authority ka order has come. Right everyone? Now, balance amount shall be deemed to be stayed. Sir, always remember one thing. Pre-deposit amount which is paid. Pre-deposit amount when they are refunding to you. They will be giving you interest under section number 115. At the rate of 6% from the date of payment till the date of refund. Right, everyone. Now, here there is an amendment. Now, supposingly, one adjudicating authority went ahead and passed an order under section number 129. Basically, when your goods were being detained, your truck was going, truck was being detained, detention and seizure ke time pay, they went ahead and told you to pay a penalty. That penalty ke liye, they gave you a penalty ka order. Now, that penalty order which was given at the time of detention and seizure, that amount, if you want to go for an appeal, that penalty order which is given under section number 129 of your offenses and penalties chapter, that 129 ka penalty order ke liye, if you want to go for an appeal, then minimum pre-deposit they are going and telling over here, pre-deposit is 25% of the penalty. This is one amendment which has been done. Normally, whenever you are going for an order ke against appeal, you have to give 10% at pre-deposit. Maximum is how much? 25 crore. CGST 25 under SGST, IGST it will be 50 crore. Can I go ahead everyone? But remember one thing, if you are going for an appeal against an order which was passed under section number 129, then you just have to pay 25% of the penalty and your appeal will go to the appellate authority under section number 107. Sir, sometime what happened when the adjudicating authority passes an adjudication order, department itself is agreed by its officer. Then in that scenario, department will go for an appeal. It is also known as a review application or a departmental appeal. Who can go for the departmental appeal? Commissioner on his own motion or when the commissioner has received one request from the SGST or UTGST commissioner, then commissioner will go ahead and tell, 
get me the record in which the proper officer had gone ahead and passed this order get me the records he will examine the records of any proceeding in which the in which the adjudicating authority basically the proper officer had passed the order and now commissioner will satisfy himself about the legality and proprietary of the decision or the order and if he finds any discrepancy or if he finds any fault then he will go ahead and direct his subordinate to apply to the appellate authority and for the department the time limit is six months plus one month delay can, delay can be condoned and they will go ahead and apply in gst apl 03 and the appeal goes to the appellate authority always remember one thing if adjudicating authority was superintendent as assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner appeal will lie with the joint commissioner appeal if adjudicating authority is basically the original order was passed by whom joint commissioner or additional commissioner appeal will lie with the commissioner appeal now once the appeal has gone to the appellate authority appellate authority will go ahead and give opportunity of being heard to both the parties right everyone you and the department they will go ahead and give maximum adjournment how many times three times Sir, they will go ahead and allow you additional grounds also. They will permit additional grounds also and fees is nil. After going ahead and giving opportunity of being heard and listening to you, now they will go ahead and pass an order and either they will confirm, modify or annul the decision or the order which was given by the adjudicating authority and within one year from the date of filing of appeal, they will go ahead and pass their order and that is recommended time limit, not a compulsory time limit. Sir, can the appellate authority send the case back to the original adjudicating authority? Always remember, they can't, appellate authority can't send the case back to the original adjudicating authority. No power to remand the case back to the adjudicating authority. An order is always binding, but it is subject to further appeal. Right, sir? Now, if sir, department did not go for a departmental appeal within six months, then revisionary authority on its own motion or on a request received from the SGST or UTGST commissioner can go ahead and revise the order. Baba, always remember one thing, if department doesn't go for an appeal, if you don't go for an appeal, then there is no further, anything can be done if you don't go for an appeal within three months plus one month. But if department did not go for an appeal within three months plus one month, but the order is erroneous, then they can, then if appeal is not filed by the department, department within six months, then revisionary authority comes under section number 108 and revisionary authority goes ahead and says, subordinate ka, junior ka order, senior will go ahead and revise. Sir, junior, yes, Baba, if the superintendent, assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner had passed the order, senior is the additional commissioner or joint commissioner, they will go ahead and revise. They will be the revisionary authority. If junior is joint commissioner or additional commissioner, principal commissioner or commissioner will become what? The senior and they will go ahead and revise the order. They will be the revisionary authority. What will the revisionary authority do? Revisionary authority on their own means the senior on his own or might be he has received some intelligent information, might be he has received some information or might be a request has been received by him from the IGST or UTGST commissioner. In that scenario, the senior basically whoever is the revisionary authority, they will go ahead and call for records and now they will start examining the record and when they are going ahead and examining the records of a proceeding, if on examination revisionary authority found that the order is erroneous, Prejudicial to revenue interest means it is against the revenue interest or it is illegal, improper, material facts were not considered or it was being ignored by the proper officer in that scenario or might be as a consequence of observation of the c and AG, audit observation, audit opinion given by the c and AG. Now, revisionary authority has to revise the order. So, first they will go ahead, first they will go ahead and stay all the operations relating to that order, operations to be stayed by the revisionary authority and after giving opportunity of being heard. They will go ahead and pass in. After making inquiry, they will pass a revisional order in summary. And Baba, always remember whenever order is passed, summary will be uploaded in GST APL 04. When he is passing the order, he will pass that order which he thinks just and proper. Either he will modify or enhance or he will go ahead and annul the original order which was being passed. Right, everyone, everyone over here, listen to me very carefully. I went ahead and told, first of all, adjudicating authority is there. Any authority who is going ahead and passing an order other than NAARC is an adjudicating authority. Adjudicating authority will pass an order, which is order in original. Against this order, taxpayer can go. Against this order, department can go. Taxpayer has to go within three months. Taxpayer has to go within three months plus one month. Department will go within six months plus one month. Right, everyone, department. Taxpayer is going, then he will go in APL 01. Department will go in APL 
थ्री टैक्स पेयर विल टू गिव प्री डेपोजिट प्री डेपोजिट इज हाउ मच फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल रिमेबर एडमिटेड अमाउंट तो यू हैव टू पे कंप्लीटली अलॉन्ग विथ इंटरेस्ट पेनल्टी बट टैक्स इन डिस्प्यूट का टैक्स इन डिस्प्यूट रिमेंबर टैक्स इन डिस्प्यूट का टेन परसेंट एस टू बी पेड प्री डिपोजिट मैक्सिमम 25 क्रोर अमेंडमेंट ओवर इयर पेनल्टी ऑर्डर अंडर सेक्शन नंबर 129 25% ऑफ द पेनल्टी इज द प्री डिपॉजिट 25% ऑफ द पेनल्टी ठीक है सर इफ डिपार्टमेंट इज गोइंग प्री डिपॉजिट इज नॉट देयर एंड डिपार्टमेंट विल गो इन एपीएल 03 नाउ द अपील विल गो टू होम अपीलेट अथॉरिटी दे विल गिव अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ बीइंग हर्ड एंड दे विल गो एंड पास एन ऑर्डर सर इफ डिपार्टमेंट कुड नॉट गो फॉर अ डिपार्टमेंटल अपील देन अगेंस्ट द ऑर्डर रिविजनरी अथॉरिटी विल गो एंड एंड रिवाइज द ऑर्डर राइट एवरीवन रिविजनरी अथॉरिटी विल कॉल द अकॉर्डिंग्स एंड दे विल गो एंड एंड सी दे विल गो एंड एंड सी व्हाट आर द प्रोसीडिंग्स दैट हैव बीन डन एंड इफ दे सी दैट देयर वाज सम सम डिस्क्रिपेंसी एटसेट्रा दे विल फर्स्ट गो एंड एंड स्टे ऑल द ऑपरेशन एंड देन दे विल गो एंड एंड पास एन ऑर्डर व्हिच इज अ रिविजनल ऑर्डर आई होप एवरीवन इज क्लियर नाउ लिसन टू मी वेरी केयरफुली if you have if these orders are being passed whoever is aggrieved will now if department is aggrieved department or tax payer is aggrieved tax payer can now go to home appellate tribunal and the appeal goes to the appellate tribunal everyone in the next chart original or the order is passed by the appellate authority or order passed by the revisionary authority whoever is the aggrieved party any person or department aggrieved party any person or department against the order they will go for an appeal to whom appellate tribunal right everyone when you are going to for an appeal department will go when you are going tax payer is going he will go in gst apl 05 will be the gst apl 05 he will use if department is going department will use apl 07 right everyone any person when he is going he has to go ahead and file within 3 months plus 3 months ka delay will be condoned by the appellate tribunal department has to go within 6 months sir how much is the fees for going for an appeal with the appellate authority 1000 rupees for every 1 lakh involved but maximum is 25000 sir do you have to give any pre deposit always remember one thing earlier there was 10% pre deposit of tax in dispute now additionally 20% of the tax in dispute has to be given as pre deposit maximum is 50 crore under cgst total pre deposit it is how much everyone 30% earlier 20% now earlier 10% now 20% total is 30% remember one thing whenever pre deposit will be refunded you will be given interest under section number 115 section number 115 says from the date of payment till the date of refund you will be given 6% interest right everyone now appellate tribunal always remember at that discretion if the appeal involves an amount of less than equal to less than equal to 50000 they can tell you get lost we they can go ahead and reject the appeal everyone always remember one thing if you have gone ahead and filed an appeal department will be given an option to go ahead and file memorandum of cross objection they have to file memorandum of cross objection in apl 06 within 45 days plus 45 days ka delay can be condoned and there is no memorandum of cross objection ke liye any fees sir if department goes for an appeal i will go ahead and file memorandum of cross objection again same time 45 days plus 45 days ka delay can be condoned by the appellate tribunal right everyone once your appeal goes to the appellate tribunal remember one thing appellate tribunal is to be constituted and it will be constituted in what two tier appellate tribunal will be there if your case involves place of supply related issue then you have to go to the central level appellate tribunal central level appellate tribunal may we have the national bench we have the regional bench or if your case does not involve does not involve place of supply related determination then you have to go to the state level state level you have the state bench or the state benches are further divided into area wise benches always remember one thing appellate tribunal may appellate tribunal whether it is national bench national bench further divided into regional bench or it is a state bench which is further divided into, into area bench you always have three member one member is the judicial member a judge who will be basically the president of the bench he is the judge the other two members are technical member who has basically gst ka knowledge one from the center one from the state so every bench will have one judicial member who is basically the president other two are the technical member one judicial member two technical member one judicial member two technical member always remember judicial member is always the president are we clear everyone always remember whenever your case goes either to the national bench or regional bench or state bench or area bench how many members are going to hear three members are going to hear your case always and they will pass the order but supposingly one person did not come he got corona now what will happen everyone they are going ahead and telling note in the absence of any member 
in any bench any appeal with president approval can be heard by a bench of two members so if three members and one member has not come two member also can hear the case but with president approval sir out of three member two did not come only one member is there proviso goes ahead and says any appeal involving amount up to 5 lakh and not involving substantial question of law with the president approval can be heard by single member basically one bench of single member also generally three people will hear two people can hear with president approval one person can hear only if the amount involved is 5 lakh and there is no substantial question of law and president has given approval now what will happen they will go ahead and pass an order who will pass the order appellate tribunal will pass the order within one year they have to go ahead and pass the order as far as possible they should pass the order within one year it's a recommended time limit whenever they will pass an order either they will confirm the original amount or might be they will go ahead and not the original amount they will confirm what was told by the appellate or appellate authority or the revisionary authority or they will modify or they will cancel the order right everyone confirm modify or they will annul the order which was given and they will send a copy to whom appellate authority revisionary authority original adjudicating authority appellant jurisdictional commissioner commissioner of state tax or union territory tax everyone over here listen to me very carefully if you are adjudicating authority has passed an order in original where can you go taxpayer can go or the department can go first of all you will go to the appellate authority otherwise against this revisionary authority can also go ahead and pass a revisional order right everyone against this order you have to go to the appellate tribunal appellate tribunal center level state level Se center level may you have national bench or the regional bench St uh, state level may you have the state bench and the area bench always remember one thing if these people have passed an order you directly have to go to the Supreme Court. If these people pass an order, first you go to High Court and then you go to the Supreme Court. Everyone over here. Now, when the order is passed by the state bench or area bench, you have to go where? You have to appeal to the High Court. Always remember when you are going to the High Court, High Court will admit a case only if the case involves substantial question of law. Substantial question of law is involved. Appeal has to be filed within 180 days plus further extension. No time limit. Delay can be condoned by the High Court. Any number of... Uh, Whatever is the delay, it can be condoned if the High Court wants. Sir, you have to go for an appeal in APL 08. Sir, it will be heard by at least how many judges? Two judges who are there. Admit only after full payment. They will admit the case only after full payment. Appellate tribunal, you had paid total amount how much? First 10, then 20, 30 percent done. When you are going to the High Court or the Supreme Court, always remember one thing. They will admit your case only after full payment is done. But remember one thing, if High Court order comes in your favor, then you will get a refund also. But here, refund is given as per section number 56. Basically, what will happen? Once High Court ka order has come, you have to apply for the refund. Once the application is given, 60 days may they will give the refund. If they don't give you the refund within 60 days, then they will give you interest at a rate of 6%. Right, everyone. Now, you, you went to the High Court. High Court ka order came. You are still aggrieved. Then you can go for the Supreme Court. But remember one thing. Supreme Court will admit your appeal only if, only if High Court certifies that your case is fit enough to go to the Supreme Court. Right, everyone. Time limit to go to the Supreme Court is as per code of civil procedures which are there. And he will admit. High, Supreme Court will admit the case only if it is a fit one certified by whom? High Court. High Court certifies that the case is fit to go to the Supreme Court. Admit only after full payment. So, supposingly, your, your order was passed by the National Bench or Regional Bench and you are going to the Supreme Court directly because you don't have to go to the High Court. Because if you go to the High Court, you would have already paid the full amount. But if you are going directly after the order of National Bench or Regional Bench to the Supreme Court, then you have to go ahead and make the full payment. Always remember one thing. Whenever after High Court or Supreme Court gives the order and you are given the refund, then refund will, will be given only after you make an application. 60 days may refund is given, no interest. After that, interest is given at the rate of 6% under section number 56. Remember one thing, whenever order will be passed by High Court or Supreme Court, whatever is the decision, that decision ka summary will be uploaded in APL 04 by your jurisdictional commissioner. He shall issue a statement in APL 04 indicating the final amount of demand confirmed by the High Court or Supreme Court. Everyone listen to me very carefully. I went in and told you about adjudicating authority. Adjudicating authority means an authority who is going, who is going ahead and passing an order or decision. Adjudication order. Against this adjudication order, taxpayer will go or department will go. First of all, they will go to the appellate authority. They will go ahead and pass the 
order. If department could not go within six months, then revisionary authority will go ahead and pass a revisional order. Always remember against this, you can go to the appellate tribunal. Appellate tribunal, central level, appellate tribunal, state level. Central level, appellate tribunal ke against, you can go directly to the Supreme Court. Here you have to go to high court and then you have to go to the Supreme Court. Right, everyone? Everyone listen to me very carefully now. If you see over here, small, small points are there, which are there on the top. We'll go from the top. Everyone over here, right side, can you go ahead and see, sir, who can be your authorized representative? Basically, who can represent you? Always remember one thing, people who are eligible as your authorized representative can be your relative, regular employee, practicing advocate, practicing CA, CA, CMA, GST practitioner, or he can be a retired Retired tax officer of the commercial tax department where he was a gadgeted B officer for more than two years. For two years, right, everyone? Authorized representative, who are the people who are ineligible? Sir, if you are dismissed from what? Government service. If you are convicted of an offense under the GST law or earlier law, you are guilty of misconduct or you are adjudged as insolvent, then also, Baba, remember, you are ineligible for being an authorized representative. Take it, sir. Point is clear. Remember one thing whenever. Whenever revisionary authority, when, what are the cases when revisionary authority can't touch your case? Remember always, revisionary authority shall not revise an order. If, sir, appeal already filed before appellate authority, appellate tribunal, high court or supreme court, then revisionary authority, once you have gone to the appeal route, revisionary authority will not go ahead and revise your order. They will not touch your order. But supposingly, after the appeal ka order has come, it has been seen that, sir, you went to the appellate authority or appellate tribunal, high court, supreme court, order has come and you are, and the revisionary authority is seeing one point was not touched by them. Then that point, ke liye, revision can be done by the revisionary authority within how much time? Three, three years from the original order or one year has to be seen from the date of order in appeal, whichever is later. Are we clear everyone? They are telling any point not raised or decided in an appeal can be revised before the expiry of one year from the order in appeal or before the expiry of three years from the order in original, whichever is later. Revisionary authority shall not revise an order if period of six months has not expired because that time may you should go for a departmental appeal to the appellate authority. So, if period of six months has not expired or three years have expired or three years have expired, then also they can't go ahead and touch an order. Baba, once three years has expired, revisionary authority can't also do anything. Then, sir, if revisionary authority had picked up an order for revision, but they did not revise, then Baba, you can't pick it up again. You can't pick it up again. It wasn't revised, but still you can't pick it up again. Sir, you passed a revisional order. Revisionary authority passed a revisional order. Again, revision, not possible. No revision can be done again. Always remember one thing. Whenever you are seeing this period of three years, revisionary authority cannot revise after three years, right? So, this three years ka time limit always will exclude any wait time which was spent by the revisionary authority or any stay period which was there will be always excluded. Any wait time, time spent which was time spent by the revisionary authority when it was waiting for any similar case may any decision to be given by appellate authority, appellate tribunal, high court, revisionary authority was waiting, that wait time shall be excluded and period of stay by the court shall always be excluded when you are going ahead and calculating this limitation period of three years. Sir, can appellate tribunal, can appellate tribunal admit additional evidences? Can appellate tribunal go ahead and admit additional evidences, circumstances when additional evidence allowed by the appellate tribunal? Always remember one thing, whatever evidences you have given, you had given to the adjudicating authority or whatever evidences you had given to the appellate authority, only those evidences can be produced before the appellate tribunal. But still, appellate tribunal can go ahead and admit additional evidences if you go ahead and show him that you are poor. Sir, number one, I was prevented. Sir, when adjudicating authority or appellate authority refused to admit an evidence or to have been admitted, sir, they should have admitted, but they refused, are for refused. Appellate authority or adjudicating authority, sir, they refused. They refuse, sir, appellate tribunal, you please accept my additional evidence. Right, everyone? Otherwise, you can't give any additional evidence. Then, sir, when appellant was prevented by sufficient cause from producing the evidence which was called upon by the AA square. What do you mean by AA square? Adjudicating authority or appellate authority. Sir, I was prevented. I could not come. This was the problem. That was the problem. Okay, everyone? Or when appellate was prevented by sufficient cause from producing evidence, which is relevant to the ground of appeal. This is the third case. Number one, you were prevented by sufficient cause. Secondly, you were prevented 
from producing those evidence which were relevant to your ground of appeal. The next one over here is, so prevented. Are we clear? The last one over here is opportunity. O, o means opportunity where adjudicating authority or appellate authority had made the order without giving an opportunity to adduce evidence relevant to the ground of appeal. Sir, whatever the evidence were relating to the ground of appeal, they did not give me an opportunity only to produce the evidence, sir please allow me, then appellate tribunal will go ahead and allow you. Always remember three things. Once you can go ahead and prove to the appellate tribunal that, sir, I was prevented because of sufficient cause or the evidence I was, sir, where the appellant was prevented by sufficient cause from producing the evidence called upon, either it was called upon or it was relevant to the ground of appeal. I could not give, I was prevented by sufficient cause. Secondly, you are going in and telling, sir, they did not give me an opportunity only or you are going in and telling, sir, I gave the evidence, they refused to admit. In that scenario, appellate tribunal can go ahead and admit your additional evidences. Sir, what are the powers of the appellate tribunal? They can go ahead and summon and enforce the attendance of any person and examining him on oath. They can require the discovery and production of document. They can tell you, hey, get your books of account. They can require receive evidences on affidavit. They can issue commission orders for going ahead and doing what? Examination of witness or document. They can also dismiss a representation for default. You have not come. They can dismiss your appeal or they can go ahead and decide it. Ex parte also, you did not come, so what? We will decide it. Right, everyone? Sir, appellate tribunal went ahead and passed an order, but there was some apparent mistake on the face. Yes, Baba, remember one thing, appellate tribunal may amend an order to rectify any mistake apparent within the period of three months from the date of order. But one thing you have to always remember, whenever rectification of an order is done and it is leading to output tax liability going up or refund coming down or ITC coming down, you have to give opportunity of being heard to the taxpayer, basically the appellant was there. Can I go ahead everyone? Remember one thing, you should go for an appeal within how much time? Three months. Department should go within six months. Now sir, appellate tribunal is not there only. How to go within three months or three, six months? They went ahead and told, sir, you can go for an appeal. Removal of difficulties orders came. That, sir, time limit to file an appeal before the appellate tribunal is three months or six months. This three months or six months, you can see from the date of communication of the order by the appellate authority or date of constitution of the appellate tribunal when the president enters the office. Basically, the day the president sits in the seat of the appellate tribunal within six months or three months, you can go. Adjudicating authority passed an order from that within three months or six months or the day president sits in the office, president of the appellate tribunal, basically the judicial member. From that day, you can go within three months or six months. Right, everyone? Now, here there is a small point, section number 120. Section number 120, appeal not to be filed in certain cases. Everyone listen to me very carefully. The CBIC goes ahead and fixes a limit to regulate the appeals to be filed by CGST officer. Otherwise, for every small, small amount, CGST officers will keep filing appeal. So, so the CBIC has gone ahead and issued a monetary limit. They have told below this monetary limit, please don't file an appeal. I know the case may some problem is there. You know there is an issue. But because the amount is small, you should not go ahead and file an appeal. Now, what happened? The officer did not go ahead and file an appeal because the issue was there. But the amount involved was below the monetary limit fixed by the CBIC. Now, what happened? Because in one case, the officer did not file an appeal. Now, same, same case you did again, but the amount was very high. It was beyond the monetary limit and the officer went for an appeal. Now, you can't go ahead and contain the officer. You can't go ahead and say, hey, officer, in the last time, I did the same issue. You did not go for an appeal. Now, I am doing the same issue. Why are you going for an appeal? You can't go ahead and say that to the officer. Earlier, he did not go because the monetary limit was less. Now, he is going because might be the monetary limit is higher. Everyone, board on recommendation of council can issue order, direction, instruction, fixing monetary limit for regulation of appeal against the Again, appeal or application by the CGST officer, non-filing an appeal due to such limit shall not preclude an officer from filing appeal in similar or same question of law or same issue. Right, everyone? It will not preclude that next time also you can't file an appeal. No person shall contend that officer had consented. Sir, when you did not go ahead and file an appeal, you had consented with the issue saying what you are doing is correct. No. No person shall contend that officer had consented to the disputed issue by not filing an appeal or application. You can't say, sir, last time you did not file an appeal means you had given your consent. What I am do doing is correct. No, last time you did not file an appeal because... 
the monetary limit was less now he is filing an appeal because the monetary limit is higher even though the issue is same right everyone here we are done with your chapter of appeals and revision remember one thing everyone amendment in this chapter is if you are going for an appeal against the order under section number 129 basically detention and seizure when your truck was being stopped and your goods were being detained and they had gone ahead and issued you an order penalty order now for this penalty order when you are going for an appeal you should go ahead and pay at least 25 percent of the penalty remember 25 percent of the penalty amount has to be paid as pre-deposit when you are going for an appeal with the appellate authority that's all is the amendment over here sir a graded chapter because out of demand and recovery or appeals and revision they will go ahead and ask a four to six marks question in my opinion what you should remember for your exam is number one Remember always pre-deposit amount. Remember when you are going for an appeal to the appellate authority, the pre-deposit amount is 10% subject to a maximum of 25 crore. Right everyone, when you are going to the appellate tribunal, it is 20% subject to a maximum of 50 crore. What I am telling is under CGST amount. When you are going to the high court or supreme court, total amount has to be paid. Sir, amendment over here, remember 25% of the penalty amount in case order under section number 129. This is important. They can ask you write a note on departmental appeal. They can ask you write a note on revisionary authority. They can ask you what are the orders which can't be appealed against. You should also know who are the authorized representative. One small question can come. Right everyone. Now, in the next, next, chap, next one you have to remember, sir. Revisionary authority shall not revise an order when you should remember this. Then I can go ahead and tell you over here, Baba, remaining things are okay. Sir, these circumstances are okay. You can go ahead and remember this. Are we clear till here? Sir, this absence of any member. In absence of any member, what will happen? No, this that's it, everyone. I think this much is more than enough for you guys to remember. Other than this, also, I have taught everything. Please read them. A graded, I have told you that this one, this point which is there, pre-deposit which is there, pre-deposit over here, pre-deposit over here, departmental appeal, revisionary authority, non-appealable over order. Again, other than this, one point also you should remember, pre-deposit whenever it is refunded, here pre-deposit or here pre-deposit whenever it is refunded, you are given interest at the rate of 6% under section number 115 from the date of payment till the date of refund. But whenever you are given a refund because of High Court or Supreme Court order, it is 6%. Once the order comes, you have to apply within 60 days if they don't give you. Then interest is given after the period, after the period of 60 days. Are we clear? Once the period of 60 days expires, then interest is given till the date of payment. Right, everyone? At the rate of 6% under section number 56. I will go ahead and close my revision on the chapter of appeals and revision. Over here, congratulations. Done. Okay, everyone over here, the next chapter is liability to pay in certain cases. Sir, can you give us a quick linking? Baba, everyone over here, listen to me very carefully. Chapter number 25, liability to pay in certain cases. Everyone over here, tell me one thing. What did we start learning GST with? We started learning with goods and service goods and service has to be supplied supply can be either interstate or intrastate intrastate igst intrastate cgst once gst was levied gst has to be collected and paid by a taxable person how will he collect calculate value of supply into rate of tax once he calculates he will go ahead and raise tax invoice credit note debit note and delivery chalan and now he will go ahead and maintain accounts and records and send the goods with the help of e-way bill. Now liability to pay will come. It comes at the time of supply. You will use your input tax credit. Remaining amount you will make the payment and file the return. Right everyone? Any stage you have a doubt, you will go ahead and take the help of advance ruling. Right everyone? And then now department will start assessment. And we went ahead and learned that during scrutiny of return, you went ahead and told sir, if officer wants, he can get audit done or special audit. He can do inspection, search, seizure and arrest and also and also demand order can be raised. Demand order, if you go ahead and make the payment within three months, very good. Otherwise, recovery will start. Demand and recovery and the next chapter was appeals and 
रिविजन एवरी वन लिसन टू मी वेरी केयरफुली हियर योर जीएसटी का होल लिंकेज गेट्स ओवर नाउ द चैप्टर ऑफ लाइबिलिटी टू पे इन सर्टेन केसेज विच कम्स नो नाउ द चैप्टर विच आर देयर फर्दर आर दो चैप्टर विच यू शुड नो बिकॉज दो आर कॉम्प्लीमेंटिंग चैप्टर टू अदर चैप्टर are we clear everyone now liability to pay in certain cases is not a chapter which comes in linking with any particular chapter ke after it's a it's a chapter which you should know as a whole so that you understand gst now sir what kind of a chapter it is baba it's a chapter which will come for 2 to 3 marks they are asking every attempt nowadays question number 7 which is there in that they are asking you one question every attempt although a c graded topic but 2 to 3 marks will definitely make a difference and i have given only one page right so 2 to 3 mark one page is very easy let's go ahead and do the first one everyone liability to pay who will be paying in certain cases let's understand the cases sir whenever there is a transfer of business liability to pay in case of transfer of business everyone listen to me very carefully i went ahead and transferred the business to someone else when i transfer the business transfer of business as going concern is exempted right everyone but now i went ahead and transferred the business supposingly on this day tell me one thing from here whatever is the liability will be the liability of the transferee yes everyone whatever is the liability will be the liability of the transferee but before the transfer whatever is the liability that will be liability of me also a transferred the business to b then b will also be liable so before buying anyone's business please remember whatever is his liability that will become your liability also because you should have gone ahead and done your proper due diligence before going ahead and buying someone's business are you guys able to understand that is why people check everything before buying someone's business if you have any liability so here if any liability is of this period before the date of transfer who will be liable transferer and transferee both will be liable sir after the date of transfer only transferee shall be liable this is who is telling so sir if any gst liability is there tax interest penalty any liability is there might be it was demand order was given before or might be demand order is given before if given after but it should be a liability of the period before transfer then who will be liable both will be liable might be demand order is given after but you have to see the period this period ka liability even if determined before the date of transfer demand order given then also will be liable transfer a transfer a might be this period ke liye demand order was given later then also this period ka liability ke liye transfer and transfer a both shall be liable who told this this is being told by this section are you guys able to understand so you can link it where then whenever one person transfers his business to another person you remember transferer transfers his business so i can go ahead and conclude it like this sir that <coughs> the concept will be clear now transferer transfers his business to the transferee he is a registered person transferred his business as going concern asset plus liability is got transfer transfer of business as going concern is exempted and transferee liable under section number 223 to take registration correct this we learned in the registration chapter this we learned in the exemption chapter chapter number exemption chapter number 2 which we learned for this is registration then we learned in itc chapter that here ka itc you have to file itc 02 and this will be transferred to the e credit ledger of the transferee this we learned third in the itc chapter fourth we are learning that whenever such business is transferred all the liability fourth we are learning over here liability before the transfer who will be liable transferer and transferee did you guys understand everyone whatever was the liability before the date of transfer means today's transferred already when transferred after that liability you see but before the date of transfer whatever the period was there for that liability will be of the transferer and transferee transferer and transferee will be jointly jointly means what everyone jointly means together jointly means will, will be jointly means together severally means individually it's a uh, legal term which is basically used jointly and severally liable jointly means supposingly me and my wife have taken a loan so me and my wife are jointly liable and we both are severally also individually also liable for the loan 
So what they are going ahead and telling, sir, you are jointly also liable and severally. So if jointly they can recover from both, very good. Otherwise, individually also they are liable. So who are liable? Transfer and transfer it to pay the dues. Dues means what everyone? Tax, interest, penalty, whatever is there. In case of sale, gift, lease, leave, license, hire or any other manner, if you are going ahead and transferring your business to someone else, from the date of transfer who will be liable? Transferring. But up to the date of transfer who will be liable? Transferer and transferee both. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Sir, everyone over here. The first one understood everyone. The second one is principal and agent. Do you remember everyone? I as a principal, I send the goods to the agent and agent sells the goods to the customer. Here invoice is in the name of the agent, right? But still, all this liability will be of the agent. But still they have told, if agent is supplying on behalf of principal, both agent and principal shall be liable for all these supplies. They are telling over here, see, where there is an agent and principal, where agent supplies or receives goods on behalf of the principal, either he is receiving or he is supplying. Such agent and principal shall be jointly and severally. Jointly means together, severally means individually. They shall be liable to pay the tax on such goods. So on these goods, who will be liable? Agent will be liable. If agent could not pay then, then principal will be made liable. So both are jointly and severally liable. If it, agent pays, very good. Agent could not pay, principal has to pay. If both can't pay, both together have to pay. But they both are liable jointly or severally. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Sir, if there is an agent who receives goods on behalf of the principal and send it to the principal. That agent is also an agent as per section number 71C. Now in this scenario, who will be liable? Agent and the principal both. Can I go ahead? So this you will have to connect where? To your principal and agent ka understanding. Whenever agent is supplying on behalf of principal or agent is buying goods in his name and transferring it to principal, those goods pay. Liability will be a principal and agent. Here is the connect. Are you guys able to understand? Can we go ahead? Next. Amalgamation or merger? Everyone tell me one thing. A company, A limited is there. Third one, amalgamation or merger? A limited is there. B limited is there. A limited and B limited decided on supposingly 1st of January. 1st of January, A limited and B limited decided they will merge. Board of directors decided that we will merge. But up for a merger to happen, they will have to move to the court and court ka order has to be given. Yes or no, everyone? Now, they went to the court on supposingly 1st of February and the court ka order was come, order of the court has come on 1st of March. Everyone listen to me very carefully. They have gone and the court order went ahead and told that you have become AB limited and they have given effect from what date? From 1st of January. Tell me one thing, from 1st of January is A and B separate or they both are same? Same. But in the eye of GST if you see, till the date of the order both are different. Because from the date of order, your registration will be cancelled under GST and then you will obtain a new registration. Are you guys able to understand? See, in the eye of GST, only after certificate of incorporation comes, you will apply and you will be given a registration certificate from the date of the order. Can we go ahead? Now listen to me very carefully. In this scenario, tell me one thing. You became one from which date? First. But actually order came on 1st of March. For your, now if you go ahead and see, A limited would have supplied some things to B during this period. B limited would have supplied to A limited during this period. But during this period, was your GST number separate? Yes, it was separate GST and number. Because a court order came over here. In the eye of GST, for this period you both are separate. And hence, they have gone ahead and told that because you guys are separate during this period, this A limited supplying to B will be included in A ka turnover. And if this period may B limited has supplied anything to A, that will be included in B ka turnover. Are we clear? Why? Because the court ka order came over here. From here, you will go ahead and take sub a single registration because now you will go to the ROC. ROC will go ahead and give you certificate of incorporation. Then you will go ahead and apply for GST registration and they will go ahead and give you the registration from here saying, okay, you guys are one. But before this date, whatever supplies, till the date of the order, whatever supplies are done, 
those supplies will be included in the individual supplies of A and B because in the eye of GST, you both are separate. Might be company's point of view, they gave you an amalgamation ka retrospective effect. But during this period, in the eye of GST, you both are different, distinct persons. Can I go ahead, everyone? The same thing is told, amalgamation or merger in pursuant to an order of court or tribunal or otherwise. And order is to take effect from a date earlier than the date of order. Order came over here, Only order took effect what? From 1st of January, it took effect earlier. And any two or more sub such companies have supplied or received goods from each other, then such transaction shall be included in the turnover of supply or receipt of the respective companies and they shall be liable to pay tax accordingly. The said two or more companies shall be treated as distinct person for the period up to the date of the said order. Right everyone, I want you guys to write one more line which I thought you guys should write down there and I will tell you and you write it down. They will be liable for cancellation. One minute, I'll tell you the exact line which you have to write. And registrations, you can write over here. And registrations, both the companies ka, of the companies shall be, shall be cancelled with effect from date of the said order means once the order comes once the order comes from the very next day your registration will be cancelled because up to the date of the order you both are different person and the supplies will be included in your respective turnover from the very next day your registration will be cancelled and Single registration will be given to you. But for that, you have to apply and take a separate single registration. Can I go ahead, everyone? Are we clear till here? Let's go ahead. Next. Company went into liquidation. Everyone tell me one thing. Once a company goes into liquidation, once a company goes into liquidation, company is in liquidation. Now, what will happen? A liquidator will be appointed. Yes, everyone. Now, who will be liable to pay the dues of the companies? Company went into liquidation. Who will pay the dues? Liquidator will be liable. So, liquidator has to inform the commissioner that, sir, I am appointed. Within 30 days of appointment, he has to go to the commissioner and tell, sir, I am appointed as a liquidator of the company. If you have any dues, you let me know. If you let me know, I will liquidate the company. Whatever money will come, I will give it to you. Are you guys clear? So, whenever there is a liquidation, every person appointed as a receiver of an asset, basically the liquidator, Within 30 days, we'll intimate the commissioner that, sir, I'm being appointed as the liquidator. You let me know whatever is the due. Commissioner will make inquiry and inform you within three months of the intimation that, sir, these are the amount which is due. That basically the tax, interest, penalty, which is payable by the company. And now, who will be liable? Liquidator will be liable to pay the dues. Sir, tell me one thing. If it's a private company, then who will be liable? Private company, may behind the curtain, it is the directors. So, always remember, in that scenario, the dues will be recovered. If it could not be recovered from the company, who will be liable? Directors. Otherwise, always the company is liable. Very simple, I think. Next. Everyone over here. Liability of the directors of a private company. Tell me one thing. If dues could not be recovered from a private company, who will be liable? Director. Whoever was a director during such period shall be jointly and severally liable. Unless the director goes ahead and proves, sir, I was not there only. I was not there in the country only, sir. And these dues cannot be... Uh, told that I have gone ahead and defaulted, sir, I was not there only. If you go ahead and prove that, then it is okay. If you prove that, sir, it is not because of me, then Baba, it is okay. Otherwise, every director shall be liable after the company. If company could not pay, who will be liable? That Pri public company may liquidator. Private company, private company can pay very good, otherwise, director. See, unless the director proves that non-recovery cannot be attributed to his gross negligence, misfeasance, Breach of duty on his part in relation to the affairs of the company. He's telling, sir, I have not done any mistake. Don't recover it from me. Then they will not go ahead and recover it from you. You have to prove that. Sir, private company, public company. Private company converted into public company. Will directors be liable? No, public company ka case mein though, company will be liable. And then if any liquidation is happening, liquidator will be liable. Then directors shall not be liable. Sir, provided that nothing contained in the subsection shall apply to any personal liability penalty imposed on such director. If any personal 
penalty is imposed on a director that liability to that director ka only it is there it is not of the company or all the directors are not jointly liable if personal liability of a director for an example you will see offenses and penalties chapter may there are a lot of penalties which are being imposed on a director one penalty is imposed that is your liability personal liability is your liability that will not become company ka liability or all the directors ka joint liability can i go ahead if any personal liability or penalty is imposed on a director that will be li the liability of that director only next so liability of partners of a firm tell me one thing if partnership firm could not pay the dues who will be liable all the partners will be jointly and severally liable so sleeping partner so what all the partners will be liable can i go ahead firm will be liable first of all if firm could not go ahead and pay then each of the partners shall be jointly and severally liable basically sir sir i retired baba whenever you retire no 30 days may you have to intimate the commissioner saying sir one month may you have to intimate saying sir i have retired if you inform him within one month then the day you retire till that day it's your liability if you don't go ahead and intimate him within one month then the day you intimate him till that day ka liability is yours see baba firm is liable and all the partners are liable for the liability of the firm if any tax is there interest is there penalty is there for which any demand order has been given or might be it is given later doesn't matter given demand order now or given later doesn't matter you have to see the period for which the demand order is given everyone if a partner retires over here within one month he has to intimate the commissioner if he intimates the commissioner then he will be liable up to the date of retirement now up to the date of retirement whatever is the liability that will be a joint and several liability of the partner including the retiring partner tell me one thing if for this period any demand order is given later then also retiring partner is liable yes if any demand order was already given then then also retiring partner is liable am i clear till here now any liability after the period who will be liable remaining partners will be liable this retiring partner will not be liable sir i did not intimate within one month retired over here did not intimate within one month if you intimate within one month then you are liable up to the date of retirement but if you don't intimate within one month then the day you intimate him till that day you are liable are we clear everyone see over here retiring partner or firm shall intimate the date of retirement to commissioner and he shall be liable to pay the dues up to the date of retirement if no intimation is given within one month the liability shall continue till the date of intimation can i go ahead everyone yes sir point is clear let's go ahead everyone guardian or trustee you know what what happened a minor is there or an incapacitated person is there might be a minor is there child who is not 18 or incapacitated person who is not able to work in his full capacity those people ka case mein court will appoint one guardian or court will appoint one trustee now this guardian or trustee will go ahead and carry the business on behalf of the minor or incapacitated person so for an example the incapacitated person or the minor ka name pe some business is there that business is not being carried out by the minor who will carry out the guardian whoever is the guardian or any trustee who has been appointed now the trustee who is there or the guardian who is there who is carrying on the business who will be liable for the dues of the business minor no it will be liability with respect to tax interest penalty of the business carried on by the guardian trustee or agent on for the benefit of what for the benefit of see who is carrying on these people are carrying on on behalf of the minor or incapacitated person dues shall be recovered dues means tax interest penalty shall be recovered from whom guardian trustee or agent as it would have been determined and recoverable from such minor or incapacitated person as if he was a major or capacitated person means minor is not a minor minor is a major incapacitated person is a capacitated person he is not incapacitated as it would have been recovered from those people it will be now recovered from whom as if he was conducting the business himself means if major if minor was not a minor he was a major or incapacitated person was a capacitated person he would have been carrying out the business whatever would have been the due recovered from him same will now be recovered from the guardian or trustee basically who is made liable guardian trustee or the agent who is carrying on the business on behalf of the minor or incapacitated person i hope you guys are able to understand very basic next court of ward or trustee appointed by the court sometime what happens so to protect see this minor is there minor will have one estate are property is there and property has a business 
Now minor cannot carry out the business. So to protect the estate of the minor, court will appoint one court of ward. Are we clear everyone? Or might be one administrator or might be one trustee will be created. Those people are basically taking care of the estate of the minor. Now estate has a business. Now business means there is a liability. Who will be liable? Minor. The court of ward will be liable. Are we clear everyone? Same thing. The court of ward or trustee appointed by the court where estate of a taxable person, estate of a taxable person owing a business, owning a business in respect of his dues is payable under, is under the court of ward or trustee appointed by the court. It is not necessary that only in case of minor, a court of ward is appointed. Sometime for a major also, the court will go ahead and appoint a court of ward who will basically take care of the estate of the person. Now, or trustee appointed by the court order, then dues shall be recoverable from such court of ward or administrative general or the official trustee in a like manner and to the same extent as it would have been recovered from whom? The taxable person if he was conducting the business himself. It is not only for the minor, but sometime what happened, the court appoint for someone who is, carrying, who is a taxable person, a taxable person was carrying on his business, but what happened, the court went ahead and appointed one administrative general or a court of ward. It's a body which has been created by the court basically to protect the estate of a person. What is a court of ward? Court of ward is a legal body which is created by the court to protect the estate of a person. Okay, everyone. Now, in that scenario, the estate is going ahead and carrying on some business and court of ward is taking care of the estate. So, who will go ahead and pay that liability? The liability will be of the court of ward or the administrative general or the official trustee. Next, special provision in certain cases. For an example, one person has died and dues are there. That person will not wake up and give. Then who will give? Relate the legal representative. Are we clear? Legal representative is not there. Someone else is carrying on the business. The person who will carry on the business further. So it says, if business is continued, legal representative or any other person, you can write, carrying on the business. Carrying on the business shall be liable. Clear everyone? Sir, I will not continue the business only. Sir, I will not continue the business only. In that scenario, what will happen? Sir, if you don't continue the business, whatever is the property left by that person, that property say money will be recovered. Are we clear everyone? They are telling business is discontinued after is before or after his death, then legal representative is liable to pay the dues out of the estate to the extent the estate of the deceased is capable. You are telling, sir, I will carry on the business. Then the legal representative or basically the person who is going to carry forward the business will pay. If business is discontinued, government is telling whatever can be recovered from his property, take it. Resto gone, but whatever can be recovered from his property, take it. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. Sir, fight happened in an HUF or association of person and they are going for a partition of the HUF. Government is selling, wait, before the partition, whatever the dues are there, the HUF and all the members who are there of the HUF, Hindu undivided family, family may fight up and they are dividing, they are telling we will do partition. Now what to do? Before the partition, whatever dues are there, who will pay? All the members, Karta members, everyone is jointly and severally liable. Simple, age member or group of member. Group of member means families. Two families are there, three families are there, they are jointly running a business. Now, one family is a one group of member. Can I go ahead and people are laughing. Ah, sir, fight will happen. Yes. Huh. Shall be jointly and several liable up to the date of partition. After partition, your business, you take care. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. After partition, who will run his business? That person will go ahead and take care of that business. Next. Sir, form dissolve. All the partners form, what? Dissolve the form. Up to the date of dissolution, whatever is the liability, who will pay? All the partners shall be jointly and separately be liable up to the time of dissolution. After dissolution, both the partners are separate. Whatever business you are carrying out, your business ka your liability. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. Sir, termination of guardianship. Major became minor. Minor became major. Uncapacitated person became capacitated. Now, is guardian liable or the major is liable? Major is liable. Ward or beneficiary, basically whoever is the beneficiary for whom this guardian was there. Ward means that minor who has now become major will be 
liable. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. Shall be liable to pay the dues. Baba. Termination. Termination means when will guardianship ship end? When the major become, minor becomes major, ward has become big now, big boy will pay. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. Any other cases? Sir, so, discontinuation of business by a firm, AOP or HUF. HUF went ahead and told, see, Baba, partition did not happen. HUF ka partition did not happen. Family is one only. They stopped the business. Huh? Can it happen or not? You opened one Russian shop, all your full family together. Two, three families are sitting together. Outside one shop was there. They opened one Russian shop. Thik hai? One day fight happened. If fight happened, they broke the, uh, not Russian shop. They broke, they broke the, they, they, they closed the firm. If they closed the firm, or no, no, no. Not the firm. Firm is still there. They broke the relationship. Basically, partition of HUF happened. One family went in their room. One family went in their room. One family went in their room. But a partition happened. In that scenario, they are going ahead and telling all the liability up to the date of partition will be taken care by whom? All of them. After partition, the business, whoever is continuing that person ka liability. Before partition, everyone ka liability. After partition, the person who is taking care of the business. But here they are telling partition did not happen. Business stopped. They thought they will do one business. After some time, eh, business is not profitable. Let's eat all the ration at home only. Forget the business. Baba, you did business or not? HUF ka partition did not happen. But business stopped. All the liability of the business who will pay? All the members jointly. And did you guys understand the difference? Discontinuation of business has happened. Here it was partition. Are, no, 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 no. Partition did not happen. But discontinuation of business of a firm, AOP or HUF has happened. Partners, member of the association, family shall be notwithstanding to the discontinuation. Means forget discontinuation on all. It will be like you are continuing the business. Whatever is the liability, pay. Shall be jointly and severally be liable. Can I go ahead everyone? The next one. Change in constitution of the firm. Earlier, there were two partners. This partner went and this partner came. You think, earlier there were two partners. Okay? Till this date. Till this date, who will be liable? These two partners. Now, this, this partner is gone and another partner has come. Then, these two will be liable after that date. Yes or no? See, what I am telling is, till the days, these two partners were there. This change in constitution means, partnership may, there is another partner who has come in, uh, one partner has gone. In that scenario, till this date, who will be liable? This old partners, after that, new partners. Ah, same retirement type. Sir, partners or member, as it existed before, and it exists after, shall be liable without prejudice to section number 90, jointly and severally be liable to pay the dues of such firm for any period before its reconstitution. Tell me one thing. New partner is coming in. He should do, do his due diligence and come in the firm, no? Old, old dues, he is also liable. See, old partners to liable only. Because you joined newly, you are also liable for all the old dues. It's like transfer of business. Transferer and transferee liable for the old, the old dues. Transferee was a new person. But new, new things, new things, only the new people are liable. Transferee is liable. The same way, here partnership firm is there. Two partners were there. It became three. Baba, for all the dues still here, this partner should have done due diligence before coming inside the firm. No. So, all the partners will be liable up to the date of, up to the date of reconstitution. Can I go ahead? After reconstitution, whoever is the new partner will go ahead and that person will be liable. Can I go ahead everyone? But before reconstitution, up to the date of reconstitution, all the partners, new, old, everyone, as it existed before and it, as it ex exists after. Can I go ahead, everyone? Now, the next one over here, this third line, no, it is wrong. You have to cut it. Actually, in the third, what they have told, no? Total bakwas. They are telling discontinuation also includes dissolution. Discontinuation also includes dissolution. Are we clear? Includes dissolution or partition. But what I am telling is enough. I think it is more than enough. You should not confuse yourself. This much is more than enough. You can cut the last line which is there. Now, everyone over here, tell me one thing. 
one person went ahead and transferred his business to another. For an example, one father died. Son went ahead and took over the business. In that scenario, also it's a transfer of business. Old dues ke liye who will be liable? Transfer and transfer both. And new dues, dues ke liye who will be liable? Or later transfer Transfer the or successor is liable to pay the tax, interest, penalty. Dues from the transferer. In case of transfer of business due to the death of the sole proprietor. It means when I talk over here, transfer of business. One person died. Everyone listen. One person died. His son has taken over the business. It's a transferee. Who is the transferee? Son. Whatever is the liability, he will pay. But before the date of transfer, transfer, transfer and transfer, both are liable. But sir, because the transfer is not there only, who will be liable? Transfer will be liable. Now, here also you have to remember that you can go ahead and still say that sir, if he is not going ahead and continuing the business then, then the business is not transferred only, no. He is telling, I don't want to succeed the business. If you don't succeed the business, whatever can be paid out of the property of your father that will be sold and that will be paid. But if you carry over the business, then who will be liable? Old liability and new liability, both are yours only. Did you guys understand? I hope you guys have the clarity on this. Uh, here is the small chapter. See, generally in the exam, they go ahead and ask amalgamation, liquidation, private company, public company, partnership. Okay, everyone. These are some four of them which I feel are very important. Other than that also, this you can still see and go. Don't leave it. Special provision. Right, everyone? Two to three marks, they go ahead and ask in the exam. I will go ahead and close all my discussion on the chapter of liability to pay in certain cases. Today's discussion, we'll go ahead and close over here. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye, people. All right, students. Good morning, everyone. Let's go ahead and do offenses and penalties today. One of the chapter which is a graded chapter for your exam. Four to six marks they go ahead and ask and this time to 100% because there are small small amendments also in the chapter. Let's go ahead and start understanding with offenses and penalties. Sir, what is the linking for this chapter? Baba, linking for this chapter is coming everywhere across the act. Act may there are Act me, there are sections, rules, etc. You are going ahead and doing various types of violation, various types of offense, various types of violations are known as various types of offenses, and for every offense there will be a penalty. For an example, if you are not riding with a helmet, fine is there. Riding on the footpath, fine is there. No driving license, fine is there. No papers, fine is there. Correct or not? The same way in GST Act. Also, for every act to be managed actually, for every law to be managed properly, law should have penalties. Otherwise, sir, for riding on a footpath, there is no penalty which is there. Will you ever ride on the road or always on the footpath? Most of the people always on the footpath. So, for managing any law, you have to have penalties for the offenses. Offenses means violation of the law. Basically, violation of the sections and act rules which are there basically means not following the sections which are told contravention of the sections, contravention of the rules is known as what? Offense. I hope you guys are able to understand and for that contravention, you will be penalized with an amount. Can I go ahead everyone? Sometime you are penalized when you are going on the road. Sometime you are penalized when in what will happen? Only they will give you a chalan. You have to pay the amount. Same way in GST also. They will go ahead and take only money. You give money and you go. Otherwise sometime they will also go ahead and send you to jail. Are you guys able to understand? Along with penalty, you also will be sent to jail. Sometime when you are going on the road, you don't have the driving license, you don't have papers of the car also. On you, because you didn't have driving license, they will go ahead and penalize you. Because you don't have papers of the car, first they will seize you, seize the, not seize you, seize the car and that later they will take over the ownership also if you don't show them the document. That is known as seizure and confiscation. Are you guys able to understand this? So, there are various things for which various offenses, for which various penalties are there. Let's go ahead and start offenses and penalties. It starts with section number 122, section number 122 till section number 138. Let's go ahead and start with section number 122. We'll be starting with section number 122. We'll be going up to 138. 
I will not be going ahead and talking about the section numbers over here. Whichever section numbers are important, we will talk in the due course of time. But what are we going to learn in the chapter? We are going to learn about the various offenses and for the various offenses, the various penalties which are being prescribed. Always remember one thing, if you have gone ahead and done an offense, they can't go ahead and recover an amount unless they demand it. And to demand there has to be a notice. And after a notice, always opportunity of being heard has to be there. Only then demand order has to be there. So in the same way, for penalty order to be given to you, if you have done an offense, penalty order to be given to you, first they will always give you a show cause notice. Then they will give you an opportunity of being heard. And then they will go ahead and penalize you with a penalty order. Are we clear everyone? And once a penalty order is given, if you don't go ahead and pay the amount within three months or you don't go for an appeal, Baba, now you are able to understand, if you don't go for an appeal, because any decision or any order given under the GST Act is appealable other than SSIT. I hope you guys remember, prosecution sanction order, as per Caesar order which was there, I for installment and T for transfer order. It, other than this, any order or decisions are basically appealable. I hope you guys are able to understand. Always remember one thing, to go ahead and recover any amount of officer always has to have a demand order to have a demand order always opportunity of being heard will be given and to always have a demand order there has to be a show cause notice i hope you guys are able to understand show cause notice and then demand order and then the uh, recovery starts are we clear everyone so whenever we are learning offenses and penalties offense you have done for every offense, they will go ahead and give you a show cause notice and then they will give you an opportunity of being heard and then a demand order shall be passed. I hope you guys are able to connect to this. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead. Everyone, that much was enough for the linking of the chapter. Let's go ahead and start with section number 122. Section number 122, which is there, has gone ahead and put all the places where penalties can be levied together. Section number 122 has section number 122 one. It has section number 122.1a and section number 122.2 and section number 122.3. Are you guys able to understand? What is section number 122.1 going ahead and telling? Section number 122 says penalties for certain offenses. Penalties for certain offenses. Now listen to me very carefully. Offenses can be done by taxable person. Offenses, offenses can be done by registered person who has not taken who has taken registration is a registered person who might not have taken registration but still liable is also a taxable person. So, offenses can be done by registered person, offenses can be done by taxable person, offenses can be done by any person. Might be you went to a shop, shopkeeper told I will not give invoice, I will not charge GST. Shopkeeper is doing an offense, you told ha 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 ha, you also are doing an offense, so you can also be penalized. Any person can also be penalized. Now what happens, people go ahead and issue bogus invoice, make money. Behind the bogus invoice, the mastermind is the CA. He is no one. Behind the bogus invoice, sometimes I am telling the mastermind is the CA. CA also should be penalized. Where? He is a taxable person. He is a registered person. He is any other person. But for CAs, etc., for basically those masterminds who are there, they introduce one more section. So when we go ahead and read section number 122, we will see circumstances. Circumstances for levy or penalty on taxable person. Taxable means registered also included. Taxable means who is liable to be registered also included. Then, sir, 122A masterminds. People who are mastermind behind going ahead and doing an offense. What people used to do, I will tell you. What people used to do is, they used to go ahead, for an example, there is a CA. There is a very case, uh, case which has come in uh, somewhere uh, in, I don't remember the place. What happened? One farmer was there. He used to go ahead and earn every day daily wage, 300, 400 rupees. His nephew came and told him, please give me your Aadhaar card. Bank account detail, every month your bank account with 2000 rupees will come. They opened one bank account in his name, Aadhaar and all used, took one GST registration. Whose name it is? Farmer. Now what they did, using that bank account and all, they went ahead and started doing bogus invoice cup billing. Crores of billing done, crores of GST credit passed on. Who is the person who will be caught? Farmer. When they went to the farmer, farmer told sir, I don't know. This was this uh, nephew who went ahead and took uh, my uh, details 
and I don't know what he has done. He told me every month I'll get 2000. I'm very happy I'm getting 2000 rupees. He has taken care of me. Uh, very good. Now, behind this whole case was another person. Now, when they went to the other person, they told, okay, your penalty for any other person is 25,000 rupees maximum. No, take 25,000, get lost. Earned how much? Crores. So, they went ahead and introduced section number 122, 1A. Any person who retains the benefit of a transaction, also gone. Means all this... Uh, CA, CS, might be CMA or might be any other professional, any other mastermind, might be CA interfailed. Those people who could not qualify, they started doing all this thing, started issuing bogus invoices. I am telling, not all CAs are bad, but there might be some people who are going ahead and doing. We get news also, correct? Lot of people being caught. Now, whoever is the mastermind behind, I am not telling necessarily mean a CA, I am also CA, right? So, not, not necessarily by PA, CA, but anyone who is the mastermind behind it will be caught under section number 122, 1A. 122.2 talks about a penalty on registered. Can you see over here, everyone? This is taxable person. This is on any person. This is on registered person and this is also on any person. Sir, why this may CA is not included then mastermind? Because here it is only 25. Baba, giving 25 and going ahead is very good. 1 crore rupees ka credit passed on, made lots of money. You have come for penalty. Take 25,000 go. So, they went ahead and introduced 122. Can I go ahead everyone? Chalo, let's go ahead and start understanding now. Section number 122, penalties for certain offense. Listen to me very carefully. Understanding is one point where I will make you understand. But second point is also going ahead and remembering all these penalties which are there. Are we clear? For that I have gone ahead and created a mnemonic saying, Officer went ahead and told, O gastric. He went ahead and got what? Gastric. O gastric. O gastric are the offenses for which there are penalties which are told under section number 122.1. Right everyone? First one. So, penalty will be how much? 10,000 or the tax involved, whichever is. Higher. Why tax involved? I have told whatever ITC you have gone ahead and wrongly availed, ITC wrongly uh, taken or might be TDS not deducted, whatever the offense is there, whatever was the amount, whatever was the amount and 10,000, whichever is higher. This is under CGST Act. So, 10,000 or the C CGST, uh, 10,000 or the CGST tax ka, uh, amount, whichever is higher, 10,000 or the SGST ka tax ka amount, whichever is higher. Are you guys able to understand? What I am teaching you is under CGST Act. So, this 25,000 is under CGST. SGST may also similar. IGST always it becomes double. I will not tell it always, but I hope you guys will be able to connect. Chalo. Let's go ahead. Section number 122. 122. 1. Section number 122.1. Circumstances for levy of penalty on taxable pencil person. Sir, number one, officer. Officer came to your office. He told, I want to do uh, in inspection. You went ahead and told, sir, get out. You did not allow him. Correct, everyone. You told, beware of my dogs. Okay. Then they are going ahead and telling, if you obstruct or prevent an officer from discharging his duty, then you will be penalized. Are we clear, everyone? Next. So, here there will be no tax etc. So, they will go ahead and penalize you basically 10,000 rupees. Sir, good services or both? If you have gone ahead, if you have gone ahead and supplied good services or both, supply without invoice. If you have gone ahead and supplied without invoice, what do you mean? Supplying, not giving invoices or incorrect invoices you are giving, under, under valuation you are doing. You have to go ahead and show 10,000 rupees ka sale. You are showing the sales at 1,000, 9,000 you are taking in cash. If you are going ahead and doing incorrect invoicing or false invoices, if you are going ahead and giving, sir, you should have gone ahead and given the invoice in Niharika's name. Niharika told, please give me the invoice in my name of friend. You went ahead and gave in the name of the friend because friend can go ahead and take the ITC. If you are going ahead and giving any false kind of invoices, they are telling supply without invoice, incorrect invoice or false invoice which is there. Might then, Baba, all these cases which are there, slowly with the upcoming time, we'll be able to get more examples. What are the people doing? What are the cases which are coming? Are we guys able to understand? But as of now, uh, offenses, people are going ahead and doing. Penalties also are being levied. Officers are applying their brain. Are we clear? But there is nothing concrete which is coming up. Slowly, slowly, slowly it will come up. Still, appellate tribunal is there to be formed. So, slowly GST Act is getting modified. Can we go ahead everyone? Now, section number 129, 130 ka penalty modified, amendment done. Why? Earlier the, earlier the penalty which was being told had very vagueness in that. 
earlier the penalty which was told was challenged before the high court and supreme courts so amendment done in that so earlier when we used to teach the teaching was totally different we were only not sure what we are teaching in sometimes because even the department is not sure even the government what the law has been done they are telling eh write it later problem will come will change you know how many changes are coming in gst if the law is this much the changes are this much you see so many circular so many notifications are required do you think a law should require that in my opinion no but they went ahead and made a law and later they kept amending it in practical life it is easy for, but for a teacher it was very difficult when we were teaching we were not able to connect to the law at times we were not able to connect now they are rectifying it so we are able to say okay fine this is the case it should not have been like this it should have been like this they have rectified it can we go ahead everyone next so number 1 done number 2 supply without invoice so this is good services or both related offense so you are supplying without invoice or you are going ahead and giving only bogus invoice without supply in violation of the provision you are giving bogus invoice hey you want credit take invoice you are selling bogus invoice or you are supplying transporting storing those goods which are liable for confiscation confiscation other you are supplying or you are doing transportation or you are storing goods which are liable for confiscation can you tell me which are the goods which are liable for confiscation those goods which are supposingly what are the goods you are liable for confiscation unaccounted goods you remember seizure and detention may they went ahead and came to your place goods are not being accounted for they will go ahead and seize and take along with them those goods are liable for confiscation so if you are not going ahead and doing what supplies supplies which are there or stores or transports those goods which are liable for confiscation means tax and paid goods can i go ahead everyone then accounting related you fail to keep accounts baba you guys are able to understand all this have to be connected with their respective chapters accounts accounts and record may you fail to keep accounts which are told under rule number 56 section number 35 maintain fail to keep maintain or retain books of accounts or you produce fake when he is asking you you produce him fake accounts then you suppress the turnover why will you suppress the turnover so that you don't have to pay taxes then you tds and tcs do you remember in the respective chapter of tds and tcs i went ahead and taught you i went ahead and taught you and a student who is very smart will do one thing in tds i told you 10000 or tds amount whichever is higher has to be paid in tcs i told you 10000 or tcs amount whichever is higher do you remember if you don't go ahead tds ka chapter mein i went ahead and told you and tcs ka chapter mein also i went ahead and told you that sir see here non collection 122 ka offense it is 10000 or tds amount tcs amount right everyone here see 10000 or tcs amount whichever is higher that much ka penalty will be levied on you yes or no everyone now listen to me very carefully all this amounts which i am teaching accounts and records related put it in accounts and records ka chapter so when you are going ahead and reading accounts and records you will know that if you are not going ahead and maintaining accounts so that chart may you put it off otherwise what happens it becomes very difficult to remember all of them together i hope you guys are able to connect it but me as a teacher i have to go ahead and teach every chapter aram se if i go ahead and start penalties offenses and penalties with every chapter it will become very difficult till uh, i hope you guys understood what you have to do tds and tcs you fail to deduct you did not deduct or you fail to collect tds deducted tcs collected so you fail to collect or you deducted or collected less or you deducted or collected but you fail to pay whatever it is whatever is the 10000 or the tds amount whichever is higher 10000 or tcs amount whichever is higher tempers or destroys baba officer ka evidences which are there you are destroying evidences documents theek hai everyone or you temper or destroy detained seized or attached goods if you are baba they attached the goods they went ahead and told okay this goods which are there are prohibited you went ahead and did something of those goods you went ahead and you sold those goods they are going ahead and telling if you go ahead and do all those things they are telling next transport if you are transporting without any specified document what are the document invoice plus ev bill bill of supply plus ev bill all these documents are not there registration you did not take or you took with false information 
or you are using other person's registration number are you guys able to understand if you are going ahead and doing all this refund you took fraudulently giving fake documents and all you took the refund itc without actual receipt either fully or partially you did not receive the goods and you took the itc should you take it section number 16 says only invoice is not enough you should have received also without receiving you entered and took the itc gone wrong or might be you are buying bogus invoice baba one is selling bogus invoice what is here this one is the person is invoice without supply it means he is issuing if you one is issuing he is also doing an offense you are going ahead and taking on the basis of bogus invoice you are a taxable person you are also doing an offense can i go ahead everyone isd do you remember with the isd ka chart only i taught this sir isd chart if you go ahead and see in the corner i have gone ahead and taught it that sir if isd takes or distributes itc in contravention 10000 or the itc excess distribution done whatever is the excess distribution or 10000 whichever is higher can i go ahead everyone next sir information and document called by the officer you failed to furnish or you furnish false information sir collects an amount as tax or in contravention and not paid you collected 500 crore rupees saying sir this is tax your goods are exempted and you collected pay it immediately to the government if you don't pay it beyond what 3 months what is the due date for amount collected wrongly immediately you have to pay immediately you have to pay that is only the due date otherwise from tomorrow interest will start and you can issue shokos notice any time demand order within 1 year section number 76 we had gone ahead and learned it yes everyone next so all these are the various offenses o gastric o means officer related fraud if you are going in and obstructing an officer g means goods and service supply without invoice invoice without supply all these offenses accounts related s for suppression of turnover t for tds tcs t for tampers or destroys evidences etc t for transportation of those goods which you without document r for registration r for refund wrongly taken then itc related fraud isd related frauds which are there information or document which the officer is asking you are not giving c for collection amount as tax or in contravention you are not required to collect only you entered and collected it you should immediately pay it to the government otherwise you will also be penalized can i go ahead everyone next one minute everyone the next one is section number 122 to 1a any person who retains the benefit of a transaction covered under so what happened i went ahead and told you this was penalties on whom taxable person let's go ahead and do 122 to 2 first circumstances for levy of penalty on registered person baba do you remember everyone if you are a bona fide case it is 10% or 10000 which is higher if you are a fraud case it is 100% of the penalty which can come that is told under section number 122 but if you are already penalized under section number 73 and 74 and might be you have not paid some tax or short paid some tax then agar 73 ka 74 ka penalty is already done if it is already done if it is already done then here pen, penalty can't come because a person can be penalized twice but if 73 and 74 ka proceedings are not done and independently the officer is going ahead and telling you have not paid some tax or short paid some tax and he is going ahead and telling i want to penalize you for not paying the tax or short paying the tax he can do independent penalty proceedings and give you a penalty order by giving giving first a show cause notice and then a demand order everyone over here 122 2 sir whenever registered person on who, who is not tax is not paid short paid erroneous refund itc wrongly availed or utilized in that scenario one is 73 and 74 ka proceeding 73 and 74 mein proceedings for penalty is levied 122 mein penalty will not be levied but if officer feels that i want to go ahead and only independently go ahead and levy what penalty on this person then the max reason can be fraud willful misstatement or suppression 10000 or tax due whichever is higher baba here it is tax due 10% or tax due means 100% of the tax in case of fraud are you guys able to understand tax tax due matlab tax due means 100% can i go ahead everyone yes everyone can we go ahead now the next one over here other than fraud willful misstatement or suppression it is 10000 or 10% of the tax due whichever is higher i hope everyone is clear it is fraud then 100% or 10000 non fraud case may 10% or 10000 whichever is higher but this is not very important because 73 and 74 may we already go ahead and penalize a person along with those section only when we are giving demand order separate penalty proceedings are not done 
along with the demand order only in the demand order right they write the penalty amount and go ahead and serve the demand order in 73 and 74 i hope you guys are able to understand but here if they want to penalize here if they want to penalize they will have to give you a they will have to do separate penalty proceedings can i go ahead everyone always remember anything to be recovered has to be demanded anything to be demanded has to be first given a notice chokos notice and demand order should always be in conformity don't forget all these things can i go ahead everyone next sir section number 122 3 circumstances for levy of penalty on any person they are telling penalty up to how much 25000 when you aid or abates offenses under 122 121 1 you aid or abate the offenses under 122 1 you are going in and helping someone to go ahead and do all these offenses if you are going in and helping someone then also you are also doing an offense might be to me the transporter is going in and helping transport is not a registered person he is going in and helping me in going in and doing all this offense might be warehouse keeper is going in and helping me are we clear anyone who is going ahead i told i will not give you invoice you told you will not take the invoice you are also helping me on me penalty under section number 122 1 on you penalty under section number 122 3 so anyone who is helping someone i told supply without invoice you told ha okay so me also 122 1 you under 122 3 next sir you deal in any way with goods which you know or has reason to believe that are liable to confiscation for an example transporter is there owner operator of warehouse is there he knows that those goods are liable for confiscation and he is going ahead and keeping those goods might be is transporting those goods then you are also liable for a penalty up to 25000 always remember penalty is on a person chalan can i go ahead everyone baba on the road chalan is given the chalan is a penalty i hope everyone is clear then receives or is concerned with the supply of you are concerned with the supply of or deals with supply of service which he knows or has reason to believe are in contravention of any provisions of the act or rules everyone listen i told any hey, harika don't take much, don't take uh, invoice i will give you class you give me 8000 rupees 9000 fees no you give me 8000 no problem you received a supply of service which you knew you are in contravention this person is not giving you the invoice are you guys able to understand so that is what they are telling see here it was regarding goods here it is regarding service that's it you went ahead and took those services which you knew are in contravention the front party is not giving the invoice or might be is giving the invoice where he is not charging the correct amount of tax if you are going ahead and helping someone then you are also to be penalized are you guys able to understand this the next one fails to appear baba you remember section number 70 may section number 70 do you remember section number 70 may officer can go ahead and summon you to give evidences in a proceeding you did not go hey you told i will not come then you told no 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 i am i love sleeping i will sleep at home i will not come fails to appear when issue hey summon to give evidence or document if you don't go then also you will be penalized fails to issue in now you tell me if there was no penalty will anyone go no then sir fails to issue an invoice or account for an invoice in the books of account did i tell you once you issue tax invoice etc you have to account for it in accounts and records chapter also we have gone ahead and learned that when you have gone ahead and issued an invoice you should keep accounts you are not keeping account of the invoice or what they are going ahead and telling over here is sir you fail to issue an invoice you are not issuing invoice baba unregistered person also has to give a commercial invoice yes or no so that at least when 20 lakh a turnover will come he will come to know about it hey sir i am never giving an invoice never liable for registration never turnover will cross baba government is selling unregistered person also will give a commercial invoice at least no so if you are not going ahead and issuing any document etc invoice they are not telling tax invoice but at least issue a commercial invoice if you are not going ahead and issuing invoice document anything or you are not accounting for it might be you are issuing you told i am issuing but after issuing tearing and throwing no you should account also for it can i go ahead everyone so then also you will be penalized people tell me one thing section number 122 i taught you section number 22 may 1 2 and 3 i taught this is on taxable person this is on registered person this is on any person here how much sir oh gastric oh gastric 10000 or 10% whichever is ha uh, ha uh. it is tax involved tax involved means 
might be whatever. So supposingly you have taken a refund. Refund me whatever refund you have taken. Sir, TDS, TCS, whatever you fail to deduct. Are you guys able to understand whatever is the tax amount, whichever is higher? Can I go ahead? Registered person, they went ahead and told, sir, bona fide case, fraud case. Bona fide case, 10% or 10,000, whichever is higher. Sir, fraud case, 10,000 10, or 100%, whichever is higher. I hope everyone is clear. Any person ka case may up to, up to, up to it is. Up to. Can I go ahead everyone? CGST may 25, SGST may 25. Now people went ahead and told the government, which chapter it is? Chapter number 26, offenses and penalties. Everyone over here. Now, any person ka case me to only how much is the penalty everyone? Up to 25,000. Now they went ahead and told, sir, if one person is penalized saying that, I went ahead and aid or abated offenses under section number 122. I helped someone to go ahead and issue bogus invoice. 122 may bogus invoice is there. You went ahead and told I helped someone in issuing bogus invoice. I am the chartered accountant behind it. How much? Mastermind ke liye penalty? 25. Government went ahead and no, 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 no. They went ahead and told any person who retains the benefit of a transaction covered under clause 1, 2, 7 and 9. Sir, how will we know 1, 2, 7 and 9? 1, 2, 7 and 9 is being underlined. Can you see over here? Sir, 1, 2, 7 and 9. Everyone over here, listen. So, sir, if you are supplying without invoice or incorrect invoice or false invoice or issues invoice without supply basically bogus invoice this was the main reason behind it third one sir itc without actual receipt if you are taking credit on the basis of bogus invoice either fully or partially in contravention of the act or rules because act says only when you receive the goods you should take the credit i bought bogus invoice and took the credit so first of all supply without invoice you are giving invoice without supply i am taking the credit on the basis of those bogus invoice or ISD takes ITC or distributes ITC in contravention. I am an ISD. I am taking those credits which I should not be taking. I am going ahead and distributing to that branch which has not gone ahead and taken the benefit. Baba, you should go ahead and distribute. If it is for the benefit of one branch, distribute to that branch. You thought, hey, you have credit. No, Baba, why do you want credit? We will go ahead and distribute to other person who needs credit. You started giving it to those branches who had not taken those service only because that branches want money. You, you started managing your working capital in branches because of your ISD status. Are you guys able to understand? Oh, this branch may already create is there. This much not required. Another branch may I will distribute. You should not go ahead and do it. You should do distribution to that branch who has taken the benefit of the service. Are you guys able to understand? The next one. So, if you go ahead and do this contravention, they are telling under subsection 1, 1, 2, 7 and 9. Did I teach you 1, 2, 7 and 9? Then they are telling and at whose instance the transaction is conducted. Means basically who has gone ahead and helped and made the transaction successful. They are going ahead and telling whatever is the tax evaded, ITC availed or whatever is the ITC passed on, that much penalty will be levied. For an example, a chartered accountant went ahead and helped one person in going ahead and issuing bogus invoices, made 5 crore out of it. How much penalty? 5 crore ka amount of penalty will also be there. They are going ahead and telling, Baba, I am telling you, chartered accountant example is only for classroom purpose and in practical life also we are seeing many chartered accountants doing it and getting caught also. Can I go ahead everyone? Here, you will go to jail also. To you jail plus penalty also. Just by sending you to jail, giving free food, Baba, money is also required? No. So, first they will take out the money from you, then they will give you free food. Everyone here, jail wala talk we will do later. Can I go ahead everyone? Now, so here it is only penalty. Imprisonment, we will talk later. I hope everyone is clear till here. Can we go ahead? So, here, whatever is the tax evaded, ITC availed or passed on, how much ever ka offense you have done, you have to pay that much. I hope everyone is clear. Section number 122 done. The next section is section number 123. I believe one small two marks ka question should come out of section number 122. Two to three mark ka one small question should come out of it. Then, section number 123 is penalty for failure to furnish of information return. Everyone listen to me very carefully. Baba, do you know, department has the power that department can go ahead and take your information from third party. 
like they will go ahead and tell your bank to provide their detail they will go ahead and tell stamp duty authorities to provide your detail they will go ahead and tell other might be transport departments that they can take the details what cars you are going ahead and buying all those details the department can go ahead and take from other parties those other parties will go ahead and furnish one return which is known as information return are we clear everyone the concept of information return is not yet very famous but still you should know it are we clear till here baba you go to the department if you are going ahead and doing article chief department will tell you this is your air information we have received it they'll tell you see sir these are the transactions you have done direct tax me if you have gone to the department how many have you been to the department oh so sad no problem okay uh, you should have gone oh you tell your boss no and do send me to the department my boss was good enough he used to tell me go 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 to the department okay i still remember uh, uh, on the day of result i was sitting in front of the officer okay and uh, i had a hearing which was there my boss was good enough he used to send me okay your boss is also good enough i am not telling you this okay so he, i was sitting in front of the officer officer went ahead and told me ramesh power of attorney i told i don't have it is in the name of my boss so he told okay he told you are a chartered accountant i told just qualified that time only result had come and i had passed and i was sitting in front of him i told yeah yeah just call it paid i was very excited so he told okay fine sit we'll hear to you otherwise he would have thrown me out if i would have told article theek hai can we go ahead everyone here now rule uh, what is it if you fail to furnish information basically department can go ahead and take your information from stamp duty authorities all this uh, roc which is there all these people say they can go ahead and take your information information is given under section number 150 section number 150 talks about information return it is there in your chapter of uh, returns ka chapter today today you have to go ahead and read today you have to go ahead and read i will not be teaching section number 150 in your returns ka chapter is there where it talks that various people who have to go ahead and give information return basically information return has to be filed with the department so that department can go ahead and take all those information and use it against a taxable person are we clear everyone can we go ahead so your information will be taken by the department from various sources so those sources file information return if those people don't go ahead and file then how much is the penalty everyone 100 per day up to a maximum of 5000 under cgst similar amount under as g s t the next one is 124 see baba information return is there information in a more organized manner is known as statistics now department also has the power to go ahead and collect statistics statistical data means information organized information more organized is statistics so if they are going ahead and telling someone to go ahead and furnish statistics and you have not gone ahead and furnished if you have not gone ahead and furnished what statistics which were being asked by ask to be furnished sir where is it told about statistic we'll read later it will come don't worry theek okay, everyone now if you are being asked to furnish what statistics and statistical data is not being furnished by you to the department they are going ahead and telling fine up to how much 10000 they'll fine you and still you are continuing the offense still if you are going ahead and continuing they are telling in case of continuing offense we'll go ahead and charge 100 rupees per day up to a maximum how much 25000 rupees can i go ahead officer pin like you 10000 still you are not going ahead and furnishing then they are going ahead and telling 100 rupees per day up to a maximum of 25000 can i go ahead everyone these two are in the mode of mcq they can go ahead and ask so i have told it now section number 125 is any person any person includes registered person taxable person uh, any person sir who contravenes any 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 person any act or rules ka contravention sir i did not file my return on time still you can be penalized 25000 do you remember section number 73 may be learned sir that is general penalty no separate penalty provided anywhere officer can go ahead and penalize you up to 25000 are we clear this is up to less than equal to 25000 this is a general penalty nowhere nothing is told still officer has the power he can go ahead and in lies are we clear till here please come to section number 126 very very important for a exam point of view they generally go ahead and ask a question baba all this you remember section number 75 general provisions general provision for demand and recovery for demand order general provision section number 75 same way for offenses and penalty general discipline 126 sir general discipline relating to penalty what are the discipline officer should have when he is going ahead and penalizing someone sir no penalty for minor breach if you have done something minor 
small small breach it should not penalize you what do you mean by minor breach where the tax involved is less than 5000 always remember one thing minor breach means a breach where the tax involved is how much less than 5000 are we clear not 5000 less than 5000 yes everyone the next one over here is sir of tax regulation minor breach of tax regulation procedural requirement and in particular any omission or mistake in documentation which is easily rectifiable what do you mean by easily rectifiable which is apparent on the face that sir it is a mistake which is done if you have gone ahead and done anything intentionally then penalty will be there if the otherwise they are going in and telling minor breach or something which is apparent on the face which is basically done by mistake mistake say mistake is being ignored can i go ahead everyone it says see no penalty for minor breach of minor breach of tax regulation or procedural requirement any procedural requirement was there Okay, procedure had to be followed. You did some mistake. Procedural requirement may they are telling minor amount if it is involved, we'll ignore it. And in particular, any omission or mistake if you have done in documentation which is easily rectifiable. Documentation means accounts and record to be maintained. You entered and did any mistake which is there, which is easily rectifiable, apparent on the face that you have done a mistake, then it is okay. What do you mean by apparent easily rectifiable? Which is apparent on the face. But you have if you have done negligence. If you have gone ahead and done intentionally, that time penalty will be levied. Sir, uh, easily rectifiable and made without any fraudulent intention or gross negligence. But if done with fraudulent intention or because of your negligence, then penalty will come. They will tell you in the exam. Ram has gone ahead. Ram has gone ahead and done an offense wherein he has gone ahead and uh, there was some documentation which was easily rectifiable. However, Ram is contending penalty should not be levied. But officer is telling it is because of his gross negligence that the offense has been done. Because of gross negligence, then the penalty will come. What Ram is telling is wrong. Are we clear? Madhu is going ahead and telling, it, it, exam me question, Madhu is going ahead and telling that sir, he has gone ahead and done a minor breach where the amount involved is only 3000 rupees. Officer is contending to go ahead and impose a penalty. Can officer do it? No, it's a minor breach. He can't go ahead and do it. I hope you guys are able to do it. When you do question answers, you will be able to link this better. I hope you guys are practicing some question answers at home. People watching at home, are you guys practicing question answers? If you are not doing it, my hearty cond condolences to you. Because it is very difficult to write in the exam. Remember that. Remember that. I will always remind you. I will always remind you, if two days before the exam you call and tell me that sir, I have not practiced question and sir, I will tell you very difficult to pass. Are we clear? Students have a very good in uh, this thing, habit. Now on they will not study. One day before the exam they will call and tell me, sir, what should I do now? Now you are crying, I should make you more cry. I will tell, okay, fine, Baba, now you only remember. Sir, I have done nothing, I did not practice at all, I did not read your textbook only. Now please tell me that only chart book reading, I will get 100 marks. Not possible. That time in order to encourage you, I will tell you, okay, fine, not done, what to do now, at least revise and go. But in your heart and my heart, I know that you have not done question answers. It is very risky thing which you have done. And if you are not practicing question answers, people, it will be very difficult. Please trust me. I am telling it again and again. You have to pick up your book. You have to write your answers. Only if you are writing your answers by your own hand, you will realize your mistakes. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Penalty shall depend upon fact and circumstance of each case and be commensurate with the degree and severity of the breach. Everyone always remember, whenever they are going ahead and penalizing you, more severe offense, more severe penalty. Small offense, small penalty. So they are going ahead and telling, whenever the officer is going ahead and penalizing you, he will see the fact and circumstance. He will see the severity. If more severe offense, more severe penalty. For an example, they told penalty up to 25,000. If you have gone ahead and done a severe offense, he will charge you more. If it is small offense, then he will go ahead and charge you, might be 500 and leave it to you, leave you. So they are going ahead and telling, penalty shall depend upon fact and circumstance of each case and be commensurate with the degree and severity of the breach. No penalty without opportunity of being heard. Did I tell you always? First, show cause notice they will give you. Then they will give you opportunity of being heard. And then they will go ahead and give you a demand order. And when demand order is given, it is always a speaking order. Officer must specify nature of the breach and applicable law, regulation and 
procedure. He should go ahead and tell what did you do, what was the mistake, everything. Are we clear everyone? Can we go ahead? Sir, I went ahead and told you if you fail to issue, where is it? Supply without invoice, right everyone? Do you remember 200 rupees and above, 200 and above you have to give invoices. I told you a case about the person. I will tell you, for an example, uh, I go to take my system from a person who is there, okay? I went to buy, I went to go ahead and get my laptop repaired. He told me, sir, your uh, people had come. I told my people, he told GST department. I told GST department came, they are not my people. They told, uh, then he told, okay, sir. I told what happened. He told, sir, I paid 20,000 rupees. I told, what did you do? He went ahead and told, sir, they had come, asked me a keyboard. I went ahead and gave a keyboard. Keyboard he went ahead and took and took 50 rupees. Now, in this hurry, who will make invoice and all? I thought I'll do it later. Correct only, no? Genuinely, you have to understand this. These people are not fraud. They are going in and doing accounting. Now, what happened? Officer went ahead and took the goods and went out of the shop, came back. He was a fake customer. Section number 67, subsection 12 allows him. Section number 67, subsection 67, subsection 12, which is inspection, search and seizure may, it is allowed. Now, officer came back and told, sir, you did not give the invoice. Supply without invoice. It is always 10,000 or tax involved. Tax involved was 250 rupees ka keyboard pay what? Very small amount. So, 10,000 rupees under CGST, 10,000 under SDST. So, first he was given a show cause notice. Immediately he was told to write down all the story, opportunity of being heard given. What? You will tell, ha, ah, that is not required. Baba, opportunity of being heard means documentation they will do. Then I gave show cause notice. I told him to write down everything because that was the opportunity of being heard. You, whatever you are telling, you write down and you sign that we gave you an opportunity of being heard. Then he will give you a demand order. Are we clear? And he demanded how much? 20,000 rupees. I hope everyone is clear and he specified the nature of the breach. Saying that he was required to issue the invoice. He did not issue the invoice and hence under section number 122. 1. I am going ahead and penalizing him with that amount. Can I go ahead everyone? Sir, voluntary disclosure may be considered as mitigating factor when quantifying a penalty. You went to the department. Sir, I did a mistake. This was my mistake. Baba, if you tell him upfront, then they will go ahead and consider that fact before going ahead and quantifying an offense. Can I go ahead everyone? The next one. May, may. It is not necessary. Sir, I told from front, you have to go ahead and reduce the penalty. No. It is may. Up to him. Next. Then, this section shall not apply where the penalty specified is either a fixed amount or a fixed percentage. Baba, what is the amount told? One minute. Here it is told 10%, right? Wherever it is told 10, wherever it is told up to, in that scenario, officer can go ahead and say that, okay, fine, severity is less, we will go ahead and charge less. Wherever it is told up to, if it is told 10%, sir, take 7%, no, take 6.5, take 8.5, those cases may officer can't go ahead and consider less. It is told 10,000 rupees, sir, take 10,000. I have, I will buy 200 rupees as and you take 9,500 to all these things are not acceptable. Wherever it is a fixed amount or fixed percentage, no bargaining. If it is up to, then he will go ahead and consider the severity. He will go ahead and consider that, okay, fine, this guy has come from front only and he has told me, I will charge him little less. So, section number 126 is not applicable where the amount is a fixed sum or a fixed percentage. I hope everyone is clear. Section number 126 is very important from exam point of view. Section number 127, what is there, sir? Section number 127, which is there, is total bakwa section. I will go ahead and show you quickly. One minute, everyone. Sir, do we have to read it? Section number 127, here. Sir, power to impose penalty. They are going ahead and telling, if anywhere nothing is told, when proper officer is of the view that a person is liable to penalty and same is not covered anywhere under 62, 63, 64. Sir, when a proper officer is of the view that a person is liable to penalty and the same is not covered and in, under any proceedings, 62, best judgment, 63, best judgment of no, unregistered, unregistered, summary assessment, 73, 74, 129, 130, he may give, he may levy penalty after giving opportunity of being heard. Such penalty means up to 25,000 general penalty is there, no. So, this 127 gives him the power. 128 which is there, but what do you remember late fee, fee ka waiver was done, late fee. 100 rupees is the late fee, they have gone ahead and made. Section number 47 may late fee is there. 
सेक्शन नंबर 47 में तो लेट फीस हंड्रेड रुपीज बट दे वेव डिट एंड इट इज टेन रुपीज और ट्वेंटी फाइव हू गेव देवर का पॉवर सेक्शन नंबर वन ट्वेंटी एट नाउ लेट्स गो टू सेक्शन नंबर वन ट्वेंटी नाइन एवरी वन इन योर बुक पीपल लिसन टू मी वेरी केयरफुली यू हैव द चार्ट बुक स्टे इन योर चार्ट बुक आई विल गो एंड डू इट फ्रॉम योर बुक ऑल्सो डिटेंशन वट डू मीन बाई डिटेंशन यू आर गोइंग ऑन द वे विदाउट हेलमेट दे विल स्टॉप यू दैट इज नोन एज डिटेंशन नॉट लेटिंग यू गो कीपिंग योर यू इन कस्टडी That is known as what detention. Seizure means taking out your bike ka key and keeping in their pocket. Seized your bike. Correct. Now they they will go ahead and show show me the document. You told no document. They will confiscate your bike. Are you guys confiscated means ownership taken by the government. They will bid. They will go ahead and do the bidding and sell off your bike. Do you remember? Are you guys able to connect to this? Now we will apply it to goods and conveyance. Detention. First they will stop your lorry. where you are taking the goods and going they will go ahead and tell you please not detention first they will go ahead and no this section number 129 linkage comes with section number 68 read with rule number 138 do you remember e way bill i will go ahead and connect to there e way bill if you remember in e way bill chapter everyone you were going on the way you were going on the way officer will go ahead and stop section number rule number 138b gives him the power to go ahead and intercept basically verification of the goods and conveyance he will tell ramesh sir give me your document he will tell you give me your invoice give me your e way bill he verified the invoice and e way bill found everything fine then he will let you go do you remember in inspection search and seizure also i taught you this yes or no when you read inspection search and seizure I told you when you are going on the way. Section number sixty-eight says that all documents find okay. He will go let you go. If any problem, he will one twenty-nine and one thirty. He will do. What is section number one twenty-nine? Listen, everyone. He saw your document. He saw your EV bill. Document me. It is ten lakh rupees. EV bill is only for one lakh rupees. Gone, Baba. Gone. He will go ahead and detain you first. He will stop you. Tell okay. You are not allowed to go. Stop here now. Then he will go ahead and seize the goods. He will take the custody of the goods. Baba. detention just means not letting you go seizure means taking over the possession possession he will take of the goods and conveyance saying sir goods also will take the possession conveyance also will take the possession he will not go ahead and tell you, let you go only now first is detention stop he will not let you go stop and keep you now he will go ahead and take over the goods and the conveyance that is meant by seizure on the way you are going bike may no helmet first he will detain you means stop you and keep then he will go ahead and take the possession of your bike how is it taken by taking the key they go ahead and take the possession yes or no then officer will sit on the bike and tell i am going to the office i am going to my police station you come now he will tell if you don't pay this fine within some days we will go ahead and sell the bike so they will take over the ownership also that is known as confiscation i hope you guys are able to connect the same thing over here they are going ahead and telling section number 129 me now everyone let's go ahead and understand section number 129 section number 129 says detention seizure and release of goods and conveyance in transit everyone listen when you are going on the way you will be detained if you don't have the proper document then they will go ahead and take over the ownership 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 me possession of the goods and then you have to pay the fine and they will release the goods and the conveyance are you guys able to understand so now goods and conveyance after detention or seizure after detention might be they detained you and you told sir i will pay everything or after detention they went in and took over the possession also they took the uh, conveyance and the goods to the department and then you are going ahead and telling i will pay the fine are we clear they shall be released first they will go ahead and give you a show cause notice yes everyone and then demand order but here the show cause notice ka time limit is only 7 days once they detain you once they detain you they will go ahead and give you the show cause notice and then within the 7 days they will go ahead and pass demand order also are we clear everyone we will go ahead and read about it don't worry sir now they went ahead and detained you they went ahead and detained the truck wala driver and took over the goods now you you have to go you told hey my reputation is too much i will not come in the front this truck driver told sir 
your goods are there you please come front you told no 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 i will hide i will not come are you guys able to understand if you are not going in front of the officer then the penalty will be more if you are going and telling sir it is my goods only sorry then the penalty will be less are you are you guys able to understand so there are two scenarios in this case they are telling if the owner comes forward owner does not come forward if owner comes forward sir your goods are going on the way without proper document officer went ahead and caught it he will tell hey truck driver call the owner sir owner is not there owner is not going to come then he will penalize more owner told yes sir i am coming owner came running then he will go ahead and charge less i hope you guys are able to understand it says if owner comes forward penalty is how much 200% of the tax payable on such goods everyone you know what was there earlier earlier they used to say if the goods are caught you have to pay tax plus 100% of the penalty for an example 1 lakh rupees ka goods how much is the tax 18000 penalty how much 100% 18000 means how much 36000 people went ahead and challenged saying that sir tax should not be charged because anyways when we have already issued the invoice when we are going ahead and filing our return we will pay the tax now when he has caught he is again charging us tax we issued the invoice we will file the return we will pay the tax for that invoice Baba, when you are caught or you will have to go ahead and issue the invoice no we will pay the tax now you are taking again tax and penalty so double taxation people went ahead and challenged it before supreme court high court and all cases are going on so they went ahead and told okay fine tax plus penalty was there no we'll merge and charge 200 percent as penalty only Got. are you guys able to understand they went ahead and told what now they went ahead and amended the law only they told okay fine it is not tax only penalty is 200 percent 200 percent of the tax payable on such goods so baba do i have to pay tax yes that you forget it tax too you have to pay but we are talking about penalty. How much penalty everyone? 200 percent of the tax payable. If 1 lakh rupees ka goods you are transporting without invoice and you are caught on the way, how much? 18,000. Tax to you will pay only. Forget it. Interest and all everything you forget. Penalty we are talking about. How much? 36,000. I will clear everyone. Sir, what 200 percent of tax? My goods are exempted goods. Baba, exempted goods also when you are transporting you should have one. Bill of supply? No. Bill of supply should be there. Ebay bill is not required in case of exempted goods. Baba, bill of supply should be there. Bill should be there. There is no document at all. Penalty, 2% of the value of the goods. 1 lakh rupees ka goods means how much? 2%? 2,000 or 25,000, whichever is lower. And this always remember what I have taught you is under CGST. Same amount under HGST. Tell me one thing everyone. I will ask you. One person was going on the way. Take everyone, he was going on the way. Officer went ahead and told him stop. Take officer went ahead and checked the goods. He found some contravention. Might be the e way bill and invoice ka mismatch is there. Might be the vehicle ka detail is not matching. Baba, section number 129 deals with those scenarios when your goods are going on the way and officer has stopped you and he's checking the document. Are we clear till here, everyone? Now, section number what is he telling? Your truck was on going on the way. He will check the document. If everything is fine, he will let you go, go. But if document mismatch, etc. is there, any contravention he has gone ahead and found. You know what officers are even doing nowadays? If your truck was supposed to go through this route and the, and the truck driver took some other route, then also they are telling contravention. Truck driver told, sir, I wanted to go to some other route. Might be one dhaba was there. I wanted to eat and go. Gone. Officers are doing whatever nowadays. They are going ahead and penalizing. So, 129 may penalty order can come. Now, all those things are challenged, appeal, etc. We leave it. But as of now, what we will understand that your invoice, document, etc. mismatch is there. Might be you did not issue invoice, invoice issued, but might be you have gone ahead and charged some wrong tax, or might be invoice and eway bill matching is not there. Take everyone. All this scenario may officer will go ahead and do what? Penalize you. Might be you have gone ahead and sent 1 lakh rupees ka goods. How much is the GST? 9%. CGST and 9%. He went in and caught you, eway bill was not there. Invoice is there, eway bill is not there. Gone. What will you do? Sir, 9000 tax, 9000 tax to you, leave it. What is it? CGST amount and SGST amount. Yes, everyone. Tax to is there only, but I am talking about penalty. If owner comes forward, how much? 9000 ka 200 percent is how much? 9000 ka 200 percent is how much? 18000. Are you guys able to understand? Got it, everyone? So, it will be 36,000. 
Sir, we are talking about CGST Act. If they ask you in the C exam CGST Act, then you just have to say 18,000. 9,000 ka 200 percent. CGST amount ka 200 percent. Uh, if they ask you IGST Act, then you have to go ahead and say 18,000 is the IGST. Of that double is 36,000. I hope you guys are able to understand. Did you guys understand this point? Can I go ahead everyone? Now sir, if it is exempted goods, if these goods are exempted, there is no tax only, no penalty. No, they told penalty will come and one minute, if it is exempted goods, then the penalty will be 1 lakh rupees which is there, 1 lakh under CGST also, 1 lakh under SGST also. Value is always same under CGST Act or SGST Act. Correct everyone? 2% means how much? 2,000, 2,000 or 25,000 or 25,000. How much? 2,000 and 2,000 rupees. Are we clear? If they would have asked under IGST Act, do you guys understand what I am telling? Can we go ahead everyone? Yes, sir. Let's go ahead. Everyone over here. The next one. Sir, owner did not come forward. Ah, very good. 200% of the tax payable or 50% of the value of the goods, whichever is higher. Can you tell me what is 200% of the tax payable? Sir, if I go ahead and talk about CGST Act, how much is the 200%? Can you tell me what is 50% of the value of the Okay, I will go ahead and do it like this. Owner comes forward. Think everyone. You tell me and then we will go ahead. Okay, everyone. Truck was intercepted, 10 lakh rupees ka goods are there. CGST is 9%, SGST is 9% and IGST will be how much? 18%. Can you tell me if owner does not come forward, how much will a person be required to pay? You have to tell me CGST also, SGST also and IGST. Penalty you have to tell me. CGST, SGST Act and IGST Act. Sir, on this 9%, right everyone? How much is the 9% tax amount? Penalty will be how much? 1,80,000. 1.8 lakh. Anyone, any doubt? Uh, under SGST Act, 9% means 90,000. Again, 1.8 lakh. If I ask you IGST Act, 3.6 lakh. This will come in the exam. 129 and 130 will come in the exam. So, please be careful. Did you understand this point? Now, penalty done. If it is exempted goods, exempted goods, then 10 lakh directly, 2 percent, how much? 20,000 or 25,000, 20,000 or 25,000 and it will be how much? 20,000, 20,000, 20, IGST Act then. I hope everyone is clear, close chapter. Did you understand this? This will be the exam question, please be very careful. Are they asking under IGST provision, CGST provision, please be very careful. Can we go ahead everyone? Next one, please come to the next one. The next one is owner does not come forward, does not come forward. Can you do the same example? 10 lakh rupees ka goods, CGST amount is 9%, SGST is 9%. Tell me one thing, if the owner does not come forward, what will be the penalty? Please tell. Can you tell me how much is the 50% value? 50% value of the goods, 5 lakhs or 200% of the tax payable. How much is 200%? 9% is 90,000. Of the tax payable, ka how much? Means 1.8 lakh, which is higher? 5 lakh. Uh, this is under CGST Act. Similar amount under SGST. So, 5 lakh or 1.8 lakh, which is higher? 5 lakh. So, everyone, 10 lakh rupees with the, will be the penalty which will be payable under IGST Act. Basically, what officer will go ahead and do is, he will go ahead and collect CGST and HGST total amount. What I am going ahead and telling is, in your exam, you have to be careful about one thing. Are they asking you as per CGST provision? If they are asking as per CGST provision, you have to write only this amount. If they are asking as per IGST provision, you have to write 3.6 lakh or 10 lakh, whichever is higher. Did you understand this? Anyone, any doubt, can I go ahead? Sir, tell me one thing. If it is exempted goods, then what will happen? One minute. Did you understand this point? Sir, if it is exempted goods, then they are going ahead and telling 5% of the value of goods or 25,000, whichever is lower. Sir, exempted goods ka case mein 5%. How much is 5% of the value of the goods? 50,000 or 25,000, whichever is lower. Lower is what? 25. Again, 50,000 or 25,000, whichever is lower, IGST Act, then 50,000. I hope everyone is clear. Are they asking you from CGST provision, SGST or IGST? Just be careful in the exam. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. 
sir now sir you understood the penalty they are going ahead and further telling whenever you are being detained see here everyone it's tell it's telling over here not with sending anything where any person transporting any goods or stores stores can you see over here stores any goods while they are in transit in contravention of the provision of the act or rules might be there is a transporter who is transporting or while transporting he has stored it then all such goods and conveyance conveyance also gone used as a transportation for carrying out the goods and documents relating to such goods and conveyance shall be all goods and documents relating to such goods and uh, conveyance shall be liable for detention and after detention or seizure shall be released means without proper document if you are taking the goods and going they will be detained and seized now if you want to release you will have to go ahead and pay what i already told you if owner comes forward if owner does not come forward can i go ahead everyone next now now see earlier this was the case but you don't have to remember what was there earlier but i told you already what was there earlier was tax plus penalty 100% now they have clubbed it and made it 200% chapter only over what will you go ahead and challenge now can i go ahead everyone next sir upon furnishing of security if you don't have the money you can give bond and bank guarantee that is also being told okay next now no such goods shall be detained without serving an order of detention can you see over here one order of detention or seizure on the person transporting you have to go ahead, go ahead and give what order of detention that sir we are going ahead and detaining that detention order has to be given then sir uh, the proper officer very very important the proper officer detaining or seizing the goods or conveyance conveyance means the truck which was used they will detain the truck also shall be shall issue a notice within how many days can we go ahead and do it like this everyone truck you were taking the goods and going tax invoice plus eway bill was required you did not take the eway bill or might be there was a mismatch you are going on the way think everyone on the way what happened officer went ahead and stopped you okay everyone officer so no no he will bill he will go ahead and do what detention and seizure now they are going ahead i am drawing the chart for you okay everyone then now what will happen they are going ahead and telling sir the proper officer detaining and seizing the goods or conveyance shall issue a notice within how many days 7 days of detention or seizure specifying the penalty payable and so he will go ahead and issue what notice so within how many days detention done within this 7 days he will go ahead and issue a show cause notice specifying what specifying the and specifying the penalty baba in show cause notice he will specify penalty anyone any doubt till here penalty you guys already know penalty owner comes forward owner does not come forward you have to make this chart and keep for yourself baba don't draw now do it at home if you do it now i will throw you out of the class you first understand now only started because home may homework is not required baba you see now see now now only have to start everyone here now next thereafter pass an order within how many days Seven days from the date of service of such notice. So once the notice is being served, within again seven days he will go ahead and pass a penalty order. This is known as a penalty ka demand order. No, clear everyone. Next. Then it says for payment of penalty under clause A or B of subsection one. I have already told you owner comes forward. Owner does not come forward. Owner comes forward. Two hundred percent of the tax payable. करेक्ट एग्जेप्टेड गुड्स का केस में टू परसेंट और ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड विच एवर इज लोअर 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 ठीक है एवरीवन हियर ओनर डज नॉट कम फॉरवर्ड देन फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द वैल्यू ऑफ गुड्स और टू हंड्रेड परसेंट विच एवर इज हायर एग्जेप्टेड गुड्स फाइव परसेंट और ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड विच एवर इज लोअर एनी वन एनी डाउट सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अट sir you were taking the goods and going on the way officer stopped you you did not have eway bill or might be any other reason any contravention he went ahead and detected contravention detects contravention then he will go ahead and do what 
the first step number one he detected contravention number two he'll detain and seize now within seven days he will give you a show cause notice show cause notice may he'll specify the penalty then within the next seven days he will give a penalty order so penalty order came what will you do pay pay or else they will go ahead and start confiscation confiscation means ownership also transferred to the department i hope you guys are able to understand this let's go ahead everyone over here now listen penalty order given see proper officer detaining will issue a show cause notice within how many days seven days specifying penalty and then order within how many days seven days that's it same thing told now everyone over here section number 142 do you guys remember section number 142 rule number 142 what is rule number 142 where the person chargeable with tax and interest under section number 73 and 74 we had learned do you remember as the case may be, pays the tax interest penalty within how many days? 30 days of service of show cause notice. There was 30 days, 73 and 74 May. And you can inform the officer and proceedings will be concluded. But here will you be given 30 days ka time? Or where the person concerned makes the payment as of amount referred in section number 129 within how many days? Baba, earlier it was 14 days. Now the amendment is because the order only will be issued within 7 days. You are given only 7 days ka time. So basically what happens? Show cause notice is given. Penalty order will be issued within how many days? 7 days. So within these 7 days, if penalty order is not issued and you make the payment and inform the officer proceedings closed. Are you guys able to understand? So here it says 7 days of the notice under section number 129. But before issuance of demand order, he can inform the officer. So here what you can do before the penalty order here what you can do you can make the uh, pays penalty and inform officer in what drc03 and proceedings will be concluded under drc05 I hope you guys are able to understand DRC 05 will be issued and they will conclude the proceeding. Simple, same thing over here. They are going ahead and telling you have to inform and the proper officer will issue DRC 05 concluding the proceedings under the notice. Are you able to connect this to demand? Demand order may, their demand and recovery chapter may, it was section number 73 and 74 and 73 and 74 they went ahead and gave you 30 days. But here they don't give you 30 days. Here 7 days is there but in 7 days also you can issue demand order. Before he issues it, you pay and inform him. Then he will not go ahead and give you penalty order. Did you guys get it? Sure, everyone. Can I go ahead? Next. Everyone over here. Opportunity of being heard. No penalty order. Under section number 3, without giving opportunity of being heard. I will do one thing. 7 days, I will conclude till here. And before, and here it will be penalty order before the penalty order they should give you opportunity of being heard done everyone can we go ahead the next one this is how we make a chart can we go ahead everyone next sir all the proceedings deemed to be concluded on payment of the amount in respect of the notice on payment of the amount referred to under subsection all proceedings will be deemed to be concluded now you'll have after penalty order has come what are the options that are available let's understand the option take everyone see once the penalty order has come, now here the penalty order is given, what will you do? Either you can go ahead and pay, okay? pay then all proceedings concluded or else what will happen sir? Let us read. Sir, penalty paid, proceedings concluded, that is it you have to learn. Okay? Sir, then where the person transporting any goods or the owner of such goods fails to pay the amount of penalty within how many days? 15 days. So, sir, you have to pay within how many days? 15 days. Generally, it is how many months? 3 months. Demand order may it is 3 months, but here it is how many days? 15 days. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. Where the owner transporting any goods or the owner of... Uh, Goods fails to pay the amount of penalty within how many days? 15 days from the receipt of the copy of the order. So, sir, penalty order is given. Correct? You have to make the payment within how many days? 
if you make the payment within 15 days very good 15 days correct once i will go ahead and do it like this sir if penalty order is given you are given 15 days right 15 days may you can go ahead and pay okay if you pay then what will happen proceedings concluded are we clear everyone i go ahead next the go if you don't pay the goods or conveyance so detained or sealed shall be liable to be sold or disposed of in such manner and within such time as may be prescribed to recover the penalty payable under subsection 3. So now what will happen? If you don't pay within 15 days, then post 15 days, they will go ahead and start what? Confiscation proceedings. Basically, they will go ahead and sell the goods. If not paid within 15 days of the receipt of order, goods or conveyance to be sold through auction to recover the penalty. Are we clear everyone? See, penalty provided that conveyance shall be released. The person who is the conveyance ka owner. See, goods ke liye, they will go ahead and charge you what? Tax payable. Tax payable ka 200%. But for the conveyance? Are you guys able to understand? To release the goods, they are going ahead and charging you how much? For goods. What about the conveyance? Might be, I am the owner of the goods. My truck only. I am the owner of the goods truck is yours you have to pay a penalty or not because your truck was used they are telling on payment by the transporter of penalty under subsection 3 means whatever the penalty on the goods is there same amount of penalty is over here also see subsection 3 says what the proper officer or detainee issues a notice within seven days specifying the penalty payable and thereafter issue an order and the penalty is told under subsection 1 the same amount of penalty the truck owner also has to go ahead and pay basically tax payable ka 200 percent or 100 lakhs whichever is less everyone can we go ahead and still modify this right everyone here the truck that it's telling what conveyance ke liye how much is the penalty penalty is penalty this one penalty which is the above one or 1 lakh whichever is higher lower lower done so for the truck also i told you penalty then then it says provided further that where where detention or seizure are perishable nature and are likely to depreciate the set period of 15 days may be reduced correct or not perishable goods the set period of 15 days will be reduce can i go ahead everyone next sir now everyone over here listen to me very carefully recovery of penalty by sale of goods or conveyance detained or seized in transit now this rule has been introduced where they are going ahead and talking about how your truck will be sold how your goods will be sold if you don't make the payment within 15 days see over here what they are going ahead and telling where the person transporting any goods or the owner fails to pay the amount of penalty within how many days so basically both of you have to pay the penalty no for the goods this penalty is there for the conveyance the penalty is there if you pay then proceeding concluded sir if within 15 days you fail to pay then what will happen now again this chart will be further extended Sir, what are you telling yes baba see can we go ahead everyone if you fail to pay then further what will happen now sir i've gone ahead and told proviso conveyance will be released on payment of one lakh or penalty whichever is less and period will be less than 14 days if the less than 15 days okay everyone less than 15 days If goods are perishable, hazardous or likely to depreciate with time. Why sir you have written for 14? Actually earlier there was a 14 days ka time also which is now being deleted. 14 days ka time was there for going ahead and uh, that uh, 14 days may you can go ahead and pay the amount of Shoko's notice. But now it is 7 days only. So this 15 has to come over here. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Everyone over here. Till here I have gone ahead and taught you confiscation. Everyone listen to me very carefully. What did I tell you? If you are going on the way, first they will go ahead and detain. And he detects a contravention, then he will go ahead and tell you 
that there is a contravention he will detain and he will seize the goods once he goes ahead and does that within detention ka 7 days he has to go ahead and give you a show cause notice where he will tell you the penalty if owner comes forward then the penalty is how much 200% it is exempted goods 2% or 25000 whichever is lower if it is owner does not come forward 50% of the value of the goods or 200% uh, percent whichever is higher 5% or 25000 whichever is lower similar amount payable by the conveyance for conveyance ka release also or 1 lakh whichever is lower clear everyone for both of them he will go ahead and give a show cause notice and then within 7 days they will go ahead give uh, they, within 7 days first they will give opportunity of being heard and then give a penalty order can I go ahead everyone? Now, everyone listen to me very carefully. Penalty order ka 15 days mein either you pay it or they are going ahead and telling if you fail to pay then over here everyone this is the section which has been introduced. It says recovery of penalty by way of sale of goods or conveyance detained or seized in transit. When the person transporting any goods or the owner fails to pay the amount of the penalty within how many days? 15 days from the date of receipt. So, you have to go ahead and see penalty order ka receipt date say. From that 15 days. I hope you guys are able to understand. I will go ahead and tell it like this. Might be supposing everyone over here. This is penalty order issued. Issue penalty order. Might be then it was received by this owner. Receipt of the order. From the receipt of order you have to pay within. 15 days or from the receipt of order if you don't make the payment within 15 days not paid then once 15 days starts what will they do they are going ahead and telling of the copy of the order under section number 129 the proper officer shall proceed to sell now what will he do within 15 days you did not pay now he a proper officer PO will proceed to sell sell the goods and also the conveyance can i go ahead everyone see over here what they are telling conveyance so detained by preparing inventory and estimating the market price of the goods or goods or conveyance so what will he do over here he will estimate the market price of the goods or conveyance sir how will he go ahead and sell by preparing an inventory saying these are the goods these are the goods i have gone ahead and uh, sir, these are the goods which I have gone ahead and seized and this is the conveyance. Basically, he will go ahead and prepare an inventory. Prepare an inventory and do what? And estimate market price of what? Of goods and con Are you guys able to imagine what is happening now? You are being stopped, given an option to pay the tax. If you go ahead and pay the tax and the tax to, no, 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 penalty. If you go ahead and pay the penalty, he will go ahead and release the goods. If you don't pay the, see, because what happens, truck, etc., my goods are there. Holding it for three months and all is not possible. Truck is standing on the road. Seven days ka time is maximum. Seven days may notice, seven days may order. If within, the, then again 15 days. Are we clear? One month is gone. More than that, they will not go ahead and wait. They will go ahead and now sell off. So, they are going ahead and telling, prepare an inventory of the, prepare an inventory and estimate the market price of the goods and conveyance. Are we clear till here? Are we clear till here everyone? Now, everyone over here. Provided that where the detained goods are perishable or likely to depreciate, the period of 15 days may be reduced by the proper officer. Proper officer rented and detained mangoes. 15 days will be, wait, mangoes will become seed. So, they are going and telling in that scenario 15 days is not required. Then, the said goods or conveyance shall be sold through a process of auction or including e-auction. Now, what will happen? He will prepare an inventory. Now, what will happen? Sir, auction will happen or e-auction, online auction will happen. Then, for which notice will be given issued in DRC 10 clearly indicating the goods or conveyance to be sold and the purpose of sale. So, first officer will go ahead and issue what? DRC 10 saying that I am going ahead and selling the goods and this is the purpose. Basically, I am going ahead and selling the goods for recovering my penalty. Then, provided that where the person transporting the goods or the owner 
pays the amount of penalty including any expense incurred in safe custody and handling basically transportation keeping your goods he would have incurred some expenses after the time period mentioned under sub rule 1 basically after 15 days before issuance of the notice means which notice the said goods and conveyance will be sold after an with the process of auction for which a notice will be issued in drc 10 indicating clearly the conveyance and goods will be sold and purpose of sale officer will go ahead and issue this notice even they are going ahead and telling provided exempt exception is there where the person transporting the goods or owner pays the amount of penalty including any expenses incurred in safe custody and handling after the time period means after 15 days are we clear but before issuance of notice see when he wants to do an e-auction he will go ahead and issue a notice in drc 10 saying that sir i am going to sell your goods even before that if you go ahead and pay what pay penalty and other expenses correct everyone if you go ahead and pay the penalty and other expenses then what will you do they are telling over here the proper officer shall cancel the process of auction and release the goods means pay penalty and other expenses he will go ahead and cancel the auction and release the goods i hope you guys are able to understand till here can we go ahead so first of all you are going on the way you did not have proper document you were being detained he will go ahead and tell you sir you are being detained and now he will go ahead and tell you sir we are going to detain and seize the goods when after detention within seven days he will give you a show cause notice where he will tell you the penalty amount show cause notice will be given to you also and the transporter also can i go ahead everyone now after this you are given seven days to make the payment if you make the payment very good uh no 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 one minute seven days may order will be given sir penalty order will be given once the penalty order is given then within the date of receipt within from the date of receipt you have to go ahead and make the payment within 15 days if you make the payment within 15 days very good if you don't make the payment within 15 days he will go ahead and start the process of auction and for going ahead and doing the auction first he will go ahead and issue a notice now after 15 days before issue of the notice if you make the payment of the tax then also he will go ahead and release the goods and the conveyance and he will go ahead and cancel the auction but otherwise notice is already given for the auction then baba now the auction will happen the last day now people will go ahead and submit their bid baba these are all okay now you can know the last day for submission of the bid or the date of auction shall not be earlier than 15 days from the date of issue of the notice so from here when the notice is issued sir what are you going ahead and doing so much small yes baba what to do Sir, what will happen over here? Now, after the auction is given, what will happen? 15 days ka time will be there. After the notice, again, 15 days ka time will be there. To what? To submit bid. To, for people to go ahead and bid, how many days ka time limit is there? 15 days. Whoever is the successful bidder, whoever has gone ahead and uh, successfully bid he will be given another some time to go ahead and make the payment if he makes the payment goods and conveyance will be given to him can we see over here what are they going ahead and telling provided that where the detained or seized goods are perishable or hazardous then the 15 days ka time limit can be reduced always remember perishable and hazardous goods ka case may time limits are not applicable can i go ahead everyone they are telling the last day for submission of bid or the date of auction to submit the bid or auction ke liye to, for the auction to happen how many days 15 days okay the proper officer may specify the pre-bid uh, deposit to be furnished the amount of pre-bid deposit to be furnished in the manner specified to make the bidders eligible to participate they are telling if you want to be eligible you have to submit 1 lakh rupees 50,000 rupees pre-bid amount which may be returned to the unsuccessful person forfeited in case the unsuccessful bidder fails to make the payment of the full amount you are successful but you are not making the amount then whatever was the pre-bid amount gone can i go ahead everyone the proper officer shall issue an order okay then i can go ahead and tell over here bid, bidding was done auction was done successful bidder 
नो 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 इफ ही हाँ ठीक है ठीक है विल डू वन थिंग सक्सेसफुल बिडर फेल्स टू पे देन फॉर फिट प्री बेड अमाउंट फॉर फिट हिज प्री बेड डेपोजिट आर वी क्लियर एवरी वन इफ ई पेज रिफंड नो 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 इफ ई पेज देन गुड्स विल बी गिवेन टू हिम गुड्स एंड कन्वेन्स गिवेन यू विल बी गिवेन द गुड्स एंड द कन्वेन्स एन ऑफिसर विल इश्यू वन डी आर सी ट्वेल्व ऑल्सो आई विल गोट एंड रीड सी डी आर सी इलेवन द प्रॉपर ऑफिसर शेल इश्यू ए नोटिस इन डी आर सी इलेवन रिक्वायरिंग हिम टू मेक द पेमेंट विद इन हाउ मेनी डेज फिफ्टीन डेज अगेन डी आर सी इलेवन में ही विल बी गिवेन वट हुएवर इज सक्सेसफुल वट विल हैपन देन अगेन द पर्सन हु इज सक्सेसफुल ठीक है आई विल गोट एंड कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम हियर सेंग हुएवर इज द सक्सेसफुल बीडर he will be given how many days 15 days to what to pay are we clear everyone sir then here what will happen sir successful bidder who is there he will be given 15 days if 15 days may fails to pay then forfeited if he pays then goods will be goods and see here everyone baba the time limit for hazardous goods and uh, perishable goods will be less on payment of the full amount full bidding amount the proper officer shall transfer the possession and ownership of the goods and conveyance to the successful bidder and issue him a certificate everyone over here if you pay the pay the full amount kids no ipcc Huh? Pay the full amount. Then what will happen? The proper officer shall transfer the position. Now what will happen? PO transfers the position and ownership of goods and conveyances. I hope you guys are able to connect till here. Can we go ahead, everyone? So it says. sir and he will issue a certificate to whom certificate will be given to you that sir you are the owner in drc 12 i hope everyone is clear till here let's go ahead the next one over here is the po shall cancel the process and proceed re auction when no bid is received uh, or is considered non competitive due to lack of in, in adequate participant might be people are not there or bidding amount was very low then he can go ahead and cancel the uh, process also where the appeal has been filed by the person under subsection 1 read with uh, 107 can you tell me everyone i'll connect now appeals and revision also okay everyone you will be amazed now listen do you remember appeals and revision ka chart i have gone ahead and left one small thing sir section number 107 went ahead and told in section number 107 it was told that if 129 ka notice is given to you on 129 ka notice you can order is given penalty order If you want to go for an appeal, generally appeal may you have to pay ten percent of the tax in dispute. But penalty order के लिए if you want to go for an appeal, first of all, can you tell me within how many days you have to go for an appeal? No, 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 no. For them, fifteen days is there to pay, or within fifteen days he will go ahead and start auction. Or once you receive the order, fifteen days you can go for a appeal. And when you go for an appeal. Section number one zero seven pre deposit is twenty five percent of the penalty. Section number one zero seven linked over here. I hope everyone is clear till here. Remember this very very important. Generally, appeal ka time limit is how much? Generally, appeal ka time is three months. But in case of a uh, 129 ka order it is 15 days within 15 days pay or within 15 days he will go for auction auction uh, officer can go for auction and sell your goods he will go ahead and take bidding bidding may people who win but well, very easy it is selling your goods to recover the money that's all or within 15 days you go ahead and appeal if you go ahead and appeal baba everyone appeal is filed you have to give pre deposit 
recovery will be stayed. See over here, proceedings for recovery by sale of goods and confisc and uh, detention and seizure will be stayed. What will happen over here? This basically auction etc. which is there, no? All this recovery will be stayed. I hope you guys are able to connect till here. Can we go ahead everyone? Next. Uh, sir, provided that this rule is not applicable for whom? Perceval. Baba, 15 days to go for an appeal, etc. is not applicable in case of perceval goods. Perceval goods ke liye so much time can't be given. Two days my mangoes are gone. A person will sell, you keep it. You sell it, you do whatever you want. Can we go ahead everyone? Next. I hope you guys are clear till here. Now, once the goods are being disposed of, everyone listen. PO will go ahead and transfer the position and the ownership of the goods to whom? To the person? To To successful bidder. Correct everyone. Now, officer has got lot of money, right? After the goods and conveyance are being sold, correct? Officer has got the money. Now, what will the officer do with the money? That is being told in section number 154. Rule number 154 goes ahead and says, once the officer has gone ahead and sold the goods and the conveyance, the money will come. What will be the use of the money? You tell me. He will first use the money towards whatever was the expense. Secondly, he will go ahead and recover the amount of penalty, etc. which was there. Thirdly, any other due which you can have that he will recover, remaining amount he will return to you. Yes or no? Told by rule number 154. Rule number 154, I had gone ahead and written in demand and recovery ka chapter. Please come to a demand and recovery ka chapter. In demand and recovery, it is there. Everyone here, here. Rule number 54, 154, disposal of proceeds of sale of goods and conveyance and movable means whatever the proceeds, what will they do out of the proceeds? See over here everyone, appropriation of the amount. First they will go ahead and use what? See, whatever is the amount under section number, the amount so realized from sale of goods or movable or immobile. Bhav, movable, immobile property where? Recovery ka case mein. Of recovery of dues from the defaulter or recovery of penalty payable under section number 129. Offenses and penalty demand and recovery chapter may also when movable immovable property is sold, how will they go ahead and use that amount? Baba. Or under 129, penalty offenses and penalties meant that penalty penalty ka recovery is done. What will they do with the money? First, first used against administrative cost of the recovery process. Sir, appropriation. Yes or no, everyone? They are going ahead and doing what? Appropriation of amount. Appropriation. So how will they use it? Number one, administrative cost. Secondly, everyone, the number two, see over here. Next, be apportioned against the amount to be recovered or the payment of penalty payable. Are we clear? Secondly, you... Uh, used towards penalty or amount to be recovered. Thirdly, if you have any other amount payable to the department, see over here everyone, next be appropriated against any amount due from the defaulter. Thirdly, appropriate against any other amount due. Fourthly, they are going ahead and telling the balance will be created to e cash ledger of the owner of the goods or conveyance as the case may be in case he is registered and where the said person is not registered, the amount shall be created to the bank account. They are telling fourthly, balance will be put in his e cash ledger or unregistered person ka case mein bank account that's it everyone got it can i go ahead yes sir tell me one thing now sir supposingly unregistered person bank account could not be traced only who is the unregistered person then they are telling we'll put in consumer welfare fund consumer welfare fund will show advertisement to the consumer for gst can i go ahead everyone that is being told over here can i go ahead everyone i hope everyone is clear till here i have gone ahead and closed your section number 129 with sir this is section number 129 read with rule number 140 144 and 150 4. Read with section number. This is section number 129 and section number 107 also I have connected here. 
your this one yes everyone i hope you guys are able to connect till here baba people tell me one thing did you understand this process perishable hazardous goods all these 7 days 14 days 15 days all these time limits are not applicable can i go ahead first of all you are going on the way you will be detained detention ke baad first they will go ahead and give you check the document everything is fine then no detention otherwise detention within 7 days notice within 7 days penalty order once the penalty order is issued not from that date receipt ka date say you will have to go ahead and pay within 15 days not paid within 15 days then 15 days may you can go for a appeal appeal may you have to pay 25 percent if you don't go for an appeal then within after 15 days gets over they will go ahead and send you a notice for auction before the auction ka notice only you can make the payment chapter close but if you don't go ahead and make the payment auction will happen auction ke liye they will take free deposit free bid basically and they will go ahead and whoever is successful they will go ahead and give the amount whoever is not successful baba whoever is successful they will take the full amount from them free bid is given full amount you pay if you don't pay the full amount they will forfeit the free bid amount and then re-auction etc will happen sir if you are a person who has gone ahead and paid the pre bid but you have not won in the uh, bid they will refund the amount are we clear everyone successful person will be given 15 days to pay the balance amount if he makes the full payment the goods and the conveyance will be released and he will be given one certificate you are the owner from today now whatever the amount is received they will go ahead and use towards first administrative cost bidding expenses etc then penalty get towards thirdly they will go any other amount and then the remaining amount will be put in the e-cash ledger or bank reading the law did it make you more clear if I would have drawn this at home and come for you, you would not have enjoyed the reading of law and going ahead and doing it. But reading of law is a very tedious process. So we do, can't go ahead and read everything in the class. You saw we took approximately one hour to go ahead and understand this small process. Sir, if you would have drawn and come, we would have saved our 45 minutes. Yes, Baba, that is what we go ahead and do. Behind the 100 hours or 120 hours, whatever class we go ahead and take for you, Whatever amount of time we are going ahead and telling. Okay? Always remember one thing. Might be in the class I teach only 90 hours. Right everyone? Now, 90 hours to 100 hours, your course gets over. Remember one thing, that 100 hours ke behind, a teacher has put thousands of hours. The chart, just to draw and explain to you, reading with you, still it is not perfect. But this is more than enough for your exam. To read it, it took, it took how much? 45 minutes. Now, if I draw this chart on a page, actually, it takes us sometimes 7 days, sometimes 14 days. We go ahead and draw it it's absolutely slowly, saying that, okay, fine, this is to be done, that is to be done. But now it is enough. Are we clear, everyone? Now, you just imagine this is only one section of your offenses and penalties. Offenses and penalties, entire chapter is there in your one page. Correct everyone? So it takes a lot of time for us to go ahead and do it. So when you go ahead and see that, okay, it's a chart, uh, one page, but it's not one page. And it is not a one hour class wherein I go ahead and finish one chapter. It is a class which I have actually gone ahead and prepared that chart, which is there for 10 days, 14 days. And that is why you are able to do it in one hour. So it's not actually a chart which you are going in and studying, you are studying entirely everything. I hope you guys are able to connect to it. But yes, law ka reading slowly, slowly, slowly and making your own chart has its own fun. If you do it yourself. But I can't do it in the class. Otherwise, the class will be for thousands of hours. Means one year will get over and we'll still be studying in the class. Can we go ahead everyone? Chalo. I hope this is clear. You will have to go ahead and improvise this at home. Draw it. I'll anyways be going ahead. Sir, you will be able to read it everyone. I'll do one thing. I'll put it over here. Okay. This one which was there. After 15 days, issue of notice was there. Okay. Issue, ke or, issue of order. This one I am putting here. Okay, everyone. And the above part which is there, I'll make it big. Otherwise, you will not be able to read it. Clear? So you have to attach all the three and make your own chart. I hope you guys will incorporate also perishable goods and hazardous goods.
Clear everyone? Can we go ahead? Everyone, let's go ahead. Now, are we done with this? Chalo, please come back everyone. Offenses and penalties done. One minute, huh? Baba, I'll link demand and recovery also. Listen, whenever one notice is being issued, whenever one notice is being issued to the main person and to the co notices basically if main person is me and the transporter owner operator of warehouse who are storing the goods or transporting the goods them also notice is being issued i had gone ahead and told you if main person ko notice is issued all the co notice ka orders which are there under section number 122 if any additional person ko notice is given baba listen i had supplied the goods without invoice now you were also given a notice because you had bought the goods without the invoice if my notice is being if I have made all the payment, proceeding concluded, your proceedings also deemed concluded. Means 122 and 125 ka proceedings concluded. But 129 and 130 ka proceedings not concluded. It means if I am the main notice A and transporter is there, to the transporter 129 may penalty no notice is being issued. That notice is not gone. He will have to make the payment. Do you remember everyone? I had gone ahead and told over here, notice against the main person liable to pay tax and some other person, such proceedings again, main person is concluded, proceedings against all other person liable to pay under 122, 125 are deemed to be concluded, means against the co-notices who are there, main notice, co-notices, co whatever notice is given, that is also concluded, but here there was earlier, 129 and 130 ka proceedings also concluded. Now they are telling 129 and 130 ka proceedings not concluded. Meaning thereby, meaning thereby that whoever is the co notice is those transporter of goods, those people will still be liable to pay the penalty. This also I connected over here. I hope you guys are able to now connect that 129 and 130 ka proceedings against any person that will not be concluded. Main person ka concluded. I paid all my penalty. Transporter also has to pay the penalty for his conveyance. Only then his conveyance will be released. Otherwise, what used to happen? Main person paying the penalty. Transporter used to be, his, his conveyance used to be released because his proceedings also used to be concluded. Now, they amended and they deleted these two words. It means 129 and 130 are proceedings against the co-notices will still continue. I hope you guys are able to connect. This also you can link and keep. I hope you guys got it till here. Sure. I linked section number 129 with section number. Baba, this is something which should give you that rush in your head that wow, we have enjoyed the concept. You have to enjoy a concept. Not get confused about it. I hope it was clear till here. 129 you understood. 107 I linked it. I will go ahead and link that explanation also. Explanation to section number 173 and 74. That explanation which is there. That explanation which is there. Okay. That explanation which is there, which goes ahead and says what? Conveyance ka penalty, those proceedings not concluded. Right, everyone? If main person ka proceedings concluded, these proceedings will con continue. It will not be concluded. Means conveyance ke liye, the transporter who is there, he has to go ahead and pay the penalty i hope everyone is clear if i go ahead and pay the penalty it doesn't mean that conveyance ka penalty not required to be paid that conveyance ke liye the transporter is still liable did you guys connect it everyone sure everyone chalo please come back to your chart do you remember provisional attachment if against me proceedings are going on or initiated what will happen provisionally my property shall be attached you remember that chartered accountant 122-1A? Section number 122-1A, my chartered accountant is there. Who has gone ahead and done the fraud? Correct? His property also will be attached. That is now being introduced in section number 83. When you read provisional attachment at home, remember section number 122 one A may, if you are the person who is covered, basically that chartered accountant or basically that person who was the mastermind, mastermind ka property also will be attached. So, you can write over here and keep that. Why did I, why did I did not teach you when I was teaching you that? Because you have not learned section number 122 till then. So, here attachment, attachment can be done 
of the master mind also i hope you guys will be able to connect to this now master mind basically means what section number 122 1a wala person please read section number 83 with the respective rule at home you will be able to connect this point attachment can also be done of the master mind which is basically under section number 122 1a are we clear with this everyone i connected my demand and recovery i connected my demand and recovery done demand and recovery this also connected this also connected appeals and division may this also connected yes everyone you guys are able to link it yes too much of brain use let's take a quick break and then we'll go ahead and resume we'll resume with section number 130 let's take a break all right people let's go ahead now section number 130 section number 130 talks about confiscation of goods and conveyance and levy of penalty everyone over here where what are the cases when your goods will be confiscated what are the cases when your goods will be confiscated are we clear everyone and then they are going ahead and telling where any person who supplies the goods earlier it was notwithstanding anything told in the act they are told notwithstanding now they have told where means they have given five situation telling this situation your goods will be confiscated they are telling so where any person supplies goods in contravention of the act or rules if you are going ahead and supplying goods in contravention or you does not account for goods on which you are liable to pay tax or you are supplying any goods without registration okay you have to take registration but you are not going ahead and taking registration and not charging tax on that goods contravenes any of the provision to evade tax or you are using any conveyance to transport goods in contravention baba don't link sex, link section number 129 with 130 129 is absolutely when you are going ahead and transporting the goods on the way transit may they had gone ahead and stopped you in transit they went ahead and told you to show the document documents had a problem so they went ahead and told you to, to pay the penalty you did not go ahead and pay the penalty they went ahead and sold off your goods are we clear they went ahead and sold off your goods for what for going ahead and recovering the penalty amount balance was paid back to you so that is section number 129 section number 129 and 130 please don't go ahead and link it are we clear everyone section number 130 is absolutely uh, confiscation proceeding what is confiscation everyone confiscation means taking over the ownership of the goods are we clear everyone so they are going ahead and telling if you are going ahead and supplying or receiving goods in contravention you are supplying or receiving in contravention or you does not account for the goods do you guys remember inspection search either happened in your place and the officer went ahead and found inspection search either happened in your place and the officer went ahead and found that sir some goods are not accounted for they will take and go those goods are confiscated yes everyone now in this scenario they are telling whenever you don't account for the goods or you supply any goods without registration or you contravene any of the provision to evade tax or you use a conveyance to transport goods in contravention they are telling see goods conveyance we can go ahead and confiscate person can't be confiscated they will tell government has become owner of you so person pay they will levy penalty are we clear everyone so it is telling see all goods and conveyance will be liable for confiscation but person will be liable for penalty under section number 122 are we clear you sold the goods you are not accounting for the goods selling the goods without going ahead and uh, paying the tax etc those goods will be confiscated any conveyance used in any contravention don't think about 129 now any conveyance used in any contravention what they are going ahead and telling sir we'll go ahead and confiscate the goods and the conveyance and whatever is the fine as the proper officer thinks fit will be payable by you broad power officer has become hero over here because whatever he thinks he can go ahead and fine you but sir for the goods he can go ahead and charge how much whatever the officer thinks is fine okay but maximum he can go ahead and charge you is how much baba in lieu of confiscation i am telling he will tell okay i will not confiscate will not take over the ownership but first you have to pay fine this is a fine in lieu of confiscation see baba confiscation can happen in five scenario 
and if you don't want your goods conveyance and to be confiscated then you have to pay a fine in lieu of confiscation and that is how much proper officer things paid but it can be maximum market value goods what goods are worth 1 crore goods are worth 1 crore gst is 18 lakh so how much is the market price minus gst 82 82 lakh see baba gst to anyways you have to pay but they are telling fine in lieu of confiscation will not take over the ownership but you will have to pay a fine and this fine you will have to pay on the goods how much market price less gst conveyance ke liye they are telling whatever is the gst you know will not take from you any conveyance which you have gone ahead and used for doing any contravention that conveyance pay will go ahead and levy what gst amount that much is the fine for releasing the conveyance otherwise we'll confiscate once confiscation is done they can go ahead and sell the goods they can go ahead and sell the conveyance also are we clear everyone but section number 129 and 130 are not linked they are telling confiscation is five proceedings five cases may one uh, confiscation can be done basically if you have gone ahead your exam question can be what are the cases when confiscation can be done and if confiscation is done goods kelly you have to pay fine which he thinks fit or maximum will be what market price less gst and sir goods conveyance ke liye gst on the goods that much amount will be payable person will be liable to a penalty under section number 122 which you have already learned and sir what will be the minimum fine maximum is this much minimum will be fine plus penalty baba if you go ahead and see over here in your chapter of offenses and penalties here they have gone ahead and told over here that sir the aggregate of fine and penalty leviable aggregate of fine and penalty what what is the fine everyone this is the fine this is the fine and what is the penalty the penalty on the person the fine for the goods and the penalty for the person they are going ahead and telling it should be how much see they are telling Where confiscation on any goods is authorized, the proper officer shall give the owner to pay a fine, such fine as the officer thinks fit. Sir, such fine levyable shall not exceed the market price of the goods less the GST chargeable. Sir, provided that the aggregate of fine plus penalty which is levied on the person shall not be less than the penalty equal to 100% of the tax payable. But what I am telling is minimum should be how much? 100% of the tax payable. Our penalty can be as the officer thinks fit. Are we clear? What they are telling is, sir, this fine and penalty. So, fine can be as the officer thinks fit. Yes. And this penalty which is there, which is levied on the person, they are telling it should be. Penalty ka, penalty is what? How much? 100% of the tax payable on such goods. At least it, it should be more. What are they telling over here? See, it shall not be less than the penalty equal to 100% of the tax payable on such goods. Whatever is the 100% tax payable on such goods, this minimum fine plus penalty should not be less. It should be little more only. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Other things are same only. So, I will teach you directly from here. Confiscation of order of goods, conveyance and penalty shall be issued after giving opportunity of being heard and not note, note confiscated confiscated goods and conveyance will be disposed of after giving how much time three months to go ahead and pay the fine if you go ahead and pay the fine in lieu of confiscation then they will go ahead and release otherwise after three months they will start the process of selling it off can i go ahead everyone officer came to a premises he went ahead and saw some goods are some goods are not accounted for do you remember inspection search season baba inspection search season may you remember over here, he came to a premises and he saw that goods are liable for confiscation because they are not accounted. He will take along with him and he will issue a confiscation ka proceedings, he will start. Correct? Now, when he starts the confiscation ka proceeding, if you tell him, sir, please release my goods, he will tell, okay, for the goods, you have to pay at least market price minus GST and conveyance ke liye, you have to go ahead and pay how much? GST whatever is the payable and for the uh, person he will go ahead and levy a penalty if you go ahead and pay those amount he will go ahead and not confiscate the goods and how many how much time is given for confiscation 
three months. Within three months, if you pay, very good. Otherwise, they will go ahead and start selling the goods, etc. I hope everyone is clear. Please come back. Remember always, section number 129 deals with what? Caesar detention. And after detention and seizure, they will release the goods. If you go ahead and pay the fine. Can we go ahead? If you don't pay the fine, they will sell it off. So, there is no confiscation which they are talking about. But here they are talking about five cases when the goods can be confiscated, conveyance can be confiscated, person can't be confiscated, he will be penalized. I hope everyone is clear. Maximum fine and minimum fine, please remember. Maximum fine and minimum fine. Minimum fine should be how much? The tax, the penalty on that goods and conveyance. Whatever is the penalty? Basically, penalty is how much? 100% of the tax payable. So, this fine... Fine plus penalty should be more than the tax payable on the goods. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Please come to section number 132. Section number 132. Just give me a minute everyone. Give me a minute. Okay everyone. Can we go ahead? I just went ahead and uh, okay. People who are watching it recorded. I had gone ahead and checked whether what is written over here is correct or not. The law also goes ahead and tells the same thing. The law goes ahead and says... Provided that the, what is it, the aggregate of such fine, can you see the third line over here, the aggregate of fine and penalty shall not be less than how much, penalty equal to 100% of the tax payable, whatever is the tax payable, minimum fine plus penalty, minimum fine plus penalty should be always more than or at least, at least, it said it shall, uh, it shall not be less than. It, it should be equal to or more than. Can I go ahead? At least the tax payable should be recovered from the person. Can I go ahead everyone? Please come back. Everyone over here. Section number 132 goes ahead and says we will send you to jail. Everyone listen to me very carefully. Penalty is just taking money and leaving you. Penalty. Now they will send you to jail also. And they will go ahead and tell you. Sir, now jail wala clothes also will give you. Penalty for certain offenses what are the cases when you will be sent to jail whoever commits or causes to commit chartered accountant baba i am only telling for example okay everyone done chartered accountants are very good i am also a chartered accountant we are very very good people everyone here now whoever commits or causes to commit and retain the benefit arising out of a any of the following supply without invoice with an intention to evade tax Sir, Baba people, there is nothing for me to explain in all this. Because all these offenses, what I told you over here, no? All these offenses, will get penalty is also there. But if the offense is more, jail also is there. Can we go ahead, everyone? Yes. Supplies without invoice, invoice without supply, avails ITC with on the basis of bogus invoice or fraudulently without invoice only you are taking or collects an amount but fails to the pay to the government greater than three months. These four offenses plus amount greater than two crore, Arrest. Clear? But then, again, eight more offenses are there. You evade tax or fraudulently obtain refund. Are we clear? Plus, offense is not covered under A to D. Then you will be covered under E. Sir, falsifies or substitute financial records. Produces fake accounts. Document. Falsifies or furnishes what? False. Furnishes false information to evade tax or obstructs or prevents officer from discharging duty, you will be sent to jail. Remember, sir, acquires possession of concern himself with TTRC, sir, what do you think this is? T-R-C-K-P-D-D-S. Everyone, transportation, receiving, all these things are there. One minute, I'll show you. See here, here, here. T T T T T. Huh. Transporting, removing, depositing, keeping, concealing, supplying, purchasing or any other manner. Are you guys able to understand? Sir, what is it? Transporting, receiving, then C is what? C is, sir, concealing, then supplying, sir, keeping, keeping purchasing, then D for, D for depositing or any other manner whatsoever. If you are going ahead and dealing with the goods, please go ahead and remember this. If you want to remember, transporting, removing, Deposting, keeping, concealing, supplying, purchasing or any other manner deals with the goods which have reason to believe are liable to confiscate. Are we clear? If you are going ahead and transporting the goods, concealing the goods, supplying the goods, keeping the goods, depositing the goods, whatever they have told, they have told all the lines. 
ठीक है विथ गुड्स लाइबल फॉर कॉन्फिस्केशन वेन आर द गुड्स लाइबल फॉर कॉन्फिस्केशन आई ऑलरे टोल्ड यू देन रिसीव और कंसर्न विद सप्लाई ऑफ और डील्स विद गुड्स और सर्विस ही नोज और हेज रीजन टू बिलीव अर इन कॉन्ट्रावेंशन और टेम्पर्स विद और डिस्ट्रॉय मेटेरियल एविडेंसेस और फेल्स टू सप्लाई एनी इंफॉर्मेशन विच हैज बीन आग और यू सप्लाइड वॉट फॉल्स इंफॉर्मेशन attempts to commit or abate the commissioning of a to k baba a to commit a k me whatever offenses are there you did not do it but you attempted it or somebody else if you are going in and helping someone then also you will be sent to jail they are going ahead and telling if amount is greater than 1 crore up to 2 crore then 1 year ka jail up to 1 year plus fine how much plus fine to are 122 penalty will be there first jail also you will go Plus fine also will be there. Minimum jail is how much? Six months. Minimum jail six months. Then, sir, greater than two crore, up to five crore, up to three year. Minimum jail how much? Six months. Plus fine, so you have to pay. Fine means the penalty under section number one twenty two. Sir, greater than five crore, up to five year. One crore, one year. Greater than two crore, up to three five crore. Average is what? Three three years. Sir, five crore, five years. Minimum jail in any case is how much? Six months. Are we clear? Plus fine, so you have to pay, sir. If I go ahead and do commit or abate the committing commission of offence under F G J, can you tell me F? Falsifying or substituting financial record, sir. G means obstruct the officer, and J means what, sir? Tempers or destroys evidences. They are going ahead and telling tempering and destroying evidences. Money will not be. You will not be able to know how much is the amount. Correct or not, sir? You obstructed the officer. What is the amount involved? so in that scenario they are going see you falsify the financial record or you obstruct the officer or c f g f g and j they in this three scenario they are telling up to 6 months or fine or both you have to go to jail how much up to 6 months might be 2 months 3 months they will send you to jail or fine or both can i go ahead everyone sir if i go ahead and do all these offenses subsequently subsequent offenders are habitual offenders is correct or not you are doing again and again again and again may they will not see amount and all they will go ahead and tell you are doing it again how dare you do it again this time to jail uh, any amount jail up to 5 year plus fine and minimum is how much 6 months always remember minimum jail has to be 6 months unless the magistrate who is going ahead and deciding is convinced that there is sufficient cause that we should not be sending him to jail can i go ahead everyone one thing can i tell if the amount involved is greater than 5 crore rupees always remember it is cognizable and non bailable offence severe offence you will be presented before the magistrate within 24 hours if the amount involved is less than 5 crore rupees or up to 5 crore rupees then it is non cognizable and bailable not a severe offence you will the acdc who is arresting you will go ahead and decide whether to they will go ahead and tell you the bail amount you pay the bail or else you will be sent to the magistrate who will decide you to send you to jail are you clear everyone remember that thing over here that thing is written in this section also which i told you along with arrest only that can please come back section number 132 done 133 liability of officers and certain other person you filed your return in my return i went ahead and disclosed 500 crore ka sale you know that no no officer went ahead and told you my personal information is officer is going ahead and disclosing to anyone officer also will be penalized are we clear everyone i am filing my return that is my personal information you can't go ahead and disclose to anyone if officer goes ahead and discloses officers will also be penalized it says will fully discloses any information or content of a return jail up to 6 months fine up to 25000 or both sir whoever who is this officer who is engaged in collection of statistics whoever is engaged in compilation computerization having access to information return engaged or agent of a common portal if these people are going ahead and disclosing your information they will also be sent to jail up to 6 months or fine or up to 25000 or both can i go ahead everyone listen sir i went ahead and supplied goods without invoice ठीक है सप्लाइड गुड्स विदाउट इन वॉइस एंड आई एम कॉट दे आर टेलिंग रमेश सर विल सेंड यू टू जेल सर रेपुटेशन विल गो करेक्ट प्लीज डोंट सेंड मी टू जेल सो दे वेंट देयर कम्स सेक्शन नंबर 138 बाबा मानी यू कैन पे एंड यू विल बी रिलीज्ड आर वी क्लियर एवरीवन 
So whenever one person is about to be sent to jail, now he will say, sir, please, how much ever money you want, I'll pay. Government is very happy telling, sending you to jail. You will eat also for free, stay also for free. Better than that, you pay the money and you stay wherever you want. Are we clear, everyone? So it says, compounding of offenses. What do you mean by compounding, everyone? Pay the money and honey, you don't go to jail. It says minimum amount and maximum amount. Minimum amount and maximum amount. Always remember one thing. Whenever, whenever you are being caught, the officer who is going ahead and arresting you, the officer who is going ahead and arresting you, basically not arresting, the officer who is going ahead and doing your adjudication, he will only go ahead and tell, sir, commissioner basically, commissioner who is there, he will go ahead and sanction your prosecution. He will only go ahead and tell, this is the compounding fees you want to pay, please pay the compounding fees, we will release you will not send you to the jail. Okay? Now, compounding fees is minimum also and maximum also. Minimum is how much? 10,000 or 50% of the tax involved. This is under CGST. Same amount under SGST. Multiplied by 3. 30,000 or 150% is the maximum amount. If officer is going ahead and deciding in between, then it is okay. Minimum is how much? 10,000 or 50% of the tax involved, whichever is higher. And sir, maximum is 30,000 or 150% of the tax involved, whichever is higher. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Always remember, officer has to decide the compounding phase in between this. If you pay the compounding phase, they will not send you to jail. Otherwise, commissioner will sanction your prosecution and you will be taken to the jail. No compounding if you have already allowed compounding with respect to offense under 122A to F and aids or abates commissioning of A to F. Baba, A to F means here. A, B, C, D, E, F. Can you guys see over here? If this offenses you have done and you have already been compounded once or you have helped someone in doing these offenses, you will be sent to jail. Baba, I have told no attempts to aid or commit. Aid or uh, commit or abate the commissioning of A to K, then also you are sent to jail. Sir, A to F ka offense you did or you helped someone in doing, then also you will be sent to jail. In that scenario, they are telling, we will not send you to jail if you do the compounding. You did the compounding once. Again, you came, sir, compounding this time again. They are telling, second time compounding is not there, you will be sent to jail. When is compounding not allowed? Compounding is not allowed if A to F offense, you have already gone ahead and compounded once. Any offenses other than A means other than this. When are you sent to jail? When are you sent to jail? G, H, I, J, K, L may, L means aids or commits, aids or abates, G, H, I, J, K ke liye if you are helping someone. All these other offenses ke liye they are telling. Any offense other than A, means A to F wala offense, if you leave them, in respect of supplies greater than 1 crore, if already allowed compounding earlier. If you are already allowed compounding earlier, second time compounding will not be allowed. If the amount is greater than, value is let, greater than 1 crore. Can I go ahead everyone? In respect of supplies greater than 1 crore. I hope you guys understood this. Everyone, please come to 138. See over here. They are telling a person who has been allowed to compound in respect of any offense other than A, under this A Act or provision of the Act or IGST Act, in respect of value exceeding 1 crore. What are they going ahead and telling? A person who has been allowed to compound once in respect of an offense, in respect of what? Supplies of value exceeding 1 crore. They are going ahead and telling a person who has been allowed to compound once in respect of any offense other than clause A, means other than A to F, under this act or the GST act, in respect of what? Supplies exceeding 1 crore. If you are given compounding in all other cases for what supplies exceeding 1 crore, second time again you will not be given compounding. Are we clear everyone? Can we go ahead next? Sir, then they are telling accused of committing an offense under this act which is also an offense under other law. Mind you have gone ahead and committed an offense under GST which is also an offense under any other law. They are going ahead and telling GST mein to will send, will not, will tell you not sending to jail. Other act may you will be sent to jail. Are you guys able to understand? And hence they are going ahead and telling we will not do the compounding because once here we do the compounding then you will not be sent to jail. But other law may you have also done the offense and hence you will be sent to jail. So it will be contradicting and hence they will not give you compounding. If you have done an offense which is also an offense under any other law. Then, sir, person convicted by court, court told, this person should go to jail. 
commissioner is telling give money honey will leave you no not allowed are you guys able to understand convicted by the court already now baba you are going ahead and insulting the court by taking money and leaving him he will tell the court sir i will go to the commissioner give money and be released well, not allowed are we clear once convicted by the court just ka insult you can't go ahead and do by saying that sir now i am convicted so what i'll give money and release no person accused in 132 1 gjk what is g everyone g means obstructing obstructing the officer j means j means tampering evidences k means you fail to go ahead and supply information in this scenario they are going ahead and telling beta compounding and all not allowed if you are going ahead and obstructing officer and all then so we'll send you to jail 3 days 6 days 1 week they will put you in jail give you the jail ka food so that next time onwards you will not go ahead and do the same thing i hope everyone is clear listen to me very carefully offenses and penalties i have gone ahead and taught you in detail in my opinion this is an a graded chapter for your exam okay everyone they can go ahead and ask you 122 related 2 to 3 mark a question but the a graded topic for this section is section number 26 126 129 and 130 related one question they can go ahead and ask you b graded this is a everyone okay a a a graded section b graded sections are 122 and 132 is also b graded and compounding of offense is also b graded other than this all the sections in this chapter are c graded sections sections i am telling but you have to read your textbook patiently you have to solve question answers and you will be able to do the question answers easily in the exam right everyone i will go ahead and conclude all my discussion on the chapter of offenses and penalties over here congratulations people i have gone ahead and told you also what are the amendments i have gone ahead and linked your other chapters to the amendment also right everyone i'll close all my discussions on offenses and penalties everyone congratulations all right students let's go ahead and now revise the next chapter the next chapter is place of supply everyone let's take a quick linking we started learning gst with goods or service goods or service has to be supplied supply can be interstate or intrastate interstate supply section number 7 of the igst act intrastate section number 8 section number 9 told about territorial waters of india now you have section number 10 11 12 13 of the igst act which goes ahead and basically talks about place of supply section number 10 and 11 talks about place of supply with respect to goods place of supply with respect to service is told by section number 12 and 13 always remember one thing you always have to go ahead and see location of supplier and place of supply if they are within the same state or same unit territory then it is always intrastate different state different ut one state one ut it is always interstate supply right everyone so let's go ahead and now learn how to calculate place of supply place of supply section number 10 section number 11 section number 10 has section number 10 1a b c d e and section number 10 2 section number 10 2 goes ahead and talks about place of supply of goods where it can where place of supply cannot be determined it will be determined in the manner to be prescribed nothing prescribed so we'll learn section number 10 1a which goes ahead and says whenever supply involves movement movement can be by supplier movement can be by recipient or movement can be by any other person whenever there is a movement wherever the movement terminates for delivery of the goods to the recipient that will be the place of supply section number 10 1 b goes ahead and talks about bill to ship to model always remember one thing in case of bill to ship to model the principal place of business of the third party is the place of supply section number 10 1 c goes ahead and talks about whenever there is no movement where there whenever there is no movement then it is always the location of the goods at the time of delivery at the time of delivery what whatever is the location of the goods that is the place of supply in case goods are assembled or installed at site always remember section number 10 1d goes ahead and says the place of supply will be place of installation or assembly section number 10 1e goes ahead and talks whenever goods are supplied on board might be an aircraft might be a bus anything on board a conveyance it will always be place of supply will be where they are taken on board section number 10 1 done 10 1 told about movement where the movement terminates then one b went ahead and told about bill to ship to principal place of business of third party then one c supply movement is not there location of the goods at the time of delivery the installation or assembly place of installation or assembly then one e went ahead and told about services supplied on board where the goods are taken on board right everyone then we have section number 11 section number 11 one section number 11 
इलेवन ए गुड्स इंपोर्टेड इज प्लेस ऑफ इंपोर्टर बिकम्स द प्लेस ऑफ supply and in case of export it is the location outside india which is the place of supply then we have section number 12 which goes ahead and talks about place of supply in case of services now section number 12 is only applicable section number 12 one goes ahead and says section number 12 is applicable whenever location of supply and location of recipient both are in india section number 12 2 which is basically the general rule or the residual rule which goes ahead and says whenever you are not following in any specific rule in between section number 12 3 to 12 14 12 3 to 12 14 then section number 12 2 is applicable which is the general rule which goes ahead and says registered person ko if you are supplying it is the location of the registered person if you are supplying to unregistered person then address on record address on record you don't have then please take location of supplier then we have section number 12 3 which goes ahead and talks about services in relation to immovable property then sir it is indirectly in relation to immovable property or lodging accommodation service or it is function at an immovable property or any service which is ancillary to all these three then always remember one thing it will always be location or intended location of the property boat or vessel immobile property if it is located or intended to be located outside india always remember because both are in india supply and recipient location of recipient becomes the place of supply always remember one thing if you have gone ahead and provided a service with respect to an immobile property and immobile property is located in multiple states then the place of supply will be in multiple state supply of service may shall be treated to be made in every state or duty in the proportion of value of service collected separately if you have collected separately value of supply will be separately with respect to every state if you have not collected separately then it will be determined in terms of contract otherwise please apply rule number 4 rule number 4 goes ahead and says the value of supply see place of supply is in multiple state so value has to be apportioned how will you go ahead and do the apportionment on the basis of a and d a for area n for on the basis of number of nights and d for declaration by the service provider you remember rule number 4 talks about a and d area nights and declaration by the service provider then we have section number 12 4 which goes ahead and talks about performance based service baba performance based service all performance based service is not covered by section number 12 4 only rcb paid pathetically is covered r means restaurant and catering services c for cosmetic and plastic surgery b for beauty treatment f for fitness service p for personal personal sir personal grooming and h for health services rcb failed pathetically ka case mein place of supply is always the place of performance remember poop place of performance then always it is section number 12 5 baba rcb failed pathetically i love rcb theek hai it is only for classroom purpose then section number 12 5 goes ahead and talks about training and performance appraisal training and performance appraisal ka case mein it is provided to training and performance appraisal service provided to registered person location of registered person otherwise place of performance section number 12 6 goes ahead and talks about services in relation to admission to an event or park and any ancillary services always the place of the event or the park becomes the place of supply section number 12 7 goes ahead and talks about organizing of event and any ancillary services with respect to that organizing of event always if it is provided to registered person location of registered person if it is provided to unregistered person place of event sir if any service is provided to a registered person whether in india organizing of event organizing of event outside india always location of registered person Look, provided to unregistered person then it is the place of event if you have gone ahead and provided the service to an unregistered person and the event is outside india then also it is always the location of recipient sir if the event is being organized for an unregistered person and the event is happening in multiple state you enter and organize the marriage of a person in multiple state place of supply in multiple state value apportionment if you have collected separately then separate separate value if you have not collected separately then as per the contract if contract is not telling anything please apply gap but remember one thing always remember organizing of event and ancillary services for registered person it is always location of registered person and registered person place of event event outside india location of recipient otherwise apply 
gap generally accepted accounting principal goods transportation transportation of goods including mail and courier ka case mein always registered person location of registered person and registered person wherever it is handed over pick up location becomes the place of supply now transportation of goods may one case is there over here proviso goes ahead and says if the transportation is happening outside india transportation of goods is happening outside india the place of supply supplies in india recipient also is in india but transportation is outside india here it's a exception kind of a thing where they have gone ahead and told place of supply is the destination of the goods then we have passenger transportation always remember location of registered person place of supply sir if it is unregistered person then place of embarkation wherever the unregistered person jumps in for a continuous journey what do you mean by continuous journey a continuous journey means where there is no stop over there should not be any stop over then right to passage what do you mean by right to passage metro cards are basically all these are right to passage where you can get in any any station say and get out from any station these are basically right to passage and right to passage may always general rule is applicable which is location of recipient of service if that is not their location of supplier of sir what is general rule location of registered person if that is not their address on record that is not their location of supplier right everyone always remember if you are going somewhere and coming from somewhere return journey going and coming both are separate separate journey separate separate place of supply then we have section number 12 10 which goes ahead and talks about on board services always remember one thing in case of on board services which are provided in a conveyance it is always the first scheduled departure point of the conveyance section number 12 11 goes ahead and talks about telecommunication service if services are provided by fixed line circuit disk etc the location of the fixed line circuit disk etc will become the place of supply if it is provided through postpaid postpaid mobile ke through all these telecommunication services are provided billing address is the place of supply if prepaid mobile or internet services are basically provided in that case if it is provided through reseller or agent company goes ahead and supplies it to the reseller reseller goes ahead and supplies it further company supplying it to the reseller that case may place of supply is the reseller ka a or the agent ka address company go going ahead and selling it to the final consumer or reseller selling it to the final consumer in that scenario the place of supply is what where the prepayment is received or the voucher is sold in in if prepaid services are provided through internet then it is always address on record sir any other service which is there always take address on record address on record is not there then please take location of supplier now if supposingly sir circuit ka connection is provided in between two location sir how will the value apportionment be done they went ahead and told uh, place of supply will be in both the state in the proportion to the value which is collected separately or in terms of contract or you have to apply rule number 6 which goes ahead and talks about in the proportion to in proportion to the number of points lying in state or ut supposingly bsnl has gone ahead and given a connection for a circuit which is installed in two states karnataka and delhi then sir two points are there two point mean one is to one ka ratio mein value shall be apportioned sir if supposingly karnataka mein two point is there delhi mein one point is there then two is to one ka ratio mein it has to be apportioned can we go ahead everyone the next one is section number 12 12 which goes and talks about financial and stock broking service always address on record has to be taken address on record is not there then financial and stock broking service may always it is location of supplier of service insurance service ka case may always location of recipient if it is provided to registered person location of the registered person basically the recipient if it is provided to unregistered person address on record the next one over here is section number 12 14 which goes ahead and talks about advertisement service if advertisement services are provided to central government state government basic or any local authority or statute body which is meant for the state or union territory place of supply will be in every state in the val and the value shall be apportioned in the proportion to amount attributable to service provided in respect of state or duty in terms of contract or you have to apply rule number three so basically when they are going in and pro pro when you are providing advertisement service to the government they are going in and telling sir well how to apportion the value if you have collected separate separate amount then separate separate state ka separate separate amount is there are we clear everyone next everyone over here if you have gone ahead and uh, provided advertisement service to the government they are going ahead and telling please apply rule number three if you can't go ahead and distribute the amount then they have gone ahead and told please apply rule number three and rule number three goes ahead and tells about the manner of determination of value attributable to different state or duty in absence of agreement so sir if newspaper and publication may, publication may advertisement is done 
So supposingly I am in newspaper agency, I have gone ahead and done the advertisement for the government, then whatever is the amount payable by the government is the value of supply of service by me. Amount payable, right everyone? So if government have gone ahead and paid me 1 lakh rupees for Delhi and 1 lakh rupees for Mumbai, so sir, value of supply of service by me to the government is 1 lakh rupees with respect to Delhi and 1 lakh with respect to Mumbai and separate separate invoices will be issued by me. Sir, if uh, service advertisement is provided by me in Printed material like pamphlet, t-shirt, etc. Whatever is the amount payable by the government is the is the value of supply. Sir, holdings may if I am going ahead and providing the service. Basically, I am doing advertisement for the government in holdings. Other than those holdings which are placed in train, whatever is the amount payable by the government will become the value of supply. If government went ahead and told me, Ramesh, you have to do the advertisement for me in train, then I will have to go ahead and see whatever is the amount I have gone ahead and charged. Basically, what is the amount payable by the government? I will have to go ahead and bifurcate in the ratio of the railway track which is there. Length of the railway track in each state. So, ratio of the length of the railway track multiplied by the amount payable. Utility bill may if I am doing advertisement for the government, then sir, amount payable. Whatever is the amount payable by the government, that is the value of supply by me to the government. Sir, railway ticket ka case mein, you will have to go ahead and see whatever is the amount payable by the government, you have to bifurcate in the ratio of the number of railway stations in each state, basically where you have gone ahead and provided the service to the government. If government is going ahead and telling you to do the do the advertisement on radio station, then sir, whatever is the amount payable, sir, if television channel may, then you will have to go ahead and take the viewership figure, which are given by the Broadcast Audience Research Council, BARC, Broadcast Audience Research Council, last quarter ka figure, last quarter may last week ka figure has to be taken for the, for the current quarter, if you are going ahead and doing, then sir, last quarter ka last week uh, figures has to be taken sir if the figures have been given for more than one state then you will have to apply the ratio of the population of state or union territory sir if government have given me the money for doing the advertisement in cinema hall whatever is the amount payable that will become the value of supply by me to the government if government have told me to do the services basically advertisement over the internet always remember internet may if you are going ahead and doing advertisement it is deemed to be supplied across india and the value apportionment how it will be done on the base of internet subscriber which is given by the telecom regulatory authority of india trai done everyone sir if government have gone ahead and told me to do advertisement on sms i have gone ahead and told okay sir we'll do it advertisement over the sms if i am going ahead and doing the whatever is the amount paid no 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 not on the basis of amount paid basically it is basically you will have to go ahead and do the apportionment on the base of telecom subscribers which is there and telecom subscribers which are given by the telecom regulatory authority of india for the last quarter has to be taken i hope everyone is clear till here then we have section number 13 section number 10 done supply of goods ke liye section number 11 supply of goods ke liye section number 12 was when location of supplier and location of recipient both are in india section number 13 is applicable when location of supplier or location of recipient anyone is outside india section number 13 one says whenever anyone is outside india then section number 13 is applicable section number 13 2 is the general rule or the residual rule which goes ahead and says whenever you are not falling in any specific rule which is section number 13 3 to 13 13 then general rule is applicable which says location of recipient of service if that is not there location of supplier of service the next one over here is section number 13.3 which goes ahead and talks about performance based service. Section number 13.3a goes ahead and says whenever it is supplied in respect of goods which are made physically available, the place of supply will be the place of actual performance. Proviso in section number 13.3a goes ahead and says that sir when goods are not physically made available and the service is provided remotely then the location of the goods when such service is provided remotely where the goods are located that will be the place of supply sir if the goods have temporarily come into india might be for treatment repair process and re-exported without being put to use in india unless that put to use in india is mandatory for such process that is okay but if you have put to use in india then it will be over here place of actual performance but you should not put to use in india and re-export it in that scenario general rule location of recipient of service always remember if goods have temporarily come into india you have repaired them treated them or process has been done and re-exported without being put to use in india might be if it was put to use in india it was put to use only to check whether the treatment or process is done properly or not otherwise if it was put to use in india then you will have to take place of actual performance otherwise it is always general rule location of recipient of service 
Here there is one circular also regarding diamond etc. They have gone ahead and told whenever services are provided for unpolished diamond which have come from outside India, you have done cutting, polishing etc. and you have resend it outside India. In that scenario always the place of supply will be location of recipient of service. I hope everyone is clear. The next one over here is section number 13.3b which goes ahead and says whenever services are performed, whenever services are performed on an individual which requires his physical presence, it is always place of actual performance which becomes place of supply. Whether it is goods or whether it is individual, always place of actual performance is the place of supply. But if goods ka case may remotely something is done, then where the goods were at the time of Supply of service will be the place of supply. Temporarily goods have come into India for treatment, process or repair. Then in that scenario, it is always general rule, location of recipient of service. Then we have section number 13.4 which goes and says, Sir, location, services in relation to immobile property directly in relation or might be services by expert or real estate agent, basically estate agents which are there, accommodation service in hotel, in guest house, etc. Or might be it is grant of right to use immobile property, architect, interior decorator ka service, always location or intended location of the immobile property. Sir, then section number 13.5 goes ahead and talks about admission to an event or organizing of event or any ancillary service to organizing or admission to an event always it is place where the event is held then section number 13 6 goes ahead and says whenever performance based service or immobile property related service or admission or organizing of event related service is provided by a person in multiple location and a single amount supposingly is being collected and so supposingly there is a single contract which is there single contract which is there for performance based service or might be immobile property related service or admission to an event or organization event or admission to an event or organizing of event related service and the event or etc is in multiple location and one location comes to India then the entire amount becomes taxable in India. The next one over here is section number 13.7 which goes ahead and says services in 3, 4, 5 basically performance based service, immobile property related service and organizing of event or admission related services. If they are supplied in multiple states in India, then they are telling place of supply in each of the respective state and the value shall be in proportion to the value collected separately. If you have not gone ahead and collected separately as per the contract or you have to go ahead and apply rule. Now, if it is a performance based service which is a performance with respect to goods. Supposingly, one goods have come into India and you have do, done performance with respect to the goods, then performance based services, when they are done in multiple states, you have to go ahead and apply rule number 7. Rule number 7 goes ahead and says, if it is done with respect to the same goods, divide equally the value between the two states. If it is done with respect to different goods, then go ahead and divide the value in the ratio of the invoice value of the goods. Sir, if it is performance based, sir, performance based service with respect to an individual you have provided in multiple state, then apply gap. Right everyone? The next one over here is, sir, if immovable property related service in India might be of gone ahead and provided for multiple, in multiple states, then the value apportionment will be done as per rule number 8. Rule number 8 goes ahead and says how it was told in rule number 4 only you have to do it. So basically, a and D, area, nights and declaration by the service provider, that same ratio, that same theory has to be applied over here and the value apportionment has to be done. Sir, if it's an organizing of event or admission related service and you have to go ahead and do the apportionment, then how will you go ahead and do? You will have to apply rule number 9 and rule number 9 says, please apply rule number 5. Rule number 5, which we had already learned for organizing of event, went ahead and told you will have to apply gap. The next one is section number 12.8 goes ahead and says services by banking company, financial institution or NBFC to account holder or intermediate service or hiring of means of transportation including yacht, excluding aircraft or vessel up to what? One month. It is always location of supplier of service. Always remember one thing, banking company, financial institution, NBFC to account holder is location of supplier service. If it is to non-account holder, general rule, general rule is location of recipient of service. If location of recipient is not there, then supplier of service. Sir, section number 12.9 goes ahead and talks about transportation of goods excluding mail and courier because mail and courier ka case may general rule is applicable. So, transportation of goods always destination of goods will become the place of supply. Here one circular is there with respect to 
Antrix Corporation or NSIL, New Space India Limited, whenever they are going ahead and providing satellite launch services to domestic customer, it is always exempted under entry number 19C of your exemption chapter. But if it is provided to international customer, suppliers in India, recipient is outside India, place of supply is outside India, rocket went to ship, rocket, oh, sorry, rocket went to space, space is outside India and hence it will always be an export of service zero rating ka benefit can be claimed by the supplier always remember satellite launch service international customer export of service zero rated supply domestic supplier domestic sorry international customer export of service domestic customer it is always exempted then we have passenger transportation service section number 1310 baba i am telling 13 only right Yes, section number 1310, passenger transportation service, place of embarkation, wherever the passenger jumps in for a continuous journey, that will always be a place of, that will always be the place of supply. Always remember continuous journey is that journey where there is no stop over. Section number 1311 goes ahead and says services on board is always the first scheduled departure point. First scheduled departure point. Section number 1312 goes ahead and talks about OIDR service, always location of recipient of service. Section number 1313 goes ahead and says government has the power that whenever government sees that there is a non-taxation or double taxation for a service, then government is empowered, central government is empowered to notify any service ka case may place of supply will be place of effective use and enjoyment of that service and government went ahead and issued one circular with respect to R&D services for pharmaceutical sector. Government went ahead and told whenever pharmaceutical sector may R&D services are provided, always the place of supply will, the, will be the location of recipient of service. If supply of, again one circular is there, supply of maintenance, repair, overall services with respect to aircraft or ship and other vessel, their engines, component, part to any person for use in the course of furtherance of business, always MRO services with respect to aircraft, ship, etc. Ka case may maintenance, repair, overall services with respect to aircraft, ship, etc. It is always location of recipient of service. Government went ahead and used section number 1313 ka power and government told what? For pharmaceutical sector, location of recipient of service. For MRO service with respect to aircraft, ship, etc. Also location of recipient of service. Beside this, we have one circular which goes ahead and says, cargo handling services. Cargo handling services which are provided by port are always, never, never it is with services with respect to immoral property and always general rule section number 13.2 or 12.2 will be applicable. 12.2 if it is provided to domestic customer, international customer then it will always be 13.2. Then one more circular is there. Supposingly one person has gone ahead and developed some software for a company. Might be I have gone ahead and developed a software or designed a software for Apple in US. They went ahead and sent me one mobile phone and told sir software you develop and test on the mobile phone also. Here software development is principal. Testing on the mobile phone is ancillary and because the principal supply is falling under general rule which is location of recipient of service, the place of supply for the testing services will also be determined as per general rule and the entire supply pay the place of supply will be location of recipient of service. Always remember whenever you are going ahead and doing software designing services in the taxable territory and you are supplying it to home, person in the non-taxable territory by using his hardware software, sorry, his hardware in that you are going ahead and testing, testing becomes ancillary and principal supply is development and designing of software where general rule is applicable and location of recipient of service will become the place of supply. Right everyone, whenever you are learning section number 13, one point which I find is very important, you should remember importation of service ka definition, importation of service means supplier is outside India, recipient is in India and place of supply is in India, then it is always importation of service and always remember export of service ka definition, section number 2 clause 6 of the IGST Act goes ahead and defines it, supplier is in India, location of recipient is outside India, place of supply is outside India, payment is received in foreign convertible currency or in INR wherever permitted by RBI and you both are not mere establishment of distinct person, only then it is an export of service. I hope we are clear till here, A graded chapter everyone, 6 marks is something which they go ahead and generally ask in the exam. I will go ahead and conclude my revision on the chapter of place of supply over here. Congratulations people.
everyone over here imports under gst tell me one thing chapter number 28 it is imports under gst sir if i go ahead and tell you everyone imports under gst what are the different types of imports that can happen importation of goods can happen importation of service can happen what do you mean by importation of goods sir means bringing of goods into india from outside india is importation sir importation of service means what supplier is outside india recipient is in india place of supply is in india then it is importation of service everyone over here importation of goods is an interstate supply where is it told sir if you remember section number 7 section number 7 of the igst act may section number 72 goes ahead and says importation is interstate yes everyone and when you read article number 269 of the constitution that also says importation of goods within the territory of india is interstate supply interstate and section number seven now it is an interstate supply igst should come but that igst will be levied and collected under the custom act on the value under custom act at the time when custom duty is collected that is told by section number five it says okay interstate igst will come but sir, IGST will be levied and collected under the section number 3 of the custom tariff act on the value determined under section number 38 or 38A of the custom tariff act in case of bond to bond transfer. 38A says that sir, transaction value or 38 ka value whichever is higher on that custom IGST will be collected. When will it be collected? When custom duties are levied under section number 12 of the custom act. Sir, after you go ahead and pay this IGST, no. Sir, if you guys remember, in our ITC chapter, we went ahead and learned, bill of entry is a tax paying document and on the basis of bill of entry which you file under custom, you can take the ITC also. I hope everyone got it. Everyone, import under GST. What is importation? Always remember, importation is interstate. Interstate IGST will come, but this IGST will be levied, collected under the customs. Right, everyone? Now, whatever you go ahead and pay under customs is basically when you are filing your bill of entry. So, you will go ahead and pay under the customs. Customs Act, Custom Tariff Act. Right, everyone? Now, they are going ahead and telling after payment of this custom duty, which is IGST, you can take the ITC by going ahead and taking what? Bill of entry. Sir, if you guys remember section number 16, section number 16, you know, ITC chapter goes ahead and says, read with rule number 36, birds, birds are your tax, uh, tax paying document. On the basis of birds, you can take the credit. B for bill of entry, I for ISD invoice, R for RCM ka case mein, your self invoice which is there, D for debit note and S for suppliers invoice. So, bill of entry ka basis pay, you can take this. IGST ka credit. I hope everyone is clear. Sir, importation of service. Supply is outside India. Recipient is in India. Place of supply is in India. It is importation. Importation of service. Supply chapter section number 71B. Importation of service. Business, non-business is a supply. Yes, everyone. Sir, section number 71C. Importation of service from related person or own establishment outside India in the course of business without consideration is also a supply everyone all the cases may it will be always what importation of services interstate supply importation of service igst is always levied yes everyone but sir business purpose you went ahead and told rcm is applicable recipient will be liable to pay but sir if it is non-business purpose it was taxable but then it was exempted always remember exemption is not applicable in case of oidr services oidr services to ntr oidr will collect under forward charge and pay it to the government you know in practically also what happens oidr whenever it is going ahead and providing any service oidr whenever it is going ahead and providing service oidr will ask your gstn number if you give the gstn number then they will not charge you tax because you are going to pay under reverse charge but if online you don't put your GSTN number while taking Netflix, etc., subscription, etc., then they will go ahead and charge you under forward charge. That's it. So if you are a registered person, you pay under reverse charge. Unregistered person, basically in case of NT or etc., they will collect and pay it to the government. Everyone over here. Sir, if importation of service from related person own establishment in the course of business, in that scenario also, you have to pay GST under RCM. 
sir rcm is applicable and the recipient will be liable to pay what did i go ahead and tell you importation of goods interstate igst will come igst is collected under the custom act but you can take the credit of the igst paid with the help of bill of entry sir importation of service supplies outside india recipient is in india place of supply is in india sir it is always importation importation is interstate igst will come business purpose business pays gst under rcm non business purpose is exempted exempted but not in case of oidr service oidr service gst is collected under forward charge mechanism sir importation of service from related person own establishment without consideration is also a supply in the course of business that also the recipient has to pay the gst under rcm he will pay under rcm that's it okay now you tell me one thing in importation of service supplier is outside india he will not raise the invoice so if you want to take the credit how will you get sir self invoice importation of service because you are required to pay gst under rcm you have to pay the self invoice section number 313f says whenever you are receiving from unregistered person and you are registered person and you are required to pay gst under rcm you are required to raise a self invoice on the basis of self invoice you can take the credit i hope everyone is clear everyone over here now sir always remember important point bond to bond transfer igst is always on 38 ka value or the transaction value whichever is higher 38 ka value everyone or transaction value whichever is higher sir high seas sale but sir can you tell me bond to bond transfer igst will be on 38 ka value or transaction value whichever is higher G custom duty custom duty on the transaction value or tariff value only but sir it is not true in case of high seas sale high seas sale mein igst and custom duty is always on the last transaction value that is paid by the buyer who files the bill of entry for home consumption always remember bond to bond transfer custom duty is only on the original transaction value or tariff value which is there but uh, igst is always on 38 ka value or the transaction value which is in india basically sir custom duty is on that basically ci value which is there or the tariff value which is there 141 or 142 ka value but sir igst is on 38 ka value or transaction value whichever is higher clear but high c sale i told you about bond to bond transfer high c sale may always custom duty or igst is always paid on the transaction value which is basically happening in india between the buyer and the seller so whatever the seller is going ahead and filing his bill of entry no whatever whoever is going ahead and filing the bill of entry whatever was his was the amount paid by him that is the transaction value on that he is required to pay custom duty also igst also can i go ahead everyone the next one over here third country shipment what do you mean by third country shipment non taxable territory to non taxable territory china to us is it taxable in india no sir supply from non taxable territory to non taxable territory without goods entering into india neither supply of goods nor supply of service everyone over here sir importation of goods by scz unit or developer these are small small points which are there in your chapter sir importation of goods by scz unit or developer are always exempt from igst under section number 37 whatever igst is levied under section number 37 if importation of goods is but done by whom scz unit scz unit government is selling will support no igst can i go ahead everyone the next one over here actually custom duty is also not collected from them and igst is also not everyone over here goods imported by 100% eou exempt from custom duty also igst also and gst compensation says till 30th of june 2000 and actually they are extending it can i go ahead everyone they keep extending this i hope everyone is this amendment in the chapter extended till 30th june i think earlier it was 31st march now they have extended till 30th june can we go ahead everyone now do you guys remember oidar service from outside india to india to an ntr ntr is required to pay gst under rcm yes forward charge may they will collect and pay to the government now what do you mean by oidr service the meaning is given definition is given so i have written it here services whose delivery what do you mean by oidr online there is some information there is some database we have to access it we have to retrieve it you access it and use it online information there is online there is some information there is some data right everyone we can access it retrieve it and use it so it is known as oidr services online there is some information database we can access it retrieve it and use it can i go ahead everyone access means we can go inside 
use it and basically retrieve it and use it. So, it is OIDR service. Service is whose? Delivery is mediated by information technology over the internet. You think in your mind Netflix. Netflix ka delivery is over the internet or an electronic network plus the nature of which renders their supply essentially automated. Do you have to call someone at night and say I want to watch a movie, give me the access? No, it is automated. Plus, involves minimum human intervention. How many of you have called the Netflix ka people saying I want this movie, where is it? Well, minimum human intervention is there. If any problem comes, only then you call them. Otherwise, minimum human interve intervention, impossible to ensure up in absence of IT. In IT is not there. Internet is only not there. Information technology is not there. Can you provide OIDA service? Not possible. Cloud services given by Google. Is it possible? Not possible. Then and includes electronic services. They are telling these are also OIDA service. They are including it in the definition only. First of all, OIDA is Netflix, etc., which I explained. Online, there is an information which you can access, retrieve, and use. Automated services, basically, those are essentially automated, minimum human intervention, and impossible to ensure in the absence of IT. Can I go ahead, everyone? Listen to me very carefully. And they are telling it includes advertisement on internet. You will see Facebook advertisement comes on internet. All those are basically Facebook will do advertisement for you. Yes or no? That's an OIDR service. Cloud service, iCloud. You can take Google Drive ka services. All those are OIDR. Providing ebooks, music, software, other tangible through telecommunication network or internet. Providing database, information, retrieval or otherwise. Online supplies of digital content. Then storage and gaming. You downloaded one game online. All these are also OIDR service, they are specifically included all this in your OIDAR service. Can I go ahead everyone? Now, sir, if the supplier is Netflix providing to a recipient in India, if the recipient is other than NTOR, reverse charge, recipient will be liable. If the recipient is NTOR, then forward charge mechanism OIDR will be liable. Always remember, if OIDR is liable, OIDR is required to take compulsory registration under section number 24. Registration application goes in REG10. I have written everything relating to OIDR here only. Registration certificate REG06. OIDR is always required to pay tax in e cash. And sir, he will file the return GSTR 5A monthly by 20th of the next month. Annual return is GSTR 9. Reconciliation statement is there. But as of now, he is not required to file any reconciliation statement or annual return. Why, sir? Sir, because they are exempted from this, not applicable. Can I go ahead? Basically, they are not, it is not applicable to them. OIDR going ahead and providing services to a recipient in India. Place of supply, if you guys go ahead and remember, in place of supply, it is told OIDR services, location of recipient is the place of supply. So, I have gone ahead and just told over here, OIDR services, place of supply will be location of recipient. Everyone over here, OIDR providing services to a person in India, NTR forward charge, other than NTR always, reverse charge mechanism will be applicable. Can I go ahead everyone? Everyone over here. Sir, who is an NTR? NTR means government, local authority, governmental authority or he can be an individual or other unregistered person receiving OIDR services for any purpose other than commerce, industry or any other business or profession. Can I go ahead everyone? It can be government, local authority, governmental authority, individual or other unregistered person who are basically going ahead and receiving what? OIDR service for non-business purposes. Can I go ahead everyone? Sir, now listen to me very carefully. Sir, Google Play Store is there. In Google Play Store, one person is there. He is the actual supplier. He is the game developer. Okay everyone, he is in the non-tax territory. He developed one game and gave it to Google play store and google play store will go ahead and sell it to you right everyone who is the supplier over here google play store or this guy they have gone ahead and told always remember always remember one thing oidr services are provided by whom google play store or this guy you will always remember it will be the google play store who is the oidr supplier who is the always deemed as the supplier but sir supposingly this guy only is giving the delivery this guy only is giving the invoice. This guy only taking the payment. Then who is the supplier? Yeah. This guy is the supplier. So they have told if supply of service is provided through an intermediary, means in between Google Play Store is there or Apple ka, Apple ka, uh, iOS Store which is there, Apple Store which is there, App Store which is there. So sir, they will always be deemed as the supplier. They are supplying the OIDR services. Recipient 
in the taxable territory is the NTR, then forward charge mechanism. Google Play Store will take registration, collect GST and pay to the government. However, in some scenario, who will be deemed as the supplier? The actual developer. Only if PAIT condition is satisfied. Number one, everyone, I will tell you about it. Except if intermediary is not deemed as the supplier. Number one, invoice bill receipt clearly identifies supplier and its uh, identify services and its supplier in the invoice his name is written clearly it is told uh, supposing the Peter his name is given in the invoice or it is clearly showing Peter is the supplier everyone invoice bill receipt clearly identifies services and its supplier intermediary does not involve in the payment process means you are directly giving the payment to him he is directly giving the invoice in his name to you neither collects nor process or is responsible for the payment google play store is not collecting only then intermediary does not authorize delivery delivery authorized by developer it is not authorized by the google play store delivery also authorized by whom him supplier terms and condition not decided by intermediary but by actual developer he is only deciding terms and condition then who is the supplier supplier only so they are telling number one p for payment process may google play store is not involved a for authorizing delivery google play store is not doing it i for invoice 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 may you can clearly identify the supplier are we clear and then t for terms and condition also is not decided by the intermediary it is decided by the actual developer then in that scenario who will be the supplier this guy will become the supplier who will take the registration this guy will have to take registration if he is supplying services to an NTOR. Otherwise, generally it is always the intermediary who is the supplier and he takes the GST under GST, collects the GST and pays it to the government. I hope everyone is clear till here. This was one of the shortest and sweetest chapter in your chapter of, in your whole discussion of GST. In the exam, it can be a small C graded chapter. Basically, it is a concept related question which can be asked for 3 to for marks, please be very careful in the exam. I will close my discussion on the chapter of imports under GST over here, everyone. Done. Everyone, please come to the next chart. Exports under GST. Everyone over here. Export can be of goods. Export can be of service. Sir, can you tell me exports of goods means what? Sir, export of goods means taking of goods outside India. It means what? Taking from India outside India is what? Export of goods. Export of service you have to tell me. Section number 26 of the IGST Act. Sir, suppliers in India. Recipient is outside India. Place of supply is outside India. Payment is received in foreign convertible currency. And you both are not mere establishment of distinct person. Right everyone? Then it is export of service just a second everyone i'll restart exports under gst everyone over here export of goods what do you mean by export of goods everyone export means taking from india outside india is export sir exports is always location of supplies in india place of supplies outside india when you are taking from india outside india it is place of supply is outside India, it is always interstate, IGST will come. Sir, exports are always zero rated supply. Sir, what do you mean by export of services? Section number 2, clause 6 of the IGST Act goes ahead and defines export of services. Sir, supplies in India, recipient is outside India, place of supply is outside India. What I am receiving is foreign convertible currency and we both are not mere establishment of distinct person. In that scenario, it will always be an export of service. Sir, export of service is always location of supplies in India, place of supplies outside India. So, it is always as per section number 7. I hope you guys remember 7 of the IGST Act. Yes, everyone. Section number 75A, uh, if you guys go ahead and see of your IGST Act, you will see location of supplies in India, place of supplies outside India. It is always interstate supply. IGST will be applicable. And this is also zero rated supply. This is also zero rated supply. Listen to me very carefully. Whenever it is zero rated supply, Whenever it is zero rated supply, zero rated supply can be done in two ways. Sir, two options are there. Section number 163A, 163B. Section number 163A and section number 163B. Everyone listen. 
Zero rated supply generally includes export also and supplying to SCZ also. As of now, I am doing discussion with respect to export. In export of goods is also there. Export of service is also there. Goods also LUT you can give. IGST you can pay. Service also LUT you can give. IGST you can pay. Everyone over here. Export of goods ka case mein, if you give the LUT, you will claim a refund of the ITC which was unutilized. So, whatever you exported, for that whatever is the ITC related, you will get a refund. Now, everyone listen to me very carefully. You will claim a refund under section number 54.3, read with rule number 89. Rule number 89, there is a formula which is there. In rule number 89, there is a formula which goes ahead and tells you. Rule number 89.4 mein, there is a formula which teaches about refund of refund claim with respect to your ITC. Can I go ahead everyone? So, you will get the refund as per the formula. Next. Then it says refund application RFD 01. It will be based on the formula. See everyone, I will tell you what is the formula. Sir, I went ahead and bought 1 lakh rupees ka goods. Out of that, I paid 18,000 ka GST. Only 50,000 goods related is relating to export. How much refund you will get? 9,000. 18,000 was the total 1 lakh rupees related. 50,000 ka goods exported. So, 50,000 rupees related is only now 9,000. That is told by the formula. Are we clear? Formula based refund will be given to you and it will be processed by the GST department. Now, if export of goods is happening, wherein you are taking ITC ka refund, everyone, ITC ka refund means export done, ITC ka refund will be given by the GST department. But sir, when I go ahead and pay IGST, I paid IGST at the time of exporting, then what will happen? They have gone ahead and told, claim refund of the IGST, section number 54.1, read with rule number 96 will come. Can you see over here rule number 96? This rule number 96 has to be understood. Then they are going ahead and telling, sir, shipping bill or bill of export is the refund application. You know what happens? Whenever you go ahead and export, everyone, whenever you go ahead and export from India, outside India, at the custom port, you will file one shipping bill or bill of export. Yes, everyone. Now, the person who is taking the goods and going, he will go ahead and this person in charge will file a departure manifest. In the departure manifest, he should mention that whatever goods you are telling in the shipping bill has actually been mentioned in the departure manifest that I am taking and going. Once you file the shipping bill, he files the departure manifest, government will give you the refund. That's a con But here, the refund will be given by the officer who is sitting at the port because he will have better control on this. So, government is telling whenever you have gone ahead and paid IGST on your export of goods, shipping bill or bill of export is your refund application. You don't have to file RFD 01 again. Refund will be processed by the proper officer at custom. Customs may one proper officer of GST is treated. He is the GST officer only but at the custom port. So, he is basically proper officer at custom. So, he will go ahead and claim, uh, clear the refund. Sir, what will happen? See over here everyone. Rule number 96 has to be followed. Rule number 96 says, you shipping bill or shipping bill or the bill of export is deemed as the refund application and see everyone, you file the shipping bill. You want to go ahead and export the goods. When you want to go ahead and export the goods, you will first go ahead and file your shipping bill or bill of export. Yes, everyone. Your bill of export or your shipping bill is only your refund application, but this refund application will be deemed as filed only if what are the items you have told in your shipping bill, no? This person who is taking the goods outside India, departure manifest is filed by him, person in charge. You remember departure manifest in export procedure? Yes, this guy will go ahead and file one departure manifest. Sir, the custom officer received your shipping bill. The custom officer received the departure manifest. You told I have exported these goods. He is telling I have taken these goods and I am going outside India. In departure manifest, he will tell which are the goods I am taking and going. In shipping bill, you will tell what are the goods I am shipping. So, it has to match. If matching done, see. Application deemed to be filed when person in charge files departure manifest or export manifest or export report. Export report in case of land road. Right, everyone? Then, covering the name and number of shipping bill or bill of export. What you are telling in the bill of export, the number of the bill of export which is there or shipping bill which is there, it should be covered in his departure manifest. Only then it is deemed, no, you are telling I am sending these goods. In his departure manifest, he is telling whatever the goods are mentioned in this shipping bill, I am taking and going. It is matching. Then they are going ahead and telling, first of all, he has to go ahead and file departure manifest. Secondly, everyone, you have to go ahead and file GSTR 3B. Why, sir? Because everyone over here, you went ahead and told, sir, sir, I have filed my shipping bill. 
this person who is taking person in charge who is taking the goods and going he filed the departure manifest matching happened plus everyone listen to me very carefully you are going ahead and claiming your igst paid ka refund right but igst is paid only in gst or 3b so officer will make sure first of all your item is mentioned in the departure manifest secondly you have filed your gst or 3b correct igst paid ka refund means you should have filed your gst or 3b in which igst is paid so sir only once you have paid uh, filed your GST R3 or GST R3 B. GST R3 is not going nowadays. It is going GST R3 B. So, sir, he went ahead and included my name in the department manifest. Secondly, I filed my GST R3 B. It means IGST is paid. Please give me IGST ka refund. So, what will happen over here? Details of export invoices in GST R1. You will also file your GST R1 in which you will say these are the export invoices. They will go ahead and communicate the export invoices to the custom department. Saying, please check whether this export related actual export has happened or not. GST ka common portal which is there, gst.gov.in will communicate with IceGate ka portal. IceGate.gov.in wherein basically they will go ahead and communicate with each other and find out whether the goods have actually been exported. Everyone over here. Transmission to the custom system for cross verification. In GSTR1, you will include your export invoices that will be communicated to the custom department for cross verification whether, whether this export invoices related export has happened or not. Upon receipt of information regarding GSTR3 b being filed, I have gone ahead and paid the taxes. GSTR3 b filed, ICE gate or proper officer at custom will process the refund. Who will process the refund? The proper officer at the custom port will process your refund. I will tell you one thing. You filed your shipping bill, departure manifest file, you filed your GSTR 3B, GSTR 1B included the export invoice, it will be communicated over here to the IceGate portal where it will be checked whether this export related actual export has happened and the refund will be given to you by whom? Proper officer at custom. Sir, if now tell me one thing, you have defaulted in some GST payment, your refund should be with it, but who is processing the refund? Custom, proper officer at custom? Proper officer at customs is processing. So, your, your jurisdictional officer will go ahead and tell him, hey, don't give Ramesh refund, withhold. So, they are telling withholding of refund upon request from jurisdictional commissioner of central tax, state tax, etc. Basically, they are telling whoever, your proper officer, your commissioner will go ahead and tell him, hey, don't, with, don't go ahead and give him the money, withhold it. Sir, proper officer or might be this proper officer, see, he told him, then he will withhold. Number second case, he saw Ramesh has gone ahead and exported. There is some violation he has done. In that scenario also, your refund will be withheld. They are telling proper officer, which proper officer? The customs ka proper officer determine that goods are exported in violation. Upon withholding, they will inform you. The proper officer of IGST shall intimate your the applicant and the jurisdictional commissioner. He will go ahead and inform you and he will go ahead and inform him that okay, we are withholding the refund. The next one over here is, upon transmission of intimation, the proper officer shall pass an order. Baba, for you, the withholding car details has to be given. Do you remember in GST, we have learned that withholding car details has to be given to you in part A of GST RFD 07. Sir, this officer will not pass. He will go ahead and pass GST RFD 07 and inform you that, sir, we are going ahead and withholding the refund. Basically, your refund is withheld by him. But who will inform you? Who will go ahead and pass an order? See, he will inform you also, he will inform you also. But order will be passed RFD 07 ka part A mein by whom? Your jurisdictional officer. Can I go ahead everyone? The next one over here is, they are going ahead and telling, sir, sir, what is the amendment in this chart? Are amendment is when you are applying for refund under rule number 89 or you are applying for refund under 96, both the case mein or Aadhaar authentication must be done. As per rule number 10B, rule number 10B is now introduced which says if you are filing a revocation application for cancellation order or you are filing a refund application in your refund basically RFD 01 etc or under rule number 89 if you are filing a refund application or under rule number 96 if you are filing a refund application, Aadhaar authentication of the registered person is mandatory. Sir, if Aadhaar authentication is not done then, then Baba that your Aadhaar ka application slip along with your bank passbook etc should be given. Can I go ahead everyone? Yes, sir. Everyone, application, applicant entitled to the withheld refund, jurisdictional officer will proceed to refund and pass an order in RFD 06 after passing an order for release of withheld refund. Baba, tell me one thing. Sir, I am entitled to the refund. Give me the refund. 
then he will go ahead and pass an order in RFD 07 part B. First he will pass this and then he will go ahead and give a refund sanction order also. Are we clear that we are sanctioning the refund? That is what is being told over here that applicant is entitled, jurisdictional officer will proceed to refund and pass an order RFD 06 after passing order for release of the withheld refund in part B of GST RFD 07. They are telling for notified goods, the central government may refund the IGST to the government of Bhutan and not to exporters. For some things, they will not go ahead and give the refund to you. They will go ahead and give the refund to the government of Bhutan. Basically, they are telling government of Bhutan ko will go ahead and refund. For some notified items only. For IGST, okay, everyone, for I refund of IGST paid on services, this I went ahead and told you about goods. They are telling for services also, if you have paid IGST, refund application is RF, RMD01 and it shall be dealt in accordance with rule number 89. Basically, the GST department will deal with it. Goods ka case may only what happens? The custom port pay the proper officer who is there, he will deal. Basically, what happens? You will file your shipping bill. The exporter who is there, he will go ahead and file the departure manifest. He will go ahead and match. No, the person in charge of the ship will go ahead and file the departure manifest, your shipping bill and departure manifest. Basically, whatever you are told in the shipping bill, the shipping bill ka name, number, etc. should be there in the departure manifest. Basically, you should have gone ahead and filed your GSTR 3B, paid the taxes. In your GSTR 1, you should have included the export invoice. Your refund will be processed. If they can go ahead and withhold also the refund. Withholding the details comes to in, you in part A of GST RFD 07. Sir, and release of withheld refund RFD 07 part B and after that they will go ahead and pass GST RFD 06 saying that sir we are going ahead and giving you the refund. Are we clear everyone? Everyone over here. This you guys got it. Sir, this you guys got it. Export of goods ka case mein. One is under LUT. If you pass, give LUT or bond, ITC ka refund is given. ITC refund is given by GST department. Normal refund application will go and refund will be given by GST department. But IGST paid ka refund is given by whom? Proper officer at custom. Can I go ahead everyone? The next one over here is, sir, zero rated supply in case of service. Services may, if you are going ahead and exporting under LUT or bond, ITC ka refund will be given. Sir, claim refund of unutilized ITC, section number 54.3, read with rule number 89, refund application RFD 06 and refund as per formula will be processed by GST department. In case of export of services, IGST paid, IGST paid ka refund you can go ahead and take. It says rule number, section number 54.1, read with rule number 89, refund application will go and refund will be processed by GST department only. But sir, everyone over here, whenever you are going ahead and paying, exporting under LUT or bond, Exporting under LUT or bond, rule number 96A is applicable, which goes ahead and says, first give LUT or bond, then you go ahead and export all those stories. Everyone over here, prior to export, you have to furnish bond or LUT in GST RFD 11 to the jurisdictional officer, take everyone, and you have to tell him, binding himself to pay the tax due plus interest under section number 50, if any, if goods are not exported within 15 days after 3 months. Everyone over here, you have gone ahead and told him, I will export. If you don't export within three months, then they are going ahead and telling, sir, if you don't go ahead and export post expiry of three months, please make the payment within the next 15 days. If you don't make the payment within the next 15 days, they basically go ahead and recover the amount from you. Everyone over here, what am I telling? Prior to export, you have to furnish a bond in GST RFD 11 to your jurisdictional officer that, sir, I am giving a bond. Please go ahead and give me Sir, please allow me to export without payment of IGST. You have to give that bond. After you go ahead and export, now whatever ITC is there, you can claim a refund. Everyone in the bond, you are binding yourself that, sir, I will go ahead and pay the tax if I don't go ahead and export in three months or services ka if I don't go ahead and receive the payment within how much time? One year. Foreign currency is not received within one year. Export, goods not exported within three months. Payment not received in case of services. Within one year, then within the next 15 days, I will make the payment of the tax along with interest. And sir, if I do not make the payment of the tax along with interest, basically after 15 days, they will start recovery. They will recover it from you. Can I go ahead everyone? Now listen. Sir, details of export invoices in GSTR 1 will be transmitted to whom? Custom system for cross verification. Why will it be transmitted? Because export of goods ka case may customs is also involved. So, they will cross check with custom whether actually goods have been exported. When goods are not exported within the time limit and registered person fails to pay the amount. Sir, goods are not exported within how much time? 
3 months 15 days ka time is given after 3 months to make the payment of the tax with interest if you don't make lut bond facility will be withdrawn immediately and recovery will begin sir facility will be restored when the amount is paid along with interest due amount along with interest basically whatever is the tax amount along with interest amount includes tax plus interest also then lut not allowed for for if you are prosecuted baba thieves etc not allowed if you are prosecuted for offense where tax evaded was how much greater than 250 lakhs and baba the same thing which i have taught you when you are exporting to scz also will apply they are telling provision of sub rule 1 applies mutatis mutandis with respect to zero tax apply to scz unit or developer everyone over here export of goods means taking from india outside india export of service means suppliers in india recipient is outside india huh place of supply is outside india what you are receiving payment in foreign convertible currency permitted then inr also and sir you both are not mere establishment of listing person export of goods or export of service both are interstate supply both ka case mein igst is applicable now export of goods ka case mein also two option export uh, give lut itc ka refund sir uh, or pay igst igst ka refund which is there sir service mein also pay igst take igst ka refund or give lut and take itc ka refund are we clear everyone both the rule i have gone ahead and told you over here now listen to me very carefully in case of service though they will not give you the refund in case of service they will not give you the refund if you don't receive the payment because refund ke liye you have to apply and when you apply you can apply only after you have received the payment because they will go ahead and ask you bank realization certificate or foreign inward remittance certificate export of goods ka case mein you took the goods from india outside india export happened but why are they giving you so much benefit in export because you will get foreign currency but sir I took the goods from India, outside India, took the refund, never got the forex. Listen, 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 listen everyone. Services ka case mein to, if you take outside India, receive payment, only then refund. Goods ka case mein, taking outside India, payment ka nothing told. If you don't realize the payment as per FEMA, whatever refund was given to you, see Baba, they will give you the refund without payment realized. But if you don't realize that payment, within the time limit as per foreign exchange management act they are telling if you don't realize as per fema whatever refund was given to you in case of export of goods will be recovered are we clear everyone rule number 96 b introduced recovery of refund of unutilized itc igs or igst paid whatever unutilized itc sir i exported the goods itc refund i exported the goods igst ka refund i have taken they are telling on export of goods when export proceeds are not realized it will be recovered the person to whom refund is made shall deposit the amount refunded to the extent of non realization of sale proceed along with interest within 30 days as per the time limit of fema if you don't get it within the next 30 days please deposit the amount which you have gone ahead and taken the itc ka refund i took 1 lakh rupees ka itc ka refund on 1 crore ka goods 50 crore rupees i uh, 50 lakh rupees i received in foreign currency Remaining 50 lakh I did not receive. Then proportionate amount you have to give it back to the government. Within the next 30 days after the expiry of the time limit as per FEMA. Sir, failure to deposit amount will be recovered in accordance with provision of section number 73 and 74. They will give a show cause notice. Then demand order hang you upside down and recover. And as is applicable for erroneous refund along with interest at the rate of 50. At a, at a rate of 6% under section number 50. And you know what will happen? They will tell you. You did not get the money as per FEMA. We will deem that what refund we had given you, ITC refund or IGST refund was erroneous refund. From the date of erroneous refund within 3 years. In case of fraud, they will pass within 5 years. But here it is not a fraud ka case. Within the next 3 years, they will give you a demand order, show cause notice and demand order. And then the amount will be recovered. But if it is a fraud case, fraud, basically whatever refund they had given to you, they will deem that the refund was erroneous refund. Demand order will be given and section number 79, recovery proceedings will start. Can I go ahead everyone after 3 months of the demand order? Baba, same procedure. Show cause notice, demand order and then recovery. Sir, no recovery. You know what happened? I am a very good boy. Only one time I could not recover the amount. If RBI goes ahead and writes off the recovery, RBI ma manages that the money should come as per FEMA and all. RBI told he is a good guy. In merit, we will write it off. If RBI writes off the requirement of realization of Forex on merit that I am a good boy, then in that scenario recovery will not be done. 
of the refund which was given to me. If sale proceeds realized post recovery, they recovered the amount and I realized produce the evidence within three months from the date of realization and recovered amount shall be refunded. I interest will not be refunded. Don't ask also. Everyone over here, one small circular which is there in this chapter, I want to go ahead and tell about it quickly. Everyone over here, listen to me very carefully. For an example, I went ahead and got an order to make a software in a, for a guy who is there in US. US ka guy, location of recipient, he wanted me to go ahead and make a software for him. Location of supplier is in India. You know what happened? I could not make the software properly, means completely I could not make it. I wanted the help of a Mexican guy. I went in and hired a person in Mexico and told him, can you go ahead and make the software for him? You bill it to me. You bill it to me. But ship it. Basically, make the software for him over here. Can it happen, everyone? Now, what happened? I did not go ahead and take the whole money into India. Some amount went over here. Are you guys able to understand? Why, sir? Because I had to make the payment to him also, no? In this scenario, there is a circular which is given. I would like to go ahead and read the circular with you guys. Everyone over here. Here. This is the circular which is there. Circular on export of services under GST. In case of exporter of service, outsources a portion of the service contract to another person located outside India. I gave him a portion of the service contract, outsource him. Means main, the main contract was between me and the US ka guy, but I went ahead and took the help of a Mexican guy. What would be the tax treatment of the said portion of the contract and the hands of the exporter? There may be instances where the full consideration of the outsourced services is not received by the exporter in India. Might be it can happen that sir, I went ahead and provided export of service. Yes or no? I went ahead and told him, make part payment to him and part payment to me. Now, in this scenario, people went ahead and asked the government, Sir, can I go ahead and take full export ka benefit? Because part payment went outside India and part payment came to India. It would, if, it would, if it would have come to India and half would have gone over there, same it would have happened. So, instead of that, half US dollar went over there, half came to India. Is it still export of service? Government told, yes, your service will classify as export of service even if part payment went outside India and part payment came to you, still it is export of service. But you being a business entity in India, on his services which are taken by you to provide the services over there is an importation of service on which GST is payable under RCM and this will be a zero rated supply. Did you guys understand everyone? I went ahead and provided some service to an US guy. Might be I went ahead and took the services of a person outside India. Some money went to him, some money went came to me. But in that scenario also, my services are export of service. Suppliers in India, recipient is outside India, place of supply is outside India. Payment received in foreign convertible currency. Might be it would have come directly to me and then it would have gone. gone. So it is payment is received in foreign currency. Baba, for the service, have you earned foreign currency? Yes. And you both are not mere establishment of distinct person. This will be a zero rated supply and Sir, this will be an importation of service on which you will be required to pay GST under RCM. This was one circular which I have to go ahead and tell over here. We are done with your chapter of exports under GST. Again, a C graded chapter, but either of them say small question can come. 3 to 4 marks is something which you can expect for your exam. I will go ahead and close all my discussion on exports under GST over here. Congratulations. Can we go ahead everyone? Let's go ahead and do the chapter of refunds now. Everyone over here, my fund is there with the government. I want it back because it's my working capital. So you go for refund. Yes, everyone. So I had gone ahead and paid some money to the government. Which one? I want it back from the government. So I'll go ahead and apply for a refund because under GST also or anywhere unless you ask for it you will not get it right everyone such same way is the chapter of refunds over here everyone refunds under GST is one of the most easiest chapter which is there but still students go ahead and think because of the lengthy chapter students find it little tricky but, but, but trust me it is one of the easiest chapter which is there we are all going to beautifully learn it let's go ahead 
like the other chapters which we have gone ahead and done we are going to go ahead and learn in the same way in the most easiest way everyone over here please come to the chart of refunds everyone refunds goes ahead and starts with sir the name first of all your fund is there with the government you want it returned so you have to go ahead and apply for a refund see baba nothing first you have to go ahead and give an application saying i want my money back sir my refund application you will give your application government will tell please prove that the refund is due to you please prove refund is due that i should give refund thirdly government will say it's an indirect tax refund is due i know but you will go ahead and pass on the burden to someone else you would have already passed on the burden to someone else so you have to prove that the refund is due to you so first of all always a person has to go ahead and apply for a refund when he goes ahead and applies he has to go ahead and give document to prove that the refund is due sir you have to give thirdly government will say you prove also that it is due to you only are we clear so what will happen over here you will apply for the refund with the document officer will give you acknowledgement everything is fine he'll give you acknowledgement then sir within the next 60 days it should come in your bank account if it doesn't come in your bank account then sir what will they do they will give you interest are we clear everyone same thing we are going to learn over here see everyone first you have to go ahead and apply apply for a refund right everyone whenever a person wants his money back he has to do like this only take okay, please give my money back yes so whenever you have gone ahead first you have to go ahead and apply sir always remember first of all your application has to be within 2 years so within 2 years from which date so different different scenario in which refunds you will get for different different scenario the relevant dates are different from which date should i apply within 2 years now once you go ahead and apply the application form is one only but along with the application form you have to give document so different different scenario will have different different documents also which you have to give are we clear now once you go ahead and apply if officer finds everything fine then he will go ahead and give you the money back within how many days everyone 60 days sir if they don't give within 60 days what will happen they will give interest if it's an erroneous refund what will happen demand and recovery chapter they will recover within 3 years or 5 years are you guys able to understand now if you go ahead and see zero rated supplier exporters who are there they need their money quickly they are telling sir export will get hampered government is export will get hampered we will not make export hampered any ways ever why because government wants money from outside foreign currency so government has given special support to whom to people who are exporters basically zero rated supplier and told within 7 days your refund will be given 90% provisional refund will be given to you others ke case mein always 60 days but only for zero rated suppliers who are zero rated suppliers export or supplying to scz they will go ahead and give provisional refund are we clear everyone now sir whenever they are going ahead and giving refund you will also see one more small thing sir they will go ahead and adjust your refund if you had to pay some tax etc to the government they will go ahead and adjust your refund all those scenarios also you will go ahead and see that's it are we clear everyone very very simple chapter section number 54 is there which talks about refund read with rule number 89 91 which is there right everyone all these rules are there but you don't have to worry about it everything i have gone ahead and put it over here only and we'll go ahead and understand aram se relax aram se sit and aram se understand the chapter of refunds my fund with the government i want it back i will have to go ahead and file an application so the chapter starts with you going ahead and filing an application but always remember before the application you have to remember that the application should go within 2 years if you are a un holder do you remember un holder who are there will go ahead and get a refund of the taxes which they have gone ahead and paid sir how much is the taxes ka refund i will go ahead and get un holder whatever inputs they buy whatever gst they pay they will have to go ahead and claim a refund do you remember so un holder has to apply within 18 months 18 months of the end of the quarter whatever one quarter may they have received a supply for that they have to apply within 18 months are we clear you will go ahead and give your application can you see over here i hope you guys remember in rule uh, rule number 10b has been introduced in your registration chapter where i went ahead and told you if you want to go ahead and apply if you want to go ahead and apply for your revocation application for your refund application if you go ahead and see in your uh, returns ka chapter in returns ka chapter it is there registration ka chapter 10b i have gone ahead and told you which says that sir 
a registered person issued who is has been issued what registration certificate any registered person who has been issued registration certificate those people other than 25 6d basically those people who are not required to do other authentication other than those people whoever is required iamk individual authorized signatory managing and authorized partner karta is required to do under, undergo other authentication those people shall so if you have been granted a registration certificate already and now now you want to go ahead and apply for refund so it says shall undergo this an amendment shall undergo other authentication of the proprietor partner karta managing director any whole time director member of the managing committee of association of person body of individual society trustee etc and and of the authorized signatory for first of all going ahead and filing your revocation application secondly for going ahead and filing refund application can you see over here and also going ahead and filing refund application under rule number 96 96 i will be going ahead and teaching you in the chapter of exports okay what is rule number 96 you will be learning in the chapter of exports which is there but as of now we'll concentrate on rule number 89 this chapter which goes ahead and talks about refund is basically going ahead and talking about section rule number 89 not section rule number 89 everyone over here plus tell me any person can go ahead and apply for refund any person applicant can be any person i am the supplier i have gone ahead and borne the burden i will go ahead and apply for refund i passed on the burden to the recipient buyer who will go ahead and apply for the refund the buyer recipient will go ahead and apply for the refund basically always remember any person can go it can be a supplier or it can be a recipient also basically whoever has borne the burden will go ahead and apply to to the for the refund can i go ahead everyone i passed it on to someone else he passed it on to the customer he will go ahead and apply whoever wants he has to go ahead and apply for the refund now whenever you go ahead and apply you have to apply within two years you have to go ahead and file an application along with the application you have to give document that the refund is due then the refund is due to me number one application number two refund is due number three refund is due to me only can i go ahead everyone then within the next 60 days government will go ahead and do the processing every document will be checked and they will go ahead and give the money to your bank account are we clear everyone actually it is told that the refund order should be given within how many days 60 days but sir 60 days when they mean over here refund order 60 days my money should come in your bank account and hence proper officers are advised that you please try to pass the order within how many days 45 days only so that 15 days may the money can be transferred to the bank account of the person are we clear if it does not come within your account then you can go ahead and file one sir basically you will go ahead and get interest at the rate of six percent are we clear if it's an erroneous refund you demand and recovery chapter connected over here they will go ahead and collect from you within three years or five years basically demand order will be given now everyone over here relevant date in various scenario is various and documents which are required to go ahead and apply for the refund is also different in different scenario now everyone over here let's go ahead and understand relevant date relevant date what are the various scenarios you get a refund and what is the relevant date from which you have to apply within two years and what are the documents you are required to establish that the refund is due sir refund is due to me that document i'll teach can we go ahead everyone so first i'm going ahead and telling you what are the scenarios you will get a refund if you export the goods everyone sir i have gone ahead and exported the goods when you go ahead and export the goods whatever igst you have paid at the time of exporting you can go ahead and claim a refund yes sir so sir they are going ahead and talking about exportation of goods sir by sea by land by post everyone export of goods when you are going ahead and doing you can pay igst take igst ka refund second way give lut take itc ka refund both the things are there so sir they are going ahead and telling whenever you are going ahead and claiming refund of the taxes paid on your export of goods might be you have gone ahead and exported the goods by sea if i have gone ahead and sent the sea goods by sea within how much time i have to run sir the ship left india run within two years you have to go ahead and apply for the refund date on which the ship or aircraft leaves india sir i have exported by land the day the truck crosses the custom frontier custom border is crossed run baba run within two years you have to go ahead and apply for the refund sir if i have sent the goods by post sir post me what will happen post me sir the goods are dispatched by the post office the day post office has dispatched the goods for export that day you should run and claim for your refund can i go ahead everyone then basically they are talking about 
from which day you should run within two years. Next, sir, export of service. Bye bye, everyone over here. Export of service ka definition you tell me. Location of supplier is in India. Recipient is outside India. Place of supply is outside India. Sir, foreign currency is received and you both are not mere establishment of distinct person. Only then it is export. First of all, your export should happen. Secondly, your money should be received. Only then it is export. Goods ka case mein to goods leave India, export. Yes, everyone. But in case of services, it is export of service only when, sir, you go ahead and receive the foreign currency and hence they have gone ahead and told invoice to anyone can raise. Only when you receive the payment, we will go ahead and consider it as export of service. So, later of invoice or payment, whichever is later, 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 everyone. Sir, invoice you raised, payment you received. Both are done, then go ahead and apply for the refund within two years. Sir, I have gone ahead and received the advance payment. Invoice raised here. When you, once you have gone ahead and raised the invoice, then you have to go ahead and apply for the refund. Later of invoice or payment. Can I go ahead, everyone? Now, sir, good services supply to an SCZ unit. SCZ unit or developer ka case may. Everyone over here. SCZ unit or developer ka case. Okay. Now, everyone over here, supply of goods to SEZ unit or developer. Sir, I have gone ahead and supplied the goods to SEZ unit or developer. I want a refund. You want a refund. Now, here, they have not gone ahead and spoken anything over here. But, but with the Finance Act 2022, there is an amendment which, are, which they are going to get. Sir, in the exam, if they ask you, in the exam, if they ask you, they will not ask you. Because till your number 22 exam, Finance Act 2022 is not applicable. Are we clear? For your knowledge, I am going ahead and telling you, if you go ahead and supply to an SCZ, within how much time you should go ahead and apply? Earlier, the law did not go ahead and state this only. Now, they have gone ahead and got the amendment by Finance Act. This is just for your knowledge, I am going ahead and telling you that, sir, in the explanation in clause 2, after clause B, the following subclause shall be inserted. Means, in your basically relevant date ka uh, table, they have gone and inserted this saying, in case of zero rated supply of goods, services or both to an SEZ developer or unit where a refund of tax is available in respect of such supplies themselves, themselves means IGST paid or Baba, zero rated supply you can do by IGST payment or ITC or as the case may be ITC input or input services the due date for furnishing the return under section number 39 in respect of such supply what supplies you have done to the SEZ those supply which you have done to the SEZ the due date for filing the return for an example I did the supply in the month of January due date for return is 20th February in which I should have included those supplies which I have done to the SEZ so 20th February so I should apply within two years can you see over here the due date for furnishing return under section number 39 due date for return under section number 39. Are we clear? Now, everyone listen. Sir, it is not applicable for a number 22 exam. What if they ask in the exam? But first of all, they will not ask you in your number 22 exam. Secondly, if they ask you, this is the new law which is there. Earlier, the law was not there only. Can I go ahead, everyone? Everyone over here now. What did I go ahead and tell you? Sir, in case of export of goods, always remember, if you have exported by C, first of all, you should apply for refund within relevant date, say, two years. Sir, relevant date means what? Different scenario, different relevant date. First of all, I go ahead and told you, sir, export of goods, when it is, sir, ship or aircraft, ship or aircraft leaves India, run, baba, run. Then, sir, land, say, if, you, if the goods are going. Sir, when the goods pass the custom bond uh, custom uh, frontier, then the next one, if post say, then the day post office is going ahead and dispatching the goods. Sir, export of service ka case may later of invoice or payment. Sir, when I have gone ahead and supplied to the SCZ, the day you have gone ahead and done the, no, the month you have gone ahead and done the supply, that month ka when you go ahead and file the monthly return. So, from monthly return, you have to go ahead and apply within two years. Are we clear everyone? This is an amendment not applicable for a number 22 exam but the law never clarified it. Now it is at least clarified. You know from which day you have to go ahead and apply. Next. Sir, deemed export. Sir, what do you mean by deemed export? I will go ahead and tell you about deemed export everyone. One minute. Sir, what is a deemed export? You should know what is a deemed export. Actually, these are not export but they are going ahead and telling if you do these things, we will deem your activity to be an export actually it is not export but they are deeming such activities to be an export just a minute i'll go ahead and open this everyone over here yes 
डीम्ड एक्सपोर्ट यू शुड ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर दिस डीम्ड एक्सपोर्ट का कॉन्सेप्ट इन जीएसटी दर समथिंग कॉल्ड डीम्ड एक्सपोर्ट नॉट एक्सपोर्ट बट इट इज डीम टू बी एक्सपोर्ट सर वट डू यू मीन बाई डीम्ड एक्सपोर्ट लिसन टू बी वेरी केयरफुल चैप्टर नंबर थर्टी रिफंड एवरी वन हियर If you go ahead and actually export from India outside India, that is actual export. What is deemed export? Everyone over here. Now, one person, there is something called Director General of Foreign Trade. When you learn your FTP, you will see Director General of Foreign Trade is there. Director General of Foreign Trade. Whenever a person wants to go ahead and import some material from outside India, he is telling sir, one ten crore ka material. I will have to go ahead and pay one crore rupees GST, sir. I don't have money. So people can go. Importers can go to the Director General of Foreign Trade, and Director General of Foreign Trade issues advance authorization. What is it known as? Advance authorization. That you have an authorization, you can import the material without paying any duty. So, sir, what will he do? He will go ahead and customs. See, Baba. One is foreign trade policy. What does foreign trade policy do? Foreign trade policy means basically all this advance authorization, etc. is issued. Now he got an advance authorization. When he will import in the customs, the custom department will make sure that when goods are coming into India, he can clear without payment of any duty because he has got an advance authorization from the Director General of. foreign trade now why did the director general allow him to go ahead and import duty free because the director general of foreign trade is looking over here that sir he is promised that i will go ahead and export he is promised that he will go ahead and export and earn forex baba he is saying money 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 forex over here and to he told okay fine you import don't pay any duty anyways on export no duty so no headache of giving you duty drawback etc so advance authorization is given so that a person doesn't have to pay any duty at the time of importation and sir because he is going to export and get foreign currency he will get the advance authorization now listen to me very carefully one person he has what advance authorization sir this person has an advance authorization from whom dgft has given this person advance authorization yes everyone listen when he will import the raw material he will also spend foreign currency or not are he will spend also no now what happened dgft went ahead and told if you find the same material in india buy that material from a person in india only now listen he will go ahead and export for that if you buy the material from me is he going ahead and spending forex don't you think india is saving forex yes or no so indian government goes ahead and says ramesh your activity your activity of going ahead and giving him what goods is deemed export why because when you give him he will ultimately go ahead and export so whenever he will give, he will go ahead and give you the advance authorization you don't go ahead and you don't go ahead and charge him any gst this this is known as deemed why government gave it the name of deemed export because government is going ahead and saving foreign currency over here are we clear everyone is the point clear to all now if you would have gone ahead and got it from outside india government would have spent foreign currency but he went ahead and bought it within india only using the advance authorization he gave you the advance authorization and he told sir give me the goods i gave him the goods it is known as deemed export because ultimately the goods are going to be outside india going outside india everyone over here now sir i it says whenever you have gone ahead and supplied someone deemed export ka supply listen to me very carefully everyone deemed export supplies which are there you will have to go ahead and pay the gst on this who will pay the supplier will go ahead and charge the gst on this are we clear but he will not collect the gst from the customer he will only go ahead and pay the gst to the government now whatever gst has gone on the supply that gst he wants it back so he will have to go ahead and apply for a refund are we clear everyone sir what if he has gone ahead and collected from the recipient if he has collected from the recipient recipient will go ahead and apply if you have collected from the recipient recipient also can go ahead and apply either supplier can apply or recipient generally supplier supply because recipients will not they will not collect it from the recipient but if recipient whoever is the buyer in case of deemed export has paid the gst he will go ahead and apply for the whoever has borne the burden can i go ahead everyone now a deemed export which i am going and te teaching you over here number one is supply by a registered person against advance authorization secondly over here is everyone listen to me very carefully one person dgft is there director general of foreign trade one person went to the director general of foreign trade and told sir 10 crore ka machine 
टू क्रोर का कस्टम ड्यूटी आई डोंट हैव मनी सर प्लीज लेट मी गेट द मशीन आई विल मेक फर्स्ट क्लास गोड्स एंड आई विल एक्सपोर्ट आई विल एक्सपोर्ट फॉरेन करेंसी डीजीएफटी हर्ड फॉरेन करेंसी विल टेल वेरी गुड प्लीज गो एड एंड टेक ए ऑथराइजेशन तो डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ फॉरेन ट्रेड विल नाउ गिव यू एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन के लिए कैपिटल गुड्स का ऑथराइजेशन दैट यू कैन गेट कैपिटल गुड्स फ्रॉम आउटसाइड इंडिया ना इफ आई गेट कैपिटल गुड्स फ्रॉम आउटसाइड इंडिया आई विल स्पेंड वॉट Forex, yes or no? So I went ahead and did what? I went ahead and bought from a person in India only. When I go ahead and supply him, what is my activity known as now? Because he will go ahead and give me export promotion, capital goods ka authorization. My activity will be deemed as a export. And on this activity, whatever GST is there, I will get a refund. Or if I, I have gone ahead and passed on the burden, he will go ahead and get a refund. Why? Again, in this scenario, because you are saving foreign currency. So government told Ramesh when you supply to him and he supplies outside India because it is anyways going to be export. It is deemed as a export. Can I go ahead, everyone? Deemed export. Advance authorization. If somebody has, I supply to him. Deemed export. If somebody has export promotion, capital goods authorization, I supply to him. Deemed export. The next one over here is, sir. Okay, sir. What do you mean by uh, the other thing? The other thing. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. Tell me one thing. A EOU is there, export oriented unit. What is the main job of export oriented unit to export? If I supply to an EOU, my activity is deemed as a export because ultimately the goods are going to outside India. Is my point clear to all, sir? So it says over here, supply of goods by registered person to a EOU. Number one, a a advance authorization. The, number two, export promotion capital goods. Authorization if somebody has given to me. Yes or no, everyone? Third one, EOU, EOU if I am supplying. Fourth, sir, supply of gold by bank or PSU against advance authorization. For an example, I will go ahead and tell you. This is PC jewelers. PC jewelers. They have gone and they, they have got an advance authorization. They went to the bank and told bank, you give us gold. Okay? Bank gave them gold. They made jewelry. And jewelry they are going to export this advance authorization ke against a bank is going ahead and supplying what gold or PSU is going ahead and supplying what gold they will not go ahead and charge any GST this activity will be deemed as a export because ultimately whatever good is made is going to be exported so whenever any gold is also supplied against what advance authorization that is also deemed as export everyone what is deemed export remember always a, a advance authorization E, e for EPCG authorization, E for a EOU, sir, and if there is a bank or PSU going ahead and supplying gold, then it will be known as what? Deemed as export. Deemed export, ka whatever supplies you have done, the month you file the deemed export related return, run, Baba, run, within how many years? Two years you should apply. Sir, A, A, E, E, voice, PG, A, A means advance authorization. E, e means E for EPCG authorization, E means EOU, B means bank or P means PSU supplying what? G for gold. Right everyone? Please write it quickly everyone. Done writing everyone. Everyone listen to me very carefully. In the boys PG, what happened? Right. Hey, hey. What happened? They were exported outside. Deemed exported. Remember always, sir. Deemed export. What happened? In the boys PG. Hey, ye. What happened? What and through them? Outside. Deemed exported. Are we clear everyone? Remember always in the exam. What is deemed export everyone? A, 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 E, boys PG. Right everyone? Now listen to me very carefully. Whenever the return has been filed with respect to the deemed export that this month I have gone ahead and exported, this month ka return whenever it has gone, from that day you should go ahead and apply within two years. Sir, one judge, judge ka court ka judgment has come, degree has come. From that day that degree has come, that degree has been communicated to you from that day within two years. Sir, one order has been received, for the day order has been received, you go within, apply within two years. Then, sir, refund of unutilized ITC. Do you remember unutilized ITC? Always remember one thing. <coughs> unutilized ITC ka refund can be given. ITC ka refund can be given only in two scenario. ITC refund is given only in two scenario. Number one, if you are going ahead and doing zero rated supply, you will get ITC ka refund. Are we clear everyone? Zero rated supply means if you are going ahead and exporting or supplying to SCZ. 
Are we clear, everyone? You will get ITC ka refund. Secondly, sir, if while buying something, the ITC is GST is 18%, but while making the goods and ultimately supplying, it is up supposedly 5%. 12%. Sir, generally what happened? Input pay rate, what is there? Output pay rate also will be same. Input pay rate, what is there? Output pay rate will be more. But if my input pay rate is 5%, output pay rate is 12%. Input pay rate is 5%, output pay 12. Then, then it is normal. Sir, input pay rate is 12, output pay rate is 5. Then it is inverted duty structure. Means you bought the raw material, made something and sold it. That selling may whatever output pay rate applicable is only 5%. You will tell sir how will I use my 18%. So government will give you the refund. These are the only two scenarios. Now the due date of return. That month you went ahead and included basically those supplies. They are going ahead and telling from the due date of return under section number 39. You have to apply within two years. Sir provisionally paid. I read, do you remember provisionally paid tax. Now, finalization has done. Once finalization is done, officer will adjust. Provisionally paid 5, finalization is 4, officer will adjust. 1 lakh is the refund. The day the adjustment is done, from there you should apply within 2 years. Can I go ahead everyone? Next, person other than supplier, I went ahead and sold the goods to you. The day I sold the goods to you or supplied the services to you, from that day you should. I went ahead and supplied the goods to you. It was exempted. But I went ahead and charged you 18%. Who will take a refund? I or you? You, if you want, you have to apply within how much time? Two years. Sir, I will, I did not apply. Consumer welfare fund. Can I go ahead everyone? Date of receipt of good services or both. Then, sir, wrong classification. Oh, sir, I paid IGST by mistake. CGST, SGST to be pay, paid. Sir, the day you pay the correct tax. Baba, remember, the day you pay the correct tax, from that you have to apply for refund of the wrong tax within two years. I paid IGST by mistake. Later, I went ahead and paid what? CGST, SGST. The day you correctly pay the tax, from that day you should apply within two years. This was a clarification which came in the last attempt. I went ahead and told it here only. Date of payment of correct tax. Correct tax means, sir, section number 77, if I have paid IGST by mistake, I should take IGST refund and pay CGST, SGST. Now, the time I have paid CGST, SGST, the correct tax, I should not pay any interest. Now, the wrong tax which is there, I should claim a refund from the date of payment of correct tax. Wrong tax paid, correct tax paid. From here, two years. Next. Sir, UN holder. You remember everyone, UN holder. Hey, these people, embassy, etc. Whatever they will buy, they will get a refund of the inputs which they buy. Of the inward supplies, whatever tax is paid, they will get a refund. Inward supplies. Ka. When should they apply? Once one quarter gets over, 18 months. 18 months. Are we clear? Sir, you understood relevant date from when you should run. Now, sir, everyone over here, I want to go ahead and apply for a refund. I should apply within two years. Whenever you are going ahead and filing an application, application is always subject to rule 10B. Means first your Aadhaar authentication has to be done. First your Aadhaar authentication has to be done. Now, application in GST RFD 01. Can I go ahead everyone? You have to go ahead and apply for Baba, all these other applications. We will go ahead and talk later. UN holder will apply in what? RFD 10. See, normal person always RFD 01. UN holder ulta only, reverse. RFD 10. This is 01, this is 10. That's it. Now sir, you know this canteen stores department which is there, canteen stores department, CSD canteens, army canteens. You know, army canteens may, whatever GST they have paid, no, they get 50% refund only of the inward supplies, whatever GST, because army canteens, may, army may, whatever supplies are done, they, generally there is no GST which is there. Now, whatever inward supplies they have gone and received, whatever GST they have paid, 50% refund is only given to them. CSD canteens get how much refund? 50%. That 50% ke liye when they file an application, they apply in ten, rule number 10A. Can I go ahead everyone? Everyone over here. Now, listen to me very carefully. Sir, I have to go ahead and apply. You know what is the relevant date? Relevant date should, should apply within two years. When you are filing the application, you should give documentary evidence or undertaking or statement that the refund is due. Are we clear everyone? Refund to so, sir, you have to give. And give to me also, that also we have to prove. So first, sir, you have to give the refund. Let's learn what are the documents to be given so that you can prove that the refund is due. Due to me? 
Next, everyone over here. Now, sir, we've entered and understood different scenario when I can claim a refund. Now, what is the documentary evidence to refund to due to establish that the sir refund is due? Everyone over here. Number one, when you export the goods by goods by uh, ship, it says a statement containing number and date of shipping bill. Sir, you export it. You will file shipping bill. In case of land route, you will file bill of export along with that number and date of relevant export invoice. For every export, you will make an export kind invoice also. So, shipping bill or bill of export plus the, not the invoice, number and date of the relevant export invoice. Make a statement. In the statement, first you have to give what? Number and date of the shipping bill or bill of export. And then the number and date of the Relevant export invoice. Sir, this is my export invoice. This is the date of the export invoice. This is the number of the export invoice. That's it. Statement you have to make. You don't have to give the invoices actually. You don't have to give the shipping bill. You have to give number and date of the shipping bill, number and date of the export invoice. That's it. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Sir, if I am going ahead and exporting by land or I am going ahead and exporting by post, same thing. Can I go ahead everyone? Sir, why I am not going ahead and concentrating on these things more? Because it is self-explanatory. We will concentrate more on where the conceptual learning has to be done. If I talk more here, you will get, your drain drainage will happen more. I am trying to preserve your energy for the places where you need. Here you don't need your brain. Don't, don't apply your brain here. Take everyone, otherwise it will get tired. Later of date of invoice or payment. Now everyone, invoice should be given. Payment you have received, that proof has to be given. Statement containing number and date of invoice, bank reconciliation state, uh, bank, uh, sorry, uh, what is this, BRC, uh, I forgot the name, FIRC forward inward for, uh, foreign inward remittance certificate and uh, BRC, one minute everyone, hey, uh, I forgot the name, sir, how can you forget, one minute, BRC or FIRC, sometimes we also forget, it's okay. Ah, it is FIRC is foreign inward remittance uh, certificate and bank realization certificate that bank have realized the money. Everyone over here, bank realization certificate that sir, bank is telling I have received the foreign currency or sir, foreign inward remittance certificate that the money has, has been received from outside India. Can we go ahead everyone? Everyone over here, a statement containing number of the invoice plus Bank reconciliation, uh, sorry, okay. bank realization certificate or foreign inward remittance certificate. Everyone, so invoice ka proof is given, payment ka proof is given. Next, sir, everyone over here, supply to an SCZ. If you have supplied to an SCZ unit or developer, first you have to prove, no? First of all, invoice ka detail. Secondly, you have to prove that you have supplied to the SCZ unit only. So, the SCZ unit may generally one authorized officer will be there. He will give one endorsement on the invoice saying, sir, we have received the goods for our authorized operation. Once he gives the seal, over. Everyone here. Statement containing number and date of invoice plus what? Endorsement. Endorsement from whom? The authorized officer that we have received the goods in our premises. Or plus the payment. Why, sir? Because export of service. If you are going ahead and telling, sir, I have supplied services to an SCZ, payment should be received. SCZ, whatever it is, SCZ, if you have supplied, payment should be received. No, payment details in case of service also has to be given. Can I go ahead, everyone? Sir, I have gone ahead and done a deemed export supply. Nothing. Statement containing number and date of invoice plus other documents as may be notified. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. When you do deemed export, a, A, E, E, Boys, P, G, Advanced Authorization, EPC Authorization, EOU, if you are supplying bank and public sector undertaking, supplying gold. Everyone over here, listen to me very carefully. They are telling other documents notified. Sir, first of all, acknowledgement by the jurisdiction. See, I have gone ahead and supplied to whom? Advanced Authorization Holder. Everyone, yes or no? Sir, how will the government be sure that when Ramesh went ahead and supplied, it has gone to the advanced authorization only? So, his jurisdictional officer who is there, no? So, when I apply for refund, I told I have supplied to an advanced authorization holder. How will government believe? That guy should have received, no? So, they are telling, Sir, whenever you supply to an advanced authorization holder, EPCG holder, etc., acknowledgement from the jurisdictional tax officer of the advanced authorization holder, EPCG holder, or Tax invoice signed by the EOU. Number one, acknowledgement can be taken from the jurisdictional tax officer. Number two, tax invoice signed by whom? 
EOU that supplies have been received. Baba, basically what government is trying to make sure is your goods have actually reached the advanced authorization holder or EPCG holder. Now, who's, who will confirm that? Those people will not confirm. They people can be also going ahead and taking advantage. So here, government went ahead and told their jurisdictional tax officer has to go ahead and give a acknowledgement that actually advanced authorization holder or EPCG holder has received the goods or capital goods. Secondly, if you have supplied to an EOU, EOU because they keep receiving EOU in the tax on wise only they will write and give yes sir received. Are we clear? So that has to be given as a proof while going ahead and claiming for a refund. Then sir, tax invoice signed by the EOU, EOU that supplies received comma undertaking by the recipient. If supplier is applying for, I told you supplier also can apply for refund in and recipient also can apply for refund in case of deemed export. Yes or no everyone? If I have gone ahead and collected the tax from him, then he will apply for the refund. If sir, if he has not gone ahead and taken the ITC also, he is not going ahead and uh, he is not paid the tax also. I have only borne the burden. I will go ahead and apply. So, sir, when I am applying, I have to give an undertaking from that guy that, sir, I, you have not taken the ITC also and you will not file a refund application. Otherwise, I also took refund. You also took refund then. Are we clear, everyone? So, what they are going ahead and telling? Number one, you should give an acknowledgement that the goods have been received. Secondly, sir, he will not take ITC. Thirdly, undertaking that he should, he will not take refund also. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. Sir, can both of them take the refund? Yes. Any one of them can take the refund. Means both means any one of them. Either supplier or recipient. If supplier is applying, he has to give acknowledgement from the jurisdictional tax officer that the goods have been received. Secondly, that that guy is not going to take ITC also and that guy will not take refund also. Can I go ahead everyone? Here now. Sir, if I have gone ahead and received an uh, appellate, supposingly, appellate authority went ahead and told, Amma, appeal disposed of in favor of Ramesh. I will apply for a refund of the pre-deposit. Within how much time? Two years. From which date? From the day court ka judgment has been given. Yes, everyone. Communication. Sir, document. Sir, I paid the pre-deposit. That detail you have to give. Secondly, court ka uh, judgment which has come, that details you have to give. So, it says reference number of order and copy of order passed. Are we clear? Reference number of order and copy also has to be given here. Plus, reference number of payment of pre-deposit. You have to give a reference number saying, sir, this was the reference number when I made the payment. Next. Sir, refund of unutilized ITC. You have gone ahead and refund, exported supposingly. When you export, ITC ka refund is given. All those export invoices, you would have gone ahead and included in your GSTR 3B. Sir, now those export invoices from the GSTR 3B, within two years, you will go ahead and apply. Yes, everyone, from the GSTR 3B monthly returns, you will apply within two years. What are the documents? They are going ahead and telling a statement containing number and date of invoices received and issued. Can I go ahead, everyone? What are the invoices relating to input, which I am claiming a refund? What are the export related invoice? All the details have to be given. Basically, you are trying to establish that the refund is due. Next. Sir, final assessment happened. Are you give a reference number and copy of the Final assessment order. Then, sir, person other than supplier, date of receipt of goods. Sir, what are the documents? Baba, you will have to go ahead and show a, a statement saying, sir, I had gone ahead and bought the goods. You have to prove with the document saying, sir, this is the invoice which is there, all those things. They have not gone ahead and told anything. But I think you will be able to say that, sir, person other than supplier, if I have sold the goods to you, you will have to go ahead and prove by giving documentary evidence. Might be your purchase invoice which is there. That, sir, see. These are the details of the purchase invoice. I have gone ahead and made the tax payment. All those things you have to go ahead and show. Next, sir, wrong classification. You have to give a statement showing the transaction detail. So, first I collected I GST. Then I go ahead and paid. See, GST, GST. All the, one, you have, one statement you make. Take it to the officer and give it. Explain him basically. Can we go ahead next? Statement showing means you have to make a statement and you have to explain him. Next, sir, UIN holder. Do you remember UIN holder? Whenever they go ahead... And whatever they buy, for all those, they have to go ahead and file a statement. Statement of inward supplies in GSTR 11. That statement of inward supplies has to be attached with the refund. Are we clear, everyone? Everyone over here. Are we all clear with relevant date? Sir, from first of all, from relevant date, you should run within two years. Application with application in GST RFD 01. Sir, UN holder RFD 10. CSD contains 10A. Leave it. 
you should always remember for your exam purpose rfd01 along with that you should remember that relevant date say within 2 years you have to come you have to come with documentary evidence first of all you will go ahead and give what documentary evidence to prove that the refund is due can i go ahead everyone so everyone listen to me very carefully first of all what will you give application along with that you will have to give a documentary evidence now these two application you gave rfd01 document you gave plus you have to attach sir for every scenario i have told you application within two years plus along with the application you have to give document to prove that the refund is due now refund is due to you only that document also has to be given that sir refund is due to me please don't put in consumer welfare fund otherwise always refund goes to the consumer welfare fund only but sir you have to prove that the refund is due to you only unjust enrichment they will go ahead and say a principle of unjust enrichment you can't become rich at the cost of someone else you would have passed out the burden so i will not go ahead and give you the refund we'll give the refund to him or if he's not their consumer welfare fund are we clear now everyone over here what is the documentary evidence to prove that no unjust enrichment refund less than equal to less than to lack self declaration give one self declaration you will get the refund or if greater than 2 lakh ca certificate baba whenever i see a ca it is always chartered accountant or cost accountant can i go ahead everyone listen to me very carefully i went ahead and told you application rfd01 along with that documentary evidence i told you documentary evidence generally it is what statement containing the number of the invoice date of the invoice etc then along with that you have to give a documentary evidence to prove that the refund is due to you only and that documentary evidence is a ca certificate if the amount is greater than 2 lakh or equal to 2 lakh if it is less than 2 lakh self declaration i will self declare sir i have not passed on the burden now unjust enrichment which is there is not applicable in five scenarios means you don't have to give all this ca certificate to prove and all are we clear number 1 sir tax paid on export of goods services or both or input and input services related tax on export everyone number 1 sir i went ahead and exported i paid igst this igst ka refund if you want in case of your export you don't have to prove anything they will give it to you only no declaration nothing required are we clear everyone sir i went ahead and exported i gave a lut itc ka refund will be there both the scenario no problem at all are we clear everyone sir now you went ahead and told zero rated supply right everyone zero rated supply exports i told you in exports you will pay what igst no unjust enrichment sir if i want itc ka refund no unjust enrichment anyone any doubt with this sir zero rated supply is scz supplies also if you are supplying to scz that is also zero rated in scz supplies also you can supply on payment of igst or you can take itc ka refund here everyone unutilized itc under section number 4543 me they go ahead and talk about zero rated supply they are telling unutilized itc it means itc of refund itc refund to scz supplies means this ke liye they are telling no unjust enrichment but sir what about igst paid to supplies to an scz in that scenario you have to prove you have to go ahead and prove that there was no unjust enrichment in this scenario you have to prove are we clear everyone see always remember zero rated supplies of four type one two type exports or sub scz supplies export or scz supplies on payment of igst or no no igst lut bond and itc ka refund now everyone over here sir in those two scenario no unjust enrichment no unjust enrichment ka proof is required but here proof is required to prove that sir i am not gone ahead and passed on the burden to the scz can i go ahead everyone everyone over here now tax paid on advance sir i went ahead you gave me an advance i paid the gst to the government you told hey i don't want supply no supply no tax invoice i gave the money back government should give the money back no in sir i you remember in case of services if I, goods ka case mein advance pay you don't pay gst but sir services ka case mein i collect the gst and pay if it doesn't pay whatever amount is there from there i have to pay if i paid the gst to the government i will claim for a refund sir no proof is required in your return only it is evident that sir i received the advance and i paid i did not go ahead and supply you see evident that i have not issued the invoice so they are telling no invoice is issued refund voucher was issued then you can go ahead and take the tax paid on advance sir i received everyone i received an advance 
I paid the GST to the government. Refund it the advance. Issued refund voucher. When you refund the voucher, refund voucher is issued, you can take the refund from the government. But remember always, no supply and no tax invoice. Huh? Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Sir, tax paid in pursuance of section number 7. Sir, I paid wrong tax. I collected IGST, paid IGST. Now I will pay, I will take IGST ka refund, pay CGST and HGST. When you are taking IGST ka refund, sir, do you think it is possible that one customer will pay two, two times GST to me? So never I have to go ahead and prove that I have passed on the burden. Are you guys able to understand? Sir, I collected IGST, paid IGST. Now I am going ahead and paying CGST, HGST and taking IGST ka refund. Customer will never pay me twice, sir. So there you don't have to prove any wrong determination of place of supply. Basically, you took intra to be inter, inter to be intra. You did not learn place of supply from me. So you entered and determined wrongly. So when you determine wrong uh, place of supply, you will go ahead and take intra to be inter or inter to be intra, you paid CGST and HGST instead of IGST, take CGST and HGST ka refund, pay what? IGST, so the day you pay IGST, you have to run within two years with documentary evidence, no requirement to prove unjust enrichment. Is my point clear to all? Everyone over here, interest or tax borne by notified class of applicant, if somebody is notified, then those people also don't have to prove unjust enrichment. Other than that, everyone have to go ahead and prove unjust enrichment. Can I go ahead everyone? Everyone, very simple. I went ahead and told you, sir, you have to apply from relevant date within two years. Sir, you are an older 18 months. Sir, you have to go ahead and apply. Application will go in RFD 0, 1 and 10. 1, so, yes, everyone, in case of you and holder. Now, when you are going ahead and applying, along with the application, give documentary evidence to prove refund is due. Refund is due to me. That also document has to be given. Now, documentary evidence is not applicable in five cases. Number one, sir, don't write zero at supply. Write exports ka case mein. Number two, sir, SCZ ko if you are supplying and ITC refund you are taking, then in that scenario it is not applicable. IGST refund it is applicable. The third one over here, sir, advance me if you have gone ahead and paid any tax and refund has been given. Fourth one over here. Sir, wrong tax. In this scenario, you don't have to or any other notified class of people ka case mein, you don't have to go ahead and prove any unjust enrichment means the second documentary evidence is not required. Can I go ahead everyone? Everyone over here now. Let's go ahead. Now, people listen to me one clearly one thing. Don't follow any other places here and there reading this book, that book. Sir, I found this. Please clarify. I am going ahead and told what was final thing. Are we clear everyone? Now you will go ahead and read ICI mat. You will see some places it is written less than equal to 2 lakh. Some places it is written less than 2 lakh. You will go ahead and tell me sir it is wrong. No Baba it is not wrong. Rules may they have told up to 2 lakh and sir in the act they have gone ahead and told less than 2 lakh which will prevail over what? Act will prevail over the rules. So I am telling less than 2 lakh only self declaration. Now you please don't go ahead and keep confirming the same thing again and again, again. I have clarified what was the final thing. Can I go ahead everyone? Now this is only one place but you will see a lot of places. Listen to me very carefully. Whenever you go ahead and apply, whenever you go ahead and apply in RFD 01, what ARN number? ARN number will be generated application reference number. That sir, application has been submitted. Now listen to me very carefully. Over here, I have gone ahead and applied for refund from my e-credit ledger for an example. E-credit ledger says 10 lakh a refund if I apply. The time you file the application, no, they will go ahead and deduct 10 lakh from here. Sir, I went ahead and gave an application today. The day you file the application, they will deduct the money. Whatever refund application is given, that money will be deducted from your e-cash ledger or e-credit ledger. Debited. Are we clear? Now, where, the, where will the money come? In your bank account. Simple. But sir, if the processing is not done, they are telling no, we will not give you the refund. Then, then sir, it will be recredited. 10 lakh will be recredited to your e-credit ledger. So now, everyone, when you go ahead and apply for refund, amount will be debited in your e-cash or e-credit ledger. Whenever you are going ahead and applying for refund, they will go ahead and debit the amount in your e-credit, e-cash ledger. Now, the money will come in your bank account. Sir, from e-credit, they will put it in your bank account. E-cash, sir, they will put in your bank account. Sir, if the processing may they told will not process, then they will re-credit. Can I go ahead, everyone? Everyone over here, listen to me very carefully. I went ahead and applied. Within how much time? Two years. Application gone? Application will be transferred to my jurisdictional officer. Now, why, what will my officer do? Okay. Application has gone. 
you will say mm, okay application is complete or not yes or no first you will check application then you say okay document yeah, is, 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 has, has he given all the statement everything which was required or not he will check everything and then you will say document to prove no unjust enrichment has he given or not he will check right everyone now he checked everything is fine he will give acknowledgement yes everyone once he gives acknowledgement money should come in your bank account now sir if officer goes ahead and sees sir this is the application that has come he is checking, okay, application, application is fine, document, I said document, document, he is not given proper document, now what will he do, he will reject, yes everyone, same thing, <coughs> application will be transferred to whom, jurisdictional officer, now if application is complete, he will go ahead and give you an acknowledgement, see, one minute, application is complete, he will issue an acknowledgement in GST RFD 02 indicating date of filing the claim. Why is he indicating the date of filing? Because from the date of filing, it should come in your bank account within 2 years. Sorry, 60 days from the date of filing. So, sir, I have filed over here. Within 15 days, he will give acknowledgement. But in the acknowledgement, he will write your date of filing because from the date of filing, you will get your refund within 60 days. Are we clear, everyone? Everyone over here now. So, what did I tell? First, first you will go ahead and give the application. PO application will be transferred to the jurisdictional of proper officer. He will verify application for completeness. Sir, documents are fine or not? Application is complete or not? Everything is fine. Then, sir, he will go ahead and issue an acknowledgement. Section number, rule number 90 deals with it, which goes ahead and says, acknowledgement if application is complete. Application is incomplete. Then he will issue a deficiency memo. He will issue a deficiency memo. This was the deficiency in your application. Are we clear everyone? And it will come in RFD 03. Amount will be recreated to your e-cash or e-credit ledger. Sir, can I go ahead and rectify the deficiency? No, Baba, no. You have to go ahead and now file a fresh application. Why, sir? Because from the application, 60 days is counted. So, they are telling old application will not accept. New application you have to go ahead and file. Are we clear everyone? Now file fresh application. People over here, relevant date, apply within 2 years. A UN holder, 18 months. RFD 01, RFD 10. Sir, when you are filing the application, give the documentary evidence. Along with the docu documentary evidence, you have, to, you have to go ahead and give documentary evidence to prove that it is, refund is due to me. You give all your documents, proper officer will verify within 15 days. Okay, when your application goes, they will go ahead and debit the amount in your e-cash or e-credit ledger. Now, what will happen? Within 15 days of the ARN number, within 15 days, officer will verify everything. Officer finds everything okay. He will give an acknowledgement in GST RFD 02 saying, Sir, we have got your application. We will do the processing. And there he will indicate the date of filing because from the date of filing, 60 days is counted. 60 days, my money has to come in your bank account. Otherwise, interest. Sir, if I went ahead and filed the application, he found some incompleteness, then he will go ahead and issue me a deficiency memo. Now, rectification and all can't be done. You have to file a fresh application. Are we clear? Everyone, one amendment which came in the last attempt, not an amendment now, but interesting amendment. Everyone, you tell me one thing. For an example, this is your relevant date. From here, within how much time you should apply? Two years. For an example, 31st December, two years gets over. You know what? You are a bad boy. Sir, you have celebrated Christmas everything, bad boy or bad girl, however it is. Sir, you celebrated Christmas everything, 26 December, you thought I will apply. You give application. He will go ahead and do processing within how many days? 15 days. Officer went ahead and should do the processing by here. Officer did the processing, deficiency memo given. Two years gone. Oh no, sir. Officer took 10 days, no? This 10 days will be given extra to you now. Because two years have already expired. Did you guys understand everyone? From the date of submission, of submission of application till the date of communication of deficiency memo, whatever is the date the officer has taken. Sir, I applied. Officer took 10 days. Okay. First of all, you are late comer. Still government entertained. In the favor of the SSCs, government went in and told, no problem. Supposingly, you filed your application over here. Officer took 10 days only. And he gave you a deficiency memo. Now, what will you do? You only cry. You hold two buckets over here. In the buckets, you cry. Why? Baba, gone. Application, you can't file only now. You can't file the application because time is already 
gone. So the amendment done in the last attempt was this 10 days with the officer is taken. They will give you 10 more days to go ahead and file. So from here again 10 more days will be given so that you can go ahead and file a press application. Are we clear everyone? That was the amendment done in the last attempt. Limitation period of 2 years for filing application to exclude time period from filing RFD 01 to the date of communication of RFD 03. Can I go ahead everyone till the date of communication? Communication means the day you received it. Communication of RFD 03. Are we clear everyone? Everyone over here listen to me very carefully. From relevant date within how much time you will apply? From the relevant date you will apply within 2 years. You are an older within 18 months. You will give an application. Application along with that documentary evidence along with the documentary evidence to prove refund is due. Five scenario not applicable. Documentary evidence to prove refund is due to you. Unjust enrichment ka document not applicable. Done. Sir once you give the application ARN number is generated. From ARN 15 days may. Baba, 15 days is the maximum. Officer will go ahead and give the acknowledgement. Either he will give acknowledgement that okay, everything is complete. We are taking it up for processing. Or they will give you a deficiency memo. If they give you a deficiency memo, they will recredit the amount in your e cash, e credit ledger, and you have to file a fresh application. Everyone over here, they went ahead and gave you an acknowledgement. Now, relevant date, application done, they give you an acknowledgement. Once the acknowledgement is given by them, Sir, listen, no, 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 not from their 60 days. 60 days is from application. 15 days also your application was with them only, no? It was complete application only. So, 15 days you already gone. Sir, once the acknowledgement is given, no? Within 7 days, because the zero rated suppliers were there need money, for zero rated supplier it is told, provisionally we will give a refund to them. Everyone over here, listen. Sir, verification of application and document and processing is happening. Now, proper officers are generally told that within, no, 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 one minute. From here, 15 days gone. Maximum is 15 days. Sir, officers are advised that within ne next 30 days, you please pass the refund order. Why? Because next 15 days, no, that government will also take time to give the money to the taxpayer. No, I'll tell you how it happens. You give the application. You give the application. He'll give the acknowledgement. 15 days gone. Bank account may within how many days? 60. Now, once the acknowledgement is done, within 30 days, if he goes ahead and passes the refund order, see, actually to pass the refund order, the time limit is 60 days from application. But the proper officers are advised. I am telling you currently what is happening. They are advised that you pass order within how many days? 30 days. So that if you give the refund order saying 1 lakh should be processed to that person, you know what happens? Listen. Refund ka sanction order, RFD is 06 is the sanction order. Sir, bank going ahead and telling sanction letter. Same way they are giving a sanction order saying that refund of 1 lakh is due. 1 lakh should be given. You know what? You have to go ahead and pay some duties etc. Adjustment, recovery. They recovered 20,000. Some adjustment they did and they will give you 80,000 now. You know what will happen? Listen to me very carefully everyone. Once the sanction is given of 1 lakh, that is the RFD 06 which is telling. But payment order, payment order is given in RFD, RFD 05, saying this much should be actually paid. Everyone, you will be paid how much? 80,000. Now, this, they, when they pass this letter, no, saying RFD 06, RFD 05, officer will go ahead and state over there. 1 lakh was the amount, out of that 20,000 we are adjusting, etc. And you have, if this person should be given only 80,000. Now, this 80,000, officer will not take out from his pocket, saying, okay, let me take out count cash, take and go. No. Here what will happen, this payment orders, no, they go to one website called PFMS ka website. Are we clear everyone? This is government ka website which is there. If you see over here, I'll show you. See. PFMS, Public Financial Management System, this is the government of India ka website which is there. From here the money is dispatched to you. Money is disbursed from here. So, what will happen? This payment advice, this payment order which is there, no? Everyone, are you guys able to understand till here? The officer gave a payment order. This payment order, ka, no? One summary will be made. See, in a day, the officer will pass one payment order saying 80,000 to be paid to him. The officer will pass so many payment order. All the payment order, no? One total will be done. And this total with all the bank account detail where it is to be transferred, one summary will be made. This bank account, this much, this bank account, this. that is called, this is called a payment order, right everyone? And this is called consolidated payment advice. Consolidated 
payment advice which your GST portal will prepare. Portal will send it to whom? PFMS ka website and PFMS website will give in your bank account. Don't you think it will take time? That is why 15 days is kept with the corporate. Are we clear everyone? Otherwise, if they pass over here also, it's okay. But sir, if 60 days exceeds, no, they will have to give you interest. That is why proper officers are advised. Can I go ahead everyone? Otherwise, payment order, ke liye, refund order, ke liye, date is, day, days are how many? 60 days only. Can I go ahead everyone? Now listen. Sir, this uh, people who are there, 08 supplier, section number 546, read with rule number 91, which talks about provisional refund, say that 90% of the refund, see, your... Uh, Application made no prima facie they will say ha application may everything is fine ha everything looks fine provisionally because zero eight supplier needs money they will give you ninety percent refund it says over here only for zero eight supplier provisional refund order will be given in RFD zero four and sir payment order will be given in RFD zero five listen refund order is RFD zero four let me take out the orders you can see the source one minute. Everyone over here, let me go ahead and show you some forms also. See, application will go in RFD 0, 1. Acknowledgement will be given in RFD 0. Sir, where is acknowledgement? So big form. Take one minute. RFD 01 was manual application. Forget it now. Old it is. See here. RF RFD. 02 is the application. Are we clear? Deficiency memo RFD 03. Sir, if provisional refund has to be given, where is that provisional refund? Okay. Here, provisional refund order will be given in RFD 04. It is only in respect of whom? Zero rated supplier. When they give you a refund order, here they will go ahead and tell 10 lakh. But that 10 lakh, they have to also confirm it by a payment order. Why payment order? Because payment order, which is there, the total will be done. With the bank account detail, it will be sent to PFMS ka website. So, they have to create a payment order. Portal will prepare that summary. Sir, here, payment order. That, sir, this was the net refund which was there. Along with that, this is the interest which is there. One total amount they will go ahead and put. Are we clear, everyone? And this will be sent to the PFMS website who will go ahead and dispatch your amount. Everyone, see, 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 see. Now, RFD 04, RFD 05. Sir, what if the officer is satisfied that uh, with uh, preliminary examination that everything is fine? He will do now again? No, not required. If officer on preliminary scrutiny only is satisfied that a refund is due to you only within 7 days, then he will give you 100% refund. In that scenario, provisional refund order is not given. In that scenario, refund sanction order is only given. Refund sanction or refund rejection ka order is same only. Can I go ahead everyone? He will go ahead and give you a, a proper officer is satisfied that no further scrutiny is required. Final sanction order will be given and payment order will be given. Sir, this payment order say who will create? The common portal will go ahead and create one summary. And the summary will be sent to whom? Payment advice. Baba. Payment advice is sent to whom? Shared with the PFMS website. And PFMS goes ahead and gives in your bank account. Of course, it is not delayed so much. Baba, in case of provisional refund, it is not delayed so much. I am just linked it over here. Can I go ahead, everyone? Everyone over here, you tell me. Relevant date. Apply within two years. You and holder within 18 months. You will have to file RFD 01. Along with RFD 01, you have to give document to prove that refund is due. Refund is due to you only. You have to give it another proof also. Sir, five cases under unjust, unjust, unjust enrichment is not applicable. Now, once you go ahead and file the application, amount will be debited in your e-cash or e-credit ledger. Application reference number generated. From that day, within 15 days, acknowledgement will be given. RFD 02 may acknowledgement. RFD 03 may deficiency memo. Deficiency memo, then you have to file a fresh application. Once the acknowledgement is given, from the date of application, you have to, uh, he will go ahead and do the processing within 60 days. Sir, from the date of acknowledgement, within 7 days, provisional refund to 088 supplier. Provisional refund order, RFD 04. Sir, sanction, uh, payment order, RFD 05. Sir, if on provisional refund, he is thinking, why provisional and all? Let me go ahead and give final amount. Why to waste time again and again? He will give RFD 06, my final refund sanction order. Along with that, payment order he will give. Payment order ka basis pay, PFMS website, uh, portal will create consolidated payment advice. Payment order, consolidated payment advice. Consolidated payment advice will go to PFMS website and they will give in your bank account. 
Are we clear? Of course, when seven days may they are processing the refund, within the next two, three days, your money should come. Can I go ahead? Everyone listen to me very carefully. Sir, if I am not a hero, hero means zero rated supplier. If you are not a zero rated supplier, then what will happen? From the application, 15 days he already took. 30 days may he, is, he has to go ahead and pass the refund order. Now everyone, refund is admissible. Then he will go ahead and give you a refund sanction order in RFD 06. Yes or no? Sir, hey, your refund I will not give you. Refund, everything is fine. Document is fine. But you should not get the refund. Then he will issue you a notice. You come and tell me, show me the cause. Why I should not reject your refund application? Everyone over here. RFD 08. Can you see over here? Notice for rejection of application. Correct? No, you will ask. No, that is why he will give you notice. Hey, you come. Then you have to go ahead and. Sir, now the applicant has to reply within. 15 days in RFD 09, reply to the show cause notice. Once you go ahead and reply, he will pass a refund rejection order. If he feels everything is fine or he accepts your reply, then he will give you a refund sanction order in RFD 06. Everyone over here, what did I tell you? Relevant date, two years application. Two years application, acknowledgement, acknowledgement, provisional refund. Provisional refund is not there for you. Then within the next 30 days, basically 15 days plus 30, 45 days may they are advised. 45 days is the actual advice which has come. Okay? That sir, acknowledgement you give quickly. No? Why do you need 15 days for acknowledgement? Now, sir, 45 days done, they will go ahead and give you a show cause notice. If they have it out, you have to reply and then they will reject or they will accept. If they are not going ahead and giving you notice, but it is not necessary that they have to give you the notice. If no problem at all, they will sanction the refund. Everyone listen to me very carefully. They sanction the refund over here. Final sanction amount 1 crore. Provisionally, they gave you supposingly 90 crore or might be there was an outstanding demand, demand order you are not paying, adjust. Are we clear everyone? They will do all the adjustment and give one payment order. Can you see over here? Sir, 1 crore was the refund, 1 crore was the refund, 90 lakh rupees they adjusted. Outstanding demand, 10 lakh a payment order. What will happen of the pay payment order? Tell me. Pay payment. Advice will be created, consolidated payment advice. Why consolidated it is? Four or five people got all the, in a day, whatever payment orders are issued, all will be totaled and one consolidated payment advice is created. And that advice is sent to PMMS website and they will give you the money. See over here everyone. Sir, this payment order, payment order will go to whom? PFMS, cons consolidated payment advice will be created by whom? Portal, portal will share it with whom? PFMS and PFMS will make sure that the money comes in your bank account within 60 days. So, 15 days ka time is given for the PFMS. Now, everyone, officer went ahead. Listen to me very carefully. Sanction order is supposingly 1 crore. Okay. Officer gave you 100 crore ka sanction. There is no adjustment or none. How much payment order? 100 crore. Listen to me very carefully. If withholding by proper officer, withholding means your refund will be withheld. Money has taken the money back from the government. Take everyone. Now, refund of ITC under section number 54.3 is due. Sir, what they are telling is withholding. Sir, withholding by proper officer. If the refund of ITC under section number 54.3 is due and you have defaulted in return or liable to pay tax interest penalty, Baba, what is the refund due? Refund of Input tax credit, which was under section number 54.3, ITC ka refund in case of export or zero rated supply, then they will go ahead and withhold that amount. Sir, registered person has defaulted in return or liable to pay tax interest penalty, then your proper, proper officer will, will withhold the refund. Everyone over here, listen. Are you guys able to grab it? Very easy. Nothing is there in the chapter, correct or not? Hey, what is there? Have you seen anything difficult till now? See, withholding refund, no? One minute. Here, 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 here. Yeah. Where any refund is due under section number 3, subsection 3 means ITC refund. ITC ka refund. Who has defaulted in furnishing any return or who is required to pay tax interest penalty which has not which has not been stayed by the court, the proper officer may withhold the payment. Can you see over here? The same thing I have told you over here. Can I go ahead everyone? Sir, if you and they are telling may withhold the refund, deduct what? 
टैक्स इंटरेस्ट पेनल्टी लेट फी और एनी अदर अमाउंट अनपेड सिंपल एवरी वन इफ सपोज इंगली वन करोड़ हंड्रेड करोड़ वॉज रिफंडेड टू यू नाउ दे आर गोइंग एंड एंड टेलिंग विल नॉट गो एड एंड गिव यू द रिफंड इफ रिफंड वॉज ऑफ वॉट रिफंड इज ऑफ आई टी सी is due if refund of itc is due to you basically those itc ka refund which is under section number 54 32 scenario then they are going and telling a registered person has defaulted in the return or liable to pay tax interest penalty to the department then they will go ahead and withhold the refund and deduct the tax interest penalty fees etc or any other amount now listen to me very carefully officer passed 100 crore you are doing dancing over here Commissioner is of the opinion that department should go for a departmental appeal. Commissioner will go ahead and stay the operation and withhold the refund. Everyone withholding by the commissioner if refund is subject matter of appeal or further proceeding likely to ad adversely affect revenue. They are going ahead and telling sir, if we give the refund, no, this money will take hundred. This person will take hundred crore and run away. If he feels all those scenario, if refund is subject to appeal or further proceeding likely to adversely affect revenue then they are going ahead and telling number one your proper officer is withholding when when the refund is of itc ka refund because you are not paying tax interest penalty etc he is withholding it secondly who is withholding commissioner but do you remember commissioner goes for departmental appeal now if commissioner is going ahead and thinking that i have to go for a departmental appeal proper officer is pass 100 crore no 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 he will stay he will withhold the amount can i go ahead everyone next sir and they will tell you that we have withhold the amount part a of rfd 07 order for withholding of refund informing the reason whenever they withhold the refund they will to inform you know yes or no they will inform you in rfd 07 can i go ahead everyone now sir later officer realized oh no not required we should release the refund then they will go ahead when proper officer is satisfied refund is no longer liable to be withheld then they will go ahead and release and they will pass one order in rfd 07 yeah. can i go ahead everyone everyone over here listen to me very carefully relevant date 2 years application application se 15 days acknowledgement acknowledgement or deficiency memo acknowledgement given within 7 days provisional refund to zero rated supplier sir from that day within 30 days they will go ahead and give uh, pass the refund sanction order once the refund sanction order is given baba actual refund sanction order ke liye it is 60 days only sir once the refund sanction order is passed now if any adjustment is to be done they will adjust the amount and remaining ka payment order will be given can i go ahead everyone now whatever is the refund amount which is there whatever is the refund amount that is going to come to you if officer wants to go ahead and withhold your proper officer then he or she can also withhold if commissioner wants to withhold then commissioner also can withhold if when your proper officer will withhold basically you have not paid tax interest penalty etc tax interest uh, penalty etc is to be paid by you then they will go ahead and withhold can i go ahead if commissioner will withhold when commissioner wants to go for a departmental appeal and they know if they give you the refund it is you are going to take and run away so they are going ahead and withholding can i go ahead everyone if withheld amount is refunded hey my refund was due on this day 68 day you withheld it for 2 years give me interest after the expiry of 60 days up to the date of refund they have to give you interest sir taxable person entitled to interest at the rate of 6% everyone listen to me very carefully i'll tell you one brilliant thing what people did okay i have itc i have itc 1 lakh rupees output tax liability was 10000 how much how much can i use 10000 only yes or no hey 10000 is due i'll use 10000 only no what people used to do no they used to go ahead and pay Not ten thousand. One, two, three, four, one zero extra paid. How much you paid? One lakh. How much is the refund? Hey, how much is the output tax left? Hey, everyone, output tax liability is ten thousand. You are to be like here. Then out input tax credit is how much? One zero three four. One extra zero added. You paid how much extra? What to do? Refund. What people used to do? I'll tell you. ITC का रिफंड इज जनरली नॉट गिवन नो पीपल यूज टू गो एड एंड फाइल वन पे द टैक्स एक्स्ट्रा नाउ दे विल गो एड एंड फाइल वन एप्लीकेशन एप्लीकेशन गिवन प्रोसेसिंग विल बी डन एंड इट विल कम इन योर बैंक अकाउंट ITC कन्वर्टेड इनटू बैंक मनी इनपुट टैक्स रेडिएट पीपल यूज टू कन्वर्ट इनटू बैंक कैश गवर्नमेंट टोल्ड वेट बाबा वेट 
whenever refund is due to you it will be always refunded in the original mode you paid through itc refund in itc if you paid through cash refund in cash sir we paid 50 50 50 50 are you guys able to understand they are going ahead and telling rule number 921a introduced this government came to know after loopholes are going ahead and discovering government saw refund in cash or credit based on original mode proper officer shall issue rfd 06 so now everyone over here for the refund to be paid in cash sir for the refund to be paid in cash listen this refund is to be paid in cash the nt thousand is to be paid in cash no 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 it has to go back to the e credit ledger for this they will not give rfd 06 for this they will tell listen baba listen for this it is not a refund sanction it will be recredited for recrediting we not do will not go ahead and issue rfd 06 we'll issue gst uh 03 one form is there one minute see here it is they will go ahead and issue gst pmt 03 for recrediting amount as itc in the e credit can i go ahead listen final refund amount in cash any outstanding adjustment they will do and remaining amount will be paid in cash everyone over here remember one thing simple sir refund sanction refund supposingly you went ahead and paid you went ahead and paid supposingly over here to the government you paid 50000 rupees are we clear 50000 ke liye you use 25000 cash 25000 credit government told okay this amount has to be refunded when they will refund 25000 they will put in the e credit ledger and 25000 they should give in your bank for this they will issue pmt03 and for this 25000 they will issue rfd06 where they will put 25000 in this they will adjust whatever outstanding amount is there and remaining amount 20000 they will go ahead and issue payment order rfd05 is my point clear to all can I go ahead everyone? However you have paid, you paid 50-50. If they are refunding also, they will refund 50-50 only. 50% 50 in cash, 50% in bank accounts. Can I go ahead everyone? Everyone over here, they are telling, proper officer shall issue RFD 06 for refund of the amount to be paid in cash. Final sanction amount in cash. From that also they will adjust whatever amount is there and remaining payment order. Sir, whatever is the amount to be recredited, for amount to be recredited, they will always go ahead and issue what? PMT 06. Thought, sorry, 3. Are we clear till here? Everyone listen to me very carefully. All this payment order which is there, which one? This payment order, this payment order, all the payment orders say one consolidated payment advice is prepared, shared with the PFMS website and the money goes in your bank account. Are we clear everyone? Now listen, this birthment is complete. Sir, in my bank account it did not come. I want interest. Yes, Baba. After the expiry of 60 days, basically from the application, if within 60 days money has not come in your bank account, they are going ahead and telling, we will give you, one payment order will also be issued by the officer. Baba, in the payment order, he will go ahead and mention that, Sir, please give interest also to this guy. See, wait, I will show you. See here interest also they will mention in the payment order are we clear everyone one minute it is not working is it just a minute everyone just a minute people okay now it's working everyone see interest on delayed refund he will go ahead and pass a payment order for that also an amount will be given in your bank account are we clear everyone now listen interest is always six percent under section number 56 Remember always, if they don't give you within 60 days, then they will give you interest for the days delayed after 60 days basically. Can I go ahead everyone at the rate of 6? Sir, I got the money. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I cheated the government. Baba, erroneous refund, demand and recovery chapter. Don't forget, from the date of erroneous refund, they can recover the amount within 3 years or 5 years in case of fraud. Everyone over here, we are done with your refunds. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Everyone, now listen. All you have to learn in this chapter, you know what? How to calculate that ITC ka refund. That's it. Nothing else. Everyone here now. You have to go ahead and apply within the relevant date, say two years. Application will go on RFD01, RFD10A. 
right everyone once you go ahead and file your application you have to give document to prove refund is due sir refund is due to you are we clear everyone then sir then 15 days may they will give acknowledgement within 15 days once they give the acknowledgement okay now provisional refund within seven days to whom sir those people who are pro zero rated supplier or you will get within 60 days right everyone within 60 days basically from the date of application they will go ahead and file one refund sanction order or rejection order same rfd 06 sir when the refund is given if they want to adjust amount they will adjust remaining cup payment order will be given sir the payment amount also if they want to withheld then they can withheld that amount also can i go ahead everyone or commissioner if he wants to withheld he can also withheld are we clear when the withheld withholding is done they will go ahead and give you the details in rfd 07 part a Sir, withhold refund, whenever they want to return it to you, they will give you the details in RMD 07, Part B. Whenever they are withholding, not adjusting, Baba, adjustment ka detail, so they will give in the refund order only. In the refund order, they will write, 10 crore ka refund given, adjustment done, 2 crore, 8 crore, we will give you the payment. And for that, they will issue one payment order. Adjustment ka detail is not given. Earlier, adjustment detail was also given. Nowadays, no adjustment detail. Only withholding then they will inform you withheld refund refunded withheld amount refunded then they will give you with interest at the rate of six percent are we clear sir how i have paid they will refund same way how i have paid they will refund me the same way when i made the payment supposedly one lakh rupees ka i paid 50 percent in cash 50 percent in credit sir if i am getting a refund supposedly they will refund me 50 percent in cash and 50 percent in credit 50 percent cash will basically they will be giving a payment order and the amount will come in my bank account remaining 50 percent they will give me one pmt 03 and the amount will be they will not they will just issue one pmt 03 which will make that which will make sure the portal will make sure that the amount goes back to your e-credit ledger right everyone now that's it everyone if money doesn't come in your bank account within 60 days, then interest at the rate of 6%. Everyone over here. Now, beggars are not given refund. They are telling no refund below 1000 and all. CGST 1000, SGST, IGST how much? Hey, IGST also 1000. Write and keep. CGST, SGST or IGST. When you go ahead and read section number 20 of the IGST Act, you will see this. For CGST, SGST and IGST, all the three KLA, it is how much? CGST or SGST or IGST, any one of them it is 1000. Everyone over here, provisional refund is given on preliminary scrutiny. They are telling thieves and all will not entertain. Okay? They are telling no provisional refund if person is prosecuted for any offense during any immediate preceding 5 years and tax evaded was how much? 250 lakh. If you were prosecuted, if you are put in jail, jail wala food was given, okay? then they are going ahead and telling, if immediately preceding 5 years may you are put in jail, then you are, you are not trustworthy. For you, provisional refund and all will not give, after verification only we will give the final refund. Can I go ahead everyone? Now here, listen. Everyone over here, down, can you see? Application before issuance of, okay, I filed the application, sir, I want to withdraw the application, my mistake. But withdrawal can be done before issuance of provisional refund order, final sanction order, payment order, then, sir, this is what, RMD 07, here, 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 withholding, withholding, before withholding, and then, sir, he withheld the refund. I did not file the refund only, withdrawn. Can you do that? No. Can I go ahead? Then RFD 08. What is RFD 08? Everyone over here. I also don't remember what was RFD. Ha. Notice, notice. Are notice, notice. Can I go ahead, everyone? So before that, sir, I filed the application. He gave the acknowledgement. Can I withdraw? Yes. Before, see, RFD 01 is application. RFD 02 is acknowledgement. RFD 03 is deficiency memo. Till that stage, you can withdraw. Acknowledgement or deficiency stays stuck, you can withdraw. Deficiency stays though, anyways, he has thrown you away. What will you do? What withdrawal? Then, sir, he gave the acknowledgement. Can I withdraw? Yes. But provisional refund given, order given, payment order given, sanction order given. After that, all these things may, you can't go ahead and withdraw. With respect to application, may withdraw the application. See, applicant before issuance of all this can withdraw the application by filing RFD 01. W and on submission of RFD 01. Okay, sir, I applied for refund. They went ahead and debited the amount. Sir, I am withdrawing the application. What will happen? Recredit. 
द अमाउंट विल बी रिक्रिएटेड टू द ई कैश लेजर और ई क्रेडिट लेजर एनी डाउट एनी वन नेथिंग सर बैलेंस इन द ई कैश लेजर यू नो व्हाट दे हैव टोल्ड इन द लॉ दैट बैलेंस इन द ई कैश लेजर नो इन के ई माय इन माय ई कैश लेजर 1 लाख रुपीस इज देयर यू हैव टू फाइल अ रिफंड माय कैश so they are telling you don't have to file a refund application when you are filing return no in e return you tick i want a refund of my e cash amount they will come they will give you your bank account but practically it is not happening practically people are filing refund application only for e cash but for a exam purpose if they ask you ha ah, sir e cash ka refund can be given by going ahead and claiming through return everyone listen to me very carefully do you remember ctp and rtp casual people casual government went ahead and told everyone before going ahead and giving you refund uh, when you apply when you give an application you have to give what advance tax advancement net tax liability yes or no and it will go to your e cash ledger do you remember you went ahead and gave 10 lakh rupees as your advancement tax okay why 10 lakh and all 10000 theek hai they gave you the registration certificate Registration certificate valid for one month, two months. You file GSTR three B. You file GSTR three B. CTP, NRTP ka case mein GSTR five is there. They are telling whatever amount is there on e cash ledger. Generally, a person can go ahead and fly claim through return. Yes or no? But for you guys, only after you go ahead and file your last return. In your last return, you can go ahead and claim that refund. They are going ahead and telling over here balance in the e cash ledger can be taken through return, but in case of NRTP and CTP, basically what happens only if they go ahead and file their last return. After that, they can go ahead and claim a refund of the e cash. Just imagine, sir, you gave me uh, registration by taking advance. I'll take a refund of the advance. Only after you go ahead and file the last return, you can go ahead and claim a refund. Everyone over here, CTP and NRTP related talk here. See. Not withstanding anything to the contrary, the amount of advance tax deposited by CTP and RTP shall not be refunded unless such person, in respect of the entire period for which certificate has been granted, has furnished all the return. Only when you go ahead and file all the return, you can go ahead and claim a refund. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next, sir, refund to UIN holder if good services received by registered person. Okay, refund is available to a UIN holder if he has received the what? good services from a registered person against tax invoice everyone i went ahead and bought from a registered person my i know one person in the embassy i will give him my, my gst invoice tell him sir you can to claim the refund no whenever a un holder is buying he has to make sure that he should tell that other person that i am a un holder i will claim a refund of the invoice supplies pay tax i should tell that person you mention my un number on the invoice see here everyone sir UIN holder will be given a refund if good services received from registered person against tax invoice with UIN of the applicant on it. Means my application when I am going ahead and applying for refund of the tax, basically my tax invoice with UIN of the applicant. Can I go ahead, everyone? Otherwise, what will happen? Listen, this UIN holders who are there, embassy may I know one person, ITC ka refund we don't get. I will give him all the invoices, all the GST which is there. He can claim refund of the invoice supplies per tax paid. He will take all the refunds. So government went ahead and told UN holder when you are coming for a refund, all your invoices which are there for which refund you are claiming, all those invoices may your UN, your your UN should be mentioned because we will go ahead and we can verify if they want. Anyways, it is not told in the documentary evidence as of now, but still, if they want, they can go ahead and ask you to get the invoices. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next, proviso. If UIN is not mentioned, then sir, refund available if invoice copy duly attested is submitted. You will have to attest a copy and duly attested copy has to be submitted that sir, these were received by the UIN only, UIN holder only. That attested copy has to be submitted to the department. Only then they will go ahead and give the refund. Can I go ahead, everyone? This one proviso has been introduced, sir. No refund of unutilized ITC, sir. I exported the goods. ITC ka refund you give me. Government is selling on export. Export duty is there. Why export? Pay export duty is charged by the government because government is not encouraging that export. Yes, everyone. Government is not encouraging that export, but still you are exporting. Yes or no? So government went ahead and told if your export may export duty is there, ITC refund will not give. No refund of unutilized ITC if goods exported are subject to export duty. Why, sir? 
अरे एक्सपोर्ट ड्यूटी वाई एक्सपोर्ट ड्यूटी इज देर ऑन योर गुड्स बिकॉज गवर्नमेंट डजेंट वॉन्ट यू टू एक्सपोर्ट इफ आई टी सी इज गिवन इन जीएसटी डिपार्टमेंट वन साइड गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट एनकरेजिंग इन कस्टम वन साइड जीएसटी डिपार्टमेंट इज गिविंग रिफंड बोथ आर गवर्नमेंट का डिपार्टमेंट ओनली नो so they maintained and told if goods are subject to export duty we will not go ahead and give you an utilized itc ka refund sir you know igst ka to duty drawback i took in customs in gst and all refund will not be given supplier avails dbk with respect to central tax claims or uh, dbk with respect to central tax or claims refund of igst everyone listen to me very carefully in customs if you go ahead and claim all the refunds etc of that igst paid or in customs you have gone ahead and claim duty drawback with respect to igst amount also then now they are telling in gst and all will not give you any refund i hope everyone is clear over here people tell me one thing did you guys go ahead and understand everything over here i went ahead and told you people quickly tell me sir from the relevant date within how much time yeah. Two years, you have to file the application. RFD zero one, RFD ten, or ten A for CSD contain fifty percent refund, fifty percent GST on their inwards inputs is given basically. Can I go ahead, everyone? Yes, fifty percent of the GST paid basically is given as a refund to them. Sir, once your application goes, amount will be debited to your e-cash ledger, e-credit ledger. Now, once your application has gone from fifty within fifteen days, acknowledgement. Sir, acknowledgement or deficiency memo. If deficiency memo is given, fresh application to be filed. Sir, from the date of application till the date of deficiency memo, difference day 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 they will give you extra. Sir, once the application is submitted within seven days, within seven days provisional refund. Correct everyone. Or final sanction order also can be given if preliminary scrutiny shows that refunds is due. Full amount will be refunded. So once the refund is uh, once uh, provisional refund, okay, leave it now. Sir, acknowledgement given within next thirty days they will try. Actually, from application it is sixty days. Then they will give you notice. Any doubt is there? Notice, reply, and then rejection order. Otherwise, sanction order. Or directly sanction order is given if no no doubt is there. Sanction order is given. Any adjustment under of tax etc. They will do remaining amount. They will go ahead and refund it to you. Sir, refund amount which is there. If they want to withhold, they can go ahead and withhold. Sir, if it is an unutilized ITC ka refund, then they can go ahead and proper officer can go ahead and withhold. Sir, proper officer can only withhold whenever it is refund of unutilized ITC which is there. Everyone and commissioner can withhold whenever commissioner has a doubt. That sir, it is free judicial for the revenue to go ahead and give you the refund. Then, from, or they are they are contemplating that we'll go for an appeal and we'll win. Then they will withhold. When they withhold, they will give the detail in RFD zero seven part A. Sir, when they refund the withheld amount, RFD zero seven part B me they will give you the details. Now, once the withheld refund is refunded, the money will come in your bank account along with interest at the rate of six percent. Sir, how I paid? Same way, I'll be refunded. Amount will come in the bank account. If it doesn't come in the bank account, interest will be given be given at the rate of six percent. If it's an erroneous refund, demand and recovery chapter three years or five years may uh, demand order will be given to you. Right, everyone. I hope everyone is clear till here. People, hundred percent clear till here. Done. Everyone, what was the amendment in the chart? Number one, refund applications are now subject to Aadhaar authentication. Okay, everyone. Secondly, whenever UN holder has an invoice on which basically they have not gone ahead and mentioned the UN, then the invoice has to be an attested copy which is there, attested invoice. Can I go ahead, everyone? Then the invoice copy, if refund refund will be available only if invoice copy duly attested is submitted. Are we clear till here, everyone? These are the two amendments in your refund ka chart which is there. Now, everyone over here. Section number fifty-six. I have already taught you interest on refund. Yes, everyone. If you are not given a refund within how many days? Sixty days. Then you will be getting interest at the rate of six percent. Remember, as of now, interest at the rate of six percent is only given in case of all the refunds which is there. Here, nine percent and all. You will see. You ignore this. You have to remember for your exam purpose. Interest always at the rate of six percent, which is there. Can I go ahead, everyone? The next one is consumer welfare fund. Consumer welfare fund. How it will uh, it will be utilized and Consumer Welfare Fund का rule, sir, can you see over here? This is the act, this is the rules. Listen, I'll tell you, sir. If the money is not given refund to the supplier or the recipient is not traceable, the money will be put in a fund called Consumer Welfare Fund. Consumer Welfare Fund, which is supposedly to be used for the benefit of the consumer. Clear, everyone? Now, government is telling we will go ahead and use the money. See, any income from the investment, see whatever money is there in the Consumer Welfare Fund, they will invest. Money earned. Interest on investment on investments in income on also will be put in the fund, 
and sir how are we going to use will be the manner prescribed sir it says the government shall constitute a fund called consumer welfare fund and create the fund of the amount referred in section number 545 means whatever the amount is not given to you will be put in the consumer welfare fund any income from the investment also will be created in the fund and such other money received means whatever money has been received by the government any other money will also be created to the fund now sir in the manner prescribed manner prescribed is over here can you see over here sir how will the fund be utilized that also will be in, as may be prescribed in consultation with the cndg sir how will we use the money people this is your homework everyone please read at home sir how will the money be utilized listen so first the money will be put in consumer welfare fund consumer welfare fund said they will put the money in the investment investment ka income also will come in the consumer welfare fund now what will they do with the money sir by chance supposingly if refund is due later they have to go ahead and give the money sir this fund ka uh, you this fund ka audit will be done by the cndg who is there sir audit ke liye this uh, fund to manage one committee will be created committee will meet four four times in a year all those stories are told sir committee whoever is the committee which has been created what are the power this you remember for exam third class question but still remember theek okay. hai sir the committee which is created they will make sure that 50% of the money of the fund is given towards consumer welfare advertisement for the consumer regarding gst pay or gst etc all those advertisement will be done right everyone this is for your homework to be read at home we'll continue our discussion everyone now with refunds ka rule number 89 sub rule 4 one of the most interesting rules which they have gone ahead and created now i hope you guys know that in refund chapter there are there is itc ka refund which is there yes everyone unutilized itc ka refund you get only in two scenarios you get unutilized itc ka refund those two scenarios ke liye how much refund they will be giving you they have gone ahead and told by a formula everyone over here unutilized itc un utilized itc ka refund is given in two scenario can you tell me two scenario everyone number one is when you make zero rated supply what is zero rated when you export or you go ahead and supply to a scz right you will get itc ka refund correct everyone or if you go ahead and make inverted duty structure supply what is inverted duty structure when in your output supply pe rate is supposedly 5% and your inward supply the rate is might be 12% generally it is that input pay rate which is there output pay rate is higher or it is equal but if output pay rate is lower then it's a reverse situation and reverse situation is known as inverted duty structure and government says after going ahead and paying the 5% from this whatever is remaining amount will give you the refund are we clear everyone so we are going to first of all and now here how much refund you will get here how much refund you will get this is told by rule number 894 and here it is told by 895 are we clear everyone so but they have gone ahead and told a formula sir is there a formula baba it's not a formula it's a, just a general logic let's go ahead and understand that everyone over here tell me one thing if you go ahead and make only domestic supply will you get any itc ka refund no itc never refund will be given sir if you go ahead and make one zero rated supply on payment of igst will you get any itc ka refund ever no never it itc is given itc is given but you have to use it again you have to use it if you go ahead and make one supposingly i am making only zero rated supply under lut or bond will i get itc ka refund everyone Yes, sir. You go ahead. Supply when you supply, don't pay IGST. Give LUT or bond. Full ITC ka refund will be given. Can I go ahead, everyone? Now, if I go ahead and tell you in my form, I am going ahead and making zero rated supply on payment of IGST, zero rated supply on payment of uh, on giving LUT, and sir, I am making domestic supplies also. Can you tell me how much ITC I will get? If you go ahead and talk about ITC, ITC have to be apportioned. Regarding this, I will not get ITC ka refund. Regarding this also, I will not get ITC. So if I go ahead and tell you, ITC over here, ITC over here, ITC over here. This has to be used for this. This you can claim a refund. This you have to use for this. So this only can be claimed as a refund. But here I showed you separate separate 
inward supplied phase, separate separate credit. But generally it will not be separate separate credit which is there. Generally it will be one input tax credit, one inward supply which will be used for making, which will be used for making all the three kinds of supply. In this scenario you will have to go ahead and do proportionate amount has to be taken ITC, proportionate amount will be given as refund and that is what the formula is trying to tell you. Everyone over here. In a business, a person can have different types of supplies which are there. Number one, he can buy in, in inward supplies on which he can take input tax credit and he can make domestic supplies which are taxable supplies. What will he do with the ITC? Use it. He can have input tax credit. Now he will do domestic supplies which are exempt supply. What to do? ITC will not get. If he has inputs which he is going ahead and making zero rated supply on payment of IGST, what to do? You have to use it. Sir, if he has input tax credit, which he is going ahead and making zero rated supply the, under LUT, then he will go ahead and claim a refund and this refund is given as per rule number 89 sub rule 4. Why sir? Because generally the input will be common credit which is there. Commonly means it will not be a common credit. It's like all the credit will be there. You have made shirts, shirts, some, some you exported, some you sold it in India. So here you have to go ahead and understand if input is together, how much credit ka refund you will get. Is my point clear to all? Everyone over here, simple. What will you do? You will take this credit. You will take the ITC multiplied by what will you do? Whatever is your zero rated supply under LUT, zero rated supply under LUT divided by a total turnover. Yes or no? How much is relating to zero rated supply under LUT divided by a total turnover multiplied by the input tax credit? Correct or not? Same thing they have gone ahead and told by the medium of formula that you have to take turnover of zero rated supply of goods, turnover of zero rated supply of service which is under LUT divided by total turnover multiplied by the net ITC. So let's go ahead and understand what do they say? So here they have gone ahead and modified the formula. They have used the word what? Net ITC. Zero rated supply under LUT for goods plus zero rated supply under LUT for service also can be there divided by adjusted turnover. They told turnover we will little adjust. Are we clear everyone? So first of all we have to go ahead and understand what do you mean by net ITC. Net ITC multiplied by turnover of zero rated supply of goods turnover of zero rated supply of services but both under LUT okay everyone hello divided by adjusted turnover let's understand first net ITC net ITC means what can you tell me what are the things you will get the credit if I go ahead and ask you this over here what is your net ITC number one you took the credit you made domestic supplies under what is taxable supply what will you do will you take the credit yes I made domestic supply which is exempt supply. Will I take the ITC? No, you will not take the ITC only. So, this should be not there in your net ITC. Do you guys accept? Now, one you have gone ahead and made zero rated supply on IGST payment. Yes, sir, this will be there. This ka credit I will go ahead and take. Baba, how much you will get refund? I am not talking. I am telling how much is the total credit you generally get. If I go ahead and make zero rated supply on LUT and sir, ITC is there. What to do? Will you take? Yes. Sir, if I am making zero rated supply which is exempt, LUT I have given, will I get ITC? Yes. Baba, always remember, even if you are making zero rated supply which are exempt supply, still you get ITC. Very good. Sir, if I go ahead, that's it now everyone. Now, all this credit which is there, except the domestic supply wala credit, which is exempt supply, you will take the net credit over here. This is known as gross credit. This is known as Gross ITC. Everyone listen to me very carefully. Now there are two situations which are special situation. Wherein Baba what happens? If you go ahead and make zero rated supply. Zero rated supply. Under LUT. You will get full refund. Which is basically rule, what, rule number 89.4A. And rule number 89.4B. There are two situations which are given. Wherein exact amount of ITC refund is given. And this ka always full refund is given. Sir, what do you mean by rule number 89.4a and 4b? Rule number 89.4a and 4b, they have told two special supplies which are there. For those supplies, whatever credit is there, full refund is given. And hence, we never go ahead and consider that in our 
calculation. Which calculation? This calculation. Why, sir? Because anyways for that, you will get full refund. So, formula etc. is not required to be applied. So, this ka effect, this turnover ka effect also and this ITC ka effect will remove from everywhere. Because these are two special kind of supplies which are there. Are we clear? I will not get into that special kind of supplies ka explanation. Anyways, for your exam, they will not ask you. And these two special types of supplies, basically, I'll tell you. Quickly, I'll tell you. Reset. 894A. What is 894A, everyone? You know what happens. A supplier will go ahead and make deemed export ka supply, and you know, who holds advance authorization, who has an EPCG authorization. Those people are going to make export, right? So, they will go ahead and buy from a person by giving this advance authorization and they will buy. Now, for this though, this person will not go ahead and charge any GST. This person will claim the refund. Yes or no? Sure. Now, this zero, this deemed supplier who has there, deemed export ka supplier, he has bought some more inputs from a person. This person will go ahead and charge GST because to this person he did not give any authorization etc. Yes, everyone, when you don't give any advance authorization, etc., this person will charge you GST. This GST ka complete refund is given to you under rule number 894A. To whom? To deemed export supply. Are we clear? Because he is making a deemed export supply, when he buy the main article from a person, that person ko to he gave a advance authorization. So, that person will not go ahead and charge any GST. He will charge, but this person only will claim a refund. This guy does not pay anything on that. But sir, if he buys any other input, input services, on that he has paid GST because the supply which he has gone ahead and made in export and he is a deemed export ka supplier means he has bought supplies. Baba, he has bought, no, he is not a deemed export supplier. He has bought from a person whose supplies are deemed export. Yes, everyone. So, this guy because he is going to export, he has bought other inputs also. This other input, input services ka refund is given under rule number 89 4A. Is my point clear? And this amount of full refund is given. Can we go ahead? The next type of supplier is rule number 89.4b. Everyone over here. 89.4b goes ahead and talks about those people who are merchant exporter. Merchant exporter. Everyone over here. What do you mean by merchant exporters? These people go ahead and buy from many manufacturers. Okay? And they go ahead and export. Now listen to me very carefully. They will buy from all the small, small exporters. Small, small people who want to go ahead and export. These people are manufacturers. They will buy from them and they will go ahead and pack in a container and export. Now, government have told whoever is merchant exporter, if anyone is supplying to them, they should go ahead and charge 0.05% CGST and 0.05% SGST or 1%, 0.1% IGST. Okay, everyone. Now, if you are a merchant exporter, this amount ka full refund is given to you. So, tell me one thing, if I am a person who is going ahead and doing zero rated supply under LUT normally also and I am doing zero rated supply under LUT which is basically merchant export. For the merchant export related transaction, this ITC which is there no 0.5% and 0.05%, this full refund is given to me. You guys get it? Was it little fast or you understood? Sure, everyone, Baba, more than this, not required for exam also. 89.4a and 4b are two special scenario. Number one is the 89.4a. What is 89.4a? If I am a person who is going ahead and buying against advanced authorization, might be I bought some goods for against advanced authorization, some input and input services, I paid tax and I bought it. Because I am going to export, government says that input and input services ka also refund will be given to me under 89.4a and 4b and that is full refund. 89.4b is what? If I am a merchant exporter, buying from small small <coughs> manufacturers, packing and exporting. Government says to keep a control, this manufacturers will just charge him how much GST? 0.5% and 0.05% and 0.05%. That GST ka full refund is given to me. Are we clear everyone? Is my point clear to all? That is under 89.4a and this is under 89.4b. Everyone now will tell me one thing. If I go ahead and ask you, I went ahead and bought input. I have input tax rate which I am making domestic supply which is taxable supply. What will happen everyone? You have to use it. I have input tax credit which I am going to make domestic supply which is exempt supply. What will happen everyone? No ITC. Remember no ITC. In your net ITC also you don't take the credit. You have domestic supplies, not domestic supply. Zero rated supply which is on IGST payment everyone then. What you do ITC? 
यूज इट एंड देन आईजीएसटी का रिफंड इज गिवेन सर आई एम मेकिंग जीरो रेटेड सप्लाई विच इज अंडर एलयूटी व्हाट टू डू अबाउट आईटीसी रिफंड रिफंड एवरीवन करेक्ट देन दिस आई एम मेकिंग जीरो रेटेड सप्लाई विच इज अंडर एलयूटी विच इज फोर ए एंड फोर बी वाला सप्लाई देन सर आईटीसी आल्सो विल बी गिवन रिफंड टू यू दिस आल्सो रिफंड इज गिवन बट अंडर एटी नाइन फोर ए एंड एटी नाइन फोर बी राइट एवरी वन नाउ लिसन फोर ए फोर बी फोर ए फोर बी दिस होल इफेक्ट फ्रॉम टर्न ओवर ऑल्सो यू रिमूव फ्रॉम एडजस्टेड टर्न ओवर ऑल्सो यू टू रिमूव फ्रॉम नेट आई टी सी ऑल्सो यू टू रिमूव नाउ टेल मी वन थिंग वट इज द फॉर्मुला द फॉर्मुला इज नेट आई टी सी मल्टीप्लाइड बाई जीरो सप्लाई टर्न ओवर ऑफ जीरो सप्लाई ऑफ गुड्स अंडर एल्यूटी प्लस सर वाई टर्न ओवर ऑफ जीरो सप्लाई ऑफ गुड्स अंडर एल्यूटी ओनली इज टेकन बिकॉज आई जी एस टी पेमेंट में यू डोट गेट आई टी सी का रिफंड श्योर एवरी वन श्योर यस तो सर टर्न ओवर ऑफ जीरो सप्लाई ऑफ सर्विसेस अंडर एल्यूटी ठीक है एवरी वन डिवाइडेड बाई एडजस्टेड टर्न ओवर नाउ वेन यू टेक नेट आई टी सी वॉट इज दैट थिंग यू डोंट हैव टू टेक फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एटी नाइन फोर ए एंड फोर बी एंड यू डोंट हैव टू टेक दिस डोमेस्टिक सप्लाई विच आर टैक्सेबल एग्जाम सप्लाई का आई टी सी सो सर वेन आई से नेट आई टी सी इट मीन ग्रॉस आई टी सी इफ आई टेल ग्रॉस आई टी सी आई टी सी इज नेवर विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एग्जाम सप्लाई वेन आई से इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट इट मीन इट इज ऑलरेडी कंसिडर्ड दैट यू नॉट हैव टेकन दिस इट मीन आउट ऑफ इन दिस यू शुड नॉट हैव फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल रिमेंबर यू शुड नॉट हैव कंसिडर्ड एग्जाम सप्लाईज का आई टी सी now you have to remove itc for which refund is claimed under 894a and 894b remove this amounts because for this actual amount of refund will be given sure everyone so you will get net itc anyone any doubt with net itc people watching at home i believe you guys are clear till here can i go ahead multiplied by turnover of zero rated supply of goods under lut so you do one thing you take now turnover of zero rated supply of goods under lut sir you take that total turnover which is there you will remove what from the total turnover what will you go ahead and remove no okay now here there is a small trick which is there what people go ahead and do is in india in india they are going ahead and telling sending selling the goods in domestic market at 1000 you know what they will go ahead and do see okay If I am a person, I am selling in the domestic market for one thousand rupees goods, and if I am exporting, export also I am going ahead and exporting at one thousand under LUT. Can you tell me if I have hundred rupees ka credit, how much will I get refund, sir? Listen, because thousand rupees is domestic supply. Okay, you tell me like this. I am going ahead and doing exports also, zero rated supply under LUT also. and i am going ahead and doing domestic supplies also here also 5000 ka turnover here also 5000 ka turnover if i have any input tax credit of supposedly 500 rupees how much credit can i take and how much refund will be given to me sir this one minute this ka 50% credit is with for this 50% credit is with respect to this because both are so sir i'll write 500 multiplied by 5000 Divided by total turnover, which is ten thousand. Yes, everyone, and I'll get how much refund? Two fifty. What people will do is they will increase this turnover. They will show this as ten thousand, or I will go ahead and show it as fifteen thousand, so that I can take more credit, more refund. Yes or no, everyone? So that people don't go ahead and claim more refund. If I show more zero rated supply ka FOB value in my invoice, I showed more amount. I'll get more refund. Yes, now everyone. So hence, government went ahead and put a cap. Government told Ramesh, if you are supplying any goods domestically, if you are supplying one goods for supposingly one lakh rupees, the maximum export value you can show it as means the LUT sale you can sale price, export price you can show it is one point five times. If that item you are selling in India at one lakh rupees, the maximum export value can be if you have shown supposingly two lakh, they are telling two lakh. Or 1.5 time of this amount. How much is 1.5 time, everyone? 1.5 lakh, which is lower. 1.5 lakh. From this, you remove 4A and 4B, and you will get the amount which is zero rated supply of goods under LUT. Everyone over here, net ITC. First of all, you have to take. Then you have to take what? Zero rated supply of goods 
अंडर एल्यूटी का टर्न ओवर यस एवरी वन देन यू हैव टू टेक टर्न ओवर ऑफ जीरो सप्लाई ऑफ सर्विसेस अंडर एल्यूटी तो फर्स्ट यू हैव टू गो एंड सी डिवाइडेड बाय एडजस्टेड टर्न ओवर नेट आई टी से हाउ डू यू कैलकुलेट Gross ITC does it include ITC with respect to domestic supplies which are exempt supply? No. Minus 4A and 4B. May what you have taken the refund? ITC refund taken under 4A and 4B. So you will get the gross net ITC. Anyone any doubt with this? Now you have to calculate turnover of zero rated supply under LUT. How will you calculate turnover of zero rated supply under LUT? Everyone, you will have to go ahead and take the value, the actual amount of value. of your exports which is there and you have to compare it with what 1.5 times of the value of the goods if domestically supplied are we clear minus 4a and 4b if you see over here in your book one minute everyone see here everyone net itc i told you you have to take the itc available for your input and input services sir why not capital goods baba always remember input and input services ka refund only is given under 89 4 Uh, sorry ha uh, rule number 89 for you will reduce what itc for which refund claimed under 49 89 for a and for b and you will get the net itc anyone any doubt with net itc the next one over here is value value of zero rated supply of goods which are made without payment supposingly it is 1 lakh rupees over here sir now this goods is 1 lakh is the value which you have shown when you have exported it might be the same goods you are domestically supplying at 50000 Can you tell me what is 1.5 time? So it says value of 1.5 time of the value of like goods domestically supplied or similarly placed supplier or declared by the supplier means if you are not supplying domestically these goods if supplied by some other supplier domestically what is the price at which he is supplying domestically? Here, these goods if you export you are showing one lakh. These goods if sold in India by you or by any other person, what is the price at which it is sold? It is sold at fifty thousand. One point five times means. So what will you take? Seventy-five thousand minus four A and four B wala amount, and you will get the zero rated supply. Can I go ahead, everyone? So sir, you got zero rated supply. How, sir? Zero rated supply which is made under LUT. Take the value. Then if these goods are supplied domestically of domestic supplies ka one point. Five time you take it, whichever is lower you take it minus four A and four B wala amount turnover which is there turnover turnover, and you will get the net. Are we clear, everyone? So you understood how to calculate zero rated supply of goods under LUT, everyone? Sure. In case of goods, everyone is clear. Now, if I go ahead and tell you turnover of zero rated supply of services. Now services के लिए they have told because for services payment realization is very important. They have not gone ahead and told how much is the turnover of services minus 4A and 4B. Instead they have gone ahead and told services may realization of foreign currency is very important. So the month you realize actually the foreign currency that day we'll go ahead and say service also provided foreign currency also realized we'll go ahead and say that you have gone ahead and made the service का supply. Can I go ahead everyone? So if I go ahead and tell you turnover. With respect to services which are made under LUT, how to calculate this? Means zero rated supply of services which are made under LUT. How will you calculate? If I go ahead and tell for supposingly January to March, you can claim a refund from January to March also together. Three months, six months, nine months, people claim it together because the period for claiming a refund is from the relevant date. You have to claim within two years. so 2 years ka time is there so people don't go ahead and claim monthly people claim for a period supposingly i'm going ahead and claiming for a period from january to march sir i received total payment is 50 lakh over here whatever payment you received in the period for going ahead and making zero rated supplies under lut for services you have to take that amount first of all whatever payment is received for making the zero rated supply of service under lut whatever payment is received you have to take now in this payment next period ka payment also i have received in advance but sir service not provided yet service also has to be provided payment also has to be received only then it is zero rated supply and you can claim that only then you can go ahead and baba for zero rated supply supplies in india recipient outside india place of supply outside india and you have to receive payment in foreign convertible currency then only it is called zero rated supply now over here you receive the payment but service also has to be provided 
सर आई रिसीव एन एडवांस फॉर नेक्स्ट क्वार्टर का टेन लैक बट सर्विस विल बी प्रोवाइडेड इन द नेक्स्ट क्वार्टर वॉट टू डू यू हैव टू डिडक्ट सो एडवांस विच इज रिसीव फॉर विच सर्विस सप्लाई इज नॉट डन टेन लैक सर टेन फाइव लैक एडवांस वॉज रिसीव प्रायर सप्लाई डन नाउ सो प्रायर एडवांसेज विच आर देयर सप्लाई इज डन नाउ तो सप्लाई ऑल्सो डन प्रायरली एडवांस ऑल्सो रिसीव सो यू हैव टू एड इट हाउ मच is my point clear to all you have received something in advance service will be supplied later so this will not be a turnover of this period it will be taken in the next period i received priorly one advance the supply will be done in the current period i'll have to add it are we clear everyone 650 uh, minus 10 40 45 lakh will be your turnover of services see over here everyone turnover of services you always have to go ahead and take it like this the aggregate of payment received during the relevant period 50 lakh you received Zero at a supply where the services has been completed, payment has been received in advance in any period prior. Prior period you received an advance. Service completed now. What to do? Add. Added. So prior period I received five lakh rupees advance. Service given now. What to do? Add. Add. Sir, advance received for which supply has been not completed. Supply not completed, but you received the money. Service will be given later. So it will be a turnover of the later period. So you will have to deduct. How much is the turnover now? Forty-five lakh. Did you guys understand how to go ahead and calculate net ITC? What is net ITC? Everyone, gross ITC minus four A and four B multiplied by turnover of zero-rated supply of goods under LUT. Yes, everyone. This you have to take whatever is the turnover. Compare it with one point five time of those goods which are made under LUT domestically supplied, whichever is the lower amount from that four A and four B has to be reduced. Everyone is sure about it now. Plus turnover of zero-rated supply of services which is made under LUT, sir. This has to be taken based on your supply also done and realization also done. Supply plus realization. Can I go ahead, everyone? Now below that is your adjusted turnover, which they are telling turnover little adjust. Can I go ahead, everyone? So here is the first of all you have to take turnover. When I say turnover, turnover means what, everyone? Turnover means what? Turnover means taxable supplies, interstate supplies, exempt supplies, everything. But it is not pan India wise, because if you are going ahead and exporting from Karnataka, your Karnataka unit only will get the refund. Your Tamil Nadu unit, your Delhi unit, let them go ahead and claim their own refund. So we don't take aggregate turnover. We take turnover and we adjust it. Now in your from your turnover to your adjusted turnover ka journey, which is there, no, went through lot of amendments. Earlier there were not many amendments which were there. Slowly, 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 slowly they kept making the changes. Are we clear? And they have derived one definition out of it. Can you guys see over here? This definition which is there, I will go ahead and tell you in shortcut so that you don't get confused with this. Okay, everyone. Now, what they are telling you is turnover. If you see the turnover in state or unit AT has been told, and then they told exclude the turnover of. Services. So, if I tell you, I am going to exclude the turnover of services. It means one. This turnover is what turnover of goods. Anyone? Any doubt? So they told keep the turnover of services side. And if I keep the turnover of services side, it means what turnover will be left will be turnover with respect to goods. Anyone? Any doubt till here? But then they told in the turnover of services which we went told you to exclude it. Include. See everyone. In your adjusted turnover, they told the turnover of turnover. You take excluding what turnover of service, but then they told adjusted turnover will include what? It will be a sum total of what? The turnover of zero rated supply of service determined in clause D. The turnover of services. If I tell you in turnover of services, it will be domestic turnover of services. Yes or no, everyone? Which is taxable turnover? it will be domestic turnover which will be exempt supplies ka turnover it will be one minute uh, okay it will be zero rated supply on igst payment and it will be zero rated supply under lut what they are telling is see the turnover of services determined in d above d above means the numerator may What I taught you just now, D above this one. So they are telling in LUT you have to take what is told in the numerator. This will go in your adjusted 
turn over. Can I go ahead, everyone? And then they told, and also non zero rated supply of service. What do you mean by non zero rated? Domestic supply of services. Domestic supply of services. They have told also include domestic supply of services. Now, domestic taxable supplies you will take. Will you take exempt? So, they have not told you to take. This you will not take because ITC may it is not. ITC only not taken. When you have not taken the ITC in the numerator, in net ITC you have not taken, no? Baba, net ITC may exam supply related ITC you have not taken. So, in the numerator also you can't take domestic exam supply. And this too they have not told you to include, so you are not including. This what they have told over here, in the turnover ka definition only, they have told the turnover, the turnover of what? Goods and services say, you exclude the services ka turnover. Then you go ahead and include in your net, uh, adjusted turnover, services cut, zero rated supply cut turnover, which was determined in numerator. And you go ahead and take, and the non-zero rated supply, non-zero rated means domestic supply. But domestic may don't take exempt. Why will you take exempt, Baba? ITC is not even taken. And for this, they have not told you to include only. Are we clear, everyone? Can we go ahead? Is my point clear? What is left with you? Goods. Yes, everyone. Goods may it will be domestic supply, which is taxable. Domestic supply, which is exempt. It will be zero rated supply on IGST payment. It will be zero rated supply under LUT. Everyone listen. If you read this further, no. The value of exempt supply, it means they are telling from exclude what? From the turnover, adjusted turnover, exempt supply. Here so we excluded exempt supply. Here also we will exclude exam supply. Can I go ahead everyone? Can we go ahead people? Is the point clear till here? Then they went ahead and told please exclude 4A and 4B ka turnover wherever it is there. People listen. In this whole table don't include anywhere in your adjusted turnover 4A and 4B ka amount. That's it. Now tell me one thing. Will you include this? Yes. Will you include this? Yes. Will you include this? Yes. So it means that's it they have told in that turnover ka definition. Can I go ahead and tell you once again? Everyone, turnover means turnover with respect to goods and turnover with respect to services. If I tell you with respect to goods, everyone, listen to me very carefully. You will have domestic supplies which are taxable supplies. You will have domestic supplies which are exempt supply. You will have zero rated supply which is under IGST. You will have zero rated supply which is under LUT. Sir, why are you not writing 4A and 4B? 4A and 4B never consider anywhere in your adjusted turnover. Remember that. Can we go ahead everyone? Now, sir, in your services, domestic supply which is taxable supply, domestic supply which is exempt supply. Are we clear everyone? Now listen. And if I go ahead and tell you, okay, I will tell you zero rated supply under 4A and 4B. Think everyone done? Here you will have to go ahead and take zero rated supply which is on IGST payment. Now if you have over here, the next one which is the last one, zero rated supply under 4A, no, no, I will not take 4A, Baba, for services it is not 4A and 4B, 4A and 4B is only with respect to goods, take everyone, so here, zero rated supply which is under LUT, always remember services ke liye, there is no 4A and 4B wala supplies, can I go ahead everyone, now listen to me very carefully, when you take adjusted turnover, not aggregate, I will write over here, adjusted turnover, you have to take domestic supplies which are taxable supplies, you will not take exam supply. You will take IGST wala turnover because in the total turnover it has to come. Why? Baba IGST because you have already taken the net ITC. In the net ITC, your zero rated supply which is made under IGST, the amount is included. So in the below turnover also you have to include. Next, sir, can I take this amount? Yes, you have to take. Sir, listen. But for this and this put together, I will go ahead and tell you, don't take this. What you can take is the numerator wala amount. Sir, why numerator wala amount? Because we have already calculated in the numerator. See everyone, zero rated supply with respect to goods is already calculated. No, Please take this final figure. And this is already excluding 4A and 4B wala amount. Are you guys able to understand? So please remember, you can take this whole ke liye, the numerator wala amount, chapter closed. Can we go ahead everyone? For this whole amount, because you don't have to take this. Baba, tell me one thing. 
turnover of zero return supply minus 4a and 4b is nothing other than what is done in the numerator. So, just, just directly paste. Now, services may, will you take this? Yes. Will you take exam? No. Will you take IGST? No. They have not told in the formula, so we are not taking it. And sir, LUT, so anyways, I will go ahead and take it. But this you have to take as per the numerator. Have I gone ahead and successfully explained you the formula now? You tell me everyone, is there anything scary in the formula? Nothing. People tell it is difficult. Nothing. One is net ITC. First, take your net ITC. Multiplies by turnover of zero rated supply of goods, which is under LUT. Then plus turnover of zero rated supply of services, which is under LUT divided by adjusted turnover. Everyone over here. If I tell net ITC means gross ITC minus 4A and 4B wala amount which is there, you will get the net ITC. Anyone any doubt with this? Always remember your net ITC never includes exempt supply related ITC. Hence, in your turnover also, you never include exempt supply ka ITC. But if exempt supply is exported, if exempt supply is exported, then, then you have to take the ITC. Can we go ahead everyone? Now, sir, turnover of zero rated supply under LUT or bond. If I go ahead and tell you turnover of zero rated supply, under LUT, you will take the turnover of zero rated supply theta under LUT. You will compare it with what? 1.5 times if you domestically supply these goods, whichever is lower. From that, you will reduce 4A and 4B. Brilliant. I am very happy. Chalo. Done. You understood this one, everyone? Now, here, services, what will you do? Sir, whatever you have received the payment, in that, if advance is there of next month, deduct it. Advance is a prior, add it. You understood this? You will be able to do it. Done. Now, adjusted turnover. Turnover, little adjust. Here you will take goods and here you will take services. Sir, goods may you will take domestic supply which is taxable. Sir, domestic supply which is exempt supply. Sir, zero rated supply which is on IGST. Then, Baba, zero rated supply which is on LUT. And, Baba, zero rated supply which is 4A and 4B. Everyone here services, domestic supply, taxable, domestic supply, exempt. Then we have zero rated supply on IGST payment and zero rated supply under LUT. People, adjustment, can you tell me adjust? Can I take this? Yes. Why am I not taking it? Because this is already not there in, domain, in not, net ITC also. When you don't take ITC in the turnover, net ITC, why will you take in the turnover? In the num numerator, when you have not taken ITC, in the numerator, why will you take turnover? Matching concept. Can I go ahead and exclude this? Yes. Okay. Will I include this? Yes. Will I include this and this? Baba, this has, this has to be included. This need not be included. So, what will I do? I will take as per the numerator. Because, sir, it is already done the calculation. Then, sir, will I include this? Yes. Baba, this will also be included as per the numerator. This I will include? Yes. This I will not take exam supply. This one? No. Not told in the formula only. And this one? No. Yes. As per the? You guys learned it everyone. Is it clear? People watching at home, are we 100% clear till here? Can we go ahead? Let me drink some water. Can we go ahead everyone? Yes, this formula, they will ask you one question in the exam. Let's do one question. Okay, everyone, you do the question, I will not do now. Okay, you do it and tell me, sir, it is done and we'll go ahead. See the question which has come in the exam. Please do it quickly, everyone. Very, very easy question, everyone. Pick up your pen and start doing now. Quickly do it, everyone. Quickly do it. Can we go ahead and do the sum now everyone? Yes sir. Y limited provided the following details for what? Of September for computation of refund claim under rule number 89 for 
compute the eligible claim under the said rule people always first of all write your question in the exam question you have a formula sorry what is the formula question number three over here the formula over here is net itc multiplied by turnover of zero rated supply of goods and also services divided by adjusted turnover everyone can you tell me first of all net itc whenever you are claiming taking the net itc always remember you are taking it for a period when you are taking it for a period why are you bothered about opening itc you will take only for that period ka refund no refund is for a period and so don't consider opening or closing itc did you guys get my point so sir opening itc is total bakwas correct or not itc availed during the period because refund is for the period which claim includes the claim for refund of 5 lakh eligible under 489 4a and 4b tell me one thing 25 lakh rupees say 4a and 4b you have to remove first net itc means 25 lakh gross itc minus 5 lakh you will get how much 20 lakh anyone any doubt till here multiplied by zero rated supply of goods under lut everyone over here can you tell me zero rated supply of goods made during the period without payment which includes one crore ka supply for which refund is claimed under 89 4 and 4b what will you do minus, minus. so it will be 5 crore minus 6 crore minus 1 crore 5 crore can i go ahead everyone divided by adjusted turnover what is adjusted everyone listen turnover adjusted right everyone supply of goods this is domestic supply okay tell me one thing in the turnover what do you take turnover of goods only right one is domestic supply which is taxable supply domestic supply exam supply you don't take it zero rated supply on igst payment you don't take it and zero rated supply sir you have to take it very good then zero rated supply under lut or bond and zero rated supply under 4a and 4b this you don't take so what you do is for this you take what is there in the numerator how much is there in the numerator everyone 5 crore yes everyone and then igst is it given anything nothing is domestic supplies given yes how much 3 crore can you tell me 5 plus 3 8 crore story over everyone can you tell me how much is the maximum refund admissible this is the maximum everyone this is the maximum tell me one thing you went to take the refund how much is the amount refund 12.5 crore is it okay this is the maximum admissible refund always remember the formula i taught you is for maximum amount admissible listen you went to the officer told him give me 12.5 crore in your e credit ledger only 5 crore is there will he give you 12.5 crore are e credit ledger me only money is not there this is the maximum amount why in your e credit ledger only 3 crore is there will he give you 12 crore ka refund can I go ahead everyone? Is the point clear? Yes sir. 12.5 lakh it is no. 20 lakh. Hey. 12 lakh. Can I go ahead everyone? Are we clear everyone? Listen. Now everyone over here. Now you will tell me sir. Turnover of zero rated supply of goods. You took directly 5 crore. Baba because there was no information available. That this 5 crore goods. If supplied in India at what value it will be supplied. If this, it was told that if these goods are supplied in India, if the exported goods supplied in India, it is supplied at 2 crore. Will you take 5 or 2 into 1.53? 2 into 1.53. Are you guys able to understand? Please be careful. Open your eyes and properly see the question in the exam. Can I go ahead everyone? It is not that these domestic supplies come 1.5. No, 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 no. It is that zero rated supply which you have done. Of that 1.5 is to be taken if those goods instead of export if would have been sold in india at what price that price ka 1.5 times is my point 100 percent clear to all can i go ahead yes everyone that's it are we clear this kind of simple question they will ask but i think we are prepared for the best also best question which comes can i go ahead everyone one good question should come out of this now people remaining questions you will have to practice everyone over here now please come back this this theory which is written over here is already been explained by me chalo please come down see it says turnover of zero rated supply of goods the value of goods supply of goods made during the relevant period without payment of tax under 
tax under bond or 1.5 time of the value of like goods. Like goods means which you supplied domestically supplied by the same or similarly placed supplier and or as declared by the supplier whichever is placed. So, if I am not supplying domestically then someone else might be supplying similar goods in India at what price is supplying of that 1.5 time will be taken. Sir, other than the turnover of 4A and 4B or both circular, the restriction of 150% of the goods domestically supplied as supplied in turnover would also be applied to the adjusted turnover in rule number 89.4. Basically, they are telling above wala turnover, take in the numerator wala turnover, please take in the denominator. The value of export or zero tax supply of goods to be included while calculating adjusted turnover will be the same as determined in the definition of turnover of goods. This one circular came, nothing. I told you numerator ka turnover, take in denominator, numerator ka turnover, take in denominator. Is my point clear till here everyone? Can we conclude the formula once again everyone? Please tell me. Net ITC multiplied by turnover of zero rated supply of goods under LUT plus turnover of zero rated supply of service under LUT. One day before the exam you must read this formula and go otherwise you will not remember. Everyone over here adjusted. Number one net ITC is gross ITC. Baba in gross ITC is exam supply there? Exam supply related ITC is not there. Minus 4A and 4B related ITC for which you have taken the actual amount of refund. That is to be deleted and you will get this net. Is my point clear? What is turnover zero rated supply of goods? Take the turnover of zero rated supply of goods. These goods if supplied outside India. In India, what is the value? Value of the goods domestically supplied ka 1.5 times say you compare. Whichever is lower say you minus 4A and 4B all amount. You will get the net. Here you will have to take based on service also provided and realization of money also done. Are we clear? Right everyone. So this period may whatever advance you have received for the next period you have to deduct. Earlier which you had received you have to add it. And adjusted turnover is brilliantly done over here. Goods and service. Goods may domestic supplies which is taxable. Domestic supplies which is exam. Zero rated supply on IGST payment. Zero rated supply on LUT. And Baba zero rated supply under 4A and 4B. In the exam, if they ask you, you have each of the breakup, what is to be considered, what is not to be considered. Now, here is your adjusted turnover. What are the things you will consider? This you will consider, this you will consider, this two from the numerator. Yes, everyone, can I go ahead? In services, what will you consider? Domestic supply, taxable, yes. Domestic supply, exam supply, no, sir. IGST payment, zero rated supply. No sir, they have not told in the formula only and here you have zero rated supply under LUT for this you have to take as per the numerator and include it. I hope everyone is 100% clear with this. Let's go ahead everyone. Please come back to your chart now. The notes you can anyways download from rameshsuni.com. Free resources in free resources. November 22 folder you will find over there the notes. Take everyone. Now everyone over here. Now you have 89.5. Rule number 89.5 goes ahead and talks about inverted duty structure. What do you mean by inverted duty structure everyone? Ulta. Reverse. Sir, I am going ahead and buying the goods, buying the raw material on which I am paying how much? 18%. I am making the final goods and final goods when I am supplying I am charging only 5%. Everyone over here, when you are going ahead and buying you are charging 18. When you are supplying it is only 5. They, it is known as inverted duty structure. Can you tell me inverted duty structure is because of service or goods? Inputs only. Always remember, here you get input and input services ka refund. Capital goods related credit ka refund is not given. In inverted duty structure, inverted reverse is because of raw material. The GST rate be higher than the outward supply. So, it is because of only inputs and you get inputs ka only refund. You don't get input services or capital goods ka refund over here. Are we clear everyone? Everyone listen to me very carefully now on the board. Can you tell me again what will you do? Whatever is the net ITC? Whatever is the net ITC? Multiplied by inverted duty structure ka turnover. Divided by adjusted turnover. Okay, I'll tell you. In my business, I buy raw material. Okay? I pay, pay 18 percent. Out of this, I am making domestic supplies which are basically 
uh, okay not domestic i'll talk i am making supply on which rate of gst is 18% or 28% is it inverted i will have turnover which is 5% also is this inverted yes now tell me one thing will you get full refund or proportionate proportionate yes or no everyone so in the top first you will take itc net itc you will take yes everyone remove foreign for b if anything is there always remove foreign for b as to wherever you see foreign for b cut can we go ahead multiply it by turnover this one or this one turnover of inverted duty structure divided by adjusted turnover are we clear everyone adjusted turnover means what sir you will take both the turnovers over here yes or no everyone please remove for n for b effect anywhere now tell me one thing this will give you one amount this will give you an amount which is with respect to what which is with respect to 5% now tell me one thing you will get how much itc is with respect to 5% for an example you had 10 lakh rupees ka itc and it told 5 lakh rupees ka itc with respect to this and 5 lakh is with respect to that now this 5 lakh will you get the full refund no they will say sir this itc you have to use to pay this 5% at least no out of the itc you pay 5% no are baba tell me one thing if your input pay rate is 18% output pay rate is 5% it is inverted but they are telling when you have to pay 5% first pay 5% whatever is the remaining 12 13% will give the refund no first you use it whatever is remaining i will give you the refund or they will give give refund of everything they will tell first use it to pay your output tax liability yes or no remaining we will give you the refund and hence they have told first you calculate how much is the maximum amount with respect to your inverted duty structure inverted duty structure good divided by turnover of inverted duty structure divided by total adjusted turnover multiplied by net itc you got 5 lakh now for this inverted duty structure you have to pay 2 lakh how much refund you will get 3 lakh this is told in the formula chapter over refund amount see turnover of inverted duty structure of goods and service everyone net itc divided by adjusted less the tax payable on the inverted duty structure goods or service everyone over here listen 894a and 4b is written over here for you to read see here net itc shall mean the itc availed on inputs only please be very careful net itc with respect to inputs only is to be taken during the relevant period other than 4a and 4b means net itc say you will remove what inputs say 4a and 4b related credit which is there adjusted turnover and relevant period relevant period means the period for which you are claiming the refund shall be having the same meaning as under sub rule 4a 4a means above how i explained you the same way but i'll tell you what you take the turnover take the total turnover minus what 4a and 4b can i go ahead everyone next everyone over here you will have to go ahead and do one question only then this thing will settle down can you see the question on the board everyone i want you guys to see the question everyone see here this was asked in december 21 let's read the question it says j and co j and co a registered supplier under gst is engaged in weaving yarn he is weaving yarn he will buy weaving he will do okay into fabrics and has provided the following information nature of the Uh, various interstate supply and value is given theek hai outward supply of fabric how much what is the outward supply question number everyone question number 4 here outward supply of fabric on which gst is how much 2.5 and 2.5 is 30 lakh everyone outward supply per rate is how much 2.5 percent cgst and 2.5 percent sgst then inward supply of rayon yarn tax rate is 6% each 24 lakh everyone outward supply is how much 30 lakhs inverted how much is what is the input inputs inward supply of rayon yarn is 24 lakhs 24 6% cgst and 6% sgst inward supply of services itc should be considered only of inputs 
कैन यू टेल मी हाउ मच इज द क्रेडिट फॉर ट्वेंटी फोर लैक नेट आई टी सी ट्वेंटी फोर लैक इंटू सिक्स परसेंट यू कंसिडर ओनली सिक्स यू कंसिडर ओनली सिक्स सिक्स परसेंट थ्री जी एस टी हाउ मच वन लैक बाबा हियर ऑल्सो यू डोंट कंसिडर सिक्स हियर ऑल्सो यू डोंट कंसिडर सिक्स वन मिनिट वन मिनिट वन मिनिट नाउ सर इनवर्ड सप्लाई ऑफ सर्विसेस यू विल नॉट कंसिडर इनवर्ड सप्लाई ऑफ मशीनरी मशीनरी यू विल नॉट कंसिडर द कंसर्न हैज नॉट प्रोवाइडेड अदर सप्लाई और अदर अदर देन आउटवर्ड सप्लाई रेफर्ड अब आई टी सी ओके दिस ओके अदर एप्लीकेबल प्रोविजन आर डन कैन यू टेल मी द रिफंड एवरी वन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई नेट आई टी सी मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टर्न ओवर ओवर हियर इज हाउ मच थर्टी लैक डिवाइडेड बाई टोटल टर्न ओवर Baba, they have not given any other turnover. So, if they would have given, you would have considered thirty plus might be any other turnover, twenty lakh. But if they have given thirty, so total thirty will come over here. One lakh forty-four thousand into thirty by thirty. How much it will come? One lakh forty-four thousand. But you will have to deduct how much is the tax payable for this? How much is the tax payable? Thirty lakh into two point five percent. Seventy-five thousand is the tax payable. So can you tell me how much refund? Sixty-nine thousand. So this is your maximum amount of refund which you will get. So this is under CGST. Same amount under SGST. Everyone, if you see the question over here, this was the question which had come in the exam. And see over here, sixty-nine thousand. Could you calculate the amount? Yes. In the exam, they will not give you. In the exam, I can't say they will not give you this simple. This is the simple thing which has come in the exam. Are we clear, everyone? But if they go ahead and give you inverted duty structure का turnover and they give you other turnover also, then you have to take adjusted turnover में total turnover and always remove 4A and 4B का effect from everywhere. Can I go ahead, everyone? That's it, everyone. Please come to your textbook now. Remaining questions you will have to practice. चलो, please come. Now there are some circulars which are there. Let's go ahead and quickly cover the circulars also. Everyone, it says in case of refund of ITC, unutilized ITC, on account of export without payment of tax or supplies made to SEZ unit or SEZ developer without payment of tax or accumulated ITC, the common portal calculates the refundable amount as the least of the above. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. You tell me one thing. I have to go ahead and claim a refund for supposingly. January, February, March. When I went ahead, this is the relevant period. This is the relevant period for which I am claiming the refund. As per the formula under rule number eighty nine four or eighty nine five, it told me five lakh I can get the refund maximum. When I went ahead and during this period, the net ITC after the period got over. Everyone over here, see. Now they are telling what is the maximum refund you can get as per the formula. Or balance in the e-credit ledger at the end of the tax period for which refund claim has been filed after the return in form GSTR 3B. After for which refund claim has been filed after the return in GSTR 3B. So for this period, once you file the GSTR 3B, your e-credit ledger the amount which is there is four lakh only. You will get five lakh or four lakh. Okay, one more thing. When you actually file the refund claim, you have two years, right? So you can file for this period later also. When you file the refund claim, actually in your credit ledger was only three lakh. How much you will get refund? Always remember, whenever you are claiming a refund, the portal will always calculate minimum of the three. Number one, number one is your as per the formula calculation. Number two, number two is as per means the period ka when you go ahead and file the GSTR three B. After that, whatever is balance lying with you, or when you actually go and file the refund claim, see this period. Can you file the refund claim here? Can you file? When you file the refund claim, it was three lakh. How much will you get? Okay, here it was eight lakh amount. Here it was ten lakh amount. Here it was fifteen lakh. How much will you get? Eight lakh only minimum of the three. It is what is being told in the circular. They have told number one as per the formula. Number two balance in the e-credit ledger. At the end of the tax period for which the refund claim is being filed after the return in GSTR 3B, the balance in the e-credit ledger of the applicant at the time of filing the refund. At the time of filing the refund, if I go ahead and tell you, supposingly here it was 10 lakh, here it was 6 lakh, here it was 15 lakh, which one will you get? 6 lakh. Is my point clear to all? Can we go ahead, everyone?
That's it, everyone. Please come back. Bye bye. In your e credit ledger, for this period, it is selling 8 lakh. You can claim. But when this period got over, you had money only 6 lakh. When you file the refund, it was only 5 lakh. Officer will give you 6. Officer will tell, first of all, for this period, 6 only is remaining. It means if anything got added, that was for the next period. I will not give more than that. Then at the end of the period, there was only 5. He will give maximum 5 only. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. Now, everyone, total calculated that it has to give you 6 lakh. 6 lakh will be given out of here, balance is 15 lakh. In the balance, you can have CGST also, SGST also. Yes or no, everyone? See, you have to get supposingly 6 lakh. Here there was IGST ka balance also, CGST ka balance also, SGST ka balance also. From which they will give 6 lakh rupees? From which balance? They are telling because generally it is relating to export etc. They will first try to go ahead and give it from IGST. Anything remaining, see everyone. First they will use IGST. Then CGST and SGST equally. And after that if anything shortfall is there, wherever money is there from that they will give. Are we clear till here everyone? Can I go ahead? Okay sir, let's go ahead. First, whatever refund has to be given, they will give from IGST. IGST balance got over. Then they will see how much can be given from CGST and SGST equally. If after giving that also, if they still have a balance which is there, supposingly in SGST some balance is there, CGST my balance is not there. Then from that they will give. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Let me see if I have included any example for this. Ah, see here, see here, see here. How much is the refund sanction? 30,000. People, please read the book. You have a lot of examples, a lot of things which you will learn out of it. Everyone here now. 30,000. How much? First, you have all this balance. Where will you pay from? Sir, 30,000 payable IGST has balance. What will you do? Pay from IGST. Story over. Sir, second case, you have IGST 20 only. 20 from here. And then 10,000 is there. From where? CGST and SGST, 55,000. Five you have to pay 30,000. Third case. Amount 10,000 first you will use. 5,000 and 5,000 equally you will use. Where is the remaining balance? SGST, 15,000 is remaining. From this, how much will you use? Is my point clear? See here. First you pay 10,000, 5,000 and 5,000 also from here. Then remaining 10,000 you will pay out of SGST balance only and SGST 5000 will remain. Did, did you guys get it everyone? Short people. Are boys? Done. Can we go ahead? Is the point clear till here? Chalo. Next. Everyone, refund restricted to the extent reflected in your GSTR 2A. Everyone listen to me very carefully. When you go to the officer and tell him to give you a refund no, of the input tax rate, he will say, of only those invoices which are reflecting your GSTR 2A, I will give the refund. You are telling ITC ka refund you give me. Sir, those ITC ka refund will be given of which the invoices are reflecting your GSTR 2A. You told these invoices are there. For these 10 invoices, you have to give me ITC refund. He will tell you these 10 invoices ka if the amount is reflecting your GSTR 2A, only then I will take in calculation. Whichever is not reflecting in GSTR 2A, those are not confirmed. Because the suppliers yet not uploaded GSTR 1. So, if it is not confirmed credit, he will not give. Only those invoices, the amount of which is reflecting in your GSTR 2A, he will give the refund. Can I go ahead everyone? Because in your ITC, everyone, in your ITC, whatever is appearing, he is not bothered. He is telling whatever you claimed, I don't bother. You should claim also whatever is appearing in your GSTR 2B only. 2B. 2A said 2B is created and whatever is appearing in your GSTR 2B, you should claim that. But he is telling, I am not bothered what you have claimed. I am bothered how much is appearing in your GSTR 2A, only that amount of refund will give you. Actually, earlier what used to happen, no? a person can claim whatever is appearing in GSTR 2A, he could claim 10%, 20% extra was allowed. Now it is no more allowed. So earlier they told, even if you have more ITC which you have claimed, because it was allowed to claim 10% extra, even if it is not reflecting, no, you used to claim 10% extra, it was allowed earlier. So, people had extra claimed which were there in the e credit ledger. When they used to go to claim the refund, no, they used to say, sir, we will not give you the refund unless the amount is actually reflecting in your GSTR 2A. Might be you would have been claimed extra. 
But what is appearing in your GSTR 2A? Only those invoices related refund will give. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. This is what is the circular. Next. Okay. Now, what happened, everyone? A person went ahead, a person went ahead and bought packing material, this material, that material, this material, that material. Whenever you see inverted duty structure, will you consider all the other items or not? Might be I am making a shirt. For making shirt, I got cloth. After that, I went ahead and got packing material also because to pack the shirt also I need packing material. So, inverted duty structure may, they are telling input tax rate of GST on inputs including inward supplies of stores and spare, packing material, etc. ITC shall be available as long as these inputs are used for the purpose of business and for affecting taxable supply including zero rated supply and the ITC is not blocked. If I am making zero rated supply, even if I buy packing material or I buy shirt, shirt ka cloth I buy, I buy packing material, they are telling all the input will be considered in your net ITC. For your calculation purpose, you do not have to consider only the ITC with respect to shirt. You can consider all the input and input services which are there. Input and input services. All you can consider. It is not only told that because of the cloth, you made the shirt. So, ITC should be only of shirt. No. It can be of all the items which are bought. Input and input services during a relevant period of that ITC has to be considered. Is my point clear? During a relevant period, all the input and input services ka ITC has to be considered in your rule number 89.4 and 89.5 ka. Uh, rule number 89.4 and 89.5 ka calculation. Baba, you are taking the ITC over here, no? This net ITC, which cloth ka only ITC will take if you are making all input and input services. Here only input. Here input and during a particular period, input and input services has to be considered. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. Now, officers were going ahead and tell the packing material, I will not consider. This I will not consider. So, clarification came. Officer, input and input services totally has to be considered. Can we go ahead, everyone? Next. Refund of accumulated ITC on account of reduction in GST rate. I will tell you what people did. I am buying one shirt. Everyone, shirt ka cloth. Take everyone. Now, cloth say I made what? Shirt. And I supplied. Shirt pay rate is 18 percent and here rate is 28 percent. Is it inverted duty structure? Yes. What people told is, sir, I bought one bottle. Bottle when I bought in January 2021, the rate was 18 percent. When I am selling this bottle today, you have reduced the rate to 12 percent, inverted duty structure. Traders went ahead and told this and they clarified, Are Baba, traders, Inverted duty structure is when you buy the raw material, out of the raw material you make the final goods and final goods pay rate is less. Here the same item, same item you are selling and Baba during two different period. When you bought the rate was 18, when you are selling the rate is 12 percent that does not make it inverted duty structure because lot of items are there which people when they buy the rate is different. When they sell, might be government has reduced the rate. Is it inverted duty structure? They can claim the refund. No. Inverted duty structure is when you buy the raw material, make the final goods and when you are supplying the final goods, final goods pay rate is less. Then they are telling it is inverted duty structure. It says an applicant trading in goods purchased X attracting 18%. Subsequently, the rate was reduced to 12. It is being claimed that accumulation of ITC in such a case is also covered under accumulation on account of inverted duty structure. He is telling, sir, when I bought it was 18%. When I am selling this item, same item, it is 12%. So, meet me, 6% is accumulated approximately 5-6% because when you are selling, you are selling at a higher price. So, means most of the GST will be used, but there is still some accumulation. They are telling we want a refund. Such applicant have sought a refund of accumulated ITC. Clarification, the input and output being the same, although attracting different rate of tax at different point of time, do not get covered under the provision of section number 5432, which is they do not get covered under inverted duty structure and no refund. Did you guys get it, everyone? The next one over here is, sir, clarification in respect of deemed export supply. There is no restriction on recipient. Okay. Here is a supplier. I am a person. I am a person who is there. I have advanced authorization. He is a deemed export ka supplier, right, everyone? He gave me the goods. I gave him the advanced authorization. 
वन लाख रुपीज का गुड्स बाबा ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर डीम्ड एक्सपोर्ट का सप्लायर विल चार्ज ऑलवेज आई जीएसटी वट एवर सॉरी वट एवर जीएसटी इज देर ही चार्ज इफ ही चार्ज मी जीएसटी ओवर हियर दिस जीएसटी का रिफंड ही कैन क्लेम सर ही कैन क्लेम प्रोवाइडेड ही गोज एड एंड टेल्स दैट सर यू हैव टू गिव एन एक्नोलॉजमेंट सर एक्नोलॉजमेंट फ्रॉम द जुडिशनल टैक्स ऑफिसर ऑफ एडवांस ऑथराइजेशन ईपीसी जी ऑर्डर और टैक्स इन वॉइस बाय द टैक्स इन वॉइस साइन बाय द यूए हैज टू बी सबमिटेड दैट सर सप्लाईज आर रिसीव्ड और अंडरटेकिंग बाय द रिसिपिएंट दैट ही हैज नॉट टेकन द आईटीसी एंड ही शैल नॉट फाइल ए रिफंड बट सर इज देयर अ रेस्ट्रिक्शन दैट इफ आई डोंट वांट टू गो एंड एंड क्लेम अ रिफंड ही आल्सो कैन क्लेम अ रिफंड बाबा देयर इज नो रेस्ट्रिक्शन see if you don't want if you want to claim a refund you have to give in writing from that person that he is not going ahead and taking a itc also and he is not going to claim a refund also but there is no restriction on him not going ahead and claiming a refund might be you went ahead and charged the amount from him can he claim a refund yes there is no restriction supplier also can claim recipient might be the supplier if me as a supplier i went ahead and charged the tax from him he can go ahead and claim a refund can i go ahead everyone are we clear till here everyone chalo so that is what is being told there is no restriction on recipient of deemed export if i am supplying to a person and my supply is a deemed export are a a e e boys pg advance authorization eou a a advance authorization holder e e epcg holder sir eou or boys pg bank or public sector undertaking supplying gold to this people if i am supplying my supplies are deemed as export there is no restriction on recipient of deemed export supplies to avail itc of the tax paid on supplies when the recipient files a when the recipient files for refund claim can the recipient go ahead and file yes next everyone over here there is some more clarification which have been given clarification in respect of certain challenges faced by registered person in implementation of gst provision everyone over here i'll go ahead and ask you you tell me i received an advance advance has been received for a service contract when i received the advance i will give gst to the government if i did not go ahead and do any supply i did not issue the invoice i i refunded the amount refund voucher government also will give me a refund simple see here advance received which subsequently got cancelled the supplier had issued the invoice before supply okay advance received invoice given gst paid to the government will i get refund now i will have to issue a credit note and i'll have to adjust the amount everyone i received money i gave the invoice i gave the gst to the government i gave him a credit note government will also give me the money back no government will not give me the money back i have to show the credit note and government will adjust the amount sir but this month there is nothing to adjust then government will give you a refund final refund claim see here everyone you paid the gst also whether he can claim refund or is he required to adjust the liability what do you think everyone you are required to adjust goods supplied by a supplier under the cover of tax invoice are returned okay whether he can claim a refund of the tax payer or adjust the liability same sir here it is goods here it is service are we clear you got the money you gave the invoice you paid the gst he told i don't want you went he re returned the goods or service he told i don't want the service what will you do you have to return the money you will give him a credit note government will go ahead and adjust your liability in the subsequent month when you are going ahead and giving a credit note is my point clear everyone but sir see for both of them they have clarified you have to issue a credit note declare in the month of issue and the tax liability shall be adjusted i paid now i'll adjust the liability sir no separate refund claim however if no output tax liability in that month then then you can can file a rfd01 an advance is received okay advance received gst paid on the advance only in case of services you pay gst on advance advance received gst paid on the advance service did not give supply sorry supply of goods did not happen refunded the amount invoice also did not give refund voucher given refund voucher adjustment you don't do you claim a refund of the tax which is paid by the government it says an advance is received for a service which got cancelled the supplier had issued a receipt voucher and paid the gst on 
advance whether he can claim a refund of the tax paid on adv advance or required to adjust so government clarified issue of refund voucher in terms of section number 313e registered person may file a refund application for the refund of the gst they have told don't adjust i'll tell you one thing you got an advance paid the gst you sub you gave the invoice if you have already given the invoice invoice ke against you have to give credit note and you have to declare the credit note in the month you are going in and issuing and that month your liability will be adjusted because you return the money government will also return you the money instead of returning government says please adjust sir if i can't adjust then you can file a refund claim sir i received an advance give the money to the government service contract or goods ka contract got okay service contract goods ka contract mein to advance pay you don't pay gst service ka contract got cancelled you will give the money back to that guy government will also give the money back to you here no adjustment refund vouch refund has to be filed refund application has to be filed can i go ahead everyone the last one okay one person is selling sir i want to go ahead and claim a refund for the year 1920 2021 for supposingly january february march april may june he has to file a refund for 6 months he is telling i'll file it together can you do that yes what is the problem two years is the time limit for this also two years for this year two years for this month two years correct or not so he is telling i want six months together earlier what was happening is two years no this two separate years 1920 and 2021 can't be brunched together it means earlier it was told that two financial year you can't join together and claim the refund but now it is clarified that you can do it brunching of refund claim across financial year an applicant may at his option file a refund claim for tax period by clubbing successive tax period restriction has been relaxed are we clear till here everyone i hope everyone is clear till here we have gone ahead and covered the chapter of refunds over here everyone i hope you guys understood everything till here people yes okay we have gone ahead and covered the first one people in this chapter no this first chart is the most important one but here you have to remember igst refund is how much 1000 only theek hai this chart is the most important part sir any question can be asked in the exam here i have told you consumer welfare fund you will have to study at home theek hai everyone please at least read once or twice and go don't leave it and go by chance they ask you one three mark question what is the power of the community committee which is formed for managing the consumer welfare fund how will the money of the consumer welfare fund be utilized are we clear all those things are written over here please read once besides this this formula for this two one three mark four mark small question 100% they ask theek okay, everyone and this circulars which are there all the circulars i have gone ahead and covered over here only right everyone done i will go ahead and close all my discussion on the chapter of refunds over here a a graded chapter which they can go ahead and ask a four to six marks question in the exam I will close all my discussion on the chapter over here. Congratulations, people! Done. Now all you have to do is solve your question answers and practice uh, question answers, and you have to read your textbook little bit, and you are done with the chapter, right, everyone? We'll close all our discussions over here. Done. This small chart is there, no? One total bakwa C graded chapter ka no no A graded chapter ka C minus graded topic. This is everyone. Let's read this quickly. Everyone over here. IGST section number 15 of the IGST act refund of IGST paid on supply of goods to tourists living in India everyone listen to me very carefully whenever a tourist is living in India whatever is the IGST that will be refunded they are telling sir what do you mean by this everyone over here the IGST paid by tourists living in India on any supply of goods taken out of India by him shall be refunded in such manner and subject to such condition as may be prescribed but nothing has been prescribed i'll tell you one thing listen excuse me peter came from outside india into india theek hai peter came in an air aeroplane he came out he stayed in a hotel had indian food over here theek hai everything stayed over here you stayed in a hotel use the service over here services ka refund is not given when you are going from india outside india he went to one shop bought a iphone ठीक है एंड नाउ ही पेड द जीएसटी ओवर हियर नाउ व्हेन ही इज लीविंग इंडिया एंड गोइंग ही विल वांट दैट आईफोन आई एम टेकिंग आउटसाइड इंडिया सो द मनी शुड बी रिफंडेड टू मी 
and that is why whenever a tourist comes to India, if he avails a service in India, service remains in India, no refund is given. Ate in India, forget in India. Stayed in India, forget in India. But goods you will take from India, outside India and hence tourist is always given refund. And if you guys remember of the goods ka GST which is there, if you go ahead and read your supply ka chapter, nature ka supply, section number 7 told, it is never intrastate supply. If it is not intra, it is always interstate and the shopkeeper should charge him always IGST. So, if a shopkeeper is going ahead and supplying any goods to a tourist, he should charge IGST so that when the tourist is leaving India and going at the port, see IGST will go to whom? Central government. When this tourist is leaving India and going, central government will give him the IGST back and he will take and go. The whole scheme is that when a tourist will come into India, services he will take, services no problem. Consumed in India, forget in India. But if he buys any goods in India, anyone supplying him goods has to charge what? IGST. This IGST will go to central government. When the tourist is taking the item and going from India outside India, central government will refund the tax to him and he will take and go. For an example, I went to Malaysia, Singapore. I went ahead and bought some goods from there. When I am returning from there, no, at the airport, whatever GST is paid is refunded to the tourist. In the same way, if one tourist has come to India, he took some services, forget in India. He took some goods in India. That goods may IGST should be charged so that when he is leaving India and going, he can take the IGST ka refund and go. Are we clear? But as of now, there is no IGST refund which is given. There is no uh, tourist refund scheme which has been drafted yet. Section number 8, supply to a tourist is not intra and as per section number 75C, what is not intra is always interstate and tourists call with IGST charge which he will take a refund when he is going from India because the destination of the goods is outside India. Is my point clear till here? But sir, as of now, there is no tourist related refund scheme which is there. Nothing happens when he buys the goods from India, takes outside India, there is no refund and all which is given. But government have gone ahead and told if there is a tourist who is buying something from an international airport, duty free shop, then whatever the tax is there, the duty free shop should not charge any tax to whom? The tourist. So if a tourist is going from India, outside India, in the international airport, he will buy some item and he will go. When he is buying some items and he is going, he should not go ahead. The duty-free shop should not charge him any GST. The duty-free shop will not charge any GST. But if you are not charging any GST, what about your ITC? The duty-free shop which is there will be given a refund of the IGST which they have paid on their inward supply which they have supplied to an international tourist. So, government have told duty free shop, you come to us, show that you have supplied to Mr. Peter of US, you show his passport, etc. If you have supplied to that guy, don't go ahead and charge him GST. Whatever the credit was there, GST you have paid on your, you bought a shirt, you gave him the shirt. On the shirt, you did not charge him GST. But whatever you have paid, you will take a refund. No, that is the refund scheme which has been given. Government introduced rule number 95A, refund of taxes. To retail outlet means which which outlet duty free shop duty paid shop established in the departure area in the departure area of an international airport can you see international airport everyone of that departure area is there in that one duty free shop is there beyond the immigration counter it should be after the immigration counter making tax free supply they are supplying to whom international tourists to an outgoing international tourist and they are not going in and charging any tax. So, whenever they are supplying indigenous goods, Indian made goods, to whom? It is always what? Interstate supply. IGST is applicable, but it has been exempted by a notification. Hence, they will not charge any tax. Sir, they will say, sir, what about our inward supplies? We are buying and we are paying tax. Yes or no, everyone? All your inward supplies, you will not get refund. You will get refund of the tax only of those supplies which you have supplied to this guy who are international outgoing tourist. International outgoing tourist who is taking the goods and going outside India. Did you guys get it everyone? Now for this one scheme is drafted which is rule number 95A. They are telling sir when you buy Indian domestic market say and you give it to this guy you don't go ahead and charge any GST. So government told tax paid with with Tax invoice, inward supplies pay, you should have your tax invoice in which tax paid should be there. Accumulated ITC refund is not given to you. Only those supplies 
which you have given to outgoing international tourists for that whatever gst is paid that gst ka refund is given to you government wide notification number 11 bar 2019 central tax rate and 10 bar 2019 central tax integrated tax rate issued and in excise of power under section number 55 of the cgst act has notified that retail outlet established in departure hall beyond the immigration counter shall be entitled to refund of cgst gst igst utgst or gst compensation says paid on inward supplies of indigenous goods indian made goods with supply to whom oit outgoing international tourist subject to the condition under rule number 95a everyone over here i am a duty free shop i bought indian made goods from indigenous indian market on a tax invoice i have to buy when i am giving the goods to an outgoing international tourist government will give me a refund of the tax which i paid on those goods which i gave to this outgoing international tourist for that one rule number 95a has been drafted are we clear everyone now sir who is an outgoing internet okay sir who is an eligible passenger outgoing international tourist who has come into india not a normal resident of india he has enters into india for less than equal to 6 months for legitimate non immigrant he is not a migrant in india he is come only for a tour to india and going from india outside india baba in the international airport you will see all those indian wooden toys etc they will make one shop and keep so that whenever outgoing international tourist is going from india they will take indian goods and go yes or no those indian goods when these shops are buying from india and giving it to them they will not charge any tax so that indian goods are little cheaper for them and whatever tax they have paid will be given a refund but sir you have to take this document from the outgoing international tourist to prove that you have not sold it to an indian you have sold it to an outgoing international tourist Doc, details of passport data via passport reading machine baba i have told you c graded chapter this is c graded topic this is details of boarding pass via barcode scanning reading device okay passenger declaration has to be taken a copy of invoice clearly evidencing that no tax was charged from the outgoing international his passport copy you take his boarding pass passport to anyone ka you can take his boarding pass also has to be taken then don't take his boarding pass take a copy then sir passenger declaration that sir i am taking this goods and also you have to go ahead and take a copy uh, the copy has to be shown that uh, sir i have issued this to the outgoing international tourist i did not charge any tax now all the retail outlet which retail outlet this retail outlets which are there are eligible to claim a refund of the tax paid on such goods which goods which they have given to international tourist they have to file an application rfd 10b on monthly or quarterly basis document self certified compilation of information compiled information of invoices issued along with concerned purchase invoice sir this invoice i gave to outgoing international tourist this is my purchase invoice for this item are we clear this detail you have to compile then condition is inward supplies were received from registered person against tax invoice secondly goods supplied are against foreign currency forex is very important you should earn foreign currency name and gst and number of the retail outlet is mentioned in the tax invoice means this inward supplies which you have done you should have done from registered supplier plus the invoice which he has given no on the invoice your gst and number should be there otherwise what will happen no i am in duty free shop i'll take my friend ka invoices and i'll claim refund are we clear so they are telling such other restriction and condition as may be specified rule number 92 mutatis mutandis for sanction of refund basically rule number 92 goes ahead and says whenever the refund is sanctioned they will give you refund ka sanction order and payment order all those things will apply mutatis mutandis are we clear everyone nothing total bakwas remember whenever duty free shop or duty paid shop are supplying to an outgoing international tourist now when they are supplying they should go ahead and take their passport copy etc don't charge them any tax and also you should take foreign currency are we clear now whatever you are going ahead and buying you should buy on uh, from a registered person in the invoice your gst number should be mentioned whatever is the tax paid for those supplies which you have given to the outgoing international tourist you will be given a refund clear everyone here i will go ahead and exactly close my chapter of refunds right everyone i hope you guys enjoyed the chapter let's go ahead and close over here congratulations people we are done with our chapter of refunds done everyone
Now we will be going ahead and doing the miscellaneous provisions which is there. Sir, miscellaneous provision, everyone for your exam is a C graded topic. Let's go ahead and now do the miscellaneous provision everyone. Miscellaneous provision for your exam is a C graded topic. One, three to four mark question can be maximum expected out of this. Everyone over here now. Miscellaneous provision, what I have gone ahead and done is in the summary which I have gone ahead and written. It's not a chart, it's a summary which is there. In the summary what I have gone ahead and done is for the sections which they generally go ahead and ask a question. I have gone ahead and written down the section. Along with that, I have gone ahead and given the questions also which are expected. So, we will not be going ahead and separately doing the Q&A. The Q&A is also covered in the miscellaneous provision ka chart only. Right everyone? Please come to your chart now. Let's go ahead and revise. Not revise, understand. Now, miscellaneous provision. Let's understand the chart. Everyone over here, section number 145. Section number 145 goes ahead and talks about admissibility of microplanes, facimile copy means Xerox copy, microplanes, Facimile copy means Xerox copy of document and computer printouts as document and evidence. It says, sir, that during an investigation or might be a proceeding, if there is a Xerox copy, might be the officer came to a search and seizure at your place, search at your place and they found one Xerox copy of a document and you are telling, no, no, sir, this is not, this is not mine. They are telling this can be admitted as evidence. What they are telling is, what are the document that can be evidence? Uh, what are the documents and evidence deemed to be document and evidence for the purpose of proceeding? When they are doing pro proceedings against you, what can be deemed as a evidence? They are telling over here, what are the documents and evidence deemed to be documents and evidence for the purpose of proceeding? Sir, they are telling a microflame of a document or reproduction of the image or might be a facimile copy, a Xerox copy of a document or a statement contained in a document and including a printed material produced by a computer or any information stored electronically in any device or media might be in the in your mobile phone they came to a pro office and they did a search in the search they went ahead and took your computer they took your mobile phone they took your ipad and they found one invoice is there that can be also admitted as a document against you so they are telling any information stored electronically any device in any device or media including any hard copy made of such information might be out of that one printout was taken shall be deemed to be a document for the purpose of this act and the rules made there under and shall be admissible in any proceedings whenever they are going ahead and issuing a show cause notice demand order for that they can go ahead and use all those items also as a document as an evidence basically any micro flame or might be if there is a facimile copy or might be there is a statement which is contained in a document or any information stored electronically anywhere can be admitted as a evidence against you you can say this is a xerox i will not go ahead and take take this as a evidence officer can go ahead and say section number 145 allows me to take this as an evidence can i go ahead everyone then is section number 149 section number 149 goods and service tax compliance rating how shall the goods and service tax compliance rating be determined everyone over here now every person who is going ahead and filing returns on time gst return he is filing on time gst payments he is doing on time will be given a gst compliance rating so if you are a supplier given five star rating then people will want to buy from a five star supplier so they are telling in gst we will go ahead and introduce the method of GST compliance rating. So, what is the GST compliance rating? Based on the certain criteria will be there that sir, is he filing the return on time? Is he making the payments on time? All those criteria, if you are satisfying, you will be given a higher rating. Higher rating means a good proper, good profile person. From a good profile person, people would want to buy. So, if I have to buy from her, I would want to go ahead and first see her compliance rating. So, this is what is the GST compliance rating. It says, every person may be assigned may be assigned a gst compliance rating score by by the government based on the record of compliance under the act if you have not gone ahead and done any non compliances then baba you will have very good rating then they are telling the gst compliance rating score shall be determined on a scale of 10 on the basis of prescribed parameter they will have parameters like sir is he filing the return returns payments sir any show cause notice issued all those things will be used as a parameter then they are telling the compliance rating score may be updated at periodic interval and intimated 
to the registered person and also placed in the public domain. What they are telling is your rating, full, full life your rating will be bad only over. If you started complying, then the rating will start improving is what they are trying to tell. Next. Sir, obligation to furnish information return. Who are the person who are liable to furnish information return? In the exam, if they ask you, remember, what's an information return? Relating to me, my information will be taken from third party. Like, supposingly, registrar office is there or might be any other place is there, bank is there. If from those people, government wants to take my information, government will tell them you have to submit information return. An information return is to be submit by, submitted by a taxable person, a local authority, public body or association, in, income tax authority, banking company, state electricity board or an electricity distribution or transmission licensee, the registrar, sub-registrar which is there, registrar of companies, recognized stock exchange and GSTN. Then, section number 151, power to collect statistics. Earlier, this power to collect statistics, ka, the, the section which was there was different. Now, they have gone ahead and substituted it by another paragraph. Means, the earlier paragraphs have been deleted and they have substituted it by a new paragraph which is there. You don't have to know what was there earlier. What is there now, you can know that is more than enough. When shall, who shall, who shall exercise the power and when it shall be exercised? Baba, who shall exercise the power and when shall it be exercised? Everyone, you have to remember, who shall exercise the power to collect statistics? Baba, what is statistics? Statistics is information in a much organized manner. So, Baba, government has the power to go ahead and collect statistics also. Now, statistical data, who can collect? Who has the power to collect? The commissioner or an officer authorized by him may by an order direct any person to furnish what? They can direct any person to furnish information return, information relating to any matter dealt with in connection with the act within such time, form and manner as may be prescribed therein. They are telling we can go ahead and direct any person to go ahead and submit us information as we are required. Are we clear? Who can direct? Commissioner or any officer authorized by him. This is important for exam. Baba, this is an ex amendment which is there for number 22 exam, but nothing which is very important. From exam point of view, it is C graded topic only, but C graded topic may also, this amendment is there, wherein they are telling who can go ahead and ask? Commissioner or an officer authorized may by an order, they can give an order and direct any person to furnish. Who has to furnish? Any person to furnish statistics also, they can go ahead and tell them. Taking the assistance of expert, Baba, if officer is come for, your, for an investigation and he wants to take the help of a chartered accountant, can he do that? They are telling over here, who can take and when he can take and at what stage can the assistance be taken? Who can take the assistance? Any officer not below the rank of assistant commissioner having regards, when can he take? When he is having regards to the nature and complexity of the case, that the case is very complicated and the interest of in the interest of the revenue take the assistance of any expert at any stage see who can take any officer greater than equal to assistant commissioner when at any stage at any stage of scrutiny inquiry investigation or any other proceeding if by chance they feel they need it expert ka help they need information technology expert ka help they need uh, ca ka help cs ka help cma ka help they can go ahead and take the help of any expert the, who has allowed them section number 153 section number 158 disclosure of information by a public servant everyone over here what are the circumstances when information collected by the gst officer can be disclosed gst officer can never go ahead and disclose the information which is which is your return related information etc why sir baba if, i hope you guys remember in offenses and penalty penalty is there they can be penalized or they can be also sent to jail Yes, sir. Now, officer sometime can go ahead and disclose the information with respect to a person. What are the circumstances when the information collected by the GST officer can be disclosed? What, what are the cases when GST officer can disclose your information? Number one. Yes, the confidential information can be disclosed for certain purpose. Number one, for prosecution, when they want to send you to jail. For carrying out an object of the act, means the objective of the act if they want to carry out and for the objective of the act if they have to disclose, then they can disclose. Then for service of notice or recovery of demand or for furnishing the information to court in proceedings where government is a party. 
Now, if one case is going on, appeal is going on and government is a party, then your information can be disclosed in the court. Or for audit of tax receipt or refund, for inquiry into a contract, for in inquiry into the conduct of a GST officer, for enabling levy, realization of any tax or duty, in lawful exercise of power or for inquiry into charge of misconduct by a professional. Are we clear everyone? These are the cases where your information can be disclosed. Other than these cases, your information cannot be disclosed. If officer goes ahead and discloses your information, he can be uh, fined or he has to go to jail also. Right everyone? Offenses and penalties chapter. Next, section number 159, publication of information in respect of certain person. Means your information, they have made it public. They have made it public. When can they do that? Supposingly, you are a supplier who is issuing bogus invoice. You are caught. Now, your information, they can make it public. Saying that this, these suppliers have been caught who are issuing bogus invoices. Whoever people have gone ahead and bought from this supplier, this supplier has not paid any tax to the government. So, hence, this, this supplier say whoever has bought are required to reverse the credit. So, that is why might be a bogus uh, supplier is caught or might be a person who is a buyer who buys invoice and further supplies. All these bogus people when they are caught, they will make your information public. It says, when shall the particulars relating to any proceedings or prosecution sending someone to jail be published under the GST law, discuss the relevant provision. When the commissioner or officer authorized is of the opinion that it is necessary or expedient in public interest to publish the name of any person. That Baba, this was the thief who is caught now. And any other particulars relating to any proceedings or prosecution under the GST Act in respect of such person. Basically, the proceedings also, also can be made. They are telling relating to details relating to. It says when the commissioner or officer authorized is of the, of the opinion that it is necessary or expedient in public interest to publish the name of any person. Name also and any other particulars relating to proceedings. Or prosecution means what happened in the proceedings. I want to make it public. Then they are telling they can go ahead and do against such person. Then no publication under this act shall be made in relation to any penalty imposed under the act. Sir, we have imposed 5 crore ka penalty. All these things are not required to be disclosed. Unless the time for presenting the appeal to the appellate authority has expired. You are telling officer made one proceedings against me. He gave me an order. I have the time to appeal. I am going for appeal. He has made my name full gone. My name only is in water now. He has gone ahead and published everywhere that this guy was caught and he is a thief. Unless I have the time to appeal, you can't declare me a thief. They are telling no, but no publication. Sorry, no publication. They are telling you can't go ahead and make it public. Under this act shall be made in respect of any proceedings, in any penalty imposed until the time for presenting any appeal to the appellate authority has expired without an appeal having been presented or the appeal if presented has been disposed of only when the appeal is disposed of then you can go ahead and make the name public of a person otherwise you can't go ahead and do it they are telling this one this one no publication under this act shall be made in relation to any penalty penalty related you can't go ahead and make it any Public. Sir, tell me one thing. One person was issuing bogus invoice. Will I wait for him to go for an appeal? No. For that person, I can make it public. But for penalty related things, if you want to make it public, first wait. Let his time period for appeal go off or might be after the appeal is disposed of, only then you can make it public. It says, no, no publication shall be made in relation to any proceedings unless the time period for appeal is gone or appeal has been disposed of. Next, rectification of error. Any apparent mistake which is there, you can, can you go ahead and rectify? It says, rectification of error apparent on the face of record. Everyone listen. When you read appeals and revision, in that appellate tribunal was given a time limit. Yes, everyone, how much time was given? Do you guys remember? Three months was given for the appellate tribunal to go ahead and rectify if any apparent mistake is there. Other than that, if any authority goes ahead and makes any mistake, will there be no time limit? There is a time limit for other people also. If one officer passed an order, apparent mistake is there. What is the time limit? It says, explain the provision relating to rectification of error apparent on the face under section number 161. This is your exam question. Any authority who has passed an order or issued any decision, order, notice, certificate or any other document. 
that any authority who has issued any notice, document, anything may rectify an error apparent on the face. Sir, it is apparent on the face, copy paste mistake it is. One zero added extra. They are telling any mistake either on its own or wherein such error was brought to its notice by any GST officer or the affected person. Whoever brings it to, it, to its notice, I myself observed observe that there is a mistake. You got it to my notice or any GST officer got to my notice. Within a period of three months, apparent mistake I can rectify. Any mistake which is apparent on the face. Take everyone. But the maximum time limit is what? No such activation shall be made after a period of six months from the date of issue. Clerical error ke liye, the six months is also not applicable. Clerical error, error. What is clerical error? Like one zero added extra, typo errors, etc. See, apparent mistake means any any other details which are there, any mistake which is there, they can go ahead and rectify. Those ke liye, three months to six months. Maximum is six months. But typographical error, etc. There is no time limit which is applicable. Period of six months not applicable in case of clerical, arithmetical error arising from accidental slip or omission. In case of adverse effect, Baba, whenever they are doing any rectification, because of which your ITC is coming down, refund is coming down, output tax liability is going up, they have to give you principle of natural justice, opportunity of being heard. Are we clear, everyone? This is very, very important for your exam. Section number 168, power to issue instructions or direction. Everyone, explain the scope of circulars and instruction issued by the board. Everyone, tell me one thing. Which section gives the power to issue circulars? Here, this one. Section number 168 empowers CBIC to issue orders, instruction, direction to the CGST officer for any, for the purpose of uniformity in implementation of the CGST Act. If officers are not going ahead and doing some things in a certain way, government can issue order, instruction, standard operating procedures, circulars, clarification. Who gives the power? Section number 168. All officers and other person employed in the implementation of the act shall observe and follow such order, instruction and direction. Always remember circulars are binding on the GST officers. Circulars are never binding on the Assesses. Is it mandatory that I should follow CBIC ka circular? No. Sir, if I follow, then GST officer will also be happy. But if I don't follow, he might pass an adverse decision against you. Go for an appeal. Yes, everyone, it is not mandatory. A circular is not is binding on the officer, but not on the assesses. The next one over here is section number 168A. Section number 168A was introduced in COVID time. In COVID time, you saw all the returns, etc. Because people could not file the returns, etc. Time limit had to be extended. Section number 168 was introduced. Power of the government to extend the time limit in special circumstance. The time limit provided under the GST Act cannot be extended. Yes or no, everyone? Whatever time limit is told in GST Act, only you can do that. Do you agree with the statement? No. Because section number 168 says, in case of flood, <coughs> pandemic, all this time, may government has one power which is under section number 168, which says, even if you have told one time limit in the act, we can extend beyond that also. In, in COVID time, six months extended. This was the power. No, the government has the power to extend the time limit under the act. However, such powers are not unbridled powers. Section number 168A empowers the government to extend the time limit only when the action cannot be completed or complied with due to force Majere. What do you mean by force majere, everyone? Force majere means war, epidemic, flood, drought, fire. Baba, you can't go ahead and uh, extend the time limit beyond the time which is told in the act always. It should be only in case of force majere, which goes ahead and says there is a war. Baba, war is happening. People are filing return. Is it possible? Cyclone, epidemic, pandemic came, flood, drought, fire, cyclone or any other calamity caused by nature affecting the implementation of the provision of act provision of the act, this power can also be exercised retrospectively. Baba, this power was introduced during COVID time because COVID time may the time limit has to be extended and hence government had introduced this power. Is, can government go ahead and extend the time limit beyond the time which is provided by, by the act? Yes, by using the power under section number 168, but 168 ka power can be only used in case of force majere, which is basically war, cyclone, etc., which is caused by nature. Next, everyone, is service of notice. Whenever they have to give you any notice, demand, summon, etc., where should they send you? It says, service of notice in certain circumstances. State the various modes of service of notice. How will they send you the notice? 
or decision or order or summon or any other communication. It says, sir, giving or tendering directly including by courier to the addressee. They can send it directly by a courier. They have to send you one show cause notice, summon order. How will they send it? They can send you directly by a courier or they will send it to you or your authorized representative or to any adult member of the family residing with the taxable person. They are telling, giving or tendering directly, including by courier. To whom? To the addressee, means you or the authorized representative or the adult member. Your home may one courier came, kid took it, all tore and tore it, thrown it. So they are telling it should be given to one adult member. Then, or they can send you by registered post, speed post, courier with acknowledgement due at the last known of place of business or residence or by email to the email address provided at the time of registration or as amended from time to time or by making the same available in the common portal. They will send you on your common portal. You can go log in and you will be able to see or sir, if they are not finding you anywhere, publication in newspaper circulated in the locality in which the addressee is last known to have resided or carried on business or professionally work for gain. Might be they will go ahead and circulate in the newspaper which is in your locality where you were residing or you were doing business. Or if none of the above modes are practical, then they will affix it at the last known place of business or residence. They will come, put the notice or the order in your place of business or in your residence. If such mode is not practicable, sir, we don't know where he stayed last. Ran off. Fly by night, issued bogus invoice, ran off. How to issue him notice now? They are telling, or for any other reason, then if it is not practicable, you are not able to find his residence also, place of business also, then by affixing a copy thereof on the notice board of the office of the concerned officer or authority. Get out of your room, the notice board may you put it that this person is a person who has gone ahead and issued bogus invoice and there is the notice, order, etc. You can just affix in your office only. Can we go ahead everyone? Now, in this chapter, in this miscellaneous provision, everyone listen to me very carefully. First of all, I believe that anyone can be asked. That is why I have given you over here. The question answers also I have gone ahead and covered, which can be probably asked in your exam. In this also, if you want to me to further tell you that in my opinion, 145, you should not leave. Rectification of error is very important. And section number 169, these three Baba, C minus graded topic ka, C graded or C minus graded topic ka, A graded questions are these three. Other than that also they can ask you, that is why I have gone ahead and told. Right everyone? Other than this, the next chart which is there on National Anti-Profitering Authority and Anti-Profitering is also very important for your exam. Right everyone? I will close my discussion on miscellaneous provision over here. Congratulations people, we are done with the Q&A also. Done everyone? Done sir. People, let's go ahead and do miscellaneous provision now. Miscellaneous provision may anti-profitering and national anti-profitering ka one chart is there. Right everyone? Although not a very important topic from exam point of view, but miscellaneous provision, if you go ahead and see, in your chapter of miscellaneous provision, this chart becomes A graded. Are we clear everyone? In a C graded chapter, A graded topic. Let's go ahead and understand quickly anti-profit ring and national anti-profit ring authority. See, people are doing profit ring. For profit ring, government is going, going ahead and getting anti-profit ring rules. And if people are going ahead and doing profit ring, there is a authority known as national anti-profit ring authority who will catch you and they will go ahead and penalize you. Are we clear? Sir, what do you mean by profit ring? Let's understand profit ring. Listen to me very carefully. Very interesting. You tell me. Sir, GST rate on food item earlier when GST came was 18%. So, one, you went to uncle to have dosa, masala dosa. Uncle told 20 rupees plus he went ahead and charged you 18%. He charged 25 rupees for the dosa. He was making how much profit? 1 rupee 40 paisa. GST rate reduced by, if GST rate was increased by the government, Will he increase the GST immediately and the rate of dosa immediately? Yes, sir. GST rate reduced, increased by the government, burden on you. GST rate reduced by the government, benefit also should be going to you. If he doesn't go ahead, see over here, rate reduced by from 18 to 5%. From 18, it is reduced to 5. 
So it means GST is 1 rupee. Still he is selling at 25 only. Uncle, uncle, why are you still selling at 25 rupees? You are making 4 rupees profit now. Means you are making 2.60 rupees profit which should have come to my pocket. If GST would have gone up, you would have taken from my pocket. GST has come down, you should give it to my pocket. If you don't give it to my pocket, you are doing profiting. Making extra profit because of GST rate coming down is profiting. You are going ahead and doing profit ring and national anti profit ring authority. Ko, I will complain. You cry, go to go and complain. They will go ahead and catch hold of him, cancel his registration, impose penalty. Sir, one more thing you tell me. Everyone listen. Earlier, free flow of credit was not there. So you, you never used to get the credit. Whenever you never used to get the credit, cost of the goods used to go up. Now, because of coming of GST, free flow of credit is there. Cost of goods should come down for you. Yes or no? And the cost of goods is coming down because of what? GST. Because of the coming of GST, if cost of goods is coming down, your selling price also should come down. People are not reducing their selling price. Cost is coming down. Cost is going up, you would have hit it on the head of the buyer, consumer. Cost is coming down because of GST. The benefit also should be given to consumer. If you don't give, you are doing profit ring. See, earlier the credit was... GST introduced in 2017 leading to what? Free flow of credit reduction in cost. Sir, credit was 2 rupees, cost was 20, selling price was 25, profit you are making 5 rupees. With the coming of GST, credit has increased now. Free flow of credit is there. Because of that, your cost has come down. But you are still selling at the same price. Means you are trying to do profit ring. Excess profit due to reduction in tax. When government has reduced the tax, you should also reduce your selling price and pass on the burden. Sir, Benefit of ITC, if commensurate benefit, commensurate means here you made 2 rupees, no? You told, okay, fine, no one will come to know. One I will give, one I will give to customer. Equal benefit has to be passed on to the consumer. How much GST rate came down? Whatever was the benefit, total benefit has to be passed on to the consumer. Commensurate benefit shall be passed on to the consumer. If you don't pass, you are guilty of profit ring, national anti profit ring to deal against such suppliers. Profiting means to make unfair profits illegally. anti profiting measures are introduced in GST to prevent suppliers from profiting so that people don't do profiting. Did you understand everyone? GST rate came down. Benefits should be passed on to consumer. People don't go and pass on the benefit. Keep their benefit in there. Keep the benefit of the consumer in their pocket. That is known as profiting. GST came. Cost came down. Sir, because ITC, you are getting more. So, your cost came down. Supplier ka selling price also should come down. But you did not reduce the selling price. You made extra profit. And that is known as profit ring. You know what happened? This is supposedly over here, Rakesh. And Rakesh started crying, Sir, my masala dosa, he did not reduce the price. What will Rakesh do, everyone? Rakesh will go ahead and file an application with evidence. Sir, you see, Earlier, when GST rate was 18%, masala dosa 25. Now, GST rate is 5%, masala dosa 35. It means this, this shopkeeper is doing profit ring. Are we clear, everyone? So, complaint for profit ring can be filed by consumer. Might be an organization. Might be any supplier who is there. Might be a trader who is there. Might, a supplier who is there who is going ahead and supplying. His supplier is doing profit ring. Or might be a trader or retailer. Anyone can go ahead and file a complaint. Whoever is hurt. Whoever is telling, sir, I am not getting the profit which I should have gone. Means he is doing profiting, sir. The benefit should have come to me. Are we clear? So, in that scenario, whoever is crying, first we will go ahead and file an application. Remember one thing. There is one is standing committee and one is state level screening committee. One is standing committee, one is state level screening committee. If your, if your problem which is there is a state ka problem, then first you have to go to state level screening committee. If your problem is a national problem, for an example, McDonald's. Across India, they have the restaurant. That's a national impact ka problem. In that scenario, see, if complaint involves an issue of national nature, all India impact, then directly go to the standing committee. But sir, if it's a complaint of local nature, hey, this uncle over here, shopkeeper, he is doing profit ring. Is it a national impact ka problem? No. So, in that scenario, state level screening committee you should go to. Everyone listen, you should go to standing committee if it is of national impact. Means across India, this complaint is going to have a benefit to consumers. In that scenario, go to state uh, standing committee. Otherwise, you should go to state level screening committee. Everyone, by chance, I directly went over here then. Then they will not throw your application. They will send the application to whom? 
screening committee they will screen the application listen if it comes from here also they will screen and send it over here if by if it comes over here then it will directly go here but if it comes over here and it is relating to an application which is relating to <coughs> state level local nature then sir they will send it over here they will screen and it will come back over here are we clear everyone everyone over here you should go ahead and file an application if complaints involves issue relating to national or all india impact directly with the standing committee otherwise your complaint should go to the state level screening committee baba they will go ahead state level screening committee will go ahead and ensure that sir supplier has contravened the provision of 171 basically they will first ensure before sending it to the national anti profiteering authority first they will ensure whether actually there is a profiteering which is happening or not then they will go ahead screen and forward the application to whom with recommendation for further action within 2 months plus 1 month extension can be given means state level screening committee within how much time they have to go ahead and do it screening should be done by within how much 2 months plus 1 month can, can extension can be given are we clear and the screening will be done and the case will come over here or might be uh, all india level ka complaints directly comes to where state screen uh, standing committee are we clear everyone it means it will come to the standing committee only if state level ka first it will, local nature ka complaint it will first go to whom state level screening committee and they will screen and give it over here national impact ka complaint will come directly to standing committee now standing committee after that review and for the direct application they will again screen it for that they will go ahead and again ensure whether documents are there evidence is there accuracy of the evidence etc see so they will go ahead and examine the accuracy and adequacy of the evidence provided in the application okay evidences let me go ahead and check them properly to determine if there is a prima facie evidence to support the claim of profiteering whether actually profiteering is happening or not happening they will first go ahead and check we had some issue we are starting again everyone over here now so what happened application goes over here and comes over here or application directly comes over here what will the standing committee do everyone standing committee will go ahead and examine the accuracy and adequacy with accurate is it accurate or not is it adequate or not enough or not they will go ahead and check and if there is a prima facie evidence to support the claim of profiting this guy is claiming that there is a profiting then within 2 months plus 1 month extension they will check who will check standing committee will check and send it to whom the director general of anti profiting can i go ahead everyone the next one over here sir now director general of anti profiting ke paas case will come now director general before initiation of the proceeding will issue a notice to the interested party hey dosa seller you come here hey you dosa eater you come here both of them he will call theek hai he will investigate and collect evidence of the profiting now complete the investigation within 6 months plus 3 month extension upon completion they will furnish their na furnish national anti profiting authority go they will give a report of its finding with relevant record now national anti profiting authority ke paas finally report has come standing committee then dgp and then national anti profiting authority local nature then screening committee standing committee local nature then sir state level screening committee then standing committee then dgp and then national anti profiting authority everyone over here national anti profiting authority may they are telling rule number 134 quorum is minimum how many number three people three people has to come for a meeting to be held basically for decision etc they will have people who are there three people is the minimum number of member they will give opportunity of being heard hey dosa seller you come here hey you eater you come here then it may see clarification from dgp on the report submitted dgp gave the report no so from dgp it can ask clarifications also then if national anti profiting authority determines a registered person has done profiting then it will pass an order within how much time 6 months now when they pass an order exam question what can the national anti profiting authority do when it is passing an order see they will go ahead and tell reduction in price they will direct you to a hey, reduce your dosa price can we go ahead then they will go ahead and return to recipient with interest hey you made 2 rupees extra profit to the 2 rupees you return along with interest he is telling sir thousands of people ate dosa i don't know who and all ate whom i should go ahead and return no problem consumer welfare fund put it in the consumer welfare fund will use for the benefit of the consumer everyone here return to the recipient with interest at the rate of 18% amount equivalent to benefit not passed on 
interest from the date of collection till the date of return because the day you collected it was not yours amount collected representing as tax same way amount collected which was not yours only it was it was never your profit please pay it immediately if you not pay date of collection till the date of return if eligible person does not claim or not identify well how will you identify six months i made profit ring how will i know who are the people who are there then they are telling deposit 50 percent in central consumer welfare fund 50 percent in state consumer welfare fund with interest from the date of collection till the date of payment government is selling we will take care next they can also impose 10 percent of the amount profit or cap penalty no penalty if amount is deposited within 30 days of order they can also cancel your registration for more, more knowledge you can visit www.naa.gov.in you will be able to find all these orders etc sir rule number 135 says non-compliance with the order immediately to attract recovery proceedings are we clear they can also start recovery if you don't go ahead and make the payments etc everyone over here national anti-profiting authority and dgap can exercise the power to summon any person hey five dosa dosa eaters were there hey all of you come you can call anyone they can go ahead and call anyone everyone over here sir can he go ahead and send the case back to him saying hey do that investigation properly yes further investigation or inquiry in the existing investigation might be any further inquiry is required in if on receipt of the report of dgp national anti profiting authorities of the opinion that further inquiry on investigation is required then it may record reason and refer the matter back to dgp for further inquiry or investigation it can send it for further inquiry new investigation sir dgp went ahead and saw whether masala dosa what was it this was masala dosa who was eating rakesh okay rakesh is sitting over here now listen now they anti profiting authority has a doubt that masala dosa means in idli also he is doing profit ring in other items also he is doing profit ring yes or no so they will go ahead and tell new investigation or inquiry can be ordered by the national anti profiting authority they say if on receipt of report of dgp anti profiting authority has reason to believe that there is contravention of provision of section number 171 with respect to other goods services or both because that's the nature of a person if he is doing cheating one thing may he is doing means other things also i think he is doing let me go ahead and catch him so he will tell dgp hey dgp this item he is selling mobile phone also no check to everyone if it may direct dgp to investigate or inquiry with respect to other good services or both your exam question can the case be referred back for further investigation yes can the case be referred back for new investigation yes now the amendment in the chapter government had gone ahead and told anti profiting authority national anti profiting authority will be there only for four years four years of gst already over people are still doing profiting they are not able to rectify people people will keep doing only so four years now made five years they are telling the tenure of the anti profiting authority national anti profiting authority this national anti profiting authority got tenure was how much shall be four years earlier because their amendment for your number 20 exam five years from the date chairman enters his office the chairman sat in the office on 30th number when the chairman assumed office from that day national anti profiting authority came into existence how many years it was four years amendment for your number 22 exam now it is made five years in your exam if this is actually your next uh, miscellaneous topic is a c grader topic but three to four mark in my opinion they will go ahead and ask and in your miscellaneous topic c graded topic a graded topic is your anti profiting authority right everyone i'll go ahead and close all my discussions over here take care everyone okay no 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 one minute huh done we are done with your chart of anti profiting and national anti profiting over here done baba i'll close my discussion over here so here we are done with the revisionary i hope you guys enjoyed the revisionary if you enjoyed the revisionary don't forget to share the video with your friends right everyone and also if you enjoyed the revisionary don't forget to leave me a comment subscribe to the channel and also like the video love you all please keep revising take care bye guys